The end of the world is coming. 90% of people are starving. But I am starting to attract beautiful women with food and shelter. Just because I have awakened the 10,000-fold resource system, the resources consumed by my women can be returned 10,000-fold. Ding Song Shuriing ate a packet of instant noodles and returned 10. 000, 000 packets. Ding Tang Shuero took a yuting pill and returned 10. 000, 000 pills. Ding Su Mengqian ate a fruit of ability and returned 10. 000, 000 fruits. I opened my phone and posted a message in the neighborhood group, offering free meals to beautiful women. Willing to chat privately. Please send a full body selfie without any filters first. The group immediately exploded. And the street office director Sun Jianming stepped forward, young man. It is currently a natural disaster period. You should hand over the food. One should not be too selfish, especially if you want to exchange food for women. This behavior is illegal. Chat with me privately, hand over the food for me to distribute and manage, and your responsibility will not be pursued. Aunt Zhang in seat number 705. How come this trash hasn't changed the group name? Who knows where he lives? I must go to his door and scold him to death. Be building number 1802 good mood every day. Where is the group owner? Quickly kick out this pervert. I am very calm. It is impossible to kick, because I am the group owner. I work at a 24-hour convenience store in the neighborhood, and people often ask me to deliver things to their door, to make delivery easier. I created this group. The purpose of sending this message is not to waste time online, but to share a system I obtained yesterday. As long as it is my woman, the consumed resources will be returned at a multiple rate, with the return rate equal to the number of women asterisk 100, current rate, 100. And a portable backpack is also given as a gift. With unlimited capacity and time stop. I have an ex-girlfriend named Song Shireen. We broke up half a month ago. But she is still counted in the system. I am not in a hurry to find another woman. The wealth center community is mostly young people. With hardly any food at home. But now. Food is scarce because the world has changed. The entire city of M.O. High is now covered in endless red mist. Only tall buildings like the TV tower and residential buildings can be seen above the mist. Like towers on a red sea. My home is on the 32nd floor, and everything below the 20th floor is submerged in the red mist. What's even more terrifying is that several pine trees in the community have grown as tall as 20 floors. Three days ago, red mist suddenly appeared globally, causing plants to grow wildly and animals to mutate. I even saw a cockroach larger than a rat. I took out a half-eaten bread from the refrigerator, and the bread that was just opened in the morning is now covered with gray-green mold. Food is rotting faster and faster. Not only are animals and plants evolving, but also microorganisms. All non-vacuum packed food is quickly spoiling. I walked to the balcony and threw the bread out. Ripples of red mist appeared, like water on the surface. On the first day of the red mist's arrival, I tried to go down to the 19th floor. Walking into the red mist, the light was severely blocked by the red mist, and all around was a creepy red darkness. After walking for a while, I heard human screams coming from deep within the red mist, so I hurried back and never left the room again. Now all social networks have exploded. Dragon Kingdom TV News, the red mist disaster is spreading worldwide, and all animals and plants are evolving rapidly. The Dragon Kingdom Security Department reminds all survivors not to go outdoors if possible. Please stay in the nearest building and wait for rescue. Note, extreme danger in the wild. Many people also speak out on self-media platforms. Help! I was bitten by a mosquito the size of a palm, and now my whole face is swollen. Oh my god, I saw a huge sparrow pecking down a helicopter. Ha ha ha. I can shoot lightning now. Please call me Lightning Man. I am the master of the new era. Superpower boss seeking sponsorship. I have fair skin and a beautiful appearance. Can use clips and bring my own whips, candles, and iron chains. Contact, triple X, image, image, image. I looked for a while and didn't see any good news. As for the superhumans, they appeared from the first day the red mist descended. And I am very curious about how these people obtained their abilities. Ding Song Shuriing ate a Snickers bar and received 100 in return, already stored in the personal space. I smirked, revealing a standard crooked grin. Since the system awakened, Song Shuriing has received a 100-fold return on all food eaten, enough for me to last a year. In addition, my personal space is filled with a large pile of canned goods, sausages, instant noodles, and other packaged foods, all of which are expired products from the convenience store. The convenience store owner where I work, Hu Ponzi often forces me to buy them at a 50% discount, and now they have become valuable resources instead. Jung Fan took out some food and took a few pictures, then passed them to the group. Pictures, 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 pictures block A number 303 rabbit, rubbish. Get out of the group. It's great to have food. Block C number 1708 Joe Tianhao, Skywalker Jim Coach, kid, don't be so nasty. I'll punch you to death. 
Picture, picture, Zhou Tianhao took the opportunity to take a few photos of his muscles, glowing with a metallic sheen. Block B number 809 grew up being called handsome, huh? Coach Chow, your muscles glow? Block C number 1708 Zhou Tianhao, Skywalker Gym Coach, ha! Huh? I don't know how it suddenly became like this. As long as I exerted myself, the skin of my whole body was so hard that I couldn't even cut it with a knife. And I'm twice as strong. Block A number 303 Rabbit, wow! Coach Zhou, you're great! Auntie Zhang, Block A number 705, the young man is so sunny looking. Auntie still has a lot of canned food at home. Let's come and eat together. The crowd balked at Zhou Tianhao. Zhang Fan looked on enviously. Zhou Tianhao this alien ability is very practical. His return system and carry-on space didn't provide combat power. Still no private chats from women. Zhang Fan wasn't in a hurry either. As the situation worsens, people will sooner or later fall into a state of lack of food as long as the officials fail to implement effective relief. He grabbed a watering can and watered the row of succulents on the windowsill. These succulents were left behind by an ex-girlfriend. Song Shireen. Zhang Fan didn't recognize any of them. One of the succulents was so strange that after the red mist appeared, the pot bore two lychee-like fruits, but black. These two black lychee fruits were so fragrant that Zhang Fan wanted to eat them every time he smelled them, but he held back. Everything is evolving like crazy right now. Hell if I know what the hell this is. The black lychee is creepy at first glance. Just then, there were screams from Block A across the street. Help. Help. Zhang Fan looked up toward the opposite building, just across the street. On the 21st floor of Block A, a cloaked woman ran out onto the balcony. Chapter 2 I am not helping the poor. The woman was dressed in tattered pajamas and covered in blood. Wow. A Garfield as huge as a tiger crashed through the glass and slowly forced its way through. Meow. The woman backed up into the corner of the balcony in terror and screamed, Lucky, don't you come over here. Help. Garfield stared straight at the woman, stepping closer. When the woman was about to be bitten to death by the giant cat, a huge blood-red tongue suddenly shot out from the red mist below. The tongue struck the balcony floor and curled around the woman instantly. The woman was instantly swept up in the giant tongue. Her eyes rounded in horror. And before she could even utter a scream, she was dragged into the red mist like lightning. The giant cat exploded with fur. It jumped to the edge of the balcony and whined a warning sound at the red mist. A flood of frogs chirped from the red mist, quack quack quack. The giant cat didn't dare jump and slowly turned back into the room. Crap. Jiang Fan's pupils shrunk violently. Are even frogs this scary now? A tongue twice as thick as a woman's waist. What a big frog that must be. At that moment the window of the next room opened, and a beautiful woman went to it, looking pale at the tragedy across the room. Jiang Fan knew her, Tang Shueluo, the most outstanding big beauty in the neighborhood, the second generation of officials. Her father is the director of the Investment Promotion Bureau. Although the two were neighbors, Tang Shueluo was usually very arrogant and never looked at Jiang Fan with a straight eye. Tang Shueluo was highly regarded in the neighborhood. And every time she went to the convenience store to buy something, there were many male customers peeking at her. Jiang Fan naturally couldn't help but look twice. He didn't have much of an idea though. He knew that people like himself and Tang Shueluo were from two worlds, but not anymore. The world has changed. Jiang Fan's gaze burned. Tang Shueluo discovered Jiang Fan's line of sight. She also recognized this downstairs convenience store clerk. She just didn't know the name. Tang Shueluo said with a cold face, What are you looking at? With that, he slammed the curtains shut. Wow, the bitch is quite arrogant. Jiang Fan laughed coldly. There are times when you beg me. After another one day, finally some women couldn't help themselves and started contacting Jiang Fan privately. Block in number 303 rabbit, little brother. Can you give me an instant noodle? Pity, pleading, the corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. Finally, this rabbit, Jiang Fan had never seen a real person. Some customers would ask Jiang Fan to leave their merchandise outside the room. Package, send a full body photo. No beauty face. Block a number 303 rabbit. People are slightly chubby body type oh, shy, pictures, pictures, my favorite microfat. Jiang Fan clicked on the picture and only felt a black eye. Arms thicker than his own thighs. The ass is as good as a facepalm. You call yourself microfat? It's clearly a meat tank alright. At this point, the system automatically prompts frowny facing you, age, 29, quality, 3 points, describes poorly, virtue of womanhood, 3 points, messy private life. 6x boyfriends, overall rating, 3, ding, does not meet minimum system requirements. Jiang Fan directly pulled black. Block a number 303 rabbit? Little brother? Immediately afterward, she realized that she had been blackballed and was so angry that she cursed at the group Jime guys. Packed with food, is a photo scam scumbag. Don't believe it. Jiang Fan was not polite, and decisively sent the screenshot of the chat to the group, just you deserve to trade your body for food. When I'm helping the poor, the group exploded. 
People couldn't imagine that Doomsday would still be able to eat a big melon, and some began to taunt Bunny. Bunny was annoyed. Block in number 303 Rabbit, packed with food not much to eat at all. Gmei guys don't believe him. Jiang Fan was not spoiled, and directly took out 100 Snickers from his carry-on space and took a few pictures and sent them to the group. Inclusive of food and housing, photo, 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 photo this time of year. Packaged foods like Snickers are hard currency, high energy, long shelf life, and life-saving in a pinch. Buddy's eyes went red, and he could only dive and shut up, holding his tongue, not daring to speak again. The group exploded. Block B number 509 My wife is leaking gas. Crap. So many Snickers. MS. Lou. Block in number 904 Food and shelter included brother. Can you give me something to eat? Some people are starting to get up in arms of block C number 901 Mrs. Sue, young man, my grandson hasn't eaten for three days. Send me some chocolates. Mrs. Sue, Jung Fan thought of this snarky old bitch. Old lady Sue likes to take advantage of small advantages, often in the stairway to steal other people's home waste cardboard boxes. Jung Fan once caught once, but old lady Sue dead deny. Selling waste paper is only a few dollars. Jung Fan is too lazy to break it up with her, even if it is. As it turned out, something else happened later. Mrs. Sue has a grandson named Tao Tao, a typical bear child. Jiang Fan just bought an electric motorcycle. The bear child scratched a cross on the seat. Jiang Fan checking the monitor to find Mrs. Sue, but she is still throwing a tantrum. Did not pay a penny. At that time, there wasn't much Jiang Fan could do even if he was angry. Old lady Sue this kind of shameless old bitch. You dare to move her a bit. Even scold her a sentence. She dared to pretend coma lying on the ground to blackmail people. Now, Jung Fan sneered. Package, your grandson is none of my business. Mrs. Sue was furious. No one had ever dared to talk to her like that. Block C number 901 Mrs. Sue, young man, do you understand respect for the elderly and love for the young? You keep so much food for yourself. You can't eat it all anyway. Why don't you give it to me? Food and lodging. I honor Nima. Mrs. Sue was furious. You dare to curse. Packed with food, old man. Get out. After saying that, Jung Fan directly banned Mrs. Sue. Mrs. Sue was so furious that her three corpses were jumping around. But unfortunately, she couldn't send out a single voice. So she could only be impotent and furious. The group was in an uproar. Some of the women were moved by the fact that they were running out of food in their homes and had to find new food. They are just worried about whether this package has enough food or not. No modern urbanite stores much food at home. Even if there are elderly people at home who like to buy a lot of rice, flour and oil, they are all stale and rotten now. Hunger will be a growing problem. Tang Shueloa looked at her cell phone and pressed her stomach in pain. It's just too hungry. She's a little ticked off, too. But then there's the fear that you'll be cheated out of your sex. How much food can this package store at home? Will it last a month? What happens after a month? What Tang Shueloa was more worried about was that if she had just given her body to the package and the country started rescuing her, wouldn't she lose a lot of money? There are quite a few people like Tang Shueloa, who still have illusions about state rescue. Most people are holding back in silence, constantly swiping their phones in anticipation of official news. After that, three women contacted Jiang Fan one after another, and although they weren't as ugly as Xin Yu, none of them could reach a combined score of eight, not recognized by the system. Jiang Fan refused all of them. These three women naturally ran to the group to bash Jiang Fan again. Jiang Fan also unceremoniously banned them all. For women with insufficient comprehensive ratings, Jiang Fan didn't bother to care if the other party died or lived. It's the end of days, it's good to save your own ass, and it's only the bogeyman who's a saintly mother. Besides, before the end of the world, convenience store clerks like Jiang Fan, who were typical bottom-feeding men, hadn't been deced by the women much. Now that I'm a bully, I don't care if you guys die. Jiang Fan opened a bottle of green tea and drank it comfortably. He ate ham and brined eggs and posted pictures of his meal to the group which naturally caused another bunch of curses. Day 5 of Red Mist Fall. 90% of the neighborhood is starving. Jung Fan still didn't go out. Even above the Red Mist, it's very dangerous out there. Yesterday he had also heard human screams coming from one of the nearby rooms, as if they had been attacked by some kind of animal. In high-rise buildings, sound travels very irregularly. Jung Fan didn't know if it was the next-door neighbor's room or the downstairs occupants. He ate a packet of instant noodles. Did some simple exercise? and then turned on the pesticide to start a game. The brothers are still alive? Crap. How do dead people play games? Hurry up and open. I've eaten everything in my house. I don't think I can make it through the day after tomorrow. I can play a few games. Hey, you want to play a few? Rolling. Just a few minutes into the fight, there was a scream from the microphone of the lower Lupin Dam. My dog is crazy. Don't bite me. 
Get the hell out of my way. After a scuffle and the growling of a dog, the Lupin player's voice disappeared. The horrible sound of an animal chewing through bone came from the microphone. Click, click, crunch. The team was silent. Zhang Fan turned off the game with a grimace. The world is getting crazier and crazier. Pet dogs are eating people. Zhang Fan took another look at the succulent plant with black lychees. This shit isn't poisonous, is it? Should I throw it away? Not long after, another woman chatted privately. Block C number 3201 Tenderness, hello. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up. Isn't that Tang Shu Elua from next door? A bad smile appeared at the corner of Zhang Fan's mouth. The bitch finally got over it. Chapter 3 Tang Shu Elua is in a hurry food and shelter. Don't talk nonsense. Send photos. Block C number 3201 Tenderness. Can I trade my gold necklace for a packet of instant noodles? Package, no gold necklaces. Send a full body photo right away or pull the plug. Tang Shu Elua hesitated for a few minutes before sending over a full body photo. In the photo, Tang Shu Elua stood expressionlessly in front of the camera. Her long hair draped over her shoulders, black and silky. She was wearing a pale green silk nightgown and had fair skin. She had been starving for about a couple of days and was pale and still carried herself with the flair of a supremely beautiful woman. The system automatically prompts Tang Shu Elua, age, 25, quality, 9 points, clean and clear, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Zhang Fan smiled in satisfaction. Package, yes. Come to my house. Block C number 3201 tenderness. Can I go home and sleep at night? Package, no. It's a deal. You have to stay at my place. Coming or not? Don't waste time. Tang Shu Elua was silent again. Zhang Fan was in no hurry. He knew that Tang Shu Elua was still hesitating. It's okay. Then you're hungry. I'm not hungry anyway. Zhang Fan threw Tang Shu Elua behind his head and continued to watch the video. That's when a live stream was swiped. Four men in the neighborhood ventured out in search of food. And one of them opened a live stream. Zhang Fan got serious and took the opportunity to understand the situation outside. In the camera, the road outside has been covered with dense weeds that are even taller than an adult's thigh. The tarmac was completely scrapped. Plant roots penetrate the pavement like steel bars, flailing upward and upright like iron spikes. Zhang Fan had no doubt that this thing could easily blow up a tire. When the cars can't be driven, there will be no formed units to come to the rescue. We have to survive on our own. Zhang Fan frowned as he watched the live broadcast. In the camera, one pine tree has a chest diameter of more than four people to encircle. The trunk of the tree grows straight upwards, disappearing into the red mist, and you can't see the end of it at all. From the anchor's point of view, it looks like the Tower of Terror. They passed a row of stores. It's empty now, with all kinds of plants growing everywhere. Even the walls and floors were covered with oddly shaped vines. As the anchor explores, more and more giant plants appear in the video. The four of them walk through it like dwarves who had mistakenly entered the land of giants. The highway, which was once busy with traffic, is now devoid of people. Deep weeds grow along the roadside. Parked vehicles entangled in vines. In just a few days, the bustling city was transformed into a pristine forest. Just then, a cat of enormous size jumped down noiselessly and clawed the man at the front. Crap! Help! Run! Run! The remaining three screamed and scattered. The anchor panicked and his cell phone was thrown to the ground by him. Pust! Ah! A patch of blood covers the camera. The live broadcast came to an abrupt end. Zhang Fan's face was ugly. It's just too dangerous out there. Tang Shu Elua picked up her cell phone and put it down again, repeating several times without being able to make up her mind. She was both ashamed and helpless. I just don't have a choice. The parents happened to be out of town on a business trip and now they can't be reached at all. The day before yesterday, all the food in the house had been eaten, and for the past two days she had had to drink cold white water to satisfy her hunger. If we don't do something about it, we'll just starve to death. Originally, she despised the package and thought she could hold out preferring to starve to death rather than commit herself to such nasty goods. Waiting until after the real starvation, Tang Shu Elua realized that all dignity is fake in front of hunger. It was as if someone was endlessly rubbing her stomach with glass sludge under the intense hunger. Unbearably painful and endless, Tang Shu Elua couldn't stand it for another half hour. She launched the private chat again. Block C number 3201 tenderness, can you really eat? Jiang Fan saw it, but didn't reply, deliberately hanging her out to dry. You contact me when you want to. And when you don't, you dive in? Nice try. Starve yourself. Tang Shu Elua waited apprehensively for 10 minutes, but there was still no response. Desperate, she lay in bed tossing and turning. Another night of starvation. In a rental house not far from the fortune center, Song Yuan Fan lazily lay on the sofa playing with his cell phone sis. I'm starving. Let's eat. Good. Song Shireen hurriedly got up as she opened the empty refrigerator, her heart growing alarmed. 
All refrigerated and frozen food is eaten. Still have a couple packs of instant noodles left, two boxes of lunch meat, and a couple of marinated eggs. It's the only food left in the house. Song Shireen was very disturbed. What if Farfan goes hungry? He's the only child of the old Song family. Song Shireen thought and thought before taking out a packet of instant noodles and a marinated egg. Instant noodles are quickly made. Song Shireen split it into two bowls, saving only a few bites of noodles for herself, and giving most of the noodles and the marinated egg to her brother. Song Yuan Fan picked at his rice bowl and said with dissatisfaction sis, is that all? It's not enough to eat. Song Shireen whispered, Farfan, hold on, there's almost no food in the house. No more food? Song Yuan Fan's face went white, what about? Sis, you go get some. Buy? Where to buy? How could Song Shireen dare to go out? She glanced out the window with a bitter face. It's all red mist. It's scary. Yesterday she also saw a mouse the size of a cat. In her anxiety, she remembers her ex-boyfriend Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan was forced by Fatty Hu to buy a lot of expired food. I can't believe you didn't offer to give yourself a little? Why is this man like this? Didn't you just break up with him? Don't even know how to send some food. Still a man. Song Shireen secretly complained in her heart, there should be food at Jiang Fan's. As soon as Song Yuan Fan heard this, he immediately said us sis, then what are you waiting for? Ask him for it. I'm starving to death. Tell him to bring it to us. Yes. Song Shireen was upset when she remembered that Jiang Fan had posted in the Fortune Center group looking for a woman. Damn Jiang Fan. How dare you find another woman. A man can't do without a woman to control him. Is this going to turn the world upside down? Song Shireen picked up her cell phone and aggressively called Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan smiled when he saw that it was Song Shireen, and since he had nothing to do anyway, he picked it up. Jiang Fan. Song Shireen's clear and cold voice came out in an accusatory tone. Jiang Fan couldn't help but recall Song Shireen again. She's pretty, but she's got a deadpan face every day, pretending to be a high-maintenance model with herself. It's silly to think that I was so dumb before that I was mesmerized by this green tea. Jiang Fan said coldly, what for? Song Shireen said perkily, why don't you bring me something to eat? Jiang Fan sneered. Song Shireen wanted to take the test after graduating from college. Jiang Fan worked at night and drove a drip during the day, and provided for her for three years, and today she finally took the test. As a result, Song Shireen turned around and kicked herself for not being able to pay the $380.000 dowry. For you? Who are you? Didn't we break up? Song Shireen stalled and panicked. She didn't expect Jiang Fan to actually disobey and shouted forcefully, Jiang Fan, breaking up? I was testing you. I didn't realize that you really couldn't stand the test and actually wanted to find another woman. Jiang Fan snorted, test? There's no need for a test. I'm a commoner. I can't afford a $380.000 dowry. When it came to the bride price, Song Shireen was also angry, is it the money I care about? What I care about is your attitude. Think it over yourself. Click. The phone was hung up by Jiang Fan. Dare to hang up on me. Song Shireen was furious. Song Yuan Fan said anxiously, sis, where's the food? Song Shireen suppressed her panic and pretended to be certain, don't worry. Jiang Fan will fight back. Jiang Fan didn't even dare to speak out loud to himself. I just need to reveal the meaning of reconciliation. And he'll be overjoyed. Song Shireen convinced herself and became confident again. Song Yuan Fan laughed, so your boyfriend is a lickspill. What boyfriend? Song Shireen disdained. You've already taken the civil service exam yourself. How is it possible to be in a relationship with an unstaffed convenience store clerk? Song Shireen said in disgust, just looking for him to order some food. He's not worthy of me. Hey, sis, when he admits defeat, you tell him to send all the food over. Don't leave it for him. Ah, uh, this, Jiang Fan isn't stupid. It's impossible for him to give it all to me. However, I should be able to ask for a large portion of it. In that case, sis, you lie to him and say that you heard the news that the officials are organizing a massive rescue right away, and that it's no use at all to leave too much food. Yes. Chapter 4, Tang Shuelawa delivered to the door the siblings waited for a while, but the phone still didn't ring. Now Song Shireen wasn't calm anymore and was a bit anxious, and she had eaten very little in the past few days and was so hungry that she just couldn't carry it off. What's wrong with this kid? No eyes at all. Didn't I give you the chance to go downhill? Hmph. Well, give you the chance and you don't cherish it, don't blame me for being rude to you. Song Shireen angrily picked up her cell phone and called Jiang Fan. The number you have dialed is empty. Please confirm before dialing. Empty numbers? Song Shireen froze for a moment before reacting. Jiang Fan has blackballed me. Song Shireen was furious. How dare you scare me? Grow up! Song Shireen didn't believe it and tried to send a VX message to Jiang Fan again. Turns out it's been pulled as well. Now, she was completely confused and began to panic in her mind. Without Jiang Fan, where would she get food? 
Song Yuan Fan also got anxious, this asshole is still lying about women. In case a woman does go over, won't the food in Jiang Fan's house be consumed even faster? That's all our food. Song Shireen hurriedly said, impossible, what woman would be so stupid? How much food could he have? Who would want to be with a shopkeeper if he doesn't still starve after eating? You let me think of another way. Jiang Fan will come back to me. I know him. He's getting angry. Jiang Fan pulled the plug on Song Shireen, but deliberately kept her number in the group. How pointless it would be for Song Shireen to be invisible when she showed off her food in the future. The next day, Jiang Fan finished his breakfast and stood by the window looking downstairs. The red mist got taller again. A few days ago the red mist only reached the height of the 20th floor floor floor. Today it has filled half of the 20th floor windows. Jiang Fan was secretly worried. How high will the red mist actually rise? It's not going to cover the 30th floor as well, is it? Jiang Fan did some push-ups and other exercises, broke a sweat, took a shower, and comfortably drank a bottle of ice cola before opening his cell phone to reply to Tang Shu Elua. Package, yes. You can come over. Tang Shu Elua waited all night, no longer dared to delay, and hurriedly replied, Can I go over now? Where do you live and can you come pick me up? I'm scared. Package, I know where you live. You go out now and wait. I'll pick you up right now. Tang Shu Elua froze for a moment. A few minutes later, Jiang Fan heard the clicking sound of the door opening from the doorway. He looked out through the cat's eye, only to see Tang Shu Elua poking her head out of the next room and carefully closing the door. Jiang Fan carefully observed and made sure that Tang Shu Elua was unarmed before opening the door and looking at her with interest. Tang Shu Elua looked at Lian Ping warily and disgustedly, never seen a pretty girl before. The corner of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly as he said, I'm all inclusive. Tang Shu Elua's mouth opened wide, followed by a flood of anger, stinky loser. You lied to me. Just then, there was the sound of sticky footsteps in the stairwell, and heavy breathing, like huge bellows. Phew phew there are monsters coming up from the red mist. Jiang Fan didn't hesitate to turn around and go home. The door to the room slammed shut. Tang Shu Elua couldn't care less about scolding Jiang Fan. She turned her head and tried to open the door to go home in a hurry, but ended up dropping the key under her nervousness. The door to Tang Shu Elua's house was facing the door to the stairwell, and the key kicked on his foot in a good way before bouncing off into the stairwell with a clanging sound. The monster's footsteps instantly quickened at the sound. Tang Shu Elua's face went violently white, turning her head to pounce on Jiang Fan's door. Slapping it in fear and crying, let me in, let me in, help me. Jiang Fan was worried that she had lured the monsters over. And after taking a look to make sure that the monsters hadn't come up yet, he violently pulled open the door and pulled her in with one hand. Ah, you're hurting me. Tang Shu Elua screamed. Shut up, don't talk. Jiang Fan pressed her against the wall by the door with a thud and nervously looked out through the cat's eye. At that moment, a huge dog scurried out of the stairway. Woof woof woof, about a fine dog in appearance but at least 1 meter 5 in height and over 2 meters 5 in length. His body was gnarled with muscles, his gaze was fierce, and his teeth were cold. The mutant dog sniffed around at the entrance of the building, gradually approaching the door of Jiang Fan's house, its heavy breathing coming in through the door. Tang Shuelua shivered beyond recognition. Jiang Fan also held his breath nervously. That's when the sound of human screams came from downstairs. Woof woof woof. The mutant dog turned his head violently and scurried down the stairs. Jiang Fan finally breathed a sigh of relief, which gave him time to look at Tang Shu Elua. This was the first time Jiang Fan had scrutinized Tang Shu Elua up close. In the past, when Tang Shu Elua saw Jiang Fan, she used to look at him with her chin. She had long hair, a waspish waist and fat ass, straight thighs, and tight jeans that stretched taut. Tang Shu Elua reverted back to her cold arrogance in the safe environment. She wrapped her arms around herself and took a step back, saying with a cold face, I'm warning you, don't think twice. Jiang Fan had an ordinary appearance and an ordinary height of 175. Tang Shu Elua was tall, with a foot of 169, and usually when she wore high heels, she was basically as tall as Jiang Fan. Bottom men like Jiang Fan, she would never look at them with a square eye. Ha! Jiang Fan laughed sunnily and flung his hand to slap him. Snap! It's the end of the world, and you're still fucking playing this with me. Besides, you're the one who came forward to sell your body. Now act like shit. Tang Shu Elua covered her face in disbelief, don't you dare hit me, hit you? Jiang Fan pulled out his dagger with a mischievous sound and said indifferently turn your face and stand facing the wall. Tang Shu Elua's face turned pale as she looked at the morose dagger, you, you, you. Jiang Fan stared at her unkindly, I'll say it one last time, turn around to the wall and turn your back on me. Tang Shu Elua shivered and turned her face to face the wall, turning her back to Jiang Fan in an aggravated manner I, can't I turn around. Jiang Fan put the dagger against her waist and said coldly, hands up. Tang Shu Elua was shocked by the sharp tip of the knife and completely wimped out, crying, don't kill me, 
You can do anything. Don't kill me. Uhu ignoring her. Jiang Fan carefully squeezed one hand in her hair to make sure she hadn't hidden a blade in it. Then behind the ears. And then the mouth. Jiang Fan's large, coarse hand broke her teeth. Open your mouth. Tang Shuela's head went blank. She didn't dare to resist and obediently opened her mouth. Her tears flowing silently as I saw them. Jiang Fan, however, did not change his face and carefully touched it. No razor blades under the tongue either. Now that it was the end of days, he didn't know if Tang Shuelua would have a heart of gold, so it was better to be careful. Exposing a whole lot of food in a group by yourself is definitely fattening for a lot of people. Hell knows if anyone's trying to get it themselves. The most dangerous thing in the end times is the human heart. After checking his mouth, Jiang Fan's big hand went all the way down. Armpit. The gully between the peaks. Further down. Every indentation on Tang Shuelua's body was a possible place to hide a weapon. All of it was carefully touched by Jiang Fan. There was no problem. Jiang Fan withdrew his dagger with satisfaction. Tang Shuelua finally reacted that the other party was searching her body, both shy and angry. I'm a woman. Do you have to be so careful? However, the dagger in Jiang Fan's hand made her not dare to say anything, and her body didn't dare to move. So she can only turn her face hatefully and glare at Jiang Fan. Gee, I have to say, this woman is just beautiful, with a perfect side profile. Yo, still quite stubborn. Jiang Fan laughed as he grabbed Tang Shuelua's long hair at the back of her head and forcefully pressed her head towards the house. Ah, don't you push so hard. Tang Shuelua's tears flowed out from the pain, and she was pulled down and stumbled. Jiang Fan pressed her down onto the sofa, stay down and don't move. Chapter 5 You can swipe supplies indefinitely. Tang Shuelua sat cowering in a corner of the sofa, as far away from Jiang Fan as possible, sobbing in a low voice. It's a mix of self-loathing, fear, shyness, and even a little bit of anger, I can't believe I'm being treated by a convenience store clerk. She shed tears of remorse and looked at Jiang Fan in disgust. Jiang Fan hated this kind of look in Tang Shuelua's eyes the most, and stepped forward to pinch Tang Shuelua's chin and said coldly bitch, are you crying wolf? Tang Shuelua screamed and slapped away Jiang Fan's hand, don't you touch me. Jiang Fan wouldn't spoil her, and simply pulled out his dagger and get the hell out of here. Tang Shuelua was startled, followed by incredulity, you said you'd feed me, you lied to me? Jiang Fan sneered, so what if I lie to you? You call the police to arrest me. Tang Shuelua looked at Jiang Fan incredulously, wanting to immediately slam the door and leave, but when she thought that there was nothing to eat at home, and if she couldn't find any more food, she would probably starve to death. She's desperate. Tang Shuelua no longer dared to play with her temper and could only bow her head and beg, please give me something to eat. Right, that's the attitude of begging. Jiang Fan patted her cheek in satisfaction. Tang Shuelua no longer dared to lose her temper and could only shrink in the corner of the sofa, looking at Jiang Fan in horror as she cried in a low voice. Jiang Fan flipped his hand and a piece of bread appeared in his palm. Tang Shuelua looked dumbfounded. However, the moment you get a good look at the bread, all thoughts vanish into thin air. She hadn't eaten anything decent in three days. Tang Shuelua pounced like a hungry dog and grabbed for the bread. Immediately afterward, she paused, because Jiang Fan raised his dagger. Tang Shuelua said in fear, what are you doing? The corner of Jiang Fan's mouth lifted up and patted her cheek, if you want to eat, you can, but no crying, give me a smile. Tang Shuelua shed tears in aggravation, still trying to squeeze out a smile. Jiang Fan disliked it, smiling is worse than crying. Smile better for me. Tang Shuelua broke down, I'm all smiles. What more do you want? What's wrong with you? Before she could say anything, Jiang Fan opened the window and threw the bread down, if you can't laugh then don't eat. Tang Shuelua screamed, don't throw, don't throw it. She flung herself to the window and looked despairingly at the empty red mist below. Can't see the bread at all. Tang Shuelua broke down. Let's talk this over. Why are you throwing? Wu Wu Jiang Fan reached out and a packet of bread appeared in his hand out of thin air. Tang Shuelua stared stupidly at the bread. You, you do magic? Jiang Fan didn't answer her. Want some? Tang Shuelua was so hungry that she couldn't think of anything else and nodded her head repeatedly. Think. She offered to squeeze out a curt smile. Smart. Jiang Fan smiled slightly and threw the bread at her feet, it's okay to eat, but you have to eat it on your knees. Aren't you proud of yourself? I specialize in condescension. Tang Shuelua had trouble accepting it and said angrily no, I'd rather starve. Jiang Fan pointed at the door, then you can go. I'm not one to push people. You still don't like to force people. Tang Shuelua's mind broke down again and cried out in pain, what's wrong with you? Jiang Fan was calm, don't be a crybaby. Give me a smile. A nice smile. Tang Shuelua shouted angrily, it's out of your hands. Jiang Fan tore open the bread and the aroma of the bread came out. Tang Shuelua's crying stopped at once, and she stared at the bread, her eyes straight, her nose inhaling rapidly. Jiang Fan said in a seductive voice, want to eat or not? Just kneel down. Tang Shuelua tangled, 
Snap. Zhang Fan stomped on the bread. My bread. Tang Shuelua felt like stepping on her heart and it was breaking. Zhang Fan crushed the bread slowly and calmly, eat it or not. I'll throw it in the trash if you don't. Tang Shuelua completely lost the courage to resist. She plopped down on her knees and cried while eating, feeling that her self-respect, like bread, had also been trampled under Zhang Fan's feet. Zhang Fan, however, stomped her to the ground with a cold voice, I said, give me a smile. Tang Shuelua was incomparably aggravated and could only hold back her tears with difficulty and squeeze out a smile. Zhang Fan disliked it, crying is ugly. Forget it this time, next time, if you still cry that hard, you won't be able to eat. Tang Shuelua couldn't care less about what Zhang Fan said and desperately stuffed bread into her mouth. Woohoo! He's a devil! Woohoo! It's so fragrant! Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed one bread and returned 200. It's been put into the carry-on space. Zhang Fan was secretly happy in his heart. This bread, a replica returned to him after Song Shireen ate it. Sure enough, the woman eats the replica bread and returns it as well. That way, you can swipe unlimited supplies. Zhang Fan was in a good mood as he looked at the 200 new breads in the space. In the future, one will never run out of food again. The multiplier isn't high enough right now though. Moreover, Tang Shuelua was too little for one woman. And in case she died, there would be no one to help her brush the food. And keep looking for more women. After Tang Shuelua finished eating, her stomach was finally much more comfortable. She cowered and looked at Zhang Fan. Her eyes red, now a little scared. This man is as good as the devil. Zhang Fan lifted his finger. A bottle of pure water appeared out of nowhere in Tang Shuelua's arms. She was startled. Is this magic? No, it's psychic powers. Tang Shuelua remembered the fitness instructor in the group with glowing muscles. This man should have also obtained some kind of psychic ability. About the ability to store space or something like that. This kind of ability is a life-saving treasure in the end times. Tang Shuelua was envious and couldn't help but feel some sort of anticipation in her heart. Maybe, follow him to live longer. Unconsciously, Tang Shuelua's mindset underwent a slight change. Jiang Fan smiled a drink. Tang Shuelua isn't too thirsty. Now that the utilities were off and there was no food, she had to drink more cold water. She didn't dare retort, though, and unscrewed it and took a small sip. Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed a bottle of pure water and returned 200 bottles. It's been put into the carry-on space. So it is. Jiang Fan was secretly delighted. Turns out she doesn't need to drink at all. Just one sip counts as consumed and then it returns. One is perfectly capable of letting a woman waste with impunity to swipe a lot of supplies quickly. Zhang Fan continued to test the system's capabilities. He took out another unopened pack of toilet paper and handed it to Tang Shuelua. Uh, don't cry. It's ugly. Wipe your tears. Tang Shuelua didn't dare to resist and tore open the package, pulling out a piece of paper to wipe her cheeks clean. However, Zhang Fan did not hear the system prompt. Can't you return supplies that aren't food? Zhang Fan was thoughtful. Chapter 6, Black Lychee. Fruit of the Alien. Zhang Fan walked into the master bedroom. It was a three-room suite that Zhang Fan shared with two women, and Zhang Fan rented the smallest bedroom, which was also the cheapest. The other two female roommates both worked during the day, and it was daytime when the red mist descended, and they were stuck at work. Zhang Fan unceremoniously appropriated the belongings of his two shared female roommates for himself. This is the room of a female roommate named He Qian. He Qian was average looking, but she was proficient in makeup and she was practically like a new head after makeup. It went from a 5 out of 10 female to a 9 out of 10 in an instant. He Chen often brings men back and her private life is so chaotic that she has no peace every night. For this reason, He Chen is often at odds with another high-strung female roommate named Su Nua. Zhang Fan didn't care. Anyway, he was on duty at night and wasn't at home at all. Zhang Fan did find Yuting in He Chen's nightstand. He took out two capsules and handed them to Tang Shuelua eat it. Tang Shuelua asked fearfully, what is it? Zhang Fan said calmly, birth control pills. You wouldn't want to get pregnant in these circumstances, would you? Tang Shuelua was ashamed and obediently swallowed it with pure water. Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed two yutting capsules from the host and returned 400 capsules. It has been put into the carry-on space. Medicine is fine. As long as it's food? Zhang Fan took out a bag of fresh washing powder and ordered to go wash my dirty clothes. Tang Shuelua didn't dare to refuse and could only carry the washing powder into the bathroom. Zhang Fan looked at her without moving. Tang Shuelua ripped open the laundry detergent and began to wash the clothes. Still haven't heard the prompt to return the laundry detergent. Moreover, Tang Shuelua has to consume tap water to wash her clothes. And there is no prompt to return it. Is it only possible to return the food that was eaten? However, the system's instructions were the materials consumed by the host woman will be returned to the host. Why not just say food consumed? Zhang Fan secretly guessed for a while, without much of a clue. 
The details of the system need to be dug into slowly. He lay down on the couch and opened his phone to swipe through the videos. Tang Shuelui naturally had to continue washing clothes. Even a beautiful woman can't be kept for nothing. If you want to eat, you have to work. Still no good news online. More and more people are uploading videos of ground exploration. Plants all over the globe are becoming immense. And what was once an ordinary lawn is growing taller and taller. In some cities the grass is even taller than a person. The stadium lawn is becoming like a cornfield. Countless huge insects hide among them and are extremely dangerous. Suddenly, Zhang Fan swiped on an alien video. An honest-looking middle-aged man demonstrates lightning powers in front of the camera. The middle-aged man's two fingers approached, and the air between them was suddenly sparking with electricity. Zhang Fan looked very envious. Finally, the middle-aged man spoke a black fruit grew on a weed next to my house, much like a lychee. I ate it yesterday when I was so hungry I couldn't stand it, and then I gained the lightning ability. I think that if everyone finds a black lychee, they can try it too. The video has only a few hundred plays, but there are a lot of pop-ups really? This one is restless. Black lychee? That doesn't sound like something you can eat. Now that the plants are mutating and plants are growing out of control, who the hell dares to eat them? Black lychees growing on weeds? Zhang Fan turned his head to look at the windowsill. Two black lychees were hanging from that succulent. You can get lightning powers from eating this? Zhang Fan didn't dare to try it easily. Who knows what this man is up to? The end times are upon us. And there are wicked hearts and rumors flying around. Anyway, even if it's a lie, no one's going to get him. Moreover, Zhang Fan couldn't decide if it was the kind of black lychee that the man was talking about. Just then, the cell phone suddenly prompted, the video was suspected of violating the law and has been taken down. Aha! Zhang Fan was a bit convinced this time instead. This reaction rate is clearly not normal. It shouldn't be platform blocked. Could it be that? The state really covering something up? Zhang Fan narrowed his eyes and after thinking for a while, he put on rubber gloves and walked over to the potted plant and carefully picked off one of the black lychees. Zhang Fan put the black lychee in the bowl and discreetly took off his gloves and threw them out the window before walking into the bathroom with the bowl. Tang Shuelua was puffing and puffing to wash her clothes. Zhang Fan placed the bowl in front of her eat. If it's poisonous, it's also Tang Shuelua who will die. There were plenty of beautiful women in the end times. Zhang Fan wouldn't be heartbroken for a second. Tang Shuelua looked at the black fruit in the bowl in horror. What? What is this? Eat it. Zhang Fan didn't explain and continued. Tang Shuelua shook her head and took a step back in fear, I'm not eating. Zhang Fan pulled out his dagger and said coldly, I said, eat it. Tang Shuelua's face paled and she could only shiver as she picked it up. Black lychee, how weird it looks. Tang Shuelua didn't want to eat it at all. But looking at the brightly shining dagger in front of her, she could only resign herself to eating it. Ding. Tang Shuelua consumed one enlightenment fruit, perception and returned 200 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, perception one star. After consuming it, you can gain the ability of perception. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. Alien fruit. It really is an alien fruit. The man wasn't lying. Only the ability seemed to be different from Lightning Man's one. His own one's ability was perception. It seems that the ability of each fruit is randomized. Zhang Fan asked, how does it feel? Tang Shuelua was confused for a while before she said blankly, I, I think I saw a glow on you. A pale yellow color. What is it? Sure enough it worked. Zhang Fan smiled, it's the alien fruit. Eat it to gain alien powers. Ah, Tang Shuelua was shocked, the powers are gained by eating the fruit? The alien power thing is all over the internet. So it's fruit eating? It must be very precious. Why did he give it to me? Tang Shuelua couldn't help but be a bit touched. She felt that Zhang Fan, although this person was a bit rough just now, he didn't seem that bad, thank you. Zhang Fan reached out and another black lychee appeared in his hand, I have plenty of this stuff. Work hard in the future and I can reward you with a few more. By the way, what else do you feel? Tang Shuelui nodded gratefully, turning on this ability is exhausting. I can't hold it for long. I'll have to turn it off. After saying that, Tang Shuelua breathed a sigh of relief and seemed to have shut down her perception ability. But no change could be seen from her appearance. Still consuming stamina? Zhang Fan thought darkly, peeled open the black lychee and ate the pulp. The flesh is tart and sweet and very tasty. Boom! It was as if Zhang Fan's brain had broken some kind of shackle. The world has changed. Green is greener. Red is redder. He looks out the window and seems to see more detail, as if evolving from 480p to 4k. Zhang Fan looked at Tang Shuelua again, who was emitting a faint red glow. Zhang Fan looked at his body, but it emitted a green glow. But the brightness was slightly brighter than Tang Shuelua. What do the colors represent? Zhang Fan was curious. That's when the system prompted frowny face perception, one star. You can see how friendly the target is to you. 
yellow for neutrality, red for hostility, and green for friendliness, the brightness of the glow indicates the strength of the target's life, perception distance, 2 meters. Jiang Fan was secretly delighted. That's good skill. You can see if the other person is hostile. It looks like this woman, Tang Shuelua, is still not dead in the water. Jiang Fan also felt that his physical strength was rapidly depleting, as if he was running as fast as he could, and that he would last for a few minutes at most. Jiang Fan immediately turned off his perception and took out another black lychee and ate it. The system hinted at a chance to increase the star rating by repeatedly consuming the same fruit. After eating it, there was no reaction. Jiang Fan took out another one. Soon, he ate seven or eight of them in a row. Tang Shuelua looked dumbfounded. Why does he have so many? Are the alien fruits so worthless? Jiang Fan finally changed when he ate the twelfth one. It was as if his vision had cleared up a great deal. Ding! Sense spirit upgraded to two stars. Sense range increased to five meters. Chapter 7 The Ability of the Second Fruit The range improved. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. He immediately opened his perception ability. Two more changes were found. One, this perceptual ability can go through walls. Jiang Fan could sense the potted plant on the windowsill, and there was a wall between him and the potted plant. Second, the glow is no longer a spherical ball of light, but begins to faintly show the shape of a succulent plant. Jiang Fan looked at Tang Shuelua, and the light on her body also vaguely showed the shape of her body. He walked to the bedroom and could still see the glow of Tang Shuelua in the bathroom through the wall. In addition to that, he could see what was going on upstairs and downstairs and in the neighbor's houses to the left and right. The first floor of the building is just a little over 3 meters. Jiang Fan stood on the floor and could clearly see the room downstairs with a woman sitting on the sofa brushing her cell phone. The light has a silhouette and can distinguish between men and women by the shape of their chests and crotches. The woman's body glowed weakly with a neutral yellow color. The room above Jiang Fan's head, on the other hand, was empty. On the right is Tang Shuelua's house, which is empty. The neighbor's room on the left was also empty. It was daytime when the red mist descended. Most people were out at work and the room was mostly empty. This thing is just open map radar. It's so useful. Jiang Fan was pleasantly surprised. I just wonder if it can penetrate the red mist? Jiang Fan continued to eat the perception fruit. This time, it was enough to eat more than 50 of them, and they were almost full, before they were upgraded to 3 stars. It looks like the higher the star, the lower the odds. Ding! Perception upgraded to 3 stars. Perception range increased to 15 meters. 5 meters increases to 15 meters. The radius becomes 3 times but the volume increases by a factor of 27. Jiang Fan only felt that his vision had opened up. Fortune Center is a tower with 8 units on one floor. The floor Jiang Fan was on was the second top floor. Centered on the 32nd floor where Jiang Fan was, the highest 33rd floor, and the lowest to the 27th floor. A total of 56 households. All of them were exposed to his vision. After perception was upgraded to 3 stars, the glow was no longer a blurry mass, but became a clear outline of the target. Jiang Fan could even tell the male and female. 1, 2, 3, 56 homes, 13 rooms occupied, 21 people total, 12 women, 9 men. Jiang Fan counted silently. In addition, he also realized that out of all those people, only his own and Tang Shuelua's light clusters were very bright, far more dazzling than the others. Only, the light cluster within himself was brighter, while Tang Shuelua's was a bit dimmer. It should be the result of an alien awakening. The others are not aliens, so the glow is dimmer. On top of that, he also saw a dog of enormous size, curled up sleeping in a room on the 28th floor, which should be the mutated dog from before. The light on the mutant dog was very bright. If the brightness of the light on Jiang Fan was a candle, that mutant dog is as bright as a flashlight. Jiang Fan was very cautious, looking at the mutant dog. He would never go out before he was sure. Jiang Fan began to exercise, push-ups, sit-ups, weighted squats. When the end times come, physical fitness is what counts. When running for your life, if you can outrun the others, you have a better chance of survival. It would be nice to have a treadmill. Jiang Fan worked out while secretly thinking, but maybe the power will go out at some point, or get a bike machine. Tang Shuelua curled up on the bed, silently fuming. So much had happened today, and having her virginity, which she had retained for over 20 years, taken away by a man had left her with a lot to think about. Tang Shuelua couldn't help but think of Jiang Fan. The man is simply a temperamental devil. Say what you will about him. He's incredibly tyrannical with women. No mercy at all. And his own ass is still a little sore to this day. Call him bad. Throw yourself an alien fruit at random. Although Jiang Fan spoke harshly, this made Tang Shuelua really hate him. It's the end of the world. What's the use of a man's nice words? Tang Shuelua unknowingly took out her cell phone again. 
There's no good news online. It's mutating everywhere. The state still has no plans for a large-scale rescue. There are also online appeals for self-help. But how do people save themselves when they are starving to death? Tang Shuelua was very desperate. At that moment, Zhang Fan pushed the door and walked in. Tang Shuelua was so frightened that she hurriedly stood up. Zhang, brother, what is it? Zhang Fan took out a black lychee and laughed lightly. I'm in a good mood today, so I'll reward you with another one. This fruit is another one from that succulent pot. Tang Shuelua was pleasantly surprised when she saw that it was an exotic fruit and thanked her. Thank you, brother Zhang. Thank you, brother Zhang. The green light on her body was even more intense, and no other color could be seen at all. Tang Shuelua hurriedly ate it. Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed one enlightenment fruit, physical strengthening and returned 200 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, physical strengthening one star. When consumed, it enhances the overall physical constitution. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. After Tang Shuelua finished eating, she looked at herself in surprise, I seem to have gotten stronger? She couldn't wait to try carrying the nightstand, and was surprised at how easily she carried it. Zhang Fan said in an old-fashioned manner, it's physical strengthening, which improves your physique. Tang Shuelua was pleasantly surprised. Immediately afterward, she noticed that her skin was discharging some black substance that looked very dirty. Tang Shuelua loved cleanliness and hurriedly ran to the restroom to take a shower. This thing is very much like the legendary scrubber. Zhang Fan thought secretly, with a flip of his hand, a handful of physique strengthening fruits appeared. Zhang Fan ate one without hesitation. In an instant, Zhang Fan felt so full of strength and energy that it seemed like he could punch through the floorboards. This feeling of suddenly becoming stronger was too exciting. No wonder Tang Shuelua was so excited just now. Physical strength enhancement, one star, combined physical strength plus five. Ding! Attribute panel function is on. Properties panel? Zhang Fan immediately tapped on the attribute panel in his consciousness. Very simple. Only two lines. Zhang Fan, combined physical fitness, 15, average of 10 for an average adult, crap. It increased half of the physique in an instant. Without saying a word, Zhang Fan took out a handful of body strengthening fruits and ate them. As for the black filth on his body, he didn't care at all. He would just wash it later. 1, 2, 3. This time it took over 30 of them before I heard the prompt frowny face ding. Physique strengthening upgraded to 2 stars. Combined physique plus 15. Zhang Fan only felt a sense of relief and a feeling of floating. Keep eating. Self-strength is the greatest guarantee of survival in the end times. Immediately afterward, Zhang Fan ate more than 100 of them to the point of vomiting before rising to 3 stars. Ding. Physique strengthening upgraded to 3 stars. Comprehensive physique plus 40. After 3 stars, Zhang Fan's size also produced some changes. His abdomen bulged with steel-like 8 muscles, and his entire body was gnarled and explosive, like steel bars twisted together. 10 for regular people. 50 for me. Five times more than the average person. Zhang Fan realized that in addition to his basic physical abilities, his five senses perception, speed, and reaction time had all been enhanced. Zhang Fan tried the exertion of perception again, and realized that the little physical exertion of perception could barely be felt. Just like walking normally, you can last at least 10 hours or more on your own. It looks like the increase in physique to five times the previous level brings much more than five times the effect. In addition, Zhang Fan also realized that the light on his body was a whole lot brighter. Even a bit brighter than the mutant dog on the 28th floor. Zhang Fan began to carefully test the changes in his body. In addition to becoming stronger in physical strength and power, the body strength has also become a whole lot stronger. Zhang Fan reached out and tried his hand on his arm, bulging his muscles with a little force, just like tough rubber. Zhang Fan exerted himself slightly and slammed his fist on the wall. Boom! The latex paint on the walls was actually cracked. Jiang Fan was pleasantly surprised. He only felt a tremor in his arm and didn't feel any pain at all. He slammed a few punches with full force. Boom! Boom! The latex paint fell off in large swaths, revealing the crumbling hollow tiles inside. Jiang Fan still didn't feel too much pain. Just a little pinch. He reached out and grabbed a hollow brick. His fingers closed like an iron pincer. His fingers sank deep into the hollow brick. Click! He pulled hard. Wow! A hollow brick was actually pulled out hard. Chapter 8 He actually has steak to eat. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. That's an empty-handed demolition of a wall. Tang Shuelua just happened to finish her shower. And the person looked dumbfounded. Is this still human? Zhang Fan must have eaten a lot of body-strengthening fruits. Tang Shuelua was envious. Her hostility towards Zhang Fan disappeared quite a bit. And she only felt a strong sense of security. She had been on edge since the red mist descended. And now it had finally dissipated quite a bit. Zhang Fan took out his dagger and gently scratched on his arm. There's no trace. Zhang Fan exerted a little force, 
roughly equivalent to the limit of an ordinary person's strength, and his arm felt a slight sting, leaving white scratches, his skin still unbroken, ha 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 ha, cold weapons are basically no threat to me anymore, Jiang Fan was in a good mood and picked up Tang Shuelua with one hand, who let out a cry of shock, Jiang Fan first took out a perception fruit and a body strengthening fruit, eat it, reward yourself for being in a good mood, Tang Shuelua asked expectantly, what is this ability? Jiang Fan explained, it's still perception and physique enhancement, and if you take it repeatedly, your perception ability could potentially be upgraded to activate a stronger effect, but exactly how many of them you take to upgrade will depend on your luck, it can also be upgraded, Tang Shuelua happily ate it, unfortunately, there was no upgrade this time, Tang Shuelua was a little disappointed, immediately after that, he looked forward to it again, as long as he satisfied Jiang Fan's requirements, he could keep eating, and sooner or later, he would be able to upgrade, she's not stupid, certainly understood how much chance of survival the powers could bring in the post-apocalyptic world, ding, Tang Shuelua consumed one enlightenment fruit, perception and returned 200 of them, it has been put into the carry-on space, ding, Tang Shuelua consumed one enlightenment fruit, physical strengthening and returned 200 of them, it has been put into the carry-on space, unfortunately, she didn't upgrade even after eating it, Jiang Fan didn't care and took out another large amount of food, instant noodles, self-heating hot pots, packaged steaks, chocolates, and coke and sprite, these foods, before the end of the world, were all junk food, and Tang Shuelua wouldn't even look at them, take it out now at this time of year and it becomes a treasure, Tang Shuelua's mouth was wide open of this, this, this much, she'd been starving for a couple days and had just eaten some bread, which didn't even top the hunger, I had just worked all night again and was exhausted, but now that I saw so much delicious food, my mouth was watering, eat, Jiang Fan laughed, and Tang Shuelua couldn't wait to eat, ding, Tang Shuelua consumed one chocolate from the host and returned 200 of them, it has been put into the carry-on space, ding, Tang Shuelua consumed one steak from the host and returned 200 pieces, it has been put into the carry-on space, ding, Tang Shuelua consumed one bottle of cola from the host and returned 200 bottles, it has been put into the carry-on space, Jiang Fan took out more food and piled the table high, only then did he take out his cell phone, take a few pictures, and post them to the group, at, pictures, pictures, the table was laden with food, self-heating hot pot steaming, steaks, luncheon meats and fish balls piled high, with tons of chocolate, coke and sprite on the side to whet the appetite at first glance, in addition, there was a woman with long, shaggy hair sitting on her knees on the floor, and Jiang Fan's big feet were comfortably stretched into her arms, the group was a buzzle block in number 1201 faraway June, crap, it's so extravagant, Block C number 2707 Pim, there's actually steak, handsome guy, give me some, I only need half, Block B number 1808 Sun Jianman, director of the street office, can you finish a dozen steaks when you unwrap them all at once, it's such a waste, Block B number 1808 Sun Jianman, director of the street office, young people, this is a time of crisis, we should all be in the same boat and overcome the difficulties, the food should be taken out and distributed among all of us, wasting food is shameful. Block in number 1708 Joe Tianhao, Skywalker Gym Coach, Kid, give me a share of the food, I'll keep you safe, picture, Joe Tianhao once again showed off his glowing muscles, block B number 809 from being called handsome from a young age, brother, give me an instant noodle, I'll pay $100, Auntie Zhang, block in number 705, don't be fooled, little girls, this kid can't save much food at all, so wasteful and soon eat up, let's see what he'll do. Some of the young women had just moved on when they saw Auntie Zhang's words and instantly came to their senses. Yeah, how much food can he have on hand? It's not all saved from before? Right, when the food runs out, you'll still starve after him. Gee Maze, will this trashy man let you go when the time comes? Think carefully, this is considered forced X, right? And you're not calling the police? Called the police, couldn't get through, it's been busy for days. But there are others who are wondering if he can be so wasteful if the package has very little food in hand. Jiang Fan looked at the message and smiled without saying anything, he didn't bother to argue, so think what you will, food spoils quickly anyway, you will still bow your heads, I'm not the one who's starving, Bunny, who hadn't spoken for a long time, jumped in again, block a number 303 Bunny, that woman must be an ugly woman, Tang Shuelua in the photo, head down, back to the camera, can't see her face, Jiang Fan smiled and said to Tang Shuelua here, smile, Tang Shuelua was uncertain and obediently revealed a perfect smile. Click. Jiang Fan photographed it and sent it to the group again. Food and lodging included, picture, it's over. Everyone knows that I am at Jiang Fan's house. Tang Shuelua was so ashamed that she was so aggrieved that she wanted to cry. 
The group exploded. Crap. Big beautiful girl. Who's this? I think I've seen him in the neighborhood a few times. The pretty girl seems to be called Tang Shueloa? Right. Director Tang's daughter. This kid is crazy. He even dares to touch Director Tang's daughter. This kid is dead. Some people bloated. Some people coerced. But Zhang Fan ignored them all. After eating and drinking, he went back to his bedroom and looked at the ragged hole in the wall. Behind the wall is Tang Shueloa's house. Tang Shueloa lost her key and now she can't get home. I'm perfectly capable of cutting a hole to get in. If you punch holes all the way through, you can connect all the houses on this floor as long as you avoid the load-bearing walls. Moreover, this method does not damage the front door and you do not have to break the glass of the balcony window, which is not visible from the outside. That way, in case of an irresistible danger, you can quickly escape by drilling into another room. If the door to your room is blocked, you can also leave quietly through the front door of another house. Zhang Fan made up his mind and slammed his fist on the wall. Boom! Boom! A few minutes later, Zhang Fan broke open a large hole and drilled in. Tang Shuelua looked at Zhang Fan dumbfounded. He's too strong, isn't he? She was suddenly panicking. Can I stand such a powerful man? It is said that there are only tired oxen, not plowed fields. Don't bullshit. That's because you've never seen such a fierce bull. Zhang Fan drilled through the hole in the wall and patted the ash on his body. The decoration of Tang Shuelua's house was really much better than Zhang Fan's shared room. Solid wood floors, stone walls, all kinds of exquisite appliances, high quality furniture, expensive at first sight. Tang Shuelua followed and drilled over. Back in her own home, she also relaxed a bit. Zhang Fan slipped around the room. Satisfied, your house is nice. We'll live here from now on. Chapter 9 Fatty Hu. Now is a good chance for you to lose weight convenience store owner who lay looked at the group's message and his eyes went straight. Tang Shuelua. He was so jealous that he wanted to burst into flames. Tang Shuelua, a rich white beauty he didn't even dare to think about, was now actually tricked into Jiang Fan's hands. As the owner of the convenience store, he knew that, the package, was Jiang Fan. This group was originally a convenience store delivery group. Hule said jealously there are so many things in Jiang Fan's house that I gave him at half price. It was unthinkable that it had now become Jiang Fan's life-saving treasure instead. Hule's fiance Su Mengqian is very beautiful. Even if she is starving and her pretty face is white, she still has a few haggard flavors. Su Mengqian sniffed in surprise from you? Go ask him for it. Huli was torn. This, all of these expired food items were indeed bought by Jiang Fan because he forced him to do so. But now in this situation, Jiang Fan couldn't possibly sell himself as long as he wasn't stupid. Su Mengqian was so angry that her beautiful eyes rounded as she cursed, you're useless. You're worse than a store clerk, he said, stretching out his leg and kicking him hard. Hu Lei snapped. Didn't he dare to resist? And doggedly smiled a baby. Gently, don't twist your foot. Hu Lei felt that he was already lucky to have married a beauty of Su Meiqian's caliber. And usually went against Su Meiqian's beatings and scoldings. So where else would he dare to resist? Su Mengqian is his goddess. The two are immediately married. Su Mengqian but not even let him touch. Said to save the body until the wedding. Usually at most only let pull the hand. Hu Lei was happy in his heart about Su Meiqian's request. It's the luck of a lifetime that I got to marry such a traditional girl. Humph. Su Mengqian coldly snorted in hatred. Hu Lei. I've been starving and skinny for the past few days. There's nothing to eat at home now. What else can I do if I don't want to buy some? Do you want me to starve to death after you? In the past few days, Hu Lei tried his best to share all the food with Su Mengqian, and only ate the least amount of food himself. He's gotten noticeably thinner. Even so, the two ate the last of their ham hocks at lunch today. If we don't do something, we're going to run out of food. Can't. Definitely can't starve baby. Hu Lei was anxious, looking lovingly at Su Meiqian's delicate face, and clenched his teeth, I'll get him to buy it. Hu Lei hurriedly called Jiang Fan. Jingle bells. As soon as Jiang Fan saw that it was Fatty Hu, the convenience store owner, he knew what he wanted. Food surely can't be given to this pitbull boss. Fatty Hu is looking for reasons to deduct Jiang Fan's salary every now and then. What the glass is not wiped clean. What there is dust on the ground. When they really can't find fault, they also forced Jiang Fan to buy expired food, use expired food to offset their wages, and don't pay if they don't buy. Even when wages are paid, they are often 10 days or so in arrears. Jiang Fan hated his teeth. At that time, if it was not for Song Shireen's lack of money to prepare for the exam, he would have quit. Since you girls sent me to the door, don't blame me. Jiang Fan remembered the beautiful boss lady Su Mengqian, and a hidden flame rose in his heart. Previously, Fatty who had often bragged to himself that Su Mengqian was prettier than Song Shireen, and was dejected. That's good. Su Mengqian is really pretty. It's mine now. Jiang Fan sneered and picked up the phone Fatty Hu. What are you looking for me for? Hu Lei was furious as soon as he heard it. 
How dare you call me fatty who directly? He's 189 centimeters, 250 pounds, and usually hates it when people call him fat. Ever since he was disliked by Su Mengqian for being fat, he had become more sensitive. However, now is not the time to be bothered with Jiang Fan about this. When I get your food back, I'm going to have to smack you a couple times. Hu Lei suppressed his anger and said to Xiao Zhang, You must have a lot of food in your house. Sell me half of it. Sell it to you? You're thinking about fart eating. Jiang Fan snorted and deliberately teased him. Oh, how much are you paying? Hu Lei said with a big grin, I sold it to you at half price before. How about buying it back at the original price now? You've made a big profit. Jiang Fan sputtered with laughter and cursed in pain, Fatty Hu, are you a fucking bogeyman? What was the situation when you sold it to me? And what's the situation now? It's the end of the world. You fat fuck. It's the end times. You still want to buy it at the original price? You're a fucking asshole. Huli is also angry. If I hadn't let you buy it in the first place, would you have so much food now? You have to thank me for that. You can't forget your roots as a human being. I thank Nima. Jiang Fan sprayed fatty you just stay home and starve. Didn't your wife tell you to lose weight? Now is a good opportunity for you to lose weight. Come on. Damn it. Hu Lei stormed out surnamed Jiang. Don't you get carried away. If you don't sell me something, I'll send the location of your house to the building and see if you can keep those things. How dare you threaten me. Jiang Fan's eyes flashed with a hint of sternness. Fatty Hu. Don't fucking bullshit. Send your wife to me for food. Or crawl for me. Snap. The phone hung up. Jiang Fan. You want to die. Fatty who was so angry that he almost exploded in place. His wife is his heart and soul, and he usually doesn't even want to touch it. Jiang Fan actually dared to hit on his own wife. Su Meng Qian, however, had a sharp turn of mind. She did not like Hu Lei in the first place, only that his family is rich, and Hu Lei has a weak character and is good at manipulation. Su Meng Qian has been calculating how to get all of Hu Lei's family property into her hands after marriage, and then divorce. Times have changed now. Hu Lei doesn't even count as an ass. It's only great when there's food. That kid Jiang Fan is worth a lot more. Jiang Fan's character, which he himself knew, should be better controlled. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been so fooled by that girlfriend of his that he actually worked himself up to support his girlfriend on the koan for three years? Silly. It's ridiculous. Sure enough, as soon as that bitch song Shireen came ashore, she turned her head and kicked Jiang Fan. At that time, Jiang Fan was still lost. Su Mengqian is very disdainful. What is there to lose? People are not for themselves. Heaven and earth. Childish. Su Mengqian was very disdainful. Calculating in her mind. I'm much prettier than Song Shireen. And with a little trickery. I can get Jiang Fan hooked on me before I control all the food. Relying on Jiang Fan's food. I'll be able to survive long enough to wait for the state to come to the rescue. Su Mengqian herself didn't even realize that she was still jealous of Song Shireen at the bottom of her heart. That woman. Obviously not as pretty as herself. Could actually hook up with a handsome man like Jiang Fan. Most importantly, Song Shireen was able to fool Jiang Fan into supporting her for three years to get into the civil service. This made Su Mengqian very unbalanced mentally. Compared to the sunny and handsome Jiang Fan, Hu Lei was like a black bear. This was also the reason why she hadn't let Hu Lei touch herself. Hu Lei is just too ugly. If it wasn't for Hu Lei's money, she wouldn't have gotten engaged to Hu Lei. Hu Lei picked up his cell phone and wanted to send the address of the food and shelter to the group, but was pressed by Su Mengqian. Don't send it. If anyone knows who he is, the food in his house won't belong to us. Hu Lei was furious and shouted, We can't get it now either. Su Mengqian's beautiful eyes rounded, surname Hu. It's against you. Dare to talk to me like that. Hu Lei was instantly deflated and carefully smiled, Baby, I'm not angry that that boy dared to hit on you. Humph. Su Mengqian said angrily, Can I not be angry? How dare a store clerk even think of me? He doesn't even know if he's worthy. Right. 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 Hu Lei nodded like garlic, That's why I've got to post his location so he doesn't get any better. You're silly. Even if he is robbed by someone else, we won't be able to get any food. Won't we still go hungry? Su Mengqian snorted and continued, How about this? I'll go keep him company. No way. Hu Lei jumped up at once and anxiously said, Shan Shan, you can't fall for his tricks. Su Mengqian glared, Hu Lei, you're talking to me out loud again. Hu Lei snapped and shut up, his heart anxious. Qian Qian, I'm worried about you. He must be lying. Wait for me to finish. Su Mengqian snorted coldly. A stern aura flashing in her eyes, you hide where the cats I can't see you, and as soon as he opens the door, I'll jam it, and then you'll rush in and grab all his stuff. Chapter 10 robbed Jiang Fan's house as well. Rob? Hu Lei shivered. Timidly that's illegal. Really useless. Su Mengqian looked less and less at this fiancé. He's obviously a big man, but he's as cowardly as a little girl. Su Mengqian said angrily, what then? Are we both just going to starve to death? 
Then I'd better go and keep him company. No, Hu Lei weakly resisted, his heart aching, giving his beloved woman to someone else. Hu Lei just couldn't accept it, but let him rob it, and he's also a little scared too. He is rich and has a beautiful wife. After the robbery, he will surely be arrested by the police, and then the family property and the beautiful wife will be cheaper for others. What a waste. Su Mengqian disdained in her heart. She's a very shrewd woman. In the era of peace, she chose Hu Lei as to figure that he has money and also soft nature. Good to grasp, but times have changed now. She knew that she would be dead if she followed such a goonish man in the end times. A beautiful woman like herself would not fare well in a chaotic world without a strong backer. Starving to death are the most comfortable. Su Mengqian couldn't help but shiver as she remembered the torture that men dealt with women in movies and continued to stimulate Hu Lei. Don't worry, I'll share half of the food I get back in exchange with you. Chan Qian still loves me. Hu Lei trembled all over. Uh, that's not what I meant. I can't. I really can't. Su Mengqian blared, it's neither here nor there. What do you say? Are we just waiting to starve to death? Hu Lei Noi didn't dare to speak. His heart was in turmoil, and for a moment he wanted to rush into Jiang Fan's home and rob the stuff and forget about it. But again, I'm afraid. A moment in thought. Do not let Chan Qian follow Jiang Fan. At least not let Chan Qian starve to death. They can also follow the mix some food. But thinking so, his heart was suffocating, a flame burning. It was only then that Su Mengqian coldly stated her true thoughts, I'm going to Jiang Fan's now. Hu Lei raised his head violently, his eyes bloodshot, his forehead veins popping out, pleading, Cynthia. Su Mengqian saw that he was about to lose control, and was also afraid that Hu Lei would go on a rampage. So she hurriedly patted his shoulder and pacified him, don't worry, I won't let him touch me. You know I have experience in controlling men. As soon as the words were out of her mouth, she was self-conscious of her gaffe. Hu Lei was confused at baby, what do you mean by that? Did you do the same to me? He immediately thought of himself. He then didn't really touch Su Mengqian. His heart was vaguely dissatisfied. Su Mengqian's heart tightened, and she hurriedly turned the tables and flung her hand to give Hu Lei a slap in the face. Snap. This slap directly interrupted Hu Lei's anger. Hu Lei asked, covering his face in confusion, baby, why are you hitting me? Su Mengqian pointed at Hu Lei's nose and scolded with red eyes, surname Hu. What are you thinking about? I'm doing this for both of us. You useless man. I can only sell myself for food for you and you still doubt my motives. Hu Lei, I'm engaged to you for nothing. And you motherfucker actually see yourself as the same as Jiang Fan. It was then that Hu Lei reacted. Yeah, I'm not like Jiang Fan. I'm Su Mengqian's fiance. Su Mengqian usually never looked at Li Anping once. It was impossible to look at him. I'm sorry, Chan Qian. Hu Lei was busy apologizing. Su Mengqian wiped away her tears and sat down in front of the dresser to start applying her makeup, coldly saying, don't worry. No matter what, I'll bring you back food. I can't let you starve to death. The baby is for me. Hu Lei's heart was like a knife. He watched his fiance dress up elaborately for other men and hated himself for being useless. Su Mengqian finished her makeup. Her disheveled temperament was swept away, and she once again regained her voluptuous features, bright and colorful. She put on her black stockings and heels, grabbed her handbag and stood up. Hu Lei's hands and feet trembled. You can't go. What if that asshole forces himself on you? Su Mengqian looked at Hu Lei and deliberately made a miserable moving expression to stimulate him, I'm wearing a condom. Hu Lei's brain roared, completely losing his mind. He was red-eyed and vicious, Chan Qian. I'll go with you. Let's grab everything. Su Mengqian's surprise, really? She didn't want to face Jiang Fan either. It was better for her to control the cowardly Hu Lei than a strange man. Hu Lei had been PUA'd by himself for so long that he had formed a habit long ago. Hu Lei said with anger and fear, really? I'm going to rob him blind. Baby. If I get caught by the police, you'll wait for me, right? Rubbish. Su Mengqian disliked it in her heart, but her mouth said oh of course. I'll wait for you for the rest of my life. By the way, let's bring some cash with us. When the time comes, if you rob something, let's throw the money to him. Then it won't be considered robbery. Hu Lei's eyes lit up, good idea. The two discussed some more details. Then, Su Mengqian sent a voice message to Jiang Fan. I'm Su Mengqian. I'll come over to stay with you for the night. You have to give me five boxes of instant noodles. When Hu Lei heard this, the corners of his mouth twitched in anger, baby. Why are you saying that? Su Mengqian blared and cursed, don't you know how to make false pretenses? You have to talk about the price in order to make the surname Jiang believe and let down his guard. It's not for the two of us. Hu Lei understood this, but still held his tongue. Jiang Fan sent back a voice message on oh, one box max. I'll take three. Su Mengqian, I don't believe it. You just wasted so much steak. Jiang Fan, believe it or not. Su Mengqian frowned. That will only accompany you for an hour. Jiang Fan insisted. One night. It has to be one night. This time it's for Fatty Hu's face. 
Other women come and don't want to leave. Who lays eyelids fluttered as he listened. Is that a fucking favor to me? That's a fucking foot in my face. Su Mengqian also blushed a little. She was after all an untouched woman. Talking about such things with other men in front of her fiancé made her very embarrassed that two hours. Jung Fan, one night is one night. Come or go. Su Mengqian felt that it was almost time. So she sent a message, okay? I'll be right there while you get ready. Jung Fan laughed, boss lady. Wear less. I like short skirt black silk high heel. Su Mengqian blushed and hurriedly pressed off the voice message. Hu Lei was already so angry that he wanted to hit his head against the wall. Waving the kitchen knife in a violent rage, damn it. I'm going to chop this kid up. Hu Lei was tall and rich, and had always had a huge psychological advantage over Jung Fan. How dare you hit on your own wife now? Looking for death. Su Mengqian comforted Hu Lei for a few moments, and when he calmed down, the two of them began to move. In the end, Su Mengqian hid a wolf spray in her handbag, while Hu Lei carried the kitchen knife. Huli carefully pushed open the door to his room. His house was on the 19th floor and had long since been flooded with red mist. The interior is also red, but lighter. The red mist was much thicker outside than inside the room. The red mist shivered slowly and flowed into the room, as eerily alive and instinctively unsettling. The building was dead silent. Not a sound. The green passageway lights at the stairway entrance, just a few meters away, but as if they were fireflies in the distance, flickering on and off. Su Mengxian's mouth is even more powerful. But when she saw this scene, she was afraid in her heart, and she couldn't wait to stick behind Hu Lei. Hu Lei is also afraid, but behind him is his beloved fiancé. He can only fight his courage, oh baby. Stay close to me. Don't get lost. Su Mengqian looked around nervously, aha. Hu Lei clutched the kitchen knife with both hands and touched the stairway step by step. Su Mengqian followed closely behind him. The two of them took a step into the thick red fog. Their sight was close, just five or six meters, and red in the distance. It was very quiet around them, with only the soft footsteps of the two men and the occasional howl of a strange animal in the distance. Su Mengxian's back was in a cold sweat, her heart was beating wildly, and she somewhat regretted going out. Hu Lei walked and talked to give himself courage a baby. Why don't we just rob Jiang Fan's house? He's on the 32nd floor. There's no red mist there. Su Mengxian's eyes lit up, good idea. I didn't realize you had some brains. Hu Lei was praised by Su Mengxian, and was instantly too happy to help himself and dejectedly said that's right, let's just kick him out, if he dies, no one can sue me for robbery, Su Mengxian said angrily, don't say it so loud, do you want the others to hear you, Hu Lei held his tongue, oh, luckily, the two quickly climbed to the 21st floor and out of the red mist, Su Mengxian and Hu Lei were both relieved, the stairs were still empty, but the sight returning to normal stabilized both of them quite a bit, they climbed quietly to the 32nd floor, standing next to the stairs, Su Mengqian whispered, I'm going to knock on the door. You wait here, and as soon as it opens, I'm going to jam my foot in the door and you're going to rush in. When it came down to it, Hu Lei was so nervous that his hands were shaking like Parkinson's, good. Su Mengqian said with disgust, are you good or not? Ro. Hu Lei swallowed hard. Su Mengqian straightened her collar and hair before she playfully walked to the door. Knock knock. Jiang Fan, this is Su Mengqian. Open the door. Chapter 11, Chicken Chickens in Fact. As soon as the two entered the 27th floor, they were, seen, by Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan, watched, with interest as they climbed to the 32nd floor, and finally the woman stopped in front of her door. The man was hiding behind the stairway door and appeared to be holding a knife in his hand. By the contours of the body, men are fat and bloated, and women are slender and diminutive. In the perception view, the two emitted a blood-red glow that represented intense hostility. The cat's eye in Tang Mingyao's house is a smart cat's eye with a small monitoring screen inside the room door. Jiang Fan clearly saw the two men's appearance. It was Fatty Hu and his beautiful fiancée Su Mengxian. Su Mengxian faced the door of Jiang Fan's house and sidled up to the door of Tang Lingyao's house. Hu Lei, on the other hand, was sneaking around the stairwell with a kitchen knife in his hand. They thought they had avoided the cat's eyes of Jiang Fan's house, but they didn't know that they were seen clearly by the cat's eyes of Tang Shuelawa's house. Jiang Fan laughed coldly indeed. It's unsavory. Tang Shuelawa looked at the two on the screen and said in shock, Brother Jiang, he has a knife in his hand. What does he want? She wasn't too nervous. Jiang Fan's force gave her a huge sense of security. The fat guy with the chopper is simply delivering the food. She kind of didn't realize, though, that the order had collapsed so quickly. And this was the beginning of door-to-door -door robberies? Jiang Fan said calmly, I'll find you another sister. Tang Shuelua froze for a moment, her heart a mix of emotions. There was both gloating about the two men outside. There was also a hint of Jiang Fan's sour jealousy at having an extra woman. There was even an unspoken wave of relief. It's good to have another woman to share the fire. Jiang Fan picked up his cell phone and called Su Mengxian. 
deliberately flirting with the two who lay didn't come. Did he? Su Mengqian did not move, didn't come. Huli gripped the kitchen knife behind the stairwell door. Zhang Fan didn't dismantle her and said to back up a bit and turn around in a circle so I can see if there are any weapons. Su Mengqian nervously pressed her handbag, took a step back, and slowly turned around. Zhang Fan took in her movements and knew that there was probably something in the handbag. The system automatically prompts frowny face Su Mengqian, age, 23, quality, 8. 5 points, beautiful wife, woman's virtue, 9 points, unattached and engaged, overall rating, 8. 5 points, ding. Meet the system requirements. I can't believe it's untouched. Hu Lei, you've been given a chance and you don't want to use it. Zhang Fan laughed out loud, TSK. TSK, black silk legs. Nice and attentive. I'm satisfied. Bastard. Hu Lei was so angry that the blood rushed straight to his head. And his hands clenched the kitchen knife so tightly that his fingers turned white. He just wanted to rush into the house right away, kick Jiang Fan out, and occupy Jiang Fan's home and the food inside with Su Mengqian himself. Su Mengqian pretended to be impatient, it's okay. I'm a woman. What are you afraid of? She was a little nervous in her mind. Why was this guy so cautious? Jiang Fan laughed, can't see the shoes. Take a few more steps back and I'll see if they're heels. Su Mengqian was so angry that her face was red. She didn't know what to do. She could only retreat a few more steps and had already retreated to the entrance of Tang Shuelawa's house. Hu Lei was so angry that his teeth clenched and stared at the door of Jiang Fan's house. The farther away Su Mengqian is, the smaller Jiang Fan's defense is, the greater his success rate. When you open the door, I'll fucking kill. Boom. Just then, the door to the other room slammed open. The security door flew past Su Mengqian's nose in a speedy sweep, bringing a piece of hair flying. Su Mengqian screamed in fear ah. Before the words left his mouth, Jiang Fan grabbed her collar and pulled violently. Under Jiang Fan's huge strength, Su Mengqian was not able to resist at all and was dragged into the room like a ragdoll. Jiang Fan casually threw it. Su Mengqian stepped on her high heels and could not stand steadily, stumbled and fell to the ground, falling and screaming miserably. Ah! Bang! Jiang Fan slammed the security door shut again with force while clicking it back. Hu Lei has been staring at the door of Jiang Fan's house, did not expect the door of the room next door to suddenly open. And only at this point did he react and hurriedly rushed out with a kitchen knife raised. However, all that was left in front of him was a cold security door. The wife was actually taken away from her right in front of her. Hulei's blood ran hot and he slammed the door in a rage, damn it. You're fucking looking for death. Room. Without saying a word, Zhang Fan pressed a top knee onto the back of Su Mengqian who was struggling to get up and pressed her down to the ground again. Ah. Su Mengqian screamed miserably, ouch. Ouch. You're softer. She had never suffered such a crime in her entire life, and tears instantly flowed from her eyes. Zhang Fan showed no mercy and grabbed her handbag and snatched it. A brief rummage around identified the mace spray inside. Bitch, what do you want? Zhang Fan laughed coldly and flung his hand to slap him. Snap. Su Mengqian was beaten on the spot so much that she didn't dare to scream. Trembling and sophomoric, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I use it for defense. Zhang Fan took out the prepared wide transparent tape, bared it a few times and tied Su Meichian's hands behind her back, tore her stockings, and wrapped her ankles as well. Then the stocking was forced into her mouth and wrapped three times with clear tape. Woo woo. Su Meichian was so scared that her mind went blank and she struggled on the ground. There was no room for the beauty plan she had anticipated, and in the blink of an eye she was under control. Zhang Fan pressed down on her body and carefully searched her entire body for depressions just like he had examined Tang Shuelua, making sure that there were no hidden weapons before he rolled over his body and punched Su Meichian in the abdomen. Bang! Su Mengqian's eyes instantly protruded and she curled up into a prawn, leaving only the sound of dry retching. Tang Shuelua watched with chills in her heart. Luckily, I didn't resist. The man is too violent. At the same time, she felt a hint of security. Following this kind of man in this kind of chaotic world is the only way to survive, right? Bam bam bam. Bam bam bam. Hu Lei was still outside slamming the door, but it didn't help at all. Security doors are not so easy to open. Hu Lei roared with an anxious heart to Zhang Fan, hand over my wife. Zhang Fan freed his hand and laughed through the door of the room, thank you boss for the wife. Boss atmosphere. Atmosphere your sister ah. Hu Lei is going to be mad you hurry up and let go or I'll call the police. Zhang Fan cursed, you still owe me last month's paycheck, so pay it back with your wife. Zhang Fan had seen that the mutated husky had run up from the 28th floor. It glowed bright red and went up the stairs quickly. Hu Lei was still oblivious to the angry curses, mud, you release my wife or I'll make you die an ugly death. Zhang Fan said in a good-natured manner, Fatty Hu, I don't know if I'm dead or not, but you're dead today anyway. Hu Lei smashed the door half a day tired and panting, one hand holding his knees, one hand holding up a kitchen knife and cursed, come out here if you dare. 
Jiang Fan said smilingly, Sire, look back. Hu Lei froze for a moment. What does that mean? Just then, the sound of Bella's like breathing came from the stairway. Chapter 12, Subduing the Mutant Husky Crap. What the hell? Huli was so frightened that he turned to face the stairway. A giant, fierce dog the size of a tiger stepped out. It growled low, its muscles rippling, its eyes bloodshot, its teeth tipped with blood and suspicious bone remnants. Hule instantly turned pale and cried out in horror, don't you come over here. The mutant dog leapt up and directly pounced on Hule, its teeth biting Hule's hand that was holding the knife. A mouthful went down and blood splattered everywhere. Click. Hule screamed miserably, and his arm broke with a sound. The knife fell to the side with a clang. Huli struggled frantically, wrestling with the husky. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. It's hurting me. Help. Tang Shuelua looked pale and shivered. A dog that big is too scary. Su Mengqian on the ground heard Hule screams and endeavored to raise her head to look at the screen, only to see that the giant dog was tearing into Hule. He was so scared that he lost his face. It's amazing that there are such big dogs out there. If he had been discovered just now, he would have been dead. Jiang Fan, on the other hand, carefully watched the battle between the mutant dog and Hule. After increasing his comprehensive physique to 50, his body was strengthened across the board. Mutant dogs are as fast as lightning in the eyes of ordinary people. But after Jiang Fan's comprehensive physique was enhanced, his five senses were also strengthened, and he could clearly see every movement of the mutated dog. It even feels a little slow. I should be able to beat it. Jiang Fan carried a hammer and gently pushed open the door. Tang Shuelua was scared silly. The mutant husky raised its head alertly and barked at Jiang Fan. Woof woof woof. Woof woof woof. Hu Lei reached out to Jiang Fan and screamed miserably help. Help me. Jiang Fan ignored him and stared at the mutant dog, taking a step straight toward it. The husky took a step back with a low growl as he recalled the horrors of the human. Hu Lei saw the opportunity and crawled towards Jiang Fan with his hands and feet. The husky was furious when he saw that the food was going to run away, and pounced on Hu Lei with a woof. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. Too slow. He kicked out and hit the dog square in the head. Bang! The huge two meter long husky was kicked and flew backwards, hitting the wall hard. Boom! The tiles on the walls cracked open. Ouch! The husky screamed miserably as it rose from the ground. Its tail clamped tightly between its legs as it howled at Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan didn't retreat but advanced, taking a step forward. The husky couldn't even react before Jiang Fan's big hand grabbed the back of his neck. Get down on the ground for me. Jiang Fan let out a low roar. The husky simply couldn't withstand the huge force, and his four legs directly diverged, and he was hard pressed to the ground. Jiang Fan copied the hammer and aimed it at the dog's head. Duong. The husky was dizzy and blood was pouring from the top of his head. This human is too good. It instantly remembered the days of being dominated by humans and wimped out in seconds. The husky grunted in amusement, his tail wagging curtly and quickly. The red light on it turned to a kind green light. Jiang Fan was surprised that's a convincing fight? The husky didn't dare to stand up. Ambling his body to rub against Jiang Fan's pants leg, looking at Jiang Fan with lowered eyebrows, Jiang Fan finally had a sense of his own strength. Hu Lei covered his wrists and his eyes went straight. Crap! Why is this kid Jiang Fan so fierce? Did I have a fucking brain fart and want to rob him? Tang Shuelua also put her heart down and poked her head through the doorway to look out. Su Meng Qian, who was lying on the ground, had her eyes wandering. Such a big dog. A few hits and he's convinced? Jiang Fan can be much more reliable than Hu Lei. Jiang Fan's heart moved and a steak appeared in his hand to eat or not to eat? The husky was excited and pleasingly licked Jiang Fan's shoes with his tongue. Beasts are never slaves unless they are packaged with food and shelter. Jiang Fan threw the steak on the ground. The husky ate it immediately. This steak is a kid steak sold in supermarkets, and it's just about the size of a palm. And the huge mutant husky eats it all in one bite. Jiang Fan simply pulled out 20 packs and threw them all at the husky. The husky was so excited that he was jumping up and down, almost in tears. After the red mist descended, there was no owner to feed it. How hard it is for a husky to get by. Do you know? Jiang Fan looked at the husky's white eyes and then said from now on, your name is White Eyes. Woof woof. The husky barked twice at Jiang Fan, as if it understood. Your turn, fatty Hu. Jiang Fan reached out and grabbed Hu Lei's hair, easily dragging him back to his room. Ah, ouch, ouch. Gently, Jiang Fan. Hu Lei screamed in pain, but didn't dare to resist. Jiang Fan could even subdue a dog that big, so how would he dare to fight back? Jiang Fan closed the door to the room and left the husky outside. A dog that has just hit the service may have an unstable personality. What if you suddenly lose control and bite someone? Although Jiang Fan wasn't afraid, women couldn't carry it. Jiang Fan picked up Hu Lei and then dropped him heavily on the ground. Hu Lei was thrown to the ground and almost passed out. Su Mengqian shivered. Jiang Fan was too violent. 
he's not going to beat me up, is he? Only then did Jiang Fan have the good sense to squat down next to Hu Lei and look at the injury on his arm. The outlet and radius of his right hand were bitten off, the white stubble of the bone sticking out of the skin, and the palm drooping helplessly. Jiang Fan smiled sunnily, TSK, such a heavy injury, fatty Hu, you're dead, let me waste away for a bit, no problem. Hu Lei barely slowed down and said in fear, help me, help me. Jiang Fan patted Hu Lei's knee and said, save you? You two come at me with weapons to cunt me and you want me to save you? Hu Lei said in horror, we are self-preserving. Ah, click. Jiang Fan smashed Hu Lei's left leg patella with a punch. Hu Lei just wanted to scream miserably before Jiang Fan pressed his mouth. Immediately after that, Jiang Fan slammed another punch on the knee of his right leg. Click. MMM. MMM. Un. Hu Lei's eyes bulged out, his neck veins bulging as he stared in horror at his strangely angled leg. Jiang Fan let go of his hand and laughed sunnily relax, relax, pain and dizziness are normal, here, do it with me, take a deep breath, and another deep breath, look, I don't want to do this, but you're so strong, and I'm a very timid person, so I'm sure you can understand me, right, Hu Lei couldn't breathe from the pain, his eyes were dead on his knee, his mind was blank, Su Meng Qian, who was lying on the ground, turned pale and shivered, she regretted it immensely, what a big devil I've messed with, He's not going to break my legs too. Tang Shuelua wasn't as scared as the two of them, but she was also chilled to the bone, and her awe of Jiang Fan reached its peak. Jiang Fan carried Hu Lei to the balcony and hung him on the iron railing of the balcony. The upper body is outside, the lower body is inside. In the midst of Hu Lei's screams, he tied his hands and feet together across the railing and wrapped dozens of circles of transparent adhesive to completely immobilize him. Su Mengqian shivered and her mind went blank when she saw Hu Lei's miserable condition. Jiang Fan glanced downward at the red mist. So far, the mutant frog was the biggest threat to him. Jiang Fan wanted to test if its tongue could attack up to the 32nd floor. Jiang Fan smiled and returned to the living room, carefully surveying the beautiful human wife. Su Mengqian involuntarily shivered. Jiang Fan flipped his hand and a piece of bread appeared in his palm. Su Mengqian's eyes went straight. Is this magic? Chapter 13 The terrifying creeper Jiang Fan looked at the two women and said half-heartedly, I have a carry-on space that only I can open. I already knew that this disaster would come, and my carry-on space is already filled with all sorts of supplies, as long as you guys follow me honestly, I'll guarantee that you won't have to worry about food and clothing for the rest of your lives, so, be obedient, understand? Su Mengqian couldn't figure out if Jiang Fan was serious or not, the willingness to resist does diminish considerably, though, if what Jiang Fan said was true, then following him would be the wisest choice, in the horrific post-apocalyptic world, staying alive is the greatest need. When Tang Shuelua thought of Jiang Fan taking out a large amount of food, and a large amount of exotic fruits, her heart was already convinced by 7 or 8 points, that was pretty much what she suspected, other than that, she couldn't imagine how Jiang Fan was so well prepared, Jiang Fan clearly saw that the red light on Su Meiqian's body began to fade and gradually turned yellow, it was faint, but no longer the slightest bit hostile, good, I like smart women, Jiang Fan patted Su Meiqian's cheeks with satisfaction and smiled, good girl, don't move, I'll ungag you. Jab. Jab. Jiang Fan casually tore off the transparent tape on her face and pulled off a few long hairs. It hurt so much that Su Mengqian shivered a few times and didn't dare to make a sound at all. Jiang Fan pulled out the black stockings from Su Mengqian's mouth again. Vomit vomit Su Mengqian painfully dry heaved a few times before slowing down. Jiang Fan threw the bread at her mouth eat. You've got work to do afterwards. Su Mengqian did not care to think about what busy means. Lying on the ground staring blankly at the bread in front of her. Pleading, can you let go of my hand? I can't eat it like this. Jiang Fan said calmly, no, just eat it. Su Mengqian played with her little temper and said, what's wrong with you people? How does this make people eat? Jiang Fan sneered, don't play this against Hu Lei in front of me. He crushed the bread with one foot and flung it out the window, okay? You're out of lunch. Su Mengqian was dumbfounded. She finally realized that Jiang Fan and Hu Lei were not the same kind of people at all. She immediately changed her attitude and lowered herself to a pleading position. Jiang, brother, please, give me something to eat, this woman was quite capable of holding her own, Jiang Fan flipped his hand and another piece of bread appeared in his hand, Su Meiqian's eyes glowed, Jiang Fan threw the bread on the ground and sneered, I'll give you one more chance to eat it on your knees, Su Meiqian unexpectedly knelt down without resistance and quickly ate, Jiang Fan also noticed that the yellow light on Su Meiqian's body faded and a faint green color appeared, ding, Su Meiqian consumed one packet of bread from the host and returned 200 packets, it has been put into the carry-on space, the corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly, yeah, that's a good boy. After resolving Hu Lei's threat, Jiang Fan felt even more pressed for time. The world is getting more and more chaotic and I have to keep getting stronger. 
he did push-ups. Unfortunately, after the general fitness improves, push-ups are simply no difficulty at all and serve no training purpose whatsoever. Jiang Fan upgraded to an inverted brace again, and it was still easy. Jiang Fan only used two fingers to brace upside down. Finally, it's working a little bit. Jiang Fan did 101 breath and rolled over and stood up without blushing. Disgruntled in his heart, gotta find some weights. This workout is useless. Or, it would be nice to learn some martial arts or combat skills. Also, there's a shortage of weapons. Tang Shuelua's eyes went straight. She hadn't expected this man to be that powerful at all. Su Meng Qian, on the other hand, looked at it with glowing eyes. It takes a man this tough to deserve me. It's what's going to keep me alive. I'm gonna get him. Jiang Fan only smiled slightly when he saw the expressions of the two women. He practiced blindly for another hour before he had to give up, unless someone taught him. This kind of practice was almost useless, so he might as well keep eating the physique strengthening fruit. Jiang Fan walked out onto the balcony. Hu Lei has passed out. In just over an hour, the dog bite wound on Hu Lei's arm has rotted in pus flow, emitting an unpleasant stench. In the old days, it would have taken at least three or four days for the wound to deteriorate to this condition. It's just too fast now. Not only are plants and animals evolving, but bacteria and viruses are evolving at the speed of light. Tang Shuelua followed behind Jiang Fan and carefully said he's dying? Jiang Fan said calmly it wound like this, without anti-inflammatory drugs, you're dead. Also, I guess the bacteria have evolved, and it's anyone's guess if the old anti-inflammatories are still effective. Anyway, now it's basically death by injury. Tang Shuelua timidly pulled Jiang Fan's arm. Her own didn't even realize that in just two days. She had developed a strong sense of dependence on Jiang Fan. Su Mengqian looked at Hu Lei with a complicated gaze. Fiancé hangs like a dead dog while kneeling in front of murderer himself. Su Mengqian bit her red lips. I can't help it. I'm just a weak woman. I want to live. Instead of feeling guilty, she resented Hu Lei a little in her heart. Who made you so useless? Waste. It's all your fault. Jiang Fan carefully observed Hu Lei's state. He'd been hanging around for so long, and the mutant toad hadn't come over. I wonder if it couldn't reach that high, or left, or just didn't notice? Other than that, there were only some huge flies flying around who lay in no animals. Maybe 32 floors is too high. Jiang Fan breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that the current danger on the 32nd floor wasn't that great. Jiang Fan was about to leave when he suddenly saw a creeper wrapped around the fingers of Hulei's left hand. Ha! Huh? Jiang Fan was surprised, this thing has grown to 30 layers? Jiang Fan pulled the creeper on Hulei's finger and realized that the creeper wasn't wrapped around Hulei's finger at all but it had drilled into Hu Lei's skin. Jiang Fan exerted his force, and surprisingly pulled out a long cut from inside Hu Lei's finger, with blood-red crushed meat. After pulling out the creeper, Hu Lei's left palm unexpectedly deflated with the naked eye, almost turning into a layer of empty skin, with blood and flesh devoured cleanly. Jiang Fan felt creeped out, crap, this thing eats human flesh? Chapter 14 4 Star Physical Strengthening For Star Perception, Jiang Fan stretched his head to look downward. Creepers have climbed all over the exterior walls, green and overwhelming. Looking more closely at the wall, the creeper was entangled with the carcasses of various animals, huge sparrows, giant rats, and even a cat that rivaled the size of a tiger. No wonder no animals came over to eat who lay, so it was killed by this creeper. The two women's faces turned pale, their hearts terrified. The world has changed. Even plants are eating people. Jiang Fan immediately opened his perception and looked at the creeper again. The creeper gave off a light red glow but it wasn't bright. A very dull swath that was extremely easy to miss in the red mist. Jiang Fan's face was gloomy, it turns out that not only powerful creatures are dangerous, but some seemingly weak creatures are also a great threat. Of course, creepers are not very dangerous. They are almost immobile, relying on prey to deliver themselves, and they have to remain still for long periods of time. Jiang Fan also noticed that there was a faint red light in Hulei's body that flowed all over his body along his veins, which seemed to be the seeds left behind by the creeper. With a grave expression, Jiang Fan took out a bottle of pure water from space and poured it on Hu Lei's face. Hu Lei was doused and woke up. He cried out weakly a water. Water. The massive blood loss made his mouth dry. Jiang Fan asked gently does the left hand hurt? Left hand? Hu Lei stared dead at the pure water in Jiang Fan's hand it doesn't hurt. Water. Give me water. Jiang Fan frowned. It's amazing that Hu Lei didn't feel the injury to his left hand. The creeper has about the ability to anesthetize. Jiang Fan threw pure water down the stairs. Hu Lei pleaded, give me a drink. Give me a drink. Jiang Fan handed Su Mengqian the transparent tape and smiled, gag your husband. It's too loud. Okay, brother Jiang. Su Mengqian obediently took the transparent tape and half squatted in front of Hu Lei. Hu Lei looked at his fiancé incredulously baby. You? Su Mengqian did not look at his eyes. 
lowered her head and used scissors to cut a piece of transparent tape, quickly pasted it on Hu Lei's mouth, before she whispered you can't, I can't help it if I'm a woman, I have to live, you can understand me, right, I understand shit, Hu Lei stared straight at Su Meng Qian, his face red with anger, mmm, aha, aha, Zhang Fan laughed out loud, Hu Lei was so angry that he wanted to go crazy, but he couldn't move, so he could only use his head to hit the iron railings hard, bam, 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 he was already seriously injured and weak, and he was so angry that he hit his head and quickly passed out, the balcony was quiet, 9.30 am, m, the next day, Zhang Fan looked at who lay on the balcony and ate the physique strengthening fruits one by one, he didn't even realize how much he had eaten when he finally heard a beep frowny face ding, physique strengthening upgraded to 4 stars, comprehensive physique plus 80, adding the original 10 points, the panel attribute reaches 90, Zhang Fan was overjoyed, reaching out to support himself, his body lightly got out of bed, only to feel that he was floating, after his comprehensive physique had increased to 90 points, he felt as if his body had begun to undergo some sort of qualitative change, and his minor physical ailments disappeared, the skin became flawless and the small scars on my arms from my childhood were gone, Zhang Fan's eyes were slightly nearsighted, and they were now completely back to normal, the muscles on his body began to tighten, looking less blasted and more rounded than before, it didn't look like much training, but it was full of terrifying power. Zhang Fan casually took out a $1 coin, and with a slight force, he easily pinched it into a fold, which felt the same as pinching Play-Doh. Then it was folded again, and again, and finally rubbed in the palm of my hand, and the coin turned out to be a metal ball. The effect is geometrically multiplied by the increase in combined fitness. Zhang Fan took out the dagger again and pressed his finger on the tip of the blade, flattening it with a slight force, with a body this powerful. The ability to survive increases dramatically. He tried again with his senses on, and the physical exertion was barely perceptible. It's definitely ready to be turned on 24-7. Zhang Fan didn't hesitate to decide to turn on his perception 24 hours a day. In the post-apocalyptic world, the ability of perception was extremely important to detect danger in advance. Zhang Fan tested his abilities for a while before he was satisfied and walked out onto the balcony. Hu Lei is dead. He had creeper seedlings growing out of his mouth, ears, and nose. Under the vision of perception, Zhang Fan saw that the body was stuffed with dense reptiles that emitted a terrifying dull red light. Zhang Fan frowned as he untied the body and threw it downstairs. Throughout the night, the mutant frog still didn't attack Hu Lei. Zhang Fan was basically certain that the mutant frog's attack range wasn't this large. He looks to the doorway, and there's a dog sprawled outside. And judging by its size it's none other than white eyes. Zhang Fan opened the door. The husky jumped up at once, happily wagging his tail at Zhang Fan and lowered his head to Zhang Fan's body to beg to be jerked off. The husky had a very green glow to it and had obviously recognized its owner. Zhang Fan smiled and grabbed two handfuls of the dog's head, then took out another 20 steaks, and a bunch of ham sausages, and threw them on the ground. Woof woof, the husky ate excitedly. Zhang Fan jerked the dog for a while, two more days of observation, and then you can bring it into the room. In a post-apocalyptic world, dogs are far more reliable than people. Zhang Fan took out a large handful of enlightenment fruit, perception, and ate it while swiping his cell phone. The enlightenment fruit tasted good and was used as a snack by Zhang Fan. There's not a lot of good news online. Officials have been playing dead, only repeatedly encouraging the nation to help itself. But there was video of a large number of helicopter gunships flying through the sky on some unknown mission. More people awakened and gained powers, but the news of the black liar still hasn't come to light. More people were forced to go out in search of food and were basically killed or injured. Cats dogs, praying mantis, centipedes, cockroaches, rats, spiders, ants, animals that humans didn't care about have all mutated. Each of these poses a huge threat to humanity. The ground had been completely transformed into a horrific shura. It was fine if there were powerful aliens. Ordinary people could barely move an inch. Zhang Fan suddenly realized that the cell phone signal was poor. About some base station nearby that's broken. As time goes by, water, electricity, gas and internet resources that urbanites find ordinary, will disappear one by one, and the human environment will become worse and worse. Zhang Fan looked out the window in a bad mood. The facade of Block A across the street has been covered with creepers, the entire 33rd floor, all shrouded in green. More and more pines poked out of the red mist and towered over them. A huge, unknown bird circled the branches of a pine tree, looking as if it were a swallow, but larger than an eagle. Zhang Fan's face was unpleasant. He knew that he wouldn't be able to live in this house much longer now. With the plants growing at a rapid rate, sooner or later this place will turn into a forest. Various mutant animals will eventually enter the building. 
It's useless to have your own supplies in abundance. One man can't fight the might of nature. I'm going to get stronger. Jung Fan made up his mind, took out his alien fruit and took a picture and sent it to the group. At Black Lychee Pictures the message didn't get much attention in the group. The vast majority of people still don't know what this stuff is. Only a handful of smart people secretly memorized it. Jung Fan couldn't help it. If the exotic fruit was eaten by someone else, he wouldn't be able to get it himself. There was another important reason. He was now physically stronger and had the confidence to protect himself from being blackmailed. Clicker. Jung Fan threw another perception fruit into his mouth and a second surprise appeared frowny face ding. Perception upgraded to 4 stars. Perception range increased to 50 meters. You are able to sense the energy gathering points within the target's body. Jung Fan felt his field of vision suddenly become larger. Now, he looks down and can see 17 floors. Half the building was in his view. Nearly 100 survivors trapped in their homes. All of them reflected. Jung Fan was also pleasantly surprised to find that even the red mist couldn't block the perception's field of vision in the slightest. Others are almost blind in the red mist, but they are unaffected. Jung Fan's eyes glowed. What is the energy gathering point? He looked to himself and realized that there was a bright green object, like a stunted ginger, in the Dantian location of his belly. What the hell is this? He felt the small of his back and couldn't feel anything. He looked again at the others in the building. It turned out that of all the survivors above the 17th floor besides himself, only Tang Shu Eliang and the one survivor on the 17th floor possessed such a thing. The Via Ginger in Tang Shu Eliwa's body was smaller and lighter green than her own. That survivor on the 17th floor, Ginger, is similar to Tang Shu Eliwa, but the color is golden. The survivor on the 17th floor, looking at the size of the body is very strong, and looking at the location is about room 1708. Chao Tin Ho? Zhang Fan couldn't help but think of Zhou Tianhao's glistening muscles and pondered over them, could Ginger be the source of the powers? Chapter 15, continuing to smash walls and scavenge for supplies Zhang Fan gazed at Zhou Tianhao. In Zhou Tianhao's room, there was also a man and a woman. The three seemed to be chatting. If only I could hear what they were saying, perception is still not quite perfect. Zhang Fan looked at room 2104 again. There lives a female anchor with an extremely explosive body, whose screen name is I'm really not a fox. I'm really not a fox usually dresses conservatively when she goes out. But Jiang Fan had given her quite a few deliveries and had seen her true figure. A typical fine branch hanging fruit. Sometimes when she is on air, she can't change in time and comes out to get something in her cool outfit. On the slender waist of the surplus, there were two huge plump fruits hanging, which looked heart-stopping and made people worry that they would not crush her waist. What man can look at this kind of body and not be tempted? After perception is raised to four stars, the target's body silhouette glows more clearly. Aside from the fact that you can't see the color, the shape is almost indistinguishable from looking at a real person. Jiang Fan saw I'm really not a fox lying motionless on the bed. The body light is very dim, probably hungry enough. How can such an anchor woman prepare much food at home? Little fox, let me save you. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. After briefly observing the movements of all the survivors, he drilled through the hole in the wall and returned to his room, where he began smashing the wall once again. Boom, boom, boom. Soon he smashed through a hole and into a neighbor's house on the other side. No one's home. The rice, flour and oil are all rotten and spoiled. All the food in the freezer above the refrigerator also mutated. There are still some meats frozen in the freezer below that are still edible. Jiang Fan actually found a few pieces of steak. This is not the dying children's steak that Hu Lei was forced to sell to Jiang Fan. But it is a serious M9 quality. Fat and thin like snowflakes. At first glance, it is very appetizing. Also, there were several pieces of very good quality dark pork. I don't usually see this nondescript neighbor as a foodie. Good stuff. Mine. Jiang Fan smiled as he collected it into his carry-on space. The best thing about smashing walls is gathering supplies. On top of that, it also allowed Jiang Fan to quickly adapt to the changes in his body. Prepare escape routes by the way. Three birds with one stone. Why not? Jiang Fan smashed up the wall again. Also found in a neighbor's house was a spare key hanging on the door. Several boxes of fever cold and diarrhea medicine. Jung Fan raided the neighbor's house. This includes tools like toilet paper, lighters, tape, sanitizer, kitchen knives, hammers and pliers, not even furniture, appliances, bedding, or clothes. Carry-on space is unlimited anyway. With the end times upon us and humanity not knowing when it will be able to rebuild civilization, these things are used one by one. It would be nice to go to a big supermarket and collect some. Jung Fan pondered as he searched. When things stabilize a bit, Go to the nearest big supermarket. Not yet. One reason was that Jiang Fan didn't have a way to go out safely. He didn't feel that his fighting strength was already invincible in the wilderness. Even if the physical combat ability was strong, 
It would be unbearable in case of a bite from a poisonous insect. Another reason is that there are still quite a few survivors in the building. The group was in starvation. If he left, it was inevitable that someone would be unfavorable to Tang Shuelo and Su Mengqian. They were Jiang Fan's tool people for brushing supplies. It can't be an easy death. After scavenging, Jiang Fan punched through another wall and moved on to the next house. There was pandemonium in Zhou Tianhao's room. He shares the house with one other fitness instructor, Jay Song. Now, in addition to him, there was another one sultry artificial beauty in the room. The woman's name is Chen Yun. She has a chimera tattoo on her belly. And she's bare-legged. Nestled on a filthy, dirty couch. Smoking a cigarette. Damn. It's protein powder every day. I'm going to puke. Zhou Tianhao was doing push-ups. His muscles were high and bulging. Similar to the devil's tendon man. And they were still glowing brightly. And he grunted coldly, take it or leave it. Chen Yun bristled and didn't dare to speak. Humph. Zhou Tianhao leaped up with both hands. Another fitness trainer, Song Jia, looked on with great envy. He was originally 180, Zhou Tianhao 175, and now Zhou Tianhao was even taller and stronger than himself. If only I had eaten that alien fruit myself. Unfortunately, at that time, he was a little timid, not as tigerish as Zhou Tianhao, and didn't dare to eat it, letting Zhou Tianhao earn a bargain. Zhou Tianhao glanced narcissistically at the muscles on his body. In just a few days, his own power had doubled. The muscles are still very hard. Chen Yun's nightly waves were proof of that. Zhou Tianhao said in a good mood to Song Jia, What else is there to eat in the fridge? Song Jia hurriedly got up, opened the refrigerator and looked at it, depressed, Cho, there are only two chicken breasts left. The rest are all gone. He and Zhou Tianhao are both fitness trainers and always have protein powder at home. There are now four cans left. It's not good, but now it's a lifesaver. But eating protein powder every day makes me sick to my stomach just thinking about it. It only guarantees that you won't starve for a while. Damn it. Zhou Tianhao cursed, Chen Yun. Cook the chicken breasts for me. Damn. Old me isn't your mom. Chen Yun retorted. Zhou Tianhao blared at Chen Yun. Chen Yun reluctantly got up and went to cook the chicken breasts. Song Jie suddenly said her brother Zhou, Look, that kid from packed food is begging for black lychees. Hmm. Zhou Tianhao immediately opened his cell phone and saw the photo sent by the package. Black lychee. Zhou Tianhao's eyes glowed. It's the kind you eat by yourself. The package actually has one in hand. The kid was probably too chicken to eat it. Then why did he ask for it? Zhou Tianhao couldn't figure it out. If you can't figure it out, you don't want to. Zhou Tianhao began to think about how to get his hands on the black lychee. Do you know where the pack lives? Song Jia shook his head, who knows? I only know that he's a clerk at the convenience store outside the neighborhood. Brother Zhou, this kid has a lot of food in his hands. Can we ask him to borrow some? Song Jia looked at the black lychee eye candy in the photo. If only I could eat it myself. Zhou Tianhao nodded. A fierce light flashing in his eyes, that kid surely isn't stupid and won't easily reveal his address. Shen Yun poked her head out of the kitchen and said, someone in the group should know. He lives in our neighborhood anyway. He always has neighbors. Zhou Tianhao's eyes turned slightly, well, not bad. You two go and ask around. Whoever finds out where that kid lives, the black lychee in his hand will go to whoever. And we'll split the kid's food equally. Really? Song Jia was pleasantly surprised, I inquired about really giving it to me? Of course, you have to be righteous when you're out there, we are brothers who follow each other. Zhou Tianhao smiled and looked at Song Jia, but in his heart, he was secretly thinking, when we get the black lychee, I'll punch you to death you by dash. Chen Yun can still take the heat off my old man, you piece of shit, what's the point except wasting food, or is that kid from the package smart? Just women, not men, to begin with. A woman can be just as good a meat shield when escaping anyway, and is usually better controlled. Then why do I still have you? Chen Yun said in disgust, I don't want that much muscle. It's disgusting. When the time comes, Zhou will just share more food with me. Zhou Tianhao glanced at her and laughed, good. Brainless woman. Song Jia glanced at her disdainfully. Food is not as valuable as psychic powers. Wouldn't it be better to go and rob it when you can? Chen Yun had a silly look on her face, but in her heart, she was thinking of foolish. It's only strange that Zhou Tianhao can give you the fruit of abnormal ability. I'm not as stupid as you are. Being RBQ is at least better than being dead. Song Jie and Chen Yun each played their own game. Chapter 16 The Third Fruit of Enlightenment Zhou Tianhao wasn't idle either. He sent a message in the group in order to work together. I suggest that we build a free trade market to exchange goods. The red mist only goes up to the 21st floor. So I suggest trading once a day at 2pm in the hallways above the 21st floor. There was a quick response, right, right. Right. I have three bottles of mutai. One bottle for ten packs of instant noodles. Two packs of instant noodles. Swap or not. You're also too dark. How much does a bottle of mutai cost? 
and instant noodles only cost a few dollars? Money? Money is good for shit. You go drink your mouth eye. I've got a pack of Oreos, and who's got ham hocks? I want some meat. I'm craving it. I envy those of you with meat. I've been eating briny eggs for three days. I have long with cigarettes and would like to exchange them for a carton of haloperidol. I had diarrhea from eating rotten food yesterday. Help! I have haloperidol, and I want to change my food, not my cigarettes. Help! Big brother, I do have haloperidol, but we're not in the same building, and I'm afraid to go out of the building, so why don't you come over and get it? Yesterday I was bitten by a big ant and now the wound is oozing pus. Help! Zhou Tianhao looked at the messages in the group with glee. It's great to see who still has food at a glance. When push comes to shove, you'll know who to rob. Of course there were people hiding supplies, it didn't matter. You just had to grab enough supplies yourself. The state can't keep not rescuing, can it? Now that we've saved the big boys, it's our turn, isn't it? If the packaged food kid goes to swap supplies too, I can catch him while I'm at it. Jiang Fan of course saw the message sent by Zhou Tianhao and thought to himself, a trading market? Maybe I should go get some new supplies. He needs to keep filling up the variety of supplies. Women can swipe supplies, but only return what they already have. It's hard to get bored with too little variety. Suddenly, he saw the yellow light on Zhou Tianhao's body turn into a blinding red color. HM? Jiang Fan sneered, probably eyeing the alien fruit in my hand. The others didn't know, but Zhou Tianhao definitely knew the effects of the black lychee. In that case, you can go to hell. 21 floors, room 2104. Hurley hasn't eaten all day. She lay drained on her bed, staring at the ceiling in disbelief. The red mist had spread across the 21st floor, about half a meter high, and was flush with the bed. The whole room was like a spooky stage, filled with red smoke. What the hell is going on? Who Lily was in tears. She is a face anchor and makes 20, 000 or 30, 000 dollars a month, which is a very satisfying income for her, who is in college and living a very prosperous life. It's all over now. It took a few minutes for Julie's stomach to twitch with hunger. No way. I've got to do something. She remembered the package. Who Lily was very reluctant to trade her body for food, but there was really no way out. I'm still young. I can't starve to death here. Lily who opened her phone group and saw another person organizing a trading market. A trade market? But I don't have anything to trade. Julie continued to scroll up and saw a new message from the packet. Black lychee? Julie looked out her window in surprise. Creepers grew next to the window and a black lychee grew right under one creeper leaf, hanging out of her window. Why are you charging for this when you get food and shelter? The black lychee had been growing for two days and she hadn't paid much attention to it, but the package begging to be purchased instead made her curious. She opened the window and reached down to pluck the black lychee. This fruit smells so good that you can't help but want to eat it, but Lily who didn't dare to eat it. Nowadays, plants mutate rapidly, and there are all kinds of strange fruits, so who knows if they are poisonous. What's the point of this thing? Lily who searched the internet and found no useful information. If she wasn't hungry, Julie was going to mull it over. Now that she was really hungry, all she wanted to do was to hurry up and switch to food for her hunger. Who Lily took a picture and sent a message to, packaged food, with anticipation in her heart. I wonder how much food I can get for it. Bloxy number 2104 I'm really not a fox, I have a black lychee. Picture, Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. It's still true, and it's the same little fox. Should we go and just rob it? Jiang Fan pondered for a while and thought it was better to forget about it. In case she gets angry and eats it straight away or gives it away. That's what's wrong with it. There was no need to risk myself. Let's trick the fruit of enlightenment first. Package, three packages of instant noodles. Julie surprise. I can't believe I can change three packs. Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox. Can I ask what this fruit can do? Package, it's none of your business. Change it or not. Who Lily looked at the black lychee in her hand. Still a bit reluctant. Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, I'm not changing it then. Jiang Fan lost his smile. This little girl is still trying to scare me? Forget it. Just kidding. Package, yes. Think it over and get back to me. First of all, only charge today one day, after the expiration date. Julie was a little confused. It didn't look like the other guy wanted it that badly. Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, why? Jiang Fan deliberately scared her. Taking it off will soon corrupt it. I don't want the bad ones. Julie was dumbfounded, huh? She immediately realized the other woman wasn't joking. Nowadays nothing fresh fruit can be preserved. It spoils quickly. Huli Yuli did want to know what it was for. But the hunger in her stomach was too much for her to carry. Block C number 2104 for I'm really not a fox, 10 packets of instant noodles. Jiang Fan smiled. And you're cutting me a deal? Slash all you want? As long as the fruit is in your hands, you're even my man. 
Package, up to five packages. No exchange of pullouts. Hu Lily struggled for a moment, but could only agree. Good. Jiang Fan smiled. The third fruit of enlightenment will finally arrive. Package, I'll trade at your house. No way. How dare Hu Lily let the other party come over. Looking at the comments before the package, this guy is a proper big sex fiend. Now that the order was chaotic, she wouldn't dare to deal with the other side one to one. Block C number 2104 for I'm really not a fox, we'll trade on the marketplace later. You can't mess around in front of all those people. Now, most of the survivors still follow the laws of the civilized age. As per inertia, who Lily felt that if there were more people, the other party should not dare to force themselves. Jiang Fan didn't care. He had wanted to go to the trading market as well. If you need to rob it hard, can't you do it with a large crowd? Jiang Fan sneered a good. Contact in a moment. Jiang Fan returned to Tang Shuilawa's house and first took a hot bath to wash off the dust from smashing the wall. The two girls have woken up. They were a little nervous when they realized that Jiang Fan was not there. In these days of chaos, not having a man in the house makes her fidgety. The two women were obviously relieved when Jiang Fan returned. Jiang Fan took out the steak and pork he had just gotten who can fry steaks and red meat. Tang Shuelua fretted. She's the second generation of the government. And she's in college. So how can she cook? Su Mengqian glanced triumphantly at Tang Shuelua and whispered, I can cook. I should be okay. Oh, Jiang Fan was pleasantly surprised. He put all the food in the house into the carry-on space once he acquired it. Rice, flour, oil, salt, soy sauce and vinegar are all available. And there are even some greens, cauliflower, tomatoes and eggs. These were originally prepared by the female roommate. Promise. Jiang Fan wasn't much of a cook, so he didn't touch these ingredients. Since Su Mengqian could cook, then take it out and give it to her to handle. Okay, show me your handiwork. Ding. Su Mengqian consumed one tomato and returned 300 tomatoes. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Su Mengqian consumed two eggs and returned 600 eggs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Su Mengqian consumed one pound of M9 sirloin steak, returning 300 pounds of M9 sirloin steak. It has been put into the carry-on space. Chapter 17, The Beginning of the Collapse of Order Su Mengqian Nimble Hands and Feet Quickly made two meat and two vegetarian, but also steamed a pot of steaming rice a tomato egg soup. Previously, she had really gone through a lot of trouble to learn cooking skills in order to tie up Hule. While using PUA words, he hit Hule's confidence. On the other hand, from time to time to Hule sold a good, attentive care of Hule's diet, shaping the persona of a good wife and mother, coupled with tears, pettiness, and exquisite looks. A whole set of small tactics came down and packed Hule into submission. Unfortunately, this set of words did not work well at all with Jung Fan. Just then, a woman's scream came from block A across the street, what are you doing? The three men got up and looked out the window, only to see that on the 30th floor of block A, a pair of young men and women wearing the same pajamas were forced step by step onto the balcony by four strong men with knives. The young woman exclaimed in horror, oh, this is my house. Get out. The burly man at the head was a yellow-haired man who smiled sardonically and said something. The young woman immediately shouted out to the balcony, help, help, call the police. They want. The yellow hair reached out and grabbed the woman's hair. Pressing down on the woman was a slap in the face. Snapping bitch, give me the face. The young man saw his girlfriend getting beaten up and angrily stepped forward. Without hesitation, yellow hair swung his knife. Pussed. The hilt of the knife disappeared into the young man's abdomen. And the man looked at the other man in surprise. Look at Nima. The three burly men laughed maniacally and swarmed up. Pussed. Pussed. The young man fell soundlessly into a pool of blood. The young woman was mad with fear. You kill people. You kill people. Ha ha ha. Yellow hair laughed, killing is bullshit. Brothers, throw him down and get out of my way. The three men lifted the younger man's body and threw it off the balcony, disappearing into the red mist. A few seconds later, there was a dull plop. The young woman flung herself against the railing and cried out piteously with a sobbing voice, Chen Ming. Chen Ming. Bitch, come in and have fun with me. A burly man pulled her by the hair, and the woman struggled frantically. Help, help. Together, three strong men dragged the woman into the room by force. Soon the screams of the women and the man's maniacal laughter soon came out. Many of the survivors in Block C witnessed the scene from their balconies. Yellow hair waved his watermelon knife and rapidly shouted at the crowd in Block C, What are you looking at? I'll kill you if you look again. Too timid to do anything more. He hurriedly drew the curtains. The braver ones won't swear at him, but just look at yellow hair silently, with a very depressing heart. Order is starting to break down. Tang Shuayang and Su Mengqian turned pale. They were terrified. Jiang Fan said calmly let's eat. The two women didn't dare to look at it more and hurried back to the dining table. Jiang Fan tasted a mouthful of steak and his eyes lit up, good craftsmanship. 
I'll leave the cooking to you from now on. Su Mengqian compensated with a smile, it's good that Jiang is happy with his meal. She was relieved that her position was finally a little more secure. Su Mengqian glanced triumphantly at Tang Shuelua. Bitch, Tang Shuelua cursed, but she couldn't help but worry in her heart. Su Mengqian can cook, what can she do herself? Zhang Fan watched the secret fight between the two women, but he doesn't put it on his mind. Women open the shura casually, as long as it doesn't affect his enjoyment. Besides, it's the competition that makes you aggressive, isn't it? Zhang Fan deliberately stimulated Tang Shuelua and took out an enlightenment fruit for Su Mengqian, eat it, the reward is yours. Su Mengqian was curious, brother Jiang, what is this? Zhang Fan casually said alien fruit, eat it to gain alien powers. Alien fruit. Su Mengqian's eyes were glowing. Zhang Fan actually had an exotic fruit, and by the looks of it, there were a lot of them, otherwise he wouldn't have just given himself one. Tang Shuelua looked at Su Mengqian jealously, her heart growing more and more nervous. One has to act on it. There would definitely be more and more vixens around Zhang Fan. Where would he have a place for himself? Su Mengqian hurriedly swallowed it in one gulp. Soon, she noticed the change in her vision. Brother Jiang, why is there light on all three of us? And it's so bright on you and dark on the two of us? If the light on Zhang Fan was a 100W bulb, the light on the two women was just a candle. Zhang Fan explained briefly the brightness of the glow basically represents the target's combat power. Su Mengqian asked curiously again, why is there a yellow light on you and a light red color on Tang Shuelua? Zhang Fan looked at the two women wistfully and smiled, the light is divided into three colors, green for friendly, yellow for neutral, and red for hostile. Just to remind you, I also have the ability to sense. If anyone dares to be hostile to me, I will kill them. So, even if you guys pretend, you have to pretend to be friendly. Otherwise, hmph, I'll make sure you guys die an ugly death. The two women were startled and didn't dare to think otherwise. Su Mengqian took another look at the red light on Tang Shuelua's body. Red for hostility? HM. Bitch. Tang Shuelua also blared at Su Mengqian. Zhang Fan took out his cell phone smile. The two women hurriedly revealed sweet smiles. Zhang Fan photographed the woman and the meal and sent a message to the group at everyone. Collect beautiful women. Packaged food. Willing to chat privately. First send no beauty face full body selfie photos. Picture, picture. Song Shireen lay weakly on the bed. She's only eaten half a ham hock since yesterday. So hungry. Song Yuanfan took her gold ring and went out to see if he could exchange it for some food. Song Shireen felt like she was starving to death and couldn't stand it. She thought for a moment. Then suddenly sat up and rummaged through her closet for a belt, it's cowhide. eyed It should be edible. Her eyes burned the hard leather straps. She forced Jiang Fan to buy her this belt. Supposedly imported calfskin. 1800 apiece. It was now a complete piece of food in Song Shireen's eyes. She used a knife to cut the belt into small pieces of about one centimeter and boiled water to cook it. Soon, a pungent stench emanated from the pot and the water turned red in color, like brown sugar water. Song Shireen looked at the belt segments in the pot. This is edible? She was so hungry she couldn't stand it, so she had to pinch out a section and bite into it experimentally. The belt enters like plastic and has a sour odor. Song Shireen didn't want to eat, but hunger made her overcome everything. She struggled to bite for a moment. Finally crunching the belt segment into crumbs and swallowing with difficulty. Vom the odd smell made Song Shireen retch for a moment. She ate a few more segments she just couldn't get her mouth around it. And with her stomach so lumpy and uncomfortable she didn't dare eat more. So she can only lie back down on the bed and brace herself. Barely ate something that wasn't as painful. Song Shireen recovered a bit of her spirit and picked up her cell phone to swipe it. As soon as he opened it, he ended up seeing the photo Jiang Fan had sent. Two big beauties. And snowy steaks. Oily braised pork sautéed greens, stir-fried cauliflower, and even the steaming rice radiates a tantalizing array of colors. Song Shireen's mouth watered as she watched, and her heart went crazy with anger of fucking bitches. You're eating my shit. That's mine. She began to regret that if she hadn't broken up with Jiang Fan, then it would be her who would be enjoying these things now. For the first time she felt like she was missing out on something important. But others have said, the first sword ashore is to cut the man of your choice first. I didn't do anything wrong. Isn't that what normal women do? What makes Jiang Fan so angry? Song Shireen suppressed her anger and stared dead at the meat in the photo, hating to replace those two women with herself. Click. The door to the room opened. Song Yuan Fan is back. As soon as he saw the pot, he spoke angrily, Sis, you're stealing food behind my back. Chapter 18. I just want to see your attitude. Song Shireen was a bit angry and said weakly, Belt, would you like some? Ah. Uh. Song Yuan Fan was embarrassed. Song Shireen didn't want to argue with her brother and looked at the backpack behind him, changed back to food? Song Yuanfan nodded, replaced two cans of fish. There were actually four in total, but the other two were hidden away from him, ready to be eaten alone. 
Song Shireen said with disappointment a gold ring is only good for two cans now? Song Yuan Fan said in a disguised manner, the food is getting less and less. It's good to be able to exchange it for this. Sister, we can't do this like this. Is there any news from Zhang Fan's side? Song Shireen said in despair, he's blackballed me. What can I do? Song Yuan Fan was very angry, why is this guy so cheap? What's wrong with asking him for some food? The two of them shared a box of canned goods and their stomachs were much more comfortable. With stamina, the two began to think of something. Song Yuan Fan came up with an idea a sister. You take the initiative to add him. Men are best at saving face. Zhang Fan must not be able to turn his face around. You lower your stance and cry a little more. He must not be able to stand this. Song Shireen was very reluctant to bow down to Zhang Fan. But seeing as she was going to starve to death, she had to agree. Song Shireen once again applied to add Zhang Fan as a friend. She hadn't had much hope, but who knew it would pass immediately. Song Shireen was overly surprised he passed. Song Yuan Fan said happily, See, I told you, man, get it over with. Song Shireen regained her confidence, Don't worry, I'm too sure about dealing with Zhang Fan. After thinking about it, she sent a video call to Zhang Fan. Soon the call was answered. Zhang Fan's face appeared in the screen. Next to him were two women, who were attentively serving him food. Song Shireen looked at the red-faced Zhang Fan and her anger surged. I'm starving here, and you're enjoying your food and actually playing with women. And it's too. Zhang Fan looked at the woman on the opposite side of the video, unkempt and depressed. Where was there a trace of the pride of the past? I can't believe I was fooled by this crap for so many years. Zhang Fan was in a good mood and smiled yo. Dieting? Lose a fart of weight ah. Song Shireen was so angry that she almost didn't take a breath. Glaring round in angry eyes and drinking, Zhang Fan, Zhang Fan nudged Tang Shuelua. Tang Shuelua understood and took the initiative to clip a piece of steak and put it into Zhang Fan's mouth. Her body pressed tightly against his. Zhang Fan ate his mouth full of oil and petted Tang Shuelua's head like a kitten before he said, Call me what? Song Shireen's mouth watered as she watched, and her stomach began to twitch again. While he himself was eating a belt, Zhang Fan was eating a steak. Song Yuan Fan was anxious and glared at her from the corner. Song Shireen hurriedly said to Zhang Fan, you disappoint me too much. You're actually such a man. Zhang Fan drank a mouthful of iced cola freely and teased her with a smile, and I let you down. Who are you to say such things to me? Big sister. Let's all break up okay. Song Shireen forced her way up, you don't understand me at all. We've been together for so many years and you can't even afford a house. You're not trying too hard. I broke up with you just to irritate you. Zhang Fan casually said, make it up. Keep making it up. Su Mengxian clapped a piece of braised meat and sent it to Zhang Fan's mouth saying in a delicate voice, Brother Jang, is it good? Zhang Fan chewed painfully, not bad, not bad, bitch. Song Shireen's eyes were on fire as she swallowed hard and said to Zhang Fan, it was my fault for breaking up with you, but aren't you at all wrong? Other people's boyfriends are working. What are you doing? At a convenience store, running a drop. What kind of work is that? What about our future children? I don't want our kids to lose at the starting line. Good guy, this is a childbirth warning. Zhang Fan smirked, don't talk about the kids. Besides, break up is break up. What do you mean you took all the money from my bank card? Before Song Shireen broke up, she transferred all the tens of thousands of dollars Zhang Fan had saved a day in advance. Zhang Fan is very angry. This is the old man's hard-earned money. As soon as money was mentioned, Song Shireen was a bit speechless, not knowing how to answer. How has he changed? Anxiety rose in her heart. Zhang Fan never said such harsh words before. I'm not short of money. I just wanted to see your attitude. You disappoint me too much. Attitude? Zhang Fan sputtered with laughter. Well, I'll give you a chance. Did he come around? Sure enough, he still can't let go of me. Song Shireen was pleasantly surprised. I'll be good to you. Let's make up. Song Shireen was pleased in her heart. Zhang Fan, indeed, is a licking dog. When the old lady calls, she comes and goes. In her mind, she began to calculate how to get rid of the two women once she arrived at Zhang Fan's house and control all the food in her hands. Song Yuanfan's face also showed joy. Zhang Fan smiled to take it easy. I want to see your attitude too. Now, get on your knees. Song Shireen stalled. Annoyed her Zhang Fan. You're insulting my character. Song Yuanfan got anxious, seeing that the food that was almost in his hands was going to fly, and whispered urgently sis, get him. Song Shireen hesitated in her heart. Hunger scared her more than face. If she and Zhang Fan were the only two people on the scene, maybe she would have agreed. But now there are two other women and her own brother, Song Yuan Fan, how could that make her agree? Unfortunately, she didn't have a chance to hesitate. You still talk to me about personality? Zhang Fan snorted and threw back the words as they were, I don't want to insult you. I just want to see your attitude. Song Shireen, you disappoint me too much. After saying that, 
He directly hung up the phone. Crouch. Groove. Song Shireen was holding her breath beyond belief. Song Yuanfan's face contorted in anger as he stormed out, Sis, what's kneeling down when you two are together and playing so fancy? What are you pretending now? Song Shireen's chest tightened as she looked at her own brother in disbelief, Yuan Fan. Why are you talking to me like this? Besides, where did Jiang Fan and I go so far? Song Yuan Fan huffed, Sis, what's the point of kneeling down? It's just a little couple's fling. Now we're starving. Song Shireen clenched her fingers white and argued, Don't you see? He's deliberately insulting me. Being insulted is better than being starved to death. Song Yuanfan threw down a sentence and stormed angrily into another room. Bam! The door to the room closed. Song Shireen was silent. She already had a bit of regret in her mind. Maybe it really should have just taken a knee. Song Shireen is a very realistic woman. When she fell in love with Jiang Fan in college, she figured that Jiang Fan was handsome and made her look good in college. Graduated Jiang Fan is a bottom low man. Nothing at all. So she dumped Jiang Fan when she got into the establishment. Now, times had changed again. And Jiang Fan, with a large amount of food in his hands, was the man of the hour. It shouldn't be a big deal to give him an E. Song Shireen looked at Jiang Fan's account and hesitated to decide. She had just eaten half a box of canned fish and wasn't particularly hungry enough to hold out. Wait for it. 2 p.m. It's time to trade. Zhou Tianhao took Song Jia and Chen Yun out with him. The red mist obscured their vision, and the three of them stayed close together, carefully holding onto the walls as they moved forward. Zhou Tianhao thought silently hopefully the package boy will come to the deal. Chapter 19 Robbery by Zhou Tianhao Chen Yun fearfully wrapped her arms around Zhou Tianhao, and the three of them went to the hallway to climb the stairs. Walking up to the 21st floor, the red mist was finally gone. The three men breathed a sigh of relief. After the view opens up, it's as if all the boulders weighing on your chest have moved away. In the hallway, a dozen people were already standing. All of them had a vegetable face and a shriveled look, and all of them looked hungry. Some of them also had deep dark circles under their eyes and had obviously not slept well for some time. They watched the others warily and expectantly, clutching their backpacks and holding up a paper sign in their hands. One piece of chocolate for two pieces of bread. Six cokes for meat. Ham and lunch meat is fine. Two bottles of fetch. Come and talk if you want. Just food. A thousand gold bracelets for a box of instant noodles. The most special one is an old Chinese doctor named Li Qingxuan. He had gray hair and was sitting on a flight of stairs with a large bag of smelly wild greens in front of him and a cardboard sign that read wild capers. Edible, 10 pounds for one bottle of alcohol. Crowd respect far away. No one dares to eat such a big caper. The leaves are bigger than cabbage. Ghosts know whether there is no mutation. Will be poisonous. Zhou Tianhao walked over and picked up the wild caper and sniffed it. Vomit a smell came to my nose. Crap. Zhou Tianhao threw it aside in disgust, why is it the same as this stuff is edible? His glistening muscles made the crowd envious, and they all looked at him curtly. Li Qingxuan nodded and said with a straight face, it's edible. I've had it. Zhou Tianhao looked at Li Qingxuan in shock. That's a fucking mouthful. Li Qingxuan smiled bitterly, almost starving. What do you care if it tastes good or not? It's changing more and more now, and sooner or later we're going to have to start eating outside plants. Chen Yun followed and sniffed immediately throwing it aside and repeatedly wiping her hands with a paper towel in disgust, I'm starving to death and I'm not eating. Li Qingxuan smiled and shook his head without saying anything. After another 10 minutes or so, more and more people gathered in the hallway. More than 40 people. When there are more people, people get bolder. The crowd was selling things and chatting, exchanging information about each other, it's impossible to live. My family is out of food. Why hasn't the state come to the rescue? Hell knows. Maybe the officials are protected. Mad. The world is not fair. By the way, has the packaged food guy come in yet? I want to trade my wife's diamond ring with him for some food. A diamond ring? Nowadays ghosts want this stuff. He probably won't come, it's not like he's short of food. And he's robbed two women, so he must be afraid of being robbed by the others. Damn it. Tang Shuelua actually cheaped out on this kid. Hoomph. He shouldn't be too happy. When Director Tang comes back with people, there will be good fruit for this kid. Is Commissioner Dawn still coming back? Definitely can. In modern society, with advanced technology, it's impossible for the country to be defeated by the evolution of plants and animals, and when we're done rescuing the powerful, it'll be the turn of us ordinary people. Zhou Tianhao let Chen Yin find a position to sell protein powder. Himself and Song Jia two people turned around, cannot help but face ugly. The situation was much worse than he thought. There was hardly much decent food that the crowd took out for trade now, mostly things like coke and white wine that don't top the hunger. He had previously wanted to take Song Jie out and live by himself with a few women. Now the idea has changed. Food is so scarce and trading doesn't get you much food. Then it's up for grabs. Rob, it takes a man. What's the point of having so many women? Song Jie whispered to brother Zhou, 
The situation is not good. Zhou Tianhao nodded with a gloomy face, shit. We have to get something to eat this time. Song Jia said worriedly, that kid from the package didn't show up. He doesn't live in our building. Does he? Zhou Tianhao whispered, he should be living in our building. He is now with Tang Shuero and the pretty boss lady of the convenience store. Those two women are living in our building. Which means that in all likelihood, the food package is also living in our building. In addition, I see that the room in his photo doesn't have red mist, which means it's on the 21st floor and up. Song Jia sniffed and kissed his ass, Zhou has a great brain. Hoomph. Now the brain will die if it's not awesome. Zhou Tianhao said smugly, we need to find a way to get some food out of their hands. The two men whispered for a moment and then made up their minds. By this time, the short, fat nerd selling chocolates was surrounded by three people snapping them up. Chocolate is better than bread for long-term storage and is a life-saving supply in a pinch. The geeks buying the chocolates weren't stupid and immediately raised the price. It ended up being a quick deal with three loaves of bread plus a package of cookies. The geek was happy and wanted to go home but was stopped by Zhou Tianhao dude. Do you want to just leave? The geeks looked worriedly at the burly Zhou Tianhao and Song Jie and hugged the food in their arms tightly. You, you, what do you want? The crowd looked over. Zhou Tianhao grinned I organized this trading market. So I'll be in charge of it. Now that it's so dangerous outside, I naturally have to protect everyone's personal safety. You guys have enjoyed my protection. Paying a little management fee isn't too much, right? The crowd's faces changed. Damn it. Chow has no good intentions. Julie, who was hiding in the crowd, was nervous. Now she has mediocre posture. She knew that women were dangerous in troubled times, and beautiful women like her were even more dangerous. So on purpose, she puts on makeup to make herself ugly. And with the addition of fat clothes, she turns into a deformed yellow face with wrinkles on her face. It's safe right now. No man cares about her at all. Surname Joe wants to rob. Who Lily was very nervous. Why don't you come with the package? She squeezed her handbag which held a black lychee that was all the hope she had to live. Some of the resourceful ones saw the situation and started to pack up and try to run away. Zhou Tianhao roared. The light on his muscles turning a shade brighter as he glared, I'll kill anyone who dares to run. The crowd immediately stood still and looked at Zhou Tianhao in shock. Zhou Tianhao looked at the geeks in front of him again and laughed, Kid, your management fee, two loaves of bread. Two, the geek was alarmed, why don't you go grab it? Bang, Zhou Tianhao punched the geek in the stomach. Vomit. The geek bent his body in pain and fell to his knees. Dry heaving. Zhou Tianhao grabbed the collar of the residential man with one hand and violently exerted his strength, picking him up with difficulty. The crowd of onlookers sucked in a breath of cold air. 160 to 70 pounds of man. Carried in one hand? This asshole is awesome. Zhou Tianhao clenched his teeth and used all his strength to keep his shape. After two seconds he couldn't carry it anymore. He violently threw the geeks out two or three meters. The geek fell with a scream. Zhou Tianhao forcefully grabbed the geek's backpack and viciously said you resisted law enforcement and everything was confiscated. No. My stuff. The geek, of course, couldn't take it and struggled to get up. Zhou Tianhao's heart crossed. Simply do not do anything. Today we will take the geeks to make an example of the monkey. To subdue everyone. He stepped forward and kicked the geek hard in the chest. Bang. Click. Everyone heard the sound of bones breaking as the geek slid a few meters across the floor and crashed into the wall unconscious. The scene was silent as the crowd looked at Zhou Tianhao in fear. Song Jia was also startled, looking at the geek's miserable condition with horror. Zhou Tianhao looked at the crowd and exclaimed as we all know, it's dangerous outside, and over time, it's not safe inside the building. We must organize patrols to save ourselves, and the patrols should patrol day and night, signaling when they find danger, and cutting down the plants that grow into the building to protect the big guys. It's all for the good of everyone. Now, who wants to join the patrol? The crowd looked at Zhou Tianhao in silence. No one believes Zhou Tianhao's bullshit now. Zhou Tianhao raised his backpack and said here are three loaves of bread and one packet of cookies. They were confiscated by me because he refused to manage them. These things are not mine personally. They belong to the whole patrol. Patrols have this benefit? Some people's psyches are starting to change. Part of those who had sympathized with the geeks changed their minds. Who cares about the neighbors if they can get a piece of the action themselves? However, no one has much food and the so-called management fee is not much to collect. Will this so-called patrol be held accountable by the government afterwards? People are still watching. Zhou Tianhao narrowed his eyes and continued, when the red mist descends, there are still a lot of house owners in our building who haven't come back. I will organize patrol members to break down the doors and collect the supplies, which will also be distributed to the patrol members on a priority basis. Prying? At this, many eyes began to glow, especially some young males, or families with males in the home are secretly delighted. Maybe it's time to join a patrol. The patrols, for sure, are dominated by young males. They can naturally take advantage. 
Some single women and elderly people are not happy about it, the supplies in the empty house belong to everyone. What gives the patrol the right to take them? Who gave the patrol this authority? Priority is priority when you say so. On what grounds? Chapter 20 Killing Zhou Tianhao in Seconds The one who shouted the loudest was the sharp-tongued Mrs. Sue. She pulled her grandson Tao Tao with one hand and crossed her arms with the other, shouting at Zhou Tianhao without any scruples if we don't have it. The patrols aren't allowed to take it. Whoever takes it I'll film it and call the police. The others, seeing that someone had taken the lead, summoned up the courage to follow, right? Call the police. This is robbery. What gives you the right to take things from other people's homes? Patrols can go and break down the doors, but the supplies must be split equally between each family. A bunch of old women together with inexplicable courage. They gasped equal shares? If you're over 60, you get more. All the supplies should be divided equally. And that young man who called for a packet of food. Which one are you? Come forward. Your family has so much food. How can you bear to see us starve? Right. Food and shelter included. Step forward and let me old man me give you a talk. Aren't the patrols supposed to keep us safe? Then there must be enough food for everyone every day. Zhou Tianhao man was dumbfounded. How dare I beat up people for nothing? He walked in front of Mrs. Su and looked down on her with a hard look old undead. You think I'm consulting with you? Old Mrs. Su shouted with a strained neck if you touch me. I'll call the police. Snap. Zhou Tianhao swept his face and slapped Mrs. Su to the ground. Unconscious on the spot. Zhou Tianhao growled and now who has an opinion? The scene was silent. This kid's crazy. Even the old woman with version T0 dared to fight. Now no one dared to say anything at all. The old women who had been yelling and screaming a moment ago were trying to cower behind the others. Mrs. Su's grandson Tao Tao cried and howled. Zhou Tianhao blared, what the hell are you howling for? I'll throw you off. Tao closed his mouth in horror. The patrol is taking six men. Who wants to sign up? A young man raised his hand cautiously, Captain Zhou. I'll sign up. Good. Zhou Tianhao laughed and patted the man's shoulder, what's your name? The man compensated with a smile, Huang Dai Tao. With the first, some follow. Six people soon signed up. Having formed a patrol, Zhou Tianhao immediately began to forcefully collect management fees, everyone has to pay the management fee. Or else don't blame me for bringing people to open your door and go to your house to collect it. The scene was haunted, Captain Zhou. This is all I have to eat. I can't take it away. Captain Zhou. My child is still starving. Don't rob him. It's mine. No taking it. Ah. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. I'll give it to you. Survivors in the same building quickly morphed into two classes in the face of scarce food. There was a lot of hitting and cursing. The crowd that didn't join the patrol began to regret it. One actually believed in Zhou Tianhao's evil and came to participate in this bullshit trading market. It's too late to run now. And running won't work either. Or Zhou Tianhao will bring people to rush into the house to rob it. Just as there was chaos, a voice rang out, Yo, it's quite lively. Zhou Tianhao looked up and saw a man leisurely walking down with two beautiful women. The men looked very healthy, and the two beautiful women had obviously just been well-groomed and radiant. The two women stood out even more in contrast to the group of hungry, pudgy female survivors. The scene was quiet for a moment. Song Jia said excitedly, Quick look, Brother Zhou, next to that kid is Tang Shuelua. He must be the package deal. Isn't this kid the clerk at the convenience store downstairs? Damn, it's this kid, a crappy store clerk pretending to be an ass in the group every day. Amidst the gazes of the men gazing intently, Tang Shuero and Su Mengxian were nervous and held Jiang Fan's arm tightly. Jiang Fan was calm. Now he had his senses fully open. Everyone's light was in their eyes. The color of the vast majority of people, yellow with a slight reddish tinge, is just a little hostile. Zhou Tianhao was different. His body was red and purple, carrying a stark malice. Zhou Tianhao laughed fiercely, so it's you kid. Now pay the management fee and hand over half of your family's food. This stupid kid is really here. I can't believe I brought a woman with me. Both women are mine. Half? Jiang Fan patted the hands of the two girls, who obediently let go of Jiang Fan. Zhou Tianhao said greedily right. And that black lychee of yours, give it to me too. Jiang Fan smiled as he walked to Zhou Tianhao and suddenly reached out and grabbed Zhou Tianhao's neck. Zhou Tianhao tried to dodge, but realized that Jiang Fan's speed was so incredibly fast that he couldn't dodge at all. Put. Zhou Tianhao wanted to curse, and halfway through his words, his consciousness fell into darkness. Click. Zhang Fan simply pinched Zhou Tianhao's cervical vertebrae. Zhou Tianhao's head hung down weirdly. Just this? Zhang Fan let go of his hand and said indifferently. Zhou Tianhao's body fell to the ground with a plop. The scene was dead silent, and the crowd was beyond terrified. Zhou Tianhao. Dead? Is this murder? How can you kill someone when you're beating them up? How come Chao Tianhao is dead? Gulp. Song Jia swallowed hard. He knew Zhou Tianhao's power too well. Now, 
The seemingly ordinary Jiang Fan had easily killed Zhou Tianhao in seconds. Jiang Fan must have gained psychic powers as well. He must have eaten that fruit of enlightenment. Jiang Fan revealed a cheerful and sunny smile and looked at the crowd with a grin at everyone. There's no need to be afraid. Zhou Tianhao robbed your food. I've already avenged you. Everyone cringed. No one expected the young convenience store clerk to be the scariest tiger of all. Some are fearful, while others have special thoughts. It seemed that this young man called Zhang Fan had a bit of a sense of justice. Old Mrs. Su happened to wake up and saw Zhou Tianhao being killed, covering her swollen cheeks and laughing madly good kill, good kill. Zhang Fan looked at the large bag of food Zhou Tianhao had levied and was very satisfied. It's a mess of everything, and this time it will add to the variety of supplies. Old Mrs. Su said anxiously give us back our stuff. Zhang Fan blinked his eyes, what is it? Mrs. Su pointed at the backpack and said expectantly, it's ours. Zhang Fan shook his head, this is clearly Zhou Tianhao's. The others mustered the courage to speak up as well, boy, that bag is ours. Yeah, they patrols robbed it hard from us. Zhang Fan kicked old Mrs. Su to the side and smiled, ask whoever grabbed it for it, it's none of my business. The crowd went cold in their hearts. It was robbed by Zhou Tianhao, but Zhou Tianhao has been killed by you. What more do you want? It turned out that this Jiang Fan was no good either. The crowd could only take their anger out on a few patrolmen. The patrol shivered. Without Zhou Tianhao to take the lead, they were surrounded by dozens of people and were very frightened. The crowd didn't dare to mess with the ferocious Jiang Fan, but they were not polite to the patrol members. Those who had just been robbed were especially angry, surname Lu. Hurry up and give me back my ham sausage. You goddamned bastard. I just have one more halogen egg. You also rob. There is no humanity. Quick. Give me back my old man's instant noodles. Damn. That's the old man's last bread. Surname Wang. We're neighbors for 10 years. You actually tolerate robbing me. A few of the patrol tried to slip away, but they were blocked in the corner. And soon the food that one of the patrol had just smuggled in was discovered. Someone couldn't help but kick Song Jia. And the rest of the crowd swarmed the scene of Ah. Don't hit. Don't hit me. Help. It hurts. Chapter 21 The Third Fruit Arrives. Some took out their anger on the patrolman. Some took the opportunity to leave quietly. Elderly misses. Su even steals people's food while they are distracted. Jiang Fan looked around and didn't see, I'm really not a fox. The anchor woman didn't show up? Jiang Fan frowned slightly. As long as he stared at the body of a woman he didn't recognize for a few seconds. The system automatically prompted, Sun Jae. Age, 32, quality, 5 out of 5, mediocre, maternity, 2 points, 3 marriages, 2 ex-husbands out of the house, overall rating, 5, ding does not meet minimum system requirements. Deng Xiana, age, 39, quality, 3 points, women's morality, 10 points, non-personnel, overall rating, 3, ding, does not meet minimum system requirements. Suddenly, prompts popped up on a mediocre middle-aged woman in the corner frowny face Lily who, age, 22, quality, 9, 5 points, big, big, women's morality, 10 points, non-personnel, overall rating, 9, 5 points, ding, meet the system requirements. Hmm, 9. Five points? Do we still have this kind of superb in our building? Jiang Fan stared at the middle-aged woman and looked carefully for a while before he realized that the woman was wearing makeup. And it's deliberately ugly. That's smart. Who Lily? Jiang Fan immediately reacted. Fox. She's the anchor woman. Lily who was looking timidly at herself, as if hesitating to come over and trade. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. He made his way through the chaotic crowd and walked right up to Huliarai. Wherever he went. Everyone unanimously made a path, not daring to provoke Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan asked to Julie, did you bring the black lychee? Who Lily was startled and hurriedly touched her cheeks, thinking she had dropped her makeup or brought. You, can recognize me? Jiang Fan didn't explain. He just took out five packs of instant noodles and looked at Hu Lily. Huli Yuli's eyes glowed and she gulped as she carefully opened her backpack and took out a lunchbox. Opening the lunchbox, a black lychee appeared in front of Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan laughed and reached for the lunchbox. The third fruit of enlightenment has finally arrived. Tang Shuiro and Su Mengxian looked at Jiang Fan in surprise. It was not understood why Jiang Fan was interested in this woman with mediocre posture. It was only when they saw the black lychee that they seemed to realize that Jiang Fan had come for the exotic fruit. HM. This woman is so stupid to not eat this alien fruit. Looking at Hu Lily's ordinary appearance, the two women did not feel a hint of threat, but instead were proud and self-satisfied. There was no way for this kind of woman to steal Jiang Fan from herself. Jiang Fan shoved five packets of instant noodles to Hu Lily and smiled want to stay at my place? Lily who clutched the instant noodles tightly and shook her head nervously, I, I like living alone. Jiang Fan was not in a hurry at all and casually said, okay, you can contact me again when you're done eating, I have plenty more to eat. He considered himself a man of principle. 
Since the deal was made earlier to trade the fruit of enlightenment, it was a deal. However, if you change your mind on the spot after a deal is said and done, Zhang Fan will make the other party understand what it means to be cruel. Hu Lily did not toss him off. Zhang Fan will not flip the deal directly Rob. Anyway, this bit of food will still be eaten up sooner or later. Just have to make her suffer a bit, the harder it is to survive, the more she will eventually die. Hu Lily bit her lip, hesitated, and didn't completely refuse. Can I? Can I? Can I think about it? Zhang Fan smiled and no problem. By the way, where did you grow this black lychee? Hu Lily hugged the food full of newness and said without much thought, the creeper on the outside wall. Isn't yours? Zhang Fan nodded slightly and didn't say anything, secretly pondering in his heart. The few fruits of enlightenment he knew of grew completely different plants, succulents, creepers, and the weeds the lightning guy was talking about. It's weird how any plant can grow enlightenment fruits. Do these plants have anything in common? Zhang Fan was puzzled. Just then, the crowd suddenly erupted into shouts, murder, murder. The crowd that assaulted the patrolman dispersed. Several of the patrolmen had collapsed in a pool of blood, breathing in and out. The food they had just grabbed was once again taken from them. The scene was a mess. Crowds of people were tearing and scrambling for food as they crowded to escape. Hu Lily's face was pale and she only felt her heart pounding. Tang Shuiyang and Su Mengqian couldn't help but take Jiang Fan's arm and lean over. Jiang Fan just looked at everything blindly. No one dared to go near him even if the scene was chaotic. A three meter empty circle formed around him. In the midst of the end times, the nature of the crowd to bully the weak and fear the hard was exposed. Ah, Tao Tao, Tao Tao. Mrs. Su howled miserably. Turns out the bear was pushed to the ground and then stomped on a dozen times by a group of people. On the spot, he began to vomit blood, gushing it out in large gulps. Save my grandson. Save my grandson. Old Mrs. Su looked panicked. No one cares about her. Everyone left in a hurry. In the end, it was that old Chinese Dr. Li Qingchuan who sighed and walked back again, as if she had found a savior. Old Lady Su hurriedly grabbed Li Qingchuan's hand and said, Save Tao Tao. Tao Tao is a good boy. Dr. Li, you must save him. Li Qingchuan said with a straight face, I'll try. He squatted beside Tao Tao, cut his pulse, and looked at Tao Tao's pupils. Li Qingchuan shook his head if it was before. Getting to the hospital right away might have saved my life. Now. Ugh. Li Qingchuan slowly stood up. Old Mrs. Su immediately turned pale and tugged on Li Qingchuan's pant leg in death. How can I tell his parents if he dies? Dr. Li, you save him. You must have a way to save him. Li Qingchuan smiled bitterly, I'm sorry, I really can't help it. Old Mrs. Su suddenly changed her face and exclaimed, I know, you doctors, you just want money, right? I'll give it to you. 100, 500, my family has money, I'll give it to you if you cure him. Li Qingchuan was speechless, and said with a straight face, Sister Su, it's not a matter of money, it's a matter of not having the conditions for treatment right now. Old Mrs. Su looked exuberant as she tugged on Li Qingchuan's pant leg at Tao Tao was only stepped on a few times. How could anything happen? I know. You just want money. If you don't save Tao Tao, you're not saving him from death. You have no medical ethics. Li Qingchuan was willing to come to the rescue, but that didn't mean he was a good old boy who let people bully him. Humph. Unreasonable. He raised his leg violently, shook off Mrs. Su's hand, and turned his head away. Mrs. Su was on the ground and yelled, Why don't you show Tao Tao? Why don't you give me medical attention? Followed by a wail, come and see. This old man is dead. His conscience has been eaten by dogs. Agu, I've had a hard life. Li Qingchuan, I'm going to sue you at the hospital. Tang Shuero and Su Mengchen looked at old lady Su in disgust. Zhang Fan watched the show with interest and suddenly opened his mouth. Mrs. Su, don't cry. Your grandson is out of breath. Mrs. Su twisted her head to look at Tao Tao. The bear child had already turned blue and was not breathing. Ah, Tao Tao. Tao Tao you wake up. How can I tell your parents if you die? Elderly Mrs. Su's eyes rolled white and she fainted with a karma sound. Zhang Fan skimmed his mouth and turned his head to see Hu Lily, who was still hiding in the corner as she clutched five packets of instant noodles in her arms. Zhang Fan knew what she was afraid of and deliberately asked, why aren't you home yet? Julie tried to squeeze out a smile, I I'll go later. In fact, she was afraid to go at all. When the crowd had fled and scattered earlier, it was obvious that a few men had stared at the food in her arms. If Jung Fan hadn't been here, she would probably have been robbed. Lily who didn't even dare to go downstairs and go home now, not knowing if there was someone waiting at the bottom to rob her. Jung Fan said indifferently oh, you wait then. After that, he took the two daughters upstairs and went home. The building quickly quieted down. Several bodies were strewn across the floor. The only living person is the unconscious Mrs. Sue. There was a sudden terror all around. Who Lily was on the verge of crying with fear. 
and she waited a few more minutes before summoning the courage to tremblingly descend the stairs, tiptoeing along the way. It was always a stroke of luck to get home safely. As soon as she got home, Lily who collapsed on the floor, barely able to stand up, at Tang Shuela was home, Zhang Fan took the scene in his eyes. He had long seen that there was no one in the building, and the only mutant beast was White Eyes, which was lying on the doorstep of Tang Shuela's house, so for the time being, there would be no one to threaten Hu Lily. He was deliberately trying to scare Hu Lily. The woman is a little smart, but not much. When the instant noodles run out in a few days, you'll still have to beg yourself on your knees at the door. How dare you pin your hopes on a state bailout? Ha! Zhang Fan withdrew his gaze and took out the enlightenment fruit from his lunchbox and handed it to Tang Shuelua. Here you go. Eat it. Chapter 22, New Ability, Voiding. Tang Shuelua was pleasantly surprised for me? Zhang Fan said carelessly, well, I have plenty of this stuff. Thank you brother Jiang. Thank you brother Jiang. Tang Shuelua had been worried about losing her favor, but now she finally let go of her heart. Bitch. Su Mengqian looked at Tang Shuelua jealously. Tang Shuelua ate the fruit of enlightenment. Ding. Tang Shuelua consumed one fruit of enlightenment, voiding and returned 300 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, voiding two stars. When consumed, you can gain the ability of voiding. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Voiding. Jung Fan's eyes lit up. Sure enough, it's a new ability. And it's a two-star fruit. Tang Shuelua instinctively felt a new ability, but couldn't figure out how to use it. Tang Shuelua said curiously, Brother Jiang. What kind of fruit is this? Voiding. Zhang Fan smiled and casually took out a few voiding fruits and threw them into his mouth. The system immediately prompted frowny face voiding, two stars. You can void your body and travel through solids and liquids. The greater the density of the solid, the greater the physical exertion. Zhang Fan's heart moved, and his voiding ability was unleashed. He instinctively felt the half illusory, half real state of his body, and seemed to be able to pass through any place he wanted. Zhang Fan reached out and touched the wall, and his arm plunged in. Immediately afterward, his entire body walked into the wall and then out of the bedroom. Through the wall, Tang Shuelua was pleasantly surprised. She tried and followed Jiang Fan's example, easily passing through the wall. Tang Shuelua's face went white and she was panting as if she had run several kilometers, going through walls is so tiring. It's still Jiang who's great. I can go through two walls at most. Su Mengqian's eyes flamed with jealousy. This ability is an escape technique. Su Mengqian grudgingly tightened her arms around Jiang Fan and Jiang. Hubby. I want it too. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly, that depends on what you do later. Su Mengqian was surprised and hurriedly said, Honey, I will try. Jiang Fan smiled and don't call me husband. Call me master. Master. Su Mengqian blushed scarlet. Well, good boy. Jiang Fan stroked Su Mengqian's head, like jerking a cat. Tang Shuelua's beautiful eyes were on fire. What a slut. Immediately afterward, she sat down on her knees on the ground and picked up Jiang Fan's big feet and cradled them in her arms each young. Master, you're tired. I'll squeeze your feet. Sure enough, competition is good for service quality. Jiang Fan smiled in satisfaction in the future. Every few days, I will take a fruit to reward you. But to whom? Oh, the two women sniffed and both stared at each other intently. Sparks vaguely clashing in the air. All right, go play little kitty. I'll go do some business. Jiang Fan stood up, and with a movement in his heart, voiding activated. He felt the floorboards empty under his feet and his body fell lightly. In the two women's perspective, Jiang Fan's body quickly plunged into the floorboards and eventually disappeared completely. Jiang Fan crossed the floorboards and landed in the room downstairs. In midair he turned off his vanishing ability and easily stepped on the floor of the 31st floor. Ha ha ha, it is indeed a life-preserving divine skill. Jiang Fan was very satisfied. Jiang Fan tested it a few more times and quickly understood the details of the voiding ability. I, when traveling through a solid, it is like walking in a swimming pool, which is more strenuous. The denser the solid, the more physical effort is expended and the slower the speed. He could clearly feel far more resistance when traveling through a load-bearing wall than in hollow brick. Second, you can't breathe in a solid. You have to hold your breath, so you can't stay in a solid for long. Third, he can carry items through walls. Whether it's the clothes on his body or his backpack, it's considered part of his body and travels through solids. Jiang Fan smiled moreover. I have a high overall physical fitness. For Tang Shuelua it consumes a lot of stamina. For me it's very little. I can walk a few kilometers slowly if I don't consider the breathing problem. Tang Shuelua's room downstairs was empty. Zhang Fan simply took out a large handful of voiding fruits and ate them one by one. After eating a dozen or so, the system prompted again frowny face ding. Voiding upgraded to three stars. The speed of traveling through solids and liquids is accelerated. 
Zhang Fan continued to eat. Ding. Voiding upgraded to four stars. The speed of traveling through solids and liquids is increased. Keep eating. Ding. Voiding is upgraded to five stars. You can barely breathe in solids and liquids. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up. You can breathe in solids and liquids. So you can move for a long time. Voiding. Zhang Fan turned on his abilities and experimented with the changes in his abilities. If you were walking through solids before, like walking through viscous water, then now it's like running against a gale. And it's a lot faster. Also, it does breathe. Still holding my breath a little bit. Kind of like when I can't breathe well while wearing an N95 mask. Doesn't matter though. As long as you can breathe, you can move underground for a long time. Escape or sneak sneak attack can work wonders. There were only 100 or so voiding fruits left. So Zhang Fan felt that he couldn't upgrade any further. So he took out the perception fruits and ate them. But after taking hundreds of them in a row, they still haven't risen to 5 stars. Taking into account the ones that were usually eaten out of hand, at least 200 or so fruits of perception had been eaten. There was also the physique strengthening fruit as well. The effect of Zhang Fan eating it was very inconspicuous. It seemed that the effect was a bit worse than perception. Zhang Fan couldn't help but speculate, it's about the fact that the perception fruit is only a 1 star one, containing less of a certain kind of energy, and it's difficult to upgrade to 5 stars. And the voiding fruit is a 2 star with a higher energy than the perception fruit energy in order to easily rise to 5 stars. Also, there could be another reason why my body is not suited for the physical strengthening fruit and the perception fruit and is more adaptable to the voiding fruit. Since this was the case, Jiang Fan stopped trying. Let's gather supplies first. Now the whole empty building is mine. Going through walls can be much faster than smashing them. Jiang Fan had used most of an hour to scour all the unoccupied rooms above the 21st floor, collecting countless supplies. Unified, Master Kong, White Elephant, and Imlang, the four kings of instant noodles come together in a total of more than 30 flavors, a dozen types of ham sausage, all kinds of common packaged food and beverages, ham sausage, chocolate, cookies, bread, chorizo, duck necks, coke, beer and so on, frozen chicken, fish, beef, lamb and pork, unopened oil, salt, vinegar and various condiments, zero and zero, a full range of flavors, furniture, electrical appliances, toilet paper, condoms, shampoo, soap, toothpaste, various common medicines, furniture and appliances were also moved, in short, Jung Fan was as good as it gets, enough living supplies were collected to last 10 people for one year, if all the empty rooms in the entire neighborhood were scoured, there would be no need to go to the residential areas to gather supplies, why not just go to a large supermarket where there is a wider variety of supplies, Jung Fan was standing in a room on the 21st floor, and the red mist had spread to knee height, next door is Lily whose room, Jung Fan saw that she was eating instant noodles, Lily who didn't seem to want to finish it, ate half of it, kept half of it, and then put it in the freezer to freeze, this woman is so stupid, it's a wonder it doesn't go bad after eating half of it, Zhang Fan put Hu Lily in the back of his mind and continued to scavenge for supplies, with a movement in his mind, his body passed through the floorboards and fell into the 20th floor, this layer was completely covered in red mist, the red mist indoors is barely lighter than outdoors, he looked with his eyes and it was very blurry a few meters away, standing in the bedroom looking into the living room, you can barely see anything, but he looked with his senses and was not affected in the slightest. The corners of Zhang Fan's mouth rose slightly as he quickly collected the supplies in the room into space. Then, Zhang Fan walked through the wall and into the next one, continuing to scavenge. He just scoured the 20th floor from house to house, then went to the 19th, 18th, and 17th floors. Chapter 23 Springtime for locksmiths The lower the floor, the darker the room. The red mist blocked out a lot of sunlight. The sun's rays barely shine down. By the time we reached the 10th floor, the light outside was like a cloudy day, with creepers covering most of the windows, and the interior was even bloomier. Below the fifth floor, the brightness outside is like turning into a moonlit night. The interior was even worse. The glass was completely covered and the room was in complete darkness if the lights were not turned on. Coupled with the red mist, you can't see anyone beyond 5 meters. Still, perception is unaffected. John Fan stood in an empty room on the second floor and looked at the ground on the first floor with a grave expression. In, perception. The hall on the first floor almost turned into a sea of plants. A faint glow emanated from everywhere, most of it a neutral yellow color. A few plants emit a red light and apparently attack humans. Among the plants, a variety of insects and animals weave in and out. Huge rats, cockroaches, ants, abound. Flies and dragonflies the size of drones weave and hover among the plants. The vast majority of animals are also yellow light. That is, less likely to actively attack humans. 
about the law of survival they have inherited from the past. However, with the passage of time and increased competition for survival, it is hard to say that these animals will not consider humans as prey. On top of that, Zhang Fan was certain of one more thing. Perception could, see, under the soil. The fortune center neighborhood was built earlier and there is no parking under the building. Underneath the ground is the foundation and soil. Zhang Fan, saw, various creatures in the soil. Mostly rats and earthworms. Not a big threat. Zhang Fan watched carefully for a few minutes to make sure that there was no danger in the vicinity. In order to minimize the exposed skin, Zhang Fan took out a thick punching jacket from his carry-on space and changed into hard hiking shoes. When he finished preparing, Zhang Fan's heart moved. Voiding. Zhang Fan crossed the floor and landed on the first floor. This room is empty. There's a window left open. Creepers crawled in through the window cracks and grew all over the walls and roof. At that moment, Zhang Fan's perception suddenly saw a man and a woman carefully walking over and finally coming to the door. The woman held a flashlight for illumination while the man pounded on the door with his tools for a while. Click. The door lock is open. Zhang Fan was surprised. Nice guy. Technical talent. For the average person, security doors are difficult to open. Even if it was Zhou Tianhao and he was given a hammer, it would take a lot of effort to force open the security door. The man would be awesome. A few minutes to open a door. The man turned triumphantly to the woman, see? I told you it was easy. He's a locksmith. And before the end of the world, was just the unappreciated bottom of the barrel. Instead, spring is now in the air. The woman said in a sweet voice of brother Lu. You're awesome. Lu Dongchang dejectedly said, Xiao Jiang, follow me. I guarantee you won't starve. That packaged food is nothing. Even if he stores more food, there will be a time when he runs out of food. Follow me. Let's drive over from house to house. After one building, we'll open the next one. We'll be able to eat for at least three years. Jiang Fan smiled darkly. Unfortunately, you're one step too late. The supplies are all taken by the old man. Ginger shyly said brother Lu. I'm not a casual person. That said, the man and woman closed the door and passionately nibbled on each other. Oblivious to the fact that there was another person standing in the red mist not far away. Jiang Fan glanced at the woman and the system popped up a reminder frowny face Jiang Yan, age, 36, quality, 7 points, contrast young woman, women's ethics, 0 points, overall rating, 0 points, ding, does not meet minimum system requirements, nice guy, 0 points for the big guy, it's a long time to live, enjoy yourself, brother lockpick, Jiang Fan mourned a moment of silence for big brother lockpicking as his body slowly entered the underground, he controlled himself to fall about 2 meters deep and just walked forward in the dirt, Walking on the underground bokeh was a novelty. There was darkness all around, and the eyes couldn't see anything, though perception provided vision. Jiang Fan realized that he could pass through not only rocks and soil, but also earthworms and other creatures when he was in his vaporized state. 500 meters to the east, there's a Yida Mall with a supermarket. Jiang Fan recognized the direction and rushed in the direction of Yida Mall. After Lu Dongxiang and Jiang Yan had been passionate for a while, Jiang Yan was a little impatient and said patiently Lu, not outside. Lu Dongxiang said with intent, okay, let's get something to eat and continue when we get back. A uh, ginger yen squirmed. Only then did the two begin to search the room. It doesn't matter if you don't look. You'll be surprised. The entire room was completely empty as if it had been moved by a moving company. Even the furniture, not to mention the food, had disappeared to a large extent. Lu Dongxiang scratched his head. Did this family move out? Let's get another one. Zhang Yan was a little disappointed, but didn't say anything. It was pure bad luck. A post-apocalyptic performance stock like Lu Dongxiang was something she could firmly control in her hands, then let's go to another one? Change the family. The two switched to another one. It's still empty. Changing another family. Lu Dongxiang went numb, crap. What's going on? Zhang Yan's face didn't look right either. Why none of it? Lu Dongxiang rushed to the one he had just visited the day before. He opened the door and it was empty. Lu Dongxiang shivered. Where's the stuff? Did I touch something dirty? Panic rose in him. The walls were eerie with a dark red shimmering light from the red mist. Lu Dongxiang forced himself to calm down. Previously, he hadn't treasured the food he'd gotten on the strength of his ability to pick locks, and had squandered a lot of it freely. There simply isn't much left in the house right now. Who would have known? And now can't find food. Lu was confused oh this is big trouble. Zhang Yan's face was grim. Waste. What good is locksmith Lu Dongxiang if everything in the room is gone? She was tempted to leave now. However, there are no good targets for leaving Lu Dongxiang. She could only hold back and swept a glance at Lu Dongxiang without a trace. In any case, the ability to pick locks is still useful in a post-apocalyptic world. Lu Dongxiang was still confused. Zhang Yan didn't move and asked, pretending to be terrified brother Lu, what can we do without food? Lu Dongxiang was flustered and embarrassed. 
The cowhide he had just blown was slapped in the face in the turn of the face, and he didn't know how to face Jiang Yan, and he said with a red face, this, Ginger Yen whispered, how about, let's go to other people's houses at night, get some, steal? Lu Dongxiang was startled as he hurriedly waved his hand, no way, no way, if the police catch us, we'll be in trouble. In times of peace, he was too timid to get into trouble. Zhang Yan hated it brother Lu, the police can still arrest you now? Look at how many people died this afternoon. Does anyone care? And a that convenience store clerk, killed coach Zhou in public. Did the police come? Lu Dongxiang hesitated, this. Zhang Yan commiserated, I know Lu is a good man, so just pretend I didn't say that. I just can't bear to see you starve. She hugged Lu Dongxiang's body, leaned her head on his shoulder and tenderly said and no matter how Lu chooses, Xiao Jiang is willing to accompany you until the last moment. I only hate that I didn't meet you a few years earlier and couldn't give you a child. Alas, who made us unlucky? Lu Dongxiang's head exploded. He's been alive for over 30 years and no girl has ever been this gentle with him. Not to mention a gorgeous young woman with a plump body like Zhang Yan. This is not the end of the world. It's clearly its own spring. Lu Dongxiang seemed to hear the sound of evil compulsion. Yeah, how can the police come and arrest someone in this situation now? If one waited until midnight to quietly open the door and just steal something, who could find out? Lu Dongxiang clenched his teeth, good. I'll get something to eat tonight. I know someone who still has food. The corners of Zhang Yan's mouth quietly lifted up as her lowered eyes flashed with essence. HM. It's the best way to manipulate such naive men. Chapter 24 Searching the Supermarket Zhang Fan walked a hundred meters underground, found a place with few plants, and went up to the surface. There's a parking lot in front of us. What was tarmac is now covered with green grass. Next to it was a road, and vaguely visible traffic signals were still insisting on working, constantly switching between red, yellow and green lights, traffic light poles with climbing plants growing on them. What had been a saucer-thick metal column was now a huge plant column that two people could hug. A rabbit the size of a pig was grazing in the grass half a man high. Zhang Fan violently made an attacking move. The rabbit was startled and jumped a full seven or eight meters high and a dozen meters away. Dabble. Three or two and it's gone. Jiang Fan let the rabbit leave, silently estimating in his mind moves a little faster than me, but not much, and the strength looks much worse than mine. If a rabbit like that can survive in the wild, I probably can too. Jiang Fan had a number in his heart, but that's just for now. Plant and animal evolution is still going on. The most obvious example is the height of pine trees that are still growing, and rats. Most mice grow to the size of a cat and don't move, but there are still some gifted rats that are still increasing in size and don't know when they will stop. Zhang Fan walked onto the highway. The ground was covered with bushes and weeds, and the asphalt was punctured, so that walking on it was not so bad as to pierce the soles of your shoes, but it was very difficult. But ordinary vehicles should not be able to drive. Driving a little faster rubber tires are prone to be punctured. The eye can't see more than 5 meters and it's surrounded by red. Luckily perception is unaffected. A small supermarket by the side of the road with closed doors. There was a man lying curled up on the ground. Still alive, but in bad shape. Jiang Fan walked for a while, and then a large piece of alembic-like plant stuck to his pants leg, which was very difficult to get off. It would be troublesome if he was scraped out of a wound. And now that the virus had mutated, Jiang Fan didn't know if his physique would be able to carry it. This, coupled with waist-deep bushes everywhere, made walking extremely difficult. Jiang Fan thought about it and planned to try out a new use of voiding. Voiding. He was still walking on the ground, but his body went through the bushes along the way. In this way, you can enjoy both the advantage of moving through solids and liquids in a straight line. It's not like you have to sink below the surface and be slowed down by dirt to move and breathe hard. Not long after, Zhang Fan arrived in front of Yida Plaza. The mall, which used to be filled with traffic, is now dead silent. The doors of Yida Plaza were closed, as if they had closed in an emergency when the red mist descended. There are no creepers here, but the weeds are much taller than the ones at the fortune center. Over one, five meters, and a slightly shorter woman can't see over the grass surface. The grass was full of grasshoppers, crickets, praying mantis and other giant insects. The mantis, in particular, emitted an eerie red light that was not to be messed with at first glance. Jiang Fan went through the gate. The interior of the mall is eerie and dark, with not a single survivor. Jiang Fan couldn't find a light switch, so he could only take out his flashlight, and with his perception he could barely search for supplies. He briefly recognized the direction and headed straight for the supermarket inside Yida Plaza. Upon entering the supermarket, he saw several corpses lying on the floor. The flesh and blood were completely eaten away, leaving only toothy white bones, still mutilated, about to be dragged away by some kind of animal. Judging from the shredded clothes next to the corpses, these people should be the security guards of the plaza. Zhang Fan was secretly on guard, 
There really wasn't any danger in the perceived 50 meter range though, just a few rats, flies and the like. As soon as Jiang Fan walked into the supermarket, he smelled a strong putrid odor. The fresh food section in the entryway was turned into a huge dump. Large quantities of meat, vegetables, and fruits, thoroughly rotted, emitted an indescribable stench. Flies are flying all over the place. Rats and cockroaches crawling all over the place. Vama Jiang Fan covered his nose and quickly passed through to the other areas. Merchandise was lined up on the shelves, with absolutely no sign of anyone having been there. Jiang Fan guessed that around the time when the red mist first descended, Yida Plaza was temporarily closed to avoid problems, leaving only a few security guards behind. In the beginning, people may still be in their homes waiting for help. As a result, everything evolves at the speed of light, with crazy growing plants and bigger animals, and people can't come over anymore. It's all mine. Jiang Fan heatedly smiled and pocketed all the supplies without hesitation. Whether it is cigarettes and alcohol, or pots and pans, or bedding and clothes, paper towels and mops, Jiang Fan will not refuse. Even the shelves and shopping trolleys were not spared. Jiang Fan scoured the mall and finally found the warehouse area. In front of me was a huge shelf with the top going right up to the roof and no end in sight in the distance, disappearing into the red mist. The shelves were filled with boxes of unopened merchandise. The quantity was fully several times more than what was put out there. It took Jiang Fan half an hour to put all the goods and shelves into the space. And the two forklifts used for loading and unloading the goods were also included in the space. There is also a large cooler in the warehouse that is still in working order. Jiang Fan opened the door of the cold storage, and boxes of frozen meat were neatly arranged. Fish, pork, beef, lamb, chicken, all sorts of things. Many of these expensive ingredients, which Jiang Fan couldn't afford to buy before, were now all laid out in front of him for him to take. Ha ha, with these things, you won't have to worry about food and drink for the rest of your life. Jiang Fan nonchalantly swept it away. Finally, he found his way back to the security monitoring room. The surveillance system was still functioning normally, but it was obscured by the red mist and didn't record any useful information at all. In order to prevent others from discovering that he did it himself, Jiang Fan unplugged the surveillance server, and being too lazy to destroy the hard disk, he simply threw it into his carry-on space. Yida Plaza was four floors in all, with merchants and restaurants and about a few supplies above, but none of it mattered. Jiang Fan looked at his cell phone time, it's late, come back tomorrow during the day. The survivors are hungry now, and there may be some bold enough to dare to take action against themselves. After Jiang Fan left, the dark Yida Plaza once again fell into dead silence. Suddenly, a light blue circular film the size of a faceplate appeared out of thin air in midair at a height of more than 2 meters. The circular membrane vibrated slightly, sending up a ripple, like the surface of water. Not long after, a lowly with a double ponytail poked her head out of the blue film. She took her flashlight and peered around warily. Sure enough, it's Yida. Lori said triumphantly after seeing the rows of shelves, I'm such a genius. She trudged through the blue film and jumped into the supermarket. Unfortunately the height exceeded her expectations and she fell on her butt. Ouch. Ooh hoo. That ass hurts. Lori's eyes were tearing up. It was a long time before she stood up rubbing her ass with tears in her eyes. There was dead silence all around. The red mist glowed an eerie blood red color under the flashlight. Lori was scared to death and wanted to open the door and go home, but with no food in the house at all, she had to take her chances. Lori shivered and held up her flashlight, exploring carefully. Fortunately, she was familiar with this Yida Plaza and quickly found the entrance to the supermarket. Looking at the blackened entrance, Lori swallowed hard and walked down it. Just inside the door is the fresh fruit section, which reeks of disgusting rotting smells and flies buzzing around. Lori covered her nose and walked quickly past, finally reaching the supermarket shelves. Ha, huh? where are the shelves? Lori looked at the empty grounds in confusion. Did the people at Yida Plaza move all the supplies? Lori was debating whether or not to look for the warehouse district. Suddenly, a pair of huge green eyes appeared at the end of the flashlight light. An orange cat the size of a tiger slowly walked out and cocked its head at Lori a meow. It seemed to smell a kindred spirit in Lori. OMG. Lori was so scared that her twin ponytails went up, don't you come over here. While she was bowing her tears, she made a stroke with her hand in the air. A blue line appears in front of you. Lori grabbed the blue line with both hands and ripped a blue film open with a single tear to either side, and asked into it. Boo. The blue film disappeared. The orange cat cocked its head at where Lori had just been, unable to comprehend how the bipedal beast had disappeared. The orange cat came slowly, sniffed around, and left in boredom. The bipeds are so afraid of me. I must be a god. Chapter 25, Newton Frogs. Power Outage. Jung Fan rose from the ground floor and in front of him was the first floor lobby of Fortune Center Block C. He looked back, the path of the neighborhood completely out of sight. 
completely submerged in the endless vegetation. Human civilization is finished. Zhang Fan sighed as he was about to go upstairs when the accident suddenly happened. An object with an evil reddish glow all over it stabbed into his perceptions like lightning. Time seemed to freeze between the electric flashes. Zhang Fan's consciousness, however, was unaffected, instantly flashing through several thoughts. What the hell? It's targeting me. Must duck. Zhang Fan desperately tried to move his body, but no matter how hard he tried, it was extremely difficult to move, just like an insect trapped in sticky glue. Nope, it's not that I'm too slow, it's that my consciousness has gotten faster, but my body can't keep up. Compared to Zhang Fan's speed, the striped monster stabbed over like a speeding car, dragging a brilliant and terrifying red light. Zhang Fan finally saw it clearly, the striped monster was actually a tongue, it's the mutant frog. Zhang Fan instantly reacted. This tongue has become thicker than when it ate that woman. What to do? Zhang Fan's body moved inch by inch, and at the last moment when the tongue struck his body, Zhang Fan knew that he absolutely could not avoid it. He made a final response, voiding. In the next instant, the giant tongue passed through Zhang Fan's body and struck a blank. The giant tongue struck the wall next to it hard, punching a large hole the thickness of a bucket and piercing the wall. The moment the giant tongue passed through the phantom of Zhang Fan's body, Zhang Fan only felt a weakness in his body and his stamina was rapidly depleted. It's too powerful. It takes a lot of stamina to go through its tongue. If he were to pass through its body, Zhang Fan estimated that he would run out of stamina instantly. Without saying a word, he immediately sank beneath the ground. The tongue retracted with a swoosh. Quack! Croak! Came the loud frog call. The sound was so loud that even Zhang Fan, who was two meters below the ground, could hear it. At that moment, a frog as large as a sedan jumped into Zhang Fan's 50-meter perception range. In Zhang Fan's perception, the mutated frog emitted a piercing light all over its body, just like the sun in the sky. The brightness of the light on Zhang Fan's body could barely be considered the brighter compared to this. Inside the frog, there was a bright, ginger-shaped object, but it was blue, far brighter than the ginger in Zhang Fan's body, and it had more branches. Zhang Fan looked at it with a grave expression on his face, my perception has a drawback. If an enemy sneaks up on me from 50 meters away, it's hard for me to detect it. The mutant frog's tongue is just over 50 meters. The mutant frog hopped slowly, letting out a flood of cries from time to time. Quack, quack. It paraded through its territory like a king. Everywhere the mutant frog went, all the animals hid, concealing themselves and not daring to make a sound. The mutant frog suddenly shot its tongue out into midair. A cat of enormous size was stuck and dragged back, swallowing it with ease. The whole time, the cat barely put up a fight. Although the mutated frog was powerful, it was no threat to Zhang Fan below the ground. Zhang Fan hid underground and calmly, watched, this scene of the mutant frog doesn't move fast, but its tongue is too fast. Also, it should have an ability to detect prey at a distance, otherwise it wouldn't be able to catch prey this far away. Based on the brightness, its combat power is at least three times that of mine. That's strange. How did it do that? Did it eat many kinds of enlightenment fruits too? However, the IQ didn't seem to be high, and after striking the air, it seemed to forget about me and had no intention of continuing to look for me. As Zhang Fan watched, the mutant frog left without slowing down. Zhang Fan waited for a few more minutes before cautiously coming under a room on the first floor and leaving the ground to ascend to the first floor. Zhang Fan's legs exerted force and with a light jump, the top of his head touched the roof of the room, voiding. Zhang Fan's body went through the floorboards and jumped to the second floor. He made his way through the walls and floorboards, avoiding all the occupied rooms, and returned to Tang Shu Elowa's room. Tang Shu Elowa was looking out of the window in a daze, her face full of worry. Su Mengxian swiped her cell phone and fidgeted a bit as well. Zhang Fan had been away for too long, making the two girls nervous. A lot has happened today. The four men in block A killing and forcing the women, as well as the afternoon's killings, made them realize once and for all that the order was finally in chaos, and that they could never go back to their old, peaceful lives. When the last shred of fantasy was shattered, they became incredibly dependent on Zhang Fan. Neither of the two women were stupid. In a chaotic world, if a beautiful woman did not have the protection of a strong man, she would eventually be reduced to a plaything for others. Swish. Zhang Fan suddenly jumped up from under the floor. The two women were startled. And when they saw that it was Zhang Fan, they were relieved and couldn't help but be happy. Brother Jiang. You're back. The meal will be ready soon. Brother Jiang. It's been hard work. Drink some water. The two girls wrapped their arms around Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan relaxed in his heart. The company of two great-looking beauties dissipated a lot of his mental pressure. It's getting late. Zhang Fan took out a large amount of food, chips, canned goods, frozen fish, frozen shrimp, a whole black pig pork chop, 
The two women's eyes glowed as they watched, their hearts settling down. Su Mengqian took the initiative, I'll cook. Tang Shuelua was not willing to show weakness, I'll give you a hand. She's ready to learn to cook. 2. Su Mengqian swept a displeased glance at her. Just as Su Mengqian was cooking, the sound of countless people shrieking came from outside the balcony. Zhang Fan turned his head and found that all the lights in the next cell of the fortune center were out. Is the power finally out? Zhang Fan watched silently. He had anticipated this scene. Crazy plants that always break some electrical equipment. As a matter of fact, the fact that Magic Sea City's water, electricity, and gas had lasted until now was already very surprising to Zhang Fan. By the light of the moon, Zhang Fan vaguely saw some people running to the balcony in panic and looking outside. Once they realized that the power was out in the entire neighborhood, they let out screams of fear of unknown significance. In the horrific evolutionary end times, humans have lost their light and their ability to survive has naturally been drastically reduced. And that's over 20 stories high. If it's below the 20th floor, where it's completely flooded with red mist, the surroundings are plunged into complete darkness, and people are expected to be scared out of their wits. Su Mengqian and Tang Shuelua also stood at the window and looked across the street. The two women were worried we're not going to lose power here too, are we? Zhang Fan said blandly the power will definitely go out. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, sooner or later. Modern cities are actually very fragile. The two women blushed slightly. A power outage means a water outage. The gas certainly won't last long. At the same time, widespread power outages will cause base stations to go down and the network will be gradually paralyzed with news completely cut off. John Fan opened his cell phone and searched for blackouts, only to realize that this blackout was not the first case. Cities have long been experiencing varying degrees of power outages. Some thermal power plants had to be shut down after they ran out of stored coal, and the staff still holding on to their jobs at the plants did not have any way of replenishing their fuel. The solar panels on the desert, covered in endless weeds, also failed. Only the hydroelectric power plants are still barely functioning, but with a lot of equipment breaking down and dropping out. It was only a matter of time before it stopped running. The dragon's proud power grid is being progressively destroyed. With the scarcity of electricity, the human condition will deteriorate to the extreme, and the modern city will turn into the most horrible coliseum. Humans not only have to struggle with the horrors of nature to survive, but also to kill and compete with their own kind. The cities are dangerous, and the sparsely populated countryside is no better. Although there, humans are not as competitive with each other as they are in the cities. There are more plants in the countryside, and they have to deal with a far more horrific natural environment than in the cities. The two women had a distracting meal, faced with an impending power outage. Jiang Fan was also worried. I have to get stronger. Survival is getting worse and worse, and only one's own strength is the most reliable. Jiang Fan took out a handful of enlightenment fruits and ate them. Chapter 26, Bidding for Black Lychee. It's late at night. 2 AM. Chen Yun still couldn't sleep. Trembling she shrunk down on the bed. Covering her head and looking at the quiet room Zhou Tianhao is dead, and so is Song Jie. Originally, she didn't feel much terror when three people lived together. Now that she was alone, the bedroom glowed eerily red in the light. The living room is even darker. Chen Yun was fidgety and restless, always feeling that a monster would jump out of the darkness. At the same time, the bloody scene of Jiang Fan crushing Zhou Tianhao to death with one hand in the afternoon was repeated in her mind. Damn, what's an old lady to do when all the men are dead? Chen Yun finally saw the most terrifying side of the end times. She deeply regretted that she shouldn't have encouraged Zhou Tianhao to deal with Jiang Fan. That Jiang Fan kid is too shady. He's so strong and he never shows it in the group. Chen Yun began to doubt whether the food in Jiang Fan's hand was stored in advance or not. Could he have robbed someone else? Chen Yun's scalp went numb. Jiang Fan's so much food, how many homes have been robbed? Will he come to get back at me? Just then, there was a slight clanking sound from the gate lock. Chen Yun was frightened. Who's opening my door in the middle of the night? Could it be Jiang Fan? Chen Yun almost didn't cry. Jiang Fan has come to kill me. Damn it. I'll fight you. Chen Yun's pugnacious character came into play. She gritted her teeth and picked up the baseball bat next to her bed, turned off the light and walked to the door in the dark, trembling and waiting. The door made a faintly inaudible scraping sound and opened gently. The flashlights beam shone in. Outside the door stood a man and a woman. Chen Yun could not see who it was against the light and rejected his breath behind the door. The woman suddenly spoke on no lights on. Must be asleep. Let's keep it down and kill that bitch. Zhou Tianhao should have scavenged a lot of food. The man tensed Yi Jiang. Killing is not necessary. Right. Let's steal some food and leave. The two were none other than Lu Dongxiang and Zhang Yan. Ginger Yan pinched her throat, fear not. Who can know that you did it? Zhou Tianhao and that other fitness trainer are dead. Only a slut is left. Kill her and let's search. 
I don't believe Zhou Tianhao didn't go robbing after he gained his powers. You motherfucker just know that I kill people. Lu Dongxiang was very resistant, it's better not to kill anyone. He just coveted Jiang Yan's beauty. But people aren't stupid. If he had killed someone, he would have been held by Jiang Yan. And wouldn't he have been held to death even more in the future? This one day together made him feel that Jiang Yan was not a woman to get along with. Moreover, Jiang Yan was so good in bed that it made him deeply suspicious, this bitch was so experienced. Was she really a virtuous woman? Lu Dongxiang thought as he scratched his crotch. I don't know why, but it's particularly itchy down there today. Shen Yun was shocked and furious in her heart when she heard the words of the two. Stinking bitch, move to kill the old lady. My mom stole your man? Ha, huh? yeah, these two don't seem to know each other well. Lock picking abilities can be too good in the end times, so why can't they snatch this man up? As a rune mage, she knows a thing or two about ripping off and stealing men. The key is how to gain the trust of this locksmith as soon as possible. The two of them walked into the room just as their backs were turned to Chen Yun. Ginger Yen rolled her eyes and added, Do you want to know how Zhou Tianhao obtained his psychic ability? Why don't we arrest that woman and forcefully question? Her? Bang! A club hit her hard on the head. Zhang Yan planted herself on the ground like a log. Lu Dongxiang was startled and hurriedly took a step back. The kitchen knife in his hand was raised high, and the flashlight shone over who? He saw a woman. The very one beside Zhou Tianhao. Lu Dongxiang looked at Chen Yun in shock and uncertainty, then realized that he was shaded by the other party. Dangling. Chen Yun took the initiative to throw the baseball bat on the ground and said at Master. Big brother. It's me. I'm Chen Yun. Don't kill me. I want to work with you. Lu Dongxiang froze for a moment. The woman threw away her weapon. And the tension in her heart eased quite a bit. First kicking the baseball bat aside with her foot before observing Zhang Yan's injuries. Ginger Yan is finished. Bleeding all over the place. Not breathing. Lu Dongxiang was shocked and angry. Waving his kitchen knife and said you killed my woman and cooperated my ass. Chen Yun gritted her teeth and decisively pulled open the neckline, revealing a large portion of Snow White Big Brother. I'm a woman too. I'll follow you. Crap. Lu Dongxiang looked dizzy. Chen Yun is also a female trainer in the gym, with a tall figure, a flat belly, and not a trace of flab. Three inches below her belly button was tattooed with a purple chimera rune, a seductive contrast against her Snow White skin. Lu Dongxiang swallowed hard. Is this the end times? This is fucking heaven. How could such a woman look at herself before? Now women are pouncing on them one after the other. Lu Dongxiang gathered his courage and asked, How do you want to cooperate? Seeing Lu Dongxiang's attitude soften, Chen Yun took the initiative to go forward, holding the man's arm in the middle of his chest and said in a delicate voice, What's your name? Big brother? Lu Dongxiang squinted his eyes to enjoy the softness and smiled heatedly, Exempt your name as Lu. Lu Dongxiang. Good name. Chen Yun rubbed Lu Dongxiang's arm against his body and whispered, I know how Zhou Tianhao got his powers. Lu Dongxiang's eyes immediately glowed, really? Lu Dongxiang felt his crotch itching and scratched it again. Chen Yun thought that Lu Dongxiang was anxious and disdainful in his heart. But on the surface, he nodded his head vigorously, do you know why he targeted Jiang Fan today? Lu Dongxiang froze for a moment, who is Jiang Fan? Chen Yun whispered, it's the man who killed Zhou Tianhao today. The name of the group is packed. His name is Jiang Fan. And he has a girlfriend named Song Shireen who often goes to my gym to work out. Lu Dongxiang nodded, well, go on. Why is Zhou Tianhao targeting Jiang Fan? Chen Yun said for psychic abilities. I saw with my own eyes that Zhou Tianhao gained psychic abilities after eating a black lychee. Jiang Fan begged for a black lychee in the group. Zhou Tianhao saw it and thought Jiang Fan had another one in his hand. Black lychee? Lu Dongxiang remembered the photo Jiang Fan had posted in the group. So it is. Many alters have posted videos online, but so far have not publicized how they acquired their powers. Lu Dongxiang, like many people, instinctively thought that the alien was just lucky and somehow awakened. Turns out it was the black lychee that was eaten. Lao Zi also wants supernormal abilities. Lu Dongxiang's heart was on fire as he said in a deep voice, Jiang Fan still has a black lychee in his hand? Well, but it's probably already been eaten by him. Chen Yun analyzed, Zhou Tianhao's power is about two times stronger than before. Jiang Fan crushed Zhou Tianhao to death with one hand, and his strength is obviously far more than Zhou Tianhao. It must be the ability he gained from eating that black lychee. Also, if Jiang Fan didn't know the effects of the black lychee, he wouldn't have begged for it in the group. Lu Dongxiang said regretfully, Ugh, so what's the point of talking about it now? Stupid. Chen Yun disdained in her heart. But on the surface, she eagerly said, Brother Lu, think about it. The black lychee is so weird. Who in their right mind would dare to eat it? What if someone has it in their hands but doesn't dare to eat it? Isn't it because of this possibility that Bao Zi Bao Zi is begging for it in the group? If he can beg for it, we can naturally beg for it too. This, Lu Dongxiang vaguely felt that it was not right. 
How could Jiang Fan allow himself to compete with him for something as important as the exotic fruit? But the desire for his powers made him ignore the danger. But we don't have as much food in our hands as Jiang Fan does? We can't compete in the bidding at all. Chen Yun whispered, let's purposely offer a higher price than Jiang Fan. As long as someone contacts us, why would we buy it? It would be so much easier to just go to his house and steal it. Lu Dojiang's eyes glowed, good idea. The two chatted for a while, then threw Jiang Yan's body downstairs, and then in the group sent it 10 packets of instant noodles to buy black lychee message. After getting down to business, the two doggies nibbled together and soon rolled into bed. Chapter 27 The Anchor Woman with Diarrhea One night passed, the woman drifted off to sleep. Jiang Fan was still in high spirits and did not feel the slightest bit of fatigue. As his overall fitness increased, he slept less. He took a 30-minute nap and got up refreshed. Dawn. Jiang Fan took out five cartons of milk and one dozen halogen eggs and ate them. This is also the effect of increased combined fitness. Eating has increased quite a bit. Any other survivor might have to starve. Jiang Fan was indifferent. He won't lack food at all. After eating and drinking, Jiang Fan took out his cell phone. It took half a day to connect to the internet and the signal is getting worse. He received a dozen private chats from women a handsome. Can we talk? Food and lodging included Big Brother. Do you think I can do it? The skin itself is white and beautiful with long legs. As long as you give me an instant noodle every day. You can do whatever you want. Package you satisfied. Food is becoming more and more scarce. And many people are breaking through their bottom line. Jiang Fan swept through. The ratings were all very low. And none of them met the system's requirements. So he blacked out all the women in this batch. The fortune center group was also quite quiet after yesterday's deadly incident. And not many people spoke all night. Only Mrs. Su scolded Li Qingxuan in the group, saying that the other party had killed her grandson, enough to post hundreds of them. Li Qingxuan only retorted at the beginning and then stopped talking. Zhang Fan also saw Chen Yun begging for black lychees in the group, Chen Yun? Isn't she the rune mage beside Zhou Tianhao? That's right. She must have seen Zhou Tianhao gain powers after eating black lychee and then made a guess. Zhang Fan frowned slightly. He had known for a long time that the black lychee thing wouldn't stay hidden for long, because he had also read the news from the internet. Many places had probably already spread the word, but it still irked him that someone was competing with him right now. He used his senses to look into room 1708. A man and a woman are cuddling and sleeping together. The woman's silhouette looked to be the rune mage beside Zhou Tianhao, with a nice figure. The man's silhouette looked a little familiar. Looks like that locksmith? Why are these two hooking up again? Zhang Fan mulled it over and didn't care. Bidding is bidding. Wouldn't it be more economical for me to snatch it out of Chen Yun's hands when she buys it? Zhang Fan lazily ignored the two when he made up his mind, leaving them behind. Just then, a message automatically popped up on Zhang Fan's cell phone. Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, can I ask you for diarrhea medicine? I'd like to buy some medicine. Diarrhea? Zhang Fan looked at Hu Lily on the 21st floor. She was seen lying on the bed, curled up in a ball with a very dull glow. Suddenly, she climbed up and rushed to the bathroom. Package, you have diarrhea? Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, aha. Jiang Fan frowned. Is there any help for diarrhea now? He doesn't know either. Diarrhea used to be a minor ailment, but it's different now. The virus is also mutating at a rapid rate, so hell knows if the previous medication is still effective. Also, how did she get diarrhea? If he was infected with some horrible virus, then Jiang Fan would definitely turn his head and walk away. Not even looking at Hu Lily. Just don't infect yourself. Package, what's going on? Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, I left half of the instant noodles I ate yesterday frozen in the freezer, and I thought it was fine, so I ate it, and then, Jiang Fan was speechless. Package, you're a big smart ass. Jiang Fan was also relieved. As long as it's not some kind of virulent virus, there may be salvation. Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, brother, please, you must have medicine right. Covering her stomach, Julie struggled to get up from the toilet, moved to her room, and collapsed helplessly onto her bed. The continuous diarrhea is dehydrating her. Being sick at this time of year makes her very desperate. Package, I have haloperidol and Montelucast for kids. Julie surprise. Block C number 2104 I'm really not a fox, I'll buy it. I'll buy. I have another diamond necklace. Jiang Fan snorted, what's a rock worth? Wait for me. I'll be right there. Jiang Fan found the medicine from his carry-on space and sank his body into the floor. Soon, he jumped into Hu Li Yuli's room and landed directly next to her window. Hu Lili's entire body was stunned when she saw Jiang Fan strangely pass through the floorboards to you. You, you. Jiang Fan didn't bother to talk to her and took out two boxes of medicine. Hu Lili couldn't care less about her fear and said in surprise, thanks. Big brother. Jiang Fan said calmly, don't play games. How much is a verbal thank you worth? You want medicine? Fine. 
What can you give? Julie was exasperated, you're taking advantage of the situation. Taking advantage of a person's danger? Jiang Fan laughed, you're in the supermarket and a bottle of water is only worth a dollar. When you're stuck in the desert, a bottle of water is worth a thousand dollars. Different things naturally have different prices at different times and in different places. I'm the most reasonable person. A deal is a deal. I won't force you if you don't agree. But you don't want me to save you either. Who Lily covered her stomach. Powerless and angry human life can be traded? Jiang Fan looked at her with cold eyes, don't morally kidnap me with human lives. I don't eat that. Besides, how have pharmaceutical companies ever lowered prices for patients who couldn't afford their medicines before? Why don't you go scold them? Don't waste your time. Give a painful answer. Julie was desperate. I, I, I. Jiang Fan wasn't in a hurry at all and looked at Hu Lily calmly. Hu Lily's stomach throbbed again in agony. Good. I agree. Give me the medicine now. She held out her hand with great urgency. Jiang Fan sneered. Have you gotten something wrong? Now you're the one begging me to save you. Is that a begging attitude? Julie's eyes reddened. What's wrong with you people? Is there any sympathy left? Jiang Fan sneered. Compassion? In the end times, the more sympathy you have, the faster you die. Don't fucking play this for me. In the past, have you ever sympathized with a beggar on the side of the road? No. Then what are you qualified to say others? We are just half a caddy. Now you, in my opinion, are similar to the beggars on the side of the road. Jiang Fan bent down, looked straight into Hu Lily's eyes, and said word for word, I give you medicine. You live. I don't give you medicine. You die. What qualifications do you think you have to negotiate with me? Julie broke down, please, give me the medicine. Ha ha ha. Jiang Fan laughed, that's right, that's a good boy. He threw the two boxes of pills at Hu Lily, who Lily hurriedly tore open the package and swallowed it. That's when she stumbled into the bathroom, unable to fight back the abdominal pain. It was only a few minutes later that he weakly walked out holding onto the wall, looking like he had very bad diarrhea. Jiang Fan didn't know if she could survive. The rest was up to her own luck. Jiang Fan left behind a few boxes of Snickers, Coke, and other high-energy foods, as well as a few cases of pure water. Before leaving, Hu Lily watched as Jiang Fan jumped into the floorboards and left, envious and with a mixed feeling in her heart. It was a quiet day. Jiang Fan also didn't go out and grab the offline map as well as some important information. The internet will be gone soon, and this information will be very valuable. He fed the husky twice more, and Jiang Fan became more and more confident in taking in white eyes so he simply brought it into his room, but only allowed it to stay in his rented room, and did not allow it to enter Tang Shuelua's room. By 7 p.m., Jiang Fan noticed that the glow on who Lily had recovered quite a bit and was basically similar to a normal person. It looks like the diarrhea is basically cured and the medication is still working. Jiang Fan then came to Hu Lily's house. Lily who was eating a Snickers bar when she was startled by the man who suddenly jumped out of the floorboards. Jiang Fan looked at her face. It looked like the diarrhea was getting better. And after replenishing enough energy and water, the whole person was quite refreshed. Jiang Fan didn't say anything and just looked at her lightly. Hu Lily didn't dare to play with her heart and could only say away for me to clean up. The scene where Jiang Fan crushed Zhou Tianhao to death shocked everyone. Jiang Fan casually said oh no, take all your stuff. When he finished, he walked around the room. And wherever he went, things quickly disappeared. Julie looked dumbfounded at this. This is magic? Jiang Fan glanced at her, this is my ability, space. So. If you just follow me, you won't have to worry about food or drink in the future. I've already collected enough food. Who Lily was pleasantly surprised, and the resistance in her heart lessened considerably. With Lily Hu, you can only take the stairs. The two returned to Tang Shuelua's house. Chapter 28, State Action Begins? Tang Shuelua opened the door. She saw Hu Lily, her heart could not help but feel aggrieved. Hu Lily's fiery figure and scale was far beyond normal, making Tang Shuelua very wary but she didn't show it on her face. Instead she gently said her brother Jiang, you're back, what's the name of this pretty girl? Hu Lily blushed slightly. Jiang Fan casually said Lily Hu, Tang Shuelua knew she couldn't stop herself, and could only put on a big woman's temperament, taking the initiative to hold Hu Lily's arm and laugh, hello, we'll be sisters from now on. Hu Lily was at a loss for words, both shy and surprised. She completely didn't expect that Tang Shuelua, the most famous second generation official beauty in the neighborhood, actually had this rebellious look. Jiang Fan was very satisfied with Tang Shuelua's performance and smiled faintly. Tang Shuelua introduced, Hu Lily, this is Su Mengqian, also our sister. Su Mengqian, however, didn't have much of a good face. She looked Hu Lily up and down once, couldn't suppress the jealousy in her heart, and wanted to take the opportunity to test Jiang Fan's bottom line. So she pouted a oomph. Men are all big piggies. Snap. Before her words fell, 
She received a slap from Jiang Fan. The slap was so heavy that Su Meixian's head buzzed from the blow and blood flowed from the corner of her mouth. Actually playing tricks on me? Jiang Fan laughed coldly, what? Did the last two days give you face? Dare to talk to me like that? Su Mengqian immediately reacted that Jiang Fan was not the kind of man who Lei was, and could not be controlled at all. It's over. Her heart sank and she hurriedly used a gentle attack. Her eyes quickly reddened and tears dripped down. Her skin snowy white and the tip of her nose red as she cried, Brother Jiang. I, I. She saw that Tang Shu Elua was gloating towards herself and was furious. Su Mengqian cried while thinking quickly about how to deal with the predicament in front of her. Jiang Fan clearly saw that the light on Su Meixian's body changed from green back to yellow. Jiang Fan's eyes flashed sternly, you eat my food, drink my wine, and you're actually still neutral toward me? Get the hell out of here. Su Mengqian was startled. Jiang Fan could not help but pick up Su Mengqian, open the door of the room and throw her a few meters out the door. Bang! The door to the room closes right off. Su Mengqian fell so hard that she almost took her back, but she couldn't care about the pain anymore, and her heart was terrified. So it turned out that Jiang Fan wasn't scaring himself. She then remembered that Jiang Fan had perception and could see how women treated him. Just now a slight change in one's psychology was discovered by the other party. Su Mengqian rolled and crawled and pounced on the door of the room, thumping the door and crying miserably in oh, Brother Jiang, don't abandon me, don't abandon me, I was wrong, I'm really wrong, I won't dare to do it again. Tang Shuelua looked shocked. In the post-apocalyptic world, it was her good fortune to be able to hug the thigh of a man like Jiang Fan. Don't ever think about it. Jiang Fan opened the smart cat's eye and spaced out the doorway, no slamming of the door. Kneel and reflect outside the door. And when I see you turn green, you can come in. Otherwise, you're on your own. Lily who was a bit overwhelmed by the scene she saw as soon as she entered the door. In addition, she couldn't understand what Jiang Fan was saying. What green? What neutrality? What's all this about? The slamming soon stopped. Su Mengqian didn't dare to smash the door, and forced her fear, kneeling and crouching outside the door, sobbing in a low voice. The most troublesome thing now was how to turn his attitude toward Jiang Fan into a friendly one. Su Mengqian could only cry while brainwashing herself. Jiang is my man, I must listen to him. Jiang is my man, I must listen to him. Jiang Fan closed the smart cat eye screen. His stern gaze looked at the two women in the room and sneered, do you guys think I'm cruel? Huli Yuli only felt her heart beating wildly, no, no. Tang Shuelua hurriedly bowed her head, of course not. Brother Jiang, don't worry, I won't be as stupid as her. Jiang Fan let out a light laugh, remember, don't be a smart ass, and don't test me with such petty tactics. If you hit a stick, you have to give another red date. Jiang Fan pulled out a perception fruit and handed it to Hu Lily, it's for you. Eat it. Julie said in surprise, is this that black lychee I gave you? Can you eat it? Jiang Fan smiled, it's called an alien fruit, and you can gain alien powers by eating it. Jiang Fan briefly explained the role of perception again. He had systematically given each woman the ability to perceive, an ability that could have prevented many dangers, but powerful fruits, such as virtualization and physique enhancement. Jiang Fan would not send them out randomly. It would depend on the woman's performance. Hu Lily finally understood what Jiang Fan was saying just now, but she was shocked in her heart. That's where the powers come from? Why give me something so important? Besides, he bought one from me and gave one back so he didn't make any money at all one way or the other, and he even gave me a couple bags of instant noodles for nothing, is it just to save me, is this man, in fact, cold-faced and kind-hearted, Huli Yuli couldn't help but float her thoughts, inexplicably, she also felt that Su Mengqian had gone a little too far, in times like the end times, a man is willing to take in a woman, protect you, feed you, clothe you, and give you alien fruits, what more do you want, a man can't save you for nothing, Lily who ate the fruit of perception in the midst of her thoughts. Ding. Lily who consumed one fruit of enlightenment, perception and returned 400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Su Mengqian knelt outside the door for 20 hours. Jiang Fan saw the light on her body turn green, but still ignored her. Su Mengqian was hungry, thirsty and scared, and finally fainted before Jiang Fan let the two girls drag Su Mengqian into the room. After Su Mengqian woke up, she looked at Jiang Fan with a bit of a wince and a bit of aggression. Jiang Fan ignored her and casually looked at his cell phone. A few more women in the group contacted themselves, begging to sell their bodies, but none of them met the system's rating requirements. Beauties at the level of Tang Shu Elua, Hu Lily, and Su Mengqian were at least one in a thousand. It was pure luck that three of them showed up at the fortune center. Rumble. The sound of a helicopter suddenly came out of the sky. A few people looked outside. A helicopter gunship was seen passing by at low altitude. A loud announcement came from the airplane nationals. As planned. The herbicide will be sprayed in half an hour. 
All nationals are asked to stay indoors and not to go out for four hours after the broadcast. The herbicide is the result of the latest research at the Lone Oak Academy and has been repeatedly tested to effectively kill a large number of plants. The country has the ability to protect the safety of every citizen. So please hold on to yourselves and don't give up hope. The earth belongs to mankind, and we will finally be masters of the earth again. Chapter 29 Red Giant Bird Perception 5 Stars Countless people burrowed out of the residential buildings around them, roaring excitedly at the sky to vent their despair during this time. The state is finally making a move. Tang Shuelua said in surprise, the state has finally acted. Su Meng Qian and Hu Lili also cheered up. When they heard about the state's actions, it was as if they had seen the hope of returning to the past. You can shop. You can talk. You can dress up. Herbicide? Jiang Fan frowned slightly. He wouldn't believe it if it was that simple to end the evolutionary end times. Because of the enlightenment fruit and the supernatural ability, it made him feel that this end times was not as simple as a natural evolution. And, even if you kill the plant, is the end times over? What about red mist? As long as humans only have a 5 meter field of vision in the red mist, traffic will never recover. In short, Jiang Fan didn't hold much hope for the country's response. However, since the state takes action, it means that the high level organization still exists and there is still hope that order can be re-established. Jiang Fan also didn't want to live in the primitive forest as a savage with his bare ass. As for him killing Zhou Tianhao in public, Jiang Fan wasn't too worried. How many humans have died these days? At least one third of it. With so many survivors, how many have blood on their hands? Hundreds of millions at least. How can the state control so many people? Kill them all? That's crazy. Aren't you afraid that these people will just revolt? There is nothing like the so-called law of the land. Moreover, even if the country was able to re-establish order, powerful aliens, as the strongest of the new era, would inevitably be able to enter the upper echelons and become part of the ruling class. Therefore, Jiang Fan was not in a hurry at all. Whatever the outcome, he is the party that benefits. Jiang Fan quietly looked out the window, with a very calm feeling of sitting and watching the clouds Su Mengqian. Go cook, we're not going out today. Su Mengqian honestly said, okay, Jiang. The group, which had been quiet for some time, was once again lively. The state is finally taking action. I guess they'll be bringing us food soon, that's for sure. The country won't sit back and watch us die. Humph. Certain people, who don't even exchange their gold necklaces for instant noodles, are now regretting it. Ha ha ha. That's it. That's it. What greed is swallowing the elephant? You actually want to trade instant noodles for a woman? Delusional. Some silly women believe it, and they'll have regrets later. Commissioner Tang won't let certain people off the hook. Jiang Fan looked at the group message and the corner of his mouth rose slightly. I hope you guys are still laughing after a while. Half an hour later, a dozen transport planes flew low. The tail of the plane broadcasts a sheet of white water spray, which emits a pungent odor. In the past, members of the public would have disliked it and even called to complain against the officials. But now there was a deafening cheer from all the survivors of the Fortune Center. Long live the Dragon Kingdom. End of the end times. Kill these damn plants. The hope of the end of the end times seems to be close at hand. Jiang Fan quietly watched the airplane a dozen or so transports at once. And that's just one city in the magic sea. It looks like the officials really do keep a strong force. At that moment, a flock of giant red birds instantly swooped down from the clouds. They were extremely fast, like a streak of red lightning that cut through the sky. In almost the blink of an eye, it swept from a small red dot to the air above the transport group. Looking at the body types, there isn't much difference between the two. The giant bird's sharp claws grabbed the top of the transport plane, and the plane's steel shell was like a paper shell, and was penetrated without resistance. It snapped its wings, hard dragging the dozens of tons of transport into the clouds. The bulky transports were defenseless against the giant birds, and one by one they dragged them away. One giant red bird seemed to be the leader of the flock, and it was especially huge. With wings so red they glowed like lit torches, the flaming red giant bird let out a shrill whistle. Wow! Wow! Shattered a lot of glass. The flock of birds heard the leader's command and flew upward, disappearing into the clouds. The cheering around them stalled, and the survivors stared blankly at the sky like ducks with their necks pinched. A bird can actually haul away dozens of tons of aircraft? Is that something that carbon-based organisms can do? A creature this powerful, with bones and skin and muscles that are so tough, can a missile kill it? Jiang Fan also looked numb. After his combined physique was enhanced, his eyesight was also enhanced quite a bit. Just now. He vaguely saw that there were traces of air distortion around the body of that alpha giant bird when it shrilled. It's not a normal scream, but some kind of ability? These giant red birds were far more terrifying than the mutated frogs downstairs. This was still just one city in the magic sea, and so many terrifying creatures had appeared, and the devil's sea, 
or a place where humans are densely populated and animals are rare. There are still many places on earth that are sparsely populated, from the Shenangjia, to the Amazon, to the infinite ocean. Just how many creatures are there that have evolved to heights unimaginable to humans? Can mankind really become masters of the earth again? Zhang Fan didn't have any confidence at all. No matter how things change, it's always right to get stronger. Zhang Fan took out a bunch of enlightenment fruits and ate them. After eating an unknown number of pills, Zhang Fan finally heard a pleasant beep frowny face ding. Perception upgraded to 5 stars. You can now sense inanimate objects. Sense range increased to 100 meters. Zhang Fan was secretly delighted. Finally upgraded. This time, the entire building are completely within his monitoring, and no longer a trace of movement can escape Zhang Fan's line of sight. On top of that, Zhang Fan's perception spanned the distance between the two buildings. He was also able to monitor both Block A and part of Block B's floor. Another key change is the ability to see inanimate objects and perceive a great deal more information. Previously, he could only see animals, plants, and humans as sentient targets. Now he can see the furniture of the room, the building stones, the floor and so on. There's almost not much difference from the visual except that the colors are on the dull side. And it's still 360 degrees. Day 2. Zhang Fan got up and looked out the window. The red mist was still continuing to rise, and had now not passed the 21st floor. Immediately afterward, Zhang Fan noticed changes. A lot of plants died. Those towering pines, whose needles fell bald overnight, became bare trunks. The light within the pine tree was very dim, like a candle that could go out at any moment. All of the creepers on the exterior walls have withered, exposing the mottled walls. Did it really work? Jiang Fan was surprised avoiding. He walked through the floors and quickly came to an unoccupied room on the first floor. Jiang Fan cautiously looked around. This time, he finally spotted the location of the mutant frog. It was lying on its back at the bottom of the neighborhood pool and appeared to be sleeping. This location is more than 80 meters from the gate of Block C. If it wasn't for the perception upgrade, Jiang Fan wouldn't have been able to find the mutated frog at all. Zhang Fan also saw that the plants outside the window were dead and wounded, whether it was weeds or vines or woody plants, all of them collapsed piece by piece. After all this time, he finally saw what the ground looked like again. The plants are dead and the animals have been poisoned by the herbicide. The ground was thick with the bodies of rats, cockroaches, and various insects. However, the herbicide was not spread evenly as the transport fleet was sneaked up on by the giant red bird. A great deal of vegetation still remains in many places. There are also some local local plants that have dodged a bullet by not being exposed to the outdoors. For example, in the first floor lobby, the plants are only slightly shriveled and show no signs of death. Jiang Fan also noticed that the light within the bodies of these plants that had dodged a bullet had not dimmed at all, but instead brightened a bit. They seem to be adapting quickly to herbicides. Come to think of it, the end of evolution. Everything evolves at the speed of light. How can a small herbicide kill all the plants? As long as they can't be killed, they can adapt and evolve again. Zhang Fan sighed darkly at the situation at hand is about nothing more than a return to human civilization. At this point, the bold survivors began to try to get out of the room, crap. This weed killer bull. The Long Branch Academy is still the Long Branch Academy. Don't delay. Hurry to the grocery store and find some food. Chapter 30, Herbicides Take Effect. Fitness woman Lu Meng Yao more and more survivors came out of the building and nervously stepped outside. Many even walked across the pool, oblivious to the horrific monsters close at hand. Zhang Fan silently looked at the crowd strange. I'm surprised the mutant frogs aren't attacking them. Zhang Fan couldn't figure it out. But now that the survivors were starting to go out and scavenge for supplies, he couldn't lag behind. Go upstairs to Yida and see what else you can take. This group of survivors went out and definitely made a mess of Yida's stuff. Next time I go out, it may not be as good. Zhang Fan sank into the ground with a movement in his heart. Since the discovery of the mutant frog and the giant red bird, he had moved more cautiously. It's good to be careful with everything. Jiang Fan rushed underground. A number of survivors were encountered along the way, and all took advantage of this valuable time to go out and look for supplies. From time to time, there are unlucky people who touch highly poisonous plants or are bitten by poisonous snakes lurking in the grass and fall to the ground. Sis, the plants are dead. Song Yuan Fan, who had a face like a vegetable, said excitedly, I see a lot of people out and about. Song Shireen was already too hungry to get out of bed, and she cheered up at her words, quick. Let's go to Yida Plaza and get something to eat. The power's out in this building. Unaware of information from the outside world, Song Shireen couldn't contact Jiang Fan either, so she can only wait for death in despair. Who knew things would actually take a turn for the worse? Song Yuan Fan stole two cans of canned food to give him better stamina, right? The country must have started the rescue. We'll be gone if we're late. Song Shireen struggled to stand up, 
and with just the slightest movement, her head was covered in cold sweat and her eyes were blackened. This is a symptom of hypoglycemia. Song Shireen knew that she definitely wouldn't last long, I'm coming with you. Song Yuanfan didn't want to bring Song Shireen, a liability, over there, but remembering the dangers outside, he thought it would be fine. In case of a ferocious animal, leave your sister behind as a meat shield. Sister will definitely not complain in order to protect me. The only child of the Song family. Yes, Song Yuanfan helped Song Shireen stand up. The siblings put on their thickest clothes, and Song Yuanfan hid another kitchen knife in his bag before the two trudged out of the room. The plant did die, but the red mist still showed no signs of dissipating. Song Shireen walked slowly with Song Yuanfan's support. From time to time people walked through the red mist. Both sides exchanged wary glances before disappearing into the red mist. They were only a few hundred meters away from Yida Plaza, and the two of them had walked for nearly an hour. Song Yuanfan was very anxious, fearing that the supplies would be snatched up by the others, and kept urging Song Shireen. But how could Song Shireen have the stamina to walk fast? She could only grit her teeth and carry on. Finally, they came to the entrance of Yida Plaza, and more and more silhouettes walked in the red mist. All of them were starving and woefully out of shape. The formerly refined people of the Devil Sea were now all disheveled. In the midst of starvation, People are thinking about getting enough food every day and don't have the energy to waste time tending to the table. Li Qingxuan slowly walked to the first floor hall. From time to time, people hurried by, their faces overflowing with excitement, and they were even starting to say hello, hello, dr, li, dr, li, why don't you go shopping? The end times are coming to an end, dr, li will definitely be reused. Doctors have always been the upper middle class of society, much envied by ordinary people especially with an old Chinese doctor like Li Qingxuan. One never knows when one will beg for him. Originally, in the post-apocalyptic world, everyone was so focused on getting food that they couldn't get into all this nonsense, and no one paid any attention to him. There is a small pressure to survive and everyone is back to their old attitudes. Li Qingxuan smiled bitterly what reuse? I'm just an old man. The old woman quipped, non si, dr, Li is just humble. Much better than that smug little redneck from the convenience store. Li Qingxuan frowned slightly and did not reply. At that moment, old man Su also appeared. She glared at Li Qingxuan with a gloomy face. Li Qingxuan didn't want to tangle with her and turned to leave. The old woman looked at Mrs. Su and also smiled sarcastically and left. Old Mrs. Su stared dead at Li Qingxuan's back. Her teeth clenched Li Qingxuan. You will pay for my grandson's life. She blames Li Qingxuan for her grandson's death. Qingxuan Li carefully observed the small area. Looks like the herbicide worked pretty well. Soon he couldn't stop laughing. He saw a purple mushroom, burrowing out from underneath a pile of drugged out plants. One, two, three, Ching Xuan Li found countless purple mushrooms. Once the other plants died off and made room for survival, the surviving plants grew even more vigorously. In addition to this, he saw a pine tree that had been drugged to death, with new green branches coming out of its roots. In just one night, it grew half a meter tall. Li Ching Xuan sighed in disappointment as he looked around at the blood red surroundings. Very disappointed, sure enough it still doesn't work. He carefully picked some new growth and some flavored capers, and returned home. He wouldn't go out so easily at such a dangerous time. Flavorful capers are worse than losing your life. Yida Plaza. The crowd is gathering more and more. The survivors were going to come and buy something. As soon as they arrived at the place, they realized that Yida Plaza was not open for business at all and was not managed by anyone. The power had gone out near Yida Plaza, and people had to hold up flashlights and scavenge the plaza for supplies. Where's the stuff from the supermarket? Has it all been taken away? Brothers, don't go down there. It's a pure waste of time. Why don't we look elsewhere? Don't believe him. He's fooling people. Damn, believe it or not. In the crowd, Lu Mengyao, holding a rolling pin, followed her co-tenant roommate Huang Qian and Huang Qian's boyfriend Xiao Chang into Yida Plaza. Lu Mengyao's heart sank when she saw the messy scene in front of her, it's over. We're too late. Xiao Chang stole a glance at Lu Mengyao's slender figure and pretended to be calm, it's okay. Let's go upstairs. I see most people have gone to the supermarket, and there's a gourmet food store upstairs in Yida Plaza, so there should be some food left over. Lu Mengyao practiced dancing and working out all year round and had an excellent body. Bumpy, fat where it should be, thin where it should be. The body is also well proportioned with a typical wrist line over the crotch. Even the baggy gym clothes couldn't stop the perfect body shape. Lu Mengyao resented Xiao Chang's gaze in her heart. How dare a poor gym student lust after me. HM but she had to rely on the strong gym student now, and could only pretend to be invisible. Huang Qian's eyes lit up, hubby is so smart, let's get up there, good. Xiao Chang was proud of himself, self-conscious that he had shown his intelligence in front of Lu Mengyao again. In the past, 
He was a poor student who wouldn't dare to make a move on a beauty of Lu Mengyao's level. But it's different now. It's the end times. After being trapped with Lu Mengyao and spending time together, it was inevitable that he had risen to some thoughts that he had not dared to think before. I just need to show a strong ability in front of Lu Mengyao. She will definitely like me. Chapter 31, The Scourge of the Red Feishao Chang held up a flashlight and led the way up the blackout escalator, leading the two women to the second floor. This was the mother and baby floor, full of baby merchandise and a children's indoor playground, which didn't interest the trio. As Lu Mengyao was about to leave, a man walked out of the red mist and laughed Lu Mengyao. Lu Mengyao was surprised, Zhang Fan? The person who came was none other than Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan came to Yida Plaza again, and there were already quite a few survivors here. Zhang Fan did not immediately rise to the ground, but cautiously sensed. Within a radius of 100 meters, the entire Yida Plaza was enveloped in his perception. There are no powerful mutant creatures. About 200 people. Only one alien at the underground supermarket location. Everyone else is ordinary. Zhang Fan carefully looked at the alien. He appears to be leading a couple of his minions in a robbery. The brightness of the light on this person's body was a great deal stronger than Zhou Tianhao's but it was still far inferior to the brightness on Zhang Fan. Also, the ginger in his body was golden in color. Zhang Fan confirmed that the alien was not in much danger before finding an unoccupied corner and ascending to the ground. There were a lot of people now, and even if there were mutant creatures sneaking up on them, the likelihood of them attacking them was slim. The first floor of Yida Plaza is full of international brand fashions, cosmetics, gold stores, cell phone stores, car stores and so on. It used to be a gated community but now no one would even come to a place like this to waste their time. After upgrading his perception to level 5, Jiang Fan had gained night vision in disguise, and could see the goods in the store without using a flashlight at all. It's a Chanel store. Before, Jiang Fan had never come in, let alone bought one. One suit is enough to pay him a year's salary. Take whatever you want now. As soon as Jiang Fan entered the door, he put all the clothes and accessories into the space. He found a random backpack and stuffed a bit of merchandise in it pretending to be an ordinary survivor. Then, there was a new energy car show store. There were two cars set up inside, and Zhang Fan also collected them into space. Gold and cosmetic stores. Zhang Fan just skipped around and collected all the goods from all the merchants on the first floor. Then he went back down the escalator to the second floor. The second floor is the mother and baby section, and it was even more devoid of people. Zhang Fan didn't care if it was useful or not, and put all the goods into the space. That's when he noticed three men coming up the other escalator. The silhouetted light of one of the women was very striking. Her legs were slim and slender, her wrist line over the crotch, and her body proportions were like a model's. Does that body look familiar? Zhang Fan couldn't help but walk towards the other party. And soon, he passed through the red mist and came straight to the other party. Sure enough, it's an acquaintance. Lu Mengyao, age, 23, quality, 9 points, perfect body, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. Lu Mengyao, Song Shireen's acquaintance at the yoga studio, often worked out together and was considered half a BFF. Jiang Fan smiled to Lu Mengyao. Lu Mengyao glanced at Jiang Fan in surprise, never imagining that it was such a coincidence to see an acquaintance here Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan unobtrusively looked Lu Mengyao up and down. Apparently, Lu Mengyao had had a bad time for a while, and her long black straight hair that she was so proud of had not been taken care of, and she looked disheveled, but that still doesn't hide her beautiful face. This woman is not as smart as Hu Lily, out does not know makeup to pretend to be ugly, actually smeared a lipstick. This is not to find trouble for themselves? Lu Mengyao frowned slightly. This little convenience store clerk, she couldn't look away. She had also been privately urging Song Shireen to leave Jiang Fan. Now that she was being sized up so much by Jiang Fan, she couldn't help but feel dissatisfied and turned her face sideways. Xiao Chang got upset. He already saw Lu Mengyao as his forbidden domain. Lu Mengyao was being gawked unkindly by a man, causing him to be a bit annoyed. Xiao Chang took a step forward, blocking Lu Mengyao behind him, and relying on his 195 height. He looked down at Jiang Fan with a disdainful face, dude, where are your eyes looking? Jiang Fan didn't even look at him, pretending to dig around in his backpack, but actually took out a can of fish from his carry-on space like a bad uncle coaxing a little girl, Lu Mengyao. Do you want to eat? Gulp. Lu Mengyao swallowed hard, her eyes staring straight at the can Yu. She's been eating only one meal a day for three days now. And it's a bun. If it weren't for the fact that Xiao Chang's family had a lot of steamed buns frozen in the refrigerator, they would have starved. Now when I see the fish, my mouth is watering. Xiao Chang and Huang Qian also looked at it with glowing eyes. Where did you find it? Zhang Fan still ignored the duo and laughed softly at Lu Mengyao. Come stay at my house. 
You're covered. Lu Mengyao's face changed. Jiang Fan, what are you babbling about? Xiao Chang immediately spotted the opportunity to pretend, damn, brat, apologize to Meng Yao. Lu Meng Yao sounded a bit harsh. You can shout at Meng Yao too? Huang Qian also gave Xiao Chang a displeased look. She wasn't stupid. She had long ago discovered her boyfriend's bad intentions towards Lu Meng Yao. Also, Lu Meng Yao was in their house and wasting food. She had long wanted to kick Lu Meng Yao out. Ha! Zhang Fan lightly threw the can on the ground and flattened it with one foot. The aroma of the fish overflowing. The three men looked on with fire in their eyes. It's too much of a waste. If there weren't so many people at the scene, Lu Mengyao would have hated to get down on the ground and pick it up and eat it. Zhang Fan said to Xiao Chang in a good-natured manner, I'll give you three seconds to get on your knees and apologize. Xiao Chang froze for a moment. As if he had heard some kind of joke, what did you say? He is practicing basketball. 195 centimeters and weighs 200 pounds. Zhang Fan was just an average-sized male. Only 175 in height. Looking at the profile alone, the two are 20 centimeters apart. Xiao Chang rolled up his sleeves, revealing his strong muscles. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly, and he was about to make his move when he realized that the alien from the supermarket had actually come up the escalator. With a few minions behind him, these people were glowing bright red and full of malice. Jiang Fan couldn't help but twist his head to look at the escalator. Xiao Chang saw Jiang Fan twist his head and thought that the other party was afraid, laughing triumphantly. He was halfway through his laugh when he saw several flashlight beams bobbing in the red mist. Soon several men came up the escalator. The first one was a bald man with a repulsive, pimply face. He wore a black leather jacket with nothing underneath. A huge blue dragon tattoo on his chest. A huge gold necklace around his neck. And a watermelon knife in his hand. The few people behind the bald man were not good people either. Either slate or bald. All with carved dragons and grim faces. The bald man cursed as soon as he saw a few people standing at the mouth of the escalator. Shit. What are you doing in the way? Get the hell out of my way. Xiao Chang looked at the scalp numb, put aside in the past he had long avoided, but now in front of his girlfriend and Lu Meng Yao, was scolded a sentence to avoid. It is too disgraceful. All he could do was stiffen up, watch your mouth. You who? The bald man laughed as he looked at Xiao Chang and the others, huh? There were no lights in the supermarket, and the red fog obscured his vision, so he hadn't noticed, but only then did he realize that there was actually a big beautiful woman. Boss. Look at this bitch. Woo. Look at this. This chick's stripes are so smooth. Ha ha ha. The bald man's two eyes glowed as he walked straight to Lu Mengyao and recklessly sized her up. Lu Mengyao's heart sank as she looked at Xiao Chang for help. Huang Qian nervously pulled her boyfriend, worried that he would force his way out. A few men were hefting the knives in their hands, looking at Xiao Chang in an unkind manner. Xiao Chang was at a loss for words as his scalp went numb. Chapter 32 The caged woman Zhang Fan looked at the bald man's few people from a close and quiet distance. They were carrying various backpacks, stuffed to the gills. Some of the backpacks were obviously ladies' bags, and stained with blood, obviously robbed. The bald man laughed wildly, pretty girl, come with me, I'll guarantee you good food and hot drinks. Lu Mengyao's brain went white and shrunk behind Xiao Chang, pulling Xiao Chang's clothes and trembling, no, I'm not going. The bald man cursed, martyr, toast to the world. With that, he reached out to pull Lu Mengyao. Xiao Chang opened his mouth in a brainstorm of brothers. Snap. The words were not yet spoken. The bald man then slapped Xiao Chang on the head. Who the fuck is a brother to you? Get the fuck out of here. Big pussy pockets do little damage and are extremely insulting. Xiao Chang was furious. His fists clenched tightly as he glared angrily at the bald man. What's wrong with being outnumbered? Do you really dare to make a move? The herbicide has worked and order will be restored soon. This is a society of law and order. I don't believe you dare. The bald man suddenly made his move. And the watermelon knife in his hand instantly turned golden slashing down from top to bottom. There was only a flash of golden light. Pust. The watermelon knife seemed to have turned into a laser blade under the golden light, smoothly skimming over Xiao Chang's bones and muscles. Xiao Chang stalled for a moment, and his entire body cracked into two halves from the center, spraying blood all over the two women's heads and faces. Wow. Organs and human tissue fell all over the place. Lu Mengyao's mind went blank. Huang Qian even rolled her eyes and directly fainted. The bald man laughed out loud in pain, ha <laughs> ha. Both women are taken away. This chick's is old man's. That pussy is rewarded to you. Thank you Wu. Long live Angkor. The bald man wiped a handful of blood from his face and pointed at Zhang Fan and laughed. Kid, leave the backpack behind. I'm in a good mood today and won't kill you. Zhang Fan looked at Xiao Chang's corpse in waves. So, the ability is to increase the sharpness of the metal. Then there's nothing to worry about. Zhang Fan raised his head and pointed at Lu Mengyao calmly. I'm also in a good mood. So I'll spare your life. Leave the woman and your stuff. And you can go. Oh, I don't want the fainting one. 
too ugly, you can have her, she's mine. Lu Mengyao was so shocked that she was dumbfounded by what she heard. She looked at Jiang Fan in a daze, completely unable to understand why this previously inconspicuous man was so brave. The bald man was furious, kill him. One of the henchmen swung his sword and slashed at Jiang Fan. Too slow. Jiang Fan calmly glanced at the trajectory of the blade and punched out with a flat punch. The fist blasted into the man's chest like a thunderbolt. Click. The man spewed blood and was sent flying a few meters, crashing through the glass parapet and landing on the first floor. Today, trauma basically equals death. The man is hopeless. The scene was instantly dead silent. The bald man was startled at first, followed by a sardonic laugh, so it's a physical ability alien. No wonder it's so rampant. Die. The watermelon knife in his hand once again emitted a golden light. However, he was too slow. Facing the alien, Jiang Fan did not hold back and kicked over like lightning. The bald man didn't even have time to react before he was kicked in the head. Boom. His head burst open like a watermelon. Poof. Headless loses his head and flops to the ground. The bald man's minions looked dumbfounded. The bald man who was incomparably powerful in their eyes was actually slaughtered like a chicken. Jiang Fan, however, did not stop moving, and with a square stomp, another henchman screamed miserably and fell down to the second floor. One more punch, and one of his men died horribly. Jiang Fan's movements were so fast that the others couldn't react at all. In a few seconds, the bald man's minions were dead with only the last yellow hair left. Yellow hair made a snap decision and plopped down on his kneesy big brother. I was wrong. Big brother, you can have all of Wu's women. Woman? Jiang Fan's fist stopped three centimeters in front of yellow hair. Who was so scared that his crotch got wet? Jiang Fan said with interest, oh, was it good? Yellow hair nodded his head in a hurry, good looking, good looking. Jiang Fan asked again, how many? Yellow hair hurriedly said, at least two more alive. Two, alive? Jiang Fan frowned slightly, a come on, show me. He glanced at Lu Mengyao. The woman was still shivering on the side. Jiang Fan smiled, a come with me. Lu Mengyao didn't dare to resist at all, and fearfully followed Jiang Fan away. After the crowd left, Huang Qian quietly opened her eyes, her fear finally relieved a bit. She stared in disbelief at her boyfriend, now a crumpled mess, and was overcome with grief. Without the protection of a man, the fear of an unpredictable future instantly flooded her mind. Huang Qian whimpered for a while before she forced her fear to go downstairs, I'm calling the police, you've killed people, none of you will get away, the police will arrest you. The bald man's home is actually a small convenience store in the Yida neighborhood. Yellow hair opened the door solicitously and pointed to the cage in the living room of brother. The women are here. Jiang Fan saw the scene inside through his perception outside. He couldn't help but grimace when he saw it with his eyes again. In the living room, there are two cages for large dogs. In each cage, three women were stuffed, naked and chained to their cages by their necks and arms and legs. They could barely move their bodies and could only shrink in agony. All the women were brutally abused except for his face, which was fairly normal, his body was covered in bruises, whip marks, knife wounds, cigarette burns, and more, the floor under the cage was covered in urine and smelled fishy, Lu Mengyao looked creeped out, it was fortunate that he was saved by Jiang Fan, otherwise he would have ended up like these women, these days, she had been living with Xiao Chang and Huang Qian, and had not been starving, and had no cut and dried experience of doom, just saw some brutal things on video, skimming the surface, now she had finally seen the dark side of the world with her own eyes, the cruelest side of the end times unfurling its bloody fangs at her. Lu Mengyao only felt her scalp go numb and her body shaking like a sieve. Jiang Fan went up to look. There are three women still alive. The wounds on everyone's body were inflamed and highly puffy, emitting a foul odor, and some huge flies were hovering in the living room. Jiang Fan knew that these women were hopeless. The three women looked at Jiang Fan numbly without saying a word, but their eyes hit a deep fear and their bodies trembled slightly. Jiang Fan laughed coldly, yellow hair, you guys are playing pretty fancy, yellow hair laughed with him, boss, take your pick, ha, Jiang Fan suddenly reached out, click, click, in a few strokes, he broke all of yellow hair's arms and thighs, yellow hair screamed miserably, ah, ah, it hurts, a gleam of hope began to radiate from the numb eyes of the woman in the cage, Jiang Fan ripped off the dog cage bars with a single push, loosening the woman's chains from the cage, dangling, Jiang Fan threw down three daggers, he's all yours. The two women cringed. Only one woman's eyes glowed as she heavily cowed out twice in front of Jiang Fan before picking up the dagger with difficulty. Yellow hair is scared mad and oh. No, don't. It's none of my business. The woman gritted her teeth and lunged. The room was filled with the screams of yellow hair. The other two women also gathered their courage and slowly moved out of the cage and picked up their daggers. Jiang Fan watched quietly for a while before turning to leave. Lu Mengyao looked shocked and didn't dare to stay. Following suit. Chapter 33, Song Shireen. 
Your boyfriend killed someone. Sis, let's go inside. Song Yuan Fan was impatient. Yes, Song Shireen's eyes were full of hope. Seeing that she would soon be able to buy food, her starving body burst with unimaginable strength. Luckily, I didn't bow down to Jiang Fan. She was secretly glad. If he had compromised with Jiang Fan before, he would now have to find a way to get rid of it. HM, how does a poor bastard like this, who doesn't want to get ahead, deserve me? I'm a civil servant. The two siblings walked into Yida Plaza with various thoughts in mind. The scene before them, however, made the two men despair. There were messy crowds everywhere. There was abuse everywhere. The entrance to the underground supermarket, in particular, was packed with people, some out, some in, but everyone's hands were empty. Damn, not a bit of food left. Who the hell took all the food? What's going on? The two men's hearts sank as they hurriedly followed the crowd into the supermarket. Walking through the foul-smelling fresh food section, they came to the merchandise section. The darkness of the underground supermarket was empty. There were only figures weaving through the red mist, flashlight beams jostling. Song Yuanfan instantly collapsed, where's the stuff? Why is there nothing at all? Song Shireen had been forcing herself to walk here, and now that the disappointment had fallen through, she could no longer withstand the blow and fell to the ground in a daze, it's over. It's all over. Song Yuanfan angrily grabbed Song Shireen's hair and shook it violently, it's all your fault. If you hadn't been so slow, you'd have gotten there a long time ago. Maybe even grabbed some food. It's all your fault. Song Shireen screamed in pain, what are you doing? Far Fan, let go. The fight between the siblings didn't attract much attention, because there are fights everywhere. Not far away two men then suddenly fought over a backpack mud. What are you doing? This is mine. Damn. This is my stuff. You dare to rob it. Looking for death. Pust. One of them pulled out a dagger and stabbed the other to death. The surrounding crowd exploded. Murder. Murder. The killers grabbed their backpacks in fear and hurriedly disappeared into the red mist. Song Yuanfan was terrified and stopped beating his sister. After venting, he also calmed down a bit and helped Song Shireen up again. You looking for death ah? Song Shireen hit Song Yuanfan a few times. After all, he was his own brother and could not do anything about it. He could only tense his face and said let's go upstairs. There's a restaurant upstairs. Maybe there's food left. Song Yuanfan's eyes were glowing. Right. 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 You're right. Sis. He helped Song Shireen, avoiding the riotous crowd, and headed for the escalator. Huang Qian? Song Shireen? Huang Qian happened to go down the escalator, and when she saw Song Shireen, she remembered Jiang Fan, and her eyes suddenly reddened again. She hated it, your boyfriend killed someone. Huang Qian only knew Song Shireen, not well, and didn't know about Song Shireen breaking up with Jiang Fan. Boyfriend? Song Shireen froze for a moment before reacting with surprise Jiang Fan is here? Now that her hopes of buying food were gone, she wanted to go to Jiang Fan again. Huang Qian was a bit taken aback and just repeated it again, he's killing people. I'm calling the police. He's dead. Song Shireen was a bit puzzled. What the hell are you talking about? Who did he kill? Huang Qian also reacted. Song Shireen doesn't seem to be with Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan's face was flushed and very healthy. And he didn't look hungry. Song Shireen, however, had a shriveled face and disheveled hair. Huang Qian deliberately provoked. It's best if you don't know. Jiang Fan is a murderer and snatched Lu Mengyao away. It's better not to have this kind of man. Lu Mengyao. Song Shireen remembered the plastic sister with the perfect body. He was 90% convinced. Jiang Fan had been looking for women in the group. And she knew about it. Discontent rose in her heart. This guy is too much. When I find him, I'm going to get rid of all those women. Song Shireen still wanted to ask Huang Qian for some information. But Huang Qian ignored her and went straight downstairs. Just after taking a few steps, he saw a huge orange cat scurry out of the red mist and take Huang Qian in one bite. Song Yuanfan and Song Shireen only felt a bucket of ice water pouring down from the top of their heads, chilling their bones to the bone. Meow the orange cat swallowed Huang Qian in one gulp, its yellow vertical pupils looking coldly at the Song Shireen duo. For some reason, the orange cat didn't attack, it jumped off the escalator and disappeared into the red mist. Soon there were human screams from downstairs. Cat. The cat is coming. Run. Crap. What the hell is this? Help. Help. Song Yuanfan and Song Shireen were like amnesties. They were so scared shitless that they could no longer look for food and rushed to find a store with a smashed glass door to hide in. Jiang Fan walked towards the fortune center. After walking for a while, Lu Mengyao slowed down and asked in shock Jiang Fan, why don't you save them? Jiang Fan said indifferently, they're dead. There's no cure for trauma that bad now. Lu Mengyao bit her red lips and followed Jiang Fan's pace closely, not daring to stay away. There was a red mist all around, so you couldn't see five meters away at all. Before long, the two arrived at the fortune center. Jiang Fan first carefully perceived it. 
The mutant frogs are not in the pool and I don't know where they went. Jiang Fan stayed in his vaporized state and led Lu Mengyao into block C, then climbed to the 32nd floor. Tang Shuelua opened the door and saw Lu Mengyao, here comes another pretty woman. She lamented in her heart, not daring to show it on her face, Jiang, come on in, aha. Jiang Fan walked in calmly. Lu Mengyao was a bit embarrassed, but still followed in. Tang Shuelua said with a smile, you're the new sister, aren't you? Hello, my name is Tang Shuelua. Lu Mengyao squirmed, hello, my name is Lu Mengyao. Su Mengqian and Hu Lily also honestly came over to say hello. Lu Mengyao was embarrassed. She didn't realize that Jiang Fan's family actually had so many women. Su Mengqian went to cook. Tang Shuelua needed Jiang Fan's shoulders while softly saying, Brother Jiang, Lu Mengyao doesn't have a room to stay. Her home is three rooms in one hall. Tang Shuelua, Su Mengqian, Hu Lily three women a room, has been full. Jiang Fan casually said to then live next door. He walked over to the large hole in the wall and blasted a few punches to open up a man-high doorway in the wall. Lu Mengyao and Hu Lily, who had just arrived not long ago, both looked dumbfounded. Jiang Fan was actually so powerful. Lu Mengyao had seen Jiang Fan kill people, but killing people was not as shocking as this current scene. Tang Shuayang and Su Mengxian were rather bland. Tang Shuelua proudly looked at the two girls, you guys will know how powerful Jiang is later. Lu Mengyao thought in her heart, following this kind of man, maybe it's not a bad thing? Jiang Fan brought Lu Mengyao to the next room. The decoration of this room was also not bad, but it was a lot worse than Tang Shuelua's house. I'll have to go to Furniture City to get some furniture in the future. Jiang Fan thought to himself, and with a wave of his hand, a bunch of brand new high-grade bed four-piece sets fell down to change yourself. Lu Mengyao was confused. Jiang, brother, what are you? Jiang Fan said calmly, carry on space. Filled with food. Follow me and make sure you don't starve. Lu Mengyao was pleasantly surprised, I can't believe I still have this ability. Once again, she felt that following Jiang Fan didn't seem to be a bad thing. Ding! Divine Return Effect Upgraded. Obtaining Historical Return Special Effect. All supplies consumed by women after the red mist descends. All returned. The return effect can also be enhanced. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. Chapter 34, Citywide Blackout. Desperation. Immediately afterward, one prompt after another went off frowny face ding. One day ago. Lu Mengyao consumed a steamed bun and returned 500 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Lu Mengyao consumed one steamed bun and returned 500 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago, Lu Mengyao consumed one steamed bun and returned 500 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Jiang Fan then realized that Lu Mengyao was living a very miserable life. And the week before, all she ate was steamed bread. The two of them returned to Tang Shuelua's room. The meal had already been prepared, and the three women sat on one side in a regimented manner and waited. As soon as they saw the two return, the three women stood up. Tang Shuelua laughed, Brother Jiang is here. You must be hungry. Let's eat. Jiang Fan sat on the main seat, aha. Uh -huh. Tang Shuelua added, Meng Yao, you've worked hard too. Eat quickly. Lu Meng Yao's eyes stared straight at the dining table. Braised steak, chicken legs with coke, steamed sea base, braised prawns, cold three shredded pork. This, this, how is this possible? Lu Mengyao couldn't control her saliva, not to mention the end times, even in times of peace, she wouldn't be able to eat such a sumptuous meal a few times. Su Mengqian smiled smugly, it's just a very ordinary meal, don't mind Mengyao, I'm in too much of a hurry to make anything else today, I'll wait until tomorrow to make a proper meal to clean up my sister. Lu Mengyao hurriedly shook her head, no, 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 this is too rich. Jiang Fan casually said, eat, the three women didn't move their chopsticks. Lu Mengyao was also very knowledgeable. Only after Jiang Fan had taken a few bites did the women eat. The ladies saw that Jiang Fan was in a good mood and the atmosphere relaxed quite a bit, talking and laughing softly. Tang Shuelua laughed softly, heh, lots of people are buying food today. Su Mengqian said disdainfully, silly, where are we going to buy them now? How can anyone deliver when a bunch of the plants are dead, but the red mist is still there, blocking the view? Lily who added, I've watched other people's videos and the roads are destroyed. Some of the grass rhizomes were able to puncture tires, and traffic won't be able to recover for at least a short time. Tang Shuelua took a bite of meat and sent it intimately into Jiang Fan's mouth, probably saying, if the outside can't be replenished in, the only thing that can be left in Magic Sea City is packaged food and frozen food, and with so many people, how much can one person share, except for Jiang who has a carry-on space, most people will have to starve. Where can I add? The rural side is worse, it's impossible to live there, the factories are no better. They can't keep the power supply on and they can't produce at all. The three women asked as they spoke, by the way. Meng Yao, how exactly is the situation outside? 
Only Lu Mangyao had seen the situation outside with her own eyes. They were very curious. Outside? Lu Mangyao winced, her face turning pale. It's very chaotic. There's no food in the supermarkets. The bugs on the roads are dangerous. There are fights everywhere and people killing people. She spoke of killing, timidly glancing at Jiang Fan for fear that he would get angry. Jiang Fan said indifferently well, I killed a few more assholes today. Go ahead. Killing again. The three women were quiet for a moment, but not too alarmed. They had seen Jiang Fan kill Zhou Tianhao long ago. Also, when Lu Mengyao heard this word, she realized that Jiang Fan had killed people before. And she was even more in awe and hurriedly said that the people Jiang killed were a group of bandits and deserved death themselves. Jiang left one alive and forced him to go to their lair. I saw two cages. Lu Mengyao slowly retold the tragedy she had seen. Hearing women tied up like dogs in cages and inflicting all kinds of abuse. Tang Shuelua's three girls all had ugly faces and wildly beating hearts. Then think of the woman who disappeared from block A across the street after being forcibly exed by four men. Tang Shui Ro and who Lily held Jiang Fan's arm in horror. Their hearts incomparably grateful. If we hadn't followed brother Jiang, we wouldn't have ended up much better than those women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Su Ming Qian and Hu Lily nodded their heads in succession. As long as one was obedient, Jiang Fan had never intentionally tortured a woman. As for Su Ming Qian, that is purely their own death. But also want to deal with who lay that set of dealing with Jiang Fan is simply self-seeking death. Now even she felt like a bogeyman. Lu Mengyao slowly finished the encounter outside. All three women were silent. Can order really be restored to this world? After eating, the four women cleared the table together. Jiang Fan walked to the balcony and frowned at the outer wall wall. Sure enough, the creeper came back to life. The creeper, which appeared to have been killed by the herbicide, once again sprouted some tiny green shoots, which were very small. But the creeper did carry the herbicide. How long has it been? One day, Jiang Fan sighed. It was already dark. The red mist below the 21st floor turned dark red. Like a ghost, Jiang Fan carefully observed the survivors within his perception range. In one day's time, the residents of this building, Block C, had been reduced by at least one third. Many went out and never came back, not knowing if they were trapped somewhere or if they were already dead. But there were some who were luckier and got some food from somewhere and were able to sustain themselves for a few more days. Just then, a violent fire suddenly erupted somewhere to the southeast, coloring half the night sky red. A few seconds passed before the roar came. Boom, boom, boom. The glass shook violently. The women looked out the window in horror. What's going on? Where did it explode? It won't catch fire. Will it? Immediately afterward, the lights in the room suddenly went out. The room was suddenly plunged into darkness and the women jumped in fright. Ha! Jiang Fan frowned. What's the noise? The women hurriedly shut up and gathered around Jiang Fan. Tang Shuelua timidly wrapped her arms around Jiang Fan. And the man's strong muscles made her feel a hint of peace of mind. She bit her lower lip and looked out the window. Now, all was darkness as far as the eye could see. The entire magic sea is blacked out. The legacy of modern technological civilization is fading. Deep despair grips the heart of every woman. Chapter 35, A New Discovery of Returned Ability. Crowd moving. Jiang Fan took out a box of candles from his space. This is a birthday candle harvested from a bakery. Tang Shuelua, light the candles. Okay. Tang Shuelua found a lighter and lit the candle. The faint candlelight gave the four women a lot of comfort. They sat around the candle, transfixed. Jiang Fan, however, unexpectedly heard a prompt frowny face ding. Tang Shuelua consumed one candle and returned 500. It's been put into the carry-on space. HM? Jiang Fan froze. Why do you get a return for lighting candles? It didn't work before when you tested pumping paper and laundry detergent? Could have something to do with the way it's consumed? Jiang Fan took out a pack of toilet paper and handed it to Tang Shuelua burned. Tang Shuelua froze for a moment, huh? Jiang Fan did not explain. Tang Shuelua secretly wondered if she was paying tribute to some relative. Without much hesitation, she tore open the package and lit a draw. Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed one sheet of toilet paper and returned 500 sheets. It's been put into the carry-on space. Jiang Fan's eyes snapped open. Sure enough it has something to do with the way it is consumed. Why was wiping your hands with paper not recognized by the system before? Could it be that? Because the item was not destroyed? Nope. When women use toilet paper, it inevitably breaks and they never receive it back themselves. So the point is not to break. Jiang Fan pondered for a moment and took out a new towel burned. Tang Shuelua fumbled, but obediently lit the towel. Ding. Tang Shuelua consumed a towel and returned 500 pieces. It has been put into the carry-on space. It was returned again. Jiang Fan frowned slightly. Is it the way burning can completely destroy an item? Jiang Fan asked Tang Shuelua to burn a new cell phone again. Unable to return. 
Even when the plastic casing of the phone was burned through, it was not returned. That would be interesting. Jiang Fan's eyes narrowed slightly. He took out another bunch of things for Tang Shuelawa to test. Burned Parisian stockings for a return. Burned gold rings that can't be returned. The women were puzzled and looked at Jiang Fan in bewilderment. Jiang Fan didn't explain anything, but only secretly guessed that paper, towels, and stockings can be returned, but not cell phones or gold rings. Could it be that these things can't be ordered? Nope. The phone still lights up. It just doesn't burn completely. Could it be that the system judges whether a certain item can be burned through or not, and only those that can be burned through can be returned? But that doesn't make sense. The candles aren't hot enough to really light the cell phone and the gold ring. And if I burn the cell phone and the gold ring in a steel furnace, will they be returned? Or is it because of the material? Can't the metal be returned? Does the system actually judge based on the temperature of the flame? Or is it because of the material of the item? Jiang Fan thought for a while and decided to test it out as he took out a pair of thick old sneakers, burn it. Tang Shuelawa put her sneakers on the candle in disbelief. The uppers of the shoes burned and gave off an unpleasant odor. But it still hasn't been returned. Jiang Fan added to see if there's any gas left in the stovetop. Try burning it if there's gas. Natural gas is definitely warmer than birthday candles. Tang Shuelawa tried the natural gas. And sure enough, it hadn't stopped. But the fire was weak. About a small amount of gas left in the pipeline. Tang Shuelawa took the sneaker and put it on the gas to light it. Ding! Tang Shuelawa consumed a pair of sneakers and returned 500 pairs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Jiang Fan's eyes glowed. Sure enough, it has to do with the temperature of the fire as well. Theoretically, all substances are combustible. I can return any item if the temperature is high enough. Jiang Fan was in a good mood and took out a YSL lipstick I reward you. Tang Shuelawa's beautiful eyes lit up as she happily took the lipstick. Thank you brother Jiang. She was completely surprised that she was able to obtain a big name lipstick when she arrived at the end of the world. Now, people out there can't even eat, and they have lipstick themselves. The other three girls all looked at Tang Shuelawa jealously, and then looked at Jiang Fan with a hopeful gaze. Unfortunately, Jiang Fan didn't take out any more rewards. A little stimulation of the woman's good nature is conducive to increasing the quality of service. Jiang Fan took out a dozen boxes of candles, there are plenty of candles. From now on, before going to bed each night, each room should light a few, to keep them always lit. This matter, who Lily is in charge, if you do a good job, I'll reward you with a lipstick as well. Julie said happily, okay, brother Jiang, 20 candles are lit and the room is brightened. It's not as good as the lights, but it's pretty good. The room stood out particularly well in the pitch blackness. The survivors of Blocka looked across the building in confusion, whose house is that? What's with all the candles? Why are they all lit up? It's such a waste. Humph. I don't know when the power will be restored. Let you fool around. Let's see what you'll do when the candle burns out. Jiang Fan received 10, 000 candles back, which simply couldn't be burned. He gave a big, happy wave of his hand and not bright enough. Order 20 more. That's the standard from now on. Huli Yuli obediently lit another 20 candles. The room got brighter and brighter. The women were in a much better mood. However, the A-seat survivors are in a completely different mood. Damn. How many candles does this kid have? The survivors, below the 21st floor, are in a state of panic. In the past, when there was light in the house, it was tolerable even if the red mist obscured your vision. The power's out now. A lot of people don't have candles or flashlights, and there are no alternate methods of lighting at all, except for cell phones that still give off a little bit of light. As soon as the lights went out, the red mist blocked the moonlight again, and everyone's room was dark and out of reach. They could only miserably turn on the gas stove to get some light. After more than half an hour, the gas in the pipe burned out completely and could no longer be lit. Below the 21st floor, it was completely plunged into darkness. Now, everyone panicked. Various animal calls came from outside the window. The night seemed unbearably scary. Some cowered under their blankets, shivering. Some people, especially those living alone, could not stand the terrible darkness and came out of their rooms in the dark and crawled upstairs. Eventually, a large group of survivors gathered in the 22nd to 24th floor stairwell. When people arrive in the group, they are always relieved to discuss what to do afterwards, you can't live below the 21st floor, why don't we move upstairs, who will take us in these days, humph, it's a disaster year, we have to compliment each other and help each other, why don't you take us in, is there any humanity left, what can we do if they don't open the door, they'll always come out, and as soon as they do we'll rush in, there's no need, there are plenty of empty rooms upstairs, enough for us, it's a security door, it won't even open. A couple of disbelieving men went together to kick in the door. In a few minutes they came back hanging their heads and panting. It won't open at all. Damn. 
these sons of bitches upstairs are inhuman and won't even open the door for us. When violence didn't work, a few people started shouting in the building, is there a kind person who will open the door for us to stay the night? It's not a good idea for us to stay out here at this time of night, is it? Come on, my kid is only three, let me in the room? They yelled for a long time and no one opened the door. No one is a fool. How can you open the door and let outsiders in at a time like this? The crowd began to get indignant. I know everyone on this floor. We're all neighbors. Lo and behold. I'll see how you'll meet people in the future. Son of a bitch. You guys are so selfish. It's outrageous. It's just a one night stay. Isn't it? It's like we're not leaving. Shit. Nima. If you have the guts. Don't go out. I'll cut down every one of you I see. The tenants on the 22-24 th floors dared to speak out, but they could only keep their doors closed. The crowd tossed and turned and didn't get in, so they had to suffer and sleep in the stairwells and hallways. But the floor was too cold and hard to sleep comfortably. Someone else mustered up the courage to go back home and bring some bedding. Others followed suit and moved various things. Bamboo mats, marching beds, recliners. These people were afraid to separate and congregated between the 22nd and 24th floors, making a very messy mess of the place. Occupants on floors 22 to 24 secretly complained, but there was little they could do. Chapter 36, The Little Lowly Who Can Teleport 4 in the Morning. Zhang Fan lay on the bed with no sleepiness at all. He used his senses to observe the movement of the survivors downstairs. Most of the survivors below the 21st floor moved above the 22nd floor and fell asleep in the hallways and stairwells. There's a guy sneaking around stealing other people's stuff. Seeing that the person who was stolen was Mrs. Su, Zhang Fan's heart was very relieved. Jiang Fan was surprised to find that from the 28th floor upwards, there were originally some people left, and after a day had passed, there was actually only one survivor left. The others went outside in search of food and never returned afterward. The only remaining survivor lives in room 2803 and is a girl. She was lying in bed shivering constantly and seemed to be sick. The body's light was extremely dim, and it looked like it was about to go out. After a few minutes, the girl did not move and the light on her body disappeared in synchronization. Another one dead. Zhang Fan's heart rippled. Death has long been commonplace in the post-apocalyptic world. Just then, an unexpected appearance. A girl actually appeared out of nowhere in the room of the deceased. HM? Zhang Fan sat up at once. His expression grave of what's going on. He hadn't seen how the girl came to be at all. As if she had appeared out of nowhere. Is it? It's a psychic ability? Transmission? Teleportation? Zhang Fan noticed that there was indeed a ginger in this girl's body. The color is the same as the mutant frog. Blue. She's a shifter. There's actually teleportation? This ability can be so powerful. Jiang Fan cautiously observed for a while. The light on the alien woman wasn't really bright. Similar to Tang Shu Elua, about as little combat power as she had. Jiang Fan no longer hesitated. And with a movement in his mind, his body passed through the bed and the floor. Falling into the 31st floor. Teleportation powers are too dangerous. If she suddenly teleported to Jiang Fan's room to assassinate him, it would be difficult for Jiang Fan to react. Even if she couldn't beat Jiang Fan, she could throw a bomb and teleport away again. Jiang Fan only needed one untimely reaction and the consequences would be unimaginable. This girl was too powerful, both in escaping and shading. Submit to me or death. Jiang Fan's eyes flashed with a stern aura as he traversed the layers of floorboards and quickly approached the position of the alien woman. The two ponytailed lowly poked her head out of the blue film portal and cried out softly, Jiang Yino, Jiang Yino, I'm Tian Tian. I've come to save you. The room was silent. Tian Tian was so scared that she took a flashlight and couldn't see the bed. So she could only grit her teeth and jump down. Tian 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 gently walked to the bedside. Only to realize that her classmate Zhang Yaino was already dead. His face was blue and his eyes were round. Very scary in the dark. Oh Tian Tian was so scared that her tears flowed out on the spot and she backed up. The body didn't move a muscle. Tian 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 slowed down from her fear. She's seen a lot of dead people since the end of the world. And she's barely able to get used to some of them. We've come all this way. It's too much of a wasted opportunity to go back now. Her portal, which can only be opened twice a day. Just in time for one trip over and one trip back. Tian 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 bowed a few times to Zhang Yano's corpse and apologized to Zhang Yano. If there's any good food in your house, I'll take it. I don't think you can eat it anyway by the looks of you, right? Tian Tian saw a book bag placed next to the pillow. Inside there was an unopened pack of Oreos, about what Zhang Yano had just retrieved from outside. Yeah, a great harvest. Tian 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 jumped for joy to Zhang Yino. Thank you. I'm going back. Bye. When she finished, she ripped open a blue film and burrowed into it and disappeared. A few seconds later, Zhang Fan crossed the floorboards and landed in the room silently. Gone so fast? 
Jiang Fan looked at the empty room and was secretly disappointed, a little late to the party. Jiang Fan frowned darkly. And, not surprisingly, this girl should have acquired the ability to teleport not too long ago. That said, if you collect her and activate the history return, you're likely to get the fruit of enlightenment that she ate. But, Jiang Fan looked at the room helplessly. The teleportation ability is too unbelievable. Where can I find her? She found food here and should be back soon. It's just going to have to be a holding pattern here. Jiang Fan looked at the female corpse on the bed again. There was a black bite mark on the female corpse's arm from some unknown animal, and it reeked of a disgusting putrid odor. It was about the inflammation of the wound that caused the high fever, combined with the lack of food that killed him. What's that two ponytailed girl got to do with her? Jiang Fan had just seen in his perception that the double ponytail girl had bowed to the female corpse. The two should have known each other he searched the room, which was the bedroom where the woman's body had been born. Jiang Fan found his book bag and textbooks. The female corpse is called Zhang Yino, a freshman girl from the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, studying stage art. Could it be a classmate? Jiang Fan secretly guessed. He found Zhang Yino's cell phone by his pillow and unlocked it with Zhang Yino's finger. Jiang Fan flipped through the call logs. Zhang Yino had made dozens of calls to his parents in the past few days, all of which were missed, about the parents being dead. In addition, a dozen other calls were to someone named Tian Tian. Zhang Yino's last phone call in life was half an hour ago or to Tian Tian. The phone is set up to record calls automatically. Jiang Fan opened the recording of the last call. Tian Tian, hey, Yino, you're still alive. Great. Jiang Yino, Tian Tian, Uv, can you come and save me? Tian Tian, Yino, what's wrong with you? Very hungry? Jiang Yino, I was bitten by a rat. I have a fever. Ooh, it hurts. Tian Tian, I'll try. You hold on. Jiang Yino, come save me. My cell phone is running out of battery. I'm scared. Jiang Fan opened another call between the two from a few days ago. Tian Tian, hey, Yino, I found a carton of milk today. I can't finish it for a while. Do you want it? Jiang Yino, thank you. Tian Tian, I still have a little bit of food. The airplane sprinkled weed killer. And a lot of people in the group said they'd go out and look for food tomorrow. So I'll try. Tian Tian Tian, alright then. Be sure to let me know if there are any difficulties. Jiang Yino, okay. Tian Tian Tian, Yino. Jiang Fan listened to the two girls call and figured out a few things. The two of them, Tian Tian and Zhang Inua, were classmates. Tian Tian's teleportation ability seems to be very limited, not being able to teleport many times a day. And the target point has to be very discreet, for reasons unknown. Jiang Fan also found a group photo in his cell phone album, a double ponytailed girl with her arm around Zhang Yino. Tian Xian, age 18, quality, 9 points, playful and cute, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. Mine too. In order to avoid accidents when capturing Tian Tian, Jiang Fan decided not to allow other survivors to go up to the 28th floor. Of course, if she resisted fiercely, then she had to die as well. Jiang Fan wouldn't stay his hand. Chapter 37 I'm the building manager. Who's for it and who's against it? Tian 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 drilled through the blue film and jumped back home. A black cat jumped over Meow Tian 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 said triumphantly Coke. Look what's here. I found a package of cookies. It's unopened oh. I'm the best. Tian Tian has the ability to teleport. But not much combat power. It was so dangerous out there. And she didn't dare to trespass. Had a terrible time. Actually. It's just a little better than the others. Barely enough to eat. But hardly enough to fill you up. The black cat cocked its tail and rubbed against Tian Tian's leg a few times. Tian 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 scrutinized it and proudly told the black cat coke. It's really unopened oh. I'm awesome. Right. The black cat lounged lazily on the floor. Not really interested in the cookies. Black cats have no shortage of food. The cat food is corrupt. However, Tian Tian bought a lot of canned cat food last year on double 12. And it's all edible. So black cats don't even want to eat crap like cookies. When Tian Tian was at her hungriest. She actually held out on canned cat food. Much to Coke's dismay. This two-legged beast is so stupid. Can't even hunt. Tian Tian took out a pack of disposable rubber gloves from the freezer and pulled out a brand new one to put on her hand. Then another pair of scissors from the freezer. Cut a tiny opening in the cookie package. Took out half of it. And then immediately sealed the cookie bag with an easy sealer and put it in the freezer. This maneuver minimizes the possibility of bacteria getting in and slightly increases the shelf life of the open food. It's fine to last at least 8 hours. Any longer than that is not guaranteed. Tian 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 then ate the cookies beautifully. Hi sugar. Hi oh cookies, which were once disliked by girls, have now become a wonderful treat. Tian 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 lay comfortably on the bed, the cookies are delicious. 
She took a moment to slow down, checked the freezer again, and spoke sadly to Coke, we only have two ham sausages, a packet of instant noodles and half a packet of cookies left, we still have to find a way to gather food, but it's getting harder and harder to find food now, the black cat didn't even look up, meow anyway, there's no shortage of food for old money, as long as you don't steal my food, Tian 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 thought for a moment, I think there should still be food at Zhang Yano's home, but it's too dark for me to stay longer, wait until daytime and then go over to look carefully, Tian Tian decided to look around the building, even if she couldn't find an opportunity, she would find an unoccupied room and teleport in to search for food. The black cat wagged its tail leisurely. Tian 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 grabbed her twin ponytails and mulled them over for a moment, muttering to herself it should be okay. It's a residential building over there, so it won't be too messy about it. She recalled the chaotic scene she saw when she went to Yida Plaza yesterday, and a shiver ran through her heart. After the last time she'd been scared off by that big orange cat, she'd gritted her teeth and made another trip to Yida Plaza. It turned out to be an encounter with the survivors going en masse to Yida Plaza. As soon as she landed, she was robbed at knife point, and not only did she fail to gather food, but even the backpack she brought with her was taken. Tian Tian Tian's heart palpitated ah by the way, tomorrow dress up ugly, and older, and wear mom's old clothes so the others don't stare. Tian 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 pulled her hair out to take stock of the situation, by the way coke, if I find pure water I'll bring it back too, now that the water and gas are out, we can only drink pure water. The black cat is fast asleep, conscious of her responsibility. Tian Tian nodded heavily you don't worry. Coke, I can handle it. Yida Plaza, along with her brother, Song Shireen hid in an empty mom and pop food store. In the darkness, she opened her cell phone once more and despaired at the sight of it, there's no signal. Why is there no signal at all? Song Yuan Fan looked outside in fear, keep your voice down. Don't let that cat hear you. Song Shireen shivered. It hasn't gone away since that orange cat showed up. It seems to think of humans as the rats of old, having fun, and the dark in Yida Plaza is its playground. At least a couple hundred people are trapped in the supermarket. Anyone who tried to escape was killed by the orange cat. Even more problematic was hunger. And the people who came here looking for food didn't find much food at all, not even water. The entire Yida Plaza is full of hungry and thirsty survivors. There are two sets of survivors in this store, besides the siblings. One set was a couple, hiding in a corner. The woman was no longer able to do so. She was bitten by a large mosquito and her whole face swelled up like a bun. She had a fever and a wobbly body temperature that was scalding. The other group was three young men who grabbed a couple Snickers bars, but one of them couldn't make it either. The man was so thirsty that he drank a few drops of tap water and then passed out until now. Song Shireen was so hungry and thirsty that she suddenly whimpered and cried when she looked at the pictures of the food Jiang Fan had sent earlier in the cell phone group. Why? Why didn't he save me? Why did he give the food to these bitchy women? I'm his girlfriend, in the darkness, a man growled low shut the fuck up, if you want to die, get out of here and die, don't drag me down with you, that kid, shut your woman up or I'll kill you, big brother, big brother, don't be angry, Song Yuan Fan smiled fearfully and said anxiously, sis, don't cry, don't you cry, Song Shireen had a complete emotional breakdown and was still crying, Song Yuan Fan, afraid of the man's anger, threw his hand and slapped Song Shireen, snap, Song Shireen was stunned by the blow, and she looked at her brother dumbfounded, you hit me? Song Yuan Fan was furious, stop fucking howling. They'll kill me. And do you want to lure the cat? You hit me too. Song Shireen was so aggrieved that she wanted to die. But she didn't dare to cry anymore. She looked at the darkness before her in despair. Blame it on Jiang Fan. How could I have been so miserable if he hadn't denied me food? Isn't it just a breakup? How can you be so desperate? Wasn't the breakup all your fault? Who told you not to get ahead? Jiang Fan drove his senses and walked down the stairs step by step, not a single survivor on the road. It was only when I got to the 24th floor that I, saw, a group of people hitting the floor in the hallway. The crowd didn't dare to separate. They all huddled together in a ball. It was very dark, with only a faint moonlight shining in. Most people are already asleep. A few others were still whispering about something. They saw Jiang Fan coming over and stood up in shock. They knew this convenience store clerk, who had pinched the strong Zhou Tianhao to death two days ago and was very bad to be messed with. Jiang Fan pounded his fist on the fire door a few times. Duong, Duong, Duong. The crowd immediately woke up, what's going on? What's happening? Jiang Fan said in a good-natured manner, from now on, I'll be the building manager of this building. Who's in favor? Who's against? The crowd's faces changed. They were all upset in their hearts, but no one dared to openly oppose it. Jiang Fan looked at the crowd in front of him, and the yellow light on his body greatly alter and slightly red looks like you guys have a lot of opinions. Anyone who has one can mention it now. Still no one dared to say anything. A couple of burly males didn't make any moves either. 
they knew they were inferior to Zhou Tianhao, so of course they didn't dare to provoke Jiang Fan. At that moment, a middle-aged woman stood up and said, then I'll say it, I think we should elect. Snap. Jiang Fan raised his left hand, the middle-aged woman's neck twisted into a twist, and the whole person was hit so hard that she rotated twice in the air and fell heavily on the ground without moving. Jiang Fan laughed suddenly, yo you really mention it. The crowd sucked in a breath of cold air. Chapter 38, Death in a Fight Jiang Fan asked again, anyone else have an opinion? No one dared say a word about it anymore. Jiang Fan nodded in satisfaction, well, since we are all in agreement, I'm butting in, and now for something one. From now on, the 28th floor and up, it's all my private quarters, and no one is allowed up there. Two, I'll give some food and water to whoever goes downstairs to weed and digs up enough plants for 100 pounds a day. After saying that, Jiang Fan turned around and went upstairs. Keep these guys downstairs, they can be used as meat shields. In case any animals came up from downstairs, they would attack them first, leaving Jiang Fan with time to react. Also having them go to the first floor to mow the lawn was a way for them to poke around and see what kind of animals were harmful to humans. More importantly, try to see if that mutant frog still attacks people. The crowd looked at each other in disbelief, he's serious? Why do you want to mow the lawn? Really give food? That can't be right. Where does he get that much food? This kid is a murderer. Don't trust him. Humph. Have there been fewer deaths these days? A dead person is nothing. How about? Try. I'm not going. It's too dangerous on the ground. If I get bitten by a bug, nine times out of ten I'll die. Some are hesitant. Others are already on the move. Heading home to get knives suitable for weeding. I'm starving to death anyway, so I might as well put up a fight. Humph. If you don't go weeding there's nothing to eat. Isn't it still death? Old Mrs. Sue said with a terse neck and oh, I'm not going, I'm too old to work, if you have food, you must give it to me, otherwise I'll sue. Her words elicited approval from a group of seniors. Right, a job like weeding is definitely for young people, I can't do it, if there's food, why don't you give it to us? Young people nowadays, don't they even know how to respect the old and love the young? Someone kindly reminded Mrs. Sue this isn't the old days, stay out of trouble, old Mrs. Sue said with vigor how am I causing trouble? I'm just asking for what I deserve. Neither Zhou Tianhao nor Jiang Fan had beaten her, allowing her to somehow gain confidence. Jiang Fan must not dare to hit the old man. A group of older women chimed in isn't Jiang Fan just a convenience store clerk? Didn't he used to rely on us, the owners, to take care of him in order to live? If he wants to be building manager, he needs our support. Right. He must have smuggled in convenience store goods to have that much stored. It's a time of crisis. These supplies must be used to rescue everyone. I think we can have a good talk with that lad Jiang Fan. Honoring the old and loving the young is a traditional virtue of the Dragon Kingdom. He has so much food. Why doesn't he share some with us? Doesn't he just want money? We'll give it to him. The young man felt very speechless when he heard the old man's words. Is Jiang Fan someone who can be negotiated with? The body of that woman from earlier is still on the floor. All right. It's hard to persuade the damned with good words. Leave it to you guys. It's something that will do them all the good and no harm anyway. If Jiang Fan was willing to compromise, then they would also try to talk to him. If Jiang Fan didn't compromise, then let others die. It was none of his business. The dead woman lay still. There were no relatives of hers here. And the body was unattended. And soon flies were coming in. Buzz off. Buzz off. The people around him smirked in disgust. Damn. You can't throw this thing in here either. So you gave it away? Why should I throw it? Everyone is starving right now and no one wants to move their hands if they can. A thin man stared dead at the female corpse, his eyes glowing green. He hadn't eaten anything in two days and was going crazy with hunger. The ghastly white skin of the female corpse surprisingly aroused his appetite. This woman was killed. Her body should not be sick, the skinny man said in his heart. After a while, the thin man stood up and said, it's going to stink if I leave it any longer. I'll carry it. Someone give me a hand. Everyone lowered their heads and no one chimed in. The thin man gasped in a fake manner, shit. I'll do it myself. The skinny man whimpered and dragged the woman's body down the stairs. But instead of dumping the woman's body, he dragged it back to his home. The skinny man didn't come back for a long time, which drew some attention. The two men looked at each other and went downstairs without moving. Mrs. Sue suddenly screamed, which goddamned person stole from me. It wasn't you. None of my business. You're closest to me. It must be you. Roll. Damn old woman. Don't make trouble. Ah. How dare you fucking tickle me. The building was a mess. It took 10 minutes for it to quiet down. A man covered his face in horror as his face was scratched by Mrs. Sue. Now if there is trauma, it's a very serious matter, and it's likely to become inflamed and die. Damn. Dead old woman. I'll kill you. A group of people rushed to pull him back, almost got it. 
What's the point of fighting an old woman? Mrs. Sue, on the other hand, hid behind a group of people and screamed and cursed, you're a thief. I'm calling the police. The injured man gritted his teeth in hatred, but he was an honest man and didn't dare to really hurt Mrs. Sue. Hurry up and treat the wound, right? Don't ever inflame it. Someone advised. The injured man said fearfully, who can help me? Who's the doctor? Dr. Li is a Chinese medicine practitioner. He should be able to do it. Li Qingxuan lives on the 24th floor. The injured man knocked on the door of Qingxuan Li's room. Li Qingxuan hadn't wanted to go out. And he was afraid of being robbed by the messy things outside. But the injured man kept knocking. And Li Qingxuan could only say in the cat's eye, what is it? Dr. Li help me. Li Qingxuan glanced at his wound through the cat's eye and hesitated. After all, he was a doctor. His heart could not bear it. So he said a come in. Li Qingxuan cautiously opened the door halfway. Instead, no one dared to rush in. At this time of year, no one knows if they're going to get sick or hurt, and no one wants to offend a doctor. The injured man said with a sob, am I saved? Li Qingxuan put on his nearsighted glasses, looked at it carefully and shook his head, the chances are not good. Try it. He took out alcohol, disinfected the wound, and dabbed on some iodophore. If it was before, a wound like this would need to be anointed, but now I have nothing. Alas, you're on your own. The injured man was devastated. Who would have thought a fight with an old woman could kill you? Help me. Help me. Dr. Li. Li Qingxuan was helpless. And the skillful woman could not cook without rice. Now, Zhang Fan might be the only one in the entire building who had medicine there. But that man was very difficult to deal with. And Li Qingxuan wasn't going to risk going to the door to ask for medicine for a stranger. Qingxuan Li hesitated and took out a box of pine needles, pine needles from the pine tree downstairs. I just picked them up. In Chinese medicine, pine needles can cure trauma. But the pine tree has changed now and I'm not sure if it's effective. Do you want to try? The injured man gritted his teeth, yes. Li Qingxuan nodded, then I'll try. He chopped up the pine needles and smeared them evenly over the wound. The rest is up to God. Zhang Fan was at home and saw it all clearly interesting, considering that Chinese medicine might be useful to him. Zhang Fan's heart moved and sank into the floorboards. Chapter 39, Getting a Personal Physician Zhang Fan came to the 28th floor and walked down the stairs in order not to expose his ability to walk through walls. When the survivors saw Zhang Fan, they took a few steps back in fear. Several old men looked at Mrs. Sue. Don't look at Mrs. Sue, who had just spoken with great vigor. But now that she saw Jiang Fan, she was a little frightened in her heart. Without even looking at her, Jiang Fan knocked on the door of Li Qingxuan's house. Not long after, Li Qingxuan walked to the cat's eye and was surprised to find that it was Jiang Fan, and he did not feel his scalp tighten. Did I offend him? Li Qingxuan was nervous. Jiang Fan had come to the door. So he could only open the door and forcefully calmly said, Zhang, building manager, what's your business? Look at your patient. Zhang Fan walked into the room on his own. Li Qingxuan didn't dare to stop him and closed the door of the room after him. The injured man stood up involuntarily. Zhang Fan took a closer look at the wound on his face and asked to Dr. Li, can it be cured? Li Qingxuan sighed with relief as he realized that Zhang Fan seemed to have no malicious intent, the chances are not good. There is too much of a shortage of medicine. He wanted to ask Jiang Fan if he had any medicine, but didn't dare to open his mouth. Jiang Fan was non-committal, let's see the medicine you're using. Li Qingxuan took out the remaining pine needles. Jiang Fan didn't know anything about Chinese medicine, but he did know that a doctor was still useful, especially Chinese medicine. Unlike Western medicine, which is almost useless without modern pharmaceutical technology, traditional Chinese medicine is a full point of herbalism. Only, those herbal knowledge of Chinese medicine. In this era of rapid mutation of plants and animals can still play much of a role. Jiang Fan is not sure. Only to say that something is better than nothing. Jiang Fan asked again, last time I saw you. You were selling a really smelly dish? Li Qingxuan nodded, mutated capers. Very smelly, even more so when cooked. But they are indeed edible and seem to be very nutritious. These days, my staple food is this kind of caper. Unfortunately, there's no gas left to cook it. And I don't dare to eat it raw. Alas, Li Qingxuan was sorry. Jiang Fan asked Li Qingxuan to take some out. A stench like that of a dry toilet hit his face, and Jiang Fan almost didn't spit out his overnight meal. Li Qingxuan was calm. The injured man said expectantly this stuff is edible? Li Qingxuan nodded, can. I eat this every day, and there's nothing else I can eat in my house. The injured man looked at the red-faced Li Qingxuan and said pitifully, can I have some food? Raw. How dare you eat it? Dare to eat. I won't live for a few days anyway, so I'll at least die a full death. The injured man is rather patronizing. Li Qingxuan took out a large bowl of raw capers and placed it in front of the injured man. I just picked them yesterday. These capers are special. They can sit for three days without rotting. 
Vomit the injured man couldn't help but retch at the smell. Zhang Fan looked at the injured man speechlessly. You can eat this? He did admire Ching Chuan Li. How did you find out this stuff was edible? Immediately afterward, the injured man chucked up a bit and tried it. Vom this type of caper is so thin in your mouth that it's the same as diarrhea poop. Add to that the stench, and the taste is simply ruinous. The injured man threw up as he ate, barely managing to eat a small half of the bowl before he could no longer continue. His whole body was deflated, and he sat slumped in his chair, staring listlessly at the ceiling, with a couple of dry heaves coming out of his mouth from time to time. Li Qingchuan laughed, you're very good. I couldn't stand it the first time I ate it after only two. Actually, if you eat it every day, you can get used to it. You can also have soup if you have water and gas. It tastes, mmm, but it's very nutritious. Asterisk 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 flavored gumbo? Jiang Fan was speechless. This old man is a real slugger. The injured man waved his hand feebly you just kill me. I'll die before I eat again. Vom Jiang Fan laughed to keep careful notes on his status. I want to know if the herbs are working. Li Qingchuan vaguely felt that his chance had arrived. Okay. Jiang Fan waited for two hours before returning again, and the injured man's wound had actually scarred. Moreover, in Jiang Fan's perception, the brightness of the light on the injured man was beginning to stabilize. The injured man also felt the change in himself and said happily a dr. Li, my face doesn't seem to hurt anymore? Li Qingchuan examined it carefully and sighed, I didn't expect it. But after the pine tree mutated, the effect was much better than before. Perhaps, this evolution could be an opportunity for the human race. You're lucky. Go back and recuperate. The injured man left happily. Zhang Fan was also satisfied. This Li Qingchuan is really something. Since this was the case, Zhang Fan decided to help him out a bit. Zhang Fan said if from now on, I'll give you food every day. Want it? Li Qingchuan froze for a moment. His eyes fixed on the instant noodles. He's a normal person too. Who wants a flavorful meal when you have a normal meal to eat? Li Qingchuan, who is in his fifties and has long known that there is no such thing as unwarranted kindness in this world, asked cautiously, what do I need to do? Zhang Fan was satisfied with this kind of sensible person. Sensible so that he wouldn't do something unpredictable if my woman gets sick. You'll be in charge of the treatment. There's a reward for curing, and no punishment for failing to do so, how's that? Li Qingchuan moved. To put it bluntly, this was acting as a private family doctor for Jiang Fan. Li Qingchuan was never pedantic good. Li Qingchuan decided to move on the spot. All the expensive stuff in his house is solid wood furniture, and these things can't be taken away with him, so it's a good idea to say goodbye. His partner died young, and he has only one son and one granddaughter in the next city, who he couldn't reach after the red mist descended. Li Qingchuan brought some clothes with him and carried a medicine box with simple medical equipment such as silver needles, medicine scales, alcohol and iodophore. Jiang Fan led Li Qingchuan upstairs. The crowd in the building saw it and envied it. Mrs. Su became more and more angry. Last time, her grandson's death was because this old thing, Li Qingchuan, didn't give treatment. Today, Li Qingchuan cured another asshole who fought with her. Damn old man, deliberately antagonizing me. Now, no one else could go upstairs. Only Li Qingchuan could go upstairs, making her heart even more unbalanced. Zhang Fan brought Li Qingchuan to the 28th floor and found a house that was farthest away from Zhang Yino's house. Zhang Fan was very cautious and couldn't possibly let Li Qingchuan live on the 32nd floor. Li Qingchuan tangled, I live here? How do I open the door? Zhang Fan stretched out his hand and his arm passed through the security door. Then his fingers returned to normal and easily unscrewed the lock. Click. The door opened. Zhang Fan was becoming more and more skilled in the use of vapors and could skillfully control localized limb vapors. Li Qingchuan was surprised at this as psychic ability? It's amazing. Zhang Fan said noncommittally, I'll come to you if I need anything. Don't go out if you don't. It's a mess right now. I'll have someone bring you food right away. Zhang Fan didn't really trust Li Qingchuan and wouldn't show too much of his abilities in front of him. Zhang Fan returned home and took out a box of instant noodles, a large bag of ham sausage, and a box of pure water is Su Mengqian, Lu Mengyao. You guys take the stuff to room 2809 and give it to DR. Li Qingchuan. The two women were a little afraid to go out, but even more so, they didn't dare to reject Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan wasn't worried. He could monitor the entire building in his perception. There was no danger present above the fifth floor for now. It's a different story below the fifth floor. As the night went on, the land emptied of herbicides once again sprouted thicker vegetation. With all sorts of insects, ants and mice traveling through. The short period of safe time out is over and everyone is once again trapped in the building. Even the building was not safe. The lower floors were crawling with mutated rats, mutated cockroaches, and mutated mosquitoes that appeared from time to time. So you can only fend for yourself if you were bitten. Also, in the drain, 
an odd creature resembling a giant earthworm has appeared. They were disgusting as they made their way through the sewage pipes, except that the brightness on them was so low that they didn't seem too threatening. Chapter 40 The Monster in the Toilet Second Floor Lu Dongxiang put his arm around Chen Yun and stood looking out the window. Just now, a group of people came out of Block C and ran downstairs to mow the lawn. Isn't that fucking sick? The grass grows so fast nowadays. How can you possibly mow it all? Why are they mowing the lawn? Chen Yun yawned, who knows? Psycho. Kung, let's go back to sleep. She had eaten and drunk enough yesterday, and had gone crazy with Lu Dongxiang all night, and now she was getting sleepy. Yesterday, while the herbicide was in effect yesterday, Lu Dongxiang took Chen Yun out in search of food. Lu Dongxiang is still a little smart. He knew that the big supermarkets like Yida Supermarket must be overcrowded, and he might not be able to grab something even if he went there, and it might be dangerous. Lu Dongxiang then took Chen Yun to a nearby silly bird post and used his lockpicking ability to easily open the door and enter. Hundreds of unclaimed deliveries were piled up at the delivery point. Lu Dongxiang and Chen Yun found a lot of food and drinks from it, enough for them to eat for a few days. And, with this success, both are confident. The entire Magic Sea City, at least a few hundred courier collection points, even if they left January 10th, it would be enough for them to eat for a long time. Lu Dongxiang scratched his crotch. He felt that it was getting itchy, and he even faintly smelled a foul odor. He pulled down his pants and was dumbfounded. Crap. What the hell is this? Just red bumps all over my thighs. Very nasty. Chen Yun was also terrified. Damn. What the hell is this long thing you have? It can't be sick. She rushed to look at her body which remained unchanged for the time being. Damn. This son of a bitch looks honest. How come he still has this disease? Damn. Don't ever infect my old lady. Chen Yun cursed Lu Dongxiang in her heart. She still has to rely on Lu Dongxiang to live. And she dares not offend, but can only endure. Chen Yun picked up a bottle of pure water and went into the bathroom, sitting on the toilet to clean her body. Lu Dongxiang also said anxiously, I have to wash after you. Before the words left his mouth, the toilet suddenly made a loud noise. Wow. A fist-thick black tentacle-like object stabbed out of the toilet like lightning and penetrated Chen Yun. The tentacles pierced through Chen Yun's body from bottom to top and out of her mouth. Chen Yun's eyes froze, and her entire body instantly froze in place. Lu Dongxiang's eyes were round and his mind was blank. Crap. Pust. The black tentacles retracted like lightning. Blood splattered everywhere. Chen Yun's body fell limply to the ground, just like rotten mud, and blood flowed all over the place. Ah. Lu Dongxiang screamed in terror his voice so loud that it was unlike anything a human could make. The people on the first floor who were mowing the lawn, and all the surrounding neighbors were startled. Jiang Fan also discovered this scene. Just now, one of the monsters in the sewage pipe, the light on its body suddenly became a dozen times brighter, and then pierced a woman's body. Immediately afterward, the light from its body fell into dimness once more, and it burrowed into the sewer pipe and left. Jiang Fan's face turned ugly. Damn it! This thing is so shady that it can actually suppress its usual brightness and disguise itself as human and harmless. Tang Shuelua also heard the man's screams and only felt creeped out. Brother Jiang, what's going on? It seems to be someone from our building? Jiang Fan said with a cold face, I'll check it out. He immediately sank to the ground and quickly landed in an unoccupied room on level 2. Then he walked out from inside and kicked open the door of Lu Dongxiang's house. Bam! Lu Dongxiang sat paralyzed on the ground with a pale face, unable to get up at all. When he saw Jiang Fan, an unconscious scream of terror came out of his mouth. The bathroom was full of blood. A woman's body was lying next to the toilet. The toilet was also broken. The downspout reeked and was propped up a whole lot. In Jiang Fan's perception, the monster had already moved away from this room and went to the first floor through the sewage pipe. Jiang Fan let out a sigh of relief after observing silently for a while. This monster is about as physically limited as it gets, and can only travel below the fifth floor, and is no danger to the upper floors for the time being. Just don't be a threat to yourself. Jiang Fan didn't say anything and turned to leave. Lu Dongxiang finally reacted and grabbed the food and water, then rolled and ran upstairs. He was relieved until he reached the crowded area above the 22nd floor. The crowd saw that he was covered in blood and still had a strong smell of urine and smell, and immediately said, stay the fuck away. It stinks. Day. You boys stay over there by yourself. Don't you come any closer. Ah. Lu Dongxiang's expression was horrified as he kept repeating, there's a monster in the toilet. There's a monster in the toilet. Soon a legend of the toilet monster spread among the survivors. Most of the people who had gone to mow the lawn were back by 12, noon. The most people who mowed the lawn only mowed 60 pounds or so, and the fewer people only got 30 pounds or so. These residents are city dwellers and have never done this kind of work at all. Combined with the poor food, lack of energy, and lack of proper tools during this time, everyone was exhausted. To make matters worse, 
Two of them were bitten by unknown bugs. The wound swelled up to the size of a palm and was painful to touch, and the body began to run a fever. Discontent began to brew in the crowded dam. That convenience store clerk is playing us. 100 pounds a day simply won't get it done. I don't even know if he'll give us food. Thirsty. What if we're almost out of water? Mrs. Sue's heart was secretly happy. She and a group of elderly people would not have been able to cut the grass. Before seeing the young people to go downstairs to cut the grass for food, her heart was still very dissatisfied. Seeing the opportunity now, he immediately exclaimed, according to me, mowing the lawn was purely a waste of effort. It must have been that convenience store clerk who deliberately tormented us. There was a chorus of voices. What's the use of cutting it and growing it out tomorrow? Right. He's just tossing us around on purpose. Let's go talk to Jiang Fan and share some food with us. Not too good. Just three loaves of bread per person per day. This. Will he hit someone? Let's go together. I don't believe he dares to beat up so many people. Right. Must go together. He won't dare make a move if we hug together. Tian 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 blended in with the crowd and listened quietly sounds like there's a guy named Zhang Fan in this building with a lot of food on his hands? She had just teleported over not long ago. First, they searched Zhang Yino's house and didn't find any food. Unwilling to do so, she went down the stairs, only to see a group of people discussing something heatedly. Tian Tian was now dressed as a middle-aged woman, and her face was intentionally painted ugly, so she didn't look at all conspicuous. Tian Tian mingled with the crowd and listened for a while. Deciding to follow the crowd upstairs to take a look, that one called Zhang Fan is finished. So many people came together to grab his food. He definitely won't be able to keep it. I might be able to get some while the chaos is going on. Just as the crowd was discussing the situation, a laid-back voice came from upstairs, you're having quite a discussion. Tell me about it. Zhang Fan walked down from the corner of the stairs with a playfulness on his face if anything. There was a dead silence. Zhang Fan didn't sleep all night. And after lunch, he wrapped his arms around Hu Lily and took a beautiful nap. Jung Fan basically regained his energy after sleeping for more than an hour. After increasing his comprehensive physique to 90, he could even go 48 hours without sleeping and not feel too tired. Only Hu Lily was very big and soft, and it was pure enjoyment to cuddle and sleep. As soon as Jung Fan woke up, he noticed that there was an extra alien in the building. The blue, ginger, in her body and the outline of her body proved that it was the female alien Tian Tian. You're really back again. Jung Fan was secretly happy. He didn't dare to delay for fear that the other party would run away. He hurriedly put on his clothes and vaporized downstairs. He walks to the 25th floor and hears a group of people claiming a crusade in a group. Zhang Fan didn't care about it at all. He only cared about Tian Tian. Tian 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 blended in with the crowd and didn't leave. Zhang Fan immediately turned the corner and laughed, you're having quite a discussion. Tell me about it. If he glanced at Tian Tian, the other man seemed to think his disguise was brilliant and wasn't too wary. Jiang Fan walked down the stairs step by step, and the crowd couldn't help but make way for an open space. Don't look at them talking lively, but as soon as they saw Jiang Fan, they chickened out again. Even the few people who had just come downstairs to mow the lawn and were bitten didn't dare say anything. Thinking of Jiang Fan casually killing two people, no one dared to take the lead now. Tian 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 wondered in her mind, what are you guys afraid of? A group of people are still afraid of one person? She stared at Jiang Fan and really couldn't see what was so special about this handsome young man. Jung Fan stopped seemingly at random, but actually stopped right in front of Tian Tian. He smiled towards the crowd, say it. Say it for me. The crowd looked at old Mrs. Sue again. Old Mrs. Sue gritted her teeth and stepped forward young man. I. Swish. A bright white blade slashed across Mrs. Sue's neck. Pissed blood sprayed like a fountain and splattered on the ceiling. Gollum. Old Mrs. Sue's head rolled down to the ground, landing right in front of Tian Tian. Tian Tian Tian's mind went blank. Jiang Fan was surprised when a watermelon knife appeared in his hand at some point, huh? Why did you stop talking halfway through? The scene was silent. Chapter 41, The Fourth Alien Ability Subspace Travel Everyone cringed, and now no one dared to speak anymore. Jiang Fan smiled as since you guys don't say anything. Forget it. You guys who cut the grass, you haven't cut enough 100 pounds to hurry up. Before 5 p.m. M. Send 100 pounds of grass to the 27th floor. After the deadline ah. A few of the men mowing the lawn tensed up and, without a break, went downstairs to work with various knives. At this time, Jiang Fan suddenly reached out, grabbed Tian Tian's collar, and carried her in front of him with one hand, smiling, Tian Tian, are you feeling good about your disguise? Tian 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 was startled and just wanted to struggle, but she was surprised when she sniffed, hey, how do you know who I am? Nope, you're recognizing the wrong person, the not so smart looking Yazi. Jiang Fan smiled and reached into his pocket actually pulling out a bottle of pure water from his carry-on space. 
The fingers crushed the bottle with gentle pressure and poured it over her head. Tian Tian, who was more than one meter five, had her hands over her head, and her two legs were flopping in the air. Her toes could not reach the ground at all. Oops, what are you doing? Jiang Fan dabbed at the water and rubbed hard on her face a few times, the made up falling off. A quirky little beauty appears. Jiang Fan smiled in satisfaction, nice and pretty. Come with me. The survivors looked dumbfounded. This big mom is actually a beautiful woman? This could all be stumbled upon by Jiang Fan. This guy is so lucky. The men were mad with jealousy, but none of them dared to say anything. Jiang Fan smiled as he carried Tian Tian upstairs. Tian 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 was terrified. What are you doing? You let go of me. I'll give you money okay? You let me go. Thinking that this man had just killed a man, Tian Tian's face went pale and her heart almost jumped out of her throat. Jiang Fan shook his head. What good is money? Tian 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 cried with her mouth flattened. Oh, oh, oh don't. I'm only 18. I don't want a boyfriend. Boyfriend? Jiang Fan snorted and knocked a loud chestnut on Tian Tian's forehead. What are you fantasizing about? Ouch. Tian Tian cried. Covering her head, let me go. Let me go. Jiang Fan was disgusted and said coldly, cry again and I'll strip you naked and throw you down the stairs. Tian Tian. She shut her mouth momentarily. Jiang Fan carried her back to Tang Shuelua's home. Tang Shuelua opened the door and was surprised that this is. Jiang Fan was calm, your new sisters. Several women stuck their heads out to see. Tian Tian saw a few big beauties, and instantly knew that this man was definitely a big pervert, and that he was in trouble. But it was a relief to see a few of the women looking radiant and not mistreated. Tian 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 is still making a last stand you. You, you won't get my heart this way. Jiang Fan casually said, don't flatter yourself. What do I need your heart for? You're in whatever position I want you to be in anyway. Tian Tian Tian's cheeks blushed, you, you, you. She was tempted to open the portal and escape, but there was no certainty that she could get out of the man's grip, so she had to hold back. At this time, Jiang Fan took out a bunch of snacks, want some? Potato chips, chocolate, seaweed chips, beef jerky. Tian Tian Tian's pupils dilated. Ding. Seven days ago, Tian Tian consumed one fruit of enlightenment, subspace shuttle and returned 600 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. It's in hand. Without saying a word, Jiang Fan took out a subspace shuttle fruit and ate it. Fruit of enlightenment, subspace shuttle seven stars. After consuming it, you can gain the ability to travel through subspace. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Subspace shuttle, seven stars. You can open a subspace channel and travel to any location within 1000 meters. Up to two times per day, you can create a subspace anchor point within 100 meters. Up to one time per day. Seven stars. It's actually a seven star fruit. Jiang Fan was stunned. He'd eaten hundreds of fruits and hadn't piled up a single seven star ability. And this one fruit was a seven star. Not bad for a teleportation ability with an amazingly high star rating. Tian 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 asked stupidly, you have an alien fruit too? As soon as she said it, she knew that she had said something stupid. Looking at how strong Jiang Fan carried himself, she knew that he must be an ability user as well. Jiang Fan laughed, follow me, and you'll have no worries about food and drink, including the alien fruit. Of course Tian Tian didn't believe it, cut, do you take me for a three-year-old? Jiang Fan flipped his hand and a handful of black lychees appeared in his palm. Tian Tian looked dumbfounded, her big eyes as white as eggs, hey, why do you have so many? Jiang Fan, of course, would not explain and clicked his tongue and ate a few, eat it and flip your hand over for another handful. Tian 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 was shocked, magic, carry on space. Jiang Fan said indifferently before finishing another handful. After eating more than 20 subspace shuttle fruits, a prompt finally rang in his ears frowny face ding. Subspace shuttle upgraded to 8 stars. You can open a subspace channel and travel to any location within 5,000 meters. Up to 10 times per day, you can create a subspace anchor point within 1,000 meters. Up to 2 times per day. 5 kilometers of arbitrary transmission. 10 times a day. 8 stars is a huge step up from 7 stars. Jiang Fan smiled in satisfaction. He patted Tian Tian's head and pointed to the pile of snacks just now. Eat it. It's all yours. Tian 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 pounced with glowing eyes. Whoops. Ding. Tian Tian consumed one pack of beef jerky and returned 600 packs. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Tian Tian consumed one packet of potato chips and returned 600 packets. It's been put into the carry-on space. Jiang Fan laughed, eat, eat before you talk. After saying that, he turned to leave. Tian Tian Tian's eyes rolled back in her head and her hands scrambled to peel the pillowcase out and stuff all the food in. Then as fast as he could, he ripped open a blue film and probed into subspace where the subspace anchors of his home stood out like torches in the darkness. Tian Tian quickly pointed the drop to the anchor position and dug in, hey, trying to catch me? 
No way. She turned her head before she left and was shocked to find Zhang Fan standing in the doorway, looking at her with interest. Tian 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 was startled at ouch. She lost her footing and fell straight through the exit. Want to run? Zhang Fan slashed his hand in the air and a huge blue film with a radius of over 1 meter 5 appeared. Zhang Fan walked in with a flourish. He also saw the spatial anchor point in the center of the field, and pointed the drop point at the spatial anchor point. Chapter 42 Tian Tian and the Kata Blue Film suddenly appeared in Tian Tian's home. The black cat, Cola, looked up lazily. Immediately afterward Tian Tian fell, hitting the floor with a cry of pain. Coke, how can you fall on that? The bipedal beast is so stupid. Tian Tian was about to climb up when a huge blue film reappeared. Zhang Fan walked out blandly, one foot stepping right on the back of Tian Tian's head, stomping her face on the floor once again. P.I.A. Kiri. Ouch. Tian Tian screamed miserably, ouch. 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 Zhang Fan lost his smile and lifted his foot, picking Tian Tian up with one hand. The little girl's forehead was red. Tian 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 was dying of shame you must have done it on purpose. Right ACA. Zhang Fan casually picked Tian Tian up, this is your house? The black cat stood up and walked over to Zhang Fan's leg and rubbed against it. Zhang Fan only took one look and stopped paying attention. It was just an ordinary cat. He picked up the cat with one hand, and Cola fell asleep comfortably on Zhang Fan's arm. Tian Tian Tian's eyes went round with grief of Cola. You don't usually let me hug you. Coke, Miao Zhang Fan quickly glanced around the entire room. Nothing could block his prying eyes under his perception vision. Tian Tian has no dangerous tools in her home. Only a kitchen knife and fruit knife. Zhang Fan put his heart down and found himself a chair to sit down, picking up the anime hand puppet in the display cabinet with interest. Tian Tian's bedroom was stuffed with hand-me-downs all over the place. The computer chair is a colorful pink. The headset is a bunny ear. So it's a middle-aged girl. Zhang Fan thought secretly. He glanced around the room and stowed all his belongings in his carry-on space. Tian 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 all looked dumbfounded and aggravated that's my stuff. Zhang Fan smiled faintly, it's mine now. With a stroke of Jiang Fan's finger, a huge blue film appeared. He had just left a subspace anchor point at Tang Shuelawa's house when he left. It's easy to find your way home now. Tian Tian looked dumbfounded, hey, how can you do that too? Did you copy my ability? Jiang Fan sighed. Harm is a middle-aged girl ah, almost guessed my ability. Jiang Fan, of course, would not explain and walked into the blue portal with his cat in his arms oh, follow me. Tian 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 could do nothing about it. Her life's coke is in the hands of the bad guys and she has no choice but to bow down. When the two of them returned home, Zhang Fan took Tian Tian's items out of the handy space. Well, come over and eat. Eating? Tian 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 didn't know what it meant and didn't dare to resist. She ran out of teleportation today and couldn't run away even if she wanted to, so she can only do what Zhang Fan said. Tian 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 came to the living room. The rich aroma of the meal came through. Tian Tian Tian's big beautiful eyes rounded. The table was laden with dishes. Right in the center is a steaming hot pot with a dozen side dishes such as dry-aged beef and stir-fried dried bamboo shoots, complete with a variety of dipping sauces, and a steaming pot of rice. Tian Tian looked dumbfounded at this. This, this, how is this possible? She felt like she was dreaming. Tang Shuelua and the other women rose to welcome Jiang Fan to his seat. Jiang Fan looked at the table, it's getting crowded and there's a little bit of a shortage of tables. He picked a large round table from the space and placed it in the middle of the living room. The four women transferred the meal to the large round table. Zhang Fan sat down and said, let's eat. The four women sat down and ate. Tian 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 was a bit overwhelmed. She completely did not expect to be able to eat such a sumptuous meal at a time like now. Tang Shuelua said with a smile, here, you sit with me. You can eat a lot today. Hu Lili and Lu Mengyao both smiled knowingly. Su Mengqian sneaked a glance at Zhang Fan. A bit of a grudge in her heart her Zhang hasn't come to my room in two days. There are more and more women. When will it be my turn again? I'm not going to fall out of favor, am I? Tian Tian didn't have much reserve, broke down and sat down and ate. Woo woo, yummy, I haven't had meat in days, it's so delicious, do you still have gas here? Zhang Fan was in a good mood, so he explained a no, it's canned propane for camping. Zhang Fan had collected thousands of bottles at the supermarket, enough to last a long time. Tian Tian's little mouth was stuffed to the brim and she almost ate with hot tears, whoops, this one, this is delicious. The four women looked at Tian Tian who didn't eat with pride, humph. Brother Jiang let you guys follow. You've made a fortune. Yeah, where else can we get such sumptuous food except here at Brother John's place? If you follow Brother Jiang, you're guaranteed to get enough to eat. And you'll also get to eat alien fruits. Tian 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 looked up. Surprised at alien fruits? We can eat it too? Her heart was full of anticipation. The encounters during this time had made her deeply understand the importance of her powers. A single teleportation fruit gave her tremendous help. 
If she could obtain another combat-oriented fruit, then her chances of surviving would increase a lot. Jiang Fan laughed in a different way of course. Jiang Fan ate and drank his fill. A stern look flickered in his eyes, but on the surface he laughed in a sunny manner, well, do you want to stay? You can stay and get fed. Jiang Fan had already made up his mind that as long as Tian Tian refused, he would immediately move in for the kill, because her ability is so special. If Tian Tian hadn't willingly stayed here, Jiang Fan wouldn't have been able to restrict her movements at all, and Tian Tian has seen too much of what she is capable of. In any case, Jiang Fan couldn't let such a powerful ability to be out of his control. If the teleportation ability played assassination, Jiang Fan wouldn't even be able to carry it. If Tian Tian turned to the enemy, then Jiang Fan would be in big trouble. So now she was left with only two options either that, or submit, either that or die. Tian 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 didn't realize in that she was standing on the brink of death. She certainly wouldn't agree to it if she had a choice. But the world is not what it used to be. Even if the two escape, what can they do? She's been out gathering supplies a lot and has seen a lot of dark things. In some places, people are still barely observing the former order. But there are also many places where order has de facto broken down. The strong control everything. What's worse, it's hard to get enough to eat, even when following the orders of the powerful. Because of the lack of food, oftentimes, even the strong themselves have a hard time keeping three meals a day. Jiang Fan here was different. Tian 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 wasn't stupid. She was also secretly observing the mental state and physical condition of the four women. Apparently, these women were well off. Even, they have the mind to put on makeup, wear fashion and dress up. This is a sign of extreme material well-being. In other words, Jiang Fan definitely had the ability to provide the women with enough supplies. Where did he get the supplies? Tian Tian Tian's eyes rolled the merchandise from Yida Plaza. Did you take it? Jiang Fan smiled faintly, smart. That's a very small part of it. As a few people chatted, Coke walked up to white eyes. Meow. Woof woof. Meow. Woof woof woof. Jiang Fan decided to find some time to try. Jiang Fan looked at his cell phone. 3.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep anyway. So I simply got up and did something serious. Jiang Fan took out a set of thick hiking clothes from his space and put them on. He returned to his rented room and White Eyes gleefully rushed up. Jiang Fan took out a few slices of steak and threw them to White Eyes, who jumped and jumped happily. Don't let anyone else in when I'm not over here. White Eyes seemed to understand. Woof woof. Jiang Fan jerked his dog's head. So he stood up and made a stroke with his finger in the air. A huge blue membrane leading into subspace appeared. Woof woof. White Eyes nervously jumped back a step and looked curiously at the blue film. Coke lay calmly on the ground. Che, uneducated stupid dog. Jiang Fan opened his cell phone map and walked into the subspace, the NSA should have guns. Where is the nearest NSA? Chapter 43, The Gun Arrives. Female Alien. Jiang Fan stood in the subspace, feeling like he was standing in a huge mass of water drops. He could see buildings and highways outside, though their shapes were twisting and shaking, tangled into a mass, like a painting marred by water. To find the target location, you have to carefully distinguish it from a cloud of deformed objects. Jiang Fan managed to find the location of the National Security Bureau with great difficulty, and immediately afterward, he discovered a second problem. It is extremely difficult to pinpoint the architecture of material space due to the fact that when viewed in subspace, it is constantly twisting and turning like water plants at the bottom of a river. If he accidentally opened the portal into the wall or under the ground, then Tian Tian couldn't get out either. Also, Tian Tian could only open the door twice a day and had to leave one home. Then she only gets one try per day. Once she drove to an unsuitable location like the ground, a wall, or high in the air, then she would have to wait another day. Jiang Fan smiled faintly. It wouldn't matter to me. I can walk through walls anyway. Jiang Fan casually clicked his hand and the portal opened up to three meters below the National Security Bureau. Voiding. Jiang Fan stepped out of the teleportation portal calmly as soon as his heart moved. He didn't get to the ground right away. Because in his perception, there were dozens of survivors in the NSA, gathered in several rooms on the third floor. There were actually three Xenos among them. Jiang Fan carefully observed these three exalts. The three were two men and a woman. Looking at the costumes, one of the men and one of the women should be members of the National Security Agency. The other man was an older man in his 70s. The G Ginger, of the male security member and the old man was green. Just like Jiang Fan, the brightness of the light on the two men was average, only limitedly stronger than normal. The Vijinger, inside the female security team member was a dusty color, and the brightness of the light on her body was extremely dazzling. Although it was still about two times worse than Jiang Fan, it was already the strongest alien Jiang Fan had ever seen. Jiang Fan was cautious and didn't approach the three rashly. He watched for a moment and quickly found the location of the gun and ammo storage room. Jiang Fan immediately penetrated through the ground. 
Soon, he entered a basement. The room houses four large tin cabinets that are unlocked using fingerprint recognition plus mechanical keys. Through his perception, Zhang Fan saw two large tin cabinets with neatly placed rifles and pistols inside. The other two are bullets. The guns and ammo were all laid out tightly and looked like they hadn't been touched. The Dragon State is very strict in its management of firearms. And guns are managed by specialized firearm storekeepers. About the time the red mist descended, the treasurer had an accident that caused the guns to not be taken out at all. Mine. Zhang Fan laughed as he tried to put away the tin cabinet and failed. He pushed the cabinet with his hand and realized it was expansion screwed to the wall. Carry-on spaces can only receive standalone items into the space. Zhang Fan found a crowbar from his carry-on space and ruthlessly inserted it into the gap between the wall and the cabinet. Drive me. Zhang Fan pushed hard and pried out a large gap. After several consecutive attempts, it was hard enough to pry the cabinet off the wall. National Security Agency, Bin Hai Road, third floor. Three shifters sat around a small table. Zhang Zilin glanced worriedly at the survivors' rooms and said that everyone is in bad shape. We need to get out of here. It's getting harder and harder to gather food over here. The male security team member Lu Gangfeng took a sip of pure water and carefully looked around to make sure no one noticed the sigh before advising in a low voice, Zilin. I've long said that we can't save that many people. And in this state now, we're lucky if we can take care of ourselves. Lao Yang, don't you think so? Yang Jiawei nodded his head, I'll listen to the two chiefs. Lu Gangfeng was disdainful, ch. Horse's ass. Chapter Catalina corrected, Uncle Yang, I'm just an ordinary security member, not a chief. Yang Jiawei compensated with a smile, hey, hey, same, same. Old Yang's life was saved by the two chiefs, so do as you say. Yang Jiawei is a security guard who works in a nearby neighborhood. After the red mist descended, he ate a black lychee and accidentally gained the ability to hear very subtle sounds. With this ability, Yang Jiawei barely survived. Later, Zhang Zilin rescued Yang Jiawei when he followed the orders of his superiors and organized manpower to rescue the survivors around him. Zhang Zilin said firmly, as ordered, we must get these survivors to the nearest TV gathering point. Lu Gangfeng was annoyed, now that we can't contact our superiors anymore. Hell knows what's going on over at the TV station. What a fucking time. And you're still a stickler for doing what you're told? You're sick. Zhang Zilin stubbornly shook her head in oh, I will act on my last orders. If you want to go, you can go yourself. I won't stop you. Lu Gangfeng was depressed to the core. If it wasn't for the fact that he couldn't beat Zhang Zilin, he would have wanted to forcibly plunder Zhang Zilin and leave this group of dragons behind. Of course, just think about it. Zhang Zilin's family practiced transmission martial arts, and she had one third place in the National Women's Sansho plus psychic powers to add to the mix. Lu Gangfeng dared to make a move and was beaten into a pig's head in minutes. If it wasn't for Zhang Zilin's good looks and Lu Gangfeng still had a little idea about her, he would have run away long ago. Lu Gangfeng persuaded him bitterly Zilin. Let's. Zhang Zilin interrupted with a straight face, Lu Gangfeng, I'll say it again. Don't call me Zilin. We're not lovers. It's not appropriate. Lu Gangfeng was very depressed. Zhang Zilin continued, we have too few weapons. The animals are getting stronger and stronger. And in order to better protect the people, I think it's imperative that we get our hands on the guns in the stockroom now. Lu Gangfeng sighed, the gun storage room is in the basement. Two layers of security doors, without a key you can't get in at all. Old Wang has been unreachable, presumably dead. There really isn't much to do. Zhang Zilin calmly said, we have to think of a way even if there's no way. Lu Gangfeng, I've only just come to this bureau. You're an old man in the bureau. You're more familiar with the environment. Think again about what other ways you can get in like the ventilation ducts? Lu Gangfeng was helpless, Zhang Damsel. That's a gun safe room. It's safer than even our director's office. How is it possible to leave such a big loophole? Just then, Yang Jiawei suddenly said it chief. I heard a noise underground. A big crash. Lu Gangfeng's face changed and he immediately took out his pistol. Tensing up. Hmm. Zhang Zilin immediately got serious. Is it a subterranean creature? Yang Jiawei listened carefully for a while and said doubtfully, I don't think it's an animal. It sounds like metal hitting metal? Like someone smashing something? Someone smashing something underground? The body is fraudulent? Lu Gangfeng couldn't help but shiver in panic old Yang. Don't talk nonsense. He used to not believe in ghosts. But now that the world is getting weirder and weirder, he's scared. Zhang Zilin asked in a deep voice, where? That way. Yang Jiawei pointed at the ground in one direction, it's about three or four meters underground. Zhang Zilin looked in the direction of his finger. Puzzled Lu Gangfeng, is the gun storage room over there? Lu Gangfeng froze for a moment before reacting, right. It's right over there and about the same depth. Someone stealing guns. Zhang Zilin's expression stared at once. With the world in such a mess right now, there's going to be a lot of trouble once the guns get out. No way. 
This must never happen. Zheng Zilin rolled over the window like a gust of wind, jumped straight down to the third floor, and quickly rushed to the gun storage room. Also, she wondered how the other party had gotten into the holding room. Zhang Fan was content to pry down the four large cabinets. Another cabinet was violently pried open and a pistol was pulled out, slurped and touched a few times, dark and heavy. It was the first time he had ever touched a real gun and was very curious. Just then, Zhang Fan suddenly turned his head to look at the ceiling. In perception, the female alien's body brightness rapidly skyrocketed, almost reaching Zhang Fan's brightness. The female shifter quickly rushed over. Zhang Fan was surprised this can be discovered. He couldn't figure out his opponent's abilities and didn't want to take any chances. So he opened a portal and stepped into subspace. Chapter 44 The Strongest Mutant Animal, The Orange Cat Zhang Fan didn't close the door immediately. He stood in the subspace and used his perception to look at the iron door. Outside the iron gate, the female alien had a very hot silhouette. Her legs straight and toned, her buttocks high in the air, full of healthy beauty. But Zhang Fan wouldn't risk taking her. For this kind of powerful woman, Zhang Fan still stayed away from her. In case she made a sneak attack, Zhang Fan could really be hit. There are women everywhere. There's absolutely no need to take the risk. At that moment, Zhang Fan felt his physical strength depleting rapidly. Turns out staying in subspace drains energy. With his own comprehensive physique he could feel the consumption. With Tian Tian's comprehensive physique, it was estimated that he wouldn't be able to stay in subspace for more than a few seconds at all. Without further delay, Zhang Fan opened a door when he found the location of Yida Plaza. I remember the third floor of Yida Plaza has big name mattresses. There are more women and enough mattresses to go around. The gun safe room went quiet. Zhang Zilin thumped on the big iron door, but there was no movement inside. All she could do was rage impotently listen up inside. Don't come out if you can, or I'll catch you. A few minutes later, Lu Gangfeng and Yang Jiewei arrived holding flashlights. Lu Gangfeng asked, didn't catch it? Zhang Zilin was angry, he's not coming out. Yang Jiawei listened carefully, there doesn't seem to be anyone. I don't hear any human breathing. Zhang Zilin was annoyed, no way. I was watching from the doorway. How did he get away? Lu Gangfeng checked the iron door. There is no sign of human damage if he can get in. He naturally has a way out. I suspect it's a shifter. And the ability is likely to be drilling holes in the ground or something like that. Zhang Zilin also thought of this and frowned, then he probably took the gun. Duong. Lu Gangfeng kicked the big iron door heavily. The big iron door did not move. He helplessly said that the purpose of his coming over was obviously for the gun. Zhang Zilin grimaced, as long as he dares to use a gun. I can find him and arrest him. Ordinary citizens are not allowed to use guns. This is the iron law of the dragon kingdom. Zhang Zilin is very confident in her strength. The opponent's ability was obviously a skill like digging. So his frontal combat power wasn't that strong. Lu Gangfeng was speechless. Arrest him? They can drill. How can you catch them? And even if we catch him, what's the point? Where are they keeping him? To jail? Where are the prisons now? Yang Jiawei looked around worriedly. With hideous plants growing everywhere, he felt very unsafe. Leader, let's go back. The new portal that Jiang Fan opened casually was much off kilter and opened directly over Yida Plaza. Jiang Fan, calm looked down below. And about 5 meters below was the roof of Yida Plaza, covered with central air conditioning outboards and other various facilities. If it were Tian Tian, I guess the door would have been opened in vain, and she wouldn't have been able to get down at all. Jiang Fan, however, simply jumped out of the blue portal and landed on an outboard. Perception unfolds. He scrutinized it, and was surprised to find that there were actually hundreds of people hiding in Yida Plaza. What are they hiding here for? It's not like there's much to eat here. Jiang Fan felt a bit baffled. These people were hiding all over the place, scattered in the various stores of Yida Plaza. Everyone was cowering in the corner, seemingly hiding from something. Jiang Fan was cautious. He scrutinized it with his senses. Nothing. Jiang Fan, however, instinctively felt that there was danger. So many people were hiding. It was impossible that there was no problem at all. He was a little hesitant. Jiang Fan was torn between leaving immediately or not when an orange cat broke into his perception. The orange cat was as large as a large SUV and radiated a sunlight. Blinding light. Far brighter than the light on Jiang Fan. If Jiang Fan's combat power was one, then the orange cat was at least five. Jiang Fan's expression stared up. It was the strongest animal he'd ever found. Much stronger than the mutant frog at the fortune center. The family's silly dog. Husky, is no match. That stupid dog is a disgrace to mutant beasts. Since recognizing his master, he's been so delicious and lazy that he's grown fat on his stomach. As for the group of red giant birds that attacked the transportation plane that day, the distance was too far beyond the range of perception for Jiang Fan to estimate. The orange cat walked leisurely into the lobby of the first floor, licked its paws, 
and took off on a scattering walk into the Yida Plaza. Suddenly, it swung its claws toward a corner. Ah, a woman was swept out with a splat. She screamed in terror and stumbled, trying to run. The orange cat slapped her back again. The woman flipped seven or eight times on the ground before stopping. The orange cat happily jumped over and plopped down next to the woman and watched, like a cat teasing a mouse. The woman endures the pain and doesn't move, trying to play dead and muddle through. The orange cat was not happy, lifting the woman up with her claws. The sharp cat's claws cut a long bloody gash in the woman's chest, and the woman screamed in agony, crawling in pain as she fled. The orange cat was happy again, following the woman slowly and teasing her without killing her. Whenever a woman has to run to the corner, get her back. Whenever the woman played dead and didn't move, she used her claws to lift her up and continue playing. A few minutes later, the woman was dead, lying motionless on the ground. The orange cat fiddled with her paw a few times and lost interest when she realized the woman still wasn't moving. After a while, the orange cat catches another unlucky person from the corner and plays dead. Then catch and play dead again. After playing dead with seven or eight of them, the orange cat had about had enough and slowly left through the front door. John Fan calmly watched the orange cat leave the range of his senses before he jumped through the floorboards into the fifth floor. He wanted to leave just now, but saw his ex-girlfriend Song Shireen. Even if he could only see the outline, Jiang Fan instantly recognized her. Having daydreamed about Song Shireen for so long, he had long since become familiar with the details of her body. The orange cat was indeed stronger than the mutated frog, but it was not much of a threat to Jiang Fan instead. Mutant frogs could sneak attack with their tongues from a distance outside of their perception range, leaving Jiang Fan defenseless. The orange cat, however, had to be close enough to him to be a threat. Even so, Jiang Fan had enough means to save his life. Whether it's vaporizing to escape from underground or opening the door into subspace, it's a great way to keep the orange cat out of trouble. Jiang Fan also had some epiphanies that ability restraints were more effective than just a combined physique. Jiang Fan turned around on the fifth floor. There are very few businesses on the fifth floor, only a Yida theater. Now, the entire Yida plaza is plunged into darkness. The survivors in the corner heard Jiang Fan's footsteps and didn't dare to come out to look. Jiang Fan didn't stay long and came back to the fourth floor. The fourth floor is a gourmet floor. All the food has been scavenged by the survivors. Jiang Fan continued down the stairs. He landed on the third floor through the floorboards, then walked straight in Song Shireen's direction. Soon, Jiang Fan met Song Shireen. He took out his flashlight and shot it. Song Shireen and Song Yuan Fan were lying on the ground, having stayed in the darkness for a long time, and suddenly being illuminated by bright light. They couldn't open their eyes at all. Song Yuan Fan sat up and blocked the light with his hand. Wary, who? What's going on? Song Shireen also struggled to hold up her body, squinting over in pain. She could vaguely see the figure of a man standing behind the flashlight, but it was impossible to see who it was against the light. The other group of survivors were two men. They also looked at Jiang Fan's side in astonishment. Who dares to wander around outside with a flashlight nowadays without fear of that weird cat? In the other corner lay a man and a woman, both dead, their bodies stinking. Jiang Fan looked at Song Shireen. Now she was pudgy, waxy, and had dry, cracked lips, with not a trace of the little seven-point beauty she had been. I can't believe that I'm so mesmerized by this kind of woman. Jiang Fan self-examined and walked into the room. As soon as I entered, I smelled a foul odor. These people presumably urinated and defecated in their rooms. Jiang Fan covered his nose and disgust Song Shireen. You're still alive. What a surprise. Song Shireen froze in surprise. Jiang Fan, you're Jiang Fan. Quickly give me some food. For you to eat? Jiang Fan snorted. He leisurely set his flashlight into camping mode and placed it on the table. The whole room lit up. The crowd finally got a good look at Jiang Fan. Rosy complexion, smooth skin, neat hair and clean clothes. Just looking at him where is there a hint of the end times? As if they were ordinary people who go shopping at Yida Plaza on weekends. The other two male survivors' eyes widened. The man must have something to eat. The two men exchanged glances, their ferocious light flickering, while their hands surreptitiously groped for the daggers underneath them. I am saved. Song Shireen instantly saw the hope of escaping and cried out in pain, Jiang Fan. What took you so long to come? Do you know how long I've been starving? Quickly give me something to eat. Quickly save me from here. Song Yuan Fan grabbed Jiang Fan's sleeve and shouted, Quick, quickly give me a drink of water. I'm so thirsty. What the fuck are you still looking at here? Hurry up. Boom. Jiang Fan kicked Song Yuan Fan in the stomach. Chapter 45, Don't Be Silly. I Don't Kill Women. Without a word, Song Yuan Fan flew backwards and hit the wall, only to slowly slide down a few seconds later. There was no longer any breath left on the ground. Jiang Fan said indifferently, it's rude to touch someone with such dirty hands. Song Shireen still didn't know that Song Yuan Fan was dead. Pointing at Jiang Fan and screaming, Jiang Fan, 
He's your brother-in-law. How dare you hit him? It's against you. Jiang Fan suddenly reached out and grabbed her hand. Click. Song Shireen's palm was folded at a weird angle. The back of her hand pressed tightly against her forearm. Ah. Song Shireen almost fainted from the pain. Jiang Fan smiled faintly. I don't like being pointed at. The two male survivors quietly stood up while Jiang Fan's back was turned. They had just taken two steps when they felt a flash of white light in front of their eyes and their consciousness was plunged into darkness. Jiang Fan shook off the blood on the dagger and casually threw it into his carry-on space. It was then that the corpses of the two men collapsed to the ground, blood pouring out. Killing people? Song Shireen was so horrified that her eyes were rounded like a duck that had its throat pinched. She finally realized that the Jiang Fan in front of her seemed completely different from before. Don't. Don't. Don't kill me. I was wrong before. Don't kill me. Ooh. Jiang Fan patted Song Shireen's cheek and smiled, don't be silly. I don't kill women. Song Shireen blushed miserably and barely sighed in relief. Pust. A dagger stabbed into her chest. Song Shireen looked at Jiang Fan incredulously, you. I thought you said you weren't going to kill. She only felt her body's strength fading fast. Jiang Fan blinked innocently, huh? Did I say that? I forgot. Sorry. You lied to me. Song Shireen died with a great deal of resentment. Jiang Fan coldly looked at Song Shireen and waited for a while. But the system didn't have any hints. Song Shireen is dead and the return multiplier hasn't been lowered? That's a good thing. A dangerous smile appeared out of the corner of Jiang Fan's eyes. If that's the case, there's much more room for maneuver. For example, for a dangerous woman like Zhang Zilin, it's entirely possible to use her to bring up the return multiplier before killing her. Cheap. Jiang Fan took one last look at Song Shireen's corpse before walking into the darkness with his flashlight. He slipped around the third floor where most of the stores were a mess of merchandise from survivors, including the mattress store, which has been taken over by a group of survivors. The store pisses all over the place. John Fan took one look and left in disgust. When he stepped out into the darkness, he turned on his vapors and sank into the ground, making his way to the fortune center. Several of the survivors looked at each other, that guy just left. He was holding up a flashlight. I'm surprised the weird cat didn't kill him. Is the weird cat gone? I haven't heard any screams so far so the weird cat shouldn't be at the door. If he can leave, so can we. The crowd looked at each other in disbelief. Two of the men gritted their teeth and ran out. A few minutes later, the screams of two men came from the doorway. Ah, help, help. The crowd was dumbfounded. The strange cat is still guarding the door. So how did that guy just leave? Not long after, Jung Fan returned to the fortune center. There's been a lot of back and forth and it's not even 5 a.m. yet. Jiang Fan decided not to go home first and went to the other two buildings in the fortune center to see what was going on. His perception range of 100 meters could barely see part of the floors of block A and block B, and was not comprehensive. It's better to see it in person. And maybe there's a nice woman to collect. Jiang Fan first came to the bottom of the pool. The mutant frog is still lying in the pool. In Jiang Fan's perception, it was like a bright flame, very eye-catching in the night. Ha! Huh? What is this thing? Jiang Fan suddenly realized that around the mutated frog, there were densely packed small light spots swimming around. The body is palm-sized, with a round head, a long tail and two legs, and by this appearance, it seems to be tadpoles. Jung Fan was taken aback. This mutant frog actually laid eggs, and the tadpoles develop at an alarming rate. He had passed by the pool the day before and hadn't seen any tadpoles yet. Growing hind legs today? Wouldn't that make you a frog in two or three days? The size of such tadpoles is certainly abnormal and in all probability they have inherited a combination of mutant frogs. What about psychic powers? Do tadpoles inherit the psychic powers of mutant frogs? Jiang Fan's expression became grave. A mutant frog is dangerous. If it's a bunch of them, then the fortune center really can't stay. Jiang Fan didn't have much to offer for the time being, and without looking around much, he headed to block A. He went to the ground floor of block B, found an unoccupied room, and jumped all the way up, finally stopped at the fifth floor. Jiang Fan carefully observed the state of the survivors in the entire building. Like Block C, Block B is almost uninhabited below the 21st floor, but the people in Block B are concentrated on the two floors above the 32nd floor. All room doors on both floors, 32nd and 33rd, were open. Instead, no one lived in the aisles, and everyone lived in rooms, but mostly 10 people crammed into one room, and many of them were bound hand and foot with ropes. After observing for a while, Jiang Fan didn't find any girl with a particularly prominent appearance, so he headed to seat A. As usual, Jiang Fan came to the fifth floor of block A to observe the entire building. The situation in block A is again different from block B and C. Everyone lives above the 22nd floor, but no one in block B can open the security door, so they're crammed into the occupied houses. The houses with no one in them were empty, 
and most of the houses with people in them had five or six people living in them. It seems like someone is coordinating the housing. Jiang Fan understood with a glance that there was definitely someone managing the organization. Moreover, this management carries a certain amount of coercion, otherwise it would be impossible for normal people to allow other people to enter their houses. Interesting. Jiang Fan walked out of the empty room and took a step upward from the stairs. The stairway to the 21st floor is littered with debris and appears to be defending itself against some kind of animal attack. When we got to the 25th floor, the door to the tenant's room against the stairway suddenly opened, and a very feminine duty stepped out. Jiang Fan couldn't help but be attracted to her. The woman's face value wasn't outstanding. At least it couldn't be compared to Tang Shuilawa's few girls. It could only be considered clear. She was not fat or thin. Her size was not exaggerated. And her legs were not particularly perfect, even slightly thick. But her every move is just particularly appealing. Cindy Paik, age, 23, quality, 9 points, feminine, woman's virtue, 10 points, to be in a woman's womb, overall rating, 9, Jung Fan's eyes lit up. Ah, by Xin Jie exclaimed in shock. She didn't expect there to be anyone outside. Jiang Fan stared at her unobtrusively. By Xin Jie's eyes were very gentle, with a hint of innate panic and a sense of resignation, making people want to protect them in their arms as soon as they looked at them. By Xin Jie looked at Jiang Fan nervously. Being stared at by the aggressive man's eyes made her very uncomfortable. For a moment, Bai Xinjie didn't know whether she should go home or continue what she had done before, so it froze in place. Chapter 46 Another Black Lichi Jiang Fan recklessly looked Bai Xinjie up and down. Bai Xinjie was shy, but in her heart, she wasn't really angry because Jiang Fan was more handsome. Bai Xinjie suddenly recognized Jiang Fan as her. You're the clerk at that convenience store, right? Jiang Fan nodded with a smile, it's me. Fatty whose convenience store is right in front of the neighborhood. There are many people who know themselves. Bai Xinjie whispered to the package is you too? Jiang Fan looked at Bai Xinjie like she was looking at a delicious food and laughed, that's smart. Some time ago, when the internet hadn't been broken, with Jiang Fan showing up, the news that convenience store clerks were just a package of food and shelter had spread. Some people in the group knew about it. Bai Xinjie remembered the practice of food for women, and could not help but feel a little scared. She used her hands to hold the bag in her arms tightly in front of her chest, and wanted to go home. But thinking about the situation at home, she hesitated and hardened her heart. Do you have any more food? Sir, can I change some? Jiang Fan laughed. Oh, what are you trading for? Bai Xinjie looked around and whispered, a black lychee. I saw you acquiring them in the group and I saw one. I just don't know if it's the black lychee you're talking about. Black lychee? Jiang Fan immediately became serious as he stared at Bai Xinjie. She had a yellow light flickering off of her, and she didn't look malicious enough to lie to herself. Where? Bai Xinjie immediately made a request, I'll have instant noodles. Ham sausage and chocolate. Jiang Fan instantly regained his composure as soon as he heard the news of the enlightening fruit, no problem. I'll give you three packs of instant noodles, three ham sausages, and three chocolates. Bai Xinjie gritted her teeth, I also need fever reducing anti-inflammatory medicine. My brother is sick. Jiang Fan snorted, Bai Xinjie, don't give an inch. In fact, for Jiang Fan, it didn't matter what she wanted. Let's get the enlightenment fruit first. She can't run away anyway. Bai Xinjie was a bit scared. But thinking about her brother who was running a high fever, she couldn't care less and firmly said, I can do without the food, but it has to be medicine. Although his brother treated him badly, he was his own brother after all. Now in this situation, without a man in the house, she doesn't know how she's going to survive. Jiang Fan pretended to ponder for a moment, but his eyes looked toward Bai Xinjie's house. In perception, there are five people living in the home of Hinky White. In the master bedroom was an old woman guarding a man who was lying on the bed with a very dull body glow, definitely sick, about by Xin Jie's brother. The three people in the second bedroom look like a family of three, and they should be survivors who were forced to come in. Jiang Fan said or by Xin Jie, you're in such a hurry. Someone in the family is too sick to be clear. By Xin Jie looked bleak, obviously acquiescing. Ha, huh? by Xin Jie was a bit of an afterthought before she reacted. How do you know my name? Jiang Fan didn't explain and said directly, I'm going to get the black lychee before I give you anything. Bai Xinjie said fearfully, it's in the neighborhood, but it's at ground level and I'm afraid to go out. I'll tell you where it is and you can go get it yourself. Okay? Outside? Jiang Fan refused in no way. You have to come with me. It's the end of the world now. There are many crises and people's hearts are treacherous. Hell knows if this woman will dig a hole for herself. He must take Bai Xinjie with him to find the black lychee. In case of danger, control can be a hostage in your hands. Bai Xinjie bit her red lips and said stiffly okay. I'll just show you. We can't get any closer. Jiang Fan frowned. It sounded dangerous. Where the hell is it? Bai Xinjie shook her head. Firmly, you have to give me something before I can tell you. 
Jiang Fan lost his smile. Give it to you and snatch it back. What can a woman like you do? Good. Then I'll take you to see. Bai Xinjie gritted her teeth. You must give me the stuff. No cheating or I'll, I'll, I'll. You must give me the stuff anyway. Bai Xinjie didn't know how to threaten Jiang Fan even after half a day of thinking, so she could only give up awkwardly. Jiang Fan was about to burst out laughing. The woman's not very bright. Quickly go downstairs. Jiang Fan lazily ignored her and pointed to the stairs. Bai Xinjie was in the front and Jiang Fan followed behind. Bai Xinjie's waist was very soft and twisted beautifully. Jiang Fan admired it calmly. Bai Xinjie seemed to feel Jiang Fan's gaze and walked a few steps faster with a red face, as if she wanted to stay away from Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan didn't stop him and followed with a smile. He was outwardly calm, but in reality he was fully focused on his senses, making sure no one was around to sneak up on him. The two soon reached the 21st floor. Red mist slowly churned through the stairwell. Bai Xinjie got scared and slowed down again, taking the initiative to get closer to Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan smiled why are you so close to me again? Aren't you afraid I'll eat you? Bai Xinjie was a bit flustered. You, what are you babbling about? She remembered Jiang Fan's remarks in the group and regret rose in her heart. Why am I following this man downstairs? What if he has bad thoughts? Snap. Jiang Fan suddenly kicked and stomped heavily on the ground. Bai Xinjie was startled. Her eyes looking at Jiang Fan in horror. What? Jiang Fan calmly raised his foot, stomped the bugs. A palm-sized cockroach was trampled to pieces on the ground. Bai Xinjie became even more fearful and quickened her pace. The two men came down the hall. The effects of herbicides are almost invisible. The plants are completely restored to their previous bloom. There were tripping bushes everywhere, and the weeds were once again growing waist deep. Bai Xinjie checked the legs of her pants to make sure they were tied tightly before carefully going out the door. Jiang Fan stared at the mutated frog with his senses with full concentration, always ready to enter the state of vaporization. This place is in the attack range of that mutant frog. If he encountered danger, Jiang Fan would definitely not hesitate to drill into the ground to escape. As for Bai Xinjie, she'll just have to fend for herself. Bai Xinjie struggled to walk a few dozen meters with bugs flying everywhere. Only then did Jiang Fan realize that there was another strange purple mushroom in the neighborhood, with an umbrella as big as a barbecue restaurant sunshade, and the tallest could grow up to three meters. Some giant fireflies hovered among the purple mushrooms, adding a touch of mystery to the neighborhood. Jiang Fan frowned and carefully avoided the mushroom's position. There are more and more plant species nowadays, but it's always good to stay away from any unfamiliar ones. And it's a mushroom. Who knows if it's poisonous or not? He doesn't want to lie down and watch the villain. Instead, Bai Xinjie stepped on a half meter tall purple mushroom and pointed in the direction of the pool. It's right over there by the pool. Under one of the public benches. I came out and saw it after spraying weed killer that day. But there was a big frog sleeping in the pool at the time and I was afraid to go over there. Bai Xinjie is still a little smart. After finding out that day, she didn't tell anyone, just kept it secret. She had wanted to get in touch with the pack to get some food for her family. It turned out to be delayed by a power outage and internet outage soon after. On the side of the mutated frog, Jiang Fan instantly believed a few points. If it was anywhere else, it might have been picked off by other survivors. But no one dares to go over to the mutant frog side. Or maybe someone went over there, only to go into the stomach of a mutant frog. Jiang Fan used his perception to double check the direction of the swimming pool. Soon he found black lychees under a bench next to the pool. The black lychee was a ping pong sized orb. And now there were plants growing everywhere, which Jiang Fan had never noticed. Also, the bench was so short, with dense vegetation growing around it. And the mutant frog was so big and tall that it was right under its nose and it didn't notice. Of course, it could be that frogs have poor static vision. Jiang Fan secretly guessed. If that mutant frog can't see still, maybe it can be shaded to death using this drawback. Jiang Fan took out two boxes of cephalosporin and instant noodles and other food and handed them over to Bai Xinjie, well, you go back. Bai Xinjie was surprised, you haven't seen the black lychee yet. Aren't you afraid I'll lie to you? Jiang Fan smiled sunny and handsome and said solemnly, I believe you. Bai Xinjie was inexplicably a bit touched. Mom and brother never trusted themselves this much, suspecting them of stealing food every day. Her heart inexplicably beat faster as she looked at Jiang Fan's handsome face, I'll go back then. You, you, don't worry. I won't tell anyone about the black lychee. She panicked and ran away. Jiang Fan stared at Bai Xinjie's back. A little green light actually appeared on the woman. This woman is too good to be true. Bai Xinjie went upstairs. Jiang Fan retracted his gaze and immediately threw the woman's matter to the back of his mind. He sank into the ground and quickly approached the black fruit. In the post-apocalyptic world, strength is far more important than women. Chapter 47 White Eyes Can Walk Through Walls When Jiang Fan approached to about 10 meters from the swimming pool, the mutant frog suddenly stood up and jumped onto the land above Jiang Fan's head in one go. Quack! 
Quack! The mutant frog chirped loudly, as if in warning of something. Zhang Fan immediately sank quickly into the ground for dozens of meters. The mutant frog just calmed down and went back to sleep in the pool again. Zhang Fan frowned this thing is so perceptive? This is going to be trouble. Zhang Fan glanced at the black lychee and could only give up for now. He wouldn't take a chance without absolute certainty. When he returned home, Su Mengqian had already gotten up and was cooking breakfast. Su Mengqian was happy to see Zhang Fan, brother Zhang. You're back. Breakfast will be ready soon. Please wait. The woman had somehow self-brainwashed herself, and her body glowed green as an emerald. Zhang Fan was satisfied and took out a voiding fruit and said reward you. Wall piercing fruit. Eat it. It just so happened that the fruit of voiding had also been consumed and needed to be replenished. For Su Mengqian, the surprise came too suddenly. She thanked him repeatedly, then ate the voiding fruit. Ding! Su Mengqian consumed one fruit of enlightenment, voiding and returned 700 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Zhang Fan instructed her to experiment with penetrating the wall one more time. And Su Mengqian's eyes looked at Zhang Fan with a drawn-out look. And the green light on her body became even more pure. Zhang Fan sat on the sofa and habitually took a handful of enlightenment fruits and ate them. Woof woof woof. Husky white eyes suddenly started barking. When Zhang Fan took a look. It was standing at the hole in the wall of the next room with its tail wagging. It seemed to be a lot smarter after its mutation. And it never came over when Zhang Fan didn't let it come to this room. The women were scared at first, but then relaxed quite a bit when they realized that White Eyes was obedient. Woof woof woof. White Eyes stared straight at the enlightenment fruit in Zhang Fan's hand and jumped and jumped, as if inviting credit from Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan lost his smile, you want some too? Woof. Zhang Fan thought about it and felt that White Eyes had performed well during this time. So he beckoned to come here. White Eyes immediately rushed out of the hole in the wall and jumped in front of Zhang Fan. Staring at the fruit of enlightenment in Zhang Fan's hand, his harumphs flowing all over the place. Zhang Fan was also curious as to how the animal had mutated. Had it also eaten the fruit of enlightenment? He took out a handful of voiding fruits and placed them on the ground eat. White Eyes bowed. Clicker. Clicker. It was eaten in a few sittings. Soon, White Eyes seemed to sense the change and tilted his head to look at Zhang Fan. Suddenly, its body plunged into the ground, causing White Eyes to wail in terror and fall off on all fours. Sure enough, the fruit of enlightenment is effective on animals. Zhang Fan thought darkly, and followed suit as he crossed the floorboards and landed on the 31st floor. White Eyes was standing on the ground, looking at Zhang Fan in a daze, and then at his paws. It seemed to be a little less than comprehending what was happening and attempted to pick at the ground, quickly realizing that its claws could actually go through the floor. It's about animal instinct. White Eyes quickly mastered the method of going through walls, and it slammed headfirst into the wall and went straight through. Woof woof woof. I'm fantastic. White Eyes' excited shout came from next door. Having been suffocated in a room for the past few days, it was going crazy and immediately quickly spread its madness through the wall. Zhang Fan shouted it just play on this floor. Don't go downstairs. I don't know if White Eyes can understand it. It doesn't matter if you can't understand it. There's no one else above the 28th floor anyway, if seen by others. If you see it, you see it. Who can deal with this? A few minutes later, White Eyes ran back out of breath, paralyzed on all fours in front of Zhang Fan his tongue lolling out. Going through walls would consume a lot of stamina, and a mutant husky stamina wouldn't be able to carry it. Zhang Fan took out another large handful of voiding fruits and a large handful of perception fruits and placed them on the ground. White Eyes immediately ate happily. After eating the fruit of perception, White Eyes instantly felt the difference. It looked at Zhang Fan in confusion, wondering why its master's body was glowing. With a jerk of the dog's head, Zhang Fan went back through the ceiling to his home. Bai Xinjie returned home excitedly. Brother Bai Yongxin was lying on the bed, his face waxy. The mother, Zhang Hongxia, said angrily, what have you been doing getting up in the morning and going out on a wild goose chase? Your brother is so sick and you're still running around. Bai Yongxin glared at his sister breathlessly, just too sick to speak. Bai Xinjie commiserated, I'm going to go look for food. Zhang Hongxia slammed the bed help, how dare you lie to me? Where are you going to find food at a time like this? Bai Xinjie, tears welling up in her eyes, bit her red lip and said, look at that. She opened the bag to reveal the food, not only food, but medicine. Zhang Hongxia froze for a moment, what kind of medicine? Bai Xinjie said, cephalosporin. It might work for what's wrong with my brother. Zhang Hongxia surprised, quickly. Hurry up and give it to your brother. Bai Yangxin also seemed to have strength and struggled hard to say, give me the medicine. Give me the medicine. Bai Xinjie served her brother his medicine and took out another packet of instant noodles. Give it to me. Bai Yangxin's eyes glistened as he snatched it and ate it. He ate crumbs all over his face and dropped them all over the bed. Zheng Hongxia looked at her son kindly eat more. Eat more to get better faster. Bai Xinjie was heartbroken. Food is precious nowadays. 
How can you waste it like that? She carefully picked up the instant noodle crumbs one by one from the sheets and served them in a bowl. Bai Yangshin ate the instant noodles and medicine and barely regained a little bit of energy before he laid back on the bed and asked, What did you trade for? This, Bai Xinjie was stagnant. She had promised Zhang Fan not to say anything about black lychee. Bai Yangshin frowned, What's so bad to say? Who gave it to you? Zhang Hongxia was also suspicious. Food is so precious nowadays. Who would give it to outsiders? She opened Bai Xinjie's bag and took a look. There are two packs of instant noodles, three ham sausages and three chocolates left, plus two boxes of cephalosporins. These supplies are a lot of money. Bai Xinjie didn't know how to explain. Nua Nua bowed her head and didn't dare to speak. Zhang Hongxiao's face turned serious, say, Who gave it to you? Bai Xinjie bit her lower lip, Don't you guys care? There's something to eat anyway. Bai Yangxin stared at her and suddenly said, You went out and sold it? Bai Xinjie froze for a moment and said in shame, Brother, what are you talking about? Bai Yangxin sneered, Oomph, if you can't produce anything, why should others give you food and medicine? How precious food is now, don't you know? Bai Xinjie's heart shook dramatically as she said, Mom, look what my brother said about me. Zheng Hongxia stared at Bai Xinjie for half a day and said quietly, If you sold it, why don't you dare to admit it? Shame on you. What else can a daughter exchange for supplies but her body? Zheng Hongxia secretly thought in her heart, No matter what, the son is the most important. The old Bai family this only seedling has to be preserved. Sooner or later, a woman has to marry. And after all, she's an outsider. If she could trade her daughter for a life for her son, she wouldn't hesitate. Bai Xinjie said incredulously, Mom, me, Zhang Hongxia patriarchal, playing small on the white Xinjie not very good. What is good to play her first tight brother white Yangxin? Still, Bai Xinjie thought that her mother was good for her. Now these words were completely unacceptable to her. Bai Xinjie silently shed tears and hugged the bag in her arms tightly. She hadn't expected to risk going downstairs with a strange man in exchange for her loved one's skepticism. Zheng Hongxia snatched the bag away with force. Foaming at the mouth, you've got wild men to feed anyway. Don't waste the food in the house. Bai Xinjie cried, I didn't. Zheng Hongxia pointed at the door of the room and snapped, You go sleep in the living room and don't get in the way of your brother's recovery here. Bai Yangxin looked at his sister triumphantly. Get rid of your sister. These foods are enough to last four to five days. Bai Xinjie's heart was ashen. Chapter 48, Bai Xinjie's Dowry. Bai Xinjie came to the living room in despair and cowered on the sofa, crying silently. It was disheartening to have her closest relatives so desperate, and she didn't know where she was supposed to go. She couldn't help but think of Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan has been looking for women in the group. If I defect to him, Bai Xinjie hurriedly shook her head, so ashamed that she felt as if she had become a bad woman. It's late at night. The entire Fortune Center neighborhood went dark. Only Tang Shuela was home candles were lit brightly. Jiang Fan, however, didn't stay at home, but sat in a room on the fifth floor carefully observing the mutated frogs with his perception. He had been sitting here for most of the day. This mutated frog, which catches food about every two hours, has a maximum attack distance of about 80 meters on its tongue? I just don't know if that's its maximum attack distance. If I take advantage of the fact that it's out hunting and set up a large amount of explosives in its nest, I should be able to blow it up. There are two problems with this plan though. 1. Where to get enough explosives. 2. The mutant frog doesn't leave the nest every time it hunts, most of the time it catches its prey with its tongue just by sitting in a swimming pool, so I'll need to wait for my chance. Anyway, the tadpole is getting bigger and bigger, and that's a big problem. I'll have to fix it soon. Find a way to get some explosives first. There shouldn't be any within Magic Sea City, unless we go outside and look for it. We just don't know where the nearest military camp is. Jiang Fan pondered, earthbound movement is too slow. I can open 10 teleports a day with a max of 5 kilometers each. I can only use 5 to catch up and the other 5 to return. So my maximum teleportation distance in a day is 25 kilometers. Are there any military camps within 25 kilometers? Jiang Fan waited for a while longer and realized that the mutant frog had gone hunting again. The time was very stable and it was still about 2 hours from the last hunt. After arriving at a pattern, Jiang Fan no longer waited here foolishly, but instead looked towards Bai Xinjie's direction suspiciously. The whole day passed and the woman stayed cowering on the couch crying, not eating or drinking. It's late at night and she hasn't gone back to bed in the master bedroom. Why? Trouble with the family? The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. This is a great opportunity for me. Voiding. Jiang Fan then dropped into the ground from the fifth floor and groundwalked towards Bai Xinjie's house. Master bedroom. Jiang Hongxia carefully licked the crumbs of instant noodles from the bowl and carefully put away the rest of the food. She counted them over and over again. The ham sausage has to be eaten first, then the instant noodles last and the chocolate can't be touched until it's absolutely necessary. Save it for emergencies. Cephalosporin seems to be very effective. Bai Yangxin regained some energy. 
barely able to sit up, and said impatiently Umam, it's just this food, don't nag me. Zheng Hongxia had a completely different face to her son, smiling, this isn't food, it's our lives. By Yangxin's eyes rolled, mom, I have another way to get some more food. Zheng Hongxia said curiously, son, talk. By Yangxin said, anyway, my sister is already with the wild man, so we can marry her off to each other. Since that wild man can take out so much material, he must have a lot more. We're marrying our daughter, so it's not too much to ask for a bride price, right? Let's ask for 10 packages of. No, we need to ask for a percentage. 50%. My sister is so beautiful. That wild man will definitely want it. Zhang Hongxia's eyes glowed. She had long wanted to marry off by Xinjie to get some dowry and then give her son a wife. As a result the end times came. Now her son's statement opened a line of thought for her. What about the end times? You have to get married and have kids in the last days, right? If you want a dowry before the end times, you can't not have it after the end times, can you? Zheng Hongxia asked after a moment of hesitation, but who is that man? How much food is there? We don't even know. Will we lose money? My daughter is just an outsider. My son and I have to live. Bai Yangxin wisely said a 9 times out of 10. It's Chen Yong. Now who else in our building has that much food besides him? Chen Yong. Zheng Hongxia revealed a scared look. Chen Yong is a small earthworks boss. The traditional sense of the typical capable social man. Soon after the arrival of the end times, he organized a group of people to protect Block A. Things in Block A are basically up to Chen Yong. After the power outage, Chen Yong organized everyone to move above the 22nd floor, which saved a lot of people. Of course, all those who defy his will were severely beaten. In this day and age, trauma basically equals death. In the process of moving, Chen Yong ruthlessly scavenged a wave of supplies, and while others were barely able to eat, he still had plenty of food. Chen Yong's men are said to eat three meals of instant noodles a day. Also, each henchman gets a separate bedroom and doesn't have to share a room with another family. Bai Yongxin licked his lips and said, Oh mom, don't be afraid. If my sister marries Chen Yong, you're his mother-in-law. He won't do anything to you. Right. Zheng Hongxia sniffed and was instantly energized. I'm Chen Yong's mother-in-law. How could he have punched me? Bai Yongxin continued, Oh mom, we're doing this for the good of my sister, who is now enjoying the blessings of following Chen Yong. At least she can have enough to eat, which is something that not many people can even ask for. Zheng Hongxia finally made up her mind, good, I'll go find Chen Yong. Bai Xinjie curled up in the sofa. The darkness of the night and the silence around her made her very afraid. The family of three living in the second bedroom. The man came out to go to the bathroom when he saw Bai Xinjie, and his eyes immediately glowed. In just one hour, he came out three times on purpose. Bai Xinjie was scared. Not long after, Zheng Hongxia came out with a flashlight. Bai Xinjie was pleasantly surprised and stood up thinking that her mother had come around and told her to go back to her room and sleep. As a result, Zheng Hongxia just gave her a cold look and hurried out the door. Bai Xinjie's smile froze and tears flowed down her face once again. After a while, a man's voice suddenly came from behind her, hungry? Bai Xinjie was startled. She turned her head and realized that Zheng Fan didn't know when he had come and was standing by the window looking at himself. Bai Xinjie was confused you. How did you get in here? Zheng Fan smiled without saying anything and took out a packet of cookies and stuffed it into her hand, to eat or not to eat? He was surprised to find that the light on Bai Xinjie's body was actually starting to glow green. Bai Xinjie firmly refused to know. I'm not the kind of woman you think I am. Wow. Zhang Fan tore open the cookie package, and the sweet scent hit his nose. Gollum. Bai Xinjie swallowed hard. Just then, the man next door walked out with his college-age son and looked wistfully at Bai Xinjie. Bai Xinjie was scared and couldn't help but hide behind Zhang Fan. It was then that the man saw Zhang Fan and was shocked, completely not expecting that there was actually an extra man in the room in the middle of the night. You, you. He couldn't help but get his hands dirty. Zhang Fan gave him a cold look. A blinding red light was emanating from the man and his son. Chapter 49 Kill All The young son immediately pulled out a dagger and spoke aggressively a bastard. What are you staring at me for? He was not afraid of Zhang Fan at all, relying on his large waist. Zhang Fan didn't know why these two were so hostile towards him. Doesn't matter though, don't need to know. He suddenly kicked out. The son flew backwards, crashing through the glass and falling down the stairs screaming. Fell from over 20 stories. Dead. The man stared in disbelief, he hadn't expected his son to die after just one curse at all of you. You. You're crazy. Bai Xinjie covered her mouth in horror. Zhang Fan reached out and grabbed the man's collar and said indifferently when it's time to move the dagger. Be prepared to suffer the consequences. The man struggled hard and growled, you let go of me. I'll kill you. Zhang Fan exerted a slight force, and the man's body took off into the air uncontrollably. Zhang Fan threw him down the window without saying anything, and the man let out a miserable scream, don't. Don't. Ah. 
A few seconds later, there was the sound of something heavy hitting the ground. Silence fell around them again. The man's wife heard her husband and son screaming and ran out in a panic, just in time to see Jiang Fan throw her husband down the stairs. Ah, I'll fight you. The woman screamed with her teeth and claws open and rushed towards Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan snapped and slapped the woman's face, directly turning her face 180 degrees and twisting her cervical vertebrae into a twist. Jiang Fan casually threw the woman down the stairs as well, and when he looked at Bai Xinjie again, she was already scared silly. Don't be afraid. Jiang Fan smiled and touched Bai Xinjie's head, a family has to be neat and tidy. Right. Bai Xinjie's teeth clucked and chattered, and she was on the verge of crying in fear you. 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 Jiang Fan pulled out another pack of bread and smiled, come with me, you'll be able to eat. Ha! Huh? Bai Xinjie looked at Jiang Fan blankly, completely unable to understand what the man in front of him was thinking. How can he talk to himself calmly after killing a few people? Vaguely, Bai Xinjie also felt that talents like Jiang Fan could live longer in the end times. She had seen a lot of killing in the last few days. But why is the world like this? Bai Xinjie is fuming. Bai Yangxin heard the commotion outside and moved out step by step. He instantly saw that Jiang Fan was touching Bai Xinjie's head, and instantly became furious. Who is this man? Could it be my sister's secret boyfriend? Bai Yangxin was in a hurry. He was just about to give Bai Xinjie to Chen Yong for food when he saw this scene. If Chen Yong found out, the food would be gone. Bai Yangxin gritted his teeth, you're really seeing a wild man. Bai Xinjie was anxious, I didn't. Jiang Fan he is. Just then, the door to the room was violently pushed open. A middle-aged man with a grim face walked in. He was followed by two burly men. And Zheng Hongxia smiled with the middle-aged man brother Yong. This is my girl. Look. Chen Yong stared at Bai Xinjie as soon as he entered. Completely ignoring Jiang Fan and Bai Yangxin. In fact, he had been thinking about this beautiful woman for a long time. But he had been too busy moving and gathering food to do it in the past few days. Now it is not easy to free down. Is thinking about when to go to get White Xinjie to the hand. Unexpectedly White Xinjie her old mother sent herself to the door. Chen Yong laughed sardonically nice. I'm very satisfied. Little girl. Come here and let me see it. Bai Xinjie hid behind her brother and shivered. I. I. I'm not going. What are you doing? Instead. Bai Yangxin pushed his sister out with a force. Quick. Sister. It's your good fortune to follow brother Yong. Go on. It was as if he saw a better life for himself. If Bai Xinjie really married Chen Yong, he himself would be Chen Yong's great uncle. Then don't want what's there. Much better than following that brat next to you. Chen Yong wants to make a move to grab someone. Zheng Hongxia hurriedly pulled Chen Yong's hand and smiled shyly brother Yong. Let's make a deal. I'll marry my daughter to you. And you'll give me instant noodles. Chen Yong said impatiently old five. Give her one pack of instant noodles and tell her to get lost. Old me will be the groom here today. Ha ha ha. Zheng Hongxia froze. We just agreed on a ten pack. Bai Xinjie was struck by lightning. Mom actually sold herself for 10 packs of instant noodles. Old Five said impatiently bastard bitch. Giving you one pack is already a bargain. 10 packs. Bai Yangxin said anxiously, Mom, didn't we agree on half? How come it's 10 packs now? Bai Xinjie's expression was dumbfounded as she slowly looked at her brother. You guys actually discussed this? Bai Xinjie's heart was ashen brother. I risked my life to find medicine for you and this is how you treat me. Bai Yangxin shook off Bai Xinjie's hand roll. You've sold it anyway. Whoever you sell it to isn't selling it. Bai Xinjie's heart sank. She looked at her mother and brother in front of her and had never felt so alien to either. 10 packs of instant noodles. It's worth 10 packs of instant noodles all by itself. Bai Xinjie felt like a joke. In the minds of his mother and brother, he was actually only worth 10 packets of instant noodles. Bai Yangxin moved to Chen Yong with difficulty and righteously said, Brother Yong, my sister is so pretty. 10 packs are too little. Snap. Chen Yong slapped Bai Yangxing to the ground and laughed harshly who the hell are you to negotiate with me? Chen Yong's men immediately stepped forward and punched and kicked Bai Yangxin. Bai Yangxin was still feverish and didn't have the strength to resist at all, so he could only scream miserably. Zheng Hongxia anxiously jumped on Bai Yangxin to protect her son, shouting with a sobbing voice, don't, don't, we don't want instant noodles, don't hit my son, Bai Xinjie is yours for nothing. The two henchmen looked at Chen Yong. Chen Yong copied the wooden stool and smashed it heavily on Zheng Hongxia's head. Growling how humiliating for me to stop when you say so. Beat them to death. The two henchmen immediately wielded their stools and slammed them a dozen times before the two men lost their voices and blood flowed all over the place. Bai Xinjie watched expressionlessly as her mother and brother didn't move, and actually felt a vague pleasure of revenge in her heart. Chen Yong looked at Bai Xinjie with a wooden stool and laughed sardonically with a face full of blood, get your ass over here. Bai Xinjie's hands shook slightly. Jiang Fan applauded a not bad. Tough enough. I like it. It was only then that Chen Yong noticed the mediocre man next to him. He said incredulously, boy, 
Are you talking to me? Chen Yan's two henchmen laughed maniacally. Ha ha ha, this kid is crazy. Hurry up and kneel down for Brother Yong, and Brother Yong can consider sparing your life. Jiang Fan's expression cooled down as he casually picked up a stool, I'm in a good mood today, so I'll give you a chance to kill yourself. Do it yourself. As if he had heard the most ridiculous thing under the sky, Chen Yong laughed wildly up in the air, ha 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 ha. Ah, a wooden stool leg was instantly broken off by Jiang Fan, and was inserted into Chen Yong's mouth like lightning. Click. He had a mouth full of teeth to squeeze. Chen Yong was too late to scream miserably. Jiang Fan exerted himself once again. The legs of the wooden stool crushed Chen Yong's head and smashed it heavily on the ground. Bang. Then it penetrated the back of his head and pinned him to the ground. The smiles of Chen Yong's two henchmen froze. Jiang Fan, however, did not give them time to react. A punch to the face. A kick in the pants. The two flew backwards and crashed into the wall, spitting out blood and dying. In the blink of an eye, the room was littered with dead bodies, leaving only Jiang Fan and Bai Xinjie alive. Bai Xinjie's mind went blank. After she gave Jiang Fan a wooden look, her eyes rolled over and she fainted. Chapter 50 Chaotic Killing The First 9 Star Ability Jiang Fan shouldered Bai Xinjie, and with a stroke of his finger in the air, a blue portal appeared. Jiang Fan stepped into the subspace and then set the target point of the portal over the top floor of Block C. As long as precise positioning is not required, the door opens pretty quickly. The door opens 7 or 8 meters above the roof. Jiang Fan changed by Xinjie into a princess carry and leapt out of the air, landing heavily on the ground. By Xinjie was awakened upside down. She looked around blankly, where am I? Jiang Fan smiled faintly, go to my house. By Xinjie instantly remembered what had just happened. In a short period of time, his mother and brother died and he had no one close to him in the world. Her whole being sank again. Jiang Fan looked on with cold eyes and could understand her feelings, but would not open his mouth to comfort her. She regulates her own mood if she can, or dies if she can't. It's post-apocalyptic. What day doesn't a bunch of people die? People with poor mental capacity don't live very long at all. Shortly after Jiang Fan left, the man neighboring by Xinjie's house gently opened the door and poked his head out. The woman's anxious voice came from the room Wolchen. Don't go over there. It sounds scary. The man called Olchen said softly, everyone seems to be gone. I'll see if I can find some food. The woman was so scared she was on the verge of tears, Olchen. Just now screamed so badly. I'm afraid. Can't we stay at home? Old Chen blared, you're almost out of food. And you're still staying home? Waiting to die. Even if the two of us can stand it. Can the children? The woman didn't say a word. Pleading, be careful. Always be careful. No no no. Old Chen waved his hand impatiently. He watched carefully for a moment. There was no sound from the White House. And the door was wide open. With no light at all. And the smell of blood wafting out. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Old Chen gritted his teeth, you wait for me at home. He warily exited the door with a flashlight and a kitchen knife, tiptoed to the door of the White House, and poked his head inside. All you could see were all the bedroom doors wide open, and several bodies lying on the floor, bleeding all over the place. In a short time, there were several flies circling the body. One of the corpses in particular was actually nailed to the ground with a stick in its mouth. The corpse's face was grim, its eyes glaring round, and it was clear that it had died with great reluctance. Old Chen shivered for a moment, and when he took a closer look, it was Chen Yong. It's Chen Yong. Chen Yong has been killed. He was pleasantly surprised that this asshole had forced people to live in each house on the basis of the number of his men, and his family had been assigned a few old people. An old man is sick, and does not sleep at night humming, making Old Chen very annoyed. It's okay now. Chen Yong is dead. Good death. Old Chen braced himself and kicked the corpse hard, and immediately felt a sense of relief. After he vented his anger. He stopped delaying and scrounged for food. Not long after, he found the food that Bai Xinjie had brought back, and his eyes glistened, instant noodles, ham sausage, and chocolate. Lao Chen was overjoyed. He didn't notice a man silently appearing in the dark shadows behind him. The man slowly raised the stick and smashed it hard on the back of Lao Chen's head. Bang! Old Chen fell to the ground without saying a word, and blood flowed all over the ground. The man laughed grimly and snatched Old Chen's bag into his arms, not daring to stay and turn his head to run. He hadn't been gone for more than a few minutes when several more waves of people arrived at the White House. When the crowd saw Chen Yong's corpse, they were all overjoyed, and then they raided the White family's supplies with impunity. Soon there was a fight over the unequal division of the spoils. Block A3301. For men covered in tattoos or gathered around drinking, there was no food for drinks. Just a couple packets of instant noodles, crushed up and barely scraping by, tossed with instant noodle seasoning. It was quite tasty. The four ate for a while. One of the men with a mouth full of gold teeth said suspiciously, why isn't Yong back yet? The other bald man said carelessly, what else? Shit, that little white girl. 
Damn, old five and old wolf can surely follow with a mouthful of soup. And that old bitch called Zheng Hongxia isn't bad either. Fine skin and tender flesh. Day, you have strong tastes. Every time this kind of good thing happens, brother Yong takes old five and old wolf with him. Mud, when will it be my turn? The four were jealous enough to curse a bit. That said, no one is too upset. They were the ones who followed Chen Yong around in times of peace, and had long since gotten used to following Chen Yong's orders. To be honest, Chen Yong was also very nice to his brothers, and didn't treat them badly as long as there was food and drink. Except not being very willing to share women makes them a little mildly irritating. Now there were two other beautiful women in Chen Yong's room, both of whom were the most outstanding women in Block A. Usually they are not even allowed to look at them more than once. However, they are just whining. It's only natural. What man wants to share his woman with another man? Just then, a scream came. The four were alert and immediately drew their side weapons and looked left and right. It seems to be coming from downstairs. Mud. It's not like Young is being undermined, is it? Impossible. How dare this group of quails in Block A beat up Young? It doesn't sound like Young's voice, or old fives or old wolves. Damn. What's all this bullshit? Just go downstairs and see for yourself. Right. It's a good time to go down and move around. Brother Young won't let us do this or that. And now there are people looking for trouble in the middle of the night. So we'll have no problem keeping order. Right? Ha ha. It's the middle of the night. I'll make that bastard look good. The four men laughed and carried their weapons down the stairs. They searched all the way up to the 29th floor when they smelled a strong odor of blood downstairs. One could also hear people cursing and screaming at the top of their lungs. With their hearts sinking, the four rushed downstairs and were stunned by what they saw when they reached the 25th floor. A group of survivors are laying down their lives to fight. The whole building was a mess. With so many people fighting in a group, the four didn't dare to rush in. Goldtooth yelled in panic, where's Yong? Brother Yong. Brother Yong. A normally honest looking man with glasses smashed a man to death before he looked up and laughed maniacally with a bloodied face, Sir Chen is dead. Ha ha. Bang. The man with the glasses had his throat slashed by another man. As soon as the bald man and the two men heard that Chen Yong was dead, they became anxious and forcibly split through the crowd, rushing towards the White House. Instead, Goldtooth's eyes rolled. It's such a mess now. Chen Yong is probably really dead. All the supplies they had gathered earlier were at Chen Yong's house. Once Chen Yong is dead, who will get the stuff? Oh yeah, and those two women. Goldtooth felt his fire turn over at the thought of the woman's figure and twisted his head to walk quickly up the stairs. It's all the old man's now. The bald man's three men rushed into the White House with great difficulty, and to their eyes was Chen Yong's corpse. The body had been so vandalized that the face was barely visible, but the clothes on the body and the watch on the hand proved the identity. Old Five and Old Wolf also died on the side. The entire White House was littered with corpses. Crap. It's over. Yong is really dead. Ha. Huh? Where's that kid Goldtooth? Why hasn't he come over? Locked outside? I was the last. And he just didn't seem to follow. The bald man three were not good people. And instantly reacted to the fact that Golden Tooth had presumably gone to rob Chen Yong's house of supplies. Damn. I knew that kid wasn't a good guy. Hurry upstairs. Hurry back. The three of them cursed on their mouths. But in their hearts. They each had their own agenda. They came to the door of Chen Yong's house and found that Golden Tooth had indeed unlocked the door of his room. Not saying a word and not opening the door to anyone. The three of them couldn't bear it at once. Kill Goldtooth. That kid is the most insidious. I've long looked at him with disdain. Mud. The food inside the house belongs to the brothers. And he dares to monopolize it. How do I get in? Climb from the roof. 33 floors should be able to climb in from the roof. The windows of Yong's house don't have bars. When Chen Yong was there, he could still barely maintain order. Once Chen Yong died, the entire block A went completely out of control. As the four of them fought, the others also set their eyes on the supplies that Chen Yong had collected, and the killing spread quickly. All night long, the screams from Block A were unrelenting. Survivors from the other two buildings in the Fortune Center neighborhood are cowering in corners, wondering what the hell is going on. Jiang Fan, however, was able to monitor some of the floors of Block A through his senses. The killing unfolds scene by scene. Jiang Fan, however, just looked on indifferently, eating one or two enlightenment fruits as a snack from time to time. He doesn't pick any fruits. He just takes whatever he can and eats whatever he can. White Eyes ate and drank his fill. Lying on all fours and huffing and puffing. Taking up a large portion of the ground. The women sat around Jiang Fan in fear. Not daring to rest at all. Brother Jiang. What's going on? Jiang Fan said blandly when I killed the boss of Block A. The whole building went out of control. And now they're robbing food. Women. And houses. Gee. It's wonderful. Just then. Jiang Fan heard a prompt frowny face ding. Subspace shuttle upgraded to 9 stars, full level. Can't be upgraded further. 
The teleportation skill was actually upgraded. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. Chapter 51, Nine Star Teleportation. Chapter Zilin's Mission. Jiang Fan immediately opened the panel to check Frowny Face subspace shuttling, nine stars, full level. Can't be raised any higher, Yuan can open a subspace channel to travel to any location within 51, 000 meters. Up to 12 times per day, you can create subspace anchor points with no range limit. Up to 3 times per day. And maintain up to 3 anchor points at once, you can set your landing point on a spatial anchor point regardless of the distance, and you can attach a subspace anchor point to any object. Crap. God skill. Subspace anchors no longer have a range limit, and it is possible to teleport directly to a subspace anchor point regardless of distance. In other words, one gains an ability to return to the city from an unlimited distance. It's a godsend for long distance travel, plus the ability to put an anchor point on any object. Would that work on a moving object? Where are the animals? Jiang Fan shouted, White Eyes. White Eyes jumped up with a jolt and cocked his head to look at Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan's mind moved and a subspace anchor point was placed on the dog's head. From the outside, nothing looks out of the ordinary. Subspace anchors are invisible to those without subspace capabilities. Only Tian Tian looked at Jiang Fan in shock you can put an anchor point on an animal? Jiang Fan didn't explain and took out a brand new box of canned dog food from his carry-on space. White eyes instantly sobered up. Big eyes staring straight into the can. Harumphing. Jiang Fan casually threw his hand, and white eyes rushed over in a whirlwind, taking a bite in mid-air. Click. He easily chewed through the shell of the can and happily ate it. Jiang Fan could feel that the subspace anchor point was firmly fixed on the dog's head. Jiang Fan scratched another blue film and looked into subspace, and he could clearly see the subspace anchor point above White Eye's head. Sure enough, Jiang Fanxin smiled with satisfaction. Bloody night passed. The sun rises. The Fortune Center neighborhood has once again regained its apparent serenity. I just don't know how many lives were lost. Jiang Fan didn't care about this in the slightest. By Xinjie rested for the night, barely recovering from the shock of her loved one's death. Jiang Fan didn't have the time to care about the woman's mood at all, but went downstairs to continue observing the mutated frogs and practicing his gun in the meantime. As usual, Jiang Fan came to a room on the fifth floor, which happened to overlook the swimming pool. The mutant frogs are still sleeping in the pool. Jiang Fan wasn't in a hurry either. He took out a handful of high-grade sofas and placed them in the room, and took out another basin and took out a bunch of enlightenment fruits and ate them. After waiting for more than half an hour, the mutant frog moved to jump out of the pool and leave about to hunt for prey. Jiang Fan's perception penetrated through the layers of red mist and saw everything clearly. He immediately stood up, walked over to the windowsill, and opened a window. Jiang Fan took out a police rifle from his carry-on space and aimed it in the direction of the swimming pool. The red mist obscured the view and it was impossible to see. However, perception can completely replace vision. Through his senses, he gave his full attention to a fast-swimming tadpole. That previous feeling of time slowing down reappeared. Jiang Fan didn't understand, could it be an extra effect of the physique enhancement? He didn't think much of it. Once you've taken aim, gently press the trigger. Bang! Missed! Jiang Fan was in no hurry and continued to shoot. Anyway, there was another purpose for this time, which was gun practice. Bang! Bang! After a few shots, Jiang Fan found the feeling of using a gun. It was an indescribable special feeling, and Jiang Fan inexplicably felt that the next shot would hit. He held his breath and pressed the trigger steadily. Bang! The tadpole was broken into pieces. Ha ha ha, old me is a sharpshooter. Jiang Fan casually bragged to himself and continued to observe the pool. The companion is dead. The other tadpoles were still swimming as if nothing had happened, with no sign of fear at all. Like the mutant frog, a little low on IQ. Jiang Fan paid attention to the range of his senses while preventing the mutant frog from suddenly returning. A new tadpole was targeted again while doing so. Bang! Bang! Soon the pool's tadpoles were dead by the dozens. Since hitting the first shot, Jiang Fan had never emptied his gun. Jiang Fan was really surprised now, am I really a marksman? This was the first time Jiang Fan had fired a gun in his life, and it was really out of his expectation to achieve such a good result. Jiang Fan was so excited that he stroked the rifle and was about to try it again. At that moment, the mutant frog jumped back into his sensory range. Jiang Fan immediately gently closed the window and ambled down. The mutant frog returned to the pool to see that the tadpoles were actually dead and became furious. Quack quack quack. The mutant frog's voice was extremely harsh. Jiang Fan wanted to cover his ears even from that far away. Damn. This thing is definitely cursing. And cursing hard. After a few minutes, the mutant frog quieted down and went back to sleep in the pool again. Seems to have forgotten all about his son's murder. Jiang Fan was finally sure mutant frogs do have a low IQ and a pitifully short memory. Flathead Road Police Station. Jiang Zilin walked to the survivor's room heavily armed and with a grave expression. 
followed by Lu Gangfeng and Yang Zhou who were also heavily armed. The survivors all looked to the three. Some of the men had already prepared their bags, their faces clouded over. Others are still sitting on the ground. Zhang Zilin said aloud last night. The police radio channel was briefly restored for a moment. I received orders from my superiors, who ordered me to lead the survivors to the TV station aid point. Those who are willing to go with me, leave now. There are about five. Zero 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 survivors at the TV station rescue point. There are enough manpower and material resources to safeguard everyone's lives. If you don't want to go, I won't force you. You can stay in the police station, authorized by the superiors. The survivors can use all the supplies of the police station without any legal responsibility. Lu Gangfeng rolled his eyes helplessly. Yan Jiawei looked left and right in fear and seemed to be hesitant to leave. He knows all too well the horrors out there. How nice it is to stay in the police station and have to carry out some bullshit order. But if Zhang Zilin left, he didn't have the confidence to survive in the police station. Without Zhang Zilin's force, these survivors are just cattle and sheep to be slaughtered. An old man suddenly said angrily Officer Zhang, what are we going to do if you leave? Zhang Zilin was silent for a moment, I'm sorry, but I have received an order and must carry it out. You may survive on your own. The other man said excitedly, survive on your own? What a nice thing to say. How do we survive on our own? You're a shifter. You have powers. How are we going to survive on our own? Right. You're deliberately giving up the lives of the masses. This is how you protect us after all the taxes we pay? Officer Zhang, don't go. Please, don't go. If I die, it's all your fault. I won't let you go even as a ghost. With that said, the crowd got emotional. Everyone is not stupid. Out of the three aliens, only Zhang Zilin was the most reliable. Many of the survivors were saved by Zhang Zilin, and if she had gone, it would have been difficult for everyone to survive. Zhang Zilin looked at the crowd with twisted faces, her fists clenched silently white, and for the first time she began to wonder if she was right to save these people or not. It was a long time before she exhaled slowly and firmly, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. It's my job to carry out orders. Gentlemen, see you around. She turned away dryly when she finished. The disappointed crowd was beyond despair. Damn it. You're killing people. You're killing people. Please, can you stay another day? Who's going to find food for my children when you're gone? Trolling, crying, begging. No matter what the means, it can't stop Zilin Zhang. Soon, Zhang Zilin came downstairs. She looked behind her and finally sighed in relief. Luckily, Yang Jiawei and Lu Gangfeng both followed. On top of that, there were more than 30 survivors standing in shadow in the red mist, people who were willing to go with Zhang Zilin to the TV rescue point. Everyone is fantasizing about life at the TV relief point, a gathering point for over 5, 000 people, at least there's water and food, right? It's better than starving to death here. Zhang Zilin said dryly a total of 15 kilometers, 5 kilometers today, expected to arrive in 3 days. I'll open the way. Lu Gangfeng breaks the back. Yang Jiawei is in the center. Keep alert. Alert immediately if there's any situation. Visible distance in the red fog is only 5 meters. Everyone follow one by one. Never keep up. Let's go. Zhang Zilin drew out a fire axe, took one last look at the police station, and then led the way righteously into the sunless dense forest. Chapter 52. In the hallway, Zhang Fan stood in front of a group of survivors. They were in a deteriorating state of health after days of languishing in the building. In the first few days there were quite a few people who were willing to go down and cut the grass, and Zhang Fan did not go back on his word, giving food and water to those who succeeded. However, after many people find it hard to reach the 100 pounds a day goal, most are reluctant to go. Today, only one tall, strong man reached the 100 pound mark. Zhang Fan took out a packet of instant noodles, a ham sausage and a bottle of pure water and said indifferently Lold Meng, you're the only one who met the requirements today. Here, this is your reward for today. The tall, strong man, Lao Meng, happily accepted the food thanks. Thank you brother Jiang. He held the pure water tightly in his arms, unable to drink it even though his mouth was dry. Now, even more in short supply than food is clean water. When the water and gas went out, it was impossible to boil water and many people were cut off. Some drank their own urine, while more chose to squeeze water from the emerging purple mushrooms. I don't know who discovered that this purple mushroom is actually rich in water. But it's not clean, some mushroom juices can cause hallucinations or even death when drunk. Others don't. No one can tell which mushrooms are safe. Frequent trips downstairs to squeeze mushrooms have led to many injuries as a result. Some are scratched by sharp blades. Some were bitten by mosquitoes. Some are even more outrageous. A pile of bird droppings landing on the skin and a red, swollen and inflamed area. There are a ridiculous number of injuries of all kinds. 
Li Qingchuan was busy with a small medicine box as he made his way through the crowd. He was barely keeping people alive by utilizing some of the plants and herbs downstairs and the high-level white wine provided by Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan watched quietly. The purpose of him providing the white wine was to test the medicine on these people to prepare himself for any injuries that might occur. Any treatment that Li Qingchuan tested to be effective, such as pine needles, he had someone go downstairs to collect them, and he himself then exchanged them for food. Using this method, Jiang Fan had already accumulated several hundred pounds of new herbs. There are just three main ones at the moment. One type is mutant pine needles, which can treat traumatic injuries, a type of alurone that mutates into a black color that reduces fever. The last emerging grass is also the most amazing. This grass blooms, the flowers are all red, about the size of a baby's fist, and grows a little like the old moonshine, but the rhizomes have no thorns. Ching Chuan Li named it moonwort. The flowers seem to be useless. The grass stems have a very kind of magical medicinal effect, whether it's fever, cold, diarrhea, trauma, anti-inflammatory, or poisoning. The stems of the moonwort have been known to be medicinal for some people, but completely ineffective for others. As for the reason, Ching Chuan Li couldn't say. He didn't really care. Many remedies in Chinese medicine vary from person to person. He'd seen it all before. Compared to the disheveled despair of the other survivors, Li Ching Chuan was very excited. The evolution of everything has brought forth an endless stream of new herbs that have given him, as it were, a new meaning in life. Jiang Fan provided him with enough living conditions and so many patients for him to test. He was very satisfied with his current life and was more loyal to Jiang Fan. Li Qingchuan examined all the patients before he said to Jiang Fan, There are not many moongrasses. They only collected 30 today and I gave them 3 bottles of pure water. Jiang Fan received the moongrass with satisfaction. Good job. I'll refill your purified water. Jiang Fan put the 30 moongrasses into his backpack. Actually into his carry-on space. He knew that someone would surely try to bootleg the moonwort. It doesn't matter though. Herbs have a short shelf life after being picked. It will rot in half a day at the most. After taking a loss once, they won't do this kind of laborious thing again. Except for Jiang Fan, no one could preserve fresh herbs for a long time. After Jiang Fan left with Li Qingchuan, the survivors eased up a bit. Old Mang walked to the corner of the stairs and happily shared his hall with his wife and children. In this day and age, a family of three is extremely lucky to be alive. They happily split the perishable ham sausage and left the instant noodles, which were Lao Meng's breakfast for tomorrow morning. Most of them will be given to Lao Meng to eat. Only then did old Meng have the strength to go downstairs to cut the grass and earn more food. Pure water was even more precious, carefully placed by his wife in the safest place. Under the children's pillows, the child was in was placed by the couple at the far end against the wall. Nightfall, the survivors all went to sleep, only the injured still whimpering in pain. No one knows if they'll make it through the night, and no one cares. In the darkness, the three men, too hungry to sleep, looked jealously at the location of old Meng's family of three. They were hungry. Their mouths were dry, and their eyes were green. Damn it! What gives surname Meng the right to have something to eat? Ma da! That kid Jiang Fan is forcing us to go downstairs to cut the grass just because there's food. He doesn't care about our lives at all. Isn't Jiang Fan just a bullshit convenience store clerk? I used to earn more in a day than he did in a month. Now it's shaking instead. Damn it! There's obviously so much food in his house, but he won't give us any. This is no way to live. Let's rob Jiang Fan. Should keep your voice down. Easy for you to fucking say, can you beat him? He can crush Zhou Tianhao's neck with one hand. He must have supernatural powers too. The few of us who go up there are just giving away food. Humph. Even the most powerful has to sleep. Let's take advantage of the sleeping time to sneak attack. Jiang Fan is dead. Right. Surname Jiang has robbed so many beautiful women. He must be having a good time night after night. And he definitely sleeps a lot at night. Jiang Fan won't let us go above the 28th floor. Who knows where his house is? How can we get in? Hey, I know where that kid lives. He said it once before when he made a delivery. In 3202, the crowd's eyes lit up. So how do I get in? Flip from the roof to the 33rd floor and climb to the 32nd floor. I have climbing ropes at home. Then we have to climb to the roof. Jiang Fan won't let us go above the 28th floor. If he finds out, we'll be in deep shit. Cut. In the middle of the night, Mr. Jiang is not holding a fragrant woman to sleep, but is monitoring the stairs there? You're sick. It's too dangerous to crawl outside in this dark. Danger is nothing. We're going to starve to death if we keep this up. We're going to die anyway. So we might as well put up a fight. Or at least die with a full stomach. This. That Tang Shuelua bitch is handsome. Don't you want it? The man's eyes glowed red and he drew in a heavy breath. Dry. Fuck it. We're going to kill Jiang Fan anyway. So why don't we rob surname Meng first? I just watched carefully. He still has a bottle of pure water and a packet of instant noodles left. Yes. 
After discussing for a while, the three of them walked slowly in the dark next to Lao Meng's family of three. The sleeping old Meng inexplicably felt something. His heart beat wildly, and his eyes suddenly opened. Surprisingly, there were three black shadows standing in front of him. The black shadow actually held the snowy boning knife in his hand. Old Meng was just about to exclaim in shock when a large hand pressed down on his mouth. Pust, pust. Seconds later, three members of Lao Meng's family collapsed in a pool of blood. The few families closest to Old Meng saw the scene and didn't dare to make a sound at all. So terrified that they pretended to be asleep and didn't dare to raise their heads, their bodies trembling. The three grabbed Old Meng's instant noodles and water and ran into the stairway and disappeared. Zhang Fan sat on the sofa and stroked the black cat, looking faintly in the direction of the stairs. In his perception, the three figures were red and black. Once they had killed, they quickly grabbed instant noodles and water, and then climbed towards the upper floors without a moment to spare. Even though they thought they were very light on their feet, they didn't realize that everything was exposed to Jung Fan's vision. Jung Fan laughed lightly and placed the black cat on the sofa, what a death wish. The black cat meowed unhappily and left with its tail cocked. Chapter 53 Come, help me test a program. Jung Zilin is here. Jung Fan didn't act. He just stared at the trio and took out a few enlightenment fruits and ate them. Just as well. Let these three idiots test the security for themselves. See where the enemy will choose to break through. You can also target your own defense. When the three of them whimpered and climbed to the 30th floor, they all blacked out a bit and suffered from mild hypoglycemia. The food in the past few days had been really bad, making their bodies very weak, and they couldn't carry themselves if they moved a little. Phew, phew, I'm exhausted. It's too dangerous to go over the building with our physical strength, so let's forget about it. One of the tall, thin men sneered, forget it? Old Meng has already been killed by us. Do you think Jiang Fan will come after us tomorrow? We must have been seen by some people just now. The other two's hearts sank. The tall, thin man said grimly to brothers, there's no turning back now. We can only go one way. If we kill Jiang Fan, we will have food, drink and women. If we don't kill him, we all have to die. The two men's faces were unsightly, and there was no more chance of getting away with it. The trio gritted their teeth and climbed to the 33rd floor. They looked up at the stairs. The tall, thin man puffed up on his knees like guys, step it up. One more floor and it's the roof. Let's rest on the roof for half an hour before we move. Go, go up there and get laid. Finally, the three of them climbed up to the roof, panting, poof. All three of them sat down on the ground in exhaustion. When the tall, thin man took a breath, he looked up into the sky. It's a cloudy day, no moon, and you can barely reach out. The tall, thin man's heart rejoiced. What a good time to kill and set fire to. All three laughed knowingly. After resting for 10 minutes or so, the trio stood up. They circled the fence and found the balcony of room 3302 directly above them. The tall, thin man tied specialized knots in the rope, one at regular intervals, which were the stress points for the climb. The other man said in surprise, dude, what did you used to do? Looks professional. The tall, thin man said smugly I'm an installer of high voltage electricity. I climb high and low every day. I'm familiar with ropes. Brothers, follow me and I'll definitely get you safely to the 32nd floor. The two men burst out laughing. With professionals, the chances of success are much higher. The tall, thin man finished tying the knot, tied the climbing rope to the guardrail, and then gently lowered it, inch by inch. He braced himself to climb the parapet wall and stuck his head out to look down. It's dark down there and you can't see anything. There was hardly any light after the blackout in the magic sea. The rope swayed slightly as the night wind blew. Even the tall and thin man looked at his heart. Not to mention two others with no experience working at heights. They were even more chilled inside or crap. This is fucking scary. Why don't we just forget about it? Mud. Waste. The tall and thin man cursed in his heart. But his mouth comforted him. Guys. Don't worry. I'll make an improvised safety rope. Absolutely no danger. Suddenly. A voice rang out in the darkness. I know. Just climb. Who? The three of them were startled and were busy looking into the darkness. Jiang Fan turned his flashlight onto camping mode and leisurely walked over. Jiang Fan. When the three saw the appearance of the visitor. It was like a bucket of ice water poured over their heads, and they froze on the spot. One of them was even wet in the crotch and smelled of slut. Jiang Fan placed his flashlight by the fence, stretched his head to look down and smiled a G. You guys are creative. Climbing the stairs in the middle of the night. The tall, thin man shuddered at Jiang. Brother Jiang. This is a misunderstanding. Listen to my explanation. Jiang Fan sighed, we're all adults here. Are you looking down on my intelligence by saying things like that? The tall, Thin man plopped to his knees, slapped himself hard, and wailed, Brother Jiang, it's me who's obsessed. You spare me this time. He knelt and walked towards Jiang Fan. 
but his hand crept in the darkness to the boning knife at his back waist. Bang! A bullet hole appeared in the tall, thin man's forehead, and the back of his head was lifted right off the ground. Red and white spilled and splattered out, spraying the two men behind them. The tall, thin man lolled limply. Only then did Zhang Fan put down his pistol with ease. The two remaining men were stunned. Zhang Fan actually has a gun. They instantly lost the courage to resist. If they knew that Zhang Fan had a gun, they would have preferred to starve to death rather than come. Before, when they knew that Zhang Fan was a psychic, they weren't that scared. Even if the guns were actually far less of a threat than Zhang Fan himself. But the modern fear of guns is etched into the marrow of our bones. Zhang Fan carried his pistol and walked up to the two men and go on. Climb down. Test a program for me. I want to see if I can really climb down. The two men waved their hands frantically. No. We wouldn't dare. We really don't dare. Brother Jiang. Spare me. Bang. One of them was shot and killed. Zhang Fan looked at the last person and said in a single word, I said, climb down. The man's mind went blank and he scrambled up the fence on his hands and knees. As soon as he looked underneath, he became dizzy and his hands and feet trembled. He cried and pleaded to Brother Jiang. I really can't climb. I really can't. Bang. A shot hit the man's feet. Sending stone chips flying. Took the man by surprise. Zhang Fan raised his gun at him expressionlessly. Desperate. The man could only grit his teeth and climb down the rope. Zhang Fan calmly lay down by the fence and watched the man climb downward a little. I don't know whether it was luck or desperation. The man actually did climb to the middle of the 32nd and 33rd floors. And then the rope shook violently. And he howled with a death grip on the rope. Never daring to move again. Zhang Fan skimmed his mouth. That's quite a climb down. He took out a dagger and began to cut the rope. There. 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 The man watched Zhang Fan's movements in horror and oh. No. Don't cut. Don't cut. Jab. The rope broke. The man screamed and fell. A few seconds later there was the sound of something heavy hitting the ground. Zhang Fan snorted coldly. A short while later, he returned to the room and pulled white eyes by the ear. From now on, you're going to sleep on the roof. Just watch from there and don't let anyone else go up there. A seven-day hotel outside the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Fourth floor. Zhang Zilin sat wearily in a corner. Survivors lay strewn all around them, too tired to move after a grueling day's trek. Of the 35 survivors who set out, only 22 remain. The other 13 either walked and lost their strength to keep up with the group and disappeared in the red mist, either killed by animals and plants along the way. What was more troublesome was that the alien Lu Gangfeng's clothes were stained with blood and he was already unconscious. He was sneak attacked by a huge praying mantis, and one of his arms was chopped off on the spot, and his chest became seriously injured. If Zhang Zilin hadn't sacrificed his life to save him, he would have died on the spot. Even so, looking at Lu Gongfeng's current state, nine times out of ten, he wouldn't be able to make it through the night. The other alien, Yang Jiawei, was extremely lucky and didn't suffer any injuries, lying on the ground asleep. Zhang Zilin looked grave. It's almost impossible to get to the TV relief point that way. She looked at Lu Gangfeng who was inhaling hard and blamed herself very much in her heart. If it wasn't for his own decisions, he'd be about alive and well. And the 13 survivors who died because of me. If only there were weapons, not so many people would have died. Just then, there was a slight sound in the distance. Bang. Zhang Zilin immediately sat up. Her eyes glowing and this is. The sound of gunfire? Is there another police check nearby? Ordinary people in the Dragon Kingdom don't have guns. And the ones who can carry them are police investigators. Or military personnel. Or that guy who steals guns. Zhang Zilin stared out into the darkness as if trying to see through the identity of the shooter. Yang Jiawei also woke up and said with sleepy eyes leader. I think I heard gunshots? Just then, another shot rang out. Yang Jiawei stood up with a jolt, what a gunshot. Zhang Zilin asked calmly, can you hear the exact location? Yang Jiawei carefully identified it, then pointed in a direction over there, about 500 to 550 meters. The shot was fired from a high position for the sound to travel that far. Zhang Zilin took out her cell phone and turned it on in a meaty manner. The power was getting low now, using it less and less. She opened the offline map and checked it out. That direction, 500 meters. Fortune Center neighborhood? Zhang Zilin frowned in the direction of the Fortune Center. If the other person is a fellow police investigator, they can be companions and look out for each other. If the other guy is the gun thief, HM, Zhang Zilin's beautiful eyes blazed. That depends on his attitude. If one is willing to plead guilty and surrender the gun, one may also consider absorbing the other person as part of the team. A shifter who can drill the ground is still of great use. If it's a diehard who won't admit guilt or surrender his gun, then, I'll have enough guns and ammo. Zhang Ziling calmly turned off her cell phone and ordered let's rest here and make our first stop at the fortune center tomorrow. Chapter 54, The Creepy Hospital Early Morning. 
Gunshots echo through the Fortune Center neighborhood. Bang! 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 Suddenly, Zhang Fan stopped his hand and received the rifle into space. The mutant frogs are back. The mutant frog returned to the pool to take a look and swelled up with anger. Quack! 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 In just 10 minutes, the remaining tadpoles were almost dead. No matter how stupid it is, it about understands that the with thundering sound just now has something to do with the death of the tadpole. Unfortunately, it couldn't find where the enemy was. All you can do is rage impotently in the pool and take out your anger with a croak. The corners of Jung Fan's mouth rose slightly morning practice is over. Come home for dinner. Back home. A couple of women had prepared a hearty breakfast. Brother Jiang, try the toast I just made. Brother Jiang, I made egg custard. You said it was your favorite. Jiang, Jiang, Jiang Fan enjoyed a perfect breakfast. Well, go have fun and don't forget to charge my spare cell phone on the balcony while I'm out. With 9 star teleportation, his range of movement increased tremendously. Jiang Fan intended to go and gather supplies once more to prepare for a brutal future. Arms, drugs, medical equipment, diesel generators, various mechanical tools. He lacks everything. Anyway, the carry-on space is unlimited and can hold as much as you can. The women were worried when they heard this. It was all thanks to Jiang Fan that they could live so comfortably. If something happened to Jiang Fan, their fate was bound to be the same as the other survivors. No, not even close to the average survivor, because they're beautiful women. Beautiful weakness is the original sin in the end times. Tang Shuelua whispered brother Jiang, be careful. The other few women also looked at Jiang Fan worriedly. Aha! Jiang Fan casually scratched out a huge blue film and walked in. Several women watched Jiang Fan leave and unconsciously split into three groups, whispering in low voices. Tang Shuelua took out a portable solar charging pad in Jiang Fan's spare cell phone and went up to the rooftop. White Eyes looked up lazily at the sound of footsteps. Once he saw that it was Tang Shuelua, he was paralyzed again. Tang Shuelua's heart stabilized a lot as she looked at White Eyes' strong body, without White Eyes watching over her. She wouldn't dare to go out alone at all. The sun is nice today. Tang Shuelua plugged the solar panel into her cell phone and charged it up. Zhang Fan discerned in subspace and quickly found the location of the third people's hospital of the magic sea. In an instant, a blue portal appeared on the ground floor of the inpatient department of the third people's hospital of the magic sea. Voiding, Zhang Fan walked out of the portal. Within the 100 meter range of perception, there was actually not a single silhouette of the third people's hospital of the magic sea. Jiang Fan frowned and was secretly on guard. He stood on the ground and scrutinized it with his senses, and still didn't see anything out of the ordinary. The parking lot was full of cars, now all covered with vines. In the halls of the inpatient department, piles of beds and medical equipment were built up to a height of two or three meters, as if they were blocking something from entering. Now it is unguarded and all overgrown with vines. Between the vines, countless broken bones were scattered. I also don't know if it's human or animal. The vines even grew to the second floor. It's much more normal above the third floor. There are obvious signs of survivors living there. Toasted black walls, disorganized bunks, a floor of cigarette butts and food wrappers. There was blood everywhere, and all sorts of miscellaneous items had been thrown about. So it was clear that there had been some sort of catastrophe and that the survivors had all run out. Strange. Jiang Fan wondered why they had all left. What the hell did they see? Jiang Fan suddenly reacted. Nope. There are anomalies. On the twelfth floor of the inpatient unit. Not only were there no living people, but surprisingly, there wasn't even a single living thing. Jiang Fan felt creeped out. Everywhere else, it's now all about insects, ants, cockroaches, cats and dogs, and there's nothing here. In Jiang Fan's perception, the entire hospitalization department was deathly quiet. Only plants, not a single animal. Nope, there's definitely something weird going on here. Without saying a word, Jiang Fan opened the portal and left. He didn't have a single probing thought. In times like these, curiosity is the greatest danger. The third people's hospital was still quiet, with only the rustle of the wind blowing the leaves. Jiang Fan entered subspace before he breathed a sigh of relief as he found the nearest small private hospital and teleported there again. This hospital is much more normal. A dozen survivors hid on the highest floor of the hospital and appeared to be partaking of an animal. Jiang Fan took a closer look and almost spit out his breakfast. Damn it! It was actually a half-meter long maggot. Jiang Fan looked straight disgusted and didn't bother with this group of people. Going directly to the pharmacy, he rises to the ground and the first thing he does is kick a rat bigger than a cat to death. The dispensary was in disarray and had obviously been looted by survivors. The glass in the pharmacy's cooler shattered and all the medications that needed to be refrigerated were rendered ineffective. However, there are very limited medications that survivors can take. Jiang Fan took all the well-packaged medicines, not caring what they were. Anyway, there was Ching Chuan Li. Who knew how various drugs worked? 
Jiang Fan went back to the storage room to take away boxes and boxes of medical equipment, such as disposable syringes, surgical blades, and the like. Next target, Shangshu Furniture Plaza and the hardware market next to it. Zhang Zilin looked out the window with a grave expression he just now. How many shots were fired over at the fortune center? Yang Jiawei said, at least 50 shots. Zhang Zilin frowned, by the looks of it. It's the robber thief. Police checks can't carry that many bullets on them. Even if I did, I wouldn't want to waste it like that. The shots were regular, like stress-free target shooting, and seemed to be practicing. If it's a police investigation, surely it can't be practicing with a gun during such a period. That would have to be the robber thief. The survivors are up. Only Lu Gangfeng was still lying on the ground. He didn't make it and died. One night had passed and the bodies were so putrid that no one wanted to go near them. Zhang Zilin wrapped Lu Gangfeng's body in a hotel sheet and went downstairs. A plot of land was found close by outside the hotel and he was buried. Finally a stick was inserted in the grave with the inscription, Level 2 Constable Lu Gangfeng of the Pinghai Road Police Station. Police number, XXXXXXX. Zhang Zilin looked at the wooden stick in silence for a while before solemnly saying, Lu Gangfeng, if I'm still alive today next year, I'll definitely come back to see you. Zhang Zilin rose, stood at attention and slowly saluted, then turned dryly away. Zhang Zilin returned to the hall, and everyone was packed up. Everyone learns to tie their pants legs and wrists all the way up with string to keep the bugs from getting in. Those who can't learn are already dead. Zhang Zilin cherished and stroked the pistol. There were only four bullets left and she didn't even want to use them. If we catch that gun thief, we'll have enough bullets. People don't lose as much. Zhang Zilin picked up the fire axe and said in a deep voice, departure. Or I'll drive. She left first. The weary survivors walked to keep up. Chapter 55, Where Have the Powers Gone? Zhang Fan walked out of the furniture plaza with satisfaction and came to the hardware market from the underground. He opened his senses and all was normal around him. It's normal that there are no survivors here. There is no food nearby to live on. Ha! Huh? Road roller! Zhang Fan was pleasantly surprised. He didn't expect to come across such a good thing here. You can't drive any other car. You can drive a road roller. I don't care what kind of grass you have. The iron wheel will crush and flatten it all for you. Jiang Fan traveled underneath the road roller with great interest and put it away in his carry-on space. Only then did he go up to the ground and head for the hardware market. From angle grinders, drills, motors, and pumps, down to pliers, wrenches, hammers, and light bulbs, as well as various types of pipe, aluminum, stainless steel, paint, and tarps. Jiang Fan didn't care. They were all collected into his carry-on space. With these, you don't have to worry about basic tools for a short time. After that, he went to a nearby public tertiary hospital, the Magic Sea Second Maternity and Child Health Center. The previous small private hospital was still a bit low on drugs and equipment. Zhang Fan stood on the rooftop of the outpatient building and observed with his perception. The survivors all congregate on the top three floors of the outpatient building, living in different departmental offices according to affinity. There are no alterans. Zhang Fan confirmed that it was basically safe before walking downstairs from the rooftop. Intending to observe the survivors here from a close distance as a way to judge the situation in the outside world. Some of the survivors saw Zhang Fan and gave the stranger a wary expression, covering the food in their arms. More survivors didn't care at all. They just lay on the ground hungry and thirsty, their eyes breathless and basically in a state of waiting for death. No one had stopped Zhang Fan from the beginning to the end. There were only a few bodies in some of the offices and no one to deal with them. Flies were flying about, maggots were writhing, and the stench was overwhelming but the survivors in the next room didn't care and seemed to be used to it. Zhang Fan covered his mouth and nose and passed quickly to this hospital. About as far as there is no leader. That's why no one is organized to defend against foreign enemies. There are very few women. 80% of the survivors are men. And even fewer beautiful women. It shows that the order has broken down. Zhang Fan headed to the pharmacy, which was similarly ransacked, though there were still plenty of remaining medicines. The variety is also much richer than in private hospitals. After scavenging the supplies he needed, Zhang Fan went to the nearby police station, fire department, and a middle school. The police and fire departments are empty. The middle school did have a lot of survivors and two shifters. Only, again, the female students here are almost dead, and most of the remaining ones are male. Zhang Fan had run through seven or eight places and hadn't found any signs of an official organization. Are the officials unable to control the situation? Zhang Fan frowned according to reason it shouldn't be. With the level of technology in the modern society, even if the disaster suddenly comes as a surprise and catches them off guard, making it difficult to control the whole situation, there is still a great hope of preserving some key parts. Why is there no reaction at all? Where have all the powerful people gone? Zhang Fan couldn't figure it out. 
so he could only slice open the blue film and return to the rooftop of Block C of the Fortune Center. White Eyes looked up and realized that it was Jiang Fan, so he came over with his tail wagging upside down. Jiang Fan fed it some meat, then just stroked the dog's head while silently looking at Magic Sea City from afar. Overhead is the hot sun. Beneath his feet was an infinite red mist. A tall building peeked out of the red mist like a sparse forest in a sea of clouds. The pines that had been badly injured by herbicides were once again rejuvenated, and one grew taller than the other. When Tang Shuelua saw Jiang Fan return, she happily snuggled over and leaned against him. Just then, a loud bang came from the red mist bang. Gunshots. Jiang Fan's expression instantly became serious as he looked in the direction of the gunshots. Tang Shuelua was startled who else has a gun in the fortune center? Jiang Fan patted her hand, you take white eyes home and I'll check it out. Jiang Fan's body quickly sank into the floor and rushed in the direction of the gunshots. Zhang Zilin didn't get very far with the crowd. Young Garvey then trotted over to warn, stop, there's movement up ahead, it seems to be people, pussed. Zhang Zilin frowned as she hacked a rat to death with an axe, survivors? You guys wait here for orders, I'll go check it out. It may not always be safe to encounter humans now, and Zhang Zilin must check before making a decision. With a gentle leap, she actually jumped more than 3 meters high and stood firmly on a tree branch. She leapt forward between the branches of the trees and quickly disappeared into the red mist. The crowd looked at her enviously. If he had this kind of ability, who would still bring his own pile of dragons ah, he would have found a good place to enjoy life. Zhang Zilin advanced for a few minutes and then stopped. She heard talking coming from up ahead. Hu Liang Liang, go back, I'm exhausted. No, we haven't found any food yet. We'll starve to death even if we go back. But, no buts, we must. Uhu, my feet are rubbing out blisters. I'm in so much pain. Ah, it's bleeding. Hurry up. Go back and make sure you take care of it. Don't inflame it. At that moment, a few people from the chat walked past the tree. Zhang Zilin saw seven tender young people, about 18 or 9 years old. They should be college students, five men and two women. Thinking they were in no danger and were normal survivors, Zhang Zilin jumped right out of the tree. The seven were startled. Ah, who is it? Ha, huh? she's wearing a police uniform. She's a police check? The crowd relaxed a bit when they saw that the visitor was a woman. One of the boys came forward excitedly, hello, are you a police inspector, please? Zhang Zilin said with a salute, hello, I'm Constable Zhang Zilin, a level 2 constable from the Pinghai Road Police Station. What a police check. The boys were thrilled, my name is Hu Liang Liang, we are students of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, please save us. Zhang Zilin sniffed and sighed in relief, I'm going to the nearest official aid point, which is a long way away, so if you'd like, you can follow me, if not, I can only help if I love to. The seven students were excited, comrade police investigator, we're coming with you, woo woo, great, I finally ran into a police check, I haven't eaten all day and I thought I was going to starve to death today, fantastic, Zhang Zilin felt trusted and was in a better mood to come with me, with the addition of seven students, the survivor pool grew again, Zhang Zilin also felt a hint of encouragement and rushed towards the fortune center, this road is just a few hundred meters distance is extremely difficult to walk, Zhang Zilin foot trekking more than one hour, only hard to see a road in the dense forest. This was also because she had gained psychic abilities. If she were an ordinary person, she would have been too tired to move. All of them were tired and out of breath. And they finally arrived at the main gate of the Fortune Center district. Zhang Zilin looked at the Fortune Center in front of her and was about to enter when a giant rabbit jumped out of the grass. The exhausted survivors instantly perked up Officer Zhang. Bunny. Rabbit. Kill it. We can eat meat tonight. Shoot it. Shoot it. Zhang Zilin also cheered up a smile appearing at the corners of her mouth. She had killed a mutant rabbit once before, and the rabbit meat made everyone's mouths water. However, the mutant rabbit's ability to move was so perverse that Zhang Zilin couldn't catch it without a gun. Holding her breath, Zhang Zilin pulled out her pistol and slowly aimed it at the rabbit. Bang! Bingo! Zhang Zilin is surprised when the bullet hits the rabbit in the eye, burrows in, and destroys the rabbit's nerves. It fell to the ground in convulsions and was soon motionless. The crowd was giddy. As Zheng Zilin picked up the rabbit, a huge tongue suddenly shot out of the red mist and came straight at her. Chapter 56, New Fruit Arrives, The Will Link. Zheng Zilin reacted in a flash of lightning, as if she had been yanked violently. Her body slid back sharply against physics, almost pulling out stumps, the soles of her shoes scuffing two dark marks on the ground. Pussed, the tongue struck empty, but it mistakenly hit one of the boys next to her, immediately sticking to it and dragging it back. Humph, Zheng Zilin snorted coldly her body ghosting to a halt as she slid backwards rapidly. She took a machine standard standard horse stance, exhaled, and spat out a breath of arrows. Hey, 
Zheng Zilin's hair all over her body instantly exploded like a frightened cat. The soles of his feet lashed out and his body rushed like a cannonball towards his tongue, flat out punching it. Boom! The thick tongue was actually knocked sideways. The tongue could no longer hold onto the boys, who were thrown backwards and hit the wall and were left motionless on the spot. The mutant frog fell from the sky like a boulder and landed heavily on the ground. Boom! It's about the size of a bus. In the red mist with less than 5 meters of vision, the survivors could only make out its head, with the body behind it all hidden in the red mist. This is even more frightening. Quack! It yelped twice, torrentially, with a sound like thunder. The survivors are scared shitless. Crap! What the hell? It's a fucking frog. Frogs can grow this big. The survivors swarmed toward the fortune center neighborhood. Zheng Zilin was also looking at her head, but she couldn't leave right away. She had to break the back of the survivors or no one would get away. The mutated frog got down close to 3 meters tall, with a turquoise body that was vaguely glowing. The eyes high on top of his head were blood-red horizontal pupils that stared icily at Zheng Zilin. That thundering sound came from here, and it was this bipedal beast that killed all my tadpoles. The tongue struck again. Hoomph. Bastard. Zhang Zilin's martial artist's heart erupted and she met it head on without fear. Zhang Fan quietly stood by one of the windows on the fifth floor of Block C, using his senses to observe the sudden outbreak of fighting. Now, the light on the policewoman was almost as bright as he was. Every time she threw a punch or kick, the light on her body dimmed a great deal. Accordingly, the light from the fists and feet was instantly extremely bright like a dazzling sun. In the perceptual field of vision, the policewoman's body and fists and kicks flickered in and out of action, trailing curtains of radiant light, full of indescribably violent beauty. She had actually hardened herself to fight the much more powerful mutant frog with this explosive psychic ability. Zhang Fan was very greedy for this kind of explosive ability. If he had this kind of ability, plus his own comprehensive physique, he could probably kick a mutant frog like a ball. At the same time, he had a lot of doubts in his mind isn't she the policewoman shifter from the police station? How did she get here? Zhang Fan didn't understand why she had to travel a long distance at all. If the police department couldn't survive, with her strength, it would be easy to find a supermarket or some other gathering place for supplies, which would be much safer than running around outside. Unless, Zhang Fan's eyes stared. She has a clear destination. The policewoman was obviously official. Did she know the whereabouts of the official forces? Zhang Fan saw that the one man and one frog were fighting lively and couldn't be separated in a short time, and immediately found an opportunity and now would be a good time to grab that fruit of enlightenment. Without saying a word, Zhang Fan's body quickly sank into the ground and rushed towards the fruit of enlightenment by the pool. Plans don't change as fast as they should. His original plan was to get some dynamite to blow up the mutant frogs and get the fruit of enlightenment. However, he was worried about blowing up the fruit of enlightenment as well and never made up his mind. I can't imagine that someone has actually played a game of tweak for himself now. Then what's there to say? In less than half a minute, Zhang Fan rushed to the bench next to the pool. Enlightened fruit grows quietly under the floor benches. Zhang Fan was overjoyed, and it was too late to pick them, so he directly uprooted them and threw them into the carry-on space, and then left from underground. In a few minutes he was back home. The women nervously gathered around. Tang Shuelua had just told them that they had heard gunshots, and now all of them were anxiously looking at Zhang Fan. However, Seeing Jiang Fan's face full of smiles, the women were relieved. Jiang, who's shooting? Brother Jiang. Nothing happened, right? It's fine. Jiang Fan smiled and took out the enlightenment fruit to look at the women, this fruit. Who should it be given to? In front of the alien fruit, the women immediately forgot about the gunshots and looked at Jiang Fan pleasingly. They all knew what the alien fruit did. Only by Xinjia had just arrived and hadn't eaten the fruit of enlightenment for a while. She asked curiously aha? Uh -huh? Isn't this that black lychee I was telling you about? So you still have it. Ha! Huh? Zhang Fan smiled gently, it's called an alien fruit. And you can gain alien powers by eating it. They've all eaten it. Ha! Huh? By Xinjie was stunned, so that's where the powers come from. She somewhat regretted that if she had eaten the alien fruit, maybe her brother and mother wouldn't have died. But on second thought, the kind of loved ones who sell their daughters for instant noodles are not a bad thing to be dead. By Xinjie's eyes reddened a bit again when she remembered this. Zhang Fan secretly wondered who to give it to. So far, Tang Shuelua had eaten the most exotic fruits and had the most exotic abilities. A total of 3 colon 1 star for perception, 2 stars for voiding, and 1 star for physical strengthening. Then there's Su Mengqian with 1 star for perception and 2 stars for vaporization. Then there's Lili Hu and Lu Mengyao, both with 1 star for perception, and Tian Tian, teleportation 7 stars. Only by Xinjia had no powers whatsoever. There's no rush. When it's longer, my old lady fists are all alien bigots. Just put one out to kill a piece of the world. Jiang Fan smiled to Su Mengqian. This reward is for you. 
You've performed well for a while. Su Mengqian was surprised. She originally hadn't held much hope. After she was punished for her foolishness last time, Zhang Fan hadn't given her a good face for a long time. Originally, there was still fear and a feeling that I was going to be left behind. Now that he suddenly heard that Zhang Fan had given him the fruit of alien energy, he was so excited that tears flowed down his face, Brother Jiang. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Zhang Fan handed her the exotic fruit, eat. Zhang Fan was willing to give it to Su Mengchen because the light on her was the greenest. Even greener than Tang Shu Eluo. I don't know how this woman brainwashed herself. The effect was overwhelming. Tang Shu Eluo already had three supernatural abilities. Zhang Fan would not give her any new ones for the time being. There were only one other woman and too many rewards might make Tang Shu Eluwa misunderstand her own meaning and make her bullying. Also, the glow on Hu Lily, Tian Tian, and Lu Mangyao wasn't green enough. Zhang Fan didn't know what this new enlightenment fruit's ability was, in case it was an overly powerful ability, it might make them think unnecessarily. So, all things considered, Su Mengqian is the most suitable. Su Mengqian ate the exotic fruit under the envious gazes of the women. Zhang Fan immediately heard the prompt. Ding! Su Mengqian consumed one fruit of enlightenment, will link and return 700 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, will link one star. When consumed, you can gain the will link ability. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Will link? What kind of powers are these? Zhang Fan himself took out one and ate it. Chapter 57 6 Star Will Link Bai Xinjie looked even more confused. Why is there more? Are the alien fruits that worthless? Will link? One star. You can establish a will link with creatures within your field of vision to communicate in your consciousness at a distance of 10 meters. Maximum number of will links that can exist at the same time. 1, will plus 1. Ding. Unlocking more attributes. The attribute panel has been updated. Jiang Fan was secretly surprised. What is this? An on-the-go privacy phone? As long as they're living creatures, they can communicate? What about animals? What about plants? Also, what's the use of this, will, attribute? Jiang Fan opened the attribute panel. There is indeed an extra line in the panel. Host, Zhang Fan, combined physical fitness, 90, average 10 for an average adult, will, 11, average adult 10, will had only increased by 1. And Zhang Fan couldn't feel any difference from before. Su Meng Qian, who had just eaten the will link fruit, was quite baffled of brother Jiang. What is the function of this psychic ability? Roll? Zhang Fan opened the will link as soon as his heart moved. He, saw, a layer of translucent, seven colored bubbles enveloping himself and the women's bodies. Even on black cat cola, the colorful bubbles are irregularly spherical and shake slightly like soap bubbles. Everyone's seven colored bubbles are basically the same size. Only the seven colored bubbles around Zhang Fan seemed thicker. Could this be an outward manifestation of biological will? Zhang Fan instinctively knew how to use the ability. By gently touching the other person's seven colored film in consciousness, a link of consciousness is established. Zhang Fan gently tapped the seven colored film outside Su Meichan's body. Su Mengqian seemed to notice something and looked left and right. Zhang Fan didn't open his mouth to speak, but instead called out to Su Mengqian in his consciousness, Can you hear me? Su Mengqian froze for a moment and asked stupidly, Brother Jiang, you called me? The other women were wondering, When did he call you? Zhang Fan said in his consciousness, You don't have to talk. Try to communicate with me with your consciousness. Here, squeeze my shoulders. Su Mengqian adapted for a moment and said in her consciousness, Okay, Jiang. She obediently walked behind Zhang Fan and squeezed his shoulders. Sure enough, the passive side can also communicate with consciousness. Zhang Fan laughed lightly. Under Zhang Fan's teaching, Su Mengqian quickly learned how to actively build links. She tested the will link for Tang Shu Elua and Bai Xinjie respectively. Both women were envious, especially Bai Xinjie, so the powers are that amazing. Zhang Fan also tested if it was possible to use perception with will link to talk through walls. The result is still possible. Jiang Fan was secretly delighted. Perception has no combat ability, but it's just too useful. Both voiding and will link rely on the field of vision provided by perception to be more powerful. Of course, physical strengthening is also very useful. The will will link was incredibly taxing on physical strength, and Su Mengqian could only hold out for a few minutes. If she started both perception and will link at the same time, the stamina consumed was not simply added up, but doubled up in 30 seconds at most. Su Mengqian was too tired to continue. Zhang Fan was different. His super high comprehensive physique allowed him to hold on for an extremely long time. Immediately after, Zhang Fan looked at the black cat cola lying on the ground. The colorful bubbles around Coke's body are smaller and thinner. Zhang Fan gently tapped it with his consciousness. Cola looked up at Zhang Fan, meow? What are you doing? Zhang Fan was shocked. 
I can actually understand cat language? Nope. It's not that I understand cat language, but I'm communicating with it with my consciousness, not with words, so it can be heard. Jung Fan was surprised and tried to ask with his consciousness, are you hungry? Kola slowly raised his head and stared at Jung Fan with wide eyes for half a day, meow meow meow, yo, not bad yo, bipedal beasts can talk. Jung Fan had a black line on his head. What kind of arrogant meow is this? Kola got up and walked over to Jung Fan's feet and licked his pant leg as a reward. Jung Fan was speechless and tried to establish a will link with a few more plants. The plants will bubbles are very dull, almost faintly invisible. Succulents, water, 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 creeper, sunshine, grow, upward, up, pine, there are bugs, there are bugs, it hurts. The plant's IQ was very low. Unable to respond to Jung Fan's inquiries or speak in complete sentences, only instinctively repeating simple words. Jung Fan stopped the test and took out a handful of will link fruits and ate them eat while you mull it over. What can this ability be used for? As a result, a surprise appeared, and he only ate the third one when he heard a beep frowny face ding. Will Link improve to two stars? Distance increased to 20 meters, will plus two. Jiang Fan glanced at it and didn't care too much. This upgrade may have been a stroke of luck. Eat one handful, then eat a second handful. I didn't finish the second handful and heard the cue again frowny face ding. Will Link improve to three stars? Distance increased to 50 meters, will plus four. Hmm. Jung Fan finally paid attention. Why is it so easy to upgrade? It's only taken about 10 of these to get up to 3 stars. When I ate the fruit of perception before, I ate hundreds of them before rising to 3 stars. Could it be that? My physique is more suitable for the will link fruit? Without saying a word, Jung Fan took out another handful and ate it. Ding. Will link raise to 3 stars. Top. Will link improve to 4 stars. By Xinjie on the side looked dumbfounded. Why does Jung Fan have so many alien fruits? If he had that much, why did he ask me for the location of that alien fruit before? It's not even worth anything to him. Was it purely to help me? Just a random excuse to make it psychologically easier for me? Bai Xinjia gently bit her red lips, and her eyes were tender as she looked at Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan didn't notice that the green color on Bai Xinjia's body was getting thicker and thicker. He was looking at the queue with surprise frowny face ding. Will Link raise to six stars. Will Link, six stars. You can establish a will link with creatures within your field of vision to communicate in your consciousness. Distance 50 kilometers. Maximum number of will links that can exist at the same time. 10, will plus 15. 50 kilometers. Jung Fan's eyes glowed. Maybe, I'll have a 2 and D 9 star alien soon. Unfortunately, having just gotten to 6 stars in one sitting, I'm really full. Even smelling the enlightened fruit turned my stomach a bit and I had to stop for a while. Jung Fan hiccuped and checked the attribute panel. Will is all the way up to 25 and still doesn't feel anything. What exactly is the role of the will? In just a few minutes, Zhang Zilin's entire body was drenched in sweat and her breath was disorganized. Seeing the survivors running away all around her, she stopped stalling, punched the mutant frog in the tongue, and twisted her head to run. Chapter 58, No Medicine? I'll fight until he gives it. Zhang Zilin escaped. The mutant frog is in hot pursuit. Avenge the killing of your son. Especially still so many subs. Mutant frogs certainly can't stand it. Zhang Zilin secretly screamed, and could only rush into the nearest building in a panic. Boom! The mutant frog followed, its huge body shattering the glass doors of the hall. Quack! Quack! The cold-blooded animal's eyes stared relentlessly at Zhang Zilin. Zhang Zilin was sweating coldly, not to mention she was very brave just now, but now she was almost off her feet, and it was hard to be holding on, and the mutant frog didn't look the least bit tired. She had to dodge its edge or she was dead. But there was a red mist everywhere, and the interior was so dimly lit that it was almost impossible to see where you were going. Just then, deep in the red mist, there was the faint glow of a flashlight. A familiar voice yelled it this way. This way. Officer Zhang. This way. It's Ding Zhongli. Zhang Zilin's eyes lit up. Ding Zhongli was one of the first few survivors she saved, and one of the few hotheads. A lot of things other survivors were unwilling to do. It was Ding Zhongli who took the initiative to do it. Zhang Zilin flew towards Ding Zhengli. The figure of Ding Zhengli was soon seen. Only Ding Zhengli alertly poked his head out from behind the wall of the stairwell and shouted anxiously of this way. Move. Move. Zhang Zilin rushed into the stairwell in three steps. Finally relieved. Ding Zhengli laughed nervously. It's okay. The hallway is narrow. That big toad can't get in. Boom. Before the words left his mouth, the mutant frog's tongue shattered the fire door to the stairwell. Would shavings and tin fly about? Pust. The door handle of the fire door shattered and flew out, and it happened to be stuck in the small abdomen of Ding Zhengli, and blood instantly stained his clothes. Ding Zhengli's mouth opened wide a howl. How could it be so unlucky? He fell limply to the ground, 
Old ding, Zhang Zilin's heart was in a hurry. Ignoring her tired body, she gritted her teeth and carried Ding Zhengli on her back and climbed upstairs, shouting anxiously, Somebody, somebody help me with my back. Ding Zhengli is injured. The mutant frog couldn't get in and croaked in anger. When Zhang Zilin reached the corner in the middle of the first and second floors, Yang Jiawei came downstairs in a panic to help, but he was too old to have much strength at all. Zhang Zilin said angrily, where are the others? Yang Jiawei said awkwardly, this. Zhang Zilin frowned and could only carry Ding Zhengli, huffing and puffing as he climbed up to the second floor. The survivors sat on all fours in the darkened hallway, 20 or 30 people, and not one of them actually came downstairs to help. Zhang Zilin's eyes were on fire as she watched, placing Ding Zhengli carefully on the ground and getting up to stare coldly at the crowd. Zhang Zilin took a deep breath and stabilized her emotions before saying, why don't you guys go down and help? Forget about the ones who are hurt. What about you guys? Aren't you guys okay? The crowd's eyes fluttered, avoiding Zhang Zilin's gaze. A man in his fifties whispered, we're not aliens. How could we have dealt with that frog? With the first person speaking, others spoke up right. Officer Zhang, it's not that we won't go down there. We really don't dare. We're not you. Seriously injured by that frog's touch. Zhang Zilin said angrily, the frog was so big it couldn't have gotten into the hallway. So what are you guys afraid of? The crowd was silent for a moment. Hu Liang Liang, who had just joined the team, bristled so how did he get hurt? Zhang Zilin was speechless. Immediately afterward, a woman in her forties grunted in exasperation the officer Zhang. What do we usually pay so much tax for? Isn't it for you people to protect us? You're a police inspector born to protect us, right, we trusted you enough to follow you out, and look how many are left now, yeah, yeah, our old Wang is also injured, why don't you say something about looking at old Wang and just focus on that ding guy, officer Zhang, stop it, hurry up and find us something to eat, we lost all our food when we ran away just now, the crowd spoke up, no one was afraid even when they saw Zhang Zilin's face turn black, they were certain that Zhang Zilin wouldn't move them, Zhang Zilin clenched her fists, her fingers white from clenching, she felt a twinge of aggravation. It's not like I forced you to come. You volunteered. There was also a hint of anger. Who am I to keep saving your asses? She wanted to scatter and leave the group to their own devices, but her heart wouldn't allow her to be unable to do such a thing. At that moment, Ding Jingli groaned in pain a few times. Zhang Zilin came back to her senses and hurriedly said to DR. Do. DR. Do. You have to show him. A dried up woman stepped out in silence and sighed as she examined the wound officer Zhang. Mister. Ding was lucky that he didn't hurt his internal organs, and if he had the medicine and instruments to do a suture in bandage, he might still be saved. But, the scene fell silent. Survivors don't even have enough food and water. Where's the medicine? At most a bit of diarrhea and fever medicine. Where is the trauma medicine? And, even if the wound is stitched up, can Ding Zhengli survive the infection? Zhang Zilin pursed her lips and said nothing. Ding Zhengli sighed and said softly, I can't make it. Officer Zhang, don't save me. You guys go. If you see my son and my grandson at the TV station rescue point, don't say anything about me, alas, it's fate, don't say it. Zhang Zilin's nails left deep marks in her palms as she clenched her teeth and said in a warm voice, Old Ting, you'll be fine, I'll find you medicine, there's bound to be medicine. Zhang Zilin remembered the shifter who could drill the ground, the ability to drill is very safe out there, and as long as the other side isn't stupid, they're bound to collect the drugs, the drilling must have been slow. And with the inconvenience of carrying items, he shouldn't have had too many drugs on hand. When you go out to collect, it's still about food and water. However, traumatic injuries are common injuries during this period, and the other side should have some in reserve. As long as we find him, old Ding's injuries can still be saved. As for finding the person, would they be reluctant to give the medicine? Zhang Zilin didn't think about that possibility. Not giving the medicine? Then beat him until he gives it. Against a criminal who steals a gun. Zhang Zilin will not be merciful. As Zhang Zilin was thinking, noisy footsteps came from the stairway. Seven or eight people came down from the third floor. A man in a crooked property security cap brandished a stick and cursed a mud. What's going on? Who the hell allowed you to come in here? Don't you know this is our boss Ma's turf? The others followed suit and cursed, damn it. Why are you so blind? Can't you see that boss Ma is here? Ask you a question. Say something. Which one of you is the head? Send someone out to talk. The survivors looked at Zheng Zilin in unison. As soon as the dark and thin man in the lead saw Zheng Zilin, his eyes glistened with lust and he reached out to hook his hand to Zheng Zilin's chin. Yo, there's a policewoman too. You, snap. Zheng Zilin slapped the man's hand away in disgust and said coldly, I'm warning you. Talk nicely. The dark and thin man was not angry and laughed wildly. Ha ha, this bitch is quite stubborn. It's good to be stubborn. The more stubborn she is, 
the more flavorful she is. Ah, Zheng Zilin couldn't bear it and lightly kicked the black thin man in the small of his back. The black thin man had no defense, screamed miserably and sat down on the ground, and only after a long time did he slow down and burst into a rage mud. Arrest this bitch, kill everyone else. The others pulled out their daggers and looked at Zheng Zilin with a sardonic smile. Zhang Zilin's eyes went cold with disgust I'm warning you for the last time. Don't act rashly or suffer the consequences. A few people laughed. Yo and fierce. Consequences? Hey, hey, I'll make you call me daddy later. Ha ha ha. With that, several people waved their daggers and watermelon knives and laughed wildly. They didn't notice that the other survivors didn't even have a hint of fear on their faces. They all looked odd and looked at them with pity. How dare you mess with this officer? You're really asking for it. Chapter 59 Isn't that guy just a convenience store clerk? Zhang Zilin couldn't bear it and her figure moved. Snap, snap, snap. Half a minute later, several people were sprawled out on the floor, all knocked out. Zhang Zilin knocked over a few people without even taking a breath and coldly grunted to Yang Jiawei, take the men and tie them up. I'll go up there and take a look. Good. Zhang Zilin wondered if any of these people had the drill shifter. It didn't look like it should, so she climbed up the stairs, below the 21st floor. There's no one. By the 22nd floor, where the red mist doesn't cover, there's still no one. She made her way to the top two floors and finally met a group of pimply-faced survivors. All were bound hand and foot, chained to the room in bunches, unable to move. The men were basically all wounded and in rags. There were very few women and they were all clustered in two rooms. They were stripped naked and bruised. Zhang Zilin's face changed completely, where she didn't know what was going on. Boss Horse's group captured all the others and used them as slaves. There are fewer women because they are all abused to death. Naturally, during this time, Zhang Zilin had seen many criminal gangs, and many more vicious than this. Only these gangs only arrest a dozen people at most. Now there are hundreds of them in front of us. It was the first time Zhang Zilin had seen so many people. Her teeth clenched scum. Damn it. The bundled survivors were thrilled to see Zhang Zilin in police uniform. The state has come to our rescue. Comrade police investigator. Help me. Help me. Comrade police inspector. Go and arrest Ma Shanshir. Don't let him get away. Many people were so emotional that they shed tears after Zhang Zilin rescued the crowd. Surviving relatives hugged and wept. The rescued woman wrapped her arms around her family's heads and cried. Some were so weak they could barely stand up. Some people have had to have their limbs amputated due to necrosis as a result of prolonged bondage. But in the present situation, where is the condition of amputation? We can only wait for death. The scene was a mess. Zhang Zilin found a few in good physical condition and called up the survivors from downstairs. The survivors that Zhang Zilin had brought with her had been trapped in the low building all this time. For the first time they came to the upper levels and stood above the red mist. They looked at the unobstructed view of the sky with fascination, only to feel their hearts open, and the usual scenes of the past were now mesmerizing. The survivors in the building could no longer control their emotions when they saw a few of Ma Shanshir's men, punching and kicking them mad. My parents were killed by these assholes. You didn't think you'd see this day. Surname Ma. You dare to fuck my wife. I'll castrate you. Surname Jean. We're usually on good terms. Why are you doing this to me? My family's food was robbed by you and my son starved to death. I'll kill you. You motherfucker a property security manager. Actually arrested the owner. There's no king's law. In no time, Ma Shan Shur and the others fell in a pool of blood. Zhang Zilin watched this silently. Not stopping it. Letting the survivor vent her emotions. Yang Jiawei shivered and whispered, Leader, is this too much? How could Zhang Zilin not realize that this was a lynching and illegal? But what can be done? Can one control this angry populace? Can't. Does one have what it takes to try and imprison Ma Shanshir and the others and give them the justice they deserve? No. Zhang Zilin sighed in times of chaos, murderers pay for their lives. Yang Jiawei snapped and laughed. The survivors who followed Zhang Zilin were all secretly happy. If they hadn't followed a powerful and righteous alien like Zhang Zilin, they and the others wouldn't have ended up much better than the group in front of them. The survivors quickly quieted down after venting. They were still hungry and thirsty, after all, and didn't have much stamina at all. Just now, they were so emotional that their energy was severely depleted. And now each of them was so shriveled that they were lying on the ground. Everyone looks at Zhang Zilin, counting on her to lead the group to survive. Zhang Zilin got a headache. Zhang Zilin was not worried about food and drink. Ma Shanshir's group must have hidden a large amount of food. Enough to cope with a few days. She just had a headache of trivia. Distribute food. House survivors. Treat the mildly ill as much as possible. At that moment, a middle-aged couple walked over with a smile on their faces. The man nodded and introduced himself, Officer. My name is Sun Jianman, the director of the street office where this neighborhood is located. This is my lover, Li Ailing. 
the staff of the street office? Zhang Zilin was relieved and immediately said Yang Jiawei, you and Director Sun are responsible for organizing the manpower, taking out the supplies that the black forces have raided and dividing them equally among everyone. Yang Jiawei nodded, okay, leader. Sun Jianmen was overjoyed. It's a good job with a lot of gas. Aileen Li's eyes also glowed, and she even unconsciously licked her lips. The other rescued survivors were a bit disgruntled. Why should he be allowed to distribute supplies? However, they had just been rescued and didn't know Zhang Zilin's character, and no one dared to openly challenge Zhang Zilin's authority. Sun Jianmen motioned to arch his back and shook Yang Jiawei's hand. Hello Director Young, you command. I'll execute. Yang Jiawei awkwardly waved his hand, but don't call me any director. I'm just a plain old man. Sun Jianmen sniffed and disdained in his heart, but said with his mouth, it's okay, it's okay, the past is nothing. New times, new ways. Zhang Zilin glanced at Ding Zhengli, who was getting worse. Dr. Du gave him a simple bandage to stop the bleeding, but the wound was so dirty that nine times out of ten it would get infected. The medicine must be found immediately. Zhang Zilin asked without further delay a director's son. Let me ask something. Sun Jianmen hurriedly said, Leader, you say, don't call me leader. My name is Zhang Zilin. Zhang Zilin waved her hand and said bluntly, there was a shooting in this neighborhood earlier. Do you know who it was? This. Sun Jianmen was embarrassed, we've been locked up and really don't know. Zhang Zilin frowned and asked again, and do you know who? In the neighborhood. Has a very large amount of food? Sun Jianmen nodded his head busily, that's something to know. There's a very unlikable convenience store clerk in our neighborhood who has lots of food and trades food for women. Alas, the human heart is not what it used to be. When Sun Jianmen said this, he remembered the pictures of the girls that Zhang Fan had posted in the group in the past, and his heart was so jealous. Irene Lee added to the conversation, right, that guy tricked a few unsavory women into following him. A bunch of bitchy women who eat meat and rice every day and throw it away when they can't finish it will be punished by heaven. The other survivors followed suit, yes, 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 the food is good. What's the package? Isn't it just Zhang Fan? That brat. He used to be a convenience store clerk in our neighborhood, with a salary of just 3,000 yuan a month, and now he's letting him shake it up instead. I yuck, we don't even have buns, and I've seen him post fondue videos when the power didn't go out. Fondue is nothing, he's got steak to eat. Zhang Fan has so much food that he'd rather throw it away than give relief to everyone. It's so untrue, it's a time of disaster, the food belongs to all the survivors, why should he give it all away? Wastefulness is a crime. The crowd scolded Zhang Fan. Zhang Zilin ignored the jealousy of the crowd and analyzed the useful information from everyone's chatter. Steak. Fondue. Food for women? Throw it away if you can't finish it? This guy doesn't look like he's short on food. In this day and age, who doesn't have a shortage of food? Who else could it be but the alien who could drill the ground? He can burrow and can go out in search of food. He must have moved a bunch of food from the neighborhood grocery store when everyone else was afraid to act, so he had the nerve to be so wasteful. Aileen Li's cell phone still had power, so she turned it on to show Zhang Zilin the group's history of messages. Zhang Zilin saw the message sent by, packed food, along with pictures of sumptuous food and beautiful women, and became even more certain in her heart. That's him. Zhang Fan was the drilling alien. Zhang Fan exchanged food for women, and Zhang Zilin naturally despised it greatly, but she noticed that the women in the photos were all rosy-cheeked and glowing, and clearly hadn't been abused. The hostility in Zhang Zilin's heart was greatly reduced. On the basis of this point, this called Zhang Fan, now already counted as a good person. Zhang Fan shouldn't be bad by nature. It's just that the ability he suddenly gained made him lose himself. I have to save him. I'll definitely be able to sensitize him to join my team. And he'll be able to help me save more survivors heading to the TV rescue point. Chapter 60 Cook the rice first. I'll take it when I get the medicine back. Zhang Zilin stood up a DR. Do. I'm going to get some medicine and instruments from Zhang Fan. So make me a list. Ha. Huh? Dr. Du froze did he? Sun Jianmen held back his bad words, even if Zhang Fan has it. He may not be willing to give it to us. He's not a good person. Zhang Zilin heard Sun Jianmen's malicious attack and was unhappy in her heart, but did not show it, don't worry. Dr. Du, you prescribed the medicine. If I say give it, he has to give it. Dr. Du dropped his heart when he heard that Zhang Zilin was prepared to use force. The power of this officer Zhang was more than clear to them. The old men who had been following the team. Even with that ridiculously large fraud just now, Zhang Zilin was able to fight back and forth. A convenience store clerk is nothing. Dr. Du said happily, I'll prescribe you a few more medicines, and if one isn't available, you can replace it with another. So that old ding and these injured people have a little more hope of surviving. Good. Zhang Zilin nodded. Sun Jianmen fawned and smiled to Officer Zhang. Why don't you eat before you go? 
Zhang Zilin waved her hand confidently, no, I'll just go and come, it's just a matter of minutes, bring the medicine back and then we'll eat. Yang Jiwei said worriedly, that big frog is probably still waiting for you down there, so why don't you wait? Zhang Zilin said casually, it's not in the way, I've got it covered. When she finished, she lifted her feet and headed upstairs, what are you doing upstairs? The crowd was curious and a few good ones followed. Zhang Fan stood by the window of a room on the 20th floor and found the location of the mutated frog. In the perceptual field of vision, it was lying on its back outside the first floor lobby of Block B, refusing to take a step away, seemingly still crouching the policewoman. Zhang Fan was about to burst out laughing. This policewoman is really doing herself a favor by taking the fall. Spirit Link. Zhang Fan saw the mutated frog's seven-colored bubble of will. Unlike the strong appearance of the mutated frog, its will bubble was even a little weaker than the black cat cola, no better than a plant. It seems that strength of will has nothing to do with physical strength or alien strength. Jiang Fan gently made contact, and the mental link was established. The mutant frog seemed to be talking to itself revenge. 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 Jiang Fan asked, who are you seeking revenge on? The mutant frog was too stupid to even notice that someone else was asking it, and answered instinctively that female biped. Revenge. Eat it. Can't find it. Jiang Fan mentioned, the female biped is up there and will definitely come down. Just wait here. The mutant frog repeated, the female biped will come down. Waiting. Revenge. Waiting. Revenge. Done. Zhang Fan broke the will link with a smile. As for the policewoman, you're holding it upstairs. Crap. What's this about? Zhang Fan was shocked to see that Zhang Zilin walked to the edge of the rooftop and suddenly her entire body glowed. After a few seconds, the light from her body quickly retracted, all of it pouring into her legs. The toned, slender legs radiate a sunny, radiant light. Terrifying power erupted violently. Pieces of guardrail concrete are cracked. Boom. Like a cannonball. The policewoman brazenly jumped over the dozens of meters of distance between block B and block C. Crap. Jung Fan was stunned. It's still fucking human. The policewoman's body drew a perfect parabola. Taking off from the roof of the 33rd floor of block B. And landing precisely in a window on the 20th floor of block C. And this room happened to be the room where Jung Fan was. Wow. Zhang Zilin rushed in by crashing through countless shards of glass, landing in a roll to dislodge the force. She let out a long breath. Such an explosive force was also a great drain on her body. She got up and was startled that there was actually a person standing in front of her. It was the same, packed with food, Zhang Fan that he had just seen in the group. How did he know he jump here? Zhang Zilin couldn't understand it. Zhang Fan had originally been startled as well. Could it be that this policewoman also had the ability of a remote sensing alien? Or else why had she found herself directly? It's the 20th floor. Underneath the red mist. It's only right that she can't see it. However, Zhang Fan realized after seeing Zhang Zilin's shocked expression that this time it was purely an accident. Zhang Zilin was supposed to jump into this room and just happened to be here herself. In the perceptual field of vision, Zhang Zilin's body emanated a red and yellow mixed glow. Zilin Zhang, age, 27, quality, 9 points, valiant, women's morality, 10 points, non-personnel, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Jiang Fan, however, had alarm bells ringing in his heart and had no time to think about it. This policewoman can get into big fights with mutant frogs and is very dangerous. The red light on her. Is it coming at me? Or is she just that kind of personality herself? With hostility toward anyone? Jiang Fan was pondering whether to play dumb or not when Zhang Zilin spoke up. You're Jiang Fan. Right. I'm here to find you. She is rushing to me. Jiang Fan instantly no longer have the idea of getting away with it. His eyes were cold really take me as a good bully, but also fucking hit the door. Without saying a word, Zhang Fan blasted out a fist with all his might. In Zhang Zilin's eyes, Zhang Fan's fist exploded like thunder and quickly grew larger. How is his body so strong? Zhang Zilin was shocked and didn't dare to carry it hard. Her body slightly retreated by half a step. Zhang Fan's fist swept past a few centimeters in front of her, bringing up a few strands of hair. This punch allowed Zhang Zilin to see the nature of Zhang Fan, an ordinary person who hadn't practiced, presumably obtaining some sort of supernatural physique to become so powerful. Only power. No skill. Not enough to be feared. Humph. Zhang Zilin teased out with a kick from bottom to top. Zhang Fan, like before, sensed the kick and his consciousness reacted, but his body couldn't keep up. He could only try his best to dodge, then tighten his abdominal muscles and take a hard kick. Bang. Zhang Fan chopped to the floor by a nice leg kick but it didn't hurt. He was a bit surprised that this Zhang Zilin didn't seem to have any killing intent and didn't explode with the same explosive power that he had when he fought with the mutated frogs. Zhang Fan's body was still flying backwards in midair. Zhang Zilin then followed as a shadow. Another punch. 
Zhang Fan had no choice but to set up his hands and carry it hard again. Bang! Zhang Zilin is unforgiving and follows up with three punches and two kicks. Bang! 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 Zhang Fan accelerated like a sandbag and flew backwards towards the dead center of the wall. Gotcha! Zhang Zilin laughed coldly, her body sliding quickly on the ground like a swimming snake, keeping close, not giving Zhang Fan any time to catch his breath. Just give him a beating to convince him to get along in the future. Ha! Huh? Zhang Zilin watched as Zhang Fan passed through the wall like a phantom and disappeared without a trace. Through the wall? That's his drilling ability? Zhang Zilin stood hopelessly in front of the wall, gritting her teeth in anger. She knew that Zhang Fan could drill the ground. That's why she pushed so hard, fearing that he would escape. Who knew he could drill so fast? Even if you could break through the wall yourself, it would take a long time. By that time, Zhang Fan would have long since disappeared. At that speed, who could catch him? What a stinky rat. Zhang Zilin was furious. Suddenly, a hand reached out eerily from the wall and threw something at her. Shock bombs. Zhang Zilin's expression froze. Boom. A huge sonic boom exploded not far in front of Zhang Zilin. Ah. Zhang Zilin screamed miserably and fell to the ground. Even with her strong physique, she couldn't carry a shocking bullet at such a close range. Zhang Fan, however, didn't take kindly to it. He stood behind the wall and, watched, Zhang Zilin fall to the ground with a sneer let you hit the old man. He pulled out three more shock bombs and threw his palm through the wall into the next door. Boom! 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 Zhang Zilin couldn't hold on any longer and passed out completely. Zhang Fan cautiously observed for a while and threw another shock bomb. Boom! Chapter Catalina was unresponsive. Zhang Fan confirmed that she was truly unconscious before he walked through the wall to Zhang Zilin and looked down at her. The woman was completely unlike any other pretty woman with a face that carried an indescribably English air. She was fit, with long limbs and an athletic, wholesome demeanor. This is a dangerous and beautiful woman. Zhang Fan didn't dare to have the slightest relaxation, and directly took out a bundle of steel wire and tightly tied her two hands and two feet together before he breathed a sigh of relief. Zhang Fan looked wistfully at Zhang Zilin, what exactly are your powers? I'm very much looking forward to it. Chapter 61, Qi and Blood Explosion. 500% Combat Strength. Ding. One day ago. Zhang Zilin consumed a pack of cookies and returned 800 packs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Zhang Zilin consumed a ham sausage and returned 800. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago, Zhang Zilin consumed one pack of instant noodles and returned 800 packs. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Nine days ago, Zhang Zilin consumed one enlightenment fruit, chi and blood explosion and returned 800 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up. The chi and blood erupted. It should be that burst of power from the chapter Zilin. One finally has a decent combat ability. Zhang Fan immediately took out a chi and blood eruption fruit and ate it. Chi and blood burst, three stars. You consume a large amount of stamina to briefly burst out of chi and blood, increasing your overall physique by 100% to 500%. The more you increase, the more stamina you consume. Increase in overall fitness by a factor of five. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up. This fruit is extremely effective for people like yourself who have a super high overall physical fitness. Zhang Fan's heart stirred. The chi and blood erupted. 100% status. In an instant, Zhang Fan's entire body was filled with power. At the same time, there is a noticeable and rapid depletion of physical strength. Even if you don't move a muscle, you will continue to consume stamina. In this state, I can last about an hour. Zhang Fan felt it and opened the attribute panel frowny face host, Zhang Fan, combined physical fitness, 90 plus 90, average of 10 for an average adult, will, 25, average adult 10, 180 points of combined fitness. Zhang Fan swung his fist violently. Boom! The surface of the wall was broken right through, and some of the masonry inside was shattered. Fingers are unharmed. Physical exertion is faster when fighting. Zhang Fan carefully felt the physical exertion when he swung his fist estimating that he would be able to throw a hundred punches at most before he ran out of energy. Try 500%. Zhang Fan's heart stirred. Boom. Combined physical fitness, 90 plus 450. A whopping 510 points of comprehensive physique caused Zhang Fan's body to undergo a qualitative change. His height had surprisingly increased by 20 centimeters, and his size was so large that the air around his body was slightly distorted. Between one exhale and one inhale, the powerful air currents were actually able to affect the airflow around the body. The heart beats like a drum. Knock knock. Blood rushed through the veins. Every cell is filled with unrivaled power. He clenched his fists, feeling like a god who could destroy any enemy. This state mesmerized Zhang Fan beyond measure, and he threw a fierce punch. Rumble. The whole wall just collapsed. In just a few short breaths, Zhang Fan was so tired and exhausted that he hurriedly exited the 500% state. Phew. 
Zhang Fan's height has returned to normal. The air around them calmed down as well. Even after exiting 500%, Zhang Fan was breathing heavily and couldn't recover for a long time. At the same time, the bones and muscles of the whole body were sore without fail, as if they had been violently beaten. Zhang Fan sat wearily on the chair, but his heart was overwhelmed with joy although the side effects are great. This state is definitely a lifesaver. With 500% power, I can kick a mutant frog like a ball. Zhang Fan took out another handful of chi and blood eruption fruits and ate them. Didn't ascend the stars. Eat again. Still no star. Zhang Fan had eaten a full 50 of them and still hadn't ascended the star. I just ate a bunch of wool link fruits until I got sick to my stomach. And I just couldn't eat any more today. So I had to stop. Zhang Fan mulled it over the three wool link fruits can raise the star. 50 chi and blood burst fruits didn't raise the star. And eating physique strengthening fruits to raise the star is also very slow. It must be related to the physique adaptation. My physique is about right for will type fruits and is less compatible with physique type fruits. Regarding the chi and blood burst ability, Zhang Fan still had a lot of detailed techniques to practice. With the technique of short bursts of power and then ending it immediately, Zhang Zilin is able to greatly extend the duration of the fight and conserve physical strength. There was also the fact that Zhang Zilin could control his body to partially explode without having to explode his whole body, which naturally reduced physical exertion. Zhang Fan looked at the woman in front of him in deep thought. Should we kill her? Zhang Fan was a bit hesitant. Zhang Zilin was still unconscious, and judging by the glow on her body, her combined physique was between 20 to 30. Even when he fought her just now, the brightness she burst out was less than one half of his own. Even so, it can press itself. She's definitely a martial arts genius. Too dangerous. Zhang Fan only felt his scalp tingle when he remembered how she fought the mutated frog. With 20 plus points of combined body mass, he fought the mutant frogs back and forth. This woman's combat talent was simply outrageous. He wouldn't dare keep this kind of woman by his side. If Zhang Zilin suddenly exploded, the chances of killing herself were extremely high. Either kill or stay away. Zhang Fan rubbed the cold pistol. His eyes went cold, and he made up his mind. He loaded a bullet and turned on the safety. Just then, Zhang Zilin awoke. Zhang Fan stopped moving and looked at her silently. Zhang Zilin's long eyelashes blinked a few times before she slowly opened her beautiful eyes. She looked around in a bit of a daze, seemingly confused as to where she was, and only reacted when she saw Zhang Fan. Taken aback, she jerked to her feet, only to be unable to move, and then realized that her hands and feet were bound together by layers of wire. Then he saw the marks on the body and the mess of clothes and froze. It took a long time to realize what was happening. Zhang Zilin was shocked, angry and ashamed. Her heart thumped, and it was only half a day before she raised her head and stared at Zhang Fan, her eyes reddening as she said oh no, shame on you. Zhang Fan wondered, the light on this woman was actually not red? Instead, it's yellow, with even a hint of green mixed in? Ah, Zhang Fan couldn't understand it at all, but was greatly shocked. This woman is seriously ill, isn't she? You don't want to kill me? Zhang Fan was silent for a moment and tried don't pretend you're not very angry at all. Zhang Zilin's expression was visibly flustered for a moment, and she quickly tensed her face and coldly said oomph, don't you give me a chance, I'll kill you for sure. Zhang Fan looked at Zhang Zilin in wonder. The woman's body glowed with a mixture of yellow and green, with no hint of red at all. Zhang Fan frowned, disguise? No way. Even if it's a disguise, it should be smiling on the surface, but in the heart, you actually hate to castrate yourself before killing. This is not the case at all now with Chapter Zilin. It's not like she could have known that I could sense the hostility in her mind. Zhang Fan narrowed his eyes, why did you come to me? Zheng Zilin then remembered her purpose and wondered how Ding Zhengli was doing. She said a little anxiously, I need drugs. Zhang Fan nodded, I have the medicine, but why should I give it to you? Zheng Zilin sneered, I'll beat you until you give it. Gun thief. Zhang Fan was speechless, where do you get the face to say such things? You didn't beat me and you got arrested by me. Ha. Huh. Zheng Zilin's pretty face reddened in annoyance, you're not even a man if you don't dare to fight me head on. Don't you know yourself if you are considered a man or not? Zhang Fan was too lazy to argue with the woman and repeated again, you didn't beat me and you got caught up with me. Zheng Zilin was mortified, let go of me and fight again if you can. Zhang Fan said calmly, you didn't beat me and you got caught up with me. Zheng Zilin was furious, would you say anything else? Alright. Zhang Fan smiled and took out a prescription, you want these drugs? Even the prescription he kept close to him was taken away. Zhang Zilin blushed and twisted her head, not wanting to talk to Zhang Fan. Oomph. Zhang Fan took out a bunch of medicines according to the prescription and placed them on the ground, you can have the medicine, but you have to answer some questions. In the face of life-saving medication, Zhang Zilin could only bow her head and took a deep breath, what do you want to know? Zhang Fan saw the yellow glow on Zhang Zilin's body slowly disappear, 
and the green color became more and more green. If so, maybe, this woman could be cultivated? Still too dangerous to keep around though. Zhang Fan's mind turned sharply, but his mouth asked, what's your name? Zhang Zilin, did you study martial arts or grappling or something? Zhang Zilin was secretly proud and pretended to be cold, studied, third place in the national women's sparring, grew up learning Chinese martial arts from my grandfather, no wonder it was so powerful. Zhang Fan thought to himself, with her experience of practicing martial arts and sparring since she was a child, coupled with the qi and blood explosion fruit, her personal combat power reached a height that was unimaginable to ordinary people. Zhang Fan asked the last question, it's so dangerous out there, why did you bring so many people out? He had thought that Zhang Zilin would hide it, but it turned out that Zhang Zilin had said it out loud, go to the TV rescue point, your ability to drill through walls is so useful, why don't you go over there? Hmm. Zhang Fan said suspiciously, the TV station has an officially organized relief site? Zhang Zilin looked puzzled, yeah, don't you know? Zhang Fan said with a straight face, I don't know, everyone I've ever met doesn't know, if we knew, there would have been hordes of survivors approaching the station, but Zhang Fan had never seen this before, could it be that, officials only take in official organizations such as the police and the police investigation, but not ordinary people? It doesn't make sense, why? Moreover, Zhang Fan had met a few police investigation survivors, and they didn't know about it either, do they only take in police investigative aliens? What's this about? Interesting, Zhang Fan's eyes narrowed, television relief site, not too far from the fortune center. I'd like to see what you're playing at. Chapter 62 Officer Zhang is really good. He really got the medicine back. Zhang Zilin was very confused aha? Uh -huh. What's this for? Why was I notified? But not you? Zhang Fan looked at Zhang Zilin. Do you still want to go to the TV relief point now? Zhang Zilin couldn't help but clench her fists in annoyance at her words, of course. I'm going to get all of these survivors to the TV relief site. And I'm never going to stay here unless you kill me. I don't want to fucking keep you. It's too dangerous. Jiang Fan nodded calmly good. Zhang Zilin froze, you're willing to let me go? Zhang Fan's heart stirred. Subspace anchor points. An invisible and odorless subspace anchor point fixes itself to the chapter Zilin. That way, as soon as Zhang Zilin got inside the TV relief point, he could pass in without a word. Zhang Fan instinctively felt that there was something odd about the TV station's rescue point. Nine times out of ten, if you go there by yourself, you won't get it right. One of the most critical problems is that one does not know where the real location of the salvage point is. The TV station is probably just a facade. It's likely that as soon as he teleports to the station, he's being watched. In this day and age, surveillance methods could not be defended against. He himself had perception. And the other exalted might have some mysterious means. So it would be better to let insiders like Zhang Zilin, who had received the news, explore the way. One only needs to keep an eye on Zhang Zilin. If Zhang Zilin had been shinned to death, Zhang Fan wouldn't be heartbroken. Anyway, the qi and blood burst fruit had already arrived, and Zhang Zilin was of little value, just a pretty woman, everywhere. Zhang Fan took out a pair of pliers and cut the wires on Zhang Zilin's hands and feet. Zhang Zilin immediately jumped up and looked at Zhang Fan suspiciously, you're not afraid I'll kill you? Zhang Fan laughed lightly, if it was before obtaining the qi and blood burst fruit, he was still a bit scared. He wasn't afraid now that he also had a qi and blood burst. Fighting head on, Zhang Zilin was no longer a match for herself at all. Zhang Fan just didn't dare to keep her around for fear of her sneak attack. As long as she's thrown far away, then there's no danger. And why not help yourself to a trip to the TV station? Zhang Fan said confidently, if I can get you once, I can get you twice. Zhang Fan's vigor shook Zhang Zilin's heart. She wanted to retort, but she had indeed been arrested. Zhang Zilin looked deeply at Zhang Fan and deliberately said with a cold face, one day, I'll get my revenge. Zhang Fan snorted, welcome to the delivery. Zhang Zilin grimaced. However, Zhang Fan saw even more green light on her body. Ha, mouthy woman. Zhang Fan approximately understood this woman's mentality. Mu Strong. She had practiced martial arts since she was a child and was so talented that she guessed no man could even beat her, making her look down on the weaklings. It wasn't until I was cleaned up by myself that I first felt a man's strength. Zhang Fan walked into the wall and disappeared in front of Zhang Zilin. Zhang Zilin stared at the wall not knowing what was going through her mind. Suddenly, a hand came through the wall and threw over a set of women's gym clothes. Zhang Zilin blushed, the clothes she was wearing were rotten and had to be replaced with new ones. Soul. Zhang Zilin bit her lip and changed into her gym clothes in shame. The size of the dress actually fit perfectly. This made Zhang Zilin blush even more. She couldn't wait to grab Zhang Fan and beat him up to relieve her anger. But she couldn't find the other party at all. LSP. Zhang Zilin could only curse and quickly walk up the stairs. She saw a group of survivors lying in the hallway on the 22nd floor. 
The survivors, though disheveled and yellowed, were clearly not under anyone's control and showed no signs of abuse. Humph, that guy's not bad. Zhang Zilin thought to herself that since the survivors weren't controlled, she wouldn't do anything more than that. Now that that group of survivors had reached the upper limit of her abilities, she walked quickly up the stairs. The crowd also saw Zhang Zilin and were envious and jealous, another pretty woman. Damn, I guess it's also going to look for Zhang Fan. People's hearts aren't what they used to be. Zhang Zilin came to the roof of the building, exploded with full force, and jumped back again. Zhang Fan kept staring at her as she left before putting his heart down. He moved his body. The after effects of the 500% burst were still fresh, and his muscles ached all over. Zhang Fan grimaced and went home to rest. Yang Jiwei glanced at his watch from time to time. Anxious, why isn't Officer Zhang back yet? The survivors who had followed Zhang Zilin over were also anxious. Zhang Zilin just went to get a medicine and said she'd be right back. It's been over an hour. Where is she? It doesn't matter if Zhang Zilin dies. What are we going to eat from now on? If Zhang Zilin hadn't gone out time and time again to look for supplies, they would have starved to death. What's to be done? I told you not to get the medicine. How can you survive an injury now? Alas, that Zhang Fan kid is not easy to deal with. The few students that Zhang Zilin had just saved looked at each other in disbelief. They gathered in a corner and secretly discussed what to do afterward. Sun Jianmen was fidgety. He had just distributed food and many people were not happy with the distribution. If Zhang Zilin doesn't come back, he's probably going to suffer. Sun Jianmen whispered Officer Zhang won't be caught by that Zhang Fan, right? That guy is notorious for being horny. No way. Yang Jiawei said flatly, Officer Zhang is very powerful. You have no idea how strong she is. How could a convenience store clerk possibly beat her? Sun Jianmen could only smile. When he came to his wife, Irene Lee, his face became unabashedly heavy. I have a feeling something is going to happen to that policewoman Cha. The boxes of instant noodles we hid. Should we share them with the guys? Aileen Lee said anxiously, old son, you can't share it. We're getting three days worth of food per person now. What about after three days? Are we going to starve? It was true that Mashan sure had a lot of food in his hands, but he couldn't afford to divide it equally among so many people. Sun Jianmen then made a mind to hide five boxes of instant noodles. He's very sensible, and three of the boxes are from Zilin Zhang. But now that Zhang Zilin doesn't come back, he's scared. If anyone found out, he or she would surely be killed. When Zhang Zilin did not return for a long time, the crowd was psychologically subtle. What if Zhang Zilin dies? What if Zhang Zilin was caught by Zhang Fan? What to do when a chapter Catalina is seriously injured? Just then, footsteps came from the stairwell. Zhang Zilin came back with an unusually rosy face and no signs of injury at all. He had also changed into a clean sweatshirt and looked in excellent spirits. The crowd was instantly relieved. And Sun Jianmen and Yang Jiawei surrounded them, Officer Zhang is back. Officer Zhang is finally back. Officer Zhang, did you get the medicine? Zhang Zilin took out a plastic bag of medicine. Dr. Du was ecstatic, so many. It's so full. A few of Ding Zhengli's injured men became even more agitated. One saved. The crowd was patting themselves on the back. You Officer Zhang is amazing. He really got the medicine back. Officer Zhang. Horse to horse. Officer Zhang must have beaten up that Zhang Fan and robbed him of a set of clothes. Zhang Zilin's cheeks blushed slightly. Robbing my ass? I got robbed back myself alright. She touched the small of her back. Sun Jianmen fawned and brought a box of soaked instant noodles and a bottle of pure water oh Officer Zhang. The food and water are divided. Trouble you director son. Zhang Zilin nodded and took the instant noodles and ate them. Sun Jianmen lowered his voice and whispered to Officer Zhang. I left three boxes of instant noodles for you. Just upstairs in 3303. He he he. Zhang Zilin put down the instant noodles and looked coldly at Sun Jianmen. What did you say? Sun Jianmen was startled. Too little? Sun Jianmen gritted his teeth and immediately took out one of his two boxes, four boxes. Look at my brain. I misremembered. Ha ha. Humph. Zhang Zilin violently slapped the instant noodles on the ground, splashing the noodle water all over the place. Sun Jianmen's heart was beating wildly, feeling that it was going to be bad. The situation was completely different from what he thought. Chapter 63, that's a good point. Next time, don't say it. It makes me sick to my stomach. Zhang Zilin shouted at Yang Jiawei. Yang Jiawei ran over in a panic, leader. What can I do for you? Zhang Zilin said, how many boxes did you split? Yang Jiawei was baffled, what? A couple boxes of what? Zhang Zilin frowned, instant noodles. Yang Jiawei giggled, which is a couple boxes. Just five packs total. Zhang Zilin's face became even more ugly. She didn't know if Yang Jiawei was playing dumb or had been tricked by Sun Jianmen. If it's the latter, then Yang Jiawei is a real loser. I asked you to distribute the supplies with Sun Jianmen because I was afraid of being tampered with by him. And you actually didn't know anything about it. 
How did you and Sun Jianmen distribute the supplies? Yang Jiawei said fearfully, Director Sun went in with a couple of guys to move it, and I kept a record of it. Zheng Zilin was speechless. Siren. In the past, the distribution of supplies was the responsibility of Ding Zhengli, and only now that Ding Zhengli was injured was it handed over to Yang Jiawei, but this guy just couldn't hold up the wall. Sun Jianmen knew that the situation was not right and anxiously pulled Zhang Zilin and Officer Zhang. Officer Zhang. Let me explain. Explain what? Zhang Zilin shook off his hand and snapped, I'm going to see what's upstairs. Everybody go. The other survivors also realized something was fishy. It sounded like Sun Jianmen was the one doing the maneuvering. And everyone stared at Sun Jianmen unkindly. Sun Jianmen is anxious and sweating. If it is really turned out, he will be dead. How this female officer is a dead brain. I have to think of something. Sun Jianmen clenched his teeth and also changed his face as he exclaimed to Officer Zhang. I have a question too. Those supplies are all from Ma Shanshir's rating of our block B. Why should they be equally distributed to you people? This is robbery. The supplies I kept privately weren't reserved for myself either. They were reserved for everyone in block B. If you don't believe me, ask them. He glared at the men who had followed him in to carry the supplies. These were his acquaintances who also shared in the benefits. They were all very astute and immediately reacted and followed right. Director Sun just said that these supplies are reserved for the survivors of Block B. Director Sun is a good man. You can't wrong him. What gives you outsiders the right to share our supplies in Block B? Faced with this kind of sophistry, Zheng Zilin was furious and laughed. Sun Jianmen retorted nonchalantly, Surname Ma is a black shark. Dare I ask Officer Zhang? Are you too? What qualifications do you have to rob our supplies? This is the supplies of all of us in Block B. Since he had already torn his face, he could only put on an appearance of petitioning for the people and grit his teeth. At once the survivors split into two groups. The survivors who followed Zheng Zilin, fearing that their supplies would be taken away, said angrily if it wasn't for Officer Zhang saving you, you wouldn't even be able to eat. And you're still distributing supplies. Distribution my ass. Mud. Ungrateful son of a bitch. The B-block survivors were originally hesitant to figure out what Sun Jianmen was playing at. But by those guys? They also stood their ground against the curse, it was originally my Shanshir who robbed us of our supplies. So who are you to share? Who let you live here? You are not welcome. Outsiders all get out. You are not welcome in the fortune center. Zheng Zilin went silent. Is this kind of survivor worth saving? A couple of things in a row today have made her very lost. Was he right or wrong to insist on protecting it for so long and with so much effort? Is it worth it? When Sun Jianmen saw Zhang Zilin's expression, he disdained it in his heart and said with affection on his lips, Officer Zhang, I'm also responsible for the residents of the Fortune Center. If you guys share all the food and leave, what about us people? The few people behind Sun Jianmen followed in agreement, yeah, right. Director Sun is most impartial. My lover is by no means a greedy person. Officer Zhang, you've misunderstood him. Zhang Zilin looked at Sun Jianmen and the others in disgust. She's just curmudgeonly, not stupid. She didn't want to spend a second with people like Sun Jianmen right now. But how to deal with Sun Jianmen? But it is a trouble. Sire. Sun Jianmen proudly cursed Zhang Zilin in his mind and righteously said to Officer Zhang. We are different. I am the director of the street office of this street. And I have to be responsible for the residents of the neighborhood. Pust. A steel bar appeared out of nowhere and pierced through Sun Jianmen's head from top to bottom. Pinning him to the ground. Sun Jianmen died instantly. The scene was dead silent. And everyone looked at the scene in front of them with horror in their eyes. At that moment, Zhang Fan crossed the floorboards and landed lightly as he smiled that's a good point. Next time don't say it. It turns my stomach. You. Zhang Zilin looked at Zhang Fan with a complicated expression. Not knowing whether to stop or not. Irene Lee screamed ah. You killed my husband. You have to pay for your life. She rushed towards Zhang Fan with her teeth and claws open. Bang. A gunshot hole appeared in her forehead and she flopped to the ground with a plop. Everyone at the scene was terrified and backed away. Zhang Zilin also blushed. How to kill even Irene Li. Zhang Fan smiled as he looked at a few of Sun Jianmen's connections. A red light was emanating from them. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. The stuff was all hidden by Sun Jianmen who told us to hide it. And I've only shared 10 packs of instant noodles. Big brother. It has nothing to do with me. It really has nothing to do with me. It's all because that old bastard Sun Jianmen told us to do it. Zhang Zilin couldn't take it anymore and blurted out, enough. Jiang Fan, they are not guilty enough to die. Jiang Fan smiled cheerfully, oh yeah? Bang, 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 bang. Several of the men were all shot in the forehead and died. The rest of them were scared shitless and backed away. Zhang Zilin finally couldn't stand Jiang Fan's killing spree and said angrily, what right do you have to take away the lives of others? Jiang Fan said indifferently, just because I have a gun and they don't. Zhang Zilin argued, you have a dangerous idea of the supremacy of force. 
We can't do that. We should take them to trial. Trial? Zhang Fan snorted and coldly asked back, Who will judge? You? Or them? Or who? Of course Zhang Zilin couldn't answer. Zhang Fan said word for word in times of peace. The courts represent the powerful. So the courts try. Now, I have the greatest force. So I have the final judgment. If I say he's right, he's right. If I say he's wrong, he's. Die. You. Zhang Zilin vaguely felt in her heart that Zhang Fan had a point. But it was hard to accept. And she weakly retorted, coquetry. Zhang Fan also returned a sentence without any politeness elm. Zhang Zilin was furious, but she didn't make a move to grab Zhang Fan, because that would simply be a self-inflicted humiliation. She looked down at the corpses of several people with some understated darkness in her heart. Good death. Zhang Fan looked at this arrogant and screwed up woman, the light on his body inexplicably greening some more, and his heart was very contemptuous. For a character like Zhang Zilin, when it comes to the rescue point, it's also the life of a gunman. This bitch isn't gonna get screwed, is she? Zhang Fan put away his gun and casually pushed open the door of a room as if no one else was there elbow. Follow me into the house. Zhang Zilin blushed and wrapped her hands around her body in a wary manner. What do you want? Again? Crap? The crowd looked at the two in shock. Are you two old lovers? The medicine that Zhang Zilin just got back, was it not snatched back at all? Rather, did she ask for it? Zhang Fan had too many supplies. Didn't he? Even medicines? But where? The survivors in Block B remembered the way Zhang Fan appeared just now, and had a vague guess in their minds that Zhang Fan should be able to penetrate walls or some other supernatural ability. That's why he was able to accumulate so many supplies. None of the survivors who made it this far are stupid. No wonder Zhang Fan had so much food, so he could go through walls to scavenge. Zhang Fan said impatiently if there's something I forgot to ask just now. Come in. What's the holdup? Zhang Zilin was relieved and inexplicably a little disappointed and her cheeks couldn't help but burn when she saw the expressions on the faces of the crowd. H.M. I'm not afraid of him. If he gets tough, I'll, I'll, I'll hit him. Hit it hard. Zhang Zilin gathered her courage and followed Zhang Fan into the room. Bang. Zhang Fan returned his hand and closed the door to the room. Zhang Zilin was startled and jumped to the side like a frightened rabbit. Zhang Fan lost his smile. Do you have to be such a wimp? Weren't you brave just now? Zhang Zilin said with a terse voice, who's afraid of you? Zhang Fan was too lazy to talk nonsense with her and asked bluntly, where did you pick your alien fruit? The Black Lychee. From, Chapter 64, Unknown Breathing Method. A wizard not seen in a hundred years hearing that it was a serious topic. Zhang Zilin relaxed quite a bit and didn't hide it, saying dryly roses on the police department yard wall. Rose, one more kind. Zhang Fan asked again, what about that old man on your team? Where did he get his from? Zhang Zilin was surprised, how do you know that Yang Jiawei has supernatural powers? Yang Jiawei's psychic ability is hearing enhancement, which has almost no outward manifestation and is very insidious. Unfortunately, in Jiang Fan's perception, the ginger in Yang Jiawei's body was clearly visible and could not hide from his detection. Jiang Fan smiled charmingly, not telling you. Zheng Zilin gritted her teeth in anger, then I won't tell you either. Jiang Fan pulled out his pocket, actually taking out a perception fruit from his carry-on space for. I'll trade you for this intel. It just so happened that he had eaten almost all of his perception fruits and needed Zhang Zilin's help as a toolman to replenish them. Besides, all his women have the ability to sense, so he can't favor one over the other. Zhang Fan was all about a bowl of water. On top of that, Zhang Fan also felt that Zhang Zilin's character was too square, and that she was likely to be undermined when she went to the TV station's aid point, and that giving her the ability to perceive would greatly improve her survivability, and would also help her to find out more information. Zhang Zilin breathed heavily, you still have the alien fruit? How come you didn't eat it? She was the beneficiary of the alien fruit. Zhang Zilin was born as a martial arts practicing wizard with unrivaled comprehension ability. But unfortunately, her grandfather said that her physical fitness was average, lower middle class even among women, which greatly limited her fighting ability. The burst fruit that she had eaten earlier, which greatly compensated for her weaknesses, had helped her too much. If another one, Zhang Fan asked again where did he find his alien fruit? Zhang Zilin immediately said, he grows green onions on his balcony. Zhang Fan frowned, the few powers he knew of all grew on different plants, and seemingly unrelated. Succulents, weeds, roses, shallots, creepers, there's a dickens of a connection. Could it be that the growth pattern of this thing has nothing to do with the plant itself? What does that have to do with anything? Does it have something to do with the location? Zhang Fan was clueless and could only stop for the time being. Zhang Zilin reached out, give it to me. Zhang Fan retracted his hand. Zhang Zilin's eyes widened in disbelief, I can't believe you're cheating. AI how hard it is to talk about trickery. Zhang Fan smirked, the price is not enough. 
You don't think one piece of information is worth one alien fruit. What else do you have that's worth something? Zheng Zilin was silent. She didn't think it was quite enough either. The alien fruit is worth thousands of dollars. But what else do you have to trade? Does he want? Zhang Zilin blushed, I am not going to stay here with you. You're dead in the water. Zhang Fan was speechless. He had pressed for her to stay. Such a dangerous woman is too exciting to be a pillow. It's better to send her far away. Zhang Fan didn't say anything and just looked at Zhang Zilin calmly, you're overthinking it. Think about what else you have of value. If not, then I'll take it back. Zhang Zilin got anxious and hesitated before saying, okay, I can teach you a breathing method. And if you're lucky, you can practice qi sense, but I can't guarantee it. Qi Gong? Zhang Fan snorted, stuff that fools kids. You think I'm stupid. Zhang Zilin said with a straight face, I didn't believe it either. Until the red mist descended, I suddenly felt this place. A fullness of breath. This breathing method was taught to me by my grandfather. And I practiced it since I was a child. And I didn't feel it. I just fell asleep faster. Now it's different. I can feel a distinct sense of airflow here during battle. Zhang Zilin pointed to the small of her back. Zhang Fan's pupils shrank. The location that Zhang Zilin pointed to is where, Ginger, is. She didn't have the ability to perceive. So how could she pinpoint the location of, Ginger? Is she not lying? What is she doing? Dan Tian? Inner strength? Why does it have to do with red mist? Doesn't the red mist cause everything to evolve? How come it's connected to Qigong and all this godly stuff again? Could it be the aura revival in the novel? Why does an aura recovery lead to the evolution of plants and animals? But why is it that everything evolves but humans generally don't? Aren't humans animals? Also, the fruit of enlightenment's powers have little to do with having to do with aura revival anyways. Jiang Fan thought wildly, the real cause of global evolution is becoming more and more mysterious. What can this stream do? He asked in a hushed voice. Just like this, Zhang Zilin's body stood straight, not exerting any force at all, but ghostly moved back more than a meter, as if she had been pulled violently. This time, the distance was close, and Jiang Fan clearly saw that there was light surging out of ginger in Zhang Zilin's body rushing all over her body, and then flickering away. Zhang Fan narrowed his eyes. He had always wondered what the Yi Ginger in the alien's body was for. Originally, he thought that Ginger was related to his powers, but when he used his powers, he never noticed any movement in Ginger. Now, he had finally seen someone who could call upon the energy inside Ginger. Just based on this, Zhang Fan couldn't give up this breathing technique. Good. Breathing method for this alien fruit. Zhang Zilin asked, what does this alien fruit do? Zhang Fan wouldn't tell her the truth and shook his head firmly, how should I know? I haven't eaten it. Zhang Zilin didn't think much of it, and only felt that she had asked a nonsense question, okay? Then I'll teach you this breathing method. Come on, do it with me. First, hold your breath. Well, in human terms, stay quiet and try to lower your heart rate as low as possible. Then, while breathing try to visualize floating, qi, around your body and absorb it. Zhang Fan asked, what's, qi? Zhang Zilin spread her hands, I don't know. That's what my grandfather taught me anyway. Jiang Fan was suspicious. Aren't you practicing now? Still don't know? Are you lying to me? Zhang Zilin snorted coldly. I just don't know. I can use this, Qi, but don't really know how it came to be. You just imagine there's, Qi, around you and absorb it. And maybe that's it. Anyway, you love to believe it or not. Jiang Fan frowned and continued to listen. There wasn't much he could do to disprove it. So he could only believe Zhang Zilin for the time being. The green light on Zhang Zilin's body didn't make him too suspicious. A few minutes later, Zhang Zilin finished telling all the details. Zhang Fan stood in place, slowly adjusting his breathing for his first attempt. Zhang Zilin instructed while proudly saying, you don't have to rush. I practiced for about half a year before I felt that the speed of falling asleep was significantly faster. And Grandpa said that I was a wizard that you don't come across in a hundred years. Karma? Only to see that Zhang Fan's body strangely retreated a distance, completely defying physical common sense. It was a short distance, about 10 centimeters, but it did move. Zhang Zilin's mouth dropped open impossible, absolutely impossible. Zhang Fan smiled and said, you're so stupid. It took six months to make it that simple. Zhang Zilin was confused, this isn't right. Grandpa clearly said that I'm a martial arts practicing wizard that doesn't come along in a hundred years. Zhang Fan comforted, well, I understand. Who isn't already Grandpa's sweetheart? Shit. Zhang Zilin's face darkened. She was devastated. Zhang Fan contentedly slipped the fruit of enlightenment into Zhang Zilin's hands. This ability greatly compensated for his weakness when he was fighting, where his consciousness reacted but his body couldn't keep up. This one is for you. By the way, what is the name of this breathing technique? Zhang Zilin said glumly, there's no name for it. When grandpa passed it down to me, he said it was called breathwork. We're clear. Zhang Fan nodded and jumped through the floorboards. 
disappearing in front of Zhang Zilin. It shouldn't. Zhang Zilin scratched her hair in frustration. Is grandpa really playing with me? Chapter 65, Be a Good Boy in Your Next Life. Don't cheat people Jiang Fan went through the wall to the top floor and was about to open a portal to go home when he suddenly saw several young men and women walking over. These people were obviously taken aback when they saw Jiang Fan. Wasn't that the alien who had just appeared through the wall? The boy at the head of the group was none other than Hu Liang Liang. And when he saw Jiang Fan, his eyes lit up. While Zhang Zilin went to ask Jiang Fan for the medicine, Hu Liang Liang climbed into a conversation with the survivor in Block B. He knew that Jiang Fan had an extremely large amount of food in his hands, and he had seen the photos of the group that Jiang Fan had sent in the other party's cell phone. Hu Liang Liang was surprised to see the famous school flower of the film and television academy Hu Lili among Jiang Fan's group of women. Lily who was famous in the film and television academy for her work as an online face anchor. He was not related to Hu Lili, but the two had similar names. So Hu Liang Liang remembered this schoolmate as soon as he enrolled. It's natural for students in film and television academies to want to be stars. Therefore, Hu Liang Liang couldn't even look at Hu Lili. What a self-indulgence. You can only make a few bucks as an anchor. How can you make as much as a star? Jiang Fan looked at a few people. The man was handsome and the woman was beautiful. And although the turnaround rate wasn't low when walking down the street, Jiang Fan was surrounded by beautiful women and didn't really look at them. Jiang Fan casually looked at the two girls and the system popped up a prompt frowny face Chin Xia Chin, age, 19, quality, 7 points, clearly beautiful, woman's virtue, 6 points, 1 boyfriend per semester, overall rating, 6, ding, does not meet minimum system requirements. Wu Bingqing, age, 19, quality, 8 points, sweet and lovely, woman's virtue, 3 out of 5, private life is rotten. Rune Mage, overall rating, 3, ding, does not meet minimum system requirements. Jiang Fan resented it in his heart. The two girls noticed Jiang Fan's gaze, but they were secretly proud and a little scared. Just now, they could see clearly when Jiang Fan killed someone forcefully, and it was obvious that he was a powerful alien. The two women weren't stupid and knew that now in this era, the alien was the big brother, and if they could hold on to Jiang Fan's thighs, then they would be able to live longer. The two women coincidentally showed their most beautiful side to Jiang Fan. Wu Bingqing stood up her proudest chest, Qian Xiao Qian. On the other hand, turned her 45 degrees sideways face to Jiang Fan, revealing a sweet smile. Jiang Fan frowned slightly. Hu Liang Liang took the initiative to step forward and smiled at Mr. Jiang. Hello, I'm Hu Liang Liang, a freshman student at the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Jiang Fan glanced at him, I don't know you. Jiang Fan's heart was moved. Hu Liang Liang's words reminded him, there are no more beauties recognized by the system in the Fortune Center. There should be a lot of Magic Ocean Film and Television Academy. If you want to increase your return multiplier yourself, maybe check out the Magic Ocean Film and Video Academy. Hu Liang Liang clenched his teeth, I'm Lily Hu's cousin. Hu Liang Liang had dealt with Hu Lily a few times, and felt that the schoolmate was a person with a weak character. And as long as he met her and bowed his head and begged for some time, Hu Lily shouldn't break down his lies. Hu Liang Liang is very unimpressed with Zhang Zilin. That woman is powerful, but a fool, can't protect myself at all. Following her will definitely get you screwed by her dead brain. Jiang Fan was different. If one climbs into a relationship with Hu Lili, then one is Jiang Fan's cheap brother-in-law. Is it not? Hu Liang Liang thinks about the future. Jiang Fan looked at Hu Liang Liang and slowly asked, Oh, how did you know Julie was at my place? Hu Liang Liang winced at Jiang Fan's eyes and said warily, That, that, I was just told. Jiang Fan didn't bother with him. He found Hu Yurai in his senses and opened the will link. Lily Hu. Hu Lily was trying on clothes on the bed when she suddenly heard Jiang Fan's voice and froze for a moment, only to react immediately afterward that it was Jiang Fan's supernatural ability. Hu Lily hurriedly sat up straight and said, Jiang. Jiang Fan asked, there's a Magic Sea Film and Television Academy student named Hu Liang Liang who claims to be your cousin. I don't have a cousin. Hu Li Yuli thought for a while before remembering the unassuming schoolmate, who's Hu Liang Liang. Oh, I remember. He's a freshman. We're just regular classmates. Okay. Jiang Fan broke the wall link and grabbed Hu Liang Liang's collar with a single reach. Hu Liang Liang was startled in Mr. Jiang, you, you, what are you doing? Jiang Fan smiled and patted his face, be a good boy in your next life and don't cheat. After saying that, he directly threw him out of the rooftop. Hu Liang Liang let out a horrified scream. Ah, ah, ah. A few seconds later, the muffled sound of something heavy hitting the ground came from downstairs. The remaining six students' minds went blank. Hu Liang Liang is dead. Jiang Fan turned his head toward them with a smile. The six students are freaking out. Ah, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Hu Liang Liang has nothing to do with me. They ran their asses into the stairs and never dared to go back up. Jiang Fan sneered and slashed a blue portal and walked in. He returned home and the women warbled around him. 
Lily Hu hurriedly said, Brother Jiang, did you just see Hu Liang Lian? I really don't know him well. She was afraid that if Jiang Fan suspected that the two were related, then she would be in big trouble. Jiang Fan smiled a well, he lied to me, so he's dead. Dead? Lily Hu shivered, not daring to speak again. Jiang Fan was decisive and ruthless, making several women afraid. They repeatedly admonished themselves in their minds that they absolutely could not deceive Jiang Fan. At the same time, they feel a strong sense of security. How could they have lived so well in the post-apocalyptic world without such men? Probably caged as an RBQ by other men long ago. Jiang Fan took out a bottle of ice cola and took a sip, asking calmly Lily Hu, you're a student of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Where were all the survivors from your school hiding when the network wasn't down before? Julie struggled to remember, well, most of it was in the student dorms, some of it in the first cafeteria, and the on-campus family area, where the vast majority of the teachers were, before the news finally broke. I heard that the college's senior management was trying to organize the teachers, distribute food as planned, and aid the students, so I don't know what's going on now. Jiang Fan mused, the students in the student dormitories, shouldn't last long, it's densely populated over there, food is scarce, and the students will soon have to go out and look for food, and then they'll be scattered all over the place, just like Hu Liang Liang's group of students, they should have escaped from the academy, the situation is different again in the family area, and the material situation there should be similar to that of the fortune center neighborhood, combined with the organization of the academy's higher-ups, there should survive a large number of survivors, but their situation must not be good either, or else the Hu Liang Liang few would not have to run out. Regardless of the efforts of school executives, food shortages are inevitable, as is hunger. When starvation reaches a certain level and you can't even stay alive, any organization is a bunker in the sand. Go to the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy tomorrow. Jiang Fan made up his mind. It's late at night. The woman beside him had fallen asleep. Jiang Fan got up and walked to the window, sat down cross-legged, and silently practiced breathing techniques. In the vision of perception, Jiang Fan clearly saw, as he exhaled and inhaled, Grains of invisible and colorless unknown energy particles slowly emerged from the air and flowed into the body, ginger. Along the way the cells of the whole body are voraciously competing for these particles and changing rhythmically in light and darkness as they breathe. This was exactly the reason why Jiang Fan was able to learn the breathing method quickly, at that time. After Zhang Ziling taught the mantra, Jiang Fan was surprised to find that the yinchi that Zhang Ziling couldn't see was clearly visible in perception. The rest is easy. Jiang Fan consciously absorbed these particles and quickly took in a portion of the qi. Jiang Fan absorbed the particles extremely fast, and after half an hour, Ginger was too full to continue. Jiang Fan could only stop. Chapter 66 8 Star Will Link. Jiang Fan's heart moved. The Qi within the Ginger instantly surged out, and his body strangely floated back more than two meters. It was even farther than Zhang Zilin. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly with the amount of Qi I have. I can make about 10 ghostly maneuvers, which is definitely a godly technique for sneak attacks and saving your life. Most of the time, there's no need to move that far at all. And if you can keep it to a meter or so, the consumption is even lower. However, Jiang Fan tried repeatedly, and in the end, even after the Juqi was consumed cleanly, he was unable to control the ghostly maneuver's moving distance to less than one meter. Every time, she started to gush out. It was out of control. My proficiency is still a long way off from Zhang Zilin's kind of casual maneuvering with a light weight. It looks like I still need to practice for a long time. Jiang Fan wasn't in a hurry. Zhang Zilin had practiced for 20 years and he was just getting started, which was already very good. Immediately after that, Zhang Fan began practicing qi and blood outbursts. After more than 10 hours of rest, Zhang Fan's whole body muscle aches and pains finally disappeared, and his body once again regained its health. 500% can only be used for emergencies, not for daily combat. Zhang Fan decided to use 100% as a starting point to learn Zhang Zilin's technique of short, localized bursts thus prolonging his combat endurance. He realized once he got his hands on it that the technique was also ridiculously difficult. When I watched Zhang Zilin fight with the mutated frogs before, her battle power rose and fell at her whim and with ease. It was only when I switched to my own hands that I realized that this technique is also extremely difficult. Zhang Fan practiced for a full two hours before stopping in frustration. He couldn't say that he had gained nothing. He could only say that he had made no progress. From the time the red mist descended, it's only been ten days in full count. Zhang Zilin practiced to the extent of being like a finger. How long do I have to practice? Could it be that Zhang Zilin is really a martial arts genius? Zhang Fan frowned. Right now, there are only two directions for me. Either that or continue to increase your overall fitness. Allowing yourself to increase the duration of your burst by 500% while speeding up your recovery. 
Either continue to increase your overall physique to the point where you can crush all enemies with a 100% or 200% burst. So, the goal is clear, to increase overall fitness. Damn it. Since tricks don't work for me, I'll just mang up the attributes. Instead of reinforcing your shortcomings with half the effort, you can reinforce your strengths to a degree that is difficult for others to match. Skill is not enough. Panels come in. Zhang Fan took out a handful of body strengthening fruits and will link fruits and ate them. 1, 2, 3. Finally, ding, will link raise to 7 stars. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up and he immediately clicked on the description of the will link frowny face will link, 7 stars. You can establish a will link with a creature in your field of vision to communicate in your consciousness at a distance of 100 kilometers. And the maximum number of will links that can exist at the same time, 20, you can create consciousness spaces with your will, pulling all linkers into them to communicate. With a limit of consciousness spaces that exist at the same time, 1, will plus 20. Will space. Zhang Fan immediately turned on his will link ability and saw the will bubble once again. Within the range of perception, all the creatures were surrounded by large and small seven colored bubbles, which looked very magical. The seven colored bubbles of will were like fragile soap bubbles, slowly shaking as if they would burst at the slightest poke. Zhang Fan's own seven colored bubble was the strongest of them all, almost motionless and extremely stable. Could it be the effect of increased will? How do you create a space of consciousness? Zhang Fan studied it for a while, and soon, a small, seven-colored bubble, just the size of a quail's egg, was separated from his bubble of will. Zhang Fan's consciousness plunged into it. It was an infinite expanse of pure black space. Zhang Fan's heart stirred. Space changed at Zhang Fan's whim. A pure white floor with no visible end instantly appeared under his feet. Overhead, it becomes a starry, twinkling night sky. The corners of Zhang Fan's mouth rose slightly interesting. A virtual world I can build and pull others in. This thing is a consciousness BBS. Zhang Fan once again used his consciousness to perfect this space. A holy golden mist appeared out of nowhere on the pure white floor. The golden mist rose up in layers until it was a hundred meters high. A huge, immense golden high chair appeared above it. Zhang Fan's figure instantly appeared on the golden high chair. He stood on the seat of the chair as if it were a vast stadium. I need to get bigger. Zhang Fan's body got bigger. It became as huge as a mountain peak. He sat slowly in his high golden chair overlooking the world of will. Suddenly, Zhang Fan felt his energy depleting at a rapid pace, and his mind was becoming more and more confused, as if he had stayed up for three days without sleep. This depletion feels nothing like physical exertion. Zhang Fan had a realization in his heart, maintaining complex scenarios takes a lot of energy. His consciousness rushed away from the tiny bubble of will. It was then that he was surprised to realize that he could actually see out of this bubble of independent will. White floors, sparkling stars, golden mist and high chairs. However, after his consciousness left, it was as if time stood still and everything froze. What is this? An archive feature? Zhang Fan also discovered that after the independent will bubbles time stopped. The energy was no longer consumed. It looks like it's not maintaining the consciousness space that consumes energy, but making it come alive that consumes energy. A seven star can build a space of consciousness. What about an eight star? Nine stars yet. Zhang Fan was very much looking forward to it and took out another handful of will link fruits and ate them. Clicker. Clicker. I don't know how much I've eaten and still haven't upgraded. After all, this will link fruit was a one star one, and even if his physique was suitable for will, it would be ridiculously difficult to rise to eight stars by eating a one star fruit. Zhang Fan ate until he regurgitated again and was all set to give up when the surprise came. Ding. Will link raised to eight stars. Zhang Fan was overjoyed and hurriedly checked the panel frowny face will link, eight stars. You can establish a will link with a creature in your field of vision and communicate in your consciousness at a distance of 200 kilometers. Maximum number of will links that can exist simultaneously, 30, you can create consciousness spaces with your will, pulling all linkers into them to communicate. With a maximum number of consciousness spaces that exist at the same time, 3, you can forcibly pull your target into conscious space. With success and duration depending on the gap between your will and that of the opponent, will plus 30. Zhang Fan immediately noticed the biggest change, the strong pull of consciousness. Zhang Fan realized with a simple thought that the uses of this ability were much more, like shady people. If one is halfway through a battle with an enemy and suddenly pulls the enemy's consciousness into the space of consciousness, and the enemy realizes that his body is high in the air, doesn't he have to be startled? And his body will naturally respond inappropriately. This is your own chance to beat your opponent. Chapter 67, Zhang Zilin wants to ask Zhang Fan for help. Su Jin's wish. It's just that the limitations of this ability aren't small. The success rate and duration depends on the strength of my will. Although I don't know what the exact percentage is. I guess it's hard for me to pull an enemy into the consciousness space if it's not a case of will crushing. Zhang Fan narrowed his eyes. 
There was a most suitable enemy right now. The mutant frog. Can I beat it without exploding 500%? Jiang Fan opened the panel. The current self is very powerful. Perception, 5 stars. You can see how friendly the target is to you. Yellow for neutrality. Red for hostility. And green for friendliness. The brightness of the light indicates the strength of the target. You can perceive the energy gathering points within the target. You can perceive inanimate objects. Perception range 100 meters. Physical strength enhancement, 4 stars. Combined physical strength plus 80. Voiding, 5 stars. You can void your body and travel through solids and liquids. The denser the solid. The greater the physical exertion, you can barely breathe in solids and liquids. Subspace shuttling, 9 stars, full level. Can't be upgraded any further. You in can open a subspace channel and travel to any location within 5. 000 meters. Up to 12 times per day, you can create subspace anchors with no range limitation. Up to 3 times per day. And maintain a maximum of 3 anchors at the same time. You can set your landing point on a spatial anchor point regardless of the distance. And you can attach a subspace anchor point to any object. Will link, 8 stars. You can establish a will link with creatures within your field of vision and communicate in your consciousness. Distance, 200 kilometers. Upper limit of concurrent will links, 30. You can use your will to establish a space of consciousness and pull all linkers into it to communicate. Upper limit of concurrent spaces of consciousness, 3. You can forcibly pull a target into a space of consciousness. The success rate and duration depends on the gap between you and the other party, will plus 30. The gap between your will, will plus 30. Chi and blood burst, 3 stars. You consume a large amount of stamina to briefly burst out of chi and blood, increasing your overall physique by 100% to 500%. The more you increase, the more stamina you consume. Also, the attribute panel has changed dramatically. Frowny face host, Jiang Fan, combined physical fitness, 90, average 10 for average adults, will, 40, average of 10 for an average adult, time to kill that mutant frog. Take a nap first to recover your expended energy. Jiang Fan didn't act recklessly. Just now experimenting with the consciousness space had consumed a lot of energy. So he returned to the bed to rest. 6A. M. Jiang Fan opened his eyes. Refreshed. The expended energy is fully restored. He smiled as he made his way to the living room where the women were up. Now that there was no electricity. If Jiang Fan didn't go to accompany them at night. There would be little other entertainment and they could only go to bed early. So the women get up very early. Su Mengqian asked gently brother Jiang. What do you want to eat this morning? She was a bit sultry. Jiang hadn't come to see her in days. There are more and more women. And she's getting more and more stressed. Jiang Fan casually said or just keep it simple. Fried eggs. Milk. And bread. It'll be good for lunch today. Okay. Su Mengqian didn't know what Jiang Fan was going to eat for lunch and meekly took out the food from the freezer and made it. Although there is no electricity now. But Jiang Fan took back a lot of ice from the supermarket. With the refrigerator insulation effect can be put for a few days without melting. Therefore. Jiang Fan only needed to take out some food and put it in the freezer every day. And let the woman take it. It was more economical. And there was no need for Jiang Fan to take food for every meal. After eating, Jiang Fan immediately began to move. His body passed through the layers of flooring and quickly descended the stairs. Can you eat frog meat? Can you eat mutant frog meat? Is there any benefit to eating it? Jiang Zilin enjoyed dry chewing the instant noodles. Ate three pieces of noodle cake in a row. And took a sip of pure water. Swallowing it with difficulty burp so full. She hadn't eaten anything this filling in days. If she hadn't swept up Ma Shan Shi's supplies, Zheng Zilin wouldn't have dared to be so extravagant. She couldn't help but think of the rabbit from yesterday. If I hadn't been sneaked up on by a mutant frog, I would have had roasted rabbit last night. Zheng Zilin swallowed meatily and wasted one of my bullets. Zheng Zilin gulped down the pure water, still holding the bottle upside down, sticking her tongue out and waiting for 10 seconds or so until the last drop dripped down before licking the top of the bottle fondly. Clean water is becoming more and more scarce and no one wants to waste it. I also don't know how many supplies Jiang Fan has in his hands. Can he borrow some? Zhang Zilin also remembered that she didn't seem to have anything to offer in exchange, so she could only give up unhappily. Knock knock. There was a knock on the door of the room. Zhang Zilin clapped her hands together and stood up, come in. John Jaweed walked into the room biting into a pasty leader. The big guys are asking, when do we leave? Zhang Zilin was torn. She got up early in the morning and went downstairs to take a quiet glance. The damn mutant frog was actually still sprawled out in the hall. She was completely confused as to why the mutant frog was staring at her. I didn't kill your parents. The most troublesome thing right now is this weird frog. If he wanted to leave, he could just jump off the building. The mutant frogs couldn't stop him. But what about the other survivors? There was no way the mutant frogs would allow themselves to take the others. Moreover, he couldn't just walk away. The mutant frogs were guarding the bottom. And if he left, 
The others would only be trapped and die here. Zhang Zilin would not allow herself to do such a thing. Zhang Zilin said glumly, wait a little longer. Should we go get help from that guy Zhang Fan? When Zhang Zilin thought of Zhang Fan, she remembered what happened yesterday and inevitably blushed a little. At the same time, a little angry. Soul, the old lady didn't feel anything. Not the first time, but say you hate it, you can't. Zhang Fan was still quite generous. An exotic fruit, which was a treasure that could not be bought for thousands of dollars. Anyway, she couldn't tell what the feelings were. Zhang Zilin hesitated and said wait another day. And if the mutant frog is still downstairs tomorrow, I'll try to lure it away. If she didn't leave tomorrow, she would have to beg Jiang Fan, with that guy's ability to drill through walls. Safely luring away mutant frogs should still be doable. Yang Jiawei smiled happily. He didn't really want to go to the TV relief point at all. One is too far away to be safe. The other was that he talked to the survivors of the fortune center. And it turned out that no one even knew that the TV relief site existed. It gave him a twinge of something wrong. But he didn't know why. He couldn't convince Zhang Zilin at all. Mutant frog. Good for you. It's only good that you keep it down there every day. Zhang Zilin waited for Yang Jiawei to leave. Then closed her eyes and continued practicing her newly acquired perception ability. This ability is so useful. Also thanks to. Zhang Fan Ah. Zhang Zilin couldn't help but think of Zhang Fan again. Magic C Film and Television Academy. Family Area. Building 16. This is the last survivor gathering point in the family area. In all, more than 200 survivors languished in the building. The 16 buildings were built on a low hill, totaling 20 floors. The terrain here is slightly higher, with red mist showing above the 18th floor. Room 1803. Su Jin looked at the floor in fear. As the red mist got higher and higher, it had spread to the 18th floor. She wanted to move upstairs, but it was full of school leaders and a few powerful shifters, so she had no business there. She wouldn't even be able to live on the 18th floor if she hadn't also gained healing abilities and was an associate professor. Alas, what can be done about this? Su Jin sat withered on the edge of the table, her hands on her delicate face. She recalled the rumors she'd vaguely heard yesterday, that an unseen monster had supposedly appeared at the school, eating people without spitting, and that survivors were going out and being dragged away every day. So far, no one has seen the real face of the enemy either. Su Jin winced. Somebody help me. Not long after, Zhang Fan came to a few meters below the ground of the mutated frog. The mutant frog spotted him and croaked a clear warning. Zhang Fan was undaunted and stared coldly at the mutated frog. First of all, the chi and blood burst 100%. In an instant, in the perceptual field of vision, Zhang Fan's entire body glowed with light. Come on, fight it. Zhang Fan drew out a threaded steel bar and brazenly rushed out of the ground. Chapter 68, Killing Mutant Frogs. The steel bar eerily stabbed out of the ground, hitting the soft spot in the mutant frog's lower abdomen. Pust. The steel actually slipped and slid out of the mutant frog's skin. Its skin is too slippery. It's all slime. Jiang Fan changed color slightly. However, under Jiang Fan's brute force, the unsharpened steel bar was not much different from a spear. Even if it didn't cut the skin, it still hurt very much. Quack. The mutant frog screamed in pain. It couldn't attack the enemy underneath its abdomen. And with a jump it jumped more than 10 meters away. Hiding into the red mist without saying a word. Staring at Jiang Fan with mysterious means. In its experience, the enemy could not see itself at this distance. Without realizing it, it shone like a torch in Jiang Fan's perception. Jiang Fan, however, sneered the beast is quite clever. Suddenly, the mutant frog opened its mouth and its tongue shot out. The distance was too short for Jiang Fan to react more. And between the flashes of lightning, he instinctively crossed the steel bar to block in front of his body. Duong, the tongue impacted on the rebar, which was bent directly into a U shape. At the same time, the tongue suddenly generated a huge viscous force, sticking to the steel bar and violently shrinking back. Jiang Fan's body was dragged uncontrollably, face to face with the mutant frog's big mouth. Want to eat me? Jiang Fan's gaze condensed, and a supermarket shelf appeared out of nowhere in the mutant frog's large mouth. Click. The mutant frog bit down so hard that it shivered in pain and immediately spat out the bloodstained shelf, while the steel bar came loose. Jiang Fan glanced at the U-shaped steel bar in his hand and casually threw it into space before taking out a huge construction site hammer. Since sharp weapons don't work, I'll come with blunt weapons. If 100% doesn't work, then 200%. Explode. In an instant, Jiang Fan's entire body was filled with power. The mutated frog looked at Jiang Fan with hatred and stomped down. Jiang Fan's body ghosted back two meters. Boom. The mutant frog's flippers stepped out of the way. The hammer followed. Bang. It smashed heavily into the top of the mutant frog's foot. All of a sudden, bones broke and flesh rotted, 
and the head of the hammer sank deep into the flesh and blood. Croak 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 croak. The mutant frog screamed in agony, and all the muscles in his body contracted into a ball of flesh. It jerked its foot up in pain. A huge force came from Jiang Fan, and Jiang Fan, along with the hammer in his hand, was teased to fly over 10 meters away. Boom! Jiang Fan back slammed into the outer wall of the building. His chest was stuffy, and his body's qi and blood floated. Jiang Fan was fuming and instantly turned on a higher level of qi and blood burst. 400% burst. He stomped on the wall and dashed back from midair. A hole was made in the wall directly by his stomping. Die for me! Jiang Fan let out a low roar, swung his hammer, and slammed it down heavily. The mutated frog immediately shot out its tongue, hitting the hammer squarely, surprisingly making a loud metallic clash. Duong! Get down to me! Jiang Fan fired again. The thick tongue couldn't resist the huge force and was pressed into the ground by the hammer. Even the mutant frog was brought down on its mouth and slumped to the ground for a moment. Bang! The mutant frog was afraid and turned his head to run, jumping to more than 10 meters away at once like a cannonball, his speed far exceeding Jiang Fan's running speed. Want to run? No way! Will link! Open! Jiang Fan's consciousness forcibly broke through the mutant frog's will bubble, pulling its consciousness into a blank will space. The mutant frog was about to jump again when it suddenly realized it was high up in the void, and was so scared that it picked itself up on all fours. The reality of the body plopped to the ground. Jiang Fan felt his energy depleting at a rapid pace. Even a will as weak as that of the mutant frogs, forcing it to pull its consciousness consumed a great deal. He hurriedly closed the will link, and at the same time caught up with the mutant frog, and the hammer cleaves down. Bang! 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 The mutant frog was smashed into a daze cooling and screaming miserably as it slumped to the ground, unable to move. Jiang Fan smashed dozens of hammers and realized that this thing had thick skin and a layer of slippery mucus on its skin. Even hammers don't work very well, it's extremely easy to slip away and have most of the power removed. Jiang Fan pulled out a shock bomb without saying a word. Voiding. Jiang Fan desperately tried to consume a huge amount of physical strength, and hardened his arm to penetrate through the mutated frog's skin and skull, inserting it into the frog's brain. He dropped the shock bomb into the frog's brain and pulled it out in a hurry. Boom! A muffled sound. The mutant frog's eyes bulged. Its seven holes bled, and its body convulsed. A few seconds later. Poof! The mutant frog slumped helplessly to the ground. Finally dead. Phew! Jiang Fan shut down the burst of qi and blood and heaved a breath. A short fight in less than a minute drained most of his stamina. This kind of explosive fighting is too much of a burden on the body. Luckily, it worked well. Finally killed the mutant frog. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly as he loaded the mutated frog's corpse into his carry-on space. Jiang Zilin was silent. Ding Zhengli is still dead. Several other wounded died. Only one young man who was bitten by a giant mosquito made it through the night. However, he is still running a high fever and who knows how long he will live. Dr. Du said guiltily, I'm sorry, Officer Zhang. Jiang Zilin sighed and shook her head, I don't blame you. The virus has evolved so much that the previous medications are a bit powerless. Chills ran down the spines of the survivors who had gathered around. It's too dangerous out there. And even with medicine and doctors, it's still hard to avoid death if you get hurt. They grew fearful at the thought that it was still more than 10 kilometers to the TV station. It's only been gone a short time and half of them are dead. Even that alien, Lu Gangfeng, is dead. By the time they get to the TV station, how many of them will be left? The crowd began to beat a retreat in their hearts. Come to think of it, the fortune center is actually pretty good. In the past, they had been trapped in the Pinghai Road police station, which had been covered by a red mist and had a narrow field of vision that was both depressing and terrifying. Now that they were high up in the fortune center with a great view, the crowd just didn't see much point in going to the TV station. Besides, even if you go to the TV station, will there be enough food? How is that possible? The room was very depressing. Just then, Yang Jiawei suddenly looked up a leader. That mutant frog downstairs seems to be fighting? Soon. The fierce croaking of mutant frogs came from outside the window. It sounded like the mutant frog even suffered a loss. Surprised, Zhang Zilin rushed downstairs and checked carefully on the third floor. The mutant frogs are gone? She watched cautiously for 10 minutes before going down to the first floor to check. The ground was covered in blood, debris and crushed plants. The mutant frog seems to have gotten into a fight with some kind of animal and suffered a loss. Zhang Zilin looked secretly chilled. What the hell kind of mutant animal? Can't even beat a powerful mutant frog. She didn't think much of it, though, get out while the mutant frogs are away. Zhang Zilin climbed the stairs in three steps and addressed the survivors, mutant frog is not here right now. I'm getting ready to leave. So whoever wants to go, pack up and leave in ten minutes. This is going away? The people who followed Zhang Zilin overlooked at each other. The B-seat survivor just stared coldly. 
hiking 10 miles to a TV station at a time like this? Looking for death? They're not going to. Only the six students from the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy had made up their minds to leave. Hu Liang Liang had offended Jiang Fan, so maybe one day Jiang Fan would come after them. Hurry up and get as far away from that big devil as you can. Zhang Zilin looked at the crowd. There were only about 10 or so people who had started to prepare their traveling clothes. She was a little disappointed, but she was also secretly relieved. There were too many survivors from before for her to really protect. It's good to have fewer people. Survival rate should be greater. I think. Zhang Zilin thought about it and decided to say goodbye to Zhang Fan. So she walked up to the rooftop, stored her strength and jumped over again. Chapter 69 I'll treat you all to a barbecue It took Zhang Fan a lot of effort to chop off one of the mutant frog's legs and then cut a dozen or so pieces of meat down from the leg. A group of women gathered around. Wow, that frog is huge. Jiang is too powerful. He can kill such a big frog. Are mutant frogs edible? Jiang Fan wasn't sure. He sliced several pounds of meat into egg-sized pieces, and the odd meaty aroma was overflowing. White Eyes and Coke were dead set on the frog meat, screaming impatiently, and White Eyes was drooling all over the place. Jiang Fan threw two pieces to the cat and dog. White Eyes and Coke immediately whimpered and gorged themselves. The two guys quickly finished eating and stared at Zhang Fan again, seemingly hoping to eat the next piece. Zhang Fan waited for a few minutes, and the cat and dog showed no signs of poisoning. At least it's free of potent toxins. Why don't you go downstairs and try a survivor? He threaded the meat on a steel skewer and grilled it, adding cumin, chili, and salt, rubbing it on the lamb, and making a zippy sound in the fire. In a short time, the meat was roasted and smelled better than raw meat. The women looked on curiously and couldn't help but gulp but no one dared to say they wanted to eat it. Zhang Fan was about to take the roasted meat and go downstairs to find someone to try, when he suddenly saw Zhang Zilin jumping over again, still landing in the room on the 20th floor from before. Zhang Fan's mind moved. Why don't he let Zhang Zilin try it as well? If she is poisoned, then die. Zhang Fan was indifferent. Anyway, Zhang Zilin was just an idle chess piece he put out, and had long been prepared for her to die at any time. Zhang Fan took out a bottle of cold beer from the freezer when he made up his mind and landed in front of Zhang Zilin through the layers. Zhang Zilin froze for a moment, how did you know I was coming? Before her words fell, she saw the fragrant kebabs in Zhang Fan's hands, and her mouth watered uncontrollably. Plus the smell of cold beer is an added bonus. Fresh meat was a very precious commodity nowadays, and he didn't know how Zhang Fan preserved it. Zhang Fan smiled and said was grilling some meat for dinner and happened to see you coming over. Would you like some? Zhang Zilin hurriedly shook her head and politely said, no need. Gollum. Zhang Zilin hadn't eaten meat for several days, and it was hard to suppress a gulp, and suddenly her cheeks turned red with shame. Zhang Fan shoved a handful of meat sticks and a cold beer into her hands and said enthusiastically eat, eat. Zhang Zilin stared dead at the roast and refused with difficulty, this is not good. Zhang Fan laughed, it's okay, I have plenty more at home. All right. Zhang Zilin was no longer polite and couldn't resist the temptation of the food and ate at a rapid pace. In a few minutes, ten skewers of meat were in his stomach. Ding! Zhang Zilin consumed five pounds of mutant frog meat and returned four. Zero 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 pounds. It has been put into the carry-on space. Zhang Fan looked on with a smile. Zhang Zilin blushed slightly, a little embarrassed. But she let go of eating anyway. Gulped down the beer in one gulp. The cool beer rushed down her throat. A line of ice from her mouth to her stomach. And Zhang Zilin's eyes narrowed in enjoyment. Ding! Zhang Zilin consumed one bottle of cold snowflake beer and returned 800 bottles. It has been put into the carry-on space. The weather is gradually reaching the summer. Day by day more and more sultry. Barbecue plus ice cold beer? Absolutely the most joy on earth. Thinking about what she usually ate. Zhang Zilin was shaken for a moment. Should I stay? It seems like life around Zhang Fan is pretty good. However, she immediately dismissed that thought. No way. I have to go to the official aid point so I can save more survivors in the future. Thanks. What kind of meat is this? It's delicious. Zhang Fan laughed, marinated lamb, quite tender. He was satisfied to see that after Zhang Zilin ate the meat, the yellow light on her body completely disappeared and the green light became brighter. Zhang Zilin nodded her head when she didn't expect Zhang Fan to use herself to test the poison, thanks for the hospitality. I'll pay you back later if I get the chance. But for now, I'm going to head out. Zhang Fan asked with a smile, to the TV station? Zhang Zilin contentedly rubbed her full stomach, hmm. That mutant frog got into a fight with whoever it was with. And it's not downstairs right now. So I'm going to leave while I can. You remain in this neighborhood. Make sure you keep an eye out for it. Mutant frog? It all went into your stomach. Zhang Fan didn't say much and just laughed, I'll keep an eye out. Zhang Zilin looked deeply at Zhang Fan. The first and only man in her life. Angry? I can't say that. After all, 
I'm the one who came to my door looking for trouble. If you can't beat someone, you have to admit it. Like, that's even less. The two of them have only known each other for two days full time. There's no emotional foundation at all. And the man is an LSP with a bunch of women hiding in his house. Zhang Zilin wanted to say something, you. Zhang Fan pulled out several boxes of bullets and handed them to Zhang Zilin, it should work for you. Zhang Zilin live longer so that you can get more information for yourself. There was more green light on Zhang Zilin, thanks. I'll be off then. Bye. Zhang Zilin nodded and turned to leave. She walked up the stairs to the rooftop and looked back at the stairway. Zhang Fan didn't follow. Alas. Zhang Zilin lost it slightly inside. In this day and age, one parting can be forever. However, Zhang Zilin quickly pulled herself together, gathered herself, and built up her strength to jump back. Somehow, after eating the meat, she felt her body filled with power. About as long as it's been since I've eaten meat. Zhang Zilin didn't think much of it. A few minutes later, she was downstairs with a group of less than 10 people, plunging headlong into the vast, dense forest. Zhang Fan stared at her with his senses before he let go of his heart. He returned home and had Su Mengqian roast another 20 pounds of mutated frog meat, then took it downstairs himself to distribute it to the survivors, it's not easy for everyone, so this meal of lamb kebabs is on me. The crowd was pleasantly surprised. Most people have already started eating, Li Qingxuan strictly selected brand, flavored capers in order not to starve to death. It was so hard to get a proper bite of meat, and none of them were so excited that they burst into tears. Everyone couldn't wait to eat their share. Only a few were still wary and didn't eat immediately. Can Zhang Fan have such a good heart? After realizing that the others ate without any abnormalities, they didn't hold back for too long. The aroma of the roasted meat was just too tempting. Moreover, the others were all green-eyed and staring intently at the meat skewers in their hands. And if it wasn't for the fact that Zhang Fan was still standing here to calm the scene, they might have all just robbed them. They had to eat it in a hurry. Zhang Fan saw everyone eat before he left in satisfaction. With only Zhang Zilin testing alone, Zhang Fan would not be at ease. Maybe Zhang Zilin is an exception? The sample tested must be large enough to be on the safe side. He would only try the mutated frog meat if everyone was not poisoned. Zhang Fan found an unoccupied room and went in through the wall. Then opened the portal and walked into subspace. Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Here it is. Zhang Fan casually designated a landing spot. He stepped out of the portal. And sure enough, he was off a bit. It is more than 100 meters from the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy a commercial street outside a nearby residential area. Both sides of the road were lined with stores, now covered in layers of vegetation, with only the plaques on the stores still faintly visible. Happy Flower Shop, One Cut Barber Shop, Nor Supermarket, Bear Pet Grooming Shop. Zhang Fan suddenly stopped in his tracks. In his perception, a radiant white fox was quietly looking at himself in the Bear Pet Grooming Shop a dozen meters away. Zhang Fan was secretly on guard. The white fox was not large, the size of a normal pet white fox. But its brightness was only a shade weaker than that mutated frog. And it also had a ginger inside that emitted blue light. The white fox's eyes also emitted a faint blue light. Using some sort of pupil technique to sneak a peek at Zhang Fan through the thick red mist, Zhang Fan did not turn around and pretended not to notice the white fox's appearance as he continued to walk forward, only using his perception to stare at the other party dead on. Eventually, the white fox didn't launch an attack and turned around to burrow into a hole and leave. Zhang Fan sighed in relief and immediately sank into the ground, advancing towards the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Chapter 70, Professor Su Jin, come with me. Knock knock. Su Jin's room door was knocked sharply. Mr. Su, Teacher Su, open the door. Mr. Chui is dying. Save him quickly. Su Jin Cho hurriedly jogged to open the door, and a group of people carried a male teacher covered in blood into the room. It's none other than Chui Yang, a professor in the biology department. Chui Yang's face was ghastly white, the man was already unconscious, and there was a thick insect chevron sticking out of his chest, with blood still gurgling out. Su Jin was startled what's going on here. One man said quickly, a big guy that resembles a heavenly cow sneaked up on Mr. Chui. That thing was at least one meter tall and could fly. Luckily we ran fast or else. As he was saying this, he was pushed away from behind with great force. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Can't you see that old lady is hurt? A fat woman with a five short stature squeezed through the crowd and walked to the front row, crossing her eyes, what are you looking at? No eyes at all. The crowd was indignant, but no one dared to say anything. The woman's name is Ding Yuxiu, Principal Lupin's wife. She's also the most powerful shifter among the school's survivors. Unlike Su Jin's healing ability, Ding Yuxiu's supernatural ability was a powerful fighting ability. She can transform her entire body fat into muscle while fighting, and her skin becomes as tough as pig skin making her extremely strong in combat. 
Ding Yuxiu relied on this ability, and together with Lu Ping, firmly held the survivor leadership of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Ding Yuxiu sat in front of Su Jin with a big horse, revealing her fat arms that were about as thick as a man's calf. A superficial scratch of about an inch was broken on the arm, and it didn't even bleed much. Ding Yuxiu said impatiently, Su Jin, quickly heal me. It hurts so much. Su Jin looked speechless. If you come a little later, the wound will heal itself. However, Ding Yuxiu had always been overbearing, and Su Jin didn't dare to refuse, so she could only timidly whisper, Why don't you wait? Mr. Ding, I'll treat Mr. Chui first, he's dying. A male teacher also spoke up, Yeah, let Mr. Su treat Mr. Chui first, Mr. Ding you're not doing anything, wait, what nothing? Ding Yuxiu stared with bull's eyes, his pitted face grimacing, What if you get infected? The virus is so strong now, and you're not the ones who got hurt, wait. Wait for what? Hurry up and treat me, he said, and slammed the table. Bang! Su Jin shivered in fear, shrinking his head in fear. Okay, okay, I'll heal you first. Ding Yuxiu proudly extended his hand. She knew that it was difficult for Su Jin's physical strength to hold on to treating two people consecutively, and if she treated Chui Yang first, when would it be her turn? What if I get infected? She didn't want to take a single risk. As for Chui Yang's death, it was none of her business. The crowd dared to be angry. This woman has always been rampant due to her strong fighting skills, combined with the sinister Lupin. What made the crowd even more dissatisfied was that although Ding Yuxiu was a strong fighter, she was the first to use her ability to run away every time she encountered danger, and hardly ever played any role. And once she returned from her search for food, she was going to rely on her shifter status, claiming that she simply couldn't find as much food without her own protection, and grab the best loot first. No one ever dared to say anything about Ding Yuxiu's behavior. This bitch was as powerful as an ox once she unleashed her abilities. It was simply not something an ordinary person could handle. And the other two shifters didn't dare to defy her. At that moment, a voice came, Jean Jean. The crowd turned around to see a tall, thin man dressed in black. The principal, Lu Ping. Lu Ping faked a glance at Chui Yang and then said, Teacher Su, let's treat Teacher Ding first. Teacher Ding was also injured to cover Teacher Chui. And Teacher Ding is also our strongest combatant. In case of danger, we will have to rely on Teacher Ding to protect everyone, right? The crowd was disdainful. Protection my ass. It's always Ding Yuxiu who runs first when something happens, okay? However, under Lupin's grim gaze, no one dared to say anything. Su Jin timidly said oh, okay, fine. She didn't dare to delay. She just wanted to hurry up and cure Ding Yuxiu and then treat Chui Yang. Chui Yang's face was getting ugly. He couldn't carry it for much longer. Su Jin placed his hand on Ding Yuxiu's arm and green light slowly appeared as the wound rapidly healed. After only a few seconds, it was back to normal, not even a scar to be seen. Ding Yuxiu wiped away the blood, and there was not a single trace on her skin before she was satisfied and stepped aside. Su Jin was so tired that her face paled a bit. The crowd all looked at Su Jin with envy. This ability was too powerful. Lupin immediately changed his face and urged, Mr. Su hurry and treat Mr. Chui. Mr. Chui won't be able to make it soon. Su Jin took a few hard breaths only to feel blackness in her eyes, and she knew that she was experiencing symptoms of hypoglycemia, let me slow down for a moment, healing consumes a lot of energy, and she's been eating poorly for a while now, so it's a bit hard to carry on with continuous healing, the crowd comforted Su Jin, take a break if Mr. Su is tired, MS, Su, here's a candy bar, just got it from outside, everyone was sucking up to Su Jin, no one knew that they would beg Su Jin to save their lives one day, Lupin said with justice, Mr. Su, Hold on a little longer. You're our only doctor. If Mr. Chui can't, it's hard for Mr. Chui's lover to avoid. Su Jin was aggravated in his heart. Didn't you ask me to treat Ding Yuxiu first? Now you're blaming me? However, she couldn't bear to see Chui Yang die. We were all co-workers and Chui Yang was a good person. Su Jin stood up holding the table, her body shaking a little, and a female teacher hurriedly reached out to support her. Ding Yuxiu had always looked at the pretty Su Jin with disdain and bristled in disdain oomph. What's the point of pretending to be a Linda J? Su Jin was angry in her heart, but there was nothing she could do, so she can only bite her lip and take a few deep breaths before pressing her hand on Chui Yang's chest. Just then, Chui Yang's breathing stopped. Su Jin panicked and touched Chui Yang's neck pulse and shook his head in disappointment. There was a dead silence in the room. Ding Yuxiu's face darkened. Damn it! How the last name Trey died. She wasn't a fool and knew that once Chui Yang died, everyone would be resentful of her. As expected. Everyone looked at Ding Yuxiu with displeasure in bad eyes. Ding Yuxiu said anxiously, What are you looking at me for? It's none of my business. It's Su Jin who's too slow in her healing. 
the crowd's faces became even more disdainful. People aren't stupid. It's not like they can't see what's going on. Lupin's face changed slightly, and with a twinkle in his eye, he hurriedly said, Alas, people can't return from the dead. Mr. Su, you mustn't blame yourself. In his words, he implicitly threw the blame on Su Jin's head. Su Jin was very aggrieved, but she had a weak character and didn't dare to say anything. Snap. Gee, that's wonderful. The crowd turned around to see a sunny, handsome young man walk into the room clapping his hands. The young man was none other than Zhang Fan, who laughed as he walked old man. You've done a beautiful job of wreaking havoc. Lupin's face changed and he said with a dark expression, young man, how do you talk? Which department are you a student of? How come I haven't seen you before? Ding Yuxiu looked even more viciously at Jiang Fan. Her thick carrot-like fingers clenched tightly together. Jiang Fan didn't even look at her. He had just seen Ding Yuxiu launching her ability to escape from the ground and followed her all the way here. Ding Yuxiu's fighting ability is simply not enough to be feared. Jiang Fan walked calmly to Su Jin. This female teacher was very beautiful and carried an indescribable aura. About the reason that she practiced dance and form for years. She stood casually with her waist and back straight, coupled with her swan-like neck and delicate features. She appeared to be standing tall. Jiang Fan laughed, Professor Sajin? Su Jin giggled, I am. Which one are you? Jiang Fan smiled and said, come with me. I have plenty of food there. He looked at Su Jin's healing ability, which was extremely precious and had to be brought home and gotten into his hands. Before Su Jin could speak, Ding Yuxiu jumped up and said angrily in no way. Su Jin is not allowed to go anywhere. Su Jin was a life-preserving treasure. She would never allow anyone to take Su Jin away. When Su Jin heard this, her heart became even more displeased. What gives you the right to restrict my movement? Chapter 71, Direct Robbery. Of course, Su Jin couldn't just leave with Jiang Fan. It's not like she knew Jiang Fan. Compared to the unfamiliar Jiang Fan, most of the survivors in the school group, at least most of them were colleagues and students, and most of them were still trustworthy, except for Ding Yuxiu and some of the leaders who were more annoying. Since you don't leave school, you have to maintain relationships. Su Jin immediately drew a line with Jiang Fan and said, I'm sorry, I don't know you and I'm not going with you. Ding Yuxiu was overjoyed and proudly said, See, kid, Su Jin is from our school. Who are you? The others were relieved when they heard Su Jin's words. No one would want the nanny to leave. Lupin followed all this. Sir, are you a student of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy? Why haven't I seen you before? He stared at Jiang Fan with a scrutinizing gaze, trying to put pressure on Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan smiled faintly without a single change in his expression and repeated it again, Professor Sajin. I want you to leave with me. I have plenty of food and a safe place to live. Su Jin firmly shook his head, no, I won't. Ah, what are you doing? Jiang Fan directly carried Su Jin, turned his head and headed out. Let go of me. I'm not going. Help. Su Jin struggled desperately. Unfortunately, her little power was not even a scratch in front of Jiang Fan. Everyone else looked dumbfounded. How the hell can you just rob someone? Their instinctive first reaction was to call the police, but immediately afterward they reacted. Where would there be a police investigation to deal with it now? Ding Yuxiu was anxious. If Su Jin was snatched away, what if she was injured again when she went out in the future? Who would treat herself? Ding Yuxiu stared with bull's eyes and blocked in front of Jiang Fan put her down. Jiang Fan casually slapped his hand, and Ding Yuxiu was hit so hard that blood flowed from the corner of her mouth. Jiang Fan said indifferently get out of the way. Ding Yuxiu was furious, how dare you hit me? You actually dare to hit me. I'll fight you. In an instant, Ding Yuxiu's whole body's fat flesh turned into hard muscles, and he rushed towards Jiang Fan with a big stride, Wang Beiji punching over, looking for death. Jiang Fan's eyes turned cold as he threw a fist afterward, blasting Ding Yuxiu in the face. Click. Knock. Ding Yuxiu flew out backwards and collapsed softly after hitting the wall heavily. Ha! Huh? Mister. Ding was defeated? The crowd was again horrified to find that Ding Yuxiu's entire face was sunken in, and it looked like there was more out of breath than in. Su Jin's entire body was stunned. On the side of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, due to the school leader's early organization of teachers for self-preservation, although everyone was starving, although some people died for various reasons, in the end, there was not such a brutal killing. She had no idea that the survivors out there had progressed to the point of killing at every turn. Jiang Fan, however, would not let it go. You have to cut the grass to get rid of the roots. And since you've done it, the enemy has to die. There were all sorts of different powers. So hell knows if Ding Yuxiu could recover. He's not going to leave himself open to trouble. Jiang Fan followed up with another cross kick. Bang. Click. Ding Yuxiu's neck folded into a weird 90 degrees. Died on the spot. Ah. Su Jin was so frightened that she fainted on the spot. The scene was silent. 
allowing Jiang Fan to carry Su Jin out the door. Lu Ping was even more terrified, not daring to say a word at all. It was then that the two shifters rushed down the stairs in a panic, who's making trouble? Ain't you, boy, crap. Halfway through their speech, the two saw the beaten to death Ding Yuxiao, shivering with fear, and could no longer say a word. Ding Yuxiao has actually been killed by him? It's only been a few seconds? Although they had psychic abilities, they couldn't even beat Ding Yuxiao, so how would they dare offend Zhang Fan? Zhang Fan glanced at them calmly. The two men were about to pee in fear and took the initiative to make way, not daring to block them in the slightest. Smart. Zhang Fan nodded with satisfaction, carried Su Jin downstairs, and in the gaze of a group of survivors, he strode into the red mist. Lu Ping and Zhang Fan left before rushing to the front of Ding Yuxiao's body. He looked at his dead wife. His heart was both shocked and angry, and he had a feeling of the end of the world. He knew that his behavior during this time had ruffled feathers, but as long as he had Ding Yuxiao, he wasn't afraid. Now Ding Yuxiao is dead. Lu Ping only felt that a great disaster was on the horizon. And under the shock and anger, he completely lost his mind, pointing at the two exalts and saying angrily, why don't you guys arrest that kid? He killed Mr. Ding. He's committed a crime. He must be shot. The two men frowned and exchanged glances. Mud, that's your wife. You don't want to take revenge yourself. And you're asking us to take the fall? Wanted to fart eat it. The middle-aged alien said unhappily, Principal Lu, you can't say that. That guy is so powerful that Mr. Ding can't even beat him. How can we possibly deal with him? The other young alien's eyes were also out of place, staring coldly at Lupin. I used to call you headmaster because your wife Ding Yuxiao was really powerful and we couldn't beat her. Now that Ding Yuxiao is dead, what is your principal worth? Where is the bullshit school now? And shoot? Can't even find a police check. Shoot Nima ah. Lupin colored and frothed at the mouth as he cursed, bullshit. If you can't beat me, you don't have to? Can't you make an effort? Your kind of thinking is dangerous. You are powerful exalts. So you should lead by example. When faced with danger, rise to the occasion and resolutely protect the collective safety. The young alien listened with even more disgust. He's just a freshly minted lecturer and has always been at the bottom of the ecosystem at the institution. He doesn't get his share of the benefits, and he does all the dirty work. Later, when the red mist descended, he was able to obtain his powers with great difficulty, and then he was bullied by Lu Ping and Ding Yuxiao with all sorts of tactics. Every time he got supplies, he, as a shifter, actually didn't share as much as a few of the other old men leaders. This had long since made him extremely dissatisfied in his heart. Now Lupin was relenting again, causing anger to appear in the young alien's eyes. Mad. I was bullied for not having powers, and I was still bullied when I gained them. Isn't this alien power for nothing? Lupin was still spouting official rhetoric, trying to use give himself time to think yesterday I also gave you an executive meeting to unify your thoughts. Why have you all forgotten how the organization educated you? He didn't notice that the young alien's fists had clenched silently. At this time, a middle-aged woman rushed in in a panic and jumped on Chui Yang at once, Old Trey, Old Choi, you're dead. What are you going to do with me and the child if you die? Woohoo! Lupin had to stop. Alarmed, there was a good-hearted female teacher with red, comforting eyes, Mr. Wang, don't be sad. People can't die without being able to live again. I'm sorry for your loss, Mr. Wang wailed, where's Su Jin? Why didn't Su Jin save my old Chui? A female teacher who was close to Su Jin opened her mouth, just now. Mr. Ding broke a layer of skin on his arm, but Principal Lu forced Mr. Su to have to save Mr. Ding first, and you know that Mr. Su doesn't have the stamina to treat two people in a row. Mr. Wang looked at Lupin incredulously, Principal Lu, is what Mr. Sun said true? Lupin stalled and stumbled, Mr. Wang, actually, Mr. Ding's injuries just now were quite serious. The young shifter said sorrowfully, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Any later and the wounds would have healed themselves. Lupin's face changed. M.S. Wang couldn't stand it any longer and swung her nails at Lupin Lupin. You heartless son of a bitch. Lupin clutched his head in fear and stepped back. And in the blink of an eye, he was tackled to the ground by Mr. Wang. Mr. Wang also got mad and rode on top of Lupin, grabbing Lupin's hair with one hand and scratching up hard with the other. Barely. Lupin screamed miserably, blood dripping from his face. Pull her away. Quickly pull away from her. My face is rotting. Sterilize me. The crowd pulled on Mr. Wang in a false manner. Practically no effort at all. The young alien even quietly kicked twice as hard as he could in the confusion. Kicking Lupin so hard that he forked over and couldn't speak at all. A few minutes later, Lupin passed out. The crowd finally pulled Mr. Wang away. Looking at Lupin again, he was beyond miserable. There were bloodstains all over his face, arms, and neck. 
A piece of flesh was also bitten off his shoulder by Mr. Wang. The crowd looked at each other in disbelief. With trauma this severe, it's now dead. The young alien sneered darkly. Zhang Fan didn't go home immediately, but carried Su Jin around the school, observing the other groups of survivors in the academy with his senses in the meantime. The fact that there was a large group of survivors in Building 16 meant that the neighborhood wouldn't be in too much danger. Just so he could see the state of the other survivors. If you find a beautiful woman, take them all back together. If in danger, then run away. If you really can't run away, you can still throw Su Jin down as a meat shield, right? Chapter 72 The Trail of the Weird Monster In no time, Zhang Fan found six groups of gathered survivors in several buildings of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. More than a dozen, less than seven or eight. Males are predominantly male and females are underrepresented. Moreover, Zhang Fan also discovered that three of the groups of survivors had one to two exalts in them, plus the four teacher alters from Building 16. The number of alterans in the entire Magic Sea Film and Television Academy had almost reached 10. Zhang Fan wondered if the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy has such a large percentage of alterans? Immediately afterward he reacted. Nope. It's not that there's a large percentage of alters here. It's that the group of survivors who don't have alters are gradually dying out. And what's left is naturally the group that has alters. It is foreseeable that various groups of survivors will experience this change. In the brutal competition for survival. The altered have a unique survival advantage and will surely become the ruling class of each survivor group. The human world order is undergoing an unstoppable transformation. At that moment, Su Jin awoke. She looked around fearfully. Everywhere was shrouded in a red mist and her vision was minimal. Su Jin said with a sobbing voice of horror you, you, where the hell are you taking me? Zhang Fan smiled and said, take you to enjoy yourself. Of course Su Jin didn't believe it. Where else could he go to enjoy his happiness now? She pleaded fearfully, can I not go? Jiang Fan said wistfully, you think so? Su Jin was on the verge of tears, why are you robbing me? I'm just an eater. I can't do anything but waste your food. You, please let me go. Please. Big brother this female professor was quite cute. Jiang Fan put Su Jin down and with a flip in his hand, a bag of beef jerky appeared eat it or not. Five spice. Slightly spicy. Quite tasty. Magic? Su Jin was a bit confused, but his mouth unconsciously swallowed and weakly said it can. Can we change the sade flavor? Jiang Fan was about to burst out laughing, good. Five spice beef jerky disappears and a bag of satay flavored beef jerky appears. Su Jin watched timidly. His throat kept gulping. Gollum. Jiang Fan tore open the package and shoved it into Su Jin's hands eat. Satay flavor escapes. Su Jin couldn't resist the temptation and ate freely. Her favorite food is beef jerky, but practicing dance all year round. In order to maintain her body shape, usually like beef jerky again do not dare to eat more. Only dare to eat a small piece a day. By the time the red mist comes down, you can't even eat. So where's the beef jerky? When she suddenly saw beef jerky today, she simply couldn't help herself. Besides, you don't have to stay in shape now. You usually can't even eat enough to stay in shape. Oh, it's so good. Su Jin almost ate with hot tears. Zhang Fan looked at Su Jin's cue box with a smile frowny face. Su Jin, age, 29, quality, 9 points, pavilion, woman's virtue, 10 points, keeping her virginity. Single parent family. Disappointment in marriage and love, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Jiang Fan was very satisfied. That's good. This body is holding up well for me. Su Jin quickly finished eating, and shivered her slender fingers one by one before stopping with intent. Jiang Fan took out another pack of satay flavored beef jerky. Still eating? Su Jin was surprised, not really. Her mouth said no, but her hands had taken the beef jerky and clutched it tightly in her arms. Greedy cats would be good. Jung Fan took out another bunch of snacks. Chocolate. Chips. Nuts. Prunes. Su Jin's eyes couldn't even roll. Come back with me. Jung Fan shook his snacks like a weird uncle. Yes. Su Jin made a difficult decision. Her face flushed red. At school. You can't even get enough to eat. Follow this man and at least there's good food. As for what would happen tonight. She had already guessed. But now she could only bury her head as an ostrich and pretend not to know. What else could a man save a beautiful woman for? Su Jin knew exactly where he was going to end up. He just didn't want to think about it. Anyway, he had already been caught, and he couldn't run or fight. What else can we do? At least it seemed like Jiang Fan wasn't bad to women. In times like these, go one day at a time. Jiang Fan laughed to okay, so walk me through the school and tell me roughly how many survivors are left. By the way, Su Jin, however, hurriedly waved his hand in horror let's just go back. There are monsters in the school that eat people. Monster? Jiang Fan frowned, what does the monster look like? I don't know. No one has seen it. Su Jin fearfully pointed in a direction and said, especially over at the playground. 
Almost every time one of our guys goes over there, they get dragged away by one or two. The playground? Zhang Fan looked at the direction of Su Jin's finger warily. The perception range was only 100 meters. The playground was a few dozen meters away from this side, and Zhang Fan could only see the edge of the playground. Didn't find anything though. Nope. Zhang Fan noticed the anomaly. The density of animals was significantly less in the direction of Su Jin's finger. Also, the closer you get to the playground, the lower the density of animals. Even into the middle of the playground, the plants were lush, but there wasn't a single animal. Zhang Fan was instantly covered in sweat. Something is indeed odd. He couldn't help but think of the bizarre magic sea third people's hospital. The playground is very similar to the hospital inpatient unit, but the two places are far apart. Why is that? What's the common denominator? Zhang Fan suddenly remembered. Both of these places border the river. The Jinxiu River crosses the city of Magic Sea, and the Third People's Hospital of Magic Sea and the Film and Television Academy are both located along the Jinxiu River. The inpatient department of the Third People's Hospital of Magic Sea is right next to the Jinxiu River. Zhang Fan quickly asked, Is that the Fairview River over there by the playground? Su Jin froze for a moment and nodded, Yeah. Next to the playground is the school's iron fence enclosure and beyond that is a riverside path, and over the road is the Fairview River. No wonder. Zhang Fan was basically certain that this anomaly was 9 times out of 10 related to the Jinxiu River. It's supposed to be some kind of creature from the river that's crawled onto land. The plants and animals on the ground have evolved so wildly, and the creatures in the water are certainly no exception. On Earth, 70% of the surface is seawater. Some kind of terrifying existence must have been born in the boundless ocean. Zhang Fan said decisively, Go. With a stroke of his fingers, he tore open a blue film. Su Jin looked dumbfounded. This, this, what is this? Zhang Fan didn't explain and pulled her into the blue film. Su Jin walked in confused. Zhang Fan didn't let her stay in subspace much longer and quickly opened the subspace anchor point at home. Su Jin was stupidly pulled out again. She was shocked to realize that in the twinkling of an eye, she had actually arrived in a room with high-grade decoration. The table was set with sumptuous food. The floor was spotless, and the furniture was clean. There were several other women in the room with extremely good facial features. They wore all kinds of high-class clothes and delicate makeup, and their appearance was different. But all of them were great beauties. Su Jin froze. For a moment, she was in a trance. The end times are over? I'm back in civilization? Several women looked at Su Jin curiously. Suddenly, Huli Yuli was surprised, Mr. Su, why are you here too? Chapter 73, Shock Su Jin. Nine Star Will Link. Su Jin said in surprise, Julie. You're here too. Hu Lily excitedly held Su Jin's hand and said, Great. Teacher Su. You're still alive. This was the first acquaintance she had met since the end of the world. Her family was from out of town. She didn't have many friends in the magic sea, and her parents and relatives had long been out of touch. Lily who was happy to see her former teacher now. Su Jin was relieved to see Hu Lily. Meeting her students also gave her some comfort in her heart, while at the same time being a little shy. Looking at this room of beautiful women, one could tell what kind of person Zhang Fan was. Hu Lily should have followed Zhang Fan as well. I'm going to follow him from now on, right? Su Jin's cheeks flushed red as she stole a glance at Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan, however, did not care about the woman's small mind. He first used his perception to observe the survivors downstairs. Fortunately, no one has been poisoned so far. That's good to know. I wonder how Zhang Zilin is doing. Zhang Fan was ready to see how she was doing at night. So he said, let's eat first. Su Mengqi and several women immediately said, okay, Jiang. Zhang Fan sat down on the main seat. The women sat in a circle in the order in which they joined. Su Jin was so embarrassed that he didn't know where to sit. Zhang Fan pointed to the very end in order. You sit at the end. Bai Xinjia said gently, ms. Su, come, sit next to me. Oh. Su Jin squirmed and sat down. It was then that she took a closer look at the food on the table. It's just too sumptuous. Stir fried shrimp. Squid and sea cucumber soup. Dongpa pork, stir fried peas, sweet and sour fish. There are plenty of staple foods too. Noodles, steamed buns, rice, and buns. There was no shortage of beverages. Coke, Sprite, green tea, pure water, beer and liquor. This table, before the end times, would have cost at least two, zero 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 dollars. In this day and age, the value is even more immeasurable. Su Jin covered his mouth in shock. She just couldn't imagine actually eating them. Zhang Fan looked around the circle with satisfaction. Tang Xueluo, Su Mengqian, Hu Lili, Lu Mengyao, Tian Tian, Bai Xinjie, Su Jin. But the big table is almost full again. And there's a bit of a shortage of rooms. Zhang Fan pondered. On this floor, except for Tang Xueluo's house, 
which was better decorated. All the other homes were average. The problem with the renovation is, to a lesser extent, the safety issue. After the red mist descended, the world was very dangerous, and the more dispersed the women lived, the greater the danger. In case of danger, Jiang Fan might not be able to rescue them in time. While he didn't care if the woman died or not, it was better not to die if he could. Can you at least swipe supplies for yourself? No, it's time to change to a more suitable living environment. Jiang Fan thought secretly, it's best to stay off the ground and live in a good environment. Jiang Fan turned his head to look out the window. In the sky, a building towered above the clouds. It was the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower. The Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower is the landmark of the Magic Sea, 500 meters high. In addition to the TV signal equipment, the Pearl of the Magic Sea has a luxurious revolving restaurant at 450 meters above sea level, as well as a top-class hotel. It's so high up that after a power outage, survivors can barely get up there. Even if you go up there, you will soon die from lack of food and water. But it suited him, Jiang Fan, perfectly. No one from the ladies took chopsticks. They all quietly looked at Jiang Fan. Su Jin was very greedy and could only wait along with the women. Jiang Fan retracted his gaze and smiled as he picked up his chopsticks and took a bite. Sweet and sour fish is good. Everyone eat it. The atmosphere lightened up. The women warbled and chatted. They were accustomed to eating good food after following Jiang Fan and were not in a hurry at all. Eating and chatting about the interesting events of the day. There's a survivor over in Block B coming over to see Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee is a good man and told him about the mutant capers. E.E. -E, don't mention that stuff during dinner. It's disgusting. Coke is a bit of a buildup. Too much food. Sister. Brother Jiang gave you your lipstick. Can I borrow it? Hu Lily came over to Su Jin's side and helped him with a few pieces of meat. Teacher Su. Eat up. Sister Su's craftsmanship is excellent. Su Jin took a bite in a formal manner. She was very much hoovering up some food. But she was simply embarrassed to be here for the first time. Hu Lily stopped after two bites. Took a bottle of pure water and drank it. Chatting with Su Jin. Su Jin desperately suppressed her urge to eat furiously and tried her best to eat the food with an elegant posture. Julie. Why aren't you eating? Ugh. I've gained another pound. I can't gain anymore. Hu Lily rubbed her belly in depression. Look. M.S. Su. I've grown a little belly. It's all because of sister Su. Her cooking is so delicious. Su Jin was speechless. How many people are starving out there? And you're still too fat? Su Jin glanced at Jiang Fan, who was saying something to Su Mengxian, and inquired carefully, you guys eat like this every day? Julie said casually, well, pretty much. Everyone's stuck here and there's nothing else to do. A few of my sisters and I just learned to cook from Su Mengxian. And look, I made this braised carp. Su Jin said in surprise, you have plenty of food? Julie laughed, we definitely can't tell the survivors outside about this. But since brother Jiang brought you here, you're a sister. So of course we can tell you. Brother Jiang has a carry-on space. And he knew long ago that the red mist would descend and prepared countless supplies in advance. Enough for us to eat for 10 lifetimes. So, just feel free to enjoy your happiness here. Su Jin blushed slightly. It made her a little uncomfortable for a student to say so nakedly that she was a sister to her. At the same time, she was surprised that Jiang Fan actually knew in advance that the red mist was coming. Why? As for the carry-on space, she was already a believer. Just now. Jiang Fan magically took out a bunch of snacks, so he should have taken them from his carry-on space. Just then, Su Jin saw Jiang Fan take out a black lychee and casually hand it to Su Mengqian, today's meal was good. This perception fruit rewards you. Su Mengqian said excitedly, thank you brother Jiang. She gave the girls a smug look before she proudly devoured the black lychee. The women congratulated on their lips, but in reality, they were secretly jealous in their hearts bitch. Bitch. Humph. Let's see you fool around when I learn to cook too. Su Jin said in shock, that's, 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 wasn't this the alien fruit he had eaten earlier? The treasures that countless survivors were swooning over were actually taken out so casually. Julie said casually, it's just an alien fruit. Jiang has plenty of them, and as long as MS, Su performs well, you'll be rewarded as well. Really? Su Jin was really incredulous. There are more treasures this precious? Don't be so dramatic. At that moment, an enormous husky walked in. Su Jin was startled. Seeing that the women were all talking and laughing as usual, they barely calmed down. The husky plopped down next to Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan jerked his dog's head and casually took out a subspace shuttle fruit and threw it into the husky's mouth. Clack. Clicky. The huskies ate it. Su Jin Man was numb. She glanced at the women, who also had no expression, obviously used to this scene. Su Jin secretly marveled. While the appearance of a single abnormal fruit outside had to be beaten out of the dog's brain, Jiang Fan's abnormal fruits were so numerous that they could be fed to a dog. Su Jin's entire body was in a daze after eating. 
She was already secretly glad in her heart that it was fortunate that Jiang Fan had snatched her here. This place was simply heaven. After Jiang Fan finished his meal, he went to the rooftop of the building to practice breathing techniques and ghost maneuvers. After practicing, he took out another handful of will link fruits and ate them. The fruit of will is the best fruit for him, so of course he should get up to 9 stars as soon as possible. 1, 2, 3. After eating an unknown number of handfuls, Jiang Fan finally heard the system prompt frowny face ding. Will Link raised to 9 stars. Jiang Fan's eyes snapped open and immediately opened the panel to check frowny face will link, 9 stars. You can establish a will link with a creature in your field of vision to communicate in your consciousness at a distance of 500 kilometers. Maximum number of will links that can exist at the same time, 100, you can use your will to create a consciousness space, pulling all linkers into it to communicate. With a maximum number of consciousness spaces that exist at the same time, 10, you can forcibly pull your target into conscious space. With success in duration depending on the gap between your will and the other person's, you can create illusions in the target's consciousness. With the success rate and duration of the illusion depending on the gap between your will and the opponent's, will plus 50. Creating Illusions Jung Fan couldn't wait to try it out. Chapter 74 Creating Illusions Changes in Ginger In his perception, Jiang Fan found a random female survivor in Block A who was close to 50 years old. Jiang Fan knew her. Her name is Zhang Lan Lan, a rich woman who once seduced Zhou Tianhao in a group. However, the wealth of human society is now worthless, and Zhang Lan Lan has become one of the countless survivors, lying on the ground and starving. Zhang Lan Lan was about to get sick, and the light in his body was noticeably dimmer than the others, and the wool bubble was a bit more fragile than the other survivors, shaking so much that it looked like it could shatter at any moment. It seems that physical condition also affects the strength of will. Jiang Fan's heart moved, and his consciousness directly pierced Jiang Lanlan's will bubble, using to create a plate of fragrant roast duck in her consciousness. Jiang Lanlan looked at the sky outside with his eyes lifeless, his body burning with pain. The day before yesterday, she was bitten by a small black bug and then started a high fever, without a doctor or medication. Jiang Lanlan could only wait to die. I'm going to die? Jiang Lanlan thought unwillingly. I have three other houses that I collect $20. 000 a month in rent. I'm so upset. Why me? Damn bugs. So many people don't bite. Why did they bite me? Zhang Lanlan's heart was filled with resentment, but there was nowhere to vent it, nor did she have the strength to do so. The last of the food had been eaten and she had been starving all day, so she could only lie on the ground and wait to die. Just then, she suddenly saw that there was actually a plate of golden roast duck on the balcony railing. Zhang Lanlan froze. Obviously not in the last second. Am I hallucinating from hunger? She couldn't help but lick her dry, cracked lips. It must be a hallucination. Immediately afterward, the aroma of roast duck came. Zhang Lanlan, who had endured hunger for a long time, began to produce saliva like crazy. Scented. It's true. Zhang Lanlan could no longer endure the temptation of the roast duck, completely ignoring the anomalies, and with great difficulty he climbed up and waddled towards the roast duck. Roast duck. My duck. Her face twisted in frantic as she grabbed the roast duck a greasy feeling coming from her hands. She was just about to stuff it into her mouth when the roast duck disappeared, then reappeared, hovering half a meter above her head. No, my roast duck. Zhang Lanlan struggled to claw his way to higher ground, screaming in rage, that's my roast duck. Mine. Unfortunately, every time I'm close to catching it, the duck switches places. Zhang Lanlan's hands danced around, anxious and angry. The other survivors in the room watched in silence as Zhang Lanlan waved her arms into the air of the balcony. Zhang Lanlan is crazy. Maybe it's hunger. The fever has fried this woman's brain. Finally, the roast duck appeared one meter beyond the bars. Without hesitation, Zhang Lanlan lunged out of the iron railing and grabbed at the roast duck in midair before falling to her death. The other survivors just watched numbly another jump. Zhang Fan withdrew his gaze with satisfaction. He had a certain knowledge of illusions. Illusions can simulate not only sight, but also smell and touch, and presumably taste. Creating illusions is much less consuming than pulling consciousness by force. The simpler the illusion created, the less energy it consumes. The more realistic the illusion, the greater the consumption. This ability is useful. Zhang Fan came up with all sorts of ways to shade people in an instant. So far, he had two nine-star abilities, subspace travel and will link. Combined with qi and blood burst and physique enhancement, there is both frontal combat ability and the ability to sneak up and save your life, pulling it off almost across the board. In addition, there was the healing ability on Su Jin waiting to be harvested. Jiang Fan smiled. He took out another pile of perception fruits and ate them. Unfortunately, it took a long time to eat it and it didn't rise to the stars. It was slowly getting darker. Jiang Fan was ready to practice the breathing technique a few more times before going home to rest. The white fox, 
The trail of creatures landing in the water and the large number of aliens found today made him vaguely worried about the future. Powerful enemies are increasing. The world is getting more and more dangerous. And strength is the root of everything. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Zhang Fan repeatedly filled up with qi and then consumed it all. Four times in a row. Through constant practice, he noticed some changes. The overall capacity of gas seems to have gotten a little bit bigger. Each time it filled with qi, the number of ghostly maneuvers from 10 increased to 12. The capacity can still be increased? Zhang Fan was pleasantly surprised. He looked at the green ginger inside him. Ginger, surprisingly, it's grown. Also, a few protrusions have grown on ginger. And the overall appearance is more stretched out and brighter. Could it be that? Qi, be a fertilizer for, ginger? Zhang Fan practiced for a while longer and went home. The women had gone ahead and unscrewed dozens of large buckets of pure water and put a full tank in the bathtub. Su Jin asked curiously what's this for? Tang Shuelua laughed, take a bath. Bathing with pure water. Su Jin couldn't believe it. Many people outside didn't even have enough water to drink. And Zhang Fan actually used pure water to bathe. How many supplies did he actually stockpile ahead of time? While Su Jin was shocked. His heart was vaguely determined to stay here, compared to starving outside. This is heaven. No one in their right mind would want to leave. When Jiang Fan returned home, Lu Mengyao took the initiative to go forward and tenderly helped Jiang Fan take off his jacket. Bai Xinjia brought wet wipes and wiped Jiang Fan's sweat. Even Tian Tian, who hadn't been too proactive, came forward and handed Jiang Fan a bottle of his favorite ice Kuo Lu. There are more and more women, and every woman is too afraid of being left behind to press on and relax. Su Jin looked at a group of women competing in front of Zhang Fan, a little overwhelmed and a little blushing. Zhang Fan just enjoyed the services of the women and didn't say anything. After taking a shower, he went back to his room to rest. The women glanced at Su Jin jealously and went back to their rooms in twos and threes. The living room was soon left with only Su Jin and Hu Lily. Lily who said enviously, as per usual, tonight belongs to you. Ah, Su Jin was shy. 6 A. M. The sun rises. Su Jin is still asleep. Jiang Fan walked to the window. The golden sunlight sprinkled on the boundless red mist, glowing a magnificent orange color. If you only look at such a beautiful view, who would have thought that under the red mist has turned into a dense forest of primitive killing? More and more large trees poked their heads out of the red mist and grew wildly into the sky. A variety of birds hover over it. They are smart and very rarely fall into the red mist. Suddenly, a cat of enormous size leapt out of the canopy, grabbed a bird, and landed back in the red mist. Jiang Fan quietly watched all this silently observing the state of the survivors downstairs with his senses. The night passed and still no one was poisoned. Moreover, Zhang Fan keenly realized that the bright light on them had gotten a little brighter. By the looks of it, not only is the mutated frog meat not poisonous, it seems to be good for the body. Zhang Fan was secretly delighted. What's the status of Zhang Ziling? He opened the blue portal and stepped into subspace. In the dimly lit subspace, the subspace anchor points on Zhang Ziling's body were as conspicuous as torches. Chapter 75, New Uses of Subspace, New Alien Power, Life Inspiration. Looking at the subspace anchor point, Zhang Fan discovered some new uses for subspace. All along, due to the Nine Stars subspace shuttle, it could only teleport to within 5 kilometers. So Zhang Fan could only see subspace within 5 kilometers. The subspace beyond 5 kilometers is an infinite dark void. Zhang Xiling stepped out 5 kilometers away, and in subspace it looked like she was in the middle of nothingness. However, the subspace anchors on her body illuminated a sphere with a radius of about 100 meters, and Zhang Fan could thus see the scenery in this area. Right now, Zhang Zilin's group is sleeping in an unoccupied building. As the day went on, two more of the ten people she had taken had disappeared, about to die on the road. The crowd is still sleeping, and Zhang Zilin's glow is normal, and there seems to be no sign of poisoning. Wait, Zhang Fan suddenly reacted. One could actually see the light of Zhang Zilin and the others? It's an effect of perception ability, and one is more than 5 kilometers away from them. The range of perception is only 100 meters. Zhang Fan squinted his eyes and thought, the perceived range is 100 meters, and the spherical area illuminated by the anchor point is also approximately a 100 meter radius. Is this 100 meter illumination range brought about by perception? So can I take it this way? Subspace doesn't count towards perceived distance. Perception can be transmitted, non-destructively, through subspace to a subspace anchor point which is then used as the center of the subspace anchor point to perceive 100 meters in all directions. Simply put, the subspace anchor point acts as a relay station, casting my perceptual abilities to faraway places. A light flashed in Jiang Fan's mind. If subspace doesn't count distances, that portal can also be seen as a relay station. After all, 
one was standing in subspace and was also able to perceive objects outside the portal, as it was now. For example, standing in subspace, he could sense the women outside the door, as well as all the objects within a 100 meter radius of the portal. That being said, the portal can indeed be viewed as a perception ability relay station, casting perception ability to anywhere within 5 kilometers. Jiang Fan's heart moved, and he found a random place in the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy and opened the drop point portal. In an instant, sensory abilities were dispersed along the portal. All animals and plants within 100 meters came into his perception. Jiang Fan immediately closed this door and opened another one at the Third People's Hospital. The dead silent inpatient unit is also included in the perceptions. Ha ha ha. It's true. Jiang Fan laughed freely. It turns out that I still have such a top-notch surveillance technique at my disposal that I didn't even notice it myself. It has always been extremely distorted to see the real world from subspace. Not to mention the flora and fauna. Even the buildings were barely visible. Therefore, Jiang Fan hadn't cared too much about subspace's surveillance ability. Now he realized that just opening a portal anywhere within 5 kilometers was the equivalent of sticking an eye of perception there. Everything within a 100 meter radius of the eye of perception was in full view. There are so many benefits to this tactic. Quick, easy and safe. It's even hidden. Think about it. If one opens a portal underground, or opens a miniature portal a millimeter smaller, who would be able to find it? Instead, he himself could pass through the door and monitor everything in the vicinity without risking his own physical body at all. The only limit is the number of times, because subspace shuttles can only open doors 12 times a day. Jiang Fan was in an excellent mood. He stepped out of subspace back into his room to check on last night's haul. Ding. One day ago, Su Jin consumed a pack of bread and returned 900 packs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Su Jin consumed a pack of cookies and returned 900 packs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago, Su Jin consumed a carton of milk and returned 900 cartons. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Thirteen days ago, Su Jin consumed one enlightenment fruit, life inspiration and returned 900 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, life inspiration two stars. When consumed, you can gain the life inspiring ability. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Life inspired? Isn't it therapy? Jiang Fan flipped his hand and one black lychee appeared in his hand and he ate it without saying a word. Life inspiration, two stars. You can drain the target's future life force to quickly heal their current injuries. Healing slash depletion ratio equals 1 to 100. Jiang Fan frowned. Consuming future life force to heal present injuries? This stuff is supposed to seriously reduce life expectancy, right? And, with a healing slash attrition ratio of 1 to 100, it's extremely wasteful. In other words, this kind of ability, one could only use it to save the day, not as a regular means. Ching Xuan Li remains valuable, but, it doesn't matter if it's used to treat other people. Anyway, it wasn't like the person being treated knew that they would lose their life expectancy. But Jiang Fan could use this tactic to treat the other person and then take the opportunity to ask for a large amount of return. Of course, this deal is only for some special cases. For the most part, if Jiang Fan took a fancy to the other party's supplies, he would simply rob them. Even if it was a human being, he could just rob it, just like he robbed Su Jin. How did the survivors of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy ever dare to say anything? There is no equality when the difference in power between the two sides is too great. At that moment, Su Jin woke up. She looked at Jiang Fan sheepishly. Jiang Fan took out a royal sister costume and handed it to her, it should suit you. Well, Su Jin nodded shyly. Jiang Fan asked, how much do you know about the shifters of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy? What abilities do they each have? The Magic Sea Film and Television Academy isn't too big. The survivors were basically students and faculty. Jiang Fan felt that Su Jin should have some understanding. Jiang Fan's perception plus subspace could easily monitor all the exalted but couldn't see their abilities and needed some information from Su Jin. Su Jin really knew, and returned to there are four shifters that I know of. The most famous one is called Lu Junpeng. This person is a rich second generation student who is especially brutal. He used to kill quite a few teachers and students in order to grab supplies, but he was so strong that there was nothing everyone could do. When Su Jin talked about Lu Junpeng, an expression of fear appeared on her face. Like Jiang Fan, Lu Junpeng was extremely horny. However, unlike Jiang Fan, Lu Junping was a psychopath, and the women he got his hands on never survived more than three days. And when you're done playing with yourself, you'll give it to your men until you're played to death. Su Jin is very afraid of Lu Junping. If Lu Junping hadn't been unable to fathom Ding Yusho's strength and was unwilling to take the risk, it was estimated that he would have long since been caught by him and played to death. Luckily, 
I've now left the Magic Ocean Film and Television Academy. Jung Fan stared. Oh, he has two abilities. What are they? Su Jin said. Oh, one of the most obvious abilities is that he's extremely fast and can't see with his eyes. The other ability is what everyone guesses is about seeing through red mist or something like that. Because he never crashes into anything when he's moving at high speeds. Jiang Fan nodded. This speculation is very reasonable. There are few survivors who have survived this far who are stupid. Those without brains would have died long ago in the brutal competition for survival and become the trophies of others. Who else but Lu Junpeng? Su Jin continued, there are two others you've met. The ones you robbed. The two teachers who stopped you when you brought me back. The younger one is called Lu Jin. And his ability is super endurance. He has very strong endurance. The older one is Prof. Wang Hai, with the ability to be as light as a swallow, able to jump from high places without getting hurt. The last one is a girl majoring in music, called Gu Renying, and like Hu Lily she's also my student. Chapter 76, Condensed Water. Lu Junpeng was ready to go on a killing spree. Gu Renying's ability is water condensation, which allows her to condense pure water out of thin air. Relying on this ability, she is living a nourishing life with a group of survivors, and even Lu Junpeng is not willing to offend her. After all, Lu Junpeng also needs Gu Renying to provide water. Whether or not there are any aliens left, I don't know, since I basically don't go out. I hear about them from other people talking. Condensation of water? Jung Fan was interested in this ability and asked, Is Gu Renying pretty? Even the Will Link, which could only, call, could become so powerful after being upgraded to 9 stars. Condensation is about as weak as it gets. Moreover, 9 times out of 10, condensation wasn't a physique type ability and it would be less difficult to ascend to a high star on your own. If Gu Renning could pass the system evaluation recognition, he would be able to add another supernatural ability to his own. There's no such thing as too much skill. As for women, they're just a bonus. Su Jin was speechless. You're really not pulling your punches. If it was a peaceful time, and her man was talking to her excitedly about another sister, Su Jin would definitely want to slap him. But now, if she left Jiang Fan, she doubted she could survive a day. Su Jin could only commiserate. Beautiful. Gu Renying was the most famous school flower of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. The Gu family is a musical family. Gu Renying's father is a Guzheng master. And Gu Renying plays the Guzheng extremely well. And Gu Renying's mother is the chief of the national song and dance troupe. Very good. Zhang Fan's eyes revealed a smile. He hadn't wanted to go back to the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. After all, there are traces of monsters in the water there. Now it seems that we must at least bring back this Gu Renning. As for the other survivors, whether or not they would die after making water without Gu Renning, Jiang Fan didn't care at all. Jiang Fan also noticed one more thing. As time went on, the number of beautiful women who survived became fewer and fewer. Even a place like the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, which was supposed to be filled with beautiful women, was only left with Su Jin and Gu Renning and two beautiful women who were pretty enough. Both of them survived because of their powers. Jiang Fan thought. The beautiful women who could survive until now. Except for the individual who had unbelievable luck. It was estimated that they all had supernatural powers. All the beautiful women without powers should be dead. Weakness and beauty have always been the best prey in a brutal killing spree. Magic Ocean Film and Television Academy. The top floor of the library. A dozen or so physically imposing boys huddled together. Tearing up books and burning fires and eating bubbly. In the corner. Thrown three female corpses covered in wounds. The boy in the very center had a white face shady eyes, studs in his ears, and was wearing a designer suit, now dirty and tattered. He is Lu Junpeng. Lu Junping rolled up his sleeves, took a sip of wine, and said in surprise, Ding Yuxiu is really dead? A dark-skinned boy affirmed, dead. I accidentally saw her in Lupin's bodies, dumped downstairs in building 16. Ding Yuxiu's neck was broken. Good. Lu Junping laughed maniacally and slapped the table. Bang. That bunch of fracking school leaders and teachers, who took up the most supplies, are all lousies now. Lousy has long wanted to taste the flavor of a female teacher. He he he. Lu Junpeng laughed lustfully, and the lovely MS. Su Jin Su. I've missed her for a long time. The boys were red-eyed and screaming wildly with excitement. Ha! Huh? It's not too late. Let's do it right away. Right. Kill all those fracking teachers before they waste food. This group of people had followed Lu Junpeng in his great killing spree, and had long since ceased to be the students of old. Hey, MS. Su is a thief in dance class. Can you be prettier than Gu Renning? That's right, brother Pang. Let's rob Gu Renning as well. When Lu Junpeng heard Gu Renning, he couldn't help but think of that absolutely beautiful face and his heart itched. However, he still had sense and boarded up his face, Gu Renning can't move for now. Who will make water for us if she dies? A man named Fang Daoping said unwillingly, brother Pang, arrest Gu Renning. 
I don't believe she'll still dare not make water when she's in our hands, snap, Lu Junping swept his hand and slapped it, swearing profusely, Feng Daoping, you're a brute, what if Gu Runing commits suicide, if she dies, you sand sculpture make water for me, Feng Daoping was slapped so hard that half of his face turned red and he didn't dare to speak, the crowd bloated and looked at Feng Daoping with mockery, Feng Daoping's eyes were lowered, his fists clenched tightly as he suppressed his anger, originally, he and LV Junping were both second generation rich, and their relationship was not bad. In fact, he couldn't even look at Lu Junpeng, Fang Daoping's father, in the Magic Sea, is a business tycoon who can be ranked in the top 10. Lu Junpeng's father is nothing. As a result, when the red mist came, the world changed completely. Lu Junpeng, that turtle hair actually gained powerful psychic abilities and climbed on top of him. Fang Daoping, how could Fang Daoping tolerate this? But one must endure even if one does not. Without Lu Junpeng, Fang Daoping would have died eight times already. Lu Junpeng glanced triumphantly at Fang Daoping, his heart was so cool, he had known that Fang Daoping was not happy with him, but just deliberately left him alive. In the past, Fang Daoping often looked down on him openly and secretly, and Lu Junpeng could do nothing about it. Right now Lu Junpeng wanted to see Fang Daoping being a dog for himself. The pleasure of continually humiliating Fang Daoping was much better than killing him. The other asked, oh but boss. That bitch Gu Renying pretends to be noble in front of her brothers every day. Aren't we going to clean her up? LV Junpeng also had designs on Gu Renying and laughed sardonically, of course we have to clean up. I don't have to arrest her outright for the old man to take her down. The crowd was curious, oh, tell me about it. Pying. Lu Junpeng said proudly, simple. Gu Renying's women don't dare to go out and collect supplies. They rely on trading with others. As long as we kill all the other survivors, she can only trade with me then she won't be able to sit on the ground and raise the price, and she'll have to sell as much as I want. At that point, she'll still be at my mercy. As long as we kill all the other survivors, the water we grab will last us at least a week, while the food Gu Renying is holding will last us at most three days. After three days, that bitch Gu Renying will have to kneel in front of me of her own accord. Ha ha ha, the crowd rejoiced, it's still Pung who has a good brain. Ha 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 ha, that Gu Renying bitch is the best at pretending. I've long looked at her with disdain. Let's see what she's pretending to be when we get naked. If the boss eats the head soup, we can have some too, right? Ha ha ha, don't worry. I've never treated my brothers poorly. Brother Pang, do it, hurry up, right? Brother Pang, hurry up and do it, I can't wait. Lu Juanping's eyes smoldered with a fierce light, good. Let's finish eating and rob Sujin for the brothers to have fun today. And tomorrow we'll kill all the other survivors. Food is getting scarcer and harder to find these days. It's too dangerous to go out there and gather food. How can it be faster than robbing other survivors? Also, with all the survivors dead, food is naturally relatively plentiful. Chapter 77, The Killing Begins. Please, don't kill me. Please. Ah, Lu Junpeng. Lu Junpeng. I'm your teacher. Ha 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 ha. I've long been displeased with you. This pretentious old man. Die for me. Ah, you can't do that. Bastard. I'll kill you. Where's Su Jin? Who the hell hid Su Jin? Tell me. Student Lu, do you have a grudge against MS? Su, she was taken away. You have a grudge against her go find her ah, come to trouble us why? Ah, help me. I've broken my leg. Help. Building 16 is in a fishy mess. LV Junpang led a dozen burly henchmen and frenziedly vented in the building. The leaders and professors who were once high and mighty are now all on their knees begging for mercy. The power to decide on the lives and deaths of others it will made Lu Junping feel an unimpeded pleasure that went deep into his bones of this is the life. Old me is the son of heaven's destiny. Lu Junping waved his watermelon knife and laughed indulgently as he looked down on the crowd, Wang Hai. Lu Jin, you two are Xenos. I'll give you a chance to submit to me and I'll let you live. Ahem. Surrender? Professor Wang Hai was knocked to the ground and stood up with difficulty, holding onto the windowsill. The window had broken, and two female teachers had just been thrown down. Wang Hai slowly said to Mr. Lu, it's not impossible to surrender. He was halfway through his sentence when he suddenly rolled over and jumped through the window. In midair, his body fluttered lightly, like a falling leaf, and landed on the ground at an even speed. After 10 seconds or so, Wang Hai landed on both feet, shocking his feet a bit. He'd never jumped from such a height before. Wang Hai was about to run away when he suddenly realized that Lu Junping was already standing in front of him in a good mood. Waiting for him, he knew that Lu Junping was fast but he didn't expect it to be this fast. He was downstairs before he could land himself. Wang Hai was horrified and panicked at Mr. Lu, listen to me. Lu Junpang laughed and slashed out with a knife, old undead. Still want to run? Enhanced by the haste ability, 
the watermelon blade dragged out phantoms like lightning. Swish, Wang Hai's consciousness fell into darkness. Wang Hai jumped and escaped, and Lu Junpeng immediately rushed downstairs to chase after him. Only a few of Lu Junpeng's men remained in the room. The teachers and school leaders, who were on the ground, quietly exchanged glances and were about to think of a way to escape. Lu Junping's figure ghostly re-entered the room, still carrying the bloody head in his hand. The room went dead silent. Lu Junping's men shouted wildly in excitement, Pang is awesome. Pang is invincible. Lu Junping struggled to catch his breath for a few moments before he slowed down. Although he had gained the speed ability, his physical strength was average, and he couldn't carry the outburst for too long. What's more, climbing 20 floors in one breath now almost didn't burst his lungs. He wouldn't have fought so hard if he hadn't been trying to make a statement in front of his men and the survivors. The teacher survivors were all trembling. That's too soon. You can't run away at all. Poof. Lu Junpeng threw Wang Hai's head on the ground. The head gurgled and rolled to a female teacher. Only the head was covered with bloodstains, and Wang Hai's eyes were staring round in death. The female teacher screamed in terror and passed out on the spot. Lu Junpeng laughed sardonically to scream my ass. Someone. Throw her down. All right. Fang Daoping and another henchman responded with a cry, bumbling forward, carrying the female teacher and throwing her out of the window. Soon there was a dull thud on the floor from downstairs. A couple of the teachers were so scared they got wet in the crotch. Lu Junpeng looked at the last alien, Lu Jin, and said wistfully, Mr. Lu. Lu Jin could no longer carry the great fear and crawled out on his hands and knees in panic. LV, brother Pang, I'm willing to surrender. I'm willing to surrender. The other teachers gave a look of disdain. A teacher actually got down on her knees in front of her students and begged for forgiveness, but the situation was stronger than the people, and they could only watch it all with fear. Lu Junpeng laughed wildly, good, good, good. A man who knows what's good for him is a man who knows what's good for him. Lu Jin was very ashamed in his heart, but he was also relieved. In this case, it's good to be alive. Face is nothing. Lu Junpeng laughed out loud, I, Lu Junpeng, am the most righteous person. We all have a share of these female teachers. Lu Jin, M.S. Sun Chi Yue is divided among you. The female teacher, Sun Chi Yue, shivered. Lu Jin didn't dare to refuse and said awkwardly much. Much thanks to Peng. Lu Jun Peng smiled grimly. Then what are you waiting for? Start. Lu Jin was confused, huh? Now. Lu Jun Peng took it for granted. Nonsense. What are you waiting for tonight? It's not like we're going into a cave. So what's the big deal? Hurry up. Sun Chi Yue's face was pale as she looked at Lu Jin Dao with her hands on her chest, mister. Lu, you, you, don't come over. Lu Jin said with fear and shame, Mr. Sun, understand. He reached out to grab it and was slapped across the face by Sun Kiyuki. Sun Chiyue screamed as shameless. Get out of here. Lu Jin was furious and simply put down the burden in his heart and growled, Bitch, get your ass over here. Ha ha ha. Lu Junpeng laughed in satisfaction, right. That's it. Hey hey hey. Don't carry it into the house. Just here. Let's enjoy it together. Here, in front of so many people. Lu Jin's mind went blank. Lu Junpeng took out his cell phone and turned on the camera, still impatiently urging, come on, come on, the battery's running low, you shall not die. Sun Chi Yue was so ashamed and angry that she fainted. The crowd laughed wildly. No one noticed a small, almost invisible blue portal appear on the roof of the building. Jiang Fan stood in subspace, quietly watching the tragedy in the room without the slightest ripple in his heart. He just watched quietly, carefully analyzing Lu Junping's ability. Women's dormitory building, one yuan building, ten layers, knock knock, there was a knock on the door of the room and an anxious voice from outside to Gu Renying, it's me, open the door, Gu Renying cautiously looked out through the cat's eye, it was two men and one woman, both acquaintances, members of the group of student survivors in the next building, the tall boy at the head was called Zhou Mingbo, the leader of this group of survivors, Zhou Mingbo is also a psychic and can heal himself quickly, Gu Renying gave a wink to the room, and all the girls stood up, holding mops, chair legs, and various other rudimentary weapons, and stood nervously behind Gu Renning. Gu Renning took a deep breath before pulling open the doorway and calmly asked oh, Zhou Mingbo, what's up today? Didn't I change the water with you yesterday? Zhou Mingbo said nervously, Lu Junpeng is crazy. He killed all 16 teachers in the family building. We have to do something. Gu Renying's face changed slightly. The school wasn't that big, and the literary court building wasn't far from the family area. Gu Renying's group of girls also heard continuous screams. Originally, he thought that a certain team had encountered a monster, but it turned out that it was actually Lu Junpeng who was killing people. The killers are still teachers. Due to their status, many students are actually still afraid to make a fool of their teachers. People like Gu Renying's group, although they weren't so obedient to the teacher even now, 
they weren't too willing to offend him either. Teacher survivors are also less inclined to reach out to students, limited by the psychological inertia left over from peacetime that makes teachers instinctively feel they should protect their students. But now that there isn't enough food to go around, how can they protect the students when they can't even take care of themselves? In short, the relationship is by and large respectful. Lu Junpeng is a completely different story. He's a maniac and has completely let himself go. Gu Renying's heart beat wildly. Of course she knew that Lu Junpeng had designs on her. The guy never even hit it. If I fall into LV Junping's hands, I'll be worse than dead. I can't just sit around and wait. Chapter 78 Chase, Escape into the Playground. Gu Renying was very alarmed in her heart. But now she could only grit her teeth and calm down as she asked Oh Zhou Mingbo, what are you going to do? Zhou Mingbo was very nervous, we've decided to leave. Since Lu Junpeng made his move, he won't stop. Gu Renying, let's leave together. There is very limited food at the school and a lot of conflict between the various survivor groups, especially the domineering ones like Lu Junpeng, who often clashed with other groups of survivors. The group led by Myungbok Cho is naturally no exception. The only way now is to run away. Outdoors is extremely dangerous. With all the hazards that are bound to be encountered on a long journey, and food and water are problems. Zhou Mingbo wanted to take Gu Renying away. Her beauty was all secondary. The main thing was that she could make water. This is mobile tap water. Gu Renying made up her mind after a quick thought. Yes. The women said fearfully, Mercy Shadow. It's too dangerous out there. Run Ying. Lu Junpeng shouldn't touch us. Right? He needs to drink water too. Mercy Shadow. How naive. Gu Renying explained helplessly think about it. If everyone else runs away and we and Lu Junpeng are the only ones left, who else can we find to trade food with? We'll still be at his mercy. When we run out of food, what can we do? Even if he says a woman for a loaf of bread, can we refuse? The women stalled. Unsure of themselves, should. Shouldn't be able to. This group of girls were all girls from a few dormitories around Gu Rinning, who were usually on good terms with Gu Rinning. They were extremely lucky. After the red mist descended, Gu Rinning quickly gained the ability to create water. So she relied on pure water to exchange food with the others and sheltered the women. They had been exposed to little risk as well. So they were more reluctant to face the dangers out there. A long-haired girl named Li Min held her breath running. Lu Junpun wouldn't dare offend you. If you don't make water for him, he'll die of thirst. Before Gu Renying could speak, Zhou Mingbo sneered childish. In case LV Junpun gets mad and catches Gu Renying in his hands. When the time comes, it's still not up to him to rub Gu Renying flat and squeeze her around? Do you think you'll be able to carry over Lu Junpeng's methods of dealing with women? The women couldn't help but shiver when they thought about the rumors of Lu Junpeng dealing with women. Gu Renying wrapped her arm around Li Min and comforted her Li Min. Lu Junpeng won't let us go. It's safer to leave. There are so many trees outside now. As long as we leave the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, he won't be able to find us. Minnie Li was her roommate and they were very close. Li Min, however, didn't appreciate it. How dare a smelly man say out loud that he wasn't. She shrilled angrily, how do you talk? You're the one being childish. Who do you think you are? Joe Mingbo snorted coldly, not bothering with this kind of breaking woman. If it wasn't for Gu Renying taking care of her, this kind of woman wouldn't even be able to live now. Joe Mingbo advised again, Gu Renying, come with us. Gu Renying nodded her head, good. Let's contact the other students. The more people the safer. Joe Mingbo was overjoyed, good. I'll get in touch. Everyone will definitely go with you when they hear you're leaving. Gu Renning is the most important water source for all the survivors of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. And with Gu Renning gone, there were surely many people willing to leave with her. The more people you take with you, the better your chances of survival. Gu Renning had planned to leave as soon as possible, but it was not to be. Many people are not afraid to venture out. And there's still the fluke that LV Junping won't kill everyone. They were not willing to leave themselves, nor were they willing to leave Gu Renning and the others, bickering and making a mess. Zhou Mingbo. Gu Renying, and a few other exalts tossed and turned for more than an hour before setting off with more than 60 survivors. Dozens of survivors? Including Li Min. Watched as the team slowly disappeared into the red mist. Li Min felt that Gu Renying had betrayed him. And his heart was filled with anger at Gu Renying is so inhuman. Once she's gone, where are we going to get water to drink from now on? The crowd was silent. With the loss of all the shifters, everyone feels precarious. Li Min looked at the crowd did not speak. The heart of a vicious, and compelled the crowd when Lu Junpeng comes for us and we can't hand over the water. We'll be dead. Especially us women. I'm afraid it'll be hard to die by then. None of the girls looked frightened, what then? Why don't we go after Gu Renning and the others? It should not be too late to chase them. It's too dangerous out there. I'm afraid. Gu Renning didn't treat us as sisters at all. How can you just leave? It's too selfish. 
Li Min's eyes turn coldly if you ask me. The only way to survive is to defect to Lu Junpeng. All we have to do is tell Lu Junpeng that Gu Renying has run away, and he'll capture Gu Renying and the others, then everyone will have water to drink. By relying on this credit, we'll definitely be able to survive. The crowd looked at Li Min in shock. This woman is also too vicious. Gu Renying took care of you for so long and you turned around and sold her? But some people are heartened. Min Li's tactics are not a good idea, as long as one can survive. As for what kind of retaliation Gu Renying would receive, they didn't care. Li Min said quickly whether you guys say so or not. I'm going anyway. Now come with me and you'll get your share of the credit. So don't blame me for not warning you. Encouraged by Li Min, the two boys and seven girls were moved to follow Li Min and go to snitch on Lu Junpeng. Zhou Mingbo walked with one foot deep and one foot shallow, and in just a few hundred meters, he was sweating profusely. One by one, all the survivors are afraid to stay away. The field of vision in the red mist is only five meters. A little farther away, you may be separated from the army. That is dead. Gu Renning was in the very center of the group. She was the source of pure water for everyone and received the best protection. Zhou Mingbo carefully discerned the surrounding scenery. What was once a familiar campus is now so covered in vegetation that it's hard to recognize the location. Guys step up. The school gate should be right up ahead. Zhou Mingbo said happily, as long as we walk out, Lu Junpeng won't be able to find us. All of them were relieved and showed smiles of escape. Where are we going to be stationed? Zhou Mingbo looked at the paper map in his hand. We have to walk more than 2 kilometers to be safe. Walk 200 meters forward out of the school gate and then walk south. Gu Running suddenly felt a gust of wind blowing by. Zhou Mingbo, who was speaking eloquently, froze, and a bloodstain appeared on his neck. The head slowly slid to the ground. Blood sprayed more than 2 meters high. The survivors behind him had blank minds. Lu Junpeng appeared at the front of the group. He flung the watermelon knife, spilling blood all over the floor, and laughed sardonically, where do you all want to go? Tell me. Ah, Lu Junpeng is here. Zhou Mingbo is dead. Run. The survivors instantly exploded, turning their heads and running towards the school. Lu Junpeng laughed maniacally, ah, run, run hard. Today, all of you will die. He stood still and rested for 10 seconds or so, recovering his physical strength. Then his body transformed into a cloud of phantoms and instantly hacked the last survivor to death. Lu Junpeng chased him all the way. The survivors fled in panic. Inexplicably, the group ran into the playground. When Lu Junpeng realized something was wrong, he couldn't even block it with his men. In the end, Lu Junpeng and the others stood at the edge of the playground with ugly faces. No one dares to take a step. The henchman said worriedly, boss, let's not go in. Pang, the playground is too dangerous. Lu Junpeng angrily cut the branches around him and said, I'm mad. Don't I know the danger? But that Gu Renying bitch ran in too. If I don't catch her, who the hell is going to make me water? The crowd reacted to this, but were still hesitant. Lu Junpeng waved his watermelon knife and shouted with glaring eyes, All of you go in after me. Grab Gu Renying and go. Even if there are monsters, they'll kill those bastards first and we'll take them to the back. The crowd cursed in their hearts. You're fucking trying to use all of us to get you back. But no one dared to say that. Lu Junpeng is a murderous devil. Whoever dares to say that will die. Under Lu Junpeng's compulsion, the crowd could only clench their teeth and rush into the playground. Chapter 79 Terrifying Tentacle Monster The source of, Qi, 20 meters underground. Zhang Fan, saw, all of this clearly and smiled with satisfaction, uh-huh, that's a good thing. It'll just help me scout out that kind of monster. He followed cautiously from the ground. The empty playground on one side of this stadium is now filled with grass half a man deep. On the other side was the podium behind which was attached an indoor basketball court. Gu Renying's group of survivors had thought that Wu Junping wouldn't dare to enter the playground, but they had miscalculated. Wu Junping and the others killed their way in, and they could only panic and continue to escape. A few disappeared into the lawn and red mist. Most escaped into the indoor basketball court. Wu Junping killed a few people and rested for a while before catching up. As soon as Gu Renying entered the indoor basketball court, she was stunned by what she saw. For some reason, the red mist was very thin here and the view opened up a lot. The entire basketball court was covered with thousands of translucent cocoons. The cocoons, large and small, glowed with a pale blue ethereal light that illuminated the entire basketball court. The scariest part is that each cocoon binds a human or animal. Most were dead, and a few were still alive, looking numbly in the direction of the crowd. Help me, help me. A man in the cocoon closest to Gu Renying reached out toward her. Gu Renying took a look, and it turned out to be Mr. Zhao, who taught vocal music. Mr. Zhao's upper body was still alive, and his lower body had long since melted into a reddish-brown liquid that dripped down and pooled at the bottom of the cocoon. The liquid was densely covered with bizarre tentacle larvae. They swim and wriggle in the liquid. 
sucking it up quickly. Vomit. Gu Reneng vomited on the spot. The other survivors also shivered, not knowing what to do, blocked by the cocoon in front, and with Wu Junpeng, the god of killing, behind him, there was really no way out this time. At that moment, Wu Junpeng rushed in with a group of people and shouted in excitement when he saw Gu Reneng and the others standing in the open space, ha ha ha, run ah, why don't you run, crap, what the hell is this, Wu Junpeng and the others were dumbstruck, mud, something's wrong, Fan Daoping was the first to react and twisted his head to run. As a result, just as he ran to the entrance of the basketball court, a huge tentacle fell from the sky and curled around his body. Fang Daoping screamed in horror, get off me. He swung his blade and slashed at the tentacle. Pust. The knife slashed into the tentacle like it was in a puddle of sticky glue, unable to move at all. The tentacles pulled him up to the roof. The crowd looked upward. It was only then that I realized that there was a huge translucent octopus lying on the roof, its body appearing and disappearing. But then again, it's not quite an octopus. The head resembled some kind of spider with three pairs of long fangs. The tentacles were hundreds of them, waving slowly in the air. Creepy and evil. The crowd was freezing, what the hell is this? Mutant octopus? Aren't octopuses in the ocean? Why is there an octopus at school? Fang Daoping screamed in terror as he was pulled in front of the tentacle monster. Dozens of slender tentacle tips spat out transparent mucus and deathly traveled over his body. Like weaving cloth, soon weaving a huge cocoon. The tentacle monster hangs the cocoon on the basketball hoop. Just like any other cocoon, Fang Daoping screamed, but was trapped in the sticky cocoon, unable to move in the slightest. The crowd was stunned. Through Fang Daoping's encounter, everyone understood. The tentacled monster seemed to have them captive and was not allowed to leave. At that moment, a ragged man crawled out of a shadowy corner, laughing maniacally, ha ha ha, good, good to be dead. The crowd turned their heads and realized that there were actually two living people in the corner. The two seem to be students of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy as well. One is clearly delirious and insane. The other guy, the tall one, looked normal. Dan Wei, you're still alive. A survivor said in surprise, you've been missing for three days and you're still alive. Dang great joy, yeah, I'm still alive. It's good that you guys are here. I can live a few more days now that you guys are here. Ha 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 ha. Lu Junpeng growled as he slapped Dang Wei to the ground, laugh at Nima. Say, how did you survive? Dang Wei is still laughing and seems to be a bit mentally unbalanced as well, ha ha ha. Tentacle monsters catch a guy for one to two hours to make a cocoon. If he dies, I'll live for one hour. He 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 he. Lu Juanping's face changed dramatically. He looked up at the tentacle monster in horror. One or two hours to kill one. He looked around the room. There's still 40 or so survivors here. And you're only going to live for 40 or 50 hours? Lu Junpeng said firmly and oh. I can't die. There must be a way for me to break out. Dang Wei sneered in oh, you're dead. Before the words left his mouth, Lu Junping cut off half of his neck with a knife and repeated it word for word, I said I'll make it out. There was dead silence. Only the psychotic survivor was still laughing upside down, ha ha ha. Dead. All dead. He ran wild through the arena. The tentacle monsters really did seem to only attack once an hour and didn't attack him. Jiang Fan gazed at the tentacle monster. Inside the tentacle monster's body, there was a fist-sized mass of twisted flesh that shone in Jiang Fan's perception. The twisted flesh absorbed the red mist while emitting, chi, particles in all directions. Strange. How can it absorb the red mist? Jiang Fan frowned. It was the first creature he had found that actively absorbed the red mist. Moreover, the tentacle monster could release, chi. Jiang Fan couldn't help but think of Zhang Zilin's breathing method. According to Zhang Zilin's description, before the red mist, she had practiced for decades without much movement. When the red mist descended, she could feel the ginger position filling up. Did. Gas is not a product of environmental change, but is produced by certain tentacle monster-like animals or plants? Can I absorb this, Chi? Jiang Fan decided to give it a try. Judging by the brightness, tentacle monsters don't have much combat power. The main thing is that its attack range is extremely long, the way it attacks, and its defense capabilities are also very special. But it was ineffective for Jiang Fan. He could sink into the ground and escape at any time. After Jiang Fan confirmed that he wasn't in danger, he ascended from the corner to the ground and walked out. The survivors heard footsteps and turned their heads. There's actually a living person? Everyone only took one look at Jung Fan and realized that something was wrong. Why is this guy so cleanly dressed? Not at all like surviving in a post-apocalyptic world. It's like a college kid coming to the stadium for the weekend. Also, the man looked healthy, with a rosy face, bulging muscles, and no sign of hunger at all. Lu Junping couldn't figure it out at all, and just secretly became vigilant. Jiang Fan ignored the crowd and walked to right below the tentacle monster, which was also the place where the Yi Qi was the most dense. 
He sat down cross-legged and practiced his breathing techniques. Lu Jun looked at Jiang Fan in confusion. Crap, why is this guy here too? Lu Junping asked. Oh, you know him? Who is he? Lu Jun whispered. He's the one who killed Mr. Ding and then snatched Mr. Su. So he's trapped here too. Where's MS? Su, was she eaten by this monster? He could kill Ding Yuxiao? Lu Junpeng stared at Jiang Fan dead on, feeling a hint of threat. Chapter 80, The Tree of 10,000 Laws. Lu Junpeng stared at Jiang Fan for a while, and Jiang Fan didn't move, just sitting quietly. He couldn't help but ask, Hey, kid, were you captured here too? Jiang Fan still didn't pay any attention to him and just increased his speed to absorb the Nichi. He had observed the subspace and underground for a long time and was completely sure that Lu Junpeng was no threat to him. LV Junping's super fast speed might be difficult for others to control. But to Jiang Fan, it was just a flowery display. LV Junpeng had no strength and was empty of speed. Jiang Fan wouldn't even break a layer of skin if he stood still and let him chop. Besides, can he be faster than consciousness? The will link restrains this ability the most. Jiang Fan didn't make a move to kill Lu Junping either. Tentacle monsters killed one person after a while. And the more people there were here, the longer they left themselves to practice their breathing techniques. After all, Jiang Fan was only sure of escaping, not sure of defeating this tentacle monster. The brightness of the tentacle monster was just a shade worse than the giant orange cat in Yida Plaza. And hell knows what else it was capable of. Jiang Fan didn't want to know either. Therefore, Jiang Fan's plan was to seize the time to cultivate and run away with Gu Rinning when the survivors died out. Lu Junpeng was annoyed, but he still didn't do it. LV Junping's grumpy exterior hid caution. Otherwise, they wouldn't have endured for so long because of Ding Yuxiu alone. He made a wink and one of his men jumped out, pointing at Jiang Fan's nose and cursing, Hey, kid, Peng is calling you. You're fucking deaf. You're playing the nigger there. Before the words fell, Jiang Fan suddenly stretched out his hand. Snap. A slap knocked the man a few meters away. Half a mouthful of teeth flew out. His cheeks swelled up quickly. Blood flowed from the corners of his mouth. And he fell unconscious. Lu Juanpun's men backed away in fear. Crap. It's a power alien. This kid is so strong. Gu Renying and the others were also on guard. This young man is another shifter. No wonder he's survived the monster's lair so far. Lu Juanping's eyes were grim, but he didn't make a move and just arrogantly said, A power alien? Good. I've got my eye on you. Hang out with me. Jiang Fan glanced at him indifferently and closed his eyes to continue practicing breathing techniques. Humph. Lu Junping suppressed his anger. He thought he had enough confidence when he saw Jiang Fan's nature. The strength is just reckless. It doesn't even come close to my super fast speed. The only martial art in the world is fast. With speed, one can be invincible whether one wants to fight or run. But now is not the time to do it. This tentacle monster is the big trouble. Lu Junping endured the outsider and looked up at the tentacle monster on the roof, not knowing what was on his mind. Jiang Fan used his senses to monitor everyone while quickly practicing the breathing technique. In just five minutes, he felt full of ginger. Sure enough, I can really absorb this, chi. Jiang Fan was secretly delighted. Before, on the rooftop, it took a full half hour to fill up. Jiang Fan's heart moved. Chi rushed out of the ginger. He only felt a heat all over his body. He had consumed a lot of chi without moving. Repeated 12 times. Qi is consumed. Repeatedly filling and releasing in this manner. Jiang Fan felt that the ginger in his body grow quite quickly. The storage of qi has also increased, allowing you to use the ghostly maneuver 15 times. Jiang Fan was overjoyed very good. Continue. Time passes by. The crowd slowly tensed. Dang Wei's words caused a huge boulder to press on everyone's hearts. Suddenly, a tentacle flew and stabbed at Lu Junpeng's group. Lu Junpeng reacted and bellowed, get out of the way. He unleashed his ability and instantly ran a dozen meters. The others were scared and ran with their heads in their hands. Lu Jun reacted a little slower and didn't run away. The tentacles grabbed him and pulled him high into the air. Lu Jun struggled frantically in terror and oh, help me, help me. He slammed his fist into the tentacle and it sunk into the tentacle and was held in place by the adhesive. Help! Help! Lu Jin was even more fearful. Yet all efforts are useless. In the end, he was wrapped into a cocoon and hung next to Fang Daoping in front of the horrified eyes of the crowd. Fang Daoping is unconscious. Lu Jin took one look at Fang Daoping and screamed in fear like a woman pa. Don't! Don't! In just over an hour, Fang Daoping's feet had melted into liquid, and a thread of blood and flesh peeled away from his legs and dripped down. Lu Junping also watched with a grimace on his face. All the survivors are terrified. Jiang Fan looked up calmly. He wasn't nervous at all. The speed of the tentacles was indeed fast. But with one's comprehensive physique strengthened to 90, one could still react. Once the tentacles attacked you, you could just turn on voiding to escape. Now continue with the breathing method. 
in a little over an hour's time. He had filled it up a dozen times over and over again. Ginger is fully twice as big as before, and the number of ghostly maneuvers reaches at least 30. Now, Ginger. No, it can't be called Ginger anymore. It looks a lot like a miniature tree now. Roots, trunks, branches, and leaves grew. The body is turquoise with a refreshing green glow that makes it look vibrant. There are also a few tiny fruits growing on the tree, large and small, of different colors and shapes. Jiang Fan carefully counted them. Seven in total. Why seven? Seven huckleberries? Jiang Fan was puzzled. He pondered for a while whether it's psychic powers. One's current number of powers happens to be seven. Perception. Physical enhancement. Voiding. Subspace travel. Will link. Prana burst. Life inspiration. What kind of tree is this? The devil fruit tree? The tree of wonders? If I get new powers, can I grow new fruit? Jiang Fan could only make wild guesses without much of a clue. Red mist. Fruit of enlightenment. Lightspeed evolution of plants and animals. Tree of all laws. High level divine invisibility. Even. I got a system. It's getting mysterious. Jiang Fan looked at the translucent tentacle monster above his head. At that moment, Gu Ning and the three survivors walked over. Jiang Fan turned his head to look. These four people have ginger in their bodies and are psychics. Three people were as green as Jiang Fan. Only the ginger inside Gu Renying's body was blue. So far, Jiang Fan had found a total of four colors of ginger, green, blue, gold, and gray. Green is the most abundant, followed by blue. Golden appeared once. The bald man he met at Yida Plaza. Gray appeared once, in the form of a chapter of Zilin. Also, whether or not the animal is powerful has little to do with ginger. There's a blue ginger for the mutant frog in the fortune center. A large number of mutated animals, none of which have ginger. That orange cat, for example, is also ridiculously strong without ginger in its system. There was also the husky white eyes, which Jiang Fan hadn't ginger when he first saw it, but by then it had clearly mutated or evolved. Later, after Jiang Fan fed it the enlightenment fruit, the green ginger appeared inside white eyes. In other words, animals, like humans, Eat the fruit of enlightenment in order to grow ginger and gain some sort of psychic ability. It's just that animals, even if they don't eat the fruit of enlightenment, have a lot of ability to mutate on their own, something humans don't have. The four Gu Renying shadows came forward and took the initiative, hello classmate. Jiang Fan glanced at Gu Renying. This girl was indeed very pretty, almost prettier than all of Jiang Fan's women. The rarest thing about her is that she has an aura of clarity. Even when she was on the run, her clothes were dirty and her hair hadn't been washed for a long time. It was still hard to hide her unique aura. Gu Renying, age, 20, quality, 9. 5 points, mundane fairy, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9. 5 points, sure enough it's another 9. 5. So far, only Lily who has reached a 9. 5 out of a group of women. In fact, who Lily's face value did not crush the women. Only that her body was so dominant and ridiculously large that it had long been rated so high. Gu Renying is a different story. This girl can even rate a 9. 5 by being right on the A's. Purely by face and temperament can be beaten. Good. I got mine. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth revealed a different smile. What is it? Chapter 81. Trapped for a night. Kill Wu Jun Peng. Gu Renying was a bit uncomfortable by Jiang Fan's stare. But she still said a classmate. My name is Gu Renying. I'm an alien and can create water. They're all Xenos too. I think we should join forces and escape from here. There's also that Lu Jun Peng. Gu Renning lowered his voice, he's a big, bad man, and we wouldn't be cornered here if he hadn't come after us and killed us. The three male shifters nodded back, right, we should join forces. This tentacle monster is too powerful. If we run one by one, we definitely won't be able to run out. We have to do something together. Jiang Fan had no interest in the so-called cooperation, nor did he want to chat with a group of future's dead people. Except for Gu Renying, everyone here will die. Jiang Fan said indifferently, sorry, I'm not interested. When he finished, he closed his eyes. The four men's faces changed slightly. A male shifter said angrily, don't think you're great just because you're strong. Let me tell you, that Lu Junping is very powerful. You're no match for him at all. Gu Renning followed suit, right. He's especially fast. We can't react at all. And you can't beat him even if you can't touch him with your strength. At this time, Lu Junping walked over quickly and said in a stern voice, what are you guys talking about? Say it for me. The four Gu Renning shadows were startled. They didn't dare to confront Lu Junping face to face and hurriedly retreated back into the crowd of survivors. Lu Junping gazed at the four people leaving in a sinister manner. If he hadn't been trapped here by the tentacle monsters and needed living people to use as meat shields for himself, he would have killed the group of survivors long ago. 
Tentacle monsters are obviously not interested in dead people. Dang Wei's body was thrown on the ground, and it didn't grab it to make a cocoon. Lu Junpeng snorted coldly and glared at Jiang Fan again, leaving without saying anything. He would not kill this man until he had to. At least there's a meat shield for yourself. It was just a power mangler anyway, and couldn't hurt himself in the slightest. The survivors split into two groups. Lu Junpeng's group gathered together, while Gu Renying and the other survivors gathered on the other side. Only Jiang Fan sat alone in the middle of the field, eyes closed and legs crossed. Nobody knows what he's doing. Time flew by. The psychological pressure on the crowd was mounting and everyone was panicking. Not surprisingly, the tentacle monster grabbed another girl, cocooning her and hanging her high from the ceiling. The girl screamed very miserably, help, help me, Lu Jun Peng, save me, do whatever you want, save me, mom, I'm scared. The tentacle monsters let the girl's miserable screams go on without killing her. It looks like the tentacle monster only likes living things. The crowd was both fearful and relieved. Everyone is safe for at least an hour. Gu Ren and the others took out the food they had brought with them and ate it. And Gu Ren created a large amount of water and distributed it to the crowd. The girls kept screaming in agony that resounded throughout the basketball court. The crowd didn't dare to look up and ate with stony expressions. Lu Junpeng and the others were also hungry. However, they were out to kill and had hardly any food on them. Brother Pang, what should we do? A henchman looked at Lu Junpeng blearily. Lu Junpeng laughed sardonically what to do. Grab it. He picked up the watermelon knife and walked over to the survivor, give me half of your food and water. On what grounds? A boy said angrily. Before the words left his mouth, Lu Junpeng slashed his neck. Pust. The boy's eyes went round and he fell to the ground covering his neck. Lu Junpeng cursed frantically, Buster. You think I'm negotiating with you? The survivors cringed. They looked to Gu Renning. The four exalted. For help. Gu Renning and the others could only hold their heads down. If they could deal with Lu Junpeng, what the hell would they run away for? Hurry up. Didn't you hear what Peng said? Mud. Put the bread down. Stop eating. Lu Junping's men swarmed around and snatched most of the food with their fists and feet. The student survivors didn't dare to resist at all and could only clench their teeth and endure. Lu Junpeng and the others laughed wildly with abandoned damn. What a piece of crap instant noodles. It's awful. There's not even a marinated egg. It's not even enough to eat. Yuck. This ham is expired. Isn't it? They wasted with impunity the food that the survivors had worked so hard to save. The crowd's eyes were on fire. But there was nothing they could do. Wow. An aroma of chocolate came through. Only to see Jung Fan tear open a dev in a good manner and eat it. Then fished out a carton of milk from his pocket and drank it all. Followed by a bag of beef jerky. The crowd looked on with eyes burning. Gollum. Lu Junpeng swallowed a mouthful of saliva and stared at Jung Fan dead in the face. But still didn't make a move. There was food to eat for the time being and he wasn't going to take any chances. Time passes. Everyone was quiet and distracted, staring at the ceiling. The tentacle monster moved again, shooting its tentacles at one of the boys. The boy was shocked and in fear, reached out and pulled a girl beside him in front of him. The girl was swept away instantly, screaming in midair, ah, ah, help. Everyone blushed and looked at the boys in silence. The girl couldn't get rid of it even with her efforts, and cried out in alarm and anger at Kong Sun, Jiang Chang. I won't let you go even if I become a ghost. The boy, named Kong Sung, panicked, it's not my fault. I was so scared I didn't think much of it and just pulled it with my hand. Who knew she was right next to me? The crowd was silent. After this incident, everyone is wary of those around them. Most people quietly stay away from others, except for those who are particularly close. Jiang Fan closed his eyes again and continued practicing his breathing technique, indifferent to everything around him. As long as Gu Rinning doesn't die, time passes by. One by one, the unlucky ones are swept up to the roof and turned into cocoons. Someone tries to escape and is immediately caught and turned into a cocoon. Some people try to hide in nooks and crannies, but the tentacles are incredibly flexible and can reach into any corner. Someone tiptoed out the window and got halfway up before being swept away. No one knows how the tentacle monster picks its targets or who will die next. Everyone is under tremendous psychological pressure. Except for Jiang Fan. He had been sitting in the center of the field, not moving once. As luck would have it, the tentacle monster never made a move on him. It was getting dark. The basketball court was illuminated by countless cocoons, and everyone's faces were cloudy. Even at night, the tentacle monsters didn't stop making cocoons. Under great mental stress, some of them drifted off to sleep and were then taken in their sleep. It was a very torturous night, with hourly mournful howls that made everyone sleep badly. I had just fallen asleep when I was awakened by a nightmare, and was relieved to realize that I hadn't been captured yet. The next morning, everyone had dark circles under their eyes. The only exception was Jiang Fan, 
whose comprehensive physique was as high as 90, and a night without sleep was very easy and nothing at all. Lu Junping robbed the survivors of their food one more time. This time it was completely snatched up. The crowd was beginning to starve. Having been hungry until noon, Zhang Fan opened his eyes and moved his body, then pulled out a pack of vacuum-packed roast chicken from his pants pocket and ate it. The crowd watched in disbelief. You are Doryman. You can fit a roast chicken this big in your pants pocket? Lu Junping couldn't hold back any longer. Throwing away the dry noodles in his hand angrily and rushing to Zhang Fan's sacker. Get your crap. Zhang Fan took out a gun and aimed it at Lu Junpeng, calmly saying, keep talking, I'm listening. Lu Junpeng man was numb. What a fucking man. What's with the gun? Police check? Nope. He's definitely not a police check with this beerby look. Lu Junpeng reacted and shouted with a terse neck wumud. Who are you scaring with a fake gun? Shoot me if you can. Bang. A wisp of smoke drifted from the muzzle of the gun. LV Junpeng was shot in the middle of his forehead and fell dead on his back. Ha. Huh? Everyone looked dumbfounded. Lu Junpeng is dead? Zhang Fan lowered his pistol, that's a strange request. As you can see, he asked me to beat him. A chill ran through the crowd. Chapter 82 Survivor Riot. Ha ha ha. Dead. All dead. The scared and crazy survivor plopped down in front of Lu Junpeng and looked left and right with a smile on his face. Zhang Fan glanced at him and then looked at the crowd. Everyone took a step back in unison. Zhang Fan counted that there were still 27 people left, which would last about a day. As the night passed, the tree of 10,000 laws grew another inch. The amount of key is extremely abundant, allowing for at least 100 ghostly maneuvers. But the growth started to slow down, and it felt as if it had reached a certain bottleneck that it couldn't break through no matter how much it was practiced. Zhang Fan intended to try another night. However, the number of survivors is too small. The tentacle monster could whip Gu Renying at any time. And Zhang Fan simply said in order to better protect her Gu Renying, come here. Gu Renying took a step back in fear and tensed, you. You. What are you doing? Zhang Fan raised his pistol and said impatiently, I said, come here. Gu Renning shivered and said with a sobbing voice, don't you shoot. I'll just go over there. She walked warily to Zhang Fan's side. Zhang Fan saw that she was covered in a red light that represented hostility, but didn't take it to heart. Gu Renning also had a fruit knife hidden in her arms. Zhang Fan cared even less. With his comprehensive physique, this woman couldn't even scratch his skin. You stay here and don't go there. These are for you. Eat them. Zhang Fan took out a carton of milk and a packet of bread, then continued practicing his breathing technique. Gu Renying looked at the food in confusion and then at Zhang Fan, completely confused as to what this man wanted. After a long time, she looked at Zhang Fan sitting with his eyes closed, completely ignoring himself, before she gently picked up the food and ate it. You're about to be killed by a tentacle monster anyway, so at least make a full death. One by one, the tentacle monsters kill the survivors. It was dark again and there were fewer and fewer survivors. It's like a year for everyone. Another night passes. With better luck, the tentacle monster never picked on Zhang Fan or Gu Renying, but Zhang Fan finally decided to leave. After a night of practicing, he had determined that the Tree of 10,000 Laws had indeed reached some sort of bottleneck, and no matter how much he breathed in, he could not get any stronger. Zhang Fan couldn't determine whether the number of breaths wasn't enough, or the level of the breathing method was too low, or the density of qi wasn't enough. If there was still time, Zhang Fan would have experimented further, but now the survivors are dying out. If they practiced any longer, the tentacle monsters would attack him and Gu Renning at any time, and they wouldn't be able to practice for long. Zhang Fan looked around. There are only seven survivors left alive, all of whom are also on the verge of insanity. Gu Renning was even so scared that she shrank into Zhang Fan. After a day and a night together, Gu Renning began to gradually trust Zhang Fan, and the red light on her body disappeared quite a bit. Zhang Fan stood up and casually slashed a blue portal. Gu Renying was taken aback. What? What is this? Come home with me. Zhang Fan picked up Gu Renying with his arm and walked into the blue portal. The second psychic ability. Gu Renying finally understood. He's a dual shifter. The few remaining survivors froze for a moment. Then reacted. Running anxiously, big brother. Take me away. Take me away. Take me away. Let me do anything. Just then, the tentacle monster suddenly shoots out its tentacles and stabs into the portal. The survivors scattered in fear. Fortune Center, Block C. In a dark corner of the 24th floor, seven or eight males gather to whisper. Surname Jiang hasn't shown up for two days. Do you guys think it's possible that he died out there? Impossible. Surname Jiang is too powerful, both in strength and ability to penetrate walls. How could he die? Who knows? It's so dangerous out there now. Do you guys remember that big frog? Maybe the surname Jiang was eaten by the monster? Maybe. He just doesn't want to come down? Have you noticed, 
That old guy Li Qingxuan used to come down every day to exchange pure water for herbs, but he didn't come down yesterday either. I guess he should have used up the pure water that Zhang Fan gave him. If Zhang Fan is still around, why don't you replenish it for him? It's possible. Maybe Jiang Fan is really dead. Let's rob Jiang Fan's house. What if he's not dead? This. Put up a fight. That day Jiang Fan even brought down a large skewer of roasted lamb. He definitely has a lot of food. And the women. Tang Shu Eluai is too pretty. Once we rob him, there will be no shortage of food or women. Mad. Why should he eat fragrant and drink spicy food? But we have to eat flavorful capers. Why does he waste so much food and not give us any? Rob it. Rob him. We'll have food. Drink and women. But I heard gunshots upstairs. Zhang Fan should have a gun in his hand. A bald man sneered, the Dragon Kingdom is very strict on gun control. Even if he has a gun, he doesn't have a few bullets. Let's mobilize everyone. Let's all go together. Let the others be the meat shield in the front. We'll just hide in the back and pick up the pieces. Dry up. Doggone it flavorful capers I don't want to eat another day. Half an hour later, a group of survivors swarmed up the stairs. When they reached the 27th floor, the crowd was very scared. Afraid that Jiang Fan would come down and kill someone. You pushed me. I pushed you. No one dared to go upstairs first. And as a result, after a few minutes of dilly dallying, they didn't see Jiang Fan come down. Ching Xuan Li heard noises from the stairway and pushed the door out to find a group of survivors crowded in the hallway with various weapons in their hands. Shit. Li Ching Xuan immediately knew that the situation was bad and turned his head to climb upstairs. The crowd froze, not knowing what to do. And some just wanted to back out. The bald man who had egged the crowd on knew that now. As soon as everyone ran apart, they would never be able to get back together again. If Jiang Fan was still alive, the others might still be able to survive. And he himself, as the organizer, was absolutely dead. The bald man clenched his teeth and simply rushed out of the crowd, shouting get him, don't let him get away. With that, he led the charge up the stairs. The group looked at each other and followed. Li Qingxuan rushed to the 32nd floor in one breath. He was old and scared and in a hurry. He ran out of breath, and he slapped Tang Shu Eloa's room with a bang, open, open, open the door, open the door quickly, the people downstairs are killing us, all the women in the room shivered, Jiang Fan didn't come back for two nights, they were already worried, and this was even more explosive, what to do, it's DR, Li's voice, let him in, what if he has bad intentions, especially Lu Meng Yao, she remembered those women in the cages and her face was pale as hell, without Jiang Fan's protection, his own group of women wouldn't end up much better than those caged women. Knowing that she couldn't mess up now, Tang Shuelua forced herself to calm down and ran to the door to see Li Qingxuan through the cat's eye. Perception activated. The green light on Li Qingxuan's body was very pure. Tang Shuelua put her heart down, but she was still cautious and immediately took out the pistol that Zhang Fan had given her and handed it over to Su Mengqian. Mengqian, you must keep an eye on Li Qingxuan in a while. Don't relax. Su Mengqian knew the importance of the situation and nodded solemnly, good. Tang Shuelua added to Tian Tian, you immediately go to the bedroom and open a door. If the situation is not good, we immediately move to your house. This group of people don't know the location of your house. Zhang knows. If he comes back and can't find us, he will definitely go to your house to look for us. Tian 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 was on the verge of crying in fear and was busy, good. Tang Shuelua made the arrangements before opening the door and letting in Li Qingxuan, who was gasping for breath. Li Qingxuan was in a hurry outside the door afraid of being blocked by the survivors downstairs. Only then did he breathe a sigh of relief, only to be startled when he saw Su Mengqian holding up a pistol as soon as he entered the door as Su. Su, Miss Su, what is the meaning of this? Su Mengqian didn't say a word. Tang Shuelua explained to DR. Li, it's for everyone's own good that Jiang isn't here, so stay here and talk about what's going on down there. Li Qingxuan smiled bitterly. You bunch of youngsters, you're even afraid of an old man. Not too cautious. He was just about to speak when a blue portal appeared out of nowhere. Li Qingxuan was confused for a moment. The women, however, were all delighted. Brother Jiang is back. Chapter 83, Catch the Tentacle Monster. Sorry, I missed. The tentacles entered the subspace as if they had lost their target and were exploring around. Ha! Huh? Jiang Fan looked on curiously, in no hurry to leave. It seems that tentacles have no vision, and tentacle monsters can't see inside from the outside. Gradually, more tentacles reached through the portal. Dense tentacles waved in subspace, constantly exploring the surroundings like a scene only found in a nightmare, making one's scalp numb. Gu Renning screamed in fear get it out of here. Hurry. Snap. Jiang Fan heavily slapped her behind, be quiet. After a quick thought, he pulled a road roller out of his carry-on space and threw it next to the tentacle. Gu Renning looked dumbfounded. And where did this roller come out of? As if the tentacle monster sensed something, 
All the tentacles swarmed up to grab the roller and twisted and strangled it like a python while dragging it outward with force. Clicker! Clicker! The road roller shell was twisted and deformed by the huge force, and the heavy iron wheels made a piercing sound, which made Zhang Fan's teeth ache. Immediately after, Zhang Fan realized that the dragging force of the tentacle monster wasn't that great compared to the horrifying power of its stranglehold. A road roller of at least a dozen tons can't be pulled by a tentacle monster. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up. There might be a chance to be able to catch this tentacle monster. Then wouldn't one have an independent, chi, source? The chi and blood erupted. When Zhang Fan saw the opportunity, he didn't hesitate to explode all his power. 500%. His entire body glowed. His height skyrocketed by 20 centimeters and his size grew by a circle. The air in the subspace surprisingly crackled. Between breaths, it seemed to drive the entire subspace to tremble. Knock, knock, knock. Gu Renying let out a cry of shock and covered her mouth as she looked at Jiang Fan in horror. In a short moment, this handsome man turned into a demonic god. This, this, this is another Alamancy? Three psychic powers now. How many more powers does he have? A long steel bar appeared in Jiang Fan's hand, and he strided forward like running thunder, go to hell. Zhang Fan used all his strength and stabbed the steel bar like lightning. Pust. With the brute strength bonus of the 510 composite physique, the rebar, like the sharpest of weapons, pierced through a few tentacles and the middle of the roller hatch horizontally like a hot knife slicing through butter, and pierced through the other side. All the tentacles shivered in a meaty way, instantly letting go of the roller and trying to shrink back, but it's already too late. Zhang Fan would not let go of this opportunity. He broke it hard enough to bend the rebar then rushed to the other side to break the other side over as well. Then both hands grabbed the ends of the steel bars, and under brute force, the bars twisted together like wire. The tentacles were tied to the roller. The tentacle monster struggled frantically, all its tentacles slapping the steel bars, but it simply couldn't break free. Instead, Zhang Fan saw the opportunity and stabbed out more steel, piercing more tentacles onto the roller, which now made it completely unable to run away. Zhang Fan finally breathed a sigh of relief and hurriedly lifted his chi in blood burst state panting violently. The burden of a 500% chakra burst is still too much. After half a minute, the tentacle monster couldn't really break free, so the main body squeezed through the portal into subspace. Four pairs of eyes glaring hatefully at Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan opened the portal home without saying a word and jumped out with Gu Renying in his arms, then immediately closed the door and locked the tentacle monster in subspace. Subspace is a constant drain on stamina. I'd like to see how long you can carry it. As soon as he landed, Tang Shuelawa's women excitedly surrounded him, Zhang. Brother Jiang is finally back. Zhang Fan didn't come back for two days. They were all getting scared, afraid that Zhang Fan would have an accident outside. Now that they saw Zhang Fan returning home, they all cried with joy, and their hanging hearts finally fell back into place. After this incident, they realized how important Zhang Fan was to them. Zhang Fan felt something was wrong as soon as he landed. The women were very nervous. There was also an extra Qingxuan Li in the room who was being held at gunpoint. Perceptually, a group of red-covered survivors were climbing the building. Zhang Fan quickly realized what had happened, and a fierce light flashed in his eyes, what's going on? I've only been gone for two days, and these guys are not being honest? What is this blue door? Li Qingchuan, who is old, knows that he has seen a secret that he should not see, and hurriedly expresses his heartfelt feelings to Mr. Zhang. Just now the group of survivors downstairs rushed up with weapons, so I ran up to report it. Tang Shuelua timidly said, Brother Zhang. I let him in. Just then, a group of survivors rushed noisily up to the 32nd floor. A group of people had gone red-eyed and dreamily slapped the door of Jiang Fan's rented room, Tang Shuelua. Come out. I know you're in there. Jiang Fan is dead. Surrender yourselves at once. And Li Qingchuan, you old undead enabler. Using us as a test. You think we don't know? I'll skin you. Li Qingchuan's face was pale and his mouth chanted, It's over. It's over. Tang Shuelua's women, however, put their hearts down. They knew how powerful Jiang Fan was, and, even if they couldn't beat him, opening the door and leaving was, as long as Jiang Fan came back, their hearts were put into their stomachs. Gu Reneng, who had just arrived, was very frightened. She couldn't understand the situation at all. Just about knew that Jiang Fan's group was surrounded by a mob. This is really just out of the tiger's den and into the wolf's den. Gu Reneng wanted to cry. Why am I so unlucky? What? What to do? Su Jin saw Gu Reneng and walked up happily, Gu Reneng. You're here too. Don't worry. As long as there is. Brother Jiang. There's no problem. Gu Renying was also taken aback when she saw Su Jin, Mr. Su, why are you here too? Su Jin blushed. Knock knock. Bam bam bam. The door to the room was pounded on. The more the group cursed, the more excited and bold they became. By now Jiang Fan hadn't come out. 
Didn't that just mean he was dead? Get the fuck out. You stinking pussies. Jiang Fan is dead. Let's see what you guys do now. Ha ha ha. Kill them all and grab all the food. Jiang Fan's eyes narrowed. He had practiced breathing techniques for two days and caught the tentacle monster with a 500% burst of chi and blood. And now he was very tired and just wanted to rest. And it ended up happening as soon as I got home. Jiang Fan was angry. And the consequences were serious. It looks like I'm still too merciful. White eyes. Jiang Fan shouted. Woof. The husky jumped out. Jiang Fan said expressionlessly go downstairs. Block them. And don't let anyone get away. Woof woof woof. White eyes happily jumped up and down through the floorboards. Jiang Fan then took out a pistol and walked towards the door. Click. The door opened. The frantic survivor outside the door froze and turned his head. A familiar figure walked out. The crowd's scalps went numb. Their heads buzzed. And they all screamed in horror, it's Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan isn't dead. He's got a gun. Jiang Fan walked out of the room. And the crowd rolled backward. The people in the back still don't know what's going on and are desperately pushing forward. What? Jiang Fan is here? Is he alive? Who the fuck is talking shit? The crowd was packed into a ball of people. No matter what. A large area was empty around Jiang Fan. No one dared to get close to him. Jiang Fan clicked open the pistol's safety and asked calmly, who organized it? The crowd looked at each other in disbelief and couldn't help but look at the bald man and the others. The bald man was startled and hurriedly yelled, don't be afraid. He only has one gun. How many people can he kill? There are so many of us. What are we afraid of? Just rush in. Food. Water. Women. Bang. A man beside the bald man was shot in the forehead and fell on his back. Ah. 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 The bald man was so terrified that he barely peed. Screaming mindlessly. Jiang Fan said calmly oh. Sorry. Missed. He raised the pistol again. Bang. Chapter 84 We're all adults. We have to take responsibility for our mistakes. The one next to the bald guy died again. Jiang Fan sighed. Ugh. I'm such a bad shot. It looks like I need to practice more. He raised his pistol again when he finished speaking. The bald man's crotch was wet. And he waved his hand repeatedly and oh. No. No. Don't shoot. Listen to me. Bang. The bullet grazed his bald scalp. Scorching it in a line. Another one down. The crowd couldn't stand the fear any longer and turned their heads in a swarm to escape. The bald guy rubbed his head in confusion. The wound hurts. Pain is good. It means he's not dead. Before he had a chance to speak. Jiang Fan stepped forward and crushed his knee with one foot. Click. Ah. The bald man's eyes popped out and he covered his thighs in death. Jiang Fan bowed his head oops. Sorry for stepping on you. The bald man covered his thigh and endured the severe pain with difficulty. No. No. It's okay. Jiang Fan said flatly, look. There's no hospital now. And you're obviously hopeless in this condition. Right? How about I help you? The bald man moved back with a face full of fear. Trying to get as far away from Jiang Fan as possible don't come over. Don't you come any closer. Snap. Jiang Fan kicked him in the chest. The bald guy rolled down the stairs. The broken leg crashed around on the stairs. Dizzying and waking up in pain. Eventually the calf tore completely from the knee and blood spurted out. So badly traumatized that this time it was vibrantly dead. Ah. The bald man stared at his leg in horror and passed out. Bang. A bullet pierced his forehead. Jiang Fan walked by coldly, actually fainted? Cheap for you. Should have known to give you an adrenaline shot. He turned the corner and saw a group of human survivors huddled in the stairwell. The husky growled low, carrying a body in his mouth, and pressed on step by step from downstairs. The survivors stepped back and looked at the huskies in fear of this. What the hell is this? Why is there such a big dog in the building? Jiang Fan loaded the bullets one by one and walked down from upstairs calmly. The survivors also didn't dare to approach Jiang Fan, and were eventually all forced into the 31st floor hallway, completely walking into a dead end. Eventually, Jiang Fan finished loading the bullets, turned on the safety, and stood in front of the crowd, and the husky followed him. Only then did the crowd realize that the dog was actually raised by Jiang Fan as well. Jiang Fan smiled faintly, hello everyone, the first evil has been removed, so you have nothing to worry about. The survivor's mind was relieved. Did. The law is not responsible? Jiang Fan pointed to the window at the end of the building, which was already covered with creepers come on. Everyone, one by one, jump from here. This thing will be over. The survivor's face paled, you're crazy. It's the 31st floor. Jump off and die. Jiang Fan, please. I got carried away for a moment. It's all because of surname Jean. Brother Jiang, you know I've always respected you the most. I even went downstairs to collect herbs for you. Jiang Fan sighed, gentlemen, we're all adults. We have to take responsibility for doing something wrong, right? Come on, jump outside with your eyes closed. It doesn't hurt at all. It's quick. The crowd wailed, I don't want to die. Spare me. I'll never dare again. 
Nah, I'm just too hungry. It's really not my fault. Who told you not to give us food? Jiang Fan suddenly growled, I fucking said jump. Didn't you hear me? There was dead silence. And still no one jumped. Jiang Fan said coldly white eyes, kill them all. Woof woof woof. The husky lurched out and bit at the first one. The scene was filled with shrieks and screams. Why should you eat and drink while we starve? Help! Help! Jiang Fan, you shall not die. It's the end times. Who can guarantee a good death? Jiang Fan's heart did not ripple as he returned home through the wall. Tang Shuelua and the other women were terrified as they listened to the screams downstairs of Brother Jiang. How is it now? Jiang Fan scooped out a basin of water from the bathtub and calmly washed his hands, it's okay. No one will come looking for trouble anymore. Li Qingxuan shivered, Mr. Jiang, you killed them all? Jiang Fan stared into Li Qingxuan's eyes and said word for word, when they decide to do something, they have to be ready to suffer the consequences, right? Li Qingxuan nodded in panic, with great fear in his heart. One must not offend Jiang Fan, it was too ruthless. Gu Ren-ing was even shaking. This young man is even more murderous than Lu Junpeng. The women's faces were also green and white for a while. They didn't know what they were thinking. Only a little fear appeared in their eyes when they looked at Jiang Fan. Lu Mengyao was instead quick to speak as she remembered a scene she had seen as sisters. Think about what would happen if we were captured by them today. It's the easiest death for all of us women. We'd be locked up in cages as dogs. The women's faces changed again. And they immediately felt that Jiang Fan's disposition was very reasonable, right? Kill them all. Must kill them all. Now that we've done it, we have to cut off the roots. Is it better to keep a group of hate-filled survivors waiting for their own retribution? Jiang Fan shook the water off his hands. Bai Xinjia took a dry towel and dried his hands. Jiang Fan sat down and stared straight at Li Qingxuan. This one-time thing was not without its benefits. Li Qingxuan proved his loyalty. Li Qingxuan was looked at in a way that made his heart grow fuzzy. Even so, the glow on him was still green. Jiang Fan said with satisfaction Yidiar. Li, you have done well and you have gained my trust. In the future, I will give you more and better food and enough supplies for your daily life. Li Qingxuan was as grateful as if he had been pardoned, thank you, Mr. Jiang. At that point, the downstairs went quiet. Jiang Fan, looks, downstairs. Good, the survivors are all dead. Immediately following, white eyes jumped up from downstairs through the floorboards. It was covered in blood. Its eyes were fierce, and it looked at Jiang Fan with a low roar. Roar the crowd was all in a frenzy. Is this beast starting to want to fight back after killing someone? A beast that big? Who could handle it? Jiang Fan looked at White Eyes in wonder. It's still blowing green. So what's with the gesture? Jiang Fan suddenly remembered the habits of dogs. Did. This Yakuza wants to challenge me for the position and compete to be the top dog? Damn it. Lao Tzu is human. Snap. Jiang Fan slapped the dog's head in displeasure. Poof. White Eyes yelped at the blow. His jaw hitting the floor so hard that the floor smashed in a large, dizzying impact. Jiang Fan grabbed the dog's ears, picked up the dog's head and overhand it with a dozen slaps. Pop, 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 pop. The husky sobered instantly, his tail wagging like a propeller, and he grunted curtly. Apparently, it has once again recognized its place. Jiang Fan cried and laughed, slapping white eyes to the ground with another heavy slap. You're punished with no beef for three days. Woof 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 the husky was aggravated, but no longer dared to resist, shrinking his head with his tail between his legs. The black cat, Cola, gloated and purred twice. Qingxuan Li is back on the 28th floor. Jiang Fan took out a large pile of food. He hadn't been back for two days and the women were starting to starve. They needed a good meal. The sumptuous food dazzled Gu Rinning of this. This? Where did this come from? Tang Shuelua laughed, you'll find out soon enough. Anyway, there's no worries about food and drink here at Brother Jiang's place. Just stay at ease. Jiang Fan pulled out enough food and said with disgust, you guys cook. Gu Rinning, go take a shower. Your body stinks. Gu Rinning blushed in shame. In this environment now, even if she could make water, she wasn't in the mood for personal hygiene, and her body naturally smelled bad. At the same time, she was very nervous in her mind. Jiang Fan's collection of beautiful women in a room made her vaguely aware of what was going to happen, but there was no way for her to escape. And, why run away? Gu Rinning noticed the spirit and state of the women, clearly having a good time. It showed that Jiang Fan treated women well and didn't intentionally abuse them. Moreover, the fact that Jiang Fan had just stepped in to suppress the thugs made her feel a hint of long-lost security while her heart palpitated. When she remembered Jiang Fan's various abilities, she was even more moved, perhaps. In times like these, only men like Jiang Fan can protect women. Chapter 85, New Ability, Water Condensation. The Elite Squad in the Dense Forest. Early morning, Jiang Fan woke up from his sleep. The first two days had been so energetic and physically exhausting that even a 90 physique couldn't carry it off and felt a touch of drowsiness. 
He simply got comfortable and slept a great deal, his energy now fully restored. The aftermath of the short burst of 500% has also largely disappeared. Zhang Fan stood up in a happy mood and checked last night's system alert frowny face ding. One day ago, Gu Renning consumed a pack of bread and returned 1000 packs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Gu Renning consumed a bag of Snickers and returned 1000 bags. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago, Gu Renning consumed a carton of milk and returned 1000 cartons. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Fifteen days ago, Gu Renning consumed one enlightenment fruit condensation and returned one. Zero 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 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, water condensation one star. After consuming it, you can gain the ability to condense water. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Zhang Fan took out a water condensation fruit and ate it. Condensation, one star. You can draw water from your surroundings and condense it into water. Zhang Fan immediately realized that a new fruit had appeared on the tree of 10,000 laws. There are now 8 fruits, corresponding to 8 powers. Alas, it turns out that it really isn't a Hulkbuster. Zhang Fan was very slightly disappointed. He raised his hand. Condensation. A small ball of water slowly appeared in his palm. The water balloon hovers about 5 centimeters above the palm of your hand and grows larger. After about half a minute, it condenses out to the amount of a 500 milliliters bottle of pure water. The amount of physical strength consumed was so small that Zhang Fan could barely feel it. Even for Gu Renying's physique, it was about the same as her jogging 2 or 300 meters. I guess, not too much. Zhang Fan looked thoughtfully at the water ball suspended on his palm. Why can this water balloon fly? Is this controlling water with your mind? Zhang Fan relaxed his palm and the water ball fell, scattering a hand and flowing from his fingers to the ground. No matter how Zhang Fan tried, he could no longer control this water with his mind. He probably understood the principle that means that only the first time I make water, I can control it. As soon as you give up control, you can't control it after that. What's the difference between the water made the first time and the water made afterward? Zhang Fan couldn't figure it out a bit. He condensed another water sphere and scrutinized it with his senses, but he couldn't see any abnormalities either. There wasn't the slightest bit of energy in the water ball, and it looked like plain, pure water. If you can't figure it out, you don't want to. Zhang Fan took out a few more handfuls of condensed water fruits and ate them. It didn't work out so well this time, and it was only on the 15th one that the gels went up to 2 stars. Ding! Condensation upgraded to 2 stars. Speed of condensation of water accelerated. It looks like my ability to adapt to the condensation fruit is a bit worse than the perception fruit, but it's much better than the physique strengthening fruit. Zhang Fan tried the speed of condensation. Sure enough it sped up a whole lot. It now only takes about 10 seconds to condense the amount of a bottle of pure water. There will never be a water shortage again. Zhang Fan continued to eat the condensed water fruit. It took over 60 of them to finally get up to 3 stars. Ding! Condensation is upgraded to 3 stars. The speed of condensing water is accelerated, the distance of condensation is increased to 1 meter. Ha! Huh? Zhang Fan was pleasantly surprised. Can condensation also be made farther away? Zhang Fan immediately tested it. This time, it only takes 3 seconds to condense the amount of one bottle of pure water. Moreover, the water balloon could hover 1 meter in front of Zhang Fan, though it was still the same as before. As soon as you relaxed your control, you could no longer control this water balloon afterward. But Zhang Fan still came up with more uses for it. For example, when fighting an enemy in close combat, suddenly a small ball of water condenses under his nose. The image is too beautiful to think about. Still, one meter isn't quite enough if used for combat. Also, the condensation rate is even too slow. Close combat with both sides moving at high speeds. According to this condensation, by the time one condenses a water balloon, the position of the opponent's head has changed who knows how many times. Zhang Fan tried again with Gu Renning to see if he could condense water directly in her nasal cavity, and it turned out that it was possible. But it's a horrible drain on stamina. After condensing less than one milliliter of water alone, Zhang Fan felt a wave of weakness in his body. And, the further inside the body, the more depleted it becomes. Zhang Fan wanted to try to see if he could condense water in Gu Renying's alveoli, and after trying it he hurriedly gave up, estimating that if he condensed one milliliter of water, he would have to pass out. This method is so impractical. It's not practical until you physically crush your enemy at least. If the physique was capable of crushing the enemy, why bother? How much easier would it be to just punch through? Keep eating. Zhang Fan once again took out a handful of condensed water fruits and ate them, eating them until he was about to regurgitate. When he finally heard a prompt frowny face ding, condensation is upgraded to 4 stars. 
You can consume more stamina to increase the speed of condensation. The distance of condensation is increased to 5 meters. You can expend stamina to increase the speed of condensation. Jiang Fan was overjoyed. He lacked everything but physical strength. And condensing 5 meters away? Jiang Fan walked to the window and made his full strength. Condensation. A water balloon the size of a man's head instantly appeared outside the window. At this speed, the enemy can barely react. Such a big water balloon. But also to others under the nose condensation ah. Direct water balloon call face. Not only does it suffocate, but it can briefly blind. Only, this speed of condensation was also extremely physically demanding. Even with Jiang Fan's 90 comprehensive physique, he felt a wave of weakness that took a few seconds to slow down. If it was Gu Renying, she would probably be directly exhausted to the point of passing out. And, indeed, it can penetrate obstacles to condense water globules. Jiang Fan laughed, combined with one's perception. It was completely possible to do the wall condensation, which was a divine technique to shade people. Jiang Fan was satisfied. This was the first means of elemental attack he had acquired. While the water balloon seems weak, it's still a nice addition when utilized properly. Jiang Fan also discovered that condensed water actually extracted water molecules from its surroundings, closely related to the water content of the environment. The more he condenses, the more water vapor he extracts, the drier the air, the more difficult it is to condense and the more stamina he expends, if it's on the sea or river, I'm guessing the rate of condensation can be increased a whole lot more. By the way, is that tentacle monster dead? Zhang Fan opened a blue portal the size of a soybean grain and peeked into subspace. The tentacle monster had been trapped all night, and it hadn't even died yet. Zhang Fan was a bit depressed, since he couldn't enter subspace. He didn't know Zhang Zilin's state. If Zhang Zilin arrives at the TV rescue point, there could be very important information that can't be monitored right now. Also, he couldn't travel to the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower. The survivor riots in Fortune Center Block C had made him extremely wary of everyone. This will happen more and more as order collapses. Food is scarce, and survival becomes more and more difficult. Block C of the Fortune Center is no longer safe enough. The Pearl of the Devil Sea is suspended hundreds of meters in the air and is a safe enough shelter. Unfortunately, now that the tentacle monster was still alive, Jiang Fan had no way to enter subspace and could only continue to wait. All plans would have to be postponed. Jiang Fan kind of regretted locking the tentacle monster into subspace. This one can carry too much. Dense forest. A heavily armed elite squad was advancing with their heads in the sand. The team was led by two soldiers. A man and a woman. The man is very strong and at least 1 meter 9 in height. His entire body was covered in a layer of shining silver armor. Even his face, which was tightly covered underneath. He held a mountain opening axe in his hand and moved forward to open the road in front of him. The woman was slender and wore a tight black military uniform with only a pistol at her waist. In her hand she held a thin rope attached to a series of flat metal plates behind her. The metal plates are about 2 meters long and 1 meter wide. And there are 10 of them, which are linked together with ropes into a strange, convoy. The metal plates were loaded with all sorts of heavy weapons and supplies, and looked very heavy, yet they were strangely suspended in the air and seemed to weigh nothing. And the woman was able to haul them all away with one hand. On one of the metal plates sat a scholar with gray hair and several assistants. Ten heavily armed soldiers flanked the convoy to protect them as they moved forward. The woman holding the rope gasped louder and louder, and finally raised her hand. Her face pale, Colonel Cho, I need a break. The armored man, named Zhou Tao, stopped in his tracks, and the armor on his face magically faded like liquid, revealing a stoic, dark face. Zhou Tao was a bit anxious, but had no choice but to say everyone take a ten minute break. Group 2 is on guard. Yes, the soldiers acted immediately. Two groups of five people set up a perimeter. A few other soldiers pulled the convoy of sheet metal into a circle, protecting the woman and a few of the scholars in the very center. The woman slowly lowered the rope in her hand and the metal plate slowly fell to the ground, pressing deep marks into the ground. The woman sighed in relief at this and sat down on a metal plate to catch her breath. A short while later, a huge bat flew in from behind, landed on the ground and transformed into a simple soldier in uniform. Zhou Tao picked up a cigarette and handed it to him, laughing, here, big guy, have one to relieve yourself. Big eyes laughed nervously, all right, thank you Colonel Zhou. At this point, the crowd on the metal plates also came down to move their bodies, each eating and resting. Zhou Tao, on the other hand, regained his armor over his face after taking a drink of water, and took his weapon to police the surrounding area. The gray-haired scholar picked up a bottle of water and handed it to the woman, majorly. It's been hard on you and Colonel Zhou. If it wasn't for you, a few of us would be dead. Li Qingyu took the water and said with a straight face academician Gua, don't thank me. I'm just carrying out this as an order from my superiors. 
Wu Chongting shook his head, you can't say that. Colonel Zhou and Major Li risked so much this time to save me from the Ocean Academy. I really don't know how to thank you. Li Qingyu said sincerely, I'm just an ordinary soldier. Academician Gui is a pillar of the nation. And you are the top biological expert of our Dragon Kingdom. Whether or not this Red Mist Evolution incident can be completely solved. It all depends on you. Our lives are really nothing. Red Mist Ah. Wu Chongting looked around with a sigh, I don't have much of a clue until now. I'm so ashamed of everyone for paying such a big price to save me. After resting for a while, the time came for everyone to organize their gear and get ready to go again. Zhou Tao kept looking at the map, trying to distinguish his current location from the thick red fog. Finally pointing in one direction, tonight, we won't be able to make it to the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower no matter what. We need to find a place to rest for the night, and we should be able to arrive before noon tomorrow. Then we'll send a message to the base and they'll send someone to meet us. Let's go. Another one kilometer and the brothers will be able to rest. Li Qingyu took the rope and the metal plates levitated one after the other. The convoy is moving forward again. Chapter 86 It turns out that every woman has psychic abilities. Zhang Fan opened the door and left the bedroom. Gu Renying gently opened her eyes and looked at Zhang Fan's back with a complicated expression. In fact, she woke up as soon as Zhang Fan woke up, she had always been a light sleeper. She was just a little unsure of how to deal with this man, so she pretended to be asleep. Gu Renying felt that she should be resentful. Actually, no. In the precarious red mist era, a haven like the Zhang family was like heaven for women. Safe, well-fed, well-stocked, and even enough propane to burn as gas. Except for the lack of electricity, it's almost indistinguishable from peacetime. But what value do I have here besides being pretty? Gu Renying suddenly remembered Su Jin. She had known that Mr. Su would heal. That's right, condensation. Zhang Fan must have gotten us back because of both of our abilities. This ability is what makes me stand out. Gu Renying had a bottom in her heart. Zhang Fan suddenly turned back, don't stay in bed, get up for breakfast. Ah, Gu Renying was startled and blushed beyond measure. So it turned out that Zhang Fan had already known that he had woken up. Gu Renying hurriedly got up. As soon as I arrived in the living room I was amazed at the table full of food. It was very sumptuous. Milk, bread, fries, fried eggs, soy milk. Gu Renying looked dumbfounded. What's with all the food? That's too extravagant. Such a table of rice. Put in the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, is enough for 10 people to eat for a week. In Zhang Fan's case, however, it was just a breakfast. Although Gu Renying hadn't been starved by relying on her water condensation ability, she wasn't able to pick her food either, and basically just ate whatever was available. Such bountiful food could only mean that Zhang Fan had a very rich stock of supplies. She recalled one of the Yi pre-service training, Tang Shuilawa did last night Brother Jiang has known about the Red Mist reward for a long time. He has a carry-on space and purchased a huge amount of supplies in advance. Enough for everyone to eat freely for 100 years. Gu Renying finally believed it when she saw the scene in front of her. Unless this was the reason. How could Zhang Fan waste food like this? Gu Renying couldn't help but look at Zhang Fan. Why did he know in advance that the red mist had descended? And did he know the reason why the red mist descended? Zhang Fan was holding a white boiled egg. One bite at a time. Eating extremely fast. Two beautiful women. One on the left and one on the right peeled his eggs. Breakfast was more relaxed and the women chatted spontaneously in groups of three or five. Gu Renning was a bit at a loss for words. Julie beckoned Gu Renning, come here and eat together. Beside who Lily sat Su Jin, who also smiled sweetly at Gu Renning. Gu Renning sighed in relief and hurriedly sat down next to the two women. After eating, Su Mengqian came in with a large plate of roasted meat. This is the mutated frog meat from that day. Tested by Jiang for its health benefits. Brother Jiang asked for one skewer per person so everyone has to eat it. The ladies watched as Zhang Fan picked up a handful to eat, and they all ate with confidence. Zhang Fan had basically determined that the mutated frog meat was fine, and it seemed to increase his physique. The survivors of yesterday's group of riots generally had a much better glow about them than they had the previous days, so it was brought out for all to eat. As his physique got higher and higher, his strength increased. If women are too weak, they can accidentally injure them at night, and it is necessary to improve their physical condition properly. Zhang Fan was considering popularizing one-star physique enhancement among all women to cope with the increasingly dangerous Red Mist era, and to help them cope with the nightlife in the meantime. Only, this fruit would not be given to the women for nothing. It would require them to work hard to obtain it. After all, there is initiative to improve service. Zhang Fan took a bite and his eyes lit up it's kinda tasty, kinda like lamb. And, after you swallow it, your body warms up. Zhang Fan saw that when the mutated frog meat reached the stomach, it was as if it had ignited, escaping stars and dots of energy into the muscles, bones, tissues and organs. 
he quickly ate all ten skewers. In this meal, he had eaten ten large bunches of mutated frog meat, ten eggs, four cups of milk, two large bowls of soy milk, and five fritters. Looking at the women, they were secretly staggered and happy that the stronger Jiang Fan was, the safer they would be. Jiang Fan didn't hide his meal size either. After his physique was strengthened, he was eating more and more. Luckily the integrated physique strengthened his gut at the same time, allowing him to digest that much food. Tang Shuelua had already taken physique enhancement, and her meal size was much larger than other women. The crowd finished eating and the women cleaned up the meal together. Jiang Fan thought about it and decided to dedicate a house as a kitchen, and set up five freezers in the room, filling them with ice and food, enough for the women to eat for three days. In case they encountered this situation again this time, Jiang Fan couldn't come back outside for a short period of time, and the woman wouldn't starve to death. Of course, if Jiang Fan really had an accident, it would be hard for them to escape death. Jiang Fan took out a perception fruit and handed it to Gu Renying. Gu Renying said in surprise, you even have black lychee? Is this for me? The fruit of enlightenment is called something less than the same by various groups of survivors. Jiang Fan nodded, we call them alien fruits here, and this one is a fruit of perception, which can help you recognize if the other party is hostile to you or not. Every woman who joins gets one fruit of perception. I have plenty of others, but you'll need to earn them. Gu Renjie Shadow Man was dumbfounded. She would never have imagined that the incomparably precious treasures outside had become prizes to reward women in Jiang Fan's place. She said incredulously that means they all have powers? Jiang Fan smiled yeah, and a couple of them have more than one psychic ability. The women looked at Gu Renying with a smile. Tian 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 proudly flaunted, I can teleport. Sister Tang Shuelua can walk through walls. And Sister Su Mengqian can call us with her consciousness. Gu Renying was completely confused. Jiang Fan waved his hand and a huge water ball appeared in front of Gu Renying. Gu Renying's beautiful eyes widened you can condense water too? But why is the speed of your water condensation so fast? Jiang Fan smiled and pulled out a handful of condensed water fruits and said, I have a lot of condensed water fruits. And by eating the same fruits, your ability may rise to the stars and become stronger. If you perform well, I will reward you with more condensed water fruits. The other women have seen it all before. A large handful of alien fruits. Gu Renying no longer had a trace of pride. She had thought that Jiang Fan must have snatched herself back for her water condensation ability. She was bound to gain Jiang Fan's love and affection. And none of these women could compare to her. Right now, it doesn't seem like there's anything special about myself at all. The precious alien powers outside were surprisingly available in one, or even more than one, hand here. Jiang Fan went through the wall to the roof of the building and practiced some chi and blood bursts and ghost maneuvers, but he still didn't make any progress. I don't know how long it will take to practice to get to that level of collection and release that Zhang Zilin has. Jiang Fan had to admit it, so Zhang Zilin is really a martial arts genius. Jiang Fan took out a handful of fruits and ate them. Since tricks don't work, top off the panel. He stood at the edge of the rooftop, looking at the endless sea of red mist, and ate the fruit of enlightenment one by one. I don't know if Shang Zilin has arrived at the TV station yet. Magic Sea Royalty Neighborhood. The rooftop of a building. The big-bellied Kong Yong Jian, dressed in a clean and crisp black executive jacket, walked in front with his arms folded, in full official style. He looks as out of place today as he did in times of peace. However, Kong Yong Jian was followed by a group of survivors, with their faces completely unchanged, respectfully following Kong Yong Jian. Kong Yong Jian inspected the rooftop vegetable garden and took a sip from a thermos before saying in a neutral manner, I announce that the rooftop vegetable garden project of the seventh building of the Magic Sea Royal View has been successfully completed after the objective summarization, scientific planning, and thorough deployment by the leading group of the survivors of the Magic Sea Royal View. Snap. The survivors had extremely excited expressions on their faces and happily applauded, as if they were elementary school students being praised by their parents. Some of them were so excited that their faces turned red as if they had orgasmed after being praised by Kong Yong Jian. The atmosphere in the room was both enthusiastic and a touch of indescribable weirdness. Kong Yong Jian raised a hand. The scene was instantly quiet as if the stop button had been pressed. Kong Yong Jian said slowly but there are still a couple of little problems with it. So I'm going to say a few things. The survivors' expressions instantly became grave. And they all showed an expression of listening, waiting for Kong Yong Jian's high opinion. First and foremost, raise awareness and correct attitudes. No one could see that with Kong Yong Jin's words, an invisible ripple spread out with him at the center, exerting a mysterious influence on the crowd. Chapter 87 Reality Twisting Force Field For Alien Powerhouse, Kung rattled on for half an hour. The crowd was mesmerized, all of them nodding their heads in succession, deeply convinced, and overflowing with admiration. Kong Yong Jian also spoke sweaty. Physical exertion is very large, but looking at the crowd performance, only feel satisfied. 
Body comfort. He was a small district mayor. In a big city like Magic Sea City where high officials were like hemp, how could he usually have this kind of opportunity to pretend to be a bully? After the red mist descends, Kong Yongjian accidentally obtains a black lychee, and he also sees the video of the lightning guy and immediately eats it. After eating it, Kong Yongjian didn't notice any abnormality in himself and thought that the lightning man was cheating. As a result, after an argument with someone, he was surprised how quickly the other person was convinced by himself. In the beginning, Kan Yong Jian didn't know what was going on. Later, in conversation after conversation, Kan Yong Jian finally identified his own ability, his words seemed to have a reality distorting force field, and it was extremely easy to gain the approval of others. Empty words that no one even believed in the past were easy for people to believe as long as they passed through his mouth. Since then, Kan Yong Jian has used this ability to keep making speeches, gradually convincing all the survivors in the community and organizing everyone. Kong Yongjian established the Magic Sea Royal View Survivor Leadership Team and appointed himself as the leader of the leadership team. The six survivors who were most devoted to themselves were then chosen to be part of the group, and from then on had the entire neighborhood completely under their control. Since everyone listened to Kong Yongjian's words, the survivors of the Magic Sea Royal View neighborhood were twisted into a rope, and the survival rate was surprisingly high. It's amazing that more than 1.000 people are still alive in this neighborhood to this day. Kong Yongjian controlled this power and transformed the Magic Sea Royal View. He concentrated all the survivors in this one building, Block 2, and all the supplies were collected, managed, and distributed uniformly. Survivors were then organized to clean up the vegetation in their neighborhoods to reduce the threat of flora and fauna. Even if more than 70 people died accidentally in the process, no one had the slightest complaint. And, the loyal survivors found three black lychees, all of which were surrendered to Kong Yongjian. Thus, Kong Yongjian gained three more powers. He began to fantasize that it was only a small group of one, zero 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 people. If you control ten, zero 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 people yourself, are you finding thirty black lychees? Unfortunately, Kong Yongjian realized after repeated practice that there was actually a limit to his ability. First of all, the number of audience members at the presentation should not exceed one hundred people. Otherwise, the effect will be greatly reduced. Secondly, if the listener does not hear his speech for three days, he will gradually get out of his control, so he has to keep speaking. So far, the speech consumed a lot of time and physical strength of Kong Yongjian. Why? K. Kong has also tried to get survivors to watch videos of their own speeches, but it was completely ineffective and they had to speak face to face themselves for it to be effective. And so there was a practical limit to the ability that seemed to have little limit, over 1. 000 people, anymore and he was out of his depth. While Kong Yongjian was giving his speech, Lu Yongwei, the head of the Magic Sea Royal View Survivors Defense Office, came over in a hurry. This is a direct confidant personally appointed by Kong Yongjian, deeply trusted by Kong Yongjian. Kong Yongjian's face changed slightly as he asked, what's wrong? Liu Yongwei whispered anxiously, Director Kong, there's a group of pawns coming outside. I spotted at least two aberrations. The leader is a man in iron armor, and there's a woman who seems to be able to levitate metal. Soldier, Kong Yongjian's eyes stared. Not surprised but pleased has the army finally entered the city? He's been longing for the army to come into town for a long time. With his merits of protecting thousands of people, he would surely be able to get a good position in the organization. As soon as he gets into leadership, he has the best stage for his abilities. Convincing the average survivor doesn't pay off anywhere near as much as convincing the top brass. Kong Yongjian couldn't help but think freely. If he allowed himself to come into contact with the head of the military and talk to the other side a few times, he would definitely be able to enter the leadership and gradually walk up to the pinnacle of the Red Mist era. I've had enough of being in a bullshit neighborhood, farming with a bunch of survivors for a long time. Quick, quickly show me, Kong Yongjian said excitedly. Liu Yongwei was a bit worried, but out of his admiration and trust in Kong Yongjian, he carried out the order without reason. Okay, Zhou Tao, Li Qingyu and their group stood in surprise at the entrance of the Magic Sea Royal View neighborhood. It was the most orderly and cleanest place all the way around. Slim but spry survivors dressed in uniform black and armed with homemade weapons patrolled the neighborhood. Groups of survivors are mowing the lawn and clearing the neighborhood of weeds. Large trees were all cut down and chopped into sections and pushed outside the yard gate to reinforce the yard wall. Some people have organized the ground into farmland and planted a strange type of caper that looks as if it could be eaten. Whether male or female, their expressions were placid, devoid of the fear and ferocity of other survivor colonies, and instead filled with energy and indescribable joy. If it weren't for the thick red fog, there would be barely a hint of the end times to be seen here. The metal on Zhou Tao's face faded and he said in surprise, who did this here? Awesome. Not even the well-stocked bases had such a harmonious scene. Only Li Qingyu felt a hint of strangeness. 
she was instinctively a bit uneasy, and after thinking about it, she went up and asked, Hello young man, I'm Major Li Qingyu from the military, may I ask what your main officer's name is? Several patrol members held weapons and stared nervously at Zhou Tao's crowd, even though they were terrified of the weapons in the hands of several people, they didn't flinch a bit, the patrol member just stared at Li Qingyu without saying a word. Guo Changting also got down from the metal plate and looked at the crowd of vegetable growers with surprise, can you eat this kind of food? Zhou Tao hurriedly pulled him to prevent him from getting too close to the patrolman. Although the other party didn't seem to have any intention of attacking, it was better to be as careful as possible now that the situation was unknown. The patrolman remained silent. It's edible. A cheerful voice came from the red mist. Immediately after that, a fat man with a five short body stepped out with great strides. A smile spread across his face as he enthusiastically stepped forward with his hands outstretched, Comrades, I've come to expect you. The one. 035 people of our Magic Sea Royal View have been looking forward to our Dragon Kingdom Soldiers Day and Night. Kong Yong Jin grabbed Zhou Tao's hand and shook it, I'm Kong Yong Jin, the former mayor of Xinhai District, and the current head of the Magic Sea Royal View Survivor Leadership Group. May I ask the general your name? Zhou Tao was still a bit wary, but after Kong Yong Jin spoke, he inexplicably felt that the fat man in front of him was trustworthy, and he couldn't help but introduce himself, I'm not a general, I'm just a colonel named Zhou Tao. Ordered to rescue academician Guo Changting back to the base, passing through your place. Ha! Huh? How did I get the mission out of the way? Zhou Tao froze for a moment. First a little worried, then immediately put his heart down. This Kong Wing Kin should be a good official. All right. Li Qingyu was secretly anxious. This is a top secret mission. How can Zhou Tao say it? He didn't seem like a talkative person before. Why are you so sullen now? Academician? Kong Yanjian's eyes lit up as he enthusiastically shook Guo Chanting's hand you are academician Guo, right? Oops, I'm a big old man, and I admire you cultured people the most. It just so happens that we've blindly planted some capers in our vegetable patch. Can we please ask academician Guo to give us some guidance? Guo Chanting immediately felt that Kong Yongjian is dedicated to the people and never forgets his job. He wasn't reserved and rolled up his sleeves good. Even though I'm not from the College of Agriculture, old man, I have some research on growing vegetables so I'll go and take a look. Are you guys growing capers here? Kong Yongjian said happily, Academician Guo, please, this kind of caper can indeed be eaten. It's just a bit smelly. Li Qingyu was shocked. Zhou Tao and Guo Chanting's group inexplicably followed them in. Almost defenseless. It had to be disturbing to her. Could it be that this Kong Yongjian has too much charisma? Li Qingyu couldn't pinpoint the reason for this for a moment, so she could only frown and follow in. Secretly on guard. Chapter 88, Flesh and Blood Crystals. Traveling to the Pearl of the Magic Sea. It was dark. Zhang Fan opened subspace again and found the tentacle monster dead. The flesh and blood dried up, leaving only a thick outer skin, wrapped tightly around the roller. It looks kind of funny. In perception, the twisted mass of flesh and blood within it remained bright as ever. Zhang Fan climbed onto the corpse of the tentacle monster. The mucus on the surface of the skin is dry, cracked and caked and very hard. Zhang Fan walked above the twisted flesh and blood and chopped down with an axe. A few minutes later, Zhang Fan dug out a mass of blood red gems. This mass of twisted flesh and blood, after the death of the tentacle monster, had condensed into a jewel. The shape of the twisted flesh and blood still looks like flesh and blood. It's just turned transparent and looks a little weird. Can this thing still transform, Chi? Zhang Fan took out the flesh and blood gems into subspace. The flesh and blood gem immediately began to absorb the red mist, releasing starry, Chi, particles. Zhang Fan was overjoyed, really. With this, in the future, when practicing the calling method, you can take it out to increase the concentration of qi and increase the speed of cultivation. Zhang Fan put the flesh and blood gem into his carry-on space. Can we kill more tentacle monsters? He thought of the third people's hospital inpatient unit. Think it and do it. He immediately opened a door and headed for the hospitalization unit again. Knowing the monster's details, Zhang Fan had the confidence to deal with it. Tentacle monsters were extremely threatening to ordinary survivors and other exalts. But to Zhang Fan, they could only be described as average. If you can't beat them, just vanish and run away. He turned on his vapors, stepped out of the portal, and landed on the roof of the hospital wing. The scene before him stunned him. The inpatient unit has changed dramatically from the last time I was here. Cocoons hang everywhere on the building's exterior walls. In perception, densely packed tentacle monsters were crawling up the bank from from the Fairview River toward land. Everywhere they went, all the animals were captured and made into cocoons. Jung Fan's face changed. Also, to his surprise, it turned out that not all tentacle monsters had that twisted mass of flesh and blood. All the tentacle monsters here can't absorb the red mist. Zhang Fan didn't linger, immediately opening the door again and retransmitting. This time, 
he came 200 meters away from the river. This place, originally a neighborhood, was now also covered with densely packed tentacle monsters. The survivors ran out long ago. There wasn't a living soul within sensory range at all. The tentacle monster wrapped itself around the tree and jumped in the treetops. A herd of animals that are fleeing in terror. If you're not careful, you'll be grabbed by the tentacles, wrapped in a cocoon, and hanging from the treetops. Even a giant cat as big as a sedan can't resist the twisting and strangling power of the tentacles, and is bound into a cocoon in minutes. Damn it! Jung Fan's face turned blue. Jung Fan teleported again, this time opening the portal to the top of the Jinxiu River. Jung Fan didn't go out, but cautiously looked outward from subspace. In perception, there was a blinding red light flashing everywhere under the water. All sorts of horrible fish, shrimp, frogs, crabs, and water snakes in a frenzy of killing, predation, and getting stronger. There were also some strange tentacle-like monsters, and it was not known what kind of animals had mutated out of them, and they were even more rampant. More than land, the unobstructed underwater is the true arena of cultivation. Almost all the underwater creatures that still survive are incredibly large. A number of these animals, with the presence of ginger in their bodies, apparently have the fruit of enlightenment underwater as well. Jiang Fan, looked, numb. This is still just the narrow river. It's all become brutal. What a horrible scene the sea will be. Under normal circumstances, these animals fight as much as they want, and it doesn't affect humans anyway. But what if these animals land? Just like the tentacle monster. Also, many aquatic animals are inherently amphibious. Jiang Fan was in a heavy mood. He never expected that the greatest danger would not be from land, but from underwater. Running away? Where to run? Magic Sea City was one of the few largest cities in the Dragon Kingdom, and it had all become like this. What the hell is the situation outside the Magic Sea? No way. The ground is too dangerous. Let's move our home to the Pearl Tower of the Magic Sea first, both away from the ground and away from the sea and the river. Aquatic monsters are naturally dealt with by officials if they land. Anyway, the sky is falling and the taller one will be the first to take the lead. Let's get you guys to act like assholes when you don't move a muscle on TV. I'd like to see how long you can survive if the aquatic creatures land in mass. Jung Fan briefly searched and only found one tentacle monster with twisted flesh and blood inside it. But this tentacle monster is too big. The size was at least 10 times bigger than the previous one, and sprawled out under the water. Jung Fan would not take such a risk. So he opened the teleportation portal and traveled to the Pearl of the Magic Sea. After two consecutive teleportations, Jung Fan was standing on the observation deck at the top of the Tower of the Pearl of the Magic Sea. Checking from his senses, there were actually five survivors alive in the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower. This made Jung Fan quite surprised. However, they're all ordinary people. Only the aliens. Jung Fan wasn't in a hurry to get into trouble with them either. He stood several hundred meters up in the air, looking down on the entire Magic Sea City. A sea of red mist and clouds covered the entire city with only sparse tall buildings peeking out of the red mist. Taller and denser than the skyscrapers are the big trees. Poplars, willows, sycamores, ginkgos, all kinds of trees. There were some trees that had grown to unbelievable heights, even taller than the pearl of the magic sea TV tower. A tree this massive, with a base thickness estimated to be thicker than a building, had almost created its own ecosystem, with the canopy casting a large swath of shadows, and a wide variety of animals weaving in and out of it. There is an extremely tall tree just a kilometer or so next to the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV station. Sprawled in the treetops were a bunch of wacky monkeys from nowhere. They had white faces and black backs, and surprisingly they all had four arms. The monkeys, having about discovered the enemy, suddenly uttered a mournful cry, and leaped rapidly through the treetops, and at last scampered into the red mist and disappeared. Jiang Fan sighed. I'm afraid it's going to be hard for Earth to go back in time. Jiang Fan looked far to the east. What should have been a blue ocean there was now also obscured by a red mist. There were no tall buildings or big trees on the ocean. Only an endless red mist like a sea of clouds. Just then, a giant sea serpent suddenly fish leaped out of the red mist of nearly a hundred meters. The giant sea serpent's body was covered in alternating silver and blue scales, with horrifying bone wings spreading out on both sides of its body and three rows of bone spikes growing on its back. It was almost unimaginably tall with its head in the clouds and the lower half of its body still in the red mist. The giant sea serpent is holding a giant cruise ship in its mouth that looks like the size of a human cigarette. Comparing at this scale, the giant sea serpent is at least 5, 000, 000 meters long. Jung Fan looked dumbfounded. He had no words left to express himself in the face of such an unimaginably terrifying creature. Roar! The giant sea serpent let out a roar through the sky. The sea of red mist clouds within a hundred miles radius was shaken to the point that it trembled violently. Then the giant snake cut through a huge parabola and fell heavily into the seawater. Boom! 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 
A loud crashing roar came as if a nuclear explosion had occurred. The water mist is majestic. There was even a beautiful rainbow hanging in the sky. Zhang Fan's jaw dropped as he looked at the red mist for a long time. Crap. Groove. Ah. Chapter 89, Infighting. The main body of the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower, with three large sightseeing slash working platforms distributed from bottom to top, namely the lower sphere, upper sphere and space capsule. The capsule is the highest of these locations, with the construction of a revolving restaurant and a Magic Ocean Skyline Hotel. In the presidential suite of the Magic Sea Skyline Hotel, Su Xienda, the richest man in the Magic Sea, stood by the floor-to-ceiling window in his silk pajamas with a glass of red wine. Su Xienda, who had always prided himself on being accustomed to seeing big storms, was now also shocked to the point where his mouth was bigger than his fist. What the hell was that just now? He had just gotten up when he saw the giant sea serpent on top of him. Treadmill. I can't believe I'm using a cruise ship as a toy. How big does this thing have to be? Behind Su Xienda, there stood a strong man with an inch head. The strong man was Lu Lei, Su Xienda's most trusted bodyguard. After Lu Lei retired from the army, his mother was seriously ill with no money for treatment, and Su Xienda shelled out $1 million to treat his mother. Although Lu Lei's mother eventually died, Lu Lei has been loyal to Su Xienda ever since, and has been following Su Xienda for more than 10 years, gaining Su Xienda's trust. Even when he encountered a global disaster like the Red Mist Descent, Su Xienda brought Lu Lei with him. Lu Lei was silent for a long time before he smiled bitterly looks like a sea serpent, but it's too big. Su Xienda's face turned blue. He finally began to wonder if the world could ever go back to the way it was. I'm the richest man in the magic sea. I haven't enjoyed enough of the good life. How come the world has turned into this hell? Mad. The magic sea isn't safe anymore. Must go inland. He was never able to contact his father himself. At that moment, there was a knock on the door of the room. Knock knock. Personal assistant Jiang Yin carefully opened the door, boss, it's time to eat. Su Xienda relented and cursed, can't you see we're in the middle of something? What a lack of color. Jiang Yin shivered in fear and hurriedly withdrew, and the outside quieted down. No more sound. Lu Lei sighed boss, it's useless to rush now. The key is to contact the official people and ask them to hurry up and send a helicopter to take you away. As soon as he talked about this, Su Xienda was furious and angrily smashed the table lamp that old bastard surnamed Jiang. Who promised me so well before? Can't even get in touch now. Ma da. I spent so much money to push him up. But he's actually ungrateful. Lu Lei was silent. As the time Su Xienda was trapped here became longer, he became more and more manic. Su Xienda vented for a while before calming down and saying Lu Lei, how much food do we have left? Lu Lei calmly said, there's about enough for the five of us for another 15 days. Only 15 days left? Su Xienda got anxious. His face cloudy. And said, you. Go kill Shen Hui and Jiang Yan. Lu Lei's heart was shaken. Is it finally coming to this? When the red mist just descended, Su Xienda felt that something was not right, and made a prompt decision to bring his son, his personal assistant Shen Hui, Jiang Yan, and he Lu Lei came here. As soon as he arrived, Lu Lei followed Su Xienda's orders and blocked the stairs and elevator on the top floor. This revolving restaurant and the Skyline Hotel were originally the property of Su Xienda, so there was little resistance at all from all the hotel and restaurant staff. No one thought at the time that the red mist would never dissipate either. When everything evolved later, Su Xiendai immediately knew that something was going to happen and took control of all the food and all the staff at the first opportunity. As the situation gets worse and worse, order is out of control. Looting and killings are everywhere. Officials are disappearing en masse. And the restaurant's stash of food is getting scarce. Su Xienda knows that the world is going to be in turmoil. On the fifth day after the red mist descended, Su Xienda made up his mind and had Lu Lei kill all the staff. He was ready to set fire to the entire Pearl of the Devil Sea and die if order could be restored later. If order can't be restored, then no one will care at all about these people's lives. Since then, there are only five people left here. Su Xienda. Now, the situation is getting worse. Even Shen Hui and Jiang Yan, who had followed Su Xienda for years, had to go to hell. After Su Xienda finished speaking, he stared at Lu Lei dead in the face. He was actually very nervous. The situation of letting Lu Lei kill the staff of the hotel and restaurant was completely different from letting Lu Lei kill the people around him. Shen Hui and Jiang Yan are the most trusted people around him. Both his woman and his secretary and assistant were equally loyal. If he let Lu Lei kill Shen Hui and Jiang Yan, there was no guarantee that Lu Lei would not worry about his safety. Lu Lei took a deep breath and nodded his head expressionlessly good. With that, he turned and walked out the door. A few minutes later, Lu Lei walked in indifferently, his hands covered in blood. His voice dry boss, it's done. Su Xienda barely sighed in relief and pretended not to care, where's your gun? Give it to me. Lu Lei slowly raised his head and stared at Su Xienda, 
saying word for word to boss, you're not trusting me. Su Shenda was flustered in his heart, but his face remained strong, Lu Lei, what are you rambling about? Don't you even listen to my words. Give me the gun. Lu Lei suddenly laughed. I knew it. You are. He clapped his hands. The door to the room was opened. The two women, Shen Hui and Jiang Yan, walked in with faces full of resentment. Su Xianda panicked, Lu Lei, how are they still alive? Whose blood is on your hands? Whose blood is it? Lu Lei revealed a sinister smile that Su Xianda had never seen before, of course it belongs to that precious son of yours. You killed Xiao Hao. Su Xianda was struck by lightning. Lu Lei sneered. Shen Hui gritted her teeth and cursed Su Xianda. You old undead thing. I've been working as a dog for you for so many years. And you just say kill. Zhang Yan even wrapped her arms around Lu Lei's thick arm and hugged it in her arms with a delicate smile, brother Lu. Kill this old thing and we'll all be yours from now on. Lu Lei's heart began to beat rapidly with an expression of enjoyment. These two women, being able to be chosen by Su Xianda, naturally their face value and body shape are all superior. He's a normal man too, and has had thoughts about these two women for a long time. Only in the past, deterred by the power of Su Xianda, he only has the heart of a thief, not the courage of a thief. Lu Lei couldn't resist the temptation and wrapped his arms around Jiang Yan and kissed him hard. Su Xianda stormed out, reverse. It's all gone against the grain. You eat my food and wear my clothes. And you actually dare to fuck my woman. Lu Lei laughed sardonically, before you were the richest man and I was afraid of you. Now you're just a dead old man. You're just pretending to be a ninny. With that, he pulled out his pistol. When Su Shenda saw the blackened muzzle of the gun aimed at him, his mind went blank and he waved his hands and no. Don't shoot. You wait. I. Bang. Su Shenda was shot in the heart and instantly collapsed and died. Lu Lei laughed wildly with abandon. Ha ha ha. From now on, it's me who's in charge here. Pust. Lu Lei's smile froze. He looked down. A knife plunged deep into his own waist and blood gurgled out. Shen Hui on the other side grabbed the pistol so hard that he was powerless to resist. Zhang Yan's face was covered in teasing and mockery, a poor boy, and worthy of my old lady. Only then did Lu Lei realize that he had been assassinated by two women. You, you guys are so mean. Lu Lei fell softly to the ground, blood spilling out of his mouth and nose, and he soon lost his voice. The two women finally breathed a sigh of relief and happily snuggled together. The stinking men are all dead at last. We're safe. Humph. Old man Su Shenda, treating us like fools. Su Shenda are more than 50, simply cannot satisfy the two girls. And look at the strict. Over time, the two of them hung out and comforted each other. After being trapped here, food was getting scarce and they were seeing it. They have followed Su Shenda for a long time and know that this old thing is the most ruthless, and has long made plans to secretly collude with Lu Lei. The two women calmed themselves and negotiated their way out of the room, and were surprised to find a handsome stranger standing at the bar of the revolving restaurant. The two women were terrified. How did this man get up here? They had been stuck here for a long time, almost isolated from the world, and didn't know much about the alien rampage outside. The man was none other than Zhang Fan, who slowly and methodically poured three glasses of champagne and drank one for himself before smiling and saying to the two women, the champagne is good. Here, have a glass each and be on your way. Chapter 90, Occupying the Pearl of the Magic Sea. Moving with the women. The two women's faces changed. Without hesitation, Shen Hui picked up her pistol and aimed a shot at Zhang Fan. Bang! Unfortunately, her speed was too slow for Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan didn't dodge or avoid. He just activated the voiding. The bullet went through his body. It left a bullet hole in the wall behind it. Zhang Fan looked at her calmly. Not even blinking his eyelids, yikes. Missed. Should we try again? Zhang Yan was even more furious. How stupid. You can't hit it even this close. Kill him. Shen Hui was exasperated and thought she missed too. She had never fired a gun, but five or six meters was too close. She was confident and followed it up with three more shots. Bang. 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 Zhang Fan remained unharmed. The wall behind him once again left three gunshot marks. This time the two women finally sensed something was wrong. It's so close. How can you not miss a shot? Even. One of the bullets landed right where the wall directly behind Zhang Fan was. Shen Hui shuddered you. You, you're a human or a ghost. Zhang Yan also looked at Zhang Fan incredulously. Even if she missed, the man was too calm. As if he'd been certain he'd miss. Unless, he's not human. It's a ghost. The two women had never seen a shifter before and couldn't help but think out of the box. Though they had seen videos of shifters online before when the internet wasn't down. But they didn't believe it. They just thought those people were playing God. Zhang Fan finished the champagne in one gulp and walked to the two women in a good manner reaching out to grab Shin Hui's pistol. Shin Hui was surprisingly unresponsive and looked at Jiang Fan in shock, you're not a ghost. You can touch me. Jiang Fan smiled and said amiably, are you going on your own? Or should I help you? Shin Hui waved her hands in horror, no, no, 
No, I, ah, ouch, let go of me. Before the words fell, Zhang Fan grabbed Shen Hui's hair and dragged her towards the elevator. He inserted his fingertips hard into the crack of the elevator door and with a little force, pried it open. Inside was a blackened elevator shaft, since the power had gone out. The elevator box stopped at the bottom floor and would never come up. Shen Hui screamed in horror as she watched her scalp go numb, spare me, spare me. Zhang Fan didn't respond in any way. He just pulled her hair and threw Shen Hui into the elevator shaft with a shake. Ah, bang, bang, bang. Shen Hui's body slammed back and forth against the narrow walls of the elevator shaft. Soon there was no sound. A short while later, the echo of something heavy hitting the ground came from below. Bang. Zhang Fan turned his head to Zhang Yan. Zhang Yan trembled in fear when she saw Zhang Fan's eyes. She fell to her knees with a plop of big brother. Big brother, spare me. You can do whatever you want to me. Zhang Fan looked at her with interest. You don't say that the woman's face and body are still quite good. A woman who could be seen by a top rich man was at least one in a thousand in terms of her posture. Unfortunately, Zhang Fan wasn't interested in taking the bus. And this woman was too ruthless for Zhang Fan to stay around sorry. I'm afraid you'll stab me in the waist with a knife in the middle of the night. Zhang Yin froze. This man saw himself kill someone just now? Where the hell was he hiding? Why didn't I see it? Not allowing Zhang Yin to think too much. Zhang Fan grabbed her long hair and dragged her towards the elevator shaft. Get off me. Let go of me. Zhang Yan immediately turned pale and screamed frantically, if you kill me, I won't let you go even as a ghost. She screamed while desperately scratching the back of Zhang Fan's hand with her nails. Only this kind of attack was similar to scratching an itch for Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan was just worried about tearing his sleeve and slapped Zhang Yan unconscious and threw him down the elevator shaft. Bang, 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 bang. There was silence all around. Zhang Fan carefully examined it with his perception. The entire satellite capsule of the Pearl of the Magic Sea was finally left with him alone. Zhang Fan smiled in satisfaction. It's hanging alone hundreds of meters in the air, and there are only two ways up. One elevator shaft, one alternate staircase. Zhang Fan looked down at the deep elevator shaft. If some people are good, they can indeed climb up. In his mind, he took out a pile of rags from his carry space and threw them down. Unwatchable furniture, broken shelves, a variety of cars that usually go with the space. Bam! Boom! A few minutes later, hundreds of various kinds of trash stuffed the bottom of the elevator shaft. Zhang Fan took out another box of nails and scattered them and threw them down. After a ding, the elevator shaft was quiet again. In this way, whoever tries to come up the elevator shaft can't do so without making a little noise. Unless the other person can deflate like yourself. Pneumatic burst. 500%. Zhang Fan took out a few steel bars and ruthlessly inserted them into the elevator door. Then closed the door with a hard pull then twisted the bars together, completely sealing the elevator door. Zhang Fan lifted his chi and blood burst when he was done. He walked towards the stairs. It's a rotating staircase that leads to the ground floor. Every few meters, a small window opens in the wall, which provides decent light. Zhang Fan Xiao Xiao probed downward, almost too deep to see the bottom. After thinking about it, he went down a hundred meters, then pulled out a sledgehammer from his space and banged it. Under his brute force, the reinforced concrete stairs were smashed to pieces and crackled into the floor below. Zhang Fan had smashed more than 20 meters of stairs, then threw down a large amount of garbage, completely blocking the stairs. Finally, as usual, sprinkle nails for the alarm bells, and screw the door to the stairs leading to the satellite bay, with steel bars. All work. In this way, this cabin was considered to be completely isolated in midair, becoming a safe haven that belonged solely to Zhang Fan, unless it was some kind of psychic with special abilities. There was absolutely no way an ordinary person would be able to climb up by themselves without being alarmed. After taking care of the security, Zhang Fan put his heart down and searched carefully. In fact, he had already seen it from his perception. This was just a matter of confirming it again with his eyes. After reconfirming that there were no problems, Zhang Fan left another subspace anchor point and opened the portal back home. The women welcomed them. Zhang Fan set a pack up. We're changing to a safe home. He went back through the floorboards into Qingxuan Li's house. Li Qingxuan was at his desk, wearing old-fashioned glasses and studying a newly collected plant. Zhang Fan's sudden descent startled him, Zhang, Mr. Zhang has something? Zhang Fan said bluntly, I'm leaving. From now on you'll be living over here alone. You can stay on the 32nd floor, where the freezers and supplies are left for you. From now on, I'll replenish your supplies every three days. I'll also come to you anytime if I need a cure. Li Qingxuan was taken aback, huh? So suddenly? There was panic in his mind. Without Jiang Fan to sit in on him, how could he defend himself if he lived here alone? Just like the last time the survivors rioted. Without Jiang Fan, it was estimated that he would have suffered. 
Jiang Fan didn't explain, he just took out a pistol and a few boxes of bullets and placed them on the table, these are for you, keep them for defense, doctors are still useful and worth some investment, Li Qingxuan's heart was relieved and he was very grateful to Jiang Fan, in the end, Jiang Fan said with ulterior motives if you find a black lychee, be sure to contact me, I won't treat you badly, Li Qingxuan said dryly, good, don't worry, Jiang Fan didn't say anything, Li Qingxuan couldn't hide it from himself anyway, if he comes back sometime and finds that Li Qingxuan has ginger in his body now, then it means that he stole the enlightenment fruit and just kills it, if Li Qingxuan really handed over the fruit of enlightenment to himself after discovering it, then Jiang Fan wouldn't treat the other party poorly and could reward him with two fruits of enlightenment, that way, both sides benefit, Li Qingxuan gained two supernatural abilities, and Jiang Fan gained a new fruit, Jiang Fan returned home, the woman has packed her bags, what they wanted to take away, Jiang Fan collected all of them into his carry-on space, then, with a stroke of his finger, Jiang Fan tore open the portal, ignoring the distance to set his landing point on the subspace anchor point of the Pearl of the Magic Sea, one by one, the women walked into the portal, Jiang Fan took one last look at the room and walked into the portal with blank eyes and a coke in his arms without any hesitation, chapter 91 speculations about the red mist, many of the women were entering the portal for the first time and were very curious, when you go in, it's still the fortune center neighborhood, when it came out, it became the topmost layer of the pearl of the magic sea, this made a couple of the women squeal with excitement, as soon as you walk out the door is the revolving restaurant, the rotating restaurant has a circle of floor to ceiling windows, all made of high strength tempered glass, standing here, one could have a bird's eye view of the entire magic sea, the endless sea of red misty clouds was extremely impressive, the top floor of the fortune center is also above the red mist, but there it is only 2 or 30 meters above the red mist, nowhere near as good a view as here, the women all looked out the window with their jaws agape, it's beautiful, so this is what the red mist cloud sea looks like, when I used to come to the pearl of the magic sea, it wasn't as magnificent as it is now, so many trees are taller than buildings, look, quick look, that monkey is huge, the women marveled, standing at a high altitude away from the ground gave them a great sense of security and the leisure to evaluate the red mist, Gu Ruining suddenly said in surprise strange, why is that red mist rumbling? The crowd looked to the north. Su Jin recalled saying that seems to be the location of the magic north mountain, right? I went to climb that mountain. The devil's north mountain was located a few dozen kilometers north of the devil's sea. The height is not high, just over 200 meters, but the area it occupies is not small. The view was pretty good today, with MT, magic north looming in the sky. Only now the entire body of the devil's north mountain was covered under a red mist. Jiang Fan said calmly, have you forgotten? What's wrong with a red mist in the mountains when there's a red mist even on the plateau? When he had the internet, he used to collect red mist conditions around the globe very carefully. The height of the red mist is about 60 to 70 meters, and many places around the globe are already above that altitude themselves. The Kunzang Plateau, for example, is at least 800 meters above sea level. By all rights, there should be no red mist in these places. However, Zhang Fan watched the videos posted by many highlanders and mountain residents around the globe. The result was invariably that all of these places were covered in red mist. And again, it's over 60 meters and doesn't look any different than flat ground. What's this for? Also, the red mist on the ocean is actually pretty weird. The bottom of the ocean is very deep from the surface. But the red mist still extends more than 60 meters beyond the surface. What's this about? As for whether or not there was a red mist at the bottom of the sea, he didn't know. And he hadn't seen any videos about it. Now there's even less people to go down to the sea and experiment. Overall, red mist seems to be able to guarantee about 60 plus meters higher in each location, depending on the different surface heights of the various locations on earth. That would be amazing. The only exceptions to this are tall buildings, large trees, and the like, which can be poked out of the red mist, which doesn't forcefully cover these areas. Jiang Fan also saw a video of a dam engineer that was in a dam that was built so high that it could similarly exceed the height of the red mist. Could it be because, while tall buildings and dams are man-made objects, Large trees are living creatures, not inherent to the existence of the earth itself? Thinking about this, Jiang Fan vaguely felt that the red mist seemed to possess a simple intelligence and was extremely bizarre. He squinted at the sea of red clouds that stretched out at his feet. The reason behind this red mist is certainly not simple. After Jiang Fan's mention, the women also remembered the various details of the red mist. Lu Mengyao guessed, there seems to be a shocking conspiracy hidden behind this disaster. The women all nodded their heads in succession. Their faces all grave, yeah. It's so weird. Only a brainless woman like Tian Tian is still heckling without any sense of decency. She stood by the floor to ceiling window, holding a cup of milk tea in one hand and taking a selfie with her cell phone. 
After the women calmed down, they began to work on packing up the satellite pod. Jiang Fan made a simple plan. Rotating restaurants are public places. The Skyline Hotel is where everyone lives. The Skyline Hotel has a total of 35 large and small rooms. Jiang Fan rightfully occupied the largest, presidential suite with the highest view. The other eight women, in the order they were admitted by Jiang Fan, chose their favorite rooms on their own. The same goes for women in the future. Whoever comes first gets to pick first. With so many rooms here, at least for a long time, Jiang Fan wouldn't have to bother about women's living problems. According to the order, Tang Shuelua was the first to pick, but she didn't choose the deluxe suite that was second only to the presidential suite. Instead, he chose a business suite immediately to the left of Jiang Fan's room. Su Mengqian froze for a moment, then also reacted immediately afterward, and followed suit by choosing the suite to the right of Jiang Fan's room. The other women woke up now. The size of the house doesn't matter. Anyway, it's a super deluxe hotel, and any of the suites are big enough for one person. The most crucial thing was actually Jiang Fan's attitude. It's the proximity to Jiang Fan. Whoever could get closer to Jiang Fan would have a greater chance of gaining favor and would be able to take the lead in all aspects. Taking a step back, the closer one was to Jiang Fan, the greater the possibility of being saved in case of danger. None of the women were stupid, and one by one, they chose rooms that were close to Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan looked on and said nothing. He was pleased with the women's performance, especially Tang Shuelua who took the lead. This girl was really getting more and more knowledgeable. He took out a perception fruit and handed it to Tang Shuelua, reward you. Tang Shuelua was overjoyed. She knew she had chosen the right one and happily said, thank you brother Jiang. She eats the fruit of perception. Soon, eyes lit up with excitement, brother Jiang, my perception ability seems to have been upgraded. I can sense a greater distance. Jiang Fan laughed, oh, congratulations, how far can you sense? Tang Shuelua looked for Tian Tian to cooperate with the experiment and then said, probably from here to that wall. Jiang Fan glanced at it. The distance was about 5 meters, the same effect as when he had risen to 2 star perception. Jiang Fan said in his heart, it seems that the growth of perception star rising has nothing to do with the person, it purely depends on the ability itself. The ladies enviously surrounded Tang Shuelua and asked questions, so it really can be upgraded. What is the experience of upgrading? Ugh, Sister Shuero is so powerful, when will I be able to upgrade? All along, Jiang Fan had told everyone that eating the same fruit over and over again might upgrade, but so far, no woman had upgraded and could not help but be skeptical of Jiang Fan's claims. Now, Tang Shuelua's perception ability was upgraded. The women had no more doubts, and in their hearts they couldn't help but feel some envy and jealousy. A few scheming women exchanged glances, and sparks flickered vaguely in the air. They secretly resolved in their hearts to perform better so that Jiang would give me more alien fruits. I'm going to be the second woman to upgrade. Jiang Fan just smiled without saying anything when he saw the women's expressions. The female competition has done him a lot of good. He certainly wouldn't intervene to stop it. The women can't hurt even if they fight. He has life-inspired powers and is ready to heal the women. Besides, it's fun to watch kittens fight when they're idle anyway, isn't it? The crowd had just moved here and had a lot to do. First of all, it was time to clean up and completely remove any traces of the group that had lived there before. Of course, Jiang Fan wouldn't care about this kind of thing. It would just be done by Tang Shuelua leading the ladies. He tore through the portal and stepped into subspace. It's time to see the current state of that stupid girl. Zhang Zilin. Chapter 92 Entering the Base. Boundless Dense Forest. A dismal squad walked out. Zhang Zilin touched a handful of sweat on her head and said excitedly finally. The crowd all wore the expression of having escaped with their lives. After three days of grueling trekking, at a terrible cost of four attrition, they finally reached the vicinity of the TV station. There are obvious signs of human activity here. The ground was sparsely vegetated and had been cleared about repeatedly. There was a pungent odor everywhere, as if some sort of insect repellent had been burned, and the huge insects that were common in dense forests were nowhere to be found here. Zhang Zilin searched for a while and saw a path that was obviously traveled by a strip of people. There was also a huge road sign with a painted arrow on the side of the road 100 meters ahead. Official TV aid point reception. The top of the street sign should be regularly maintained by someone and not obscured by climbing plants. Zhang Zilin is a horse in the lead, go. Seeing that they were about to see the light. The crowd held each other up and talked and laughed their way through. Walking in such places is significantly easier. In the red mist, a containerized tin house gradually appeared. On the wall of the tin room is written reception no. 7 inch. And there is also a service window with an iron fence. Which is very characteristic of the dragon kingdom. The crowd was happy to come forward. The doors and glass windows were closed. And it was impossible to see inside the black hole. Li Lingling, a girl from the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy 
said curiously, did the staff sleep in there? Apart from the two exalts, Zheng Zilin and Yang Jiawei, there were now only three survivors left. A student who was also a student of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, Lin Tian, who majored in acting. There's another survivor who's been following Zheng Zilin from the police station, a middle-aged male, Wang Jianhua, an electrician. Yang Jiawei listened, puzzled didn't hear breathing, no one, did, have gone back to rest at noon? Zheng Zilin was also puzzled. She circled around the tin house and didn't see a road anywhere. It seems to be a lonely house. Wang Jianhua was annoyed where are the people at the relief point? Lin Tian also said anxiously, how come no one came to pick us up? At that moment, Yang Jiawei suddenly said nervously, there are people coming, on all sides. Zheng Zilin froze for a moment. Trap. She immediately raised her fire axe and looked around warily. Everyone tensed up. Within moments, a dozen heavily armed soldiers surrounded several people, pointing their guns at them. One soldier, obviously a shifter, held up an exaggeratedly large iron shield and stood in front of another slender, sultry woman, seemingly protecting her. I wonder what this demonic woman is capable of. An officer with the rank of second lieutenant on his shoulder bellowed, this is the magic sea base garrison. I order you to drop your weapons and surrender to me immediately. The survivors didn't expect to be faced with this scene, and all of them looked at Zhang Zilin in horror. All of them came here because they heard the publicity of the chapter Catalina. Now this scene, it's not like imagination. Yang Jiawei trembled leader. What the hell is going on here? Don't worry. Zhang Zilin comforted him. Seeing that the temperament of the group in front of her was indeed military, she relaxed a bit in her mind and slowly lowered her fire axe, calmly saying, I'm Constable Zhang Zilin from Pinghai Road. I received orders from my superiors to come here without any malicious intent. The officer was also relieved to hear that he was receiving orders to come, but still held up his weapon. Sternly, hello Constable Zhang, as the mob is now raging. In order to avoid any unnecessary casualties, your party is requested to immediately drop all weapons and submit to inspection. Zhang Zilin is a bit annoyed. You guys asked me to come here, and when I came here, this is what you did. But Reason told her that there was some truth in what the other woman was saying. The red mist has descended, food is scarce, and the order of peaceful times is gone. She also encountered two robberies along the way. If he hadn't had enough force to do so himself, these men would have all been killed on the road. I guess the people at the salvage point have also been robbed by an audacious gang of robbers to be that cautious. The biggest problem was that Zhang Zilin was unable to confirm who exactly was on the other side, and it would be naive to just lay down her weapon. But what can you do if you don't surrender? With all those guns staring her in the face and shifters with unknown abilities, she didn't have the confidence to rush out, let alone anyone else. Just have to trust each other. Zhang Zilin took the lead in pulling out her pistol and dagger and threw them on the ground, exclaiming, everyone put your weapons down. The crowd stared at each other for a moment before reluctantly lowering their weapons in their hands. To get through the dense forest, all of them made simple and lightweight defense weapons, a dagger tied to the head of a mop, made beggar's version of a spear. It can both stab and push the target away from itself with a mop. The lieutenant officer continued, Constable Zhang, and the man behind you, you two shifters leave with me first. Zhang Zilin was surprised that the other party could actually distinguish that she and Yang Jiawei were exalted, and she didn't know what kind of ability they had? She glanced at the woman thoughtfully, could it be her powers? No problem, but I have to ask. What are you going to do with the rest of my companions? The officer said coldly, don't worry, we'll dispose of it according to the survivor rescue system. Disposal. The word made Zhang Zilin frown. However, nowadays, people are choppers, and Zhang Zilin has no good way to get out of the trap, so she can only take Yang Jiawei and follow the officer to leave. A soldier led the way at the front, and the officer left with the giant shield soldier, the sultry woman, and two seemingly mediocre soldiers, semi-escorted. After Zhang Zilin and the others left, the soldiers swarmed over the three and searched them closely. Li Lingling's cheeks reddened, don't you touch it. I'm not carrying any other weapons. No one paid any attention to her. Only after making sure there were no weapons did the other officer coldly say, you three, come with me. Lin Tian's trio tensed up, but they were surrounded by gun-toting soldiers and they didn't dare to resist, so they could only honestly follow the officer away. Wang Janua asked timidly, big brother, where are we going? The officer snapped, shut up. Wang Jianhua shivered in fear. The three of them felt bad and all of them cursed Zheng Zilin in their hearts. This stupid woman is leading everyone into a hole. In a short while, the soldier led the three men to the entrance of a huge tunnel. The three meter high iron gate slowly opened, and inside stood dozens of heavily armed soldiers. In the red mist, the tunnels were dimly lit and looked a bit eerie. The three were even more scared. A soldier pushed behind Lin Tian and said impatiently, get in there. What's the point of dawdling? 
The three could only enter the railroad crossing with bitter faces and were eventually escorted to an empty house. Two gun-toting soldiers stood in the doorway, eyeing the three men intently. The three were at a loss for words, what? What the hell is going on here? Something's not right with the situation. It's over. We've been punked by Zhang Zilin this time. I should have known better than to come with her. A doctor in a white coat hurried in, women go next door. Men stay. Li Lingling was pulled away by force. Soon, Lin Tian and Wang Jianhua were stripped naked, bathed, shaved, and sprayed with pungent sterilizing water. At first, they were nervous. When she realized that the other person was really just doing hygiene, she relaxed quite a bit. After all that effort, we can't be killed. Finally, the two were ordered to put on a kind of gray coveralls and sent to another room. Seven or eight people were already seated inside, all gray plus bald, much like them, and are chatting in whispers. The two finally relaxed. It looks like it was just a sanitation process for survivors coming into the base just now. Salvage point is still pretty cautious. The flora and fauna out there are awfully evolved. Who knows what viruses we've got on us. It's just a bad attitude. Can't talk properly. Come on. It's good to be alive in this hellish world right now. I don't know if I can get enough here either. Not long after, Li Lingling was also sent over. She was also shaved and changed into gray overalls. Lin Tian laughed unscrupulously when he looked at it. Li Lingling's bald head is so ugly. Ha 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 ha. 93. Bases of unnecessary recourse to firing squad Li Lingling loves to look beautiful. And her dark hair is well taken care of. Now being forcibly shaved is pissing me off. As soon as she was mocked by Lin Tian, Li Lingling was instantly enraged and jumped up to curse, shut the fuck up. Lin Tian smiled, not caring at all. Now at the official aid point, surrounded by soldiers for protection, he felt safer than ever. The soldier at the doorway gloated as he watched the two clash. Li Lingling was even more annoyed and rushed to soldier tip with big strides, you people here are too much. I'm going to file a complaint against you. The soldier immediately raised his gun and aimed it at Li Lingling, and snapped, go back, sit down, wait where you are for your assignment. Warning first time, three times direct shooting. Shooting? Who are you bluffing? Li Lingling blew up. It had been a hard, hard journey through countless dangers. Finally arriving at the official aid point. The fact that she ended up being brought into the base at gunpoint as soon as she came up already made her very upset. Then there was the forced hosing down like an animal. And finally the unbelievably humiliating shaving of the head. Li Lingling had been pampered since childhood. How had she ever suffered such humiliation? Even though Zhang Zilin was also very strong along the way, she was still very reasonable. Li Lingling's emotions reached their limit and she opened her teeth and claws shooting? I'm scared. Have the guts to shoot me in the head. I want to sleep. I want to eat. I want to rest. I'm still a student. I want preferential treatment. Click. The soldier pulled the safety. Coldly a second warning. Go back. Get back in your seat. Wang Jianhua felt something was wrong. He had been in society for many years and instinctively felt that the soldier was not bluffing, and hurriedly stood up and said Li Lingling, come back quickly. Of course, Wang didn't think the soldiers would shoot. However, if you offend these soldiers, you may have to suffer in the future, and maybe even get beaten up. Why bother? For Li Lingling, Wang Jianhuo also had some thoughts. Li Lingling was able to enter the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, so naturally her face value was outstanding. In the past, how could a man at the bottom of Wang Jianhua's level dare to fantasize about a beautiful woman like Li Lingling? It's different now. We're all survivors, aren't we? On this journey, Wang Jianhua just shushed Li Lingling and tried to take care of her. Otherwise, all the female survivors are dead. Why would Li Lingling be able to walk here alive? Li Lingling, however, was not the least bit afraid and glanced at Wang Jianhua in disgust. Honest people deserve to suffer everywhere they go. She certainly saw Wang Jianhua's mind. If it's out there, She'll take it from there. But when she got to the survivor colony, Li Lingling couldn't look at Wang Jianhua and threw him directly into the spare tire position. I've seen a lot of this kind of scaremongering before. Scared shitless, the soldier raised his gun and aimed at Li Lingling. Third warning, Li Lingling razor sharp. Jumping to her toes and screaming, soldiers are killing people. Come and see. Bang. The soldiers didn't hesitate to shoot. Li Lingling was shot in the forehead and fell on her back with her eyes glazed over. Soon, blood was flowing all over the place. Wang Jianhua instantly froze in place, only to feel a bucket of ice water pouring down on his head, shivering, how? How did it shoot? The room was dead silent. Everyone is scared silly. The soldier's face was expressionless as he stared at the crowd with his gun. Soon an officer arrived leading a group of soldiers. He asked, bored. As he glanced around the room what's wrong? The soldier reported calmly, this woman has failed to comply with the survivor management system. Three warnings have been ineffective, and she has been shot as required. Damn it. 
The officer kicked Li Lingling's corpse in displeasure. This fracking cunt. He's really good at getting me into trouble. Get someone to drag the body away. It'll stink and attract cockroaches. That's a problem. Yes. Soon came a couple of men in gray coveralls. They all had numb expressions and yellow faces. Driven by the soldiers. Several gray clad men look exhausted as they drag away the bodies. Mopping and cleaning the floor. After a few minutes. The blood. Bodies. And shell casings were cleared away and the scene was restored to its original appearance. The traces of a large living person completely disappeared as if they had never existed. Wang Jianhua's hands and feet couldn't stop trembling. Li Lingling followed Zhang Zilin and went through a lot of trouble to get here. Just die? Lin Tian shrank into a ball. His heart incomparably regretful. If I had known, I would have stayed at the fortune center and not come over. This hellhole, to shoot someone after just a few arguments. After this incident, all of them no longer dared to have any complaints and sat in fear. The soldiers at the door just looked at the crowd indifferently. Not saying a word, making people's scalps numb. After a while, several fat, blue uniformed men walked in. A tall man in blue looked at the crowd and said, I'll read the list. And when you read the names report your occupation, education, profession, and any other specialties. Do not misrepresent yourself. We will work according to your assignments. And if you are found to be falsifying, you will be shot straight away. How to move and shoot. The crowd couldn't help but shiver and wail in their hearts. The man in blue said, Chu Hu. The young man at the head of the line scowled and stood up, I'm a delivery boy. I went to college for civil engineering. No other specialties. The man in blue quickly said, you go to engineering. Soon the crowd was divided up to finish their work. Wang Janua was also assigned to the engineering team. Lin Tian can only perform and has no use for it, and is assigned to the handyman team. Zhang Zilin and Yang Jiawei also followed the officer to the underground base. They entered through another door, though, and were watched by heavily armed soldiers the entire time. Finally, they reached an empty underground hall. There was only one tall, thin man with a hawkish nose in the entire hall. Zhang Zilin glanced at him and was surprised to find that he was carrying the rank of Major General on his shoulder. Even though he was walking loosely, Zhang Zilin hurriedly saluted. The tall, thin man waved his hand casually and looked straight at her. Oh Zhang Zilin? Zhang Zilin nodded, yes. Instinctively she felt as if this man was not a soldier, but more of a civilian. How do civilians get the rank of Major General? The man said oh, my name is Jia Mengxian. I'm a class A alien and I'm in charge of your entry assessment. Hu Lei, how many psychic abilities do the two of her have? The demonic woman who had been following Zhang Zilin and the two of them, twisted her waist and stepped forward, saying sweetly General Jia, she has two powers. One is an autotype explosive power and the other is also autotype, but it's an observation type. That man has an ability. Autoclass, also observation type, seems to be ears, like auditory enhancement? Zhang Zilin and Yang Jiawei looked at Hu Lei in surprise. This woman could tell that the others had several powers. Even the abilities were too strong. Jia Mengxian was also surprised and said, You have two powers? That's good. Maybe, we're going to have one more class of psychic. Zhang Zilin asked curiously, What's a class A alien? Jia Mengxian didn't hide it and introduced himself, The base has graded the abled. A single ability person is grade C. A dual ability person is grade B. And three or more abilities are grade A. If you can pass my test. There are still alien fruits stockpiled here? Zhang Zilin asked again, what's the autosomal class again? Chapter 94, The Six Categories of Alien Power Our warehouse is securely dripping. Jia Mengxian was stumped by the question and scratched his head as he asked, Hu Li, which ones are they? Hu Li smirked, this is a classification based on the outward manifestation of abilities after the base king academician analyzed a large number of abilities. Six in total, elemental, ice, fire, electricity and such abilities the autogenous class, and the most common, for various enhancements to one's own body, the category of exotics, which can affect organisms and substances outside the body, space class, very rare, has to do with space, mental classes, mental, consciousness related abilities, are also rare, other classes, some unclassifiable, very odd abilities, Zheng Zilin took careful note, this knowledge is very scarce, each of the six categories of psychic abilities sounds impressive, and being only the most common Autobot class, I'm going to get more powers. Zhang Zilin asked with a straight face, okay, what's the test? Jia Mengxian said with his head held high, fight me and I'll evaluate whether you're eligible for the new fruit. Zhang Zilin frowned, combat, unarmed or weapons. Jia Mengxian said casually, whatever. Zhang Zilin couldn't figure out the other side, unarmed. Jia Mengxian nodded, good, let's get started. Zhang Zilin quickly set up and took an offensive horse stance. He he, flowery fist fist. Jia Mengxian stood loosely, relaxed use your full strength and never put it away, the higher I rate you, the more you get, 
Hubris, Zheng Zilin was annoyed in her heart. She decided to give the unmilitary-like general a good run for his money. I'm going to strike. Watch out. Major General Jia. Jaman Xian grinned, feel free to come at me. No one in this world can break my defense yet. Humph. Zhang Zilin's eyes narrowed slightly. She had held back when she made a move on Jiang Fan before, and as a result, she had suffered a dumb loss. This time she grew a memory. There is no mercy in striking. Good. Then let me see the strongest of the military. Zhang Zilin's entire body instantly exploded with power. Her size seemed to have increased by a circle, and even her short, floppy-eared hair appeared to have grown by a hair's breadth. Jia Mengxian looked dumbfounded, crap, wait, however it was too late, click, Zhang Zilin stomped on the floor under her feet and her body rushed towards Jia Mengxian like a meteor, Jia Mengxian only felt a blur before his eyes, Zhang Zilin's figure appeared right in front of him, and his fist slammed heavily on his abdomen like an iron ball, boom, a powerful force erupted, Jia Mengxian's back was beaten to the point that a huge bulge protruded from it, and his eyes bulged out like bull's eyes, the whole person flew out backwards, bang, he crashed into the wall, which shattered in a big way. Then it bounced back with a duong and hit the ground hard. It bounced up and down again with a duong. It bounced a few times over and over before stopping and never getting back up. Hu Li looked dumbfounded. Why is this woman so violent? The soldier with the huge shield of steel shivered a bit as he glanced at the iron shield in his hand, feeling no sense of security at all. Zhang Zilin's face also changed slightly. Oops, make a big effort. How is this guy so weak? Then why were you bragging about it? She ran to Jia Mengxuan's side in a panic, patting his back handily, Hey, hey, you're not dead. Jia Mengxian is a major general in the army, so it would be a problem if he was killed by himself. After holding his breath for half a day, Jia Mengxian finally slowed down and sprayed a mouthful of old blood on the ground. Pust. Cough cough. He struggled to get up and stiffened, No, it can't be. I absolutely can't die. It was just an accident just now. I wasn't prepared for it. Zhang Zilin frowned, Does. Your ability take time to launch? Fine. Then you launch your ability and I'll try again. No need. Jia Mengxian immediately waved his hand. What a joke. One more punch and I'll die. Look at you. You're a pretty girl. Why do you fight so savagely? Jia Mengxian said quickly as Zhang Zilin. Congratulations. You passed the test and can be rewarded with an exotic fruit. Without saying a word, Jia Mengxian made the decision for his superiors. As for Yang Jiawei, there's no need to test him. He's a support and his battle power must be pulling crotch to death. He recruited a soldier, both of you. Please go to the resting area for a moment. And then we'll assign housing after Major General Zhang has received his alien fruits. Major General? Zhang Zilin was puzzled. Jia Mengxian explained briefly with us. Becoming a Class A alien automatically confers the rank of Major General. So that's how you got your Major General. Zhang Zilin came to a realization. A wave of absurdity immediately followed. A small base has the power to arbitrarily award the rank of Major General? Isn't that a joke? Jia Mengxian watched the crowd leave and couldn't hold on any longer. Plopping down on his knees and coughing violently. In the hall, a door opened and several different looking people walked out. At the head of the group was a country-faced officer. With sword brows and starry eyes, Major General Jia. How's it going? Jia Mengxian covered his stomach round, you can tell by looking at me. If I didn't have rubber power, I would probably have been killed already. Dr. Lu. Heal me. A sickly looking old man stepped forward and put his hand on his stomach. Quickly producing a box of painkillers, it's okay. Jia Mengxian glared, painkillers? My bowels are killing me. Dr. Lu said impatiently, I showed you shit. You still have the ability to heal yourself. So what are you afraid of? Jia Mengxian was depressed and didn't dare to talk back to Dr. Lu. No one would dare offend a doctor with psychic powers. The country-faced officer nodded, in that case. I don't have a problem with it. I've also seen Zhang Zilin's destructive power, so I can issue an alien fruit. Major General Jia, go ahead and send it yourself. Jia Mengxian rested for a while and eased up. He found Zhang Zilin in the rest area and led her to the warehouse area. Zhang Zilin couldn't help but admire him when she saw that he was completely normal, that's awesome. I've never seen anyone get up after taking a punch from me. The corners of Jia Mengxuan's mouth twitched a bit as he deadpanned his face, oh, there's nothing else I'm good at. I'm just resistant to being punched. The two walked into the deep tunnel and went down for an unknown amount of time. The base is at the foot of a hill not far from the station and appears to be a former military bomb shelter. An officer in charge of the warehouse came over. The three advanced together. Zhang Zilin suddenly noticed that the red mist of the entire base was particularly light. And at a glance, she could tell that it was more than 10 meters away. And she asked curiously, why is the red mist so light here? Jaman Xian didn't think much of it, I don't know. It's been like this since I got here. Zhang Zilin asked curiously, do you have a lot of alien fruits? Jaman Xian shook his head, no, 
It's just a few. The rest were either experimented on or rewarded to others. How is it preserved? Won't it rot if you pick it? Why pick it? Just take the plant with the alien fruit and move it back by the roots. Zhang Zilin came to a realization. I can't believe it's still like this. Zhang Zilin looked around at the tunnels. You guys aren't afraid of being stolen? The officer said confidently, absolutely impossible. Don't look at this place. It looks ordinary, but it's actually full of traps and surveillance. And guarded by six Xenos who specialize in surveillance and 50 elite soldiers. Anyone who comes here will have no way of coming back. I see. Zhang Zilin nodded admiringly. Jia Mengxian echoed with deep concern to write. Our warehouse is safe and secure. As soon as Zhang Fan entered subspace, he saw that the subspace anchor point on Zhang Zilin's body had changed places. This time, she headed underground with a uniformed man. Zhang Fan was instantly curious, where is this going? Chapter 95, New Ability, Hardening, with Zhang Zilin as the center. All within 100 meters were exposed to Zhang Fan's perception. There were dozens of soldiers behind the wall of the tunnel where Zhang Zilin was. They were watching the three men silently through their monitors. Five of them have, ginger, in their bodies and are supposed to be psychics. There is another circling tunnel below this level of tunnels. A dozen meters above Zhang Zilin's head was a huge ordnance warehouse. All the heavy weapons, tanks, armored vehicles, etc. are stored there. This should be the military's underground warehouse, which was activated after the red mist descended. Zhang Fan said in his heart, now the outside world environment is extremely harsh. The king of the land tank has no use. Only lonely stored in the warehouse. The tunnels below Zhang Zilin, on the other hand, kept circling downward, not knowing where they led. Eventually, Zhang Zilin followed Jia Mengxian and the two of them to a large steel door. The officer in charge of the treasury cautiously rattled the combination lock as he walked up to the door. This password must never be entered incorrectly. If you make a mistake once, an alarm will go off and all the alterans in the entire base will hear it. If you don't enter the correct password within 15 seconds, it will directly spray poisonous gas. Even the strongest alterans will have to breathe, and then they will be dead. So, this place is safe. Absolutely no one can go in. The officer fawned a bit. Because Zhang Zilin was able to obtain the fruit of abnormal ability as soon as she entered the base. She must be a great person with a bright future in the future. And it would be advantageous to suck up to her more. Zhang Zilin couldn't help but think of Zhang Fan. This kind of defense wouldn't be able to stop him at all. The leaders of the base were still a little too empirical, and it was naive to use the thinking of the past to defend themselves against the ever-changing powers of the present. She didn't say anything, though, just nodded. Cooperating this method is dangerous, but it's tight. Zhang Fan was more than 10 kilometers away from here, and he wasn't going to risk running so far. Why do you think so much? The officer added, actually, it's still possible to increase the security intensity using infrared detection, night vision, and lasers. But there's a shortage of everything right now. And it's just not possible to come up with that kind of supplies. Zhang Zilin nodded, understood. This bomb shelter, which was supposed to prevent war. Who knew this would happen? The officer lamented, who wouldn't say yes? Alas. Jia Mengxian waved his hand, why are you so demanding? This is already enough. Now that the transportation is cut off, it's hard for people from outside to come to the base. Let alone come here to steal. There have been dozens of exotic fruits stored here. But they have never been stolen. With that, the officer, along with Jia Mengxian, pushed open the heavy steel door. The gate is at least 30 centimeters thick and made of pure steel. Inside were a dozen cubicles made of blast-proof glass. Only three cubicles were lit, and three plants were grown in them, each with a black lychee hanging from it. The other dozen or so cubicles were unlit and dark, and it looked like the base had very limited power. There were four security cameras hanging on the walls, aimed at the cubicle from all angles, so someone should be watching in the background. Jia Mengxian said a bamboo tree, an evolved apricot tree, and a leek. Choose whatever you want. No one can see the ability of the exotic fruit anyway. It's all about luck. Zhang Zilin didn't have a clue and casually pointed to the bamboo, just this one. The officer gestured to the camera. The blast glass containing the bamboo slowly sinks. Zhang Zilin stepped forward and picked the alien fruit. Jia Mengxian said enviously eat it and see what it's capable of. Zhang Zilin frowned, you guys trust me so much? I've only just entered the base. Aren't you guys afraid that I'll cheat the alien fruit and run away? The officer laughed, all of the aliens who received orders to come to the station were personally chosen by Director Gu, and there is absolutely no room for error. Looks like another ability. Zhang Zilin frowned to Director Grey is? Jia Mengxian said flirtatiously, Director Gu Shanyu, the big boss of our magic CTV base. Without much hesitation, Zhang Zilin ate the exotic fruit. The two looked at him expectantly. What ability? Zhang Zilin froze for half a second, uh, I don't know. A group of executives are staring at Zheng Zilin in the security camera. 
The reason why they put the alien fruit here and set up such a dangerous poison gas defense was to allow the alien to eat the alien fruit here. If they did awaken abilities that the base couldn't control, they would immediately block the passageway to kill them so as not to cause irreparable damage. In fact, in addition to the poison gas, a large number of anti-tank mines were placed underneath this room. Any shifter is bound to die. Gu Shan Yu, a tall and thin man who wore a black Zhongshan suit, pondered for a moment and asked Academician Wang, What now? This is a fairly common situation with Zilin Zhang. Many of the abilities are so obscure that it takes the abilities themselves a long time to figure them out. Wang Kaji, a genteel old man, spoke expectantly have her go to the lab and have Hu Li go over it before testing her new ability according to the alien test steps. It's just that she's only been here for a day. Would it be risky for her to leave the warehouse district with an unknown ability? Gu Shan Yu once again gazed at Zhang Zilin in the screen, and a magical purple light flashed in her eyes before she tiredly said Ru Zhang Zilin still has childish fantasies about the state, so I believe she can be mastered and used safely. Academician Wang, do as you think. Ding. Zhang Zilin consumed one enlightenment fruit hardening and returned 1,000 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, hardening one star. Eating it gives you the ability to quench. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. What's this for? Jiang Fan curiously took out one and ate it. Hardening, one star. You can extract essence from metal. Jiang Fan's mind moved, and he pulled out a large piece of pig iron from his carry-on space. He put his finger on the pig iron. A large amount of physical strength surged out wildly. The pig iron was rotten to the naked eye, as if it had passed through countless years. After 10 seconds or so, even though Jiang Fan's physique was as high as 90, he was tired and sweating, and was given an iron needle the size of a pen embroidery needle. The iron needles were as cold as silver. Moreover, the iron needles were also incredibly hard, and with Jiang Fan's immense strength, he had to use a tremendous amount of force to break them. What's this thing good for? As a weapon? Jiang Fan pinched the iron needle. That's too much work. How long would it take to get enough iron for a sword? And how good is straight steel? It's a lot less work than that. Jiang Fan couldn't figure it out, so he didn't bother thinking about it. Let's raise the star rating a bit first. He took out a large handful of quenching fruits and ate them. This time it was extremely disappointing. Jiang Fan had eaten more than 80 of them before he had raised his quenching to 2 stars. One's adaptation to this ability is even more outrageous than the physique fruit. Ding! Hardening upgraded to 2 stars. Reduce stamina consumption during quenching. Jiang Fan didn't know exactly how much the consumption had been lowered. However, he was so depleted that he really didn't have the energy to test anymore. And, more important than testing abilities, are those two fruits. Let's recover our strength first, then get the other two enlightenment fruits. Jiang Fan took out a handful of barbecued mutant frog meat and ate it. Chapter 96, targeted? Then kill them all. Jiang Fan ate a dozen or so skewers and felt half full, but his stamina still showed no signs of recovery and his body still felt weak. It's like having fought all night. Strange. Why is it so hard to recover the stamina consumed by quenching? All he could do was go back to his bedroom and prepare for a good night's rest. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. Jiang Fan asked impatiently who? Tian Tian Tian's timid voice came from outside, Brother Jiang. There's something I feel I need to tell you. Come in. Jiang Fan lay on the bed. Tian 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 complained accusingly didn't we just get here? I just opened the portal and went out for a spin to familiarize myself with the environment. Turns out there were bad guys in the building next to me. I even almost got caught. Look, my clothes were even cut by flying daggers. So scary. Hmm. Jiang Fan immediately sat up and narrowed his eyes as he asked, which building? Tian 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 pointed to a building not far from the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower. Jiang Fan said with a cold face, how many? In any case, this group of people saw Tian Tian's teleportation ability. Then they had to die. Tian 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 confided to two men. Particularly ugly. There seemed to be a couple of other henchmen and I was spotted before I even entered the room. Top of the 45th floor. A man with a mouth full of rotten teeth held binoculars, his eyes glowing as he gazed at the pearl of the magic sea TV tower, crap. Lao San was right. There really are beautiful women. Lao San said triumphantly, that's right. I told you I couldn't be wrong. There are at least three women in that capsule. All of them beautiful. The woman who ran away just now was among the three. The man with the rotten teeth laughed lustfully a few times, not a single man? The oldest one hemmed and hawed, I don't think so. Otherwise how could a man feel comfortable letting that little beauty out to wander around? What if she ran away? My guess is that those two women teleported up there by the power of that little beauty just now. Fair enough. Damn it. A woman actually has the ability to teleport. Lao San was envious, it's too much of a waste. If you give it to me, you can't get it anywhere in the world. The man with the rotten teeth narrowed his eyes, it's okay. If that bitch has it, 
We have it. When we catch her and have enough fun, we'll cut off her legs and hands and force her to teleport us. If she can teleport other women, she can teleport us. If she doesn't, she'll be stripped naked and thrown outside. How dare she disobey? Ha ha ha. It's still you, Huang Lao San. Who has the solution? The two men laughed grimly. Wait until the girls are asleep at night. These stupid bitches, they think they're safe just because they climbed up high? Ha 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 ha. Old me is the best at climbing high. The two returned to the living room. In the parlor, seated around seven or eight vicious looking villains, they were eating in large mouthfuls. The four women were tied together in a death grip, unable to move like dumplings. There were also bodies of men with wounds all over their ragged bodies. They were abused in their lifetime and their bodies were thrown casually on the ground. The villains were totally unconcerned about the bodies and just ate and drank for themselves. The four women whimpered in fear when they saw the two walk in. The oldest three caracoled, what are you screaming for? I'm going to make you guys feel good in a minute. I'll send you on your way tonight. The women whimpered in fear at the news. The man with the rotten teeth cursed mud. What if we throw the body down and attract rats and cockroaches? Shan C. Big head. Hurry up. The two named villains reluctantly rose to their feet. One of them protesting, damn. Boss, how come it's the old man this time? Because you two are strong. Bastards. Shit. If you're strong, you should work more. Don't fucking bullshit me. Slick. The two men giggled and carried the body and threw it off the balcony and down the stairs. The women cried even more miserably. These men are their family. They are the residents of this place. And it was hard for them to survive with their families until now. And now their families have been killed. And their own lives have come to an end. The crowd ate and drank. Dragged in some sheets and threw them on the floor to give vent to their animalistic desires. The room was filled with the screams of women and the sounds of excited men. After half an hour, the women were silent and only the men were still yelling with excitement. An hour later, the man with the rotten teeth stood up and said that'll do. That's enough for today. There's work to be done tonight. So save your strength now. The villains were disgruntled and noisy, brothers haven't played in three days. Mud, that pussy of yours is out of breath. Get up. It's still hot. So it's okay to make do. Roll. You're fucking disgusting. The man with the rotten teeth kicked the coffee table with a thud and glared. I said stop. The villains were then too scared to talk nonsense. The oldest three said a bunch of uneducated things. There are three beautiful women in the pearl of the magic sea TV tower. I'll take you guys to climb up there tonight. And all of you will have a share. Definitely better than these goods. The villains did a double take, seriously? Better than these? Nonsense. When have I ever lied to you guys? The villain's breath caught in their throat. Immediately afterward, the man with the rotten teeth began to lay out his plan. The plan is extremely simple. Lao San builds the ladder. I'll take the lead. And the brothers will follow me. There are only three women up there. I'll kick the hell out of whoever wimped out. The crowd responded with a cacophonous yes. Boss wise. Kill them. Damn. Bastard. Kill and have fun. Yeah. 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 Catch them. Hey. 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 Suddenly, something inexplicably fell from the ceiling. Snap. Gollum. The crowd looked down and saw that it was actually a grenade. There was a lot of ghostly wailing crap. There are enemies. Get out of the way. Boom. The loud roar of the shock bombs shook the crowd to the ground and many of them fainted on the spot. Immediately afterward, an automatic rifle eerily reached down through the ceiling. Bang, 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 help, ah, run. After 10 seconds or so, the room fell silent. Zhang Fan crossed the ceiling and jumped into the room. This group of people had psychics. He didn't want to take any chances and didn't want to care what the other party's abilities were. It was safest to just kill them. Zhang Fan looked around indifferently. All are dead. Their bodies dulled. Except for one LYB. The guy was glowing bright red. Playing dead on the ground. His hand pressed under his stomach. Holding a dagger. Waiting for an opportunity. He thought he was pretending to be infallible. But in reality. It was incomparably solid in Jiang Fan's perception. Jiang Fan casually walked over. Corpse. Poised to fire. Snap. Jiang Fan heavily stepped on the corpse. S neck and then crushed it. Click. Broken cervical vertebrae. Corpse. Turned into a real corpse. The man with the rotten teeth is dead on his feet. He had absolutely no idea how he was exposed. Now the room was completely silent. Zhang Fan picked up the binoculars and walked to the balcony to look at the pearl of the magic sea TV tower. And after a glance he couldn't help but frown. Sure can see clearly. Tang Shuero and Tian Tian. A few women. Were lying by the window of the capsule looking this way. Zhang Fan was helpless. This was only one building next to the pearl of the devil's sea. There were at least a dozen buildings within a kilometer all higher than the red mist. Those on the top of these buildings can see the pearl of the magic sea if they want to, with a telescope. 
the capsule window would have been visible. A group of beautiful women is naturally eye-catching. This is trouble. Jiang Fan was depressed. He had chosen the pearl of the magic sea before for safety. Now, he realized that the place was indeed safe, but it was too solid. The pearl of the magic sea was the tallest building in all of the magic sea, so it was easy to be targeted. Jiang Fan frowned. More traps will have to be laid down there. Chapter 97, Who's Here Specifically to Save You? Jiang Fan scavenged the group's supplies. Nothing good. Not much food either. Jiang Fan couldn't look at most of them and just threw them there without taking them. He was about to leave when he suddenly saw two other women tied up in the next room. The two women were about as far as the villain's boss left himself and didn't seem to let anyone else touch them. Jiang Fan pushed the door in. Both women screamed at the same time when they saw a strange man enter the room. Ah, don't kill us. Do anything. They had heard the gunshots and didn't dare to go out. And now that they saw Jiang Fan come in, they were terrified. Jiang Fan? One of the women suddenly said in surprise. Jiang Fan was surprised. This woman recognized herself and was actually Su Nua, the high-flying female roommate of the shared room. Promise, age, 25, quality, 7 points, a little bit of turnaround for a little beauty, woman's virtue, 5 points, self-esteem, overall rating, 5, ding. Does not meet minimum system requirements. Su Nua instantly understood Yu Jiang Fan. You've come specifically to save me, right? Su Nua's face value was only medium to high, not even comparable to Song Shireen, not to mention Tang Shu Elua and the rest of the women. Jiang Fan wasn't interested in her at all and just laughed casually and oh, it's just a coincidence. Ha, man, the mouth is not the heart. Sweno oh disdained. If Jiang Fan hadn't been trying to save himself, how could he have appeared here? How far is this place from the rental? Su Nua began to take a closer look at Jiang Fan. It looked like he'd had a good time, with strong muscles and healthy skin, and he didn't look like he'd been starving. Sweno's heart fluttered. She used to not be able to look at Jiang Fan, even though the other party's girlfriend, Song Shireen was even prettier than herself. But Song Shireen is too boring and just knows how to test editing every day. As a city girl, Su Nua has a wide range of hobbies, traveling, horseback riding and skiing. Although her income was low, it didn't stop her from using a couple months of her paycheck to run up north and ski every year. She wants a boyfriend who is also fun to be with, but also has money and can afford to spend on her hobbies. Therefore, Jiang Fan had always been out of her consideration. It's different now. It's the end times. Strong men are performance stocks. Listening to the commotion just now, Jiang Fan obviously had a gun in his hand, which was a huge plus. Weapons of men in times of peace, luxury cars and emotional values. The Red Mist era men's plus points. On the other hand, psychic powers and weapons. Su Nua decided to give Jiang Fan a valuable inspection opportunity given that he had a weapon. Jiang Fan stepped forward and pulled the rope with a slight effort. The two had lived in the same house before. After all, and now that they had seen it, they would go along to save the day. Su Nua's eyes lit up slightly. Good boy. So he has powers. I didn't expect Jiang Fan to be quite good at pretending in front of women. In her eyes, Jiang Fan forcibly tearing off the rope with his strength was no different from the old days when men used to show off their luxury cars. No wonder he was able to catch up with Song Shireen before. Jiang Fan was in a pretty good mood today as he gained new psychic abilities and there were two enlightenment fruits waiting for him to get. He simply went along for the ride, yanking the rope off the other long-haired woman as well. The long-haired woman timidly said thanks. She didn't know this man's character or what she would be facing. However, since Su Nua knew the other party, at least he wouldn't kill himself, right? The long-haired woman looked at Su Nua a little curtly. Sueno, on the other hand, served it up Jiang Fan. Help me. My feet are a bit numb from being tied up. Jiang Fan frowned to get yourself up. He doesn't care to take care of a princess patient. When she used to be in a rented room, Su Nua liked to act reserved and high maintenance while her other female roommate, He Qian, was slutty. The two had incompatible personalities and often quarreled. Jiang Fan's favorite thing was to just watch the two women's hilarity. Su Nua said disgruntledly, you're a big man. What's wrong with helping a woman? Don't think that just because you saved me, I must thank you. If you want to pursue me, I'll have to examine you for a while longer. I'm not a random woman. When did I ever want to pursue you? Jiang Fan was baffled. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't even look as good as Song Shireen. Are you too self-conscious? Still not a random woman? You're still checking me out? You've been tied up and played for free, and you're taking up a fight with the old man? Jiang Fan used his perception to check out the other rooms. After making sure there was nothing wrong, he simply teased promises, okay? No no, don't be mad. How are you going to examine me? Su Nua was originally still nervous. She just put up a fight. In case Jiang Fan didn't accept it, there wasn't much he could do. As soon as she heard Jiang Fan say such words, Hope rose. Sure enough, 
This guy has been spying on me. HM. I knew it. A shallow woman like Song Shireen, except for her good face, where can she compare to me? Su Nua got carried away. Holding his chin high first of all, your supplies are left to me to manage. You can't just eat or drink anything. I'm doing this for your own good. It's a post-apocalyptic world. We must treasure every bit of food. Secondly, you must never touch me without my consent. It's a matter of principle. I'm not just any woman. If you want to be with me, you have to listen to me. Also, I'm an only child. I don't know how to wash dishes or clothes. You'll have to take care of all the chores when we're together. Also, you'll be responsible for going out to look for food. I'm not a shifter. It's too dangerous to go out. Jiang Fan was about to burst out laughing. Su Nua, you're all joking for master. You're afraid you're living in a dream, aren't you? Su Nua's heart thumped for a moment, and immediately afterward, he braced himself. Jiang Fan, I'm talking to you about business. Don't be playful. It's okay. He must be scamming me. The first time you establish a relationship you must overpower the man so you can ride him later. Who knows? Su Nua was psyching herself up when Jiang Fan flung his hand and slapped her. Snap. Click. Su Nua's cervical vertebrae were broken and he died on the spot. The long-haired woman looked dumbfounded. Didn't you guys have a good talk? How to kill someone all of a sudden? Only then did Jiang Fan coldly say, Who are you to talk to me like that? After saying that, Jiang Fan turned around and left. The long-haired woman shivered, not daring to make any noise at all. Zhang Zilin, with the assistance of Hu Lei and the guidance of Wang Kaji, finally discovered the use of her new ability. She wasted her whole body and took a few minutes to extract a small piece of the substance from the iron. Zhang Zilin looked wearily at the tiny iron shavings in front of her. What is this? Wang Kaji took out a piece of magnet and tried it. But it turned out that this piece of iron filings would not be sucked at all, and immediately rose in interest, maybe it's some kind of new material. Let me take it to the lab and test it. Chapter 98, Katsushiyama. I will be the king of the Red Mist era. Zhang Zilin also gained greater trust after determining the effects of her new ability. First of all, she didn't hide the effects of her abilities and showed considerable cooperation. Secondly, this secondary capability does not pose a huge threat to the base. Wang Kaji saw that Zhang Zilin was very tired, so he had a female soldier take Zhang Zilin to rest. There were only four class A exalted in total at the base, and Zhang Zilin was the fifth, which was still very crucial. Zhang Zilin, however, Asked anxiously, Academician Wang, when can I get a mission? I want to do an outgoing rescue mission. There are still countless survivors out there facing the threat of death. It's good to save one. Save the survivors outside? Wang Kaji sneered in his heart. Kushan you doesn't want to save it. Outwardly, he still shrugged it off in a civilized manner. I'm just a scientific researcher, and I'll be assigned by the other leaders about the mission. However, as you are a Class A alien, Director Gu will personally talk to you. You should rest first. Someone will naturally inform you tomorrow. Zheng Zilin was helpless, but having just arrived at this base, I can only follow the orders of the organization. She followed the female soldier down the long tunnel to the accommodation area. When you open the door, it's a 30 square foot studio with all the basic necessities. Brand new green military bedding, clean rooms and floors, white ceiling lights, and even a tiny bathroom that looked like it had a shower. The pungent odor of disinfectant emanating from the room was also incredibly reassuring. Everything was like a world away for Zhang Zilin. After days of trekking through the dark, damp, and dangerous dense forest, he finally returned to Earth. The female soldier said respectfully Major General Zhang, according to the regulations, you are a class A alien and enjoy Major General level treatment. Zhang Zilin frowned, I'm not a Major General. I'm just a police officer. The female soldier fawned slightly, class A shifters are given the rank of Major General. You will be in a moment. Zhang Zilin felt more and more that something was not right here. The military takes rank very seriously, so how could they let a tiny base assign it arbitrarily? But she was just too tired. After trekking through the dense forest, fighting with Jia Mengxian to test it, and testing the new psychic ability, his physical strength was now at its limit. Zhang Zilin didn't have the energy to object. Since that base's biggest leader, Director Gu, wanted to have an interview with himself, he might as well ask in person tomorrow. She also had a question about why the base hadn't put out a public notice to rally the survivors to head here. Even if public communications are cut off, aren't there still radio stations? Many of the survivors would have had radios in their hands, but the base did nothing. Seeing that Zhang Zilin didn't say anything, the female soldier continued Rear Admiral Zhang. The base has limited electrical power. The dormitory will be offline from 11 p.m. M. Every night to 9 p.m. M. The next day. So please allocate your work and rest time wisely. Zhang Zilin nodded understandingly and asked just casually, what's the energy source for the base? 
The female soldier knows what she's talking about, there's an underground river below the base, and there's a small hydroelectric plant there. After the female soldiers left, Zhang Zilin took a painful shower, thoroughly washing away her sweat and exhaustion. The water was pumped up from an underground river, and it was cold and uncomfortable to wash, but it touched her beyond words. Now that's life. Zhang Zilin lay comfortably on the bed, feeling the sensation of the clean bedding, and was so moved that she wanted to cry a little, maybe it's because it's underground and the bedding is slightly damp. Zhang Zilin fell asleep quickly. Lab. The results of that iron filings test came back. Wang Kaji was very excited. This substance is too peculiar. With a density of 27. 87 G slash CM superscript 3. It's heavier than gold. In addition, it is extremely chemically stable and cannot react with a wide range of acids. The most important thing is the conductivity. This thing is actually a superconductor. No resistance at all. Whether it's heated or below zero, there's not a single ounce of resistance. It's amazing. Unbelievable. Wang Kaji looked at the iron shavings in the small bottle and was overwhelmed. If it were a peaceful time, this little piece of shit would have gotten him a Nobel Prize. Why can superconductors be extracted from pure iron? What the hell is this thing? Wang Kaji immediately sent the good news to Gushanyu. Gushanyu perfunctorily celebrated a few sentences. Not thinking in his heart, superconductors? Exhaustion only makes one. Two grams? What's the use of such a small amount? Right now. The biggest goal was to survive and to research the alien fruit as soon as possible to create more alien fighters. Gushan Yu thought silently. Yang Xiaozi's unit outside the city had long wanted to enter the city to rescue him. Only he was adamantly opposed to it. Don't look at Yang Xiaozi's grandiose words. Don't you know what Yang Xiaozi is thinking? It's nothing more than trying to take over this base in the name of rescue. Gushan Yu's gaze was grim. Yang Xiaozi occupied the National Strategic Warehouse early on. And even if a large amount of supplies rotted and deteriorated, he was still able to keep a huge amount of supplies such as compressed cookies. Gushan Yu once asked for material assistance from the other side, and that guy didn't even pay attention. Therefore, Yang Xiaozi did not lack supplies at all, but was unwilling to save people, which was nothing more than the idea of buying people's hearts with supplies. Definitely no good. In addition, Yang Xiaozi had at least tens of thousands of soldiers under his command, and had a full range of light and heavy weapons even fighter jets. Once he let the other party come to the Magic Sea TV base, he, Gu Shanyu, couldn't block it at all and was 100% taken out of power. The last large-scale spraying of herbicides was Yang Xiaozi's handiwork, and it was fortunate that the transport fleet was destroyed by the Redbird. Otherwise Yang Xiaozi would have already entered the city. Gu Shanyu was very vigilant in his heart. The underground base of Magic Sea Television was originally a secret scientific research base for the military. Research equipment is very good but living supplies are limited. Gushan Yu is just the third in command of the base. As a result, the director died unexpectedly when the redness descended. The second in command was old, convalescing in the hospital for years, and wasn't even at the base when the redness descended. Gushan Yu saw the opportunity to fully preside over the work. His original intention was simply to preserve the base's personnel and equipment and hold out until the country rescued him, so he could rake in no small amount of political favors himself. Who knows? The situation is getting worse. Gushan Yu's mind slowly began to change. Then later, with more and more psychics and endless mutations of plants and animals, the red mist seemed to show no signs of dissipating, and transportation was completely cut off. By then, Gushan Yu had completely lost the idea of handing over the base to the country. The big time is here. I happen to be in possession of some of the top military research facilities in the country, and that's the biggest thing I rely on to get me to the top. As long as he could research the secrets of the alien fruits and create aliens in bulk, Yang Xiaozi was nothing, not even more. As long as we can save up one, zero 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 Xenos, the tide of offense and defense will be reversed. At that time, I, Gu Shanyu, will become the king of the Red Mist era. At that time, even if Yang Xiaozi didn't want to go into the city to rendezvous, Gu Shanyu would take the initiative to rendezvous with the other party. However, to do all this, academician Gu Changting is the key. Academician K. C. Wang is proficient in the fields of chemistry, physics and ordnance. Guo Chang Ting, on the other hand, is the country's leader in the field of biology, and is best suited to study the secrets of the alien. In order to save Guo Chang Ting, Gu Shan Yu even took the risk of sending out three elite exalts, Class A alien Zhou Tao, Class B alien Li Qing Yu and Wu Jun. Zhou Tao and Wu Jun were at the top of their game, while Li Qing Yu's ability was perfect for long journeys in the wilderness. With the protection of these three, they should be able to bring Gui Changting back. On top of that, there is a key video that helped Katsushij make up his mind to stand on his own two feet. 
It was a top-secret video sent to the major classified institutes by the Dragon Space Agency a few days after the redness descended. Less than a hundred people in the country have seen the video. Kashan Yu once again opened the video with trembling hands and feet and watched it again. Chapter 99, The Mysterious Man Who Walked on the Moon. Comprehensive Physique Plus One. The Beginning of the Video. The Jade Rabbit 8 rover is traveling slowly. The sky is pitch black space. The ground is the desert-like surface of the moon. It was then that the most horrifying scene appeared. A man unexpectedly landed in front of the camera out of nowhere. Due to the angle of view, the camera only captured the mystery man below the chest. The mysterious man's upper body was shirtless, and his lower body was clad only in a pair of antiquely shaped golden pants, and he was barefoot. He just stood barefoot on the surface of the moon at over 100 degrees. Even though Gushan Yu had seen it countless times, his hands and feet were cold. The mystery man's head and face cannot be seen due to the camera view. It looks like it should be a male though. His pecs and abs were well developed, and they were tattooed with arcane golden tattoos that would make Gushan Yu dizzy if he looked at them more than once. The golden tattoos still glowed with an ethereal light, holding up a marvelous halo around the man's body. In the video, the mystery man faces the lunar rabbit rover and seems to be curiously observing the machine. Immediately afterward, a large hand burning with flames grabbed the camera. Click. The screen went black. The 10 second video ends. Gushan Yu's scalp numbly closed the video, and his mood could not be calmed for a long time. There is so much hidden information behind this short video. Who the hell is the mystery man? If they're aliens, why do their bodies look like humans? If it's a human, it's even more nuanced. Could it be that there is such a powerful existence hidden in human society? What's he doing hiding in human society? How did he get to the surface of the moon? What's he doing on the moon? How did he move around naked on the vacuum? Hot surface of the moon? What is the purpose of the tattoos on his body? The video was captured five days after the red mist descended. Dragon Nasa said, Does that mystery man have anything to do with red mist? Or is the mystery man some powerful alien? He just dog luckily ate a magical alien fruit. So he has the ability to cross 380, 000 kilometers? What fruit could have such a powerful effect? In short, there are just too many questions. This was still only Gushan Yu's guess alone. The purpose of the video sent by the top management of the Dragon Kingdom is to allow the various institutes to brainstorm and provide more ideas to cope with future crises. As the situation got worse, the top brass could no longer concern themselves with such a distant threat and had to deal with the immediate. Later, it was simply impossible to reach the highest levels. In fact, after the tenth day of the Red Mist's descent, the entire city of Kyoto was completely lost without a single piece of news coming out. No one knows what's going on in Kyoto. Therefore, Gushan Yu didn't even show the video to others, but hid it privately. Since this video was sent to the Institute by the Dragon Space Agency, Gushan Yu did not doubt its authenticity, not so much abroad. Of course, he didn't know if the Dragon Kingdom had sent the video to other countries. Gushan Yu guessed that according to the character of the top management of the Dragon Kingdom, nine times out of ten, they would not send it, even if it was sent. Gushan Yu could imagine that the foreign executives would feel that it was a fake video and that it was the Dragon Kingdom publicizing the power of its own psychics to various countries. The Red Mist doesn't look easy this time. Gushan Yu sighed and became more and more determined to create an alien. This video makes the cause of the Red Mist disaster treacherous. There's no telling what the future holds. In any case, it is urgent to strengthen oneself, even if the worst case scenario arose and that mysterious person was indeed an alien. But if the other party could communicate, Gushan Yu could still surrender and be a bandwagon. Of course, it takes capital to be a dog for aliens. The more power one wields, the more the aliens naturally value it. Against the aliens? Don't kid yourself. Intelligent beings that can physically cross the universe to the moon. What does mankind rely on to resist? Gushan Yu's mind was spinning as he carefully put away the military encrypted USB flash drive and placed it in a hidden corner. He looked at his watch. It's late at night. It's time to rest. I have to have a good talk with Zhang Zilin tomorrow. And I need to get my strength up. A class A alien was still very valuable to the base. However, Gushan Yu was more confident in convincing Zhang Zilin to follow orders. These were a few of his hand-picked aliens, the few good people in this era who believed in the country and were genuinely willing to dedicate themselves to the country and the common people. Good people. Oh, Gushan Yu snorted and slowly closed his eyes and went to sleep. Purely good people don't survive in this day and age. I'm helping her live longer. 2. Zhang Fan returned home somewhat exhausted. He hadn't been this tired in a long time. The side effects of the quenching ability are just too great. He pulled out another handful of mutant frog meat and ate it. Seeing the man's fatigue, Tang Shuelua sensibly stepped forward and massaged his temples. Su Meng Qian, on the other hand, gently knocked on Zhang Fan's thigh, her eyes full of longing, they were almost drawn out. 
And she said in a sultry manner or Zhang, you haven't been in my room for days. Zhang Fan patted Su Mengxian's cheek and laughed, don't worry, you'll be stuffed by the time it's your turn. Su Mengxian's heart was happy. As long as Zhang Fan didn't hate herself, she couldn't help but blush when she thought of the previous previous tragic battle. Zhang Fan took out a few exotic fruits and swallowed them, then ate the mutated frog meat. The mutated frog meat entered his stomach and was hot, escaping stars of energy that moisturized every cell, making Zhang Fan comfortable. After eating for a while, as if he had reached a certain limit, Zhang Fan only felt that his body suddenly loosened up, and the exhaustion from the quenching was swept away, and his body even instantly returned to its full strength. Zhang Fan was taken aback, what's going on? At this point, the system alerts at the right time frowny face ding, combined physical fitness plus one. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. Overall fitness actually improved. He's been stuck at 90 physique for a long time. After physical strengthening was upgraded to four stars, he didn't even know how many physical strengthening fruits he had eaten and never upgraded again. Zhang Fan was a bit desperate. Thought I'd never be able to raise it a bit again. And now it's suddenly escalating. Why? What the hell did I do? Did. Zhang Fan looked at the mutated frog meat skewer in his hand. Mutant frog kebabs improve fitness. Even what the physique strengthening fruit couldn't improve. Mutant frog meat could. Zhang Fan's eyes lit up. In the future, eat more mutant frog meat. And. Every woman has to eat it. Every day for every meal. This would allow them to slowly get stronger as well as accumulate more mutant frog meat for themselves. The red mist era is too dangerous. The terrifying giant sea serpent gave him a tremendous amount of pressure. Zhang Fan did not guarantee that these women would stay alive. In case they died, Zhang Fan had to make sure he had enough stock to last until he got the next batch of women. Su Mengqian looked at Zhang Fan's silence and asked carefully, Zhang, what's wrong? Zhang Fan suddenly smiled, go, fill you up now. It's late at night. Zhang Fan got up and got out of bed. He looked at his watch. 3.40 AM. This time is when people are most sleepy. Just in time to steal the fruit of enlightenment. The corners of Zhang Fan's mouth rose slightly as he tore open the blue portal and walked in. The subspace 5 kilometers away was void and dark. The subspace anchor points on Zhang Zilin's body held up a sphere of light. Zhang Fan could clearly see that Zhang Zilin was in a deep sleep. The woman is still quite gentle and pretty when she's asleep, completely missing the stern gallantry of his waking hours. Instead, it's more feminine. Immediately afterward, Zhang Fan noticed that there were dozens of rooms in the dormitory area where Zhang Zilin was located. Each room is staffed by one to two people. And these people, all of them, are psychics. Chapter 100, Two Fruits Arrive. Discovered. Various colors of ginger flashed within the bodies of these exalts. Just like Jiang Fan's guess, green and blue were the most numerous, followed by gold. And gray was still only Zhang Zilin. Why is this woman so special? Jiang Fan didn't dare to open the portal rashly. With so many aliens, hell knows what detection abilities. It's only dangerous if you're discovered. I came here to steal fruit, not to fight. Zhang Fan looked toward the very bottom of the sphere held up by the subspace anchor point. About 100 meters from Zhang Zilin is the limit distance for perception. There is a thick rock there between the two layers. Zhang Fan didn't hesitate to pick the landing point here. A blue portal appeared in the rock formed over an unknown number of billions of years. Zhang Fan activated the vapors and carefully stepped out. Instead of acting immediately, he cautiously stayed in place and kept the portal open. As soon as things got bad, he turned his head and ran. There are at least a hundred shifters here, and there's no such thing as too much caution. Who knows if there are any special abilities that would restrain themselves. Zhang Fan was fully concentrated, cautiously monitoring the surrounding conditions with his senses. It seems that everyone is normal. Sleep for sleep. Duty for duty. It looked like no one had noticed Jiang Fan in the rocks. Jiang Fan waited for a full 10 minutes, and the surroundings remained calm. Only then did he close the portal and move slowly through the rocks. The accommodation is located a short distance from the warehouse area. There's no warehouse within at least 100 meters of the one Jiang Zilin went to. Jiang Fan could only move carefully through the rock wall. Along the way, he saw a large number of personnel and basically figured out the distribution of this underground base. The entire base has tunnels that total 10 levels from top to bottom. These 10 levels are roughly subdivided into upper, middle and lower levels. The uppermost level, near the ground, is where the ordinary survivors live. Mostly dressed in gray, they lived in groups of 50 in huge bunk rooms in very poor living conditions, with almost nothing but beds. There were quite a few people, about 4, 000 or so. Everyone is in terrible shape, with a dull physical glow. Many production facilities and indoor growing fields are also arranged on the upper level. There were also people working through the night most of the night. The lower floors were housing general military, junior officers, and low-level researchers. They are four to a room, 
or two to a room. The rooms are much better equipped. The number of people is about seven or eight hundred. Exotics, senior officers, and senior researchers live on the bottom floor. The rooms are basically 20 to 30 square feet and the number of people is minimal. Less than 200 in total. One of the officials lived in the largest area, a staggering 200 square feet. This officer was also a psychic, and the light on his body was twice as bright as an ordinary person's. There were also four Xenos and 20 soldiers on duty outside the door for protection. About the head of this base, Jiang Fan thought secretly, but he didn't startle the other party. The primary purpose of the trip was to steal the fruit, and there was no need to risk it now. Similarly, there are still people working in some of the research labs, some are studying chemical materials, some are studying evolved plants and animals, and some are dissecting dead people. There is certainly a lot of useful information here. Zhang Fan still didn't make a move. It's not too late to wait until you get the fruit of enlightenment if you need to. He found the light weapon storage area again. Inside were tons of arms, rifles, pistols, sniper rifles, and boxes of bullets. There are way more weapons here than at the police station. And there are actual offensive grenades, not police shock grenades. Zhang Fan thought about it and gently ascended to the warehouse floor, taking away two sniper rifles, a dozen boxes of bullets, and several boxes of grenades. If they took all of them, the people at the base would definitely guess that they had infiltrated the altered, and even guess that the altered had abilities like space backpacks or something like that. Otherwise you simply can't take it all. Zhang Fan didn't want outsiders to guess his abilities. If only a very small portion is taken, then when the warehouseman finds out, he'll just think that someone is monitoring the theft. Instead, he will try to hide the truth in order to avoid taking the blame himself, and slowly find a way to level the playing field. So, the tanks, artillery and other weapons, Zhang Fan didn't move either. There's no place for these things to be used anyway. This underground base can't even consume these weapons. Consider it stored here, and if you need it yourself, you can always come and get it. Zhang Fan had almost circled the entire base without being noticed. He basically determined that no one could detect the enemy within the rock. This put Zhang Fan at ease. Along the way, he saw a number of places of interest. For example, the spiral tunnels at the bottom are very deep, beyond 100 meters of perception, and it is not known where they lead. There were a few others who intrigued him, like a female alien who was working the night shift. Her seven-colored bubble of wool was actually very strong. Of course there was no comparison to Zhang Fan, but it's also a whole lot better than the others. This was the strongest person with the strongest will other than himself that Jung Fan had ever seen. Eventually, he found the blast-proof glass cubicle where the alien fruit was stored. Crap, poison gas, mines, flamethrowers. Jung Fan saw a large number of defense facilities. There were shifters and soldiers on night duty in the corridors. Apparently, the people at the base took the defense here seriously as well. Jung Fan stood below the cubicle and looked at the fruit of enlightenment not far above his head. The cubicles have cameras with flashing red lights. All one has to do is reach out and one is sure to be filmed. If you go to vandalize the camera, it might even set off an alarm, making it even more dangerous. There's no choice but to take it the hard way. Zhang Fan opened the portal first before reaching out from the ground to pick the fruit of enlightenment. One to hand, put it in the carry-on space. Two to hand, put it in. Two. Zhang Fan sank into the ground immediately after he got his hands on him, observing his surroundings vigilantly, quiet as ever. No one noticed? Zhang Fan finally had enough knowledge of the base's defense. The defenses here were still mainly for ordinary people, and no special consideration was given to targeting the aberrants. Or maybe the types of powers are so varied that the base can't guess that there are actually people who can walk through walls. There would be no defense against this. In short, it just doesn't work for me. In that case, Zhang Fan got bold and decided to check out those few people he was interested in. First, there's the strong-willed woman. Zhang Fan first went to the quartermaster's warehouse to find a soldier's uniform to change into before slowly walking towards the woman from the rock wall. Underground Institute. Hu Lei is on duty. There are so few shifters that everyone has to work intensely, and female shifters are no exception. Huli half leaned back in her chair and drifted off to sleep. This lounge is for the exclusive use of the alien. The few other soldiers on duty could only stand guard outside and were never allowed to enter without permission. Suddenly, she was awakened by inexplicable palpitations. As soon as Hu Li opened her eyes, she saw an ordinary-looking soldier walking by the window. The soldier gave her a casual, somewhat handsome look. In Hu Lei's eyes, it was like seeing a prehistoric beast. This soldier actually has one, two, three, nine, nine alien powers. Hu Li shuddered. She knew clearly that this person was definitely not from the base. The most xenomorphs in the base have four xenomorphs. This man is an extremely powerful infiltrator. Chapter 1016 Star Ability, Light of the Mind. 
Jiang Fan gazed at the demonic woman. This woman's face value was actually medium to high, but there was an enchanting feeling in her bones, even on this base, which wasn't too well supplied. She had gotten makeup from who knows where, smearing eyeshadow and applying lipstick. The costume is also cool, and the toenails are painted red, with a gold anklet on the ankle too. From top to bottom, there was a sultry feel to it. Most importantly, the strength of her will bubble was the strongest outside of Jiang Fan himself. Jiang Fan recalled what the will bubbles looked like at different will values when his will was raised, and roughly estimated that the woman's will value was between 20 to 23. Huli, age, 29, quality, 8. 5 points, sultry and flirtatious, women's morality, 8. 5 points, extreme misogyny, overall rating, 8. 5 points, ding, compliance with system requirements, 8. 5 points also meets the requirements? Jiang Fan's eyes narrowed a bit. Will-based abilities are very weird. Jiang Fan didn't want to risk taking this kind of woman, especially in this base, where there were aliens everywhere. There was really no need to risk it all for a pretty woman. Besides, the woman is misogynistic and a big pain in the ass to take in. Jiang Fan didn't have the slightest change on his surface and turned around to leave. However, just the moment he turned around, he acutely noticed through his perception that Hu Lei's whole body trembled. Jiang Fan's vigilance in his heart was instantly at its highest. She found me. And, she must have some sort of sensory ability and realize that I'm very powerful to be that scared. This woman, must die. A stern aura flashed in Jiang Fan's eyes, he would never let go of someone who had detected his ability. Both men and women. When Jiang Fan walked into the dead zone of Hu Lei's vision, he immediately sank into the ground and quickly rushed towards Hu Lei. He Lee breathed a sigh of relief and wiped away a weak sweat mud. How come this stinking man is so strong? Scared me to death. After a quick thought, she decided to notify the guards outside about it so that they could go to the police. Such a dangerous enemy. She didn't want to go head to head with the other side. Just hide as far away as possible and leave the enemy to those brainless mangaka. Ha, huh? where's the door? Hulei suddenly realized that where the door of the room was, it had actually turned into a white wall? A wave of confusion ran through Huel's head. What's going on? Am I too sleepy? Sleepy and confused? She turned her head back to the other other wall. It was only then that I realized, to my horror, that all four walls were walls. The door is gone. The windows are gone too. I'll be damned. Hu Lei was scared out of her wits. Nope. That person was also a consciousness type alien. I'm cunt. Hu Lei immediately responded, help. No sooner had she screamed out than a blue portal eerily appeared at her feet and she fell in at once. At the same time, a large hand grabbed her ankle and pulled her violently into the portal. The portal closed immediately. Hu Lei found herself in a bizarrely separate space, looking out at the distorted reality of the world. And beyond this space, it was all nothingness and darkness. What the hell is this place? Hu Lei's entire body was confused. Seeing again that the Yi soldier, from earlier standing right in front of her, she then screamed out in horror awe. Snap! Jiang Fan was nonchalant and slapped her scream back. Hu Lei covered her mouth and cried big brother. Don't kill me. You can do whatever you want. I'll believe the hell out of you. Jiang Fan laughed coldly and was about to speak when he suddenly felt his spirit bubble shaking violently. As if it was under some kind of invisible attack. However, the force was relatively small, and Jiang Fan only felt his mind slightly dazzled for a second. Hu Lei, however, inexplicably had a bloody nose and fell limply to the ground. She looked at Jiang Fan incredulously, you, how is your spirit so strong? It was only then that Jiang Fan reacted to the fact that he had almost been undermined by this woman. She was so cold that she slapped her across the face and knocked her out. I'd like to see what you're capable of. Half an hour later, Jiang Fan expressionlessly snapped Hu Lei's neck and threw the body into the carry-on space. This is a woman he wouldn't dare keep around to raise. Also, again, Hor knew what she was capable of and couldn't be released back to the base. Then we'll just have to kill. Jiang Fan looked at the system prompt frowny face ding. One day ago, Hu Lei consumed a steamed bun and returned 1100 of them. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. One day ago, Hu Lei consumed a bag of compressed cookies and returned 1100 bags. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. One day ago. Hu Lei consumed a bottle of red wine and returned 1,100 bottles. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Hu Lei consumed three ham sausages and returned 3,300 of them. It's been put in the carry-on space. Ding. 18 days ago, Hu Lei consumed one fruit of enlightenment, light of the mind and returned 1,100 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. The light of the heart? It is indeed a will-type ability. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up and he immediately took out a mind's light fruit and ate it. Immediately afterward, he felt his vision brighten. No, it wasn't that the vision brightened, it was just an illusion that made it seem as if he could see more. 
Jiang Fan also realized that even the distortion he felt when he looked at the real world from subspace had lessened quite a bit and was clearer. He immediately checked the ability information frowny face light of the mind, 6 stars. You can see the number of target's abilities and have a certain chance to roughly perceive the effects of the abilities. The success rate depends on the gap between your will and the opponent's. You can send out a mental shock to attack the opponent's consciousness. The effect of the attack depends on the gap between your will and the opponent's will. If the opponent's will is higher than yours you'll suffer a counterattack. Will plus 15. Jiang Fan was overjoyed. Light of the mind. Jiang Fan felt a rapid loss of physical strength. He immediately, looked, outside. The women were sleeping in their respective rooms. Jiang Fan, saw, that different shapes of light clusters appeared on different parts of each woman's body. Tang Shu Eloa had three clusters of light on her body, corresponding to her three abilities. The mass of light over the eyes is about perception. Below the chest, where the heart is located, there are two other light clusters that should represent the voiding and physical strengthening. Tian Tian has two light clusters on the other hand. One of the light clusters on her eyes was very similar to Tang Shuilua's, only slightly smaller. It should be perception, as hers was a one-star perception, while Tang Shuilua's had risen to a two-star perception. Tian 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 also has a strange light cluster on her chest that is big and bright and is supposed to represent her seven-star teleportation. The Idiot Beauty, by Xin Jie, has only one light cluster on her, also on her eyes, which is perception. Jiang Fan had already given each woman at least one perception fruit which could help them recognize friend and foe. Jiang Fan carefully identified the different ability light clusters and silently memorized them in his mind. Gu Rinning has a unique ability light cluster, which should be her condensed water. Su Mengqian had a unique ability light cluster at the brain. That was the will link. Su Jin also had a unique ability light cluster, also on her chest, which was healing. What was rather strange was that Jiang Fan couldn't see his own ability light clusters, and the light of the mind was ineffective against himself? Jiang Fan was extremely satisfied. With this ability, it can be of great use in the future when facing other psychics and plants and animals with psychic abilities. With an additional 15 points of will, the panel attributes have become frowny face combined physical fitness, 91, average of 10 for an average adult, will, 75, average of 10 for average adults, the dual attributes are getting closer to 100. I wonder if there are any special changes when the attribute goes up to 100? Jiang Fan thought expectantly. It's just that it's so hard to improve your overall fitness. After eating so many body strengthening fruits, it didn't raise the star level. Eating mutant frog meat is also slow to work. In comparison, one seems to be more suited to the will type fruits. Let's eat then. Let's see if we can get our will up to 100 today. Jiang Fan didn't hesitate and took out a handful of mind's light fruits and ate them. Chapter 102 The Effect of a Will Over 100 9 Star Mind Light Jiang Fan didn't finish his second handful before he heard a prompt frowny face ding. Mind fire raised to 7 stars. Mind flame consumption reduced, will plus 25. Jiang Fan was secretly delighted. Sure enough, I'm suited for will type abilities. I don't know how many physique strengthening fruits I've eaten, but I'm still 4 stars now. The light of the heart fruit was upgraded to 7 stars by eating a few random ones. That's too big a gap. Jiang Fan didn't stop and continue to eat. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Finally, ding. Mind fire raised to 8 stars. Mind flame consumption reduced, will plus 40. Will is finally over 100. In an instant, Jiang Fan felt that the world had changed. It was as if he had experienced a qualitative change of the kind he had experienced the first time he ate the fruit of perception. The world in front of me was still the same world, but it was as if it wasn't, becoming incredibly vivid. Three-dimensional, and real. Jiang Fan was surprised to see, chi, particles floating everywhere in the air. The key thing was that this time, it wasn't observed with perception abilities. But with the naked eye, there is a huge difference between the two. In the perception field of vision, the jiqi particles were only slowly emerging from the surroundings as one worked the breathing technique. And in the naked eye after reaching 100 will, qi particles originally existed in every corner of the environment, only dimmer and tinier. But it is indeed gas particles. What's going on? Zhang Fan's heart stirred as he operated the breathing method. In an instant, the tiny, Dull, chi, particles around them seemed to be attracted and converged towards Jiang Fan. Then they collided and bonded together with each other near his body, forming larger, chi, particles. By this point, he would be able to, see, these air particles with his perception. That is to say, perception can only, see, chi, particles that are large enough and bright enough, and with a will of more than 100. The naked eye can see all, chi, particles. Jiang Fan immediately teleported to the bottom hall of the Pearl of the Magic Sea. The once noisy hall is now empty. Shrouded in a murky red mist all day long. Plants were sticking in through doorways and rotten glass windows and growing all over the place. 
all kinds of weird little bugs crawling around. As time went on, more and more hideous looking new bugs appeared, and it was impossible to tell what insects they had evolved from. Zhang Fan didn't care and scanned with his perception, not finding any animals that were too powerful. He found a safe room, took out a large table from his carry-on space and sat on it, then took out the flesh and blood gem. Soon, the flesh and blood gem began to absorb the red mist. This time, Jiang Fan discovered a shocking phenomenon. The red mist coalesced into a single red particle once it entered the flesh and blood gem. Then, the flesh and blood gem sucked away the color of the red particles and directly transformed the red red mist particles into colorless gas particles. That is to say, the red mist is another form of qi. Zhang Fan sucked in a breath of cool air and his expression became grave. This conclusion shocked him beyond belief. It was important to know that the breathing method was passed down from Zhang Zilin's ancestors, and it hadn't even been too useful before, until the red mist descended and her breathing method suddenly began to work. Any way you look at it, this breathing method was designed specifically for the red mist era. If that was the case, a question arose that made Zhang Fan wonder. Why does Zhang Zilin's ancestor know a technique that absorbs things in the air that don't even exist? Unless, in the time of Zhang Zilin's ancestors, there was red mist or gas. Throughout the thousands of years of Chinese history, the so-called red mist era has never been recorded. Is it possible, then, that in the time of Zhang Zilin's ancestors, certain environments with large mountains and deep valleys far away from human settlements already existed with red mist? Or, there was no red mist in that era, but there was colorless and invisible gas in the environment. That's why most ordinary people don't even notice the existence of Xi. Jiang Fan was still confused after thinking for a while. What the hell is red mist? What on earth is causing the red mist on the planet? Could it be that? The red mist is the so-called aura of aura revival? But why is it that everything evolves, gets bigger and stronger, and humans are the only ones who don't? Aren't humans animals? What's so special about humans? Jiang Fan silently looked around at the gloomy red mist. The intelligence is just too little. Can't think of a clue. He could only put the matter aside for the time being. Keep eating. Let's just get the mind bender up to 9 stars first. Zhang Fan ate the mind's light fruit by the handful. Finally, ding, light of the heart raised to 9 stars. Zhang Fan was delighted and immediately checked the effect of the 9 star mind light frowny face light of the mind. 9 stars, full level, can't be upgraded any further. You can see the number of target abilities and have a chance to roughly perceive what the abilities do. With success depending on the gap between your will and the opponents, you can send out a mental shock to attack your opponent's consciousness. The effect depends on the gap between your will and your opponents, and a failed attack will be countered, as long as your enemy's will is lower than yours. You will be absolutely immune to any of your opponent's will attacks, will plus 60, immunity to will attack. Jiang Fan was overjoyed. With this ability, there is no longer any fear of an attack of will. Anyway, it's unlikely that there are many people or animals whose wills are above their own right now. The 9-star link of will adds 50 points of will, and the 9-star light of mind adds another 60 points of will. His will value had reached a terrifying 120 points, 12 times more than the average person. It's a crushing disparity. The strong pulling of the enemy into the space of consciousness and the creation of illusions by the will link are both related to the gap between the two wills. Previously, Zhang Fan's will was only 60, and these two skills weren't very practical. Previously, sneaking up on Hu Lei and creating the illusion in her consciousness that she was surrounded by walls had caused Zhang Fan's energy to be so depleted that he could only maintain it for a short period of time. Now it's different. 120 points of will, if he did it again, Zhang Fan could easily break through Hu Lei's will bubble and trap her in his consciousness space for a long time, or, create more, more real, longer illusions, there are two more new fruits, the corner of Zhang Fan's mouth lifted up as he pulled out two enlightenment fruits that had just arrived, with all these women, who should eat them, after pondering for a while, Zhang Fan opened the portal and returned to the bedroom on the top floor of the Pearl of the Magic Sea, perception unfolds and the women are still sleeping, Zhang Fan easily established a will link with Lu Mengyao and woke up the woman who was sleeping Lu Mengyao. Come to my room. Whom? Brother Jiang? Lu Mengyao was sleeping in a daze and thought she was dreaming. Immediately afterward, she reacted to the fact that Zhang Fan was contacting himself with a consciousness phone. What else could Zhang Fan suddenly summon in the middle of the night? Lu Mengyao was both shy and surprised. Not daring to delay. She hurriedly got up okay? I'll be right there. Lu Mengyao immediately unscrewed a bottle of pure water and poured cool water on her face to wake herself up. Then she took out her small mirror again and quickly put on light makeup, spritzed on perfume, and changed into a semi-sheer black gauze nightgown. Before she left, she thought about it and also deliberately put on a pair of black, red-soled high-heeled shoes before she hurriedly walked into Jiang Fan's room. Once she entered the room, she was embarrassed to see that Huli Yuli was even there, Lily who didn't dress up. 
Only wearing a loose and comfortable cotton nightgown. Looking at herself again, Lu Mengyao blushed. The moment Hu Lily saw Lu Mengyao, she remembered that she wasn't dressed up. She was woken up by Jiang Fan in a daze and rushed over without much thought. Bitch. Heart throb. Hu Lily cursed. And at the same time, she was annoyed at how she was so stupid for not wearing makeup before coming over. Jiang Fan smiled and glanced at Lu Mengyao as he pulled out two enlightenment fruits, a reward for you. One for each of you. These two women had followed him for a long time, yet they only had one perception ability. Even the later Gu Renying girls had two abilities. Although Gu Renying and the girls themselves had joined with their powers, it was time for these two women to be rewarded with rewards. You can't be thick-skinned yourself. The two women froze for a moment. Followed by excitement, thank you brother Jiang. Thank you brother Jiang. Brother Jiang. What kind of ability is this? Jiang Fan casually said, eat and see. The two women were unsure. So they could only each pick one at random and eat it. Chapter 103, Hulei is missing. Magic CTV underground base. The young soldier on duty wondered to a squad leader. Did you hear MS? Or scream? The older soldier who was napping said dismissively, you kid just know how to think about women. MS. Hulei is the most famous psychic in our base. So don't even think about it. No chance. The young soldier said awkwardly, really? I did hear her scream. The older soldier grunted, okay. Who doesn't know what you kids think? Don't be a fucking asshole. Stand guard properly and let me squint a little longer. Wake me up when the changing of the guard comes. The young soldier had no choice but to turn his head and look at the closed door of the lounge room. He didn't have the guts to mess with Huel. That woman didn't even pretend to be a male shifter. How would he dare to mess with a small soldier? Time passes by. It's time for the changing of the guard. A male shifter named Chen Gang walked over with two soldiers, talking and laughing. After a brief handover between the two sides, Chen Gang wondered OMS, who is most active after work? Why isn't she out today? Is she asleep? He knocked on the lounge room door. Knock knock. No one opened the door. Chen Gang asked curiously, is MS? Who not here? The older soldier compensated, report, MS. Who is inside and hasn't come out? Probably slept more today. Chen Gang shrugged and knocked on the door of the room again, MS. Who? This is Chen Gang. It's time for the changing of the guard. If it had been a male shifter, he would have just pushed his way in. But it's Huel inside. This woman is notorious for not having a good face for men. And her ability is special. Very much taken care of by the top management. Chen Gang does not want to mess with Hule. Knock knock. Knock knock. Chen Gang knocked on the door louder and louder. And there still wasn't a single response from inside. The crowd felt out of place. Even if you're asleep. You can't sleep that hard. Right? The young soldier's mind tensed as he remembered the cries for help he had heard. Did something happen to Hu Lei? The older soldier was also apprehensive. Chen Gang couldn't sit still any longer and pulled on the door, unlocking it from the inside. He hurried to the back of the lounge and peered in through the window. The windows are intact. It's locked from the inside. There were no lights inside. It was very dark and hard to see. Coupled with the fact that the curtains blocked a large portion of the window, the limited angle only allowed him to see the table. Not Hu Lei's figure. Is she still asleep in bed? The crowd tenses up and rushes to tap on the windows. Bang bang. 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 MS. Who? MS. Who? The room remained dead silent and unresponsive. The crowd was beginning to feel uneasy in their minds. The older soldier's heart was even more in turmoil. And as he remembered the young soldier's reminder just now, he could only feel that a great disaster was on the horizon. Chen Gang narrowed his eyes and said in a deep voice, Everyone give me a witness. I forced my way in because I was worried about Miss Who? The crowd nodded hurriedly. Yes. Don't worry. Chief. Chen Gang raised his palm, which instantly turned blue and radiated a chilling light. He shouted again at MS. Who? I'm coming in. Having said that. Swish swish swish. The bulletproof glass was sliced into several large chunks and shattered. Falling to the ground. Wow. Chen Gang couldn't wait to jump into the room. And the crowd poked their heads inside. The room was empty. Only one sandal was left on the floor for Huel. Hor himself has mysteriously disappeared. The older soldier's face went pale and he dropped to the ground. Finished. Something's really wrong. Chen Gang immediately changed his face and snapped, You guys really didn't notice anything out of the ordinary? The young soldier then said fearfully, reporting to the chief. I vaguely heard mess. Huli's cries for help about 15 minutes ago ago. But the squad leader said I was being nosy and wouldn't let me check. He threw the pot decisively. This has nothing to do with me. 15 minutes. Chen Gang glared fiercely at the older soldier and gritted his teeth. You did this. The importance of Hu Lei was something that Chen Gang understood too well as a shifter. Although Hu Lei didn't have much combat ability, she could tell the number of abilities of the other aliens. Sometimes, it was even possible to tell the type of the opponent's ability. 
an ability that held great strategic value for the base. Moreover, she was the only one in the entire base who had this ability, and there was no substitute. If Huel is missing, it's a big deal. Soon the shrill siren sounded. The whole base was abuzz. A few minutes later, a group of aliens and soldiers surrounded the lounge. Zhang Zilin stood in the crowd with a confused look on her face, not knowing what was going on. Gushan Yu walked into the lounge with a few executives and watched the scene in silence. A senior criminal police officer analyzed it after carefully examining it, looking at the marks on the bed. Hugh Lee found something about it, got up to check it out, and got caught. It was about this spot where she dropped her sandals. There was no sign of a fight in the room, and the guards at the door didn't hear anything too intense, there was only a short cry for help, suggesting that Hule was controlled in an instant. The opponent's fighting strength is obviously not weak. Another strange thing is that the door and window were unlocked and Huel was missing. In the past, this was a typical secret room disappearance case. Now it seems that it can only be the handiwork of some special alien. Shifter. Gushan Yu narrowed his eyes, Kai. Any luck with the surrounding surveillance? Criminal police officer Lao Kai said, I checked, and I didn't see anyone approaching from the time who lay entered the lounge until Chen Gang broke the window. Gushan Yu's face was gloomy, that's 90% likely to be a psychic. What kind of psychic ability is it to take Hule without a sound? Why did you take Hule? Old grudge or old love? He was very angry. Hor's ability is extremely important. And that's not even saying anything. More importantly, if Hule just disappeared unexplained, it would be a huge blow to Gushan Yu's prestige. If he couldn't even guarantee security within the base, how could the other aliens trust him to lead the entire base? The crowd looked at Gushan Yu in silence. Gushan Yu was annoyed in his heart. And he forced down his anger and continued to ask, did you get a head count? One replied, it's been counted. The base has a total of five. 531 people. With only one missing. Who lay? All the gates have been checked as well. And no one has come in or out in the past hour. The country faced Major General Duanj and suddenly walked out of the crowd and circled the room. Finally, he stopped in a clearing. And he crouched down. His nose shrugging. Then he touched the ground again and put it in front of his nose and sniffed it. With a thoughtful look on his face. The crowd quieted down. Duanjin was the only four class A alien in the base and the chief of all the soldiers, so his prestige was extremely high. Kushanya knew that one of Duanjin's supernatural abilities was super sense of smell and asked expectantly, Major General Duan, what have you found? Duanjin sniffed carefully again and calmly said, I smell an unfamiliar odor. Definitely not someone from our base. The location where he last disappeared is here. Duanjin pointed to the ground with certainty. Ground? The ability to drill the ground? Everyone looked to the ground in confusion. The concrete floor was unharmed. Drill away and still not damage the ground? Drill through the ground? Walking through walls? Zhang Zilin inexplicably thought of Zhang Fan. That man has that power. Could it be Zhang Fan? Again, she didn't think it was possible. Zhang Fan is still enjoying himself in the Fortune Center district, with a ton of beautiful women around him, living comfortably as hell. He wasn't going to venture that far away. Zhang Zilin couldn't help but feel a little sour in her heart when she thought of the pile of women around Zhang Fan, a feeling that even she hadn't realized. Gushan Yu coldly said, with all the strange abilities nowadays, it's possible to drill the ground without damaging it. However, he certainly won't get far, because there's no oxygen underground, and even the strongest can't go long without breathing, so he has to show his head at intervals to come out and breathe. According to previous experience, the more powerful the ability the more stamina it consumes. Plus he also took Hule with him. The stamina consumption must be even greater. So, I guess this person is hiding somewhere in the base with Hule. You have to show your head at regular intervals? That must leave behind a large amount of odor. Duanjin's eyes lit up but that means the man didn't leave? Gushan Yu sneered, the possibilities are great. Very well. Since we're here, let's stay. Major General Sun, blockade the entire base. In the crowd, a silent soldier raised his head. He was Sun Wei originally just an ordinary soldier, who accidentally ate a supernatural fruit and gained a powerful space-blocking ability. This ability, at its greatest, isolates the inner and outer space. Nothing from outside could get in, not even the flames. What's inside can't get out. Yes, Chief. Sunway dryly folded his hands. A light blue translucent cube appeared. Cubes expand rapidly through all people. Buildings, ground. A few seconds later, Sweat broke out on Sunway's forehead and he weakly said that the entire base is on lockdown for 8 hours. 8 hours? It won't work at all. Gushan Yu quickly ordered, Major General Duan, I'm ordering you to be in charge of this capture mission. All the Xenos will be under your command for the time being. Within 3 hours, I want to see that bandit. Duan Jin said confidently, don't worry. I'll be able to sniff him out if he shows his head anywhere. One hour will be enough. Everyone else had a confident look on their faces. 
Hundreds of aliens, in a closed environment capturing a small mouse that only knows how to make holes and hide? How can I lose? Can't lose. It's a package drop. Gashan you nodded in satisfaction ago. Act now. Dare to come to our base to spread wildness. I'll make him regret being born into this world. Zheng Zilin couldn't help but get vaguely nervous when she saw the crowd moving aggressively. It can't be. It's really Jiang Fan, isn't it? If it's really him, what should I do? Should we save him? Zheng Zilin was apprehensive. Chapter 104 The Upper Limit of the Number of Supernatural Abilities Crowd Action Zheng Zilin was new to the city and had little to do but wait for news. Gushan Yu pondered for a while, thinking that the infiltrator's purpose should only be to capture Hu Lei. Otherwise, just kill it in the lounge. There's absolutely no need to go through the trouble of taking her away. So, Hu Lei won't be in any danger for a while. Gushan Yue was in quite a good mood, and at this time he couldn't sleep anyway, so he simply looked for Zhang Zilin, and advanced the conversation between the two, I'm sorry, M.S. Zhang, for making you laugh. Zhang Zilin hurriedly said, hello, Director Gray. The two men exchanged a few brief pleasantries. Zhang Zilin expressed his desire to stay at the base to contribute to the organization and the people. Gushan Yu's heart was disdainful, but his face was still moralistic or rest assured. The safety of the people's lives is always in my heart. Unfortunately, we don't have enough strength. When I think of the people outside still suffering, my heart is very heavy. Gushan Yu had a heavy expression on his face. Zhang Zilin said excitedly, Director Gu, I don't need too many resources. As long as I am given a troop and some supplies, I can save more survivors. I've traveled more than 10 kilometers through the dense forest outside and I know the situation of the magic sea very well, so I'm confident that I can complete the mission. Gushan Yu cursed Zhang Zilin in his heart for being insensitive. What's the point of saving all those trash survivors? The base has enough manpower now. What I need are obedient soldiers and researchers. If the times hadn't changed and the Alterans themselves wielded great combat power, he would have repelled Zhang Zilin long ago. How dare a junior soldier question the decisions of his leaders? Who do you think you are? Unfortunately, it's not working now. If Zhang Zilin left in disappointment, Gushan Yu didn't even have the means to stop it. It was even less likely that they would use violent means to forcefully stop it. That would only put every one of the other aliens at risk. But it's not possible not to stop it. Zhang Zilin is a class A alien and has a strong individual force, defeating the powerful Jia Mengxian on her first day in the base. If she tried to pull someone away, many shifters would move. Alas, it's better in the olden days. Which one dares to question the leader when he reprimands his subordinates? Isn't this a death wish? Damn it. Fucking new age. Gushan you said awkwardly of this. The matter of the mission has to be considered in the long run. M.S. Zhang is one of the few five class A exalts in the base. So your mission must be done carefully. You must also protect your own safety and health. You living safely is the greatest contribution to the country to the people. Zhang Zilin frowned. She vaguely felt that the base was very inactive in rescuing the survivors. But she didn't know why. Director Gu. Is the base under a lot of pressure for supplies? Gushan Yu immediately denied it, nope, the base is very well stocked. Miss Zhang, you've just arrived at the base and you don't know much about the situation here, so rest for a few days before making any arrangements. If Miss Zhang has any more questions, I will definitely know everything. Ha ha ha. Zheng Zilin was helpless, but this is also the norm in the organization. Organizations don't support too many individual ideas. She'd been in the police department for a few years and was used to it and didn't think much of it. Probably. The leaders have pressures they don't know about. She asked a few more very curious questions. I remember there's a military unit not far from Magic Sea City. Why don't they come in and rescue us? Gushan you heart cursed John Zilin Nozi. Such a big thing is a small police officer you should worry about it. On the surface, however, he just sighed that this troop was very unlucky. The top three military heads all died. After that there was chaos and infighting, and finally I heard that a young and strong officer named Yang Shaoza rose to the top. And then I'm not sure about what happened after that. Our place was originally a military research institute, not very much related to the army. Zhang Zili nodded in silence. She looked at Gu Shan Yu in front of her, and unlike the openness and honesty he had shown himself in his words, the man had a yellowish glow to him. It showed that he didn't trust himself, but was instead wary and probably hiding a lot of information. This made Zhang Zili feel a little displeased in her heart, but it's normal to think about it. One is an outsider after all. Gu Shan Yu is a superior person. A little bit of city is normal. Zheng Zilin was just a little upset. Gushan Yu said again sorrowfully about the same time transportation was difficult and the red fog obscured vision. The military could not travel long distances. If the army marched on foot, the unnatural attrition on the road could be very high, and Yang Shaoza might not be able to give up if the losses were too great. Now that it's the end of the world and transportation is almost cut off, 
with mountains everywhere. Some people might have some thoughts they shouldn't have. Ha! <laughs> Zhang Zilin couldn't help but get frustrated with the military. Why is the Dragon Kingdom like this? It wasn't like this before. Zhang Zilin was helpless and asked again Director Gu. There's another question. Since there are still two alien fruits stored in the base, why don't you select the aliens and give them to eat to enhance their strength? Gushan Yu was finally relieved to have finally come across a good question to answer, the most important reason, of course, is that there aren't enough alien fruits, however, there's more than that one reason, in the beginning, when we collected the exotic fruits, we immediately distributed them in the form of rewards, then it was realized that the amount of alien energy that each person can take on is not unlimited, alien energy, in fact, is very burdensome to the human body, and beyond the limit the body will frequently fall ill and then die. Those who are extremely physically fit or gifted can take on 5 or 6 powers, such as you class A aliens. Most people who can afford the cap have very little, and 3 is the top. Basically, the upper limit of the number of supernatural abilities is highly related to the physical quality of the individual. The limit for young and strong people is commonly 3, and older ones assume 1 or 2. So, as soon as you look at it, your physical qualities are far beyond normal people. Plus Jia Mengxian did so after testing, you can be assigned one. And since Yang Jiawei is old, he wasn't given the exotic fruit. In fact, due to the existence of the limit of the alien ability cap, most of the base's aliens are consciously controlling the number of their alien abilities to avoid reaching the cap. Because no one knows what the alien energy in the alien energy fruit is, they prefer to eat new alien energy that can cooperate and link up with their own alien energy, rather than completely unrelated alien energy. Gushan Yu secretly said in his heart, if you can eat unlimited alien fruit, I've had dozens of powers for a long time. What's the point of sucking up to you shitheads? HM. Zhang Zilin expressed her understanding. For example, one's first ability is clearly a melee-oriented ability. Burst. The second ability, Psychic Perception, is a mediocre match, but it's not bad. At least it can spot dangerous creatures lurking under leaves and in bushes. She was able to trek more than 10 kilometers through the dense forest, and her sensory abilities played a huge role. The third psychic ability one acquires just doesn't fit in at all with the previous ones. What does extracting a substance from a metal have to do with combat? If you gave yourself another ability to increase your range, you could definitely double your combat power. She asked again curiously if the base can judge the powers in the alien fruit now? Not for now. Gushan you denied it. Followed by an impassioned statement with a big wave of his hand however. Human technology is advancing. If you can't judge it now, it may not necessarily not work in the future. Everyone who leaves themselves an empty allomancy grid has a hope of adjusting in the future. In comparison, improving one's physical fitness can be too difficult. In addition, there is also good news to inform you. Our country's top expert in the field of biology, academician Guo Changting, was lecturing in Magic Sea City when the red mist descended. I've already gotten in touch with him and sent someone to pick him up, so I believe I'll be able to retrieve academician Guo soon. If anyone in the Dragon Kingdom can crack the secret of the alien fruit, Academician was hope is the greatest. You stay at the base, and in the future, you might be able to choose the right alien energy fruit according to your needs. Zhang Zilin was instantly moved. In the dangerous red mist era, she naturally wanted to continuously strengthen herself. Gushanyue took a look at Zhang Zilin's expression and immediately grasped the strength to draw a big pie, just like the two exotic fruits existing in our base. If Academician Bua determines its ability and it's suitable for you, then I can make the decision and give it to you directly. Zhang Zilin hurriedly said, many thanks to Director Gu. However, the distribution of the exotic fruits is the priority right now, and I fully abide by the base's distribution system and will never engage in any specialties. The base will distribute according to whatever regulations before and use it in the future. And I personally have absolutely no opinion whatsoever. Gushan Yu laughed out loud, ha ha ha, ms. Zhang is such a good comrade. For a moment, the guests were happy. Chapter 105, what? The alien fruit is missing. Demon Man Kong Yong Jian. Two hours later, Duan Jin sniffed the entire base and finally found the location where the infiltrator's odor had reappeared, the alien fruit warehouse. Evolutionary almond trees and leeks grow well in the cubicles, but the alien fruit hanging from it was gone. Soon, Gushan Yue led the human alien fruit warehouse, his face grimaced, where are the fruits? Someone tell me where the alien fruit is. The crowd of high-ranking Xenos all had ugly faces. The alien fruit warehouse is not a resource for a particular individual but for all aliens. Now someone actually dared to steal the alien fruit here, which was a slap in the face of all the alienists. Moreover, the alien fruit was worth 10,000 gold in the Red Mist era, and it was surprising that two of such precious supplies had been lost. The captain of the warehouse district guards cried out, his heart pounding, it's been confirmed. 
It was the shifter who did it. He played a video. On the monitor, a hand reaches out eerily from the floor of the cubicle and quickly picks off two alien fruits. The corner of Zhang Zilin's mouth twitched. Isn't this Jiang Fan? Sure enough, he did it. How did this guy know there were alien fruits here? The crowd of alienists burst into a rage, a digging little thief indeed. Asshole. Don't let me catch you. The base crowd went berserk and turned the base upside down. Unfortunately, there were no strangers to be found. The eight hour period of the space blockade is over. The man still hasn't been found. This dumb loss. They will eat it. Even more troubling was that many of the base's defenses that had been secure in the face of this type of infiltration were now unsafe. This mysterious infiltrator can come in once. He can come in twice. This time he came in just to steal two alien fruits and take Hulei captive. What if he throws a few grenades in next time? What about dropping gas bombs? Gushan Yu and the other top brass got a deep headache. There's no telling how much preparation goes into plugging these defense holes. It can't even be defended at all. Who can defend against an enemy that comes out of the ground without a word? The thought of having such a disgusting and horrible rat on the side of his couch made Gushan Yu scalp numb. There is no such thing as a thousand days of defense. With a fury in his heart, he said to Major General Duan, I'm ordering you to stop all the tasks at hand and immediately form a 20-member search team of pure Xenos to make sure you catch this rat. As long as we find traces of him, the base will do everything in its power to support you and completely decimate him. Duanjin also knew the threat of this person and solemnly said, don't worry. Drilling must have consumed a lot of physical strength to travel long distances, and this person should be in one of the survivor colonies next to our base. I can definitely find him. Zheng Zilin looked at the crowd's murderous appearance and was anxious for Zheng Fan in her heart, this is trouble. You must hide. Don't show your head. Lily who ate the alien fruit first. Zhang Fan saw the prompt frowny face ding. Lily who consumed one fruit of enlightenment, physical strengthening and returned 1100 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Another body strengthening fruit? Zhang Fan was a bit disappointed. He glanced at the prompt frowny face fruit of enlightenment, physique strengthening two stars. When consumed, it strengthens the constitution. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Jung Fan was stunned. That body strengthening fruit from before was a one star. There's actually a two star physique enhancement fruit? It turns out that the star rating can be different for the same fruit. I can't get a star by eating a one star physique enhancement fruit. What about a two star physique enhancement fruit? Jung Fan was looking forward to it. I, I, I seem to have gotten physically stronger? Who Lily looked at her hands dumbfounded. Jung Fan laughed, well, physical strengthening? Your physical quality is more than double that of an ordinary person. Try it. So strong. Who Lily looked around, reached out and grabbed the solid wood seat. And the hundreds of pounds actually carried it easily. She couldn't wait to try and carry the nightstand and was surprised at how easily she carried it. Lily who was so excited thank you brother Jiang. Thank you brother Jiang. Immediately after that, she realized that she had discharged some black substance on her skin. Which looked very dirty and kind of smelly. Ah. What is this? Jiang Fan said indifferently body strengthening will flush out toxins from your body. It's good for your body. Go back and wash yourself. Okay. Hu Lily was elated and rushed back to her room to take a shower. Lu Mengyao glanced enviously at Hu Lily before swallowing her fruit. Ding. Lu Mengyao consumed one fruit of enlightenment, flexibility and returned 1100 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, pliability one star. When consumed, it can make the body pliable. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. In an instant, Lu Mengyao felt her body's ligaments and joints loosen up a lot. And, not simply soft, but powerful. Lu Mengyao couldn't help but bend backward. Her waist limbs were soft, her head easily topped the ground. And the movements that were simply impossible to do before could now be accomplished at will. It culminates in an amazing jiu-jitsu triple fold. However, Lu Mengyao was not happy. This kind of flexibility ability was far from Hu Lili's overall strength and physical fitness. Brother Jiang, Lu Mengyao said accusingly, I'm too weak for this one. Jiang Fan, however, had glowing eyes and nope. This ability is great. Ha ha ha. The entrance to the Magic Sea Royal View neighborhood. All the survivors came to see Kong Yong Jian and Zhou Tao and the others off. The five short Kong Yong Jian is standing in front of all of them, making an impassioned speech, everyone. I'm going to go with Colonel Zhou and Academician Gua to explore the base and urge the base to send someone to pick everyone up as soon as possible. Although the road ahead is full of dangers. But, for the sake of your well-being, I don't care about this little bit of risk. You all don't have to worry. The crowd was in tears, Director Kong. You can't leave. Director Kong. What are we going to do if you leave? It's too risky. Let us go instead. Director Kong. Director Kong. Even Zhou Tao, Wu Jun, and Guo Changting were filled with excitement. That's a good officer. Dare to take risks for the sake of the people. 
Li Qingyu only felt chills all over her body. In the past two days, she had witnessed Kong Yangjian's evil operation. He made several grandstanding speeches. It sounds official and full of lies at first glance. Yet, outrageously, everyone believed it. Even the knowledgeable academician Guo Chanting fell into his way. To Kong Yangjian obedient, deeply convinced. The words are always what Director Kong has said. Actions must be reported to Kung Wing Kin first. Of all the people, only Li Qingyu was able to remain calm and unaffected by Kong Yongjian. Li Qingyu knew that this person's ability was definitely not normal, as if he knew she was special. Kong Yongjian badmouthed Li Qingyu a few times to Zhou Tao and Guo Changting. Then, Li Qingyu was ostracized by everyone. If it wasn't for her special ability to help the crowd transport supplies, Li Qingyu doubted that she might have been killed. After giving a passionate speech, Kong Yongjian sat on the metal plate and said with great vigor a departure. Let's go to the Pearl of the Magic Sea and then to the base. Before Zhou Tao gave the order, the soldiers he brought with him acted according to Kong Yongjian's command. The scary thing is that something so outrageous and against the rules. Even Zhou Tao doesn't feel anything wrong. All of the soldiers and researchers from the original team, along with the ten full-fledged minders that Kong Yongjian had taken with him, were completely at Kong's beck and call. Li Qingyu was simply powerless to resist and could only follow Kong Yongjian's request to walk into the dense forest. Let's hope Director Gray can deal with this demon. Chapter 106, 6 Star Physique Reinforcement The effect of having a physique of over a hundred. Zhang Fan came to the living room. The women were chattering away Lily Hu. You have three powers too. Congratulations. Brother Jiang really favors you. So envious. Hu Lily was fooling around when she suddenly saw Zhang Fan and hurriedly collected her smile and laughed, Zhang. Zhang Fan didn't care about the woman's petty complacency, happy? Julie laughed awkwardly, ha ha, happy. Jiang Fan patted Hu Lily's head, if you're happy, you'll have to work harder from now on. Breakfast is ready. Jiang Fan sat down on the main seat and began to eat. A group of women gathered around in order and ate breakfast with Jiang Fan, trying to think of ways to say all kinds of interesting things, never mind if they were sincere or not. A group of beautiful women smilingly surrounding themselves put Jiang Fan in a happy mood. Tian 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 said curiously, aha, uh -huh? why isn't Sister Meng Yao coming to dinner? Jiang Fan waved his hand, she was tired last night, so I guess she'll be sleeping for a long time. The women drifted off and giggled. Who Lily's heart was incomparably envious. If I had also made up and dressed up last night before going over, would I have been the one who stayed over? There were more and more women. Jiang Fan's favor was limited, and he himself had to seize every opportunity. An opportunity comes to those who are prepared. Julie lamented, glancing absent-mindedly at the other women before realizing, to her amazement, that even if it was just for breakfast, each of these bitches was dressed to the nines. Tang Shuelua was wearing a semi-transparent chiffon shirt, with black underwear hidden inside. Su Mengqian's makeup was very delicate, and with her carefully prepared hairstyle, she estimated that it took at least an hour to get up in the morning. Gu Renying didn't know how long she had been begging Jiang Fan, but she had actually gotten a floating Chinese dress, which she wore on her body, complementing her personal temperament, just like a fairy descending from the sky. Even the more introverted Su Jin wore high heels and black silk. Lily who looked at herself and was ashamed of herself. He was actually wearing that ordinary pajamas on himself. And compared to the competing women, he was just like a little dirt chick who had just entered the city. No wonder he only had one psychic ability even when he was mixed up until last night. If it wasn't for John deliberately taking care of it, he didn't know in which life he could get a second one. These bikers are so insidious and shameless. From now on, I'm going to wake up in the morning and put on makeup too. Jiang Fan finished eating and simply moved around for a while before teleporting to the bottom of the Pearl of the Magic Sea. Jiang Fan went back to the room he was in last time. He took out the blood and flesh gem and placed it on the table, then sat cross-legged on it and began to cultivate the breathing technique, with the flesh and blood gem transforming aura, plus the ability to see the finer, chi, particles in the air after the will exceeds 100. Jiang Fan practiced the breathing method extremely fast, almost filling up once in two minutes, then empty it out, then it's filled up again and then it's empty. After about two hours, Jiang Fan stopped. After practicing for so long, the tree of 10,000 laws remained unchanged. It's about the bottleneck indeed. I just don't know exactly how I can break through. Jiang Fan couldn't make heads or tails of it, so he could only give up for the moment, carefully storing the flesh and blood gem into his carry-on space. Then, he took out a flexibility fruit and ate it, smoothly gaining the flexibility ability. The introduction to this ability is very simple frowny face flexibility, one star. The flexibility of the entire body's tendons and bones is increased by 100%. It's actually a percentage? This has a lot to do with one's initial flexibility. Jiang Fan tried. He really couldn't do the kind of triple fold that Lu Mengyao did. Not to mention triple folding. 
You can't even do a backbend and have your head touch the ground. Lu Mengyao used to be a fitness queen, practicing yoga for years, and her flexibility was better than most women. Not to mention males like Zhang Fan. This ability doesn't have much effect on a violent output stream like mine. If Zhang Zilin gets it, it's a different story. It will be a huge addition to her melee ability, and a lot of moves she couldn't do before will probably be able to be done. Zhang Fan ate dozens more flexibility fruits and still didn't race to two stars. This was normal, and Zhang Fan wasn't too disappointed. Flexibility must belong to the physique-oriented powers. Zhang Fan's body was not well adapted to this type of psychic ability. If you eat it consistently, you're sure to get two or three stars. But Zhang Fan didn't continue eating. There was a more important experiment today. Can a two-star physical strengthening fruit be used to raise physical strengthening to more than four stars? He would save his stomach for the physique-enhancing fruit. Zhang Fan didn't start eating immediately. Instead, he took out a two-star physique strengthening fruit and another one-star physique strengthening fruit and placed them in front of him to compare them carefully. After repeated comparisons, he couldn't see any significant difference between the two, whether with the naked eye or perception. Zhang Fan could only stop, start eating. He took out an iron basin and filled it with two-star physique strengthening fruit. That is, now that his physique is high, his appetite is good, and his digestion is fast, otherwise this pot of fruits would be able to make him eat and vomit. Zhang Fan ate them one by one. About 100 or so of them were eaten and the surprise came. Ding! Physique strengthening upgraded to 5 stars, combined physique plus 130, for star physique enhancement, which only increases physique by 80, upgraded to 5 stars. It actually skyrocketed to 130. Zhang Fan immediately opened the attribute panel frowny face host, Zhang Fan, combined physical fitness, 141, average of average adults 10, will, 120, average of 10 for an average adult, comprehensive physical fitness 141. It's over 100. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. And suddenly, he only felt a surge of qi and blood in his body, as if he had broken some barrier. His body was completely remodeled by an invisible force. After a few minutes, he looked at his skin with surprise, smooth and tender as a baby, even every hair was perfect. In perception, the bones within were warm and jade-like, emitting a bright white light. Every breath seems to draw on the essence of heaven and earth. No, it really draws on the essence of heaven and earth. Zhang Fan clearly saw that his current self, even if he didn't run the nameless breathing technique, every time he took an ordinary breath, he was able to inhale a large amount of qi particles into his body. Isn't that practicing breathing techniques every now and then? In other words, every time you breathe, you're getting stronger. Although the speed of absorbing qi particles was nowhere near as fast as actively running the nameless breathing technique, it was 24 hours of uninterrupted cultivation. With a physique of one now, even if he didn't use his qi and blood explosion, he could crush Zhang Zilin purely by relying on his physical strength. Zhang Fan didn't test it, but continued to eat the two-star physique strengthening fruit. After his comprehensive physique exceeded 100, his digestive ability was also strengthened tremendously. As long as he wanted to, he could actively control his stomach to wriggle rapidly, quickly digesting the large amount of exotic fruits he had just eaten. Then free up your stomach and keep eating. One, two, three. Finally, Jiang Fan heard a pleasant beep frowny face ding. Physique strengthening upgraded to six stars. Combined physique plus 200. Combined physical fitness plus 200. The panel value has reached a terrifying 211. Zhang Fan was pleasantly surprised. That's too strong. If another 500% qi and blood burst was used, then the combined physique value would skyrocket to an unimaginable 1055. A combined physique of over a thousand would be such a terrifying battle power. TSK, TSK, there's a numerical beauty to it. Zhang Fan couldn't wait to find an opponent to test it out on. Just then, a group of people broke into his sensory range. The leader was a man in full iron armor holding a huge axe all the way to the bottom of the Pearl of the Demon Sea. Chapter 107, The Alien Squad with the Combined Effect of Perception and the Light of the Mind. Zhang Fan was able to feel out the enemy's situation from afar. This squad of two or thirty people actually had six Xenos. The one with the brightest glow was the lead ironclad man with three powers. In addition to the very obvious body iron armor, the other abilities seemed to be physique and endurance related. And there was another one that Zhang Fan had never seen and didn't know what it was. The second was the middle-aged man sitting on the metal plate. This man actually has four powers. His will bubble was very strong. Almost as strong as who lays before him. Apparently, the man also has will-type abilities. Other than that, there were two other supernatural light clusters. Neither of which Jiang Fan had ever seen before and couldn't guess what they were. The last ability Jiang Fan was very familiar with. Physical strengthening. Jiang Fan frowned slightly. It looks like the probability of the growth of the physique strengthening fruit is higher. 
I've seen three of them. Aside from the two, there was the more unusual female officer holding a string of metal plates. Even though the light on her body wasn't very bright, the will bubble was a cut above ordinary. Another will o the wisp alien? Jiang Fan felt strange. Will type powers appeared too often, didn't they? In addition to this will type ability, the female officer has an obvious one, she can levitate a string of metal plates. It's about an alien ability that controls gravity or something like that. Jiang Fan secretly analyzed. The female officer was able to hold and easily walk around a dozen or so hovering metal plates by herself, and they were transporting heavy supplies and personnel on top of them. It's a transportation godsend. Of course, it was still too far from Jiang Fan's carry-on space. The other three Xenos are ordinary human soldiers. The glow on their bodies was general, and their powers varied, and were about nothing particularly powerful. Right at this moment, Jiang Fan suddenly realized that a faint red light suddenly appeared within 50 meters of his perception, then flickered away again. Jiang Fan was startled and hurriedly took a closer look, only to realize that it was a huge bat. The glow on the bats is very blurry and changes from time to time, blending in with the background and making it almost impossible to see unless you look closely. This was the first time that Jiang Fan had found an extraordinary ability that could be concealed from perception. It wasn't until the bat was only 20 meters away from Jiang Fan's that it became completely invisible in perception. Jiang Fan was secretly on guard. Turns out perception isn't everything. The bat flew into the hall through a rotten hole in one of the windows, then transformed into a soldier and landed on the floor. I can't believe he's a shifter too. No way. This team is too powerful. It's still fully configured. With reconnaissance, support, primary offense, and a bunch of hit and run soldiers. Jiang Fan decided not to take any chances and immediately put away the table, his body vaporizing and sinking into the ground, he dived deep, stopping only at a depth of about 30 meters from the surface, observing the group in silence, if they were just passing through, Jiang Fan would let them go, if they were prepared to climb the pearl of the demon sea, then only then would Jiang Fan consider making a move, Batman examined the room and quickly spotted the marks on the floor where the table legs had crushed out, he sniffed, and there was still a smell of roasted meat remaining in the air. The smell of Jiang Fan's roasted meat from eating mutated frogs. Batman was immediately alert. Someone was here not long ago, he hurriedly said in his headset, report. Survivor sightings observed. Zhou Tao immediately raised his fist and everyone was on alert, all alert. Go to four men and assist big eyes in checking it out. Yes, the four soldiers left the group and walked into the deep red mist. Silence returned to the surroundings. All that was left was the constant chirping of insects. The crowd protected Guo Changting and Kong Yongjian in the very center. The atmosphere was tense. The red mist around them seemed to hide endless dangers. Every time you see a survivor, it may not be a good thing. Kong Yongjian was also nervous in his mind. He's got the most power in the crowd. But that may not be the case when facing a hidden enemy. Maybe they'll get cunt in one fell swoop and won't have a chance to talk at all. Luckily, Wu Jun's reply came in a short while report. Clear. All rooms checked. Survivors have left. The crowd breathed a sigh of relief. Zhou Tao took the lead and led the crowd into the deserted hall of the Pearl of the Magic Sea. The ground is covered with all kinds of plants. Two soldiers waited at the door and led the crowd to the room where Jiang Fan had stayed. Zhou Tao looked at the traces on the ground and said calmly of this survivor has left. Group up for alert. Everyone else take a 15 minute break to recharge. Then start up the stairs. The crowd was much more relaxed when they came into the safer room. In an indoor environment, you only need to guard the doors and windows to stay safe. It's nothing like the wilderness where enemies or mutated animals can appear on all sides. A soldier began to treat the wounded with his powers. A man brought in by Kong Yongjian had a cut on his cheek from a bush. Another soldier was even worse. His calf had been bitten by a cockroach the size of a shoe sole. And the wound stank. He grimaced in pain and tensed to brother Wang. Can it be saved? Alien medic Wang how observed and said easily, it's okay. It's not poisoned. The soldier was instantly relaxed. Wang Hao took out a bottle of alcohol to clean the wound and a few anti-inflammatory pills in his palm. A flash of light. Alcohol and anti-inflammatory pills give off a greenish glow. The potency of the medicine was enhanced several times, enough to deal with these superficial wounds. After Wang Hao treated the two injured players, the atmosphere of the team relaxed a lot. The fact that this team was able to trek long distances in the dense forest without any attrition was a credit to the alien military Dr. Wang Hao. Of course, Li Qingyu's ability to carry supplies was also important. As strong as Wang Hao's psychic ability was, he had to rely on Li Qingyu to transport large amounts of medicinal agents. On top of that, there's Wu Jun, who's in charge of scouting, using the bat's ultrasonic detection ability to spot threats ahead of time and escort the team. Zhou Tao is even more central, and any danger he can't solve ends up with him using violence. For the average survivor, a dense forest of crises, 
It's just a little dangerous and exhausting for this well-matched squad of shifters. So far, the mutated animals and survivors hadn't posed as much of a threat to the squad as the red mist that obscured their vision. Kung Winkin started to make a cliched speech again, comrades, brothers, we have arrived at the Pearl of the Magic Sea, and today's mission went very well. However, some problems were exposed during the previous operation. I will briefly emphasize a few keys. First, we need to strengthen communication and unify our thoughts. Soon, the crowd's morale was once again boosted with confidence in accomplishing the mission. The crowd was no longer worried about the survivor sighting from earlier. We have such a strong team and such great leadership. What difficulties can't we overcome? Under Director Kong's leadership, we can defeat any enemy. Chapter 108 Why do it the hard way when you can shoot black? Li Qingyu, ostracized by the crowd, was at odds with the frenzied atmosphere. She went to the corner alone, eating a compressed cookie in solitude and watching it all with worry. Li Qingyu was deeply worried. Gushan Yu could really deal with Kong Yongjian? Unless she killed Kong Yongjian as soon as they met. She doubted that Gushan Yu would be persuaded once she gave Kong Yongjian the chance to speak. Kong Yongjian's ability is too evil. By the way, why wouldn't I be persuaded? What's so special about me? Jiang Fan, who was underground, also frowned. He noticed something was very wrong with the group. Why is it that when that dead fatso speaks, this group of people act like they're on drugs? Immediately afterward, Jiang Fan discovered some clues. As that middle-aged short and fat man gave his speech, an invisible ripple of will spread out from his bubble of will. This invisible ripple, as if it were an ocean wave, washed the other's will bubbles away. Only the female alien had a stronger bubble of will and seemed unaffected. The middle-aged short fat man raised his fist. The crowd excitedly waved their fists alone, even as their cheeks turned red with excitement. Jiang Fan was secretly chilled is this a foolish plus berserk aura? What this ability can do in a group is simply unimaginable. Jiang Fan stood quietly underground, coldly monitoring the group's movements. Fifteen minutes later, the crowd began to pack up and get ready for action. That Batman was the first to turn into a bat and start scouting for a way to climb the Pearl of the Magic Sea. Jiang Fan's eyes narrowed to there's a way to heaven and you're not going. Soon, the crowd realized that the stairs and elevator were actually blocked. There are survivors up there. The atmosphere was once again oppressive. The crowd looked up the elevator shaft in unison. It's so jammed up. You can't see anything. Kong Yong Jin frowned how are they going to get down here to gather supplies when the people up there are blocking the downstairs. The crowd was a little confused. Zhou Tao calmly analyzed perhaps the number of people upstairs should be very small. Two or three at most. Maybe even just one. They had gathered a large amount of supplies by some means. And thinking they could live up there long enough to hold out until the state rescued them. They sealed off the downstairs. This explanation is a bit forced. Where were there so many supplies for people to collect after the red mist descended? What collection of supplies hasn't been a bloodbath? Li Qingyu suddenly said is it possible that the survivor from earlier is the one upstairs? That person has already realized we're coming. The crowd didn't want to ignore her. But what Li Qingyu said made sense. But that doesn't explain how the people up there came down. Wu Jun scratched his head well. I think that the survivor upstairs should be able to fly as well. He could fly down and gather supplies. The crowd was instantly enlightened. Right. If Wu Jun can fly, why can't others? It makes a lot more sense when you explain it that way. Zhou Tao also put down his heart. Generally speaking, ordinary survivors can only find one alien fruit. If that survivor's ability is to fly, then the fight is not enough to be feared. Wu Jun is just that. Top-notch scouting and basically negligible when it comes to fighting. The crowd understood this and the atmosphere lightened up. Now that you know what your opponent is capable of, the pressure is much less. Kong Yongjin smiled the shifter who can fly is still useful. If he shows himself, Colonel Zhou don't be in a hurry to kill him, as long as you can catch him, I'm sure I can convince him to become our comrade. Zhou Tao nodded smilingly, don't worry, Director Kong, leave it to me. Army Dr. Wang Hao relaxed and laughed, Colonel Zhou you can be gentle, don't pinch him to death, ha ha ha, let's get started. Only Li Qingyu was vaguely worried in her heart, did you guys notice that the thing blocking the elevator shaft is a little out of place? Kong Yongjian waved his hand, what's not normal, it's just a bunch of crap, let's go, yes. The crowd immediately took action. Li Qingyu glanced helplessly at the clutter in the elevator shaft. She seemed to see what appeared to be a twisted SUV crushed in a pile of trash. What in the world is the ability to shove a car down an elevator shaft? Zhou Tao checked the stairs once again, and after determining that the stairs were truly impassable, he led the people outdoors and walked over to the towering and thick support of the Pearl of the Magic Sea. Blocking the stairs can only block one section. I don't believe they can block all the stairs for several hundred meters. Big guy. You fly up first, find a staircase window and fly in. See where the blockage is and report back. Yes, 
Wu Jun transformed into a bat and disappeared into the red mist. A short while later, a reply came over the headset report. Only 20 meters blocked. The crowd rejoiced. Zhou Tao laughed to release the rope and let me go up first. Everyone else stay put and keep watch. A rope was quickly released. Zhou Tao grabbed the rope and ordered a Major Li. Give me a hand. Good. Li Qingyu grabbed a corner of the rope. Ability to launch. Zhou Tao, who was covered in metal armor, felt his body lighten up, barely feeling his weight, and he flew up in a blur of miso. Zhang Fan on the ground floor frowned at the cooperation of the crowd, and he had to admit that he still thought it was simple. The era of the shifter is completely different from the past. This kind of defense could only block ordinary people, and many exalts could easily crack it. But, Zhang Fan sneered at the corner of his mouth. You have powers and I don't? Since you're planning to go upstairs, go to hell. Zhang Fan quickly ascended towards the ground and came to a place 50 meters away from the crowd and found a large tree to climb up. He found a thick horizontal branch and pulled out his sniper rifle. First, he picked off a snake disguised as a dead branch with his muzzle, and then sat down firmly on the trunk of the tree. To others, the red mist that obscured their sight became Zhang Fan's perfect protection at the moment. The group didn't even notice Zhang Fan 50 meters away. While Zhang Fan's perception was clear, the crowd was very clear. Being able to shoot in the dark is a fool's errand to go head on hard. The corner of Zhang Fan's mouth rose slightly as he raised his sniper rifle and aimed deep into the red mist. Zhou Tao quickly climbed into the window and after confirming that there was no danger inside, he let Wu Jun climb another 50 meters upwards to keep watch. Himself, he radioed orders down below, all is well. It's safe here. Come on up here. All of you. The crowd below was delighted. Several soldiers broke a sheet of metal into dozens of bits of metal and strapped them to each of the people. Surrounded by the crowd, Kong Yongjian was the first to grab the rope. Li Qingyu grabbed the rope to activate her ability. Kong Yongjian felt the metal lose gravity and pull itself upwards. There's a lot of pull. It even pulled his body into floating. Kong Yongjian barely had to exert any effort. He just needed to grab the rope and pull it to move upwards. The crowd cheered on Kong Yongjian. Director Kong is awesome. Director Kong is as majestic as ever. Kong Yongjian dejectedly climbed up and halfway up suddenly heard a roar. Bang. At the same time, the chest shook. Kong Yongjian looked incredulously at his chest, where a huge bloody hole had actually appeared. How did I? How did I die here? I'm not happy about it. I'm clearly the man who wants to be king of the world. Kong Yongjian's consciousness fell into darkness. His hands powerlessly fell off the ropes, and his body fell. Chapter 109, Strong Killing. Poof. Kong Yongjian's body fell heavily to the ground. Everyone on the ground was instantly stunned. All wooden in place, Director Kong is actually dead? Who shot Black? Bastard. I can't believe I killed Director Kong. Li Qingyu was first shocked, followed by ecstasy. Good death. The guy's finally dead. Since Kong Yongjian was killed by climbing to about 10 meters, Zhou Tao simply could not see what was happening below. And he anxiously stuck his head out of the window and shouted down below, who fired the shot? Who fired the shot? Bang. A bullet hit him squarely in the head. Sparks flying. The bullet was deflected by the armor and bounced away. Dang. Zhou Tao was startled and hurriedly armored his face to protect his entire body. The bottom cried out in alarm and anger, Major Zhou be careful. There's a sniper. Director Kong is dead. Zhang Fan frowned this guy's armor is so hard? Why is it like a king's shell? If you can't kill, kill someone else first. Bang. Another soldier suddenly splattered blood from his neck and fell to the ground on his back without a word. The immense power of the sniper rifle had directly broken his neck in two, with only a sliver of skin connecting his head to his body. Blood splattered everywhere. The crowd was terrified and could no longer care about grieving the death of Kong Yongjin or run. Don't run. He can see us. Take cover. Take cover. Get down. Li Qingyu was the first to hide behind the steel frame. Shivering. The deaths of Kong Yongjin and the soldier exposed Zhang Fan's approximate location. Most people know to hide behind their backs. The few that were slow-witted found a random tree to hide under. And ended up leaving their backs to Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan was not going to be polite. Bang. Bang. A round of bullets is like the scythe of death. Reaping lives. Jiang Fan coldly fired his gun. Priority is given to the altered. There's no reasoning in the end times. Since you've crashed into my house, consider yourselves unlucky. Backed by his talent for precision and perception, he didn't miss a single shot. All of them were right on the mark, hitting whoever died. Even people hiding behind some not-so-thick trees were killed by sniper fire through the trees. In just half a minute, ten people were dead. The crowd was going crazy with fear holding their heads and hiding in various hidden positions. They were all in positions where Zhang Fan was not good at shooting. In a hurry, Zhou Tao covered his body with iron armor and directly jumped down from more than 20 meters. Boom! He landed heavily on the ground, shocking his feet even with his physique. As soon as he hit the ground, 
he saw a body strewn about. The soldiers who had followed him here along the way were dead, and even the military Dr. Wang Hao died tragically on the spot. Asshole. I'm going to kill you. Zhou Tao was furious, quickly discerning the direction of the gunshots and rushed straight over. Jiang Fan was razor sharp. Unwillingness to take a risk is unwillingness to take a risk. Now that we've done it, we have to cut off the roots. Nine times out of ten, the other party has guessed that they live up there, so they can't hide. They have to kill them all. Zhang Fan threw the sniper rifle into his carry-on space and took out a huge wall-smashing hammer. Come on, iron bastard, try to get tough with me. The chi and blood erupted. 200% Zhang Fan only felt his body strength skyrocket as he looked at Zhou Tao's position and jumped straight down. The hammer was like a bolt of black lightning as it flew towards Zhou Tao. Die for the master. Zhou Tao wasn't sure of Zhang Fan's position and just rushed in the general direction. Suddenly, a bad wind came from overhead. Extremely fast. There's no hiding. Zhou Tao was shocked and hastily raised his hands in hard resistance. Duong. The hammer slammed heavily on his hands. Zhang Fan's body was also rebounded into midair. Zhou Tao's armor perfectly apportioned the force, transferring most of the huge force into the ground beneath his feet. However, even if a small amount of power seeped into Zhou Tao's body, it was not something he could withstand. Zhang Fan's combined physique of up to 211. 200% reinforcement was 633. Zhou Tao only felt a sharp pain in his hands as if he was hit by a train, followed by a huge force into his body, and the tremendous vibration shook him to the point of dizziness and blackness. Pust. A mouthful of blood spurted out and was blocked by the armor, covering his mouth and nose, so he couldn't breathe at all. He hurriedly lifted the armor from his mouth and nose and coughed violently. Ahem. After Zhang Fan's comprehensive physique was strengthened to 633, his reaction speed was also increased to an unimaginable degree. As soon as he saw the opportunity and couldn't attack the enemy with his hands and feet in his haste, he immediately unleashed his powers. Condensation. A large mass of water instantly covered Zhou Tao's mouth and nose. Zhou Tao lifted his armor just to spit out blood and take a breath. And as a result, a sudden ball of water came to his face, and he inhaled a large mouthful. Zhou Tao's eyes reddened. Ahem. Choking and coughing violently. Zhang Fan was not forgiving and landed on the ground, followed by another horizontal hammer that exploded onto Zhou Tao's abdomen. Duong. Pust. Zhou Tao sprayed blood and flew out backwards, hard enough to break two large trees. This iron bastard is so hard, Zhang Fan said in his heart, and as soon as he landed on the ground, he exploded, Chi, with all his might. A ghostly maneuver, following Zhou Tao's body as he rushed forward. Zhang Fan's body cut through a bolt of lightning as he raised his hammer high and smashed it down. Bellowing, die. Zhou Tao was shocked, and while in severe pain, he also knew that he absolutely could not carry this hammer. The armor wasn't much of a problem yet, but the body couldn't carry it anymore. This enemy is almost like a humanoid Tyrannosaurus Rex. He was in midair, struggling to extend a hand to aim at Zhang Fan. His third psychic ability. Unleashed. Click. Zhang Fan was instantly frozen in a large pile of ice. Unable to move. Zhou Tao finally sighed in relief and anger, I'm going to kill you. He took a few quick breaths to adjust his breathing. He knew that the ice he had created was so strong that an enemy trapped in it never escaped. Ah Li. Zhou Tao stared at the scene in front of him with wide eyes. The enemy had come out of the ice in a dignified manner, as if it were an illusory shadow. Zhou Tao looked dumbfounded. Zhang Fan shut down the vaporization as soon as he got out of the ice. Mental shock. A terrifying mental storm swept over Zhou Tao's body. His whole body was bad. As if he'd been through the night, his face went quickly pale. Immediately after that, poof, a mouthful of blood spurted out. Regardless of how difficult it was, he immediately forced the dressing iron armor to close. This enemy is horrible. Then came the most frightening sight of all, as the enemy darted out a hand reaching for his body. And the hand, through the gauntlet, large hands grabbed his heart and squeezed it heavily. Zhou Tao's face went gray for a while up. Blood spurted out, collapsed to the ground, no longer responsive. Chapter 110 Academician was inference. Wu Jun heard Zhou Tao's screams and hurriedly shouted in his headset, Colonel Chow. Colonel Chow. Zhou Tao didn't respond for a long time. Wu Jun knew something was wrong and shouted over the radio an alarm everyone run. The enemy is too strong. Bang. 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 The gunshots resumed. One after the other. The radio channels were screaming. Run. The enemy can see far even in the red mist. Don't hide. He's coming after us. He's coming after us. Ah. Don't. Don't kill me. I. Help. Wu Jun's scalp was numb. He didn't even dare to come any closer. His fighting ability was similar to most soldiers. Going over now was just sending food. He turned into a bat while activating his stash ability and quietly flew towards the location where Zhou Tao had last screamed miserably. Soon, Wu Jun found Zhou Tao's body. 
Zhou Tao's seven orifices bled and his eyes glared roundly, as if he had seen some terrifying existence. The iron armor that covered the surface of Zhou Tao's body was cracked and dull about the cause of his death. In particular, the two pieces of armor on the forearms of both hands were twisted and deformed, concave down a large section. There was also a sledgehammer thrown on the ground, its hard head smashed and deformed. Colonel Cho, Wu Jun screamed sadly, took off Zhou Tao's identity card and clutched it tightly in his hand, and picked up the hammer again and flew away hurriedly. Red mist, Guo Chanting and Li Qingyu's minds went blank. In just a few minutes, all of their teammates were all dead. Even the physically powerful Zhou Tao and the invincible mouth breather Kong Yong Jian are dead. Snap, snap. Footsteps came from the depths of the red mist. The two men looked over in horror. A handsome young man stepped over the pool of blood. Coldly, Li Qingyu shuddered. You, you, who the hell are you? Jiang Fan looked at the female officer and said blandly, it looks like you haven't figured out what's going on right now. Now shut up and I'll ask you to answer. A system alert popped up, Li Qingyu, age, 28, quality, 8. 5 points, valiant, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 8. 5 points, ding. Meet the system requirements. If it wasn't for Li Qingyu meeting the system requirements, Jiang Fan would have killed her long ago. He wasn't going to leave a hostile alien behind out of the kindness of his heart. But if he could obtain the other party's ability, Jiang Fan was willing to take a risk. Li Qingyu's will and ability to control the metal plate made Jiang Fan very moved. Jiang Fan said, walking forward and reaching out to take down the matching gun on Li Qingyu's waist. Li Qingyu was trembling, not daring to resist at all. Snap! Jiang Fan loaded the bullet and aimed it at the silent Guo Changting, and who are you? He had just realized that the group was vaguely protecting this person even as they fled. Guo Changting was startled lad. Don't be impulsive. Li Qingyu hurriedly said, don't kill academician Guo. He's an academician. An academician in the field of biology. Our country's leader in the field of biology. Only academician Guo can possibly end this evolutionary apocalypse. It's the hope of mankind. Academician? Jiang Fan frowned slightly. Just then, he sensed that the Batman flew over to Zhou Tao's corpse and seemed to be examining something. But Jiang Fan pretended not to see it. The group's clothing was similar to those of the TV base. And in all likelihood, they were also from the TV base. Jiang Fan had already formed a feud with the other party. And since this was the case, he would not stop. But there were too many alterans in the base. And Jiang Fan didn't dare to rush in. Letting a bat go back, the enemy would naturally send someone to retaliate. And as long as those aberrants left the base, Jiang Fan would have a huge advantage. The red mist that obscured his vision was naturally Jiang Fan's home turf. Jiang Fan, watched, the bats fly away. Not anxious at all. And sat down in a good mood academician Guo. Do you think this apocalypse is of a natural disaster or man-made? Ha! Huh? Guo Changting froze. He didn't expect that this young man would still be able to calmly ask himself questions amidst the pile of corpses after killing a bunch of people. People like that are born for chaos. Li Qingyu's heart was overwhelmed with fear. Jiang Fan casually took out two bottles of pure water from space and handed them to the two. Smiling, don't be nervous. It's useless to be nervous anyway, right? Here, take a sip of water and speak slowly. Guo Changting was just an ordinary person. Old and weak. No threat to Jiang Fan. Li Qingyu has a total of two abilities. One capability is a transportation-based auxiliary capability. The other ability was 9 times out of 10 will type. And Jiang Fan was most afraid of will type powers. Coupled with the perspective effect of perception. These two were no threat to Jiang Fan at all. Only then could Jiang Fan calmly talk to Guo Changting. Guo Changting had trouble understanding how this man could be so calm in the red mist. But he still organized his thoughts and said, I'm inclined to think it's man-made. Jiang Fan asked curiously, oh, why? At that moment, a huge black cat scurried out and plopped down on a tree branch to look at the three. Li Qingyu and Guo Changting's breathing stopped. Jiang Fan just gave it a faint look. This cat had no psychic ability, and its physical brightness was far less than his own. So Jiang Fan had full certainty that he would beat it into a pig's head. So he casually said, it's okay, it's just a cat, leave him alone. Li Qingyu said fearfully, let's, can we find a room to talk? It's too dangerous out there. Without the protection of Zhou Tao and the soldiers, the dense forest was extremely treacherous for Li Qingyu. Jiang Fan smiled and said there's no rush. If what he says doesn't satisfy me, I'll just throw your corpses here so I don't get a room full of blood. Come on, Academician Guo, go on. Li Qingyu shivered. She didn't feel the other woman was intimidating her, because the other guy just killed a bunch of people. Guo Changting also turned pale and hurriedly said, I'm extrapolating from the effects of the various powers. Jiang Fan asked, oh, how do you deduce that? Guo Changting quickly said, because so far, all of the effects I've seen on my powers have been favorable to myself. In fact, true biological evolution is random mutation. And 99, 
99% of all mutations are harmful to individual organisms, only a very few lucky ones can acquire mutations that are beneficial to them, thus giving them an advantage in the competition for survival and a better chance of reproducing and passing on the beneficial mutations. When we look at it on large timescales, this is beneficial evolution. In reality, evolution is the accumulation of the tired bones of individual organisms, whereas psychic powers are completely different. Let's put aside the question of why psychic fruits can trigger biological mutations and gain abilities of all shapes and sizes. The most crucial suspicion is that all alien powers are actually beneficial. So, I'm pretty convinced that this is a man-made, intentionally triggered disaster. Li Qingyu was dumbfounded. She hadn't thought about it that way in all the time she'd been using her powers. So it's man-made ah. Jiang Fan sighed. He had also been vaguely feeling that this red mist was not innocent. Only can not do Gui Chongting so reasonable inference. Just pure speculation. Being able to analyze useful information from such sparse intelligence. Academics still have two things going for them. Jiang Fan asked again, do you think it's the work of humans themselves? Or some kind of sentient, unknown intelligent being? Chapter 111, Academician Guo. Do you want to keep your body intact? Guo Changting said with certainty, it must not be done by humans. I know the level of biotechnology in every country around the globe very well. And the red mist and evolution are definitely not something modern human technology can do. So, I think the red mist is the work of aliens. Aliens? Li Qingyu felt so ridiculous that she couldn't even care less about being scared and retorted Academician Guo. Where are the aliens you mentioned? How come I haven't seen one? Guo Changting sighed, an intelligent race that can cross the vast expanse of stars to come to Earth. When they want to be invisible, why should they let you discover them? Just like when we set up cameras in the field to observe wild animals. Can the wild animals discover humans? Even if the camera is placed in front of the wildlife, they don't even understand what it is. Jiang Fan nodded approvingly, that's a good point. I can't even be bothered to kill you. Ah, Guo Changting stalled. Jiang Fan pondered for a moment and said why don't you work with me from now on? Guo Changting hurriedly said in order to survive, sir. No problem. Jiang Fan, however, saw that the red light on Guo Changting's body was so dazzling that there wasn't even a hint of yellow light. Jiang Fan was speechless academician Guo. Your heart is not sincere. Guo Changting waved his hand in alarm and said, no, no, sir, don't get any ideas. I'd really like to work for you. Unfortunately, the red light on him couldn't fool anyone. Jiang Fan was disappointed and added, why don't you think about it a little more carefully? And I can offer you a superior research package. And even get you a group of researchers to assist you. Guo Changting was on the verge of crying. No problem. Absolutely no problem. I'll study whatever you want me to say. Really? I won't lie to you. Unfortunately, it's still red as hell. Jiang Fan sighed. Do you want to stay alive? Ha! Huh? Guo Changting's heart snapped. And just as he tried to speak, a line of blood appeared on his neck. Jiang Fan shook off the dagger blood. Old thing. It's quite insidious. Poof. Guo Chanting's body flopped to the ground. Li Qingyu's mind went blank. The academician bigwig he worked so hard to save is just gone? She glared at Jiang Fan sadly. You personally destroyed the hope of human civilization. You are the sinner of the entire human race. Jiang Fan grabbed her hair and pulled it in front of him, glaring at her word for word of first of all. The sinners of mankind are the red mist makers, and have nothing to do with the old man. Secondly, Guo Changting himself said that a species that can cross the vast expanse of stars to earth is not something that human technology can handle. Since he can't solve the problem, what's the point of me keeping him? In the face of an unknown and mysterious enemy, Jiang Fan was more willing to trust his own system than Guo Changting in human technology. Finally, Jiang Fan violently pressed Li Qingyu's face into the dirt, how the fuck do you talk to me when you're my prisoner? Li Qingyu struggled and coughed, cough cough. Get off me. Humph. Jiang Fan snorted coldly and tore open the portal carrying Li Qingyu inside. In the blink of an eye, he was several hundred meters into the capsule. Jiang Fan threw Li Qingyu to the ground. A group of women gathered around and asked curiously, is this a new sister too? It's actually an officer. Ha! Huh? She's so skinny. She's probably starving. It's kinda pretty. Oh, can Jiang look at it if it's not pretty? Li Qingyu looked around in confusion. Gleaming floors, beautiful healthy women, neat rooms, tables filled with good food. It took her back to civilization in a trance. This, 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 Jiang Fan clapped his hands in disgust. Li Qingyu hadn't taken a bath after trekking in the dense forest for so long. Her body and hair were covered in unpleasant odors. The grease on the skin is also off-putting. He pointed at Tang Shuayang and Hu Lili, you two take Li Qingyu to the bath and rub her well. If she's not honest, don't be polite and beat her hard. Tang Shuero and Hu Lili both had physique-strengthening abilities, and their physical qualities were far stronger than ordinary women. Li Qingyu wasn't capable of resisting at all. Tang Shuelawa said knowingly, wash and send to your room? Jiang Fan nodded, well, 
I'll be there after dinner. No, Li Qingyu screamed as she finally realized what was going to happen to her, let go of me. You're being ridiculous. Snap. Jiang Fan unceremoniously slapped her, knocking her senseless. Su Mengqian snorted. Experienced brother Jiang. Beat him hard and he'll be honest. She had taken it herself and knew Jiang Fan's tactics with women. If you are honest and obedient, then you will never be abused. But if one dares to resist, that's not good enough. Jiang Fan was never soft when it came to killing women, not to mention a beating. Li Qingyu still wanted to struggle, only to realize that the two beauties beside her were incredibly strong, and she was soon pressed so hard that she couldn't move. She said in shock, You, you, you have powers too? Tang Shuelua just grimaced. Foolily, however, dejectedly said it, every woman here has more than one psychic ability. Ha! Huh? Li Qingyu was stunned. The crowd gathered around, giggling and watching. They're safe here, but they're also bored. It's also tiring to hook up with other women every day. Every time a new sister comes along, everyone gets a new talking point and buzz for a while. Zheng Zilin was familiarizing herself with the environment in the base, and also wanted to see how the three survivors she had brought with her, Li Lingling, Lin Tian, and Wang Janua, were doing in their lives. She skipped around the base, and everywhere she went, soldiers and shifters were courteous. The legend of a beautiful dual alien who came yesterday and knocked out Major General Jia with one punch has already spread. Everyone knew that Zhang Zilin had obtained the new alien fruit and was about to become a class A alien and be promoted to Major General. Everyone wanted to suck up to the new star of the base. Zhang Zilin came to the area where ordinary survivors live and work. There were significantly fewer lights around, and the tunnels were so dim that you could only barely see your way through. The survivors passing by were dressed in gray coveralls, all pale and numb eyed, moving in mass in single file followed by soldiers with real guns, staring at them warily. Zhang Zilin's beautiful eyes crinkled. Looks like there's less than harmonious relations between shifters, soldiers and ordinary survivors. Shortly afterward, she met a blue-clad supervisor and asked, I'm looking for three survivors. Li Lingling, Lin Tian and Wang Janua. They came with me. Can you tell me where they live? The blue-clothed supervisor immediately recognized Zhang Zilin and fawned, Good day Major General Zhang. I'm Hu Dawei, the deputy supervisor of the engineering team. It's a coincidence that you asked. Wang Janua is in our engineering team and Lin Tian is in the handyman team. Handyman? Zhang Zilin frowned, what about Li Lingling? Hu Dawei compensated with a smile, oh, she violated the rules by attempting to assault a guard and has been shot. Shooting. Zhang Zilin's eyes widened in disbelief, Li Lingling is dead? Chapter 112, The Truth About Base Survivors Hu Dawei said smilingly, this is Director Ji's ironclad order. Any survivor who tries to attack the guards will be shot immediately. Of course. Director Go has no choice but to use the law in a chaotic world. With so many survivors and so little supplies, if there were no rules, the base would have been in chaos. I support Director Ge's order with both hands. Zhang Zilin silently clenched her fists. He had gone through so much effort to bring Li Lingling to the base with great difficulty, and he had thought that she would be able to obtain a stable life. Results. Dead. David whose words. What with his hands up in support. Fart. Zhang Zilin wasn't a three-year-old child. She had also worked in the police department for a while and was used to seeing this kind of old man. Of course you damn well support it. You have a vested interest. It's true that chaos is used in the world. And that's for thugs. Since survivors join the base, they are people who aspire to order. How can they just be shot? Zhang Zilin's heart chilled. And for the first time, she felt that she was right or wrong to bring the survivors to the base. So all those people who died along the way, didn't they die in vain? Moreover, all these people came here because they listened to themselves. So wouldn't they become accomplices? Hu Dawei was secretly worried when he saw Zhang Zilin's expression was not right. Is Li Lingling related to Zhang Zilin? Major General Zhang. Li Lingling is with you you. Zhang Zilin shook her head. It doesn't matter much. Hu Dawei was relieved. He was disdainful in his heart. And he estimated that it was Zhang Zilin who came over with Li Lingling. And suddenly heard that Li Lingling had been shot. And his heart and mind were shocked. Women are just indecisive. Hu Dawei sighed in a fake manner alas. Major General Zhang, don't be too sad. There are no rules. Li Lingling just entered the base and dared to try to attack the guards. What will she do after a long time? I don't even dare to think about it. That woman is naturally an undisciplined person. Staying at the base is also a scourge. Zhang Zilin frowned as she listened and said coldly, take me to see Lin Tian and Wang Janua. Hu Dawei immediately knew that he had said the wrong thing and hurriedly shut up. Not wanting to upset Zhang Zilin, he found an excuse and ran away. Slick. Zhang Zilin grunted. If you won't take me, I'll find it myself. Zhang Zilin checked out the survivor area. She saw batches of gray-clad survivors. And the more she saw, the more alarmed she became. All of them were malnourished, yellow and thin-looking, 
and had obviously eaten poorly, and his mental color was poor, and his face wore a heavy look of exhaustion. At that moment, a group of greyclothed survivors walked by, carrying a strong stench and a look of life and death. Zhang Zilin suddenly saw that there was an acquaintance in the group, and it turned out to be Lin Tian. After not seeing him for just one day, Lin Tian, who was originally quite clean and handsome, now had a pudgy, dead face. Zhang Zilin immediately called out, Lin Tian, Lin Tian. Lin Tian was dragging his heavy footsteps along when he suddenly heard Zhang Zilin's voice, looked up and was instantly overjoyed, and wailed, Sister Zhang, quickly save me, they mistreated me, they made me pull out a turd, made me work all night without rest, and had to eat, woo woo, Lin Tian remembered this night's hard work, aggravated, and bald with grief, he's new to the town, and not only do the soldiers and administrators oppress him, but even the old survivor handyman picks up and bullies him, he had to do the heaviest work, and was insulted by everyone, he hadn't suffered that since he was born, as the night passed, Lin Tian was exhausted, his body was like falling apart, he thought he could go back to rest, but he was assigned a new job, it had to be at least 4 hours of work, and Rin Tin's mind was broken, taking out a turd, eating, Zhang Zilin frowned, this was too outrageous to be believable on first hearing, the leader of the soldiers escorting the survivors saw Zhang Zilin and smiled with him, hello, Major General Chapter. How is it that everyone recognizes him or her and calls him or her major general? Zhang Zilin said helplessly, what's going on? Is he telling the truth? The soldier leader bristled, don't listen to this kid. It's for him to grow mutant capers. Stinky yes, but that stuff is their staple food. How can it be? Another mutant caper? Zhang Zilin frowned slightly. Looks like a lot of the survivors found out it's edible. In that case, the mission wasn't too outrageous. It's a bit of a stressful job, but there's no way around it. It's just the way life is right now. Base supplies are limited. And there's not much that Zhang Zilin can say. Zhang Zilin asked again, how many meals a day do they eat? What do they eat? The soldier leader laughed, how many more meals? Just one meal a day. Just eat mutated capers. The stuff is pretty nutritious anyway. It just tastes a bit nasty and has a terrible texture. Ha ha. The soldier let out a gloating laugh. Zhang Zilin said with difficulty, one meal? One meal for all that work? And if you're eating mutant capers all the time? Don't you have any other side dishes? Shouldn't there at least be compressed cookies? The soldier leader bristled, humph. These people of theirs, how do they deserve to eat compressed cookies? That's our food. The group of Greyclad survivors sniffed and waited hatefully for the soldier leader. The soldier leader immediately picked up his gun and glared, what are you looking at? Look again and gouge your eyes out. After saying that he kicked the nearest survivor, sending him screaming, stop, just say it, don't do it. Zheng Zilin immediately stopped the soldier and said angrily, they are also our compatriots. How can you deal with them like this? The soldier leader didn't dare to refute Zheng Zilin, but only cursed angrily in his heart. Damn it. What do you, a high-ranking officer, care about a bunch of trashy survivors? Don't you have nothing to do? It's fucking post-apocalyptic. End times no. We're lucky to be alive. What more can we ask for? Lin Tian was dragged away by two soldiers as he wailed. Zheng Zilin was at her wit's end. She couldn't snatch someone down by force, could she? That's so out of order. She had come here for the purpose of returning to the order, instead of breaking the rules here. She was convinced that only order could save everyone. Zhang Zilin searched for a while longer, but didn't find Wang Jianhua. But she saw more tragic things. Injured and sick survivors are not treated and are left in a room to fend for themselves. The work is not numb, and there are beatings and curses at every turn. And the soldier's favorite thing is to hit people with the butt of his rifle. And when he does it, he bruises a large part of his face, live like dogs, dozens of people in big bunks, hot and stuffy underground in the summer, barely able to sleep, it's not even a matter of eating mutant capers all the time, it doesn't matter if it's enough, Zhang Zilin had known for a long time that the base could be a big problem, but she didn't expect it to be this big, the whole base was now sitting on a powder keg, and the anger of the ordinary survivors towards the soldiers and the aliens was like dynamite, bound to explode sooner or later, Zhang Zilin remembered Gushan Yu's behavior again. He's dead set against recruiting more survivors. The heart became even angrier. People are suffering out there, and that's even. When you get to the base, you have to be exploited in layers. She left quickly with a cold face, deciding to go and have a good chat with Gushan Yu. This kind of world is never the kind of world I want. Chapter 113, Bureaucrats? No. Director Gray was blindsided by those below him. Zhang Zilin walked outside Gushan Yu's office and was stopped by a good-looking female secretary outside the door. Who said with a straight face, is Director Gray here? I'd like to talk to him. The female secretary, Chui Ru, stared jealously at Zhang Zilin's beautiful cheeks and coldly said, I'm sorry, you don't have an appointment. 
You can't enter. She instantly recognized the female shifter who had just entered the base. Both powerful and beautiful. It's so unfair. She had even heard that a few officers and aliens of not so low status had taken a liking to Zhang Zilin and were ready to start their pursuit. The more Trey thought about it, the angrier he became. Why should anything good come from this bitch? One can only guard that dead old man Gushanyu. Zhang Zilin frowned at the female soldier in front of her, who was emitting a piercing red light. The badge says Chui Ru. Zhang Zilin didn't know why Chui Ru was so hostile to herself, but still patiently said, Secretary Choi, then please inform me that I would like to see Director Gu as soon as possible. Sueru told the line, please check in here, and I can't promise you a specific time at the discretion of Director Gu. Zhang Zilin was secretly annoyed, but there was nothing she could do. The seventh rank official under the Chancellor's door. Zhang Zilin can't be messed with either a good. I'll register. Where? Chui Ru smiled and took out a visitor's application form, saying, right here. Write down the name, identity, and reason for the matter, and Director Gu will schedule the time according to the priority of different matters, basically ranging from 3 to 7 days. 3 to 7 days, Zhang Zilin almost didn't curse. She didn't want to wait a day. I'm in a hurry. Can you make it quick? Chui Ru saw Zhang Zilin's expression and was secretly pleased. I know you're in a hurry, but this kind of thing has to go through a process. The office director has to approve whether your matter is important or not. The director of the defense office has to review whether the visitors are safe. And finally director Gu himself has to circle the time of the interview. Director GE's work is very heavy. It's not possible for just anyone over a visit to immediately put down the work at hand. Right? Damn bureaucrats. The anger in Zhang Zilin's heart was almost uncontrollable. So she could only narrow her eyes and clench her fists hard. She wondered more and more if her choice to join the base was a mistake or not. This place was nothing like she had imagined. Not only do people fail to come together in the face of disaster, they fail to stand together against the dangers of the outside world. Instead, three hierarchical classes were formed. First, there was the ruling class of a group of high-ranking Xenos, high-ranking military officers, and high-ranking research and development personnel, led by Gu Shan Yu, followed by the middle cadre of ordinary aliens, soldiers, and ordinary R&D personnel. Lastly, there are the thousands of survivors who are at the bottom of the heap and living in extreme hardship. Chui Ru was not scared at all, but very excited to see Zhang Zilin's clenched white fists. What's wrong with a class A alien? If I don't let you in, you can't get in. What? How dare you make a move? Zhang Zilin endured and endured and finally endured, writing her application on the application form with an ironic face, that's okay, right? Sui Ru gracefully took the application form and glanced at it, where's the contact address? Write it down. Where else are we going to notify you? Zhang Zilin almost didn't explode. A small base with only a few thousand people in total. With all the high-level aliens living in a unified area. And you're asking me for a contact address? Zhang Zilin coldly wrote down her room number. Satisfied with this, Treya placed the application form at the bottom of the pile of papers and said, well, go back and wait for the announcement. Zhang Zilin angrily looked at the thick pile of documents. So many documents. When will it be her turn? She asked nicely, suppressing her temper. Would you please rush it for me? Chui Ru took out her nail clippers and sharpened her nails. Leisurely Egu. M.S. Zhang. You're making it difficult for me. I'm a small soldier. Where is my turn to speak on such a big matter? Zhang Zilin couldn't stand it and turned her head away. She walked to the door and didn't leave, but found a spot in the corner and waited. Waiting as a rule. Hell. I don't know when. It would be better to stand guard here and wait for a rabbit. As long as Gushan Yu went out, she would be able to stop the other party. Zhang Zilin waited for over an hour and saw a guard walk out, holding a stack of scrap paper and throwing it into the trash. The guard saw Zhang Zilin and hurriedly gestured, Major General Zhang. Hello? Zhang Zilin asked with a frown, will these documents be classified and not have to be shredded? The guards laughed, what's so secretive about it? It's just a visitor's application form written by some people who don't know what's important. The people who can really see Director Gu don't need to write these things, and the ones who write them can't even see them. Oh, what? Visitor application form. Zhang Zilin only felt a rush of hot blood to her head. She kicked over the garbage can and rummaged through the garbage despite the filth. The guard looked dumbfounded. And after a moment's tussle, he said, what are you looking for? Major General Zhang, that I can help you with? No need. Zhang Zilin grimaced. A short while later, she found the visitor's application form she had just written, and became furious. Zhang Zilin was filled with anger that could no longer be controlled and rushed straight into the room. Boom. She kicked the door wide open and the door to the room banged against the wall. Ah! Treya screamed in terror. The loud noise startled the guards. A group of aliens and soldiers immediately rushed in from next door. What's going on? Hands up! 
The aliens at the head of the group recognized Zheng Zilin and said in surprise, Huh? It's Major General Zhen? This is. For you. Bang. Zheng Zilin didn't pay attention to the others and slapped the application form heavily on the desktop with a cold face, Secretary Choi. Explain to me what's going on. The crowd looked down and saw that it was actually a visitor's application form written by Zheng Zilin. Now everyone probably guessed the reason. About Chui Ru was making things difficult for Zheng Zilin. And they were all tangled up. One is the leader's pillow talker. A class A alien who had just entered the base and was highly valued by the leadership. What can be done with this kind of thing? They couldn't help but complain about Chui Ru in their hearts. Who is it bad for you to offend? Why did you offend Zheng Zilin? Chui Ru took one look at the application form and knew that things were bad. And screamed in annoyance, quick. Hurry up and get her. What are you guys waiting for? She wants to rebel. The crowd was speechless. This has nothing to do with a fucking rebellion. Purely because you went too far. It's okay to give other people a hard time in general. Who is Zheng Zilin? The base's fifth class A alien. A superb fight that knocked out Jia Mengxian with one punch. How dare you mess with her? The guards hesitated. No one is a fool. How dare they interfere in the fight between these two women? Zheng Zilin wasn't too mad at Chui Ru's actions. She knew that there were villains everywhere. It was unavoidable. But the fact that Sueru dared to throw away stacks of visitor application forms suggests that this has been going on for a long time. It suggests that there are senior officials who are deliberately withholding negative information about the bottom line from Gu Yu. Director Gu has been hoodwinked by those below him. He must have no idea what is happening to the survivors. The base is on the verge of being very dangerous. And these people are whitewashing and hoodwinking the top leaders of the base. Seeing that the situation was not good, Chui Ru turned her head and ran, ready to find Gu Yu to back herself up. How dare you run? Zhang Zilin shouted angrily. She casually grabbed a water pen from the table and threw it at Treju. Under her tremendous force, the water pen was like a sharp dagger, and it pierced into Chui Ru's calf with a plop. Ah! Sueru flopped to the ground with a scream of misery. She took one look at her bleeding leg and screamed in horror, help! Murder! The crowd looked at each other, not knowing what to do. Just then, there was a click and the door inside opened. Gushan Yu walked out with a cold face, have you made enough noise? Chapter 114 The most powerful force in the world is the control of the human heart. When Shui Ru saw Gushan Yu, it was like seeing a savior, director Gu. Help me. She wants to kill me. It doesn't matter if you kill me. This is a slap in your face. It's a revolt. The crowd was defeated by Shui Ru's shamelessness. What the fuck is going on here? Gushan Yu was also dissatisfied, but he frowned at Shui Ru who was lying on the ground with blood dripping from her calves, and his heart still slightly ached. Though Shui Ru's looks were only average. Her skin and legs were top-notch. It was Gu Yu's favorite toy to play with. There you go. The cure will leave a scar on the leg. And maybe a limp. My beloved toy is gone. Gu Yu was no longer angry but knew that he couldn't get angry at will. At least not in public to punish a powerful alien because of a favored woman. Otherwise everyone else would be wary of him. Damn it. Fucking shifters. Secretary Choi. Shut up. Don't talk nonsense. Gu Yu reprimanded. Then shouted again where's the doctor. Why don't you take Secretary Choi away for treatment? A doctor rushed forward and dragged Shui Ru away with a few nurses after a brief examination. The scene quieted down after this shrew left. Only then did Gu Yu look at Zhang Zilin and said with hatred to Zhang Zilin, What do you want? Your behavior is unorganized and undisciplined. If everyone is as messy as you are, is there any work left to do? You don't just want to be aggravated, do you? As a cadre, if you can't stand such a little aggravation, how can I give you more work in the future? This is some even elimination. Put all the blame on Zhang Zilin's head, and implied that he was going to promote you, but you behaved so badly. The crowd around them couldn't say anything. Many people felt that Gu Yu had no problem with what he said. In any case, a big fight outside the door of the leader's office is a big taboo in the Dragon Kingdom system. And it's such a big deal. It's just not worth it. Many people feel that Zhang Zilin is a bit too impulsive. There were only a few shrewd ones with disdain in their hearts. Gu Yu has some words. Take himself clean. Never mention the leadership responsibility. Without his willful indulgence, how dare Chui Ru be so arrogant as to just throw away the visitor's application? Of course, those who could react in a moment were all human beings, and would not refute Gushan Yu's face on such an occasion. Sure enough, those words made Zhang Zilin suffocate. She wasn't a power master in the first place, and she was helpless in the face of an opponent of Gushan Yu's level. I admit my mistake and am willing to accept the organization's punishment. However, I have something to say. Damn dead brains. Gushan Yu was annoyed in his heart. In fact, all of Zhang Zilin's actions today were secretly monitored by someone and reported to Gushan Yu, including her conversation with Lin Tian, just as she finished speaking in the front foot. Someone reported it to Gushan Yu in the back foot. 
As a powerful newcomer to the alter ego, Gushan Yu certainly couldn't completely trust Zhang Zilin. Based on what Zhang Zilin had seen and heard, Gushan Yu had guessed what Zhang Zilin wanted to say. He was very reluctant to discuss these sensitive topics with Zhang Zilin in public. In the event of a failure to reach an agreement, it would undermine the authority of his leadership. But things have come to this, Gushan you can't do anything about it, said good. We're pretty open-minded here and we can discuss anything. Zhang Zilin tensed her face, why does the base treat survivors so harshly? Shooting them at every turn? Silly woman. Gushan Yu's heart was relieved and he secretly sneered. Zhang Zilin is obviously a fledgling for asking such a question in public. This kind of problem involves a natural conflict between the upper and lower survivors in the base. Anyone who can show up in this room right now is upper middle class. In other words, everyone here was born to stand with Gushan Yu. Most people aren't as saintly and fraternal as Zoe Zhang, who fantasizes about rescuing all fellow human beings. They just want to live better and live longer. And it's none of their business what happens to everyone else. Therefore, by asking this kind of question, Zheng Zilin was giving Gushan Yu a target to attack. Gushan Yu said calmly, in a chaotic world, we must extinguish any possibility of large-scale conflict at the incendiary stage. Think about who these survivors are. Good people? Re, it's a post-apocalyptic world out there. There's not even much food. Every survivor who came to the base alive has a human life in their hands at one time or another. Where are the clean survivors here? They are not good people. In the past, they were murderers, robbers, they were ex-offenders, they were all to be shot. If we let them run amok, it's easy to wrap up more people to cause a riot. And when it comes to suppressing it, more people will die. I know it's not easy for you to feel bad that the one you brought in, Li Ling Ling, was shot on her first day. But she just made trouble and shot her. Only one death for her. If we let her cause trouble in the suppression, the deaths could be 10, 100. Moreover, every soldier is a valuable asset of the base, a friend and brother that I have raised with my own hands, and if they are killed by survivors because of my soft heart, I simply cannot forgive myself. Do you understand? Zhang Zilin, do you understand? Kushan Yu became more and more agitated as he spoke, slamming his chest, his cheeks reddening. Zhang Zilin was silent as Kushan Yu ranted and raved, and her mind was too muddled to retort. The crowd of onlookers all felt that Gushan Yu had a point. Those survivors are basically murderers and deserve to be shot. It was Director Gu who was kind enough to tolerate them to stay and work at the base, taking into account the realities. In his place, he would have killed the criminals long ago. Gushan Yu's face was extremely indignant, but his heart was very pleased. Zilin Zhang, how dare you talk to me? Vegetable pussy. We are all psychics. No one serves anyone. I Gushan Yu without two brushes can sit on the throne of the director? What bullshit psychic powers? They're just aids. If you can fight, how many can you fight? You're just a hitter who's not on the stage. The most powerful force in any age is the control of hearts and minds. As long as I can control most of the aliens and make them obey me, I am the strongest person in this era. Gushan Yu was secretly pleased with himself, but on the surface, he said in a righteous manner, what other questions do you have? I'll answer them all at once. Let's talk openly and honestly here. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Through the simple exchange of hands before, Gushan Yu confirmed that Zhang Zilin was just a rookie and was not to be feared at all. So he let go. Zhang Zilin really didn't know how to go on. A belly full of anger just now was completely doused by Gushan Yu. It wasn't as if she hadn't thought about the reasons Gushan Yu said, but she felt that no matter what human life needed to be taken with care, and she couldn't kill someone rashly. But once it was said through Gushan Yu's mouth, it actually felt that what he said also made sense, and that this was for the greater good. Zhang Zilin just vaguely felt that something was not right, but her mouth was stupid and her brain was slow to react, so she could not think of anything for a while. Zhang Zilin asked weakly why are those survivors eating so poorly? Bastard. Gushan Yu secretly rejoiced that he was giving himself a target again. He said righteously this is the end of the world, and the pressure to survive is extreme. Survivors only need to work honestly at the base and have no worries about their lives. Exalts and soldiers are the ones who have to go out and carry out missions. They must eat well and ensure their stamina so that they don't fall off the wagon at critical moments. As for the researchers to eat well, this I think we all have no objection, right? Science and technology is the first productive force. If you want to truly end this post-apocalyptic world, you can only rely on them. All of us big old men are just green leaves. This speech held up all the middle and upper management, and everyone in the audience was listening to it. Yeah, I'm going out to sell my life. What's wrong with eating better? Survivors can, easily, live as long as they work at the base. How happy they are. Kushanyu saw that the big picture was in hand. His heart completely relaxed. And he calmly looked at Zheng Zilin, what else is wrong? Chapter 115, the shocking news Wu Jun brought back Zheng Zilin could only bow her head helplessly, no more. 
Gushan Yu said, you injured a fellow officer resulting in minor injuries, I'm punishing you with five days of confinement, having your work credits for three months and compensating Chui Ru for the reduction, and postponing your major general's commissioning until three months from now, is there a problem with that? Work credits, an internal token practiced by the base, alien and military personnel can earn points for performing tasks, enough points can be exchanged for supplies such as cigarettes, alcohol, luxury goods, and even exchanged for alien fruits. Gushan Yu was calm on the surface, but was actually nervous as he looked at Zheng Zilin. If she doesn't accept confinement, she's being disobedient. No matter how powerful this kind of alien was, Gushan Yu wouldn't use it, and he would find a chance to shade Zheng Zilin to death afterward. If Zheng Zilin accepts confinement, then he is a good comrade who can be saved and just made a little mistake. Zhang Zilin frowned, but nodded anyway, good. I'll go to the confinement area myself later. Kushan Yu was relieved in his heart that some of the exalted were pleading for Zhang Zilin, Director Gu. Isn't this too heavy? There was a reason for what happened. And Secretary Chui was at fault. So why don't? Just then, one of the guards rushed in in a panic. His face overwhelmed with fear. Director Gu. Wu Jun is back. He said. He said. He said. Once Kushan Yu heard that it was Wu Jun, he could no longer care about Zhang Zilin say what? Don't stammer. The guard said in shock, he said Major General Zhou Tao Zhou is dead. Zhou Tao was a more traditional soldier. He wasn't too keen on accepting Gushan Yu's appointment as Major General, and had always let everyone in his squad call him Colonel. But at the base, most people still used to call him Major General Zhou. The crowd was dumbfounded. How did Major General Zhou die when he was so strong? Did we run into a powerful mutant animal? Gushan Yu became anxious at once, quickly invite Wu Jun over. Immediately have a meeting. Notify Major General Duan Jun. Major General Jia Mengxian, Major General Sun Wei, and Zheng Zilin that you're coming too, and then confinement after the meeting, and academician Wang tell him to come over too. The entire base only had a total of five Class A alterans, and the death of even one of them caused him immense pain. Gu Shan Yu named more than a dozen top brass at once. Soon the conference room filled up. Wu Jun was also brought over. Everyone looked at him, come on, what's going on? What happened? Wu Jun said bitterly, according to the original plan. We successfully rescued academician Guo Changting, and then headed to the Pearl of the Magic Sea TD Tower, where we were prepared to wait for the base to pick us up. As a result, when we arrived at the Pearl of the Magic Sea we found someone. Wu Jun spoke in detail about what he had seen and heard. The crowd was stunned. The Pearl of the Devil Sea TD Tower is actually hiding a powerful psychic who can snipe people in the Red Mist. This person's melee combat ability was so powerful that even Zhou Tao couldn't beat him. According to Wu Jun's description, Zhou Tao was killed in a few dozen seconds at most. The combat power is extremely terrifying. This is the sledgehammer that smashed Major General Zhou to death. Wu Jun took out that hammer. The deformation of the hammer head and the fingerprints of the hammer stick are clearly visible. Everyone was silent. How powerful it had to be. Even the hammer couldn't carry it. The tip of Duanjin's nose twitched and he suddenly said wait. Let me see this hammer. The crowd was uncertain. Duanjin took the hammer and sniffed it carefully. Then hated it, that's him. The gopher who took whore. It's actually him. The crowd immediately swarmed to finally. We've found his location. There's a way to heaven if you don't go. And there's no door to hell if you break in. Did Zhang Fan do this? Zhang Zilin was dumbfounded. What is he doing running to the pearl of the magic sea? This is a problem. I couldn't find you before. I couldn't do anything about you. But what about later? Definitely straight to the door. Where else is this going to run? No matter how powerful Zhang Fan was, he couldn't deal with that many exalts and it was hard to even run. Very good. Duanjin was even more delighted after hearing this. He was going to have to go out looking for it, but now he didn't need to, and found the other side's lair directly. While Gu Shan Yu was angry, he began to analyze it. Oh, this psychic is very powerful. It appears to have multiple psychic abilities at the moment. First is drilling, an ability that is great for escaping. Secondly, it's a fast long distance trekking. Plundering who lay at night in our place and reaching the Pearl of the Magic Sea a few kilometers away in the daytime shows that he has a long-distance trekking ability. Considering that he made his home in the Pearl of the Magic Sea, I think his ability is similar to Wu Jun's, which should be flight. Then, Wu Jun said that Zhou Tao died from bleeding from his seven orifices, and this ability is very much like Wu Lei's ability. Mental shock, which can directly cross the body's defenses and strike the enemy's brain. It's also this ability that precisely restrains Zhou Tao. He also has tremendous strength. The hammerhead and the hammer stick are so simple to look at. There aren't many of us here who can do that. Finally, the fact that he can snipe through the red mist suggests some ability to see through it. That means this person has at least five abilities. Drilling, flying, attacking the brain, strength, and seeing through the red mist. 
What a powerful psychic! Gu Shanyu sneered, praising the enemy with his mouth, but actually full of confidence. Against this kind of enemy that could burrow, the biggest trouble was actually finding the other side, and now that it had been found, the task was mostly accomplished. As for whether he could defeat his opponent, Gu Shanyu never doubted it. So what if we have five aliens? We have over 100 aliens and over 150 total aliens. As strong as you are on your own, you can still take on 100 shifters. A silent Sunway added, I think he still has the ability to find alien fruits. Otherwise there's no way to explain how he found so many of them. The crowd sniffed and nodded. They've all been out on missions and know all too well how difficult it is to act out there. Overhead were large trees that covered the ground, and underfoot were grass and shrubs that were at least knee deep. Combined with the red mist, the view was extremely narrow. Also, animals and humans eat alien fruits. So, finding alien fruits out there is entirely up to luck. If you can use your ability to find the alien fruit, then, Gushan Yu was completely heartbroken. How many alien fruits would have to be found to keep the other side under control? Duan Jin, I'm ordering you to capture this alien. I'll give you 50 aliens, 200 soldiers, and ordinary survivors you can requisition as you please, and all of them must be captured alive until the last possible moment. Duan Jin was confident, last time I let him sneak in and take advantage, this time I'm going to make him spit it all out. What's wrong with being able to walk through walls and fly? Space blockade understood. The crowd got excited. Only Zhang Zilin frowned, randomly requisitioning ordinary survivors. Wasn't it you who said before that survivors don't participate in outgoing missions? Chapter 116, Gravitational Distortion. Flesh Flight. Ding. One day ago, Li Qingyu consumed a pack of compressed cookies and returned 1,200 packs. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Li Qingyu consumed a can of military red meat and returned one. 200 of them. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago. Li Qingyu consumed a pack of military squash and returned 1,200 packs. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. 14 days ago, Li Qingyu consumed one enlightenment fruit, will weapon and returned one. 200 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. 19 days ago, Li Qingyu consumed one fruit of enlightenment, gravitational distortion and returned one. 200 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Jiang Fan's eyes lit up. It was true that there were two supernatural abilities and one of them was related to will. Fruit of Enlightenment, Weapon of Will 1 Star. When consumed, you gain the ability to condense a weapon of will. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Fruit of Enlightenment, Gravity Twist 3 Stars. Eating it gives you the gravitational distortion ability. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Zhang Fan immediately took out an Enlightenment fruit and ate it. Gravitational Distortion, 3 Stars. You can distort the magnitude and direction of the gravitational force at will, effective only on metal objects you touch. So it is. No wonder she was holding a string of metal plates with a rope. So she was stuck with a bug. Connected by a piece of string, a string of metal plates is now seen as an object by the alien. Zhang Fan pointed his finger on a heavy cabinet. Gravitational distortion. Soon, he realized that it was as if he could control the direction and magnitude of the gravitational force on the cabinet at will. The cabinet slowly floated up with a movement in Zhang Fan's mind. Not only can it go upward, but it can also exert a forward gravitational force, and a backward gravitational force. By reasonably controlling the direction and magnitude of the gravitational force, any direction is fine. In addition, controlling gravity continuously drains physical energy at a rate proportional to the magnitude of the change in the size of the gravitational force. Also, controlling the direction of gravity is an order of magnitude or two more consuming than controlling the magnitude of gravity. With Zhang Fan's 200 plus combined physique, the consumption of controlling the size of the gravitational force was almost as good as nothing. Controlling the direction of gravity feels similar to the exertion of running at full speed on your own. This ability can greatly enhance my melee combat ability. The corners of Zhang Fan's mouth rose slightly. Imagine, but if there is a piece of metal on the enemy's body, one can directly turn the gravitational pull of the metal into an upward direction while hard catching the enemy's attack, and the enemy's center of gravity will surely be greatly affected. And, if I carry metal on my body, won't I be able to fly? As soon as he thought of it, Zhang Fan immediately took out a bundle of steel wires and held it in his arms. Gravitational distortion. Zhang Fan only felt the wire jerking upward, and it really brought his feet up. It really can fly. The test was successful. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. Although the physical exertion was quick, it was completely acceptable with his physique, and flying for an hour would not be a problem. Zhang Fan thought again with a bit of regret unfortunately. If I didn't have that armor guy's ability, full body armor and gravitational distortion would be a perfect match. 
it can be simply mimicked without the armor ability. Zhang Fan first took out a belt of the best quality from his carry-on space, then wrapped a wire around the belt one by one until it became a heavy wire belt. Zhang Fan put on his belt. Gravitational distortion unleashed. Zhang Fan's feet slowly left the ground. Ha ha ha. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. He tried it and quickly realized that this type of flight was a bit awkward. With only one point of force on the belt throughout the body, it is very inflexible and not combat friendly. Zhang Fan thought about it and found another mechanical watch to wear on his left hand. A male bracelet is worn on the right hand. Taking out another pair of Martin boots, he found two pieces of thin tin and inserted them hard into the soles. Gravitational distortion. Zhang Fan unleashed his ability again, and this time the flight was significantly easier. Five points on his hands, feet, and waist all provide gravitational pull in various directions, giving him great flexibility. Voiding. Zhang Fan pierced through the ceiling and slowly flew to the top of the capsule. There's a helipad here, a few hundred meters up. The wind is strong. Zhang Fan's body flew up and stood dozens of meters in the air, overlooking the entire magic sea city with a relaxed body in mind. Flying has always been a human dream. For this reason, mankind invented the airplane, which can fly, but is quite restrictive. Now he himself was able to fly in the flesh. Flight plus voiding plus teleportation. I can go anywhere in the world. Zhang Fan flew in midair for a while, briefly adapting to his newly acquired flying ability, before crossing the roof of the building to return to his bedroom. Without saying a word, he took out another will weapon enlightenment fruit and swallowed it. Weapon of will, one star. You can expend energy to condense an indestructible weapon of will within your body, which must be condensed to a certain degree before you can take it out and use it, will plus three. In Zhang Fan's space of consciousness, an ever-changing weapon appeared. One minute it's blue, one minute it's green, one minute it's a sword, the next it's a gun. It looked like a phantom, and Zhang Fan couldn't hold it at all. Zhang Fan tried to put in some energy, and even with his 120 ultra-high will, he felt an emptiness flooding his soul, as if he hadn't slept for days. The weapon of will still hadn't changed much, and I wondered how long it would take to condense it before I could take it out and use it. No wonder Li Qingyu didn't attack herself with a weapon of will. She simply couldn't condense it. At this time, Li Qingyu woke up and knew what had happened as soon as she took a look at her body. Her eyes were red and she covered her body with a towel, glaring at Zhang Fan in anger and shame nasty. I'll be damned. Zhang Fan glanced at her coldly. With the powers already in hand, there's no use keeping this woman. How about killing it? Only. Although the woman spoke harshly, the red light on her body was faint. Forget it. No killing then. When the TV base comes to retaliate, they might be able to use her as a meat shield or a hostage to put her to good use. Snap. Zhang Fan slapped Li Qingyu down and calmly said, it's the end times. Who can die well? After saying that, he nonchalantly took out a bundle of ropes from his carry-on space and tightly tied her hands and feet together. Li Qingyu screamed in anger, Wu Jun has already escaped. The base will definitely come and send someone to rescue me. You are dead. Bastard. You let go of me. Well. Un un un. Zhang Fan blocked Li Qingyu's mouth with his own smelly socks and then shouted, Tang Shuilua, Su Meng Qian, Hu Lily, come in. The three women walked in. And when they saw Li Qingyu's appearance, they all revealed smiles that were surely so. Zhang Fan was not someone who was soft on women. Su Meng Qian, in particular, was unabashedly gloating. For such a long time, she was the only one who had been cleaned up the hardest by Zhang Fan. The previous experience of kneeling outside the door had been secretly mocked by the women. It's good to have company for myself. Chapter 117, Big Devil's Standard Weapon? I like it. Zhang Fan glanced at the light on the three women. It's all very pure green light. Only then did he pull out three pistols and hand them over to the three women with confidence, until this is over. The three of you watch her in three shifts and kill her outright if there's any resistance. Li Qingyu whimpered in anger. Stinky man, you are really pulling X and being ruthless. Su Mengqian happily took the pistol and stared intently at Li Qingyu. This is John's trust in me. Julie carefully took the pistol, her face white with fear. I, I, I won't shoot. Tang Shuelua was taken aback and panicked. What is it? Zhang Fan was calm. Their group is from the TV base's military, and the military will definitely retaliate afterward. So you guys leave for now and come back when I've finished with them. The military. Tang Shuelua got worried. Most people had an instinctive fear of military strength, Brother Jiang. Why don't we just go? They can't find you in this era anyway. They can't find us anywhere we go. Zhang Fan shook his head and smiled. How could I possibly let a bunch of people who want to kill me live in the world? Li Qingyu was unable to speak. Her face was sneering and her mouth was full of awe. Zhang Fan smiled and pulled out the smelly sock from her mouth. Looks like you have something to say? Li Qingyu dryly coughed a few times before saying fiercely oomph. It's already too late to leave now. Major General Duan's nose is very smart. No matter which way you escape, 
He'll be able to catch up with you. Su Mengqian said angrily, Brother Jiang. She's threatening you. What's the point of keeping her? Kill her. Jiang Fan, however, frowned. Although Li Qingyu spoke badly, she spoke very crucial information. She actually put a shifter's ability into words. Is it stupidity? Or are you deliberately misleading yourself? Jiang Fan looked at the glow on Li Qingyu's body. There was still very little red light, mostly a yellow glow, and even a little green light. Mud, this bitch is a psycho too, right? I'm Xing and killing, and she's green instead? Did she want to surrender? This time Jiang Fan was not in a hurry and asked Bo, who is Major General Duan? What else is he capable of? Li Qingyu hesitated and said, how would I know? All I know is that he's superb in close combat and so fast that I can't see. Another ability was said. Jiang Fan wondered, staring at Li Qingyu with interest, you don't like the base, or you have a grudge against someone on the base and want to use me to get rid of someone. Like, this Major General Duan? Li Qingyu did not expect to be guessed so quickly in his heart intentions, silently clenched his fists, mouth hardened you're overthinking it, nothing at all. Jiang Fan smiled and said, in that case, how about I give you in this passage of yours to the base? You. Li Qingyu looked at Jiang Fan in shock and grief, you're shameless. Thank you. Thank you. Jiang Fan smiled, then said coldly, I urge you to tell the truth. Otherwise, I'll strip you naked and throw you to the nearest survivor colony. Li Qingyu winced, no. No. Then say it. Jiang Fan said in a good-natured manner, if it's said to my satisfaction, I may not fail to keep you alive. As you can see, I have women here who are living well. Li Qingyu bit her red lips and said softly, I want Kushanya to die. If he hadn't stopped Yang Shaoza from sending the army into the city, my parents might have survived. Then, Li Qingyu revealed some hidden secrets. After the red mist descended, although the country has not done much on the surface, it has actually been actively preparing for it. That new herbicide was the result of research by the Dragon Academy of Science, given to the military everywhere to implement. Unfortunately, everything evolved so quickly that the vast majority of herbicide spraying operations fail, and even when they are successful, the plants quickly adapt and grow even more luxuriantly. After that, the situation changed too quickly, and the city of Kyoto suddenly lost contact with the entire top level disappeared, and the country which turned into a complete mess, at the highest level, before the loss. Rescue centers were set up all over the country, with full military and political authority to manage the rescue of all survivors around them. The rescue center set up in Magic Sea City was the underground base of the TV station, with Gu Shan Yu serving as the supreme leader. That unit in Yang Xiao's hands is also under Gu Shan Yu's command. Li Qingyu was a native of Magic Sea City, and after the red mist descended, her parents were trapped in their home and unable to leave. Her home was only a few kilometers from the troop site, and as long as the troops went into the city, they would inevitably pass by her home along the way, making it entirely possible to save her parents. However, Gushan Yu has been strongly resisting Yang Xiaozhe's request to enter the city. Yang Xiaozhe cannot enter the city, and Li Qingyu's parents can never be saved. Eventually, the two men were lost and in all likelihood were dead. In this horrible post-apocalyptic world, how can two frail, powerless, and penniless old people have any chance of survival? This deep hatred. Li Qingyu has been hidden in the bottom of the heart did not tell anyone just secretly looking for opportunities to revenge Gushanyue. She knew she only had one chance to strike, so she hadn't dared to act rashly. Li Qingyu was instantly moved after seeing Jiang Fan's combat prowess. Anyway, he had been captured, and in all probability he would not be able to return, so he might as well put up a fight. Jiang Fan secretly rejoiced, never imagining that there was actually such a good thing. You want to kill Gushanyu? No problem. Write down all the abilities you know of the shifter. At this point in time, Li Qingyu could only choose to believe Jiang Fan good. I hope you keep your word. The three women escorted Li Qingyu to write the information. Jiang Fan, on the other hand, took out a wool weapon fruit and swallowed it directly into his mouth. With a big battle on the horizon, it's important to improve your fighting skills as much as possible. 1, 2, 3, like the first two will type abilities, Jiang Fan's adaptability to will type powers was extremely good, and the star level of his will weapon escalated rapidly. Ding. Fruit of Will upgraded to 2 stars. Ding. Fruit of Will upgraded to 3 stars. Ding. Fruit of Will upgraded to 4 stars. Jiang Fan ate until he was about to vomit, and finally stopped. Ding. Fruit of Will upgraded to 5 stars. Weapon of Will, 5 stars. You can consume energy to condense an indestructible weapon of will within your body, which must be condensed to a certain degree before it can be taken out. When the weapon of will is taken out, you can incorporate all kinds of substances into the weapon to strengthen its attributes. When an able person dies around you, you can devour the fragments of his or her will to accelerate the condensation of the weapon of will, will plus 15. 
Incorporating matter strengthens the attributes, and the effect is unclear, so you'll have to wait until you take out your weapon to try it again. But this killing speeds up the speed of condensation? Jiang Fan pondered, it looks evil. It's a standard weapon of the Archdemon. I love it. It just so happens that Gushan you sent a bunch of cannon fodder, so if I kill them all, I'll be able to draw my weapon of will, right? Chapter 118 The Great Army Moves Out Jiang Fan looked at the alien intelligence provided by Li Qingyu. Dozens of alien powers abound. Everything from combat to support, melee to long range, scouting to healing. If this group of people came together, Jiang Fan would indeed have to frown. This was the power of a large organization, each alien might not seem strong, but a powerful combination could be put together with the right mix. For example, Li Qing used gravity twist and that armored guy are actually a perfect match. The base must have thought about it when they sent these two out together. Li Qingyu said, I only know some of the powers of these 30 or so aliens. The others either haven't worked together or are very careful never to talk about their abilities outside. Jiang Fan closed his eyes and thought for a while, then said lightly all right, you guys go ahead. He tore open a portal to the fortune center cell and brought the women back to block C of the fortune center. A few days passed and the fortune center became even more dead. The survivors in block C were basically killed by Jiang Fan. Block A and B starved to death again, and about a new chief arose. Though no one dared come to block C, Jiang Fan didn't show up for a few days, and those people couldn't figure out the situation and just stayed away. Li Qingchuan was happy to enjoy the quiet, and no one bothered him. After Jiang Fan used his senses to confirm that block C was safe, he had the women repack the room. Qingchuan Li still lives on the 28th floor. Jiang Fan crossed the floorboards to Li Qingchuan's room. Li Qingchuan was startled, followed by great joy you mister. Jiang, you're back? Jiang Fan glanced at him, still covered in green light. So he nodded and smiled temporarily back for a few days. Any new developments on your side? Any discovery of alien fruits? Li Qingchuan shook his head inside, it's getting more and more dangerous down there. Even the third and fourth floors can't be secured now, and I don't even dare to go down to the ground level by myself. Jiang Fan was curious oh, how? This old herbalist, who had always just loved to go downstairs and collect all sorts of new plants and try to discover new herbs, now even he was afraid? Li Qingchuan sighed, I've noticed that some plants are starting to actively attack humans. Animals can still defend themselves. Plants can't really defend themselves. He pulled up his pants, look at this cut. It was cut by a weed. Luckily you gave a few bottles of medical alcohol and I sterilized it in time. Otherwise it would have been infected and inflamed for sure. Weeds. Jiang Fan didn't stay long, and after settling the woman, he opened a portal, found the subspace anchor point on Zhang Zilin, and quietly transmitted it. It's not polite to come and go, since you're sending people to my house. It makes sense for me to go to your house to take the wind out of your sails, doesn't it? Magic CTV underground base. The doors are open today. Everyone depart immediately. Gushan you ordered. Yes. Duanjin replied loudly, depart. A line of survivors in uniform gray uniforms walked out of the base. They carried various supplies on their backs and walked with heavy feet. Their expressions numb and fearful. The terror of the dense forest in the red mist was something they knew well. If not, they wouldn't have preferred to be oppressed by Gushan Yu rather than daring to escape. Now, the whole world was shrouded under a red mist, and they had no way to escape, followed by 200 elite soldiers. This group was in much better spirits. Then there were 50 aliens, all lightly armed and on their toes. This was almost half of the base's alien power, and it had to be taken seriously. Gushan Yu patted Duanjin's shoulder and sullenly said, I'm giving you most of my family's money, so be careful. Duanjin snapped to attention and saluted, don't worry. Chief, we'll never let you down. No matter how strong that rat is, he won't be able to stop a siege of dozens of people. And we've already set up a plan so that all of his abilities won't come into play. That's good. Gushan Yu was slightly relieved. Duanjin he still trusted. This time, two of the only four remaining Class A Exalted were dispatched. Duanjin and Sun Wei both. Jia Mengxian guards his home and Zhang Zilin is still in confinement. Come on then, don't let that kid get away. Or who knows where to find him. I. Guarantee to complete the mission. Duanjin set off with a large force. This time, a total of 1, 0, 0, 0 survivors, 200 soldiers, and 50 Xenos were utilized, making this the base's most action-packed outing since the Red Mist descended. Instead of capturing that rat, Kushan Yu wanted to test whether the base was capable of going out on missions on a large scale or not. The list of 50 aliens, all of which had been finalized after much consideration, was very much aimed at that rat. The crowd started moving and after an hour or so of walking, three survivors were killed or injured for various reasons. One was so hungry that he saw the mushrooms that used to be common and didn't resist picking two and eating them, and then died instantly. One man was bitten by an unknown insect and his entire thigh was red and black. 
another person, on the other hand, was scratched by the leaves of a bamboo tree, making deep cuts so that even his bones were clearly visible. Injuries this serious can't always be cured even in peaceful times, let alone now. Duanjin just inspected the three of them and ordered Cole Lee kill them all. They won't survive. There was a commotion among the survivors. They were angry in their hearts, but there was nothing they could do. Shifters are too scary to be dealt with by ordinary people, especially Duanjin. Some people had seen him strike and knew his invincible stance by heart. It could even be said to be fresh in their minds. Duanjin said coldly you do what? Do you guys want to revolt? It's your honor to dedicate yourselves to the base. And if you can die to save Akademishingwa, it would be your greatest fortune to die. The survivors were all indignant, but there was nothing they could do. After resting for a few minutes, the shifters rose to their feet and urged forward, hurry, hurry up. Don't let that kid get away. The confidence of all is high. Before the operation, Duanjin had made a detailed plan, how to detect in advance, how to block space, how to face the enemy head-on, all in all, the program was very thorough and even made multiple preliminaries, Zhang Fan is dead, the team was soon on the move again, Zheng Zilin sat withered in the dark confinement room, practicing breathing techniques, after practicing for a while, she opened her eyes in distraction, Duanjin and his men are leaving, right, is it to deal with Zhang Fan, will Zhang Fan be in danger? She couldn't help but worry for Zheng Fan. Chapter 119 Base Riot Zheng Zilin didn't know exactly what her state of mind was towards Zheng Fan. This man had taken his body roughly and meanly. It's logical to kill it. However, Zheng Fan didn't hurt her more or force her to do anything, and even gave her a precious exotic fruit before he left. This made a lot of the chapter Zilch's hostility go away. As for Zheng Fan's crap about grabbing women, honestly, Zheng Zilin had seen a lot of it in the end times. The leader of every survivor colony who is a man does this. In comparison, Zhang Fan treated his woman well, the best of all the people she had ever met. From this point of view, Zhang Fan is not a bad person, just slightly indulgent it. He's actually not bad looking. Nope, I'm messing with my mind. Zhang Zilin hurriedly interrupted her gossamer thoughts. In short, Zhang Fan was in big trouble this time. According to the information she had inquired about, Duanjin's nose powers were simply unbelievable and he could even smell the faint scent that had been left behind a dozen or so days ago, and could smell several kilometers away. He stared at Zhang Fan, and Zhang Fan could barely get away unless he ran far away, but the world will eventually come back under official and military control. Zhang Fan had left a record of murder in the military, and could escape for a moment, but not for a lifetime. She was torn when there was sudden chaos outside the confinement room. A mournful siren sounded. The guards let out shrieks of terror, the gray garbage men have revolted. Get the gun! Get the gun. Help. They're coming in. Ah. Help. My leg is broken. Watch out. There's a shifter hiding among them. Gushan Yu quietly approved official documents and formulated the next stage of the base's development plan. That drill shifter had suddenly robbed Guo Changting, causing him to formulate a new plan. In the event that Guo Changting died, then the progress of artificially breeding the exotic fruit would be greatly delayed. In this case, if one wanted to accumulate enough exalts, one would have to only go outside to collect exalted fruits and exalts. If Duanjin's mission was executed smoothly, it would prove that the base had the ability to go out on a large scale, and the scope of gathering supplies in the future could be slightly enlarged. Admittedly, the mission will certainly result in a large number of survivor casualties, but that's just a necessary loss. As long as the survivors are replenished in a timely manner from behind, it won't have much of a substantial impact on the base. According to the previous estimate of the Dragon Academy of Science, the population of the cities in the Dragon Kingdom would be reduced by 90% within a month of the Red Mist's descent. If you do that math, there are about 2 to 3 million survivors left in Magic Sea City. There were at least 10,000 Xenos among these people. There were also bound to be a large number of undiscovered alien fruits spread throughout the Magic Sea City. As long as I can pocket these exalts and exotic fruits, I won't be afraid of Yang Xiaoza. He could even take the opportunity to swallow that team of his and continue to build up his strength. Gushan Yu squinted his eyes and thought, the captain of the personal guard said worriedly director, I have a feeling that the situation with the workers up there is a bit unstable. We've deployed a large number of soldiers and shifters. There's a chance that they might take advantage of the situation to rebel. I know. Gushan Yu was calm. This time, Duanjin went out and drew 50 Xenos and 200 elite soldiers at once, placing a huge burden on the base's manpower. At the same time, Gushan Yu was worried that the driller man would run to the base and do a decapitation, which would be a lot of fun. Although his office was always protected by dozens of real soldiers and a few Xenos, Gushan Yu did not believe that the other party could kill him at all. But any time you hurt a finger yourself, it's a huge blow to prestige. Based on various considerations, 
Gu Shan Yu mobilized most of his trusted manpower around to protect himself and deliberately relaxed his supervision of the Grey Cloth survivors, so much so that the ambitious are bound to seize the opportunity. Gu Shan Yu said faintly, How will they venture out without giving them a chance? And how will I know which workers are pricks? The shifters and most of the soldiers were on their own anyway. Grey coated bulls and horses in rebellion? Just suppress it. As for how many people would die in it, Gu Shan Yu didn't care at all. Those bullshit words before were purely for that stupid woman Zhang Zilin. In fact, Kushan Yu had long since noticed the anger of the grey-robed class. They eat poorly, work a lot, and are a drop in the bucket from what they used to have. And it's normal for them to have complaints. The solution Gushan Yu prepared was also simple. Create a class of black criminals that is even lower than the grey working class. The food is worse, the work is more dangerous, and the treatment is crap. By the time the grey class realizes that someone is living worse than they are, they naturally have a psychological solace and an outlet for their grievances. That's human nature. Therefore, if someone really dared to rebel, then Gushan Yu could take the opportunity to brand some people as black-clothed criminals, both easing internal conflicts and providing cannon fodder for the next time they went out to explore. Gushan Yu knew that there was actually a group of people among the officers and among the aliens who did not support the way they treated the survivors. It's just not as extreme as Chapter's Island. He also wanted to take this opportunity to show these people what would happen if they didn't follow his orders. Three birds with one stone. Anyway, as long as you control the violent weapons yourself, the big picture is under control. Gu Shan Yu silently calculated. Just then, an officer rushed in in a panic. Director Gu, it's chaos up there. Those grey clad bastards have revolted. Gu Shan Yu immediately stood up and laughed, as expected. Immediately notify everyone to strengthen the defenses of key locations. Let them make a scene for a while first. We'll do it later. The crowd was in awe, knowing that Gu Shan Yu was about to go on a killing spree. The incarceration area is clearly not a critical location. Aside from Zhang Zilin, this place held all the grey clad survivors who had been punished. Zhang Zilin listened to the commotion outside with a grave expression on her face, what's going on? A riot? A short while later, there was a strong explosion from the outside, and then the crackle of gunfire. The gunshots grew farther and farther away and eventually disappeared. This is troublesome. Zhang Zilin became deeply worried. A group of rioters stormed the prison area brandishing a variety of homemade weapons. The few guards didn't even dare to resist and turned their heads to run. The rioters opened the prison room doors one by one, released the prisoners inside, and then hand out a weapon and become the new insurgents. There's a confinement room here. Got a key? No? Break it down. Boom. Boom. Several rioters used tools to break down the door of the confinement room. Zhang Zilin slowly stood up. Sincerely, I urge you to surrender. You don't have enough guns and ammo or enough aliens to win. I know your anger. I can help you plead with Director Gu. However, a few of the filthy rebels didn't even listen to what she was saying, and their eyes glistened with excitement at the sight of a female officer. It's actually a pretty female officer. Ha ha! Why is she locked up here? Who the hell knows? All I know is that we got a great deal. I'll go first on this one. I'll let you guys have the later ones. There are several little nurses over at the military doctor's side who are very pretty. Ha 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 ha! Several people closed the door to the room wistfully, hefting weapons in their hands as they walked toward Zhang Zilin. Zhang Zilin frowned and took a step back, I urge you to calm down. A tall man rushed forward with open arms and a sardonic smile, beauty. Be a good girl and let me taste it before I suffer. Snap. Seek death. Zhang Zilin's eyes turned cold. Her body stormed in, and she slapped her palm on the man's jaw like lightning. Chapter 120 Zhang Fan Strikes. Sneak Attack. Click. The man's trigeminal nerve was hit so hard that he passed out on the spot. Damn it. Kill her. The other man growled and swung an iron wrench. Looking for death. Zhang Zilin snorted coldly, and instead of retreating, she advanced, rushed into the man's arms in one step, and then struck an iron mountain lean. Bang! The man screamed and flew backwards, hitting the wall hard and passing out. A few others realized that something was wrong and turned their heads to run, but to their horror, they realized that the cell door had just been locked by itself and could not be opened from the inside. Beauty spare your life, big sister. I was just kidding. Zhang Zilin coldly delivered a few precise hand slashes knocking out a few people. She was extremely measured in her strikes, and these people were only unconscious. Zhang Zilin pulled on the door and it was unlocked. From time to time there were sounds of fighting and killing outside. Do I still want to be confined here? Zhang Zilin was a bit hesitant. Zhang Fan was surprised to find that there was actually a riot at the TV station base. The grey clad bulls and horses have complete control of the upper deck and are on a rampage. Killing, eating, robbing, forcing X. There was wailing everywhere. The original rulers, Soldiers and shifters all retreated to the lower and middle classes, 
A large number of soldiers and aliens blocked the middle level to prevent the rioters from coming down. The base leader, Gu Shanyu, was surrounded by only four Xenos and ten soldiers for protection. This is a great opportunity. Without saying a word, Zhang Fan opened the teleportation door in Gu Shanyu's room and directly teleported in. He appeared in a position that happened to be on the sofa behind Gu Shanyu. Gu Shanyu didn't notice Zhang Fan and was still holding the intercom to issue orders. His voice extremely cold almost done. Close the net. Kill all those who resist. Yes, Gu Shanyu put down the phone. A sense of pleasure in controlling other people's destinies came to life. One order. Hundreds of people die. Power is the strongest X drug a man can have. That's power. He sighed, getting comfortable and spinning in his swivel chair. Gu Shanyu was shocked to realize that there was actually a person sitting behind him at some point. Who are you? Jiang Fan smiled and said, You guess. Gu Shanyu was speechless and reacted immediately afterward, You're the driller. As he said that, he secretly sent out an invisible will attack that stabbed straight at Jiang Fan like a steel needle. Unbeknownst to him, Jiang Fan was completely looking in his eyes. The moment Jiang Fan showed up, he opened every ability he could. Perception. Voiding. The blood burst is 200%. Light of the heart. Jiang Fan saw a translucent spike stabbing straight at his will bubble. Then, Jiang Fan only felt a slight tremor, and the spikes shattered. Immunity to will type attacks from Mindbender is in effect. Gu Shanyu froze for a moment. Why no reaction? Jiang Fan laughed sunnily. Well, it's my turn. Mental shock. Gu Shanyu only felt as if his brain had been hit by a truck. With a loud bang, his consciousness instantly fell into darkness. His seven orifices bled, and his body collapsed limply. A silver colored ball of light that only Jiang Fan could see flew out from Gu Shanyu's body and into Jiang Fan's will weapon. The weapon of will solidified a bit in the flesh. It really works. Jiang Fan smiled and searched the room. Gu Shanyu is an important person and should know a lot of information. Soon, Jiang Fan found out Gu Shanyu's cell phone and tried it with the other person's fingerprint. Unlocked successfully. Jiang Fan then threw Gu Shanyu's body into the carry-on space along with his cell phone, ready to go back and look at it slowly. And the work computer that Gu Shanyu used, take it too. The locked filing cabinet by the wall, slammed open and the papers were all taken away. Jiang Fan scanned with his perception and found that there was also a small hidden drawer under Gu Shanyu's bed which contained a USB flash drive. What kind of information is in here that's so valuable? Jiang Fan also put it away. When he was done, he sank to the ground and came from underground to below the guard's lounge outside. Jiang Fan didn't show his head and directly a grenade was thrown from the ground. The guards looked at the sudden appearance of grenades on the ground in confusion. What the hell? Crap. Groove. Boom. Everyone died horribly on the spot. Two balls of silver light likewise flew out of the bodies of the two Xenos and disappeared into the will weapons. But it was nowhere near as effective as Gu Shanyu's light mass. Could it be that the high-willed dead provide better results? Jiang Fan secretly guessed. What's going on? Someone's coming in. Several of the guards and shifters outside rushed in. Alarmed. Another grenade was thrown head-on. Out of the wall. Where's the grenade? Get out of the way. A few people screamed strangely and went prone on the ground. But it was too late. Boom. Everyone died horribly except for one shifter. A huge iron shield appeared in front of this alien, carrying the grenade blast hard. He didn't feel good about it though. His brain was buzzing and his whole body was fried. Jiang Fan leapt out of the wall like lightning and smashed over with a hammer. The iron shield man couldn't react in time and could only block with his iron shield. Dang. A heavy crash followed. The iron shield became incredibly heavy. An iron shield was shocked to realize that he couldn't lift this iron shield anymore. Bam. The iron shield landed heavily on the ground, breaking the back of the alien's foot. He screamed miserably, stop fighting. I surrender. Okay. Jiang Fan swept a hammer across the room, right in the alien's solar plexus. Boom. The alien's head exploded like a watermelon. A ball of silver light flew out and disappeared into the weapon of will. Jiang Fan's eyes stared. Continue. He sank into the ground again and approached the large force of aliens in the middle level. By this time, the Xenos had already spread out and led the soldiers to clear the insurgents. Everyone surrender. Hands up or be shot on the spot. Bang. 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 Accompanied by gunshots and shouts, they mercilessly slaughtered the insurgents. Ordinary survivors were unable to stop the team made up of guns and psychic abilities, and were instantly killed and injured. With corpses, limbs, and blood everywhere, someone got down on their knees and begged for mercy. Some people turned their heads and run. The shifters and soldiers split up again to take prisoners. However, some of the captives pretended to surrender but actually tried to take advantage of the opportunity to approach the soldiers and attack. Mud. How dare you fight back. Kill him. Kill him. Bang. Seeing this scene, the survivors ran faster brothers. They're killing prisoners. Run. Some of the survivors, who had been on their knees, 
got up in a flash and fled lifelessly elsewhere. The scene was a mess. The soldiers here were supposed to be the garrison of the base, with little to no real-world experience and no idea how to handle the situation in front of them. Combined with the red mist that obscured vision and the long tunnels, no one knew how far the battlefield had been drawn. At the back of the messy battlefield, Zhang Fan appeared without a sound and launched a silent killing spree against the alien. If you are alone, paralyze the opponent with a mental attack and kill them in seconds. If it's a few people, just throw grenades. After he had killed more than 20 Xenos in a row, he was finally discovered to be abnormal. There's a shifter sneaking up behind us. Everyone be careful. The Greycoats have shifters too. The terrified shifters rushed together, and a bunch of soldiers followed to protect them. Zhang Fan couldn't do anything right when he saw this. He couldn't figure out what each person was capable of. And going head-on and hard might be a guttural mess. Especially after that class A alien named Jia Mengxian arrived. Zhang Fan immediately decided to leave. Jia Mengxian was one of the few exalted powerhouses that Li Qingyu had explicitly warned about. Strong in melee combat, getting caught up in him could cause danger. In order to avoid unnecessary risks, Zhang Fan slowly sank into the ground and left. Zheng Zilin sat in the confinement room for another half hour. The base still didn't seem to have the situation under control, and no one had come looking for them. Hearing the sound of shouting and killing outside getting smaller and smaller, Zheng Zilin could no longer sit still. Pulling her hand on the door, her whole body strength instantly exploded. Bang! The door lock was pulled hard. Zheng Zilin walked out. Chapter 121 Could it be Zheng Fan? It can't be. Zheng Zilin saw a scene she would never forget. Everywhere you look, there are bodies. Almost all of the female corpses had been violated and abused during their lifetime. There were not only female soldiers, but also a handful of female survivors in gray. Women are often the victims when order is completely out of control. Zheng Zilin grimaced. Why is that? I understand the resentment of survivors who have been oppressed. Then you should just take revenge on the leadership of the base. Why do you want to take revenge on these ordinary female soldiers? Is this how you use violence when you're allowed to master it? A female alien, Zhang Ling, came out of the red mist, and as soon as she saw a figure in front of her, she raised her gun in fear, who is it? Hands up, Zhang Zilin said softly, relax, it's me, Zhang Zilin. As soon as Zhang Ling saw Zhang Zilin, a big stone fell from her heart and her tears soared out, Major General Zhang, save us. Those greyclad workers have gone crazy and are killing people on sight. Zhang Ling's ability was a support type, with little combat power at all. If it hadn't been for my luck, I would have been dragged away by the rioters just now. Zhang Zilin patted her shoulder comfortingly follow me. It's okay. Zhang Ling was then slightly relieved. The two women hadn't gone more than a few steps when they saw a dozen more fleeing rioters. They were being chased and panicked. And somehow they got here. The rioters were eager as soon as they saw the two female soldiers. There are soldiers. Kill them. Kill them. Kill my ass and run. Zhang Ling was so scared that she shrank straight behind Zhang Zilin. Zhang Zilin exclaimed you surrender and I'll keep you alive. The crowd pressed on, just shouting mud. That pussy's not bad. Don't waste it. Let me get high first. Damn it. You're crazy. There are people chasing us back there. Mud. Can't run away anyway. Surely I'll die. Before I die I'll have a good time. Zhang Zilin couldn't bear to hear it enough. Now, drop your weapons and surrender. As a result, the rioters came charging up quite dryly this bitch is pretty hot. All together, Zhang Zilin had no choice but to strike. Half a minute later, everyone was knocked out. Zhang Zilin found some ropes and tied them nearby before continuing forward. She walked and fought all the way. Sometimes when they come across soldiers and shifters from the base, they take them under their wing. When you encounter rioters, tie them up and deal with them later. Eventually, she came to the main battlefield between the two sides. The battle has begun to wind down. After Zhang Fan left, led by Jia Mengxian, the rioters eventually failed and completely collapsed. A group of rioters forced open the base gate and escaped outside. Most of the people were stuck in the base. The crowd is busy cleaning up the battlefield and hunting down the rest of the group. We also have to count the damage and contact Duanjin at the front. Ready to handle the follow-up. The most troubling thing is that Gu Yu has disappeared. There was no one to preside over the situation at all. So Jia Mengxian, as the highest ranking officer and strongest alien at the scene, could only assume the responsibility. Jia Mengxian was sweating profusely from his busy schedule and was relieved to see Zhang Zilin a great. I was worried you'd die in the chaos. The aliens were also happy to see Zhang Zilin, with another powerful fighting force on his side. The situation finally stabilized. Zhang Zilin frowned, where are the other shifters? How come there are only a few? The scene was quiet for a moment. Jia Mengxian said bitterly, here, over there, all the bodies, 27 dead in all. Zhang Zilin was stunned, how many? It's not like the rioters had enough guns and ammo. 
How did they kill so many aliens? Jia Mengxian said angrily, we were sneak attacked by a mysterious alien. Nine times out of ten, it's that rat that can drill holes from before. Jiang Fan? Zheng Zilin frowned as she examined the body. Some of the corpses were horribly mangled, with certain parts of their bodies blown up and in pieces, like broken rag dolls. Zheng Zilin felt that it shouldn't be Jiang Fan's doing. She was well aware of Jiang Fan's strength, definitely not that strong. At least, he couldn't beat himself head on. And the way these corpses looked, they couldn't even do it on their own at full strength. It was impossible for Jiang Fan to become so strong in a short period of time. But from the descriptions of the others, it seemed that this mysterious alien would also have similar abilities to walk through walls and drill through the ground in order to come and go in the battlefield. But that's not hard evidence. The alien fruit is not alone. Some powers will appear in more than one alien at the same time. Maybe others have the ability to drill through walls? This sounds like a bit of a coincidence. But it's actually not a coincidence at all. Without that ability, that person wouldn't have been able to come into the base unnoticed. All the aliens who could come here were actually screened by the base's perimeter defenses, and were bound to possess some sort of similar infiltration ability. At that moment, a communications officer trotted over a report. Major General Duanjin sent back a message, the base can be self-determined by Major General Jia, and I've just discovered the rat's trail and will be launching an arrest soon. Mouse was the code name given to the drill shifter by the base. Jia Mengxian was disappointed when he heard this, it's really not that guy. The TV station base was at least 5 kilometers away from the location where the telegram was sent, and the man couldn't have gotten that far in a short period of time in any case. Then it is indeed someone else. Zhang Zilin began to worry about Zhang Fan again. Dense forest. More than two hours of reckless hasty marching later, 19 more survivors, for one reason or another, had collapsed. This time, just like before, Duanjin directly abandoned them and left them to fend for themselves in the dense forest. Jiang Hanxia, the shifter medic who set out with the army, couldn't stand it any longer, Major General Duan. Why don't I take a look at them? Duanjin said indifferently, no, your stamina is limited to the injuries you can treat. It must be used to aid our own people. This group of people, they don't deserve to consume your stamina. Jiang Hanxia was very disappointed, but she didn't dare to resist anything. The wounded men sniffed and fell into utter despair and anger. Chapter 122 The base will not forget her contribution. The mood in the group was starting to get off. The survivors looked at each other with anger hidden in their eyes. Duanjin coldly said nothing, only urging the team to hurry forward. Ten male survivors, at the forefront with axes and machetes, opened the way. A new batch every 15 minutes. The job is extremely physical and dangerous. The dense woods and shrubs harbor a wide variety of mutated animals. Once frightened, they can easily turn on the trailblazers. Almost none of the animals today are nice to mess with. Ants the size of the palm of your hand. Rats a dozen pounds or more. Terrifying giant praying mantises. Large flies that dare to sting. Giant snakes the thickness of a bucket. Luckily, the mosquitoes are getting fewer and fewer. I don't know if the percentage of mosquitoes that mutate is very low. Or if the mosquitoes' natural enemies are too strong. Otherwise it would be worse than death. The long procession traveled through the dense forest. And from time to time someone let out a scream. Bitten by rats. Stung by poisonous caterpillars, cut by mutant plants. Several military doctors were busy, recording the injuries, what they were attacked by, how badly they were hurt, and what the subsequent reaction was. If it's a shifter or a soldier, it will be healed. If it's a survivor, it's on his shoulders. Corner of the base. Zhang Fan stood in front of an alien with a dagger. The alien was bound all over and cried out in fear and pain, Big brother, spare me, I'll say anything. Jiang Fan said indifferently, tell me about your plans to go and capture me. I don't know about that. I'm just a useless shifter. I'm not taken seriously at all and I'm not told anything. Ha! Swish! The blade flashed. A finger fell to the ground. Ah! I say! I say! Major General Duanjin led the team. And Major General Sunway also went, totaling more than 50 Xenos, along with 200 soldiers, and 1, 000 ordinary people to carry the supplies. And, nope, that's all I know. Big brother, please, ah, ah, don't fight, don't fight, oh, yeah, 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 I remember. They thought you were at the Pearl of the Magic Sea TV Tower and were worried about you escaping, so they rushed over there, I think it should have gone in a straight line, I've said everything I know, really, pust, the alien fell to the ground dead, Zhang Fan sank into the ground and chased after Duanjin in his direction, Zhang Hanxia squatted in front of a recently deceased female survivor who had been bitten by a red poisonous ant, the wound as gruesome as a searing burn. She wailed for two hours without any medical attention and eventually died of septic wounds. Duanjin walked over a dead? How long did it last? 
Jiang Hanxia said with an ugly face, 2 hours and 15 minutes. Duan Jin glanced at her record and nodded in satisfaction, don't forget to summarize and organize it afterwards. The injuries sustained by these survivors can provide intelligence for future outings. This includes the rate of evolution of the injury and how well the treatment-free status turned out to be important information. Jiang Hanxia couldn't help but ask, Major General Duan, why don't you let me treat her? The other corpsmen glanced at her and fell silent, each going about their own work. Duan Jin glanced at this pretty girl and wanted to scold her severely, but thinking of her special ability, he can only be patient, you can heal? Jiang Hanxia stalled. How could she cure a poison that kills in two hours? Even if it can't be cured, at least get a shot for the pain. A pain-killing injection? Does it make sense for someone who was bound to die? Duan Jin snorted and then said indifferently, Jiang Hanxia, don't do meaningless things. Resources are limited, and we have to invest them in things that are more valuable and rewarding. This is the case with the allocation of your physical strength, as well as the allocation of painkillers. This woman's death gave us valuable information on the red ant toxin, and the base will never forget her contribution. That's it. Don't get carried away. Duan Jin turned to leave. Jiang Hanxia bit her red lips for a long time. The base won't forget her contribution? Just a flippant remark and a life is sent away? She thought sadly. If I'm seriously injured one day, is it the same thing? Send someone to observe indifferently. Document the whole thing. Never intervene to save my life, and leave me to die in despair? Jiang Fan stayed in his vaporized state and ran in a straight line through the dense forest. Where they passed, the mutated animals attacked, but hit nothing. It makes their little brains not understand what is happening. Soon Jiang Fan rushed out of their vision. For ordinary people and the vast majority of the alien powers, the incomparably dangerous dense forest Jiang Fan was walking as if he were walking on the ground. Jiang Fan let go of his senses as he ran making sure that there were no overly powerful mutated animals or plants around. In perception, the entire dense forest flashed with a blinding red light everywhere. There were menacing flora and fauna everywhere. Running this way, Jiang Fan deeply felt the great changes in the world. Almost all of the plants and animals that can be seen today are mutated. In the fierce competition for survival, ordinary plants and animals basically all died out. In addition, some of the plants had also gained a certain level of perception and movement, actively attacking Jiang Fan. It hadn't been like that the few times I'd been out before. Global flora and fauna are still evolving at a rapid pace. Who knows what will eventually become of it. Jiang Fan couldn't help but think of the countless tentacle monsters that had already landed, which were frantically killing in corners they couldn't see, quickly adapting to land life. The tentacle monsters were just the first animals to land, there were countless others in the water, and there was no telling what state they had evolved to. Remembering the terrifying sea serpent that penetrated the sky and the earth again. Jiang Fan's heart hit an unspeakable depression. Suddenly, a familiar figure entered the edge of Jiang Fan's perception. It's the bat guy. Batman in the guise of a bat, hanging upside down from a tree branch. Next to him was another short shifter, crouched on the same branch, talking about something. Jiang Fan paused in his footsteps. Two of them? Jiang Fan gently pulled out a pistol. Gravitational distortion. He floated up noiselessly, hidden by the red mist, and slowly drifted toward the two men keeping his pistol trained on the shorter shifter. When Jiang Fan was about 15 meters away from the duo, the short alien suddenly looked in Jiang Fan's direction and seemed to have discovered something. Jiang Fan shot without saying a word. Bang! The short shifter was shot in the forehead and fell out of the tree with his eyes rounded. A ball of silver light that only Jiang Fan could see flew toward him and disappeared into the will weapon. Batman froze at first, and immediately reacted by screaming in horror, The mouse is here. I've got the rats. He fluttered his wings and just tried to fly away but it's too late. Jiang Fan was very upset. Calling me a rat? He stomped on the trunk of the tree beside him, his almost weightless body rushing towards Batman. At the same time, the chi in his body exploded, and the ghost maneuver was launched. In almost a blink of an eye, Jiang Fan spanned over a dozen meters and suddenly appeared in front of Batman. Batman couldn't even react to the crash. Die. Jiang Fan threw a punch. Chapter 123, Luring Tigers and Driving Wolves. Boom. The big bat's body was hit on the spot and fragments of organs sprayed out from behind it. Batman couldn't maintain his bat form and physically transformed back into his human form, only to die halfway through the transformation, and the changes stopped. Eventually the mangled body of a half-man, half-bat fell. A ball of silver light flew into Jiang Fan's chest. Weapons of the wool quickly condensed. Very good. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. There was no sign of the enemy within sensory range. It means that these two are just out scouting. The enemy is still far away and it's still relatively safe here. Just then, click, the sky suddenly brightened. A bright and colorful lightning bolt descended from the sky and struck a Jiang Fan. I can actually attack beyond visual range. Jiang Fan was startled and launched his voiding in the nick of time. 
Bucket-thick lightning bolts passed through Jung Fan's body and struck the large tree, triggering a huge explosion. Rumble. The large tree that several people hugged cracked on the spot, like a split bamboo. Put. A mouthful of blood spurted out as Jung Fan's chest ached. It's amazing that the voided state is not completely immune to lightning attacks. It was unexpected. That's when da 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 da. Dense bullets shot out of the red mist in this direction. Damn. Jung Fan hurriedly leaped down the tree and landed on the ground. The accident reappeared and the ground rumbled. A giant hand made of dirt and rock suddenly reached out from the earth and violently grabbed Jung Fan. Jung Fan, however, was calm. Since you can be attacked in a tree, naturally you might be attacked on the ground as well. He was ready. 500% chakra burst. Ghostly maneuvers. Jung Fan's body instantly moved a distance of more than 10 meters. Boom. The four or five meter tall giant hand grabbed an empty hand and slapped at Jung Fan again. Jung Fan moved at high speed once again to avoid the attack. The giant hand slapped the air and smashed a large area of plants. At this point, the giant hand could no longer attack Jung Fan. Jung Fan then realized that the roots of the giant hand were stuck in the soil and could not move, and could only attack a very small area. The clay giant hand disintegrated when the giant hand alien realized that it couldn't attack Jung Fan. Immediately afterward, another hail of bullets came through the dense forest, striking the trees and sending wood chips flying. Jung Fan once again entered a state of vaporization to dodge the bullets. He frowned slightly. How come it seems like you can see me? It's fine for a lightning shifter to be able to see me with his powers. But a giant hand shifter can see me too? What a coincidence. And the bullets just now. Did the people who shot them have psychic powers? No way. There should be a shifter around to keep an eye on me. Jung Fan immediately checked the creature in his perception. In the huge explosion, all the animals were sent flying in fear and red light was everywhere. However, a finger-sized strange bug that was more than 10 meters away from him was flying suspended in midair. Not moving. Jung Fan glanced at it without a trace. The bug's body color was constantly changing, almost blending in with the background, making it impossible to see. Under the observation of the mind's light, the worm's body displayed two powers. Jung Fan ran a few steps tentatively. The bugs were still following him, not far away and not close, keeping a distance of about a dozen meters or so. It's really you. Jung Fan narrowed his eyes. This bug alien, which was not mentioned by Li Ching Yu, seemed to be a LYB as well. No way. Can't go hard. Jung Fan immediately changed his plans. There are so many strange powers in this group. He himself was thwarted in succession before he even got close. When you get close, you don't know what else you're capable of. And it's easy to gutter up. You can't fight for your life. You have to do something else. At that moment, three figures rushed into Jung Fan's perception range. One was covered in flames. And wherever he went, the dense forest caught fire. The light flickered on and off on one person, which was very weird. The body of the last man doubled in width horizontally, becoming almost quadrangular. As he ran, he casually plucked a large tree from the side and threw it far away like a giant javelin. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite accurate and smashed into Jung Fan a dozen meters away. Jung Fan sneered and turned his head to run. The bug in the air, indeed, flew to follow. Jung Fan leaped over a pool of stagnant water and a green hairy crab the size of a faceplate suddenly sprang out of the water. It's large AO pincer pincering at Jung Fan. Jung Fan ran over without changing his face, not even moving a bit, allowing the green-haired crab to pinch at his thigh. The green-haired crab's large or went through his thigh, caught a blank, froze for a moment, and retracted back into the pool of water. Jung Fan intentionally did not sink into the ground, but ran on the ground, running straight in the direction of the third people's hospital. Aren't you guys great? Why don't we touch the tentacle monsters? Duan Jin and the others quickly chased after the location where the lightning struck. One man said irritably, this rat is quite resilient. It actually managed to carry one of my heavenly punishment shots. It's fine. He's injured and vomiting blood. He can't run far. Duan Jin stood by a puddle of blood and carefully memorized the taste of the blood. Flying insect alien Li Qingqing was still following Jung Fan while providing vision sharing to the large force at the rear. Duan Jin clearly saw the rats were still fleeing quickly. Li Qingqing is still following the rats. Let's chase. The crowd chased them out again. The shifter with the oddly wide body took the lead. And in no time at all, he was running to the location of the pool of stagnant water. The green-haired crab scurried out again and clamped directly onto the alien's calf. Dang. It actually made the sound of metal meeting metal. Damn. The alien was startled. He took one look at the green-haired crab and, annoyed, grabbed its large or with both hands and pushed hard. Click. The great AO was broken hard. The alien grabbed the tip of the AO and thrust it hard into the crab's back, pinning it to the ground. The shifter was then relieved to be released from his transformed state, panting violently. Maintaining the state consumes too much physical energy. Soon, 
The first of the fast-running aliens arrived as well. Old Chow, why don't you run? I'm exhausted. That rat runs faster than a dog. It's over. We've startled him this time, and in case he burrows into the ground, it'll be hard to catch him again. Duanjin also came to the water pool and took a look at the green-haired crab and said with concern Old Chow, no injuries. Old Chow grinned this thing can't hurt me yet. Duanjin looked at the crowd, many of whom were tired, and could only say helplessly everyone rest on the spot and wait for the back first. His face didn't look good. The original plan was to rush to the Pearl of the Magic Sea and launch a sneak attack overnight to catch the rats off guard. It turned out to be discovered halfway through. The only thing I'm thankful for is that the other side didn't dive underground. Why doesn't he dive underground? Someone asked curiously. Duanjin thought for a moment for no more than two reasons. Either that, or there's some sort of restriction on his drilling ability that he can't activate at will. Either. Duanjin sneered, trying to lure us into a trap. Like a certain powerful mutant animal. The crowd roared with laughter. Surely it can't be the second reason. I guess it's an ability limitation. But I still hope he's waiting for us by the trap. Ha ha ha. No matter what kind of mutant animal it is, it can't stop 50 of us. Dead rat, causing me to drill in the woods. When we catch him, we must beat him severely. After a short break of a few minutes, Duanjin left two people to receive the large force behind him and continued the pursuit with the rest. Chapter 124, Space Blockade. Yikes, it's not locked? Jiang Fan slowly controlled his speed. With his physical strength, he wouldn't get tired even if he ran for another day and night. However, he couldn't run too fast. What if the enemy gave up? He saw the staring flyer pulling farther and farther away, and stopped when he knew the other man couldn't keep up physically. He pretended to pant violently, his mind disdainful, pretending to cough for a while longer. He dug around in his backpack and actually pulled food out of his carry-on space and ate it. Li Qingqing was finally relieved when she saw the rat finally stop. She landed on a treetop, gasping in agony, her lungs nearly coming out. This guy is so damn good at running. She didn't have any food on her, so she could only sadly hide in the treetops and watch Jiang Fan feast. Jiang Fan also secretly sensed the other party. No food? You can't do without food. How to stalk me without stamina? Jiang Fan deliberately threw the food away after a few bites, muttering under his breath, it's awful. There was also a bottle of pure water that was half drunk and tossed aside. Asshole. Such a waste. Li Qingqing's mouth went dry as she watched. She didn't have any food or drink at all. And the other guy was picking and choosing. Zhang Fan rested for a few minutes before getting up and leaving. Li Qingqing secretly grumbled, but still hurried over and picked up the food and water that Zhang Fan had thrown and quickly swallowed it before turning into a flying insect and continuing to track. It's a few hours of fleeing and chasing. Li Qingqing had flown off the handle. That's more distance flown in one day than since the red mist descended. She was already so exhausted that she was almost on the verge of spitting blood. It was dark. Li Qingqing couldn't carry it anymore and found an abandoned building to stop and wait for the large group. After waiting for a full hour, Duanjin and the others arrived. Their faces were off, and they all ran like dead moms. Even a soldier with good physical fitness like Duanjin was running crazy. Who the hell can stand to run for hours in a dense forest, and always be on the lookout for possible attacks? They had run all the way here in a hurry, and three of the shifters had been attacked and injured by the mutated animals. One of them so badly that he was probably going to be unable to carry them through. Duanjin's face was ugly, and he couldn't hold on even if he wanted to chase anymore. Run again and the aliens are going to riot. When he saw that Li Qingqing couldn't hold on either, Duanjin could only say, everyone get some rest and continue the chase tomorrow. It was a couple of hours before the follow-on brigade arrived. The people at the back were even worse off than the powerful alien who rushed to the front. Alien attrition is 10, soldier attrition is 30, and survivor attrition is a full 200 plus. Some people end up unable to keep up and get lost in the dense forest due to injuries or exhaustion. Some survivors take advantage of the lax administration and sneak away. Duanjin's face was ugly. A loss of this magnitude was too much for him to accept. If we can't catch any more rats, it will be a total loss. Luckily, the base was attacked by a sneak attack and Gushanyu disappeared, or else he would not have been able to deliver the goods at all. But he also knew that he couldn't give chase anymore or the team would all run apart. Everyone, rest. When they heard the order to rest on the spot, the crowd collapsed. Still unable to rest, the exhausted survivors had to simply clean up the building for the crowd to spend the night. Meanwhile prepare to cook. The military doctors were also busy, checking the bodies of all the aliens and soldiers and treating any injuries. Duanjin couldn't rest either. Meeting with several leaders as things stand, we've misjudged what the rats are capable of. First of all, he has about no flying ability. It's purely physical superhuman strength to be able to move quickly from one place to another. This girl is just too good at running. Secondly, the reason why he has more alien energy was found. Being naturally physically strong, 
he can withstand more alien energy subs. Also, from Li Qingqing's perspective, he ran for an entire day without being hit by an animal attack, so he should have some sort of ability to avoid or detect attacks in advance. Lastly, his ability to drill is very limited, and so far he has been unable to drill again. I'm guessing that drilling is extremely physically taxing, and the fact that we've been tracking it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on him to regain his strength. So, in order to prevent him from regaining his strength and drilling into the ground, we can't rest for too long. I order that all of us split into two teams, all the strong combat ability alien and the 30 soldiers with the best stamina form into one team and chase the rats all night long, the others form into the second team, led by Lieutenant Colonel Wang, and move forward steadily without losing too many men. The rats can't hold out long, we'll catch up tomorrow. After a brief setup, Duanjin rested for an hour before setting off again with his men. Li Qingqing was paralyzed with exhaustion and had to rest for a while longer. Duanjin could only follow by his nose first, but in doing so, it wasn't as accurate as Qingqing Li's tracking, and it took quite a detour. Luckily the rats never sank into the ground. It was until 4 a.m. M. when Qingqing Li rested and chased after them under the protection of several soldiers. At 7 o'clock in the morning, Qingqing Li finally found the enemy's trail again. Mao sat paralyzed under a large tree next to a building, seemingly overtired and asleep. Good chance, she didn't startle the rats, but hid in the shadows and silently observed, waiting for Duanjin and the others to arrive. The mouse was about very tired and slept unconsciously. It's kind of strange that there's not a single animal in the nearby dense forest. However, Li Qingqing didn't take it too much to heart. Once Duanjin came, Sunwei blocked off the space, so the rats couldn't run away. Li Qingqing's perspective was transmitted to Duanjin and the others, and the crowd was pleasantly surprised this dead rat finally can't run anymore. Quick, brothers step up. Duanjin was also overjoyed, but he was still cautious, Major General Sun. Wait until we arrive at the place. You block off the space first, lest he burrow and escape. Sun Wei nodded, good. With victory at hand, the crowd was invariably energized and began to accelerate. Ten minutes later, Duanjin and the others quietly came to a distance of a few dozen meters away from the rats. Don't come any closer. Right here. Seal off the space. Sun Wei closed his hands in silence. A light blue translucent cube appeared. Cubes expand rapidly through all people. Buildings. To prevent rats from escaping from the ground, he intentionally controlled the bottom of the cube to be no more than half a meter below ground. Soon he was tired and exhausted, I'm blocking an area of 200 meters asterisk 200 meters for 2 hours. Duanjin, looked at, the rat still sleeping by the tree. A sardonic smile on his lips, enough is enough. Just then, the rat's body blurred, then turned into bubbles and disappeared into the air. Negative. The crowd looked dumbfounded at crap. What's going on? Where is that grandson man? What kind of powers are these again? Isn't space blocked? How did it run? Li Qingqing was also dumbfounded. A large living person in front of himself just now had strangely disappeared. The crowd completely failed to notice that 10 meters underground. Jiang Fan had a cold smile on his lips. He touched a handful of false sweat on his forehead. Creating an illusion in Li Qingqing's consciousness and maintaining it for 10 minutes was still quite stressful. But the rewards were immense. 25 battle-hardened aliens and 30 elite soldiers were locked in a spatial blockade. According to Li Qingyu, once this ability was activated, it could never be aborted. Even the user can't do anything about it. The group has to wait for a space blockade timeout if they want to get out. In other words, the group locked themselves in. And, the building next to it was densely packed with tentacle monsters. Chapter 125, Tentacle Monster. The crowd came unbelievingly to the big tree. They didn't have Li Qingqing's visual ability, and could only get close enough to see the big tree 3 or 4 meters before they could see it clearly. The mouse is indeed gone. The ground also did not look as if humans had stayed there, and the grass and trees were all intact. It should have been an illusion or some other ability just now. The crowd panicked, I clearly saw him sleeping here. Damn, that's his power. We've been shanked. Where did the rats go? How did he know about Major General Sun's ability? There must be a traitor. Why are you locking us in here? Is. Boom. Before the words fell, an alien stepped on one of the mines laid by Jiang Fan. Fire sprayed out and the shifter died instantly and several people around him fell to the ground with serious injuries. Damn, the rats laid mines. W-O-J, this is more than too shady. Caution, don't go into the open. There may be mines too. The crowd panicked and walked out onto the grass. The earth and stone giant hand alien summoned the earth and stone giant hand again and slapped it on the ground. Boom, boom, boom. After a few mines were detonated, the surroundings finally quieted down. The crowd breathed a sigh of relief. Duanjin's face turned blue as he growled at the surroundings, asshole. Dead rat, you come out here. I know you're around. 
A silver-colored ball of light floated out from the dead man's body that was invisible to the crowd, passing through the spatial blockade into the underground and disappearing into Jiang Fan's body. Jiang Fan quietly watched the scene, holding his breath and not showing a single sign of showing his head. Hell, I don't know what other weird psychic powers they have. Maybe they can attack when they see themselves? Maybe it's possible to attack over a space blockade, like the silver light cluster? Maybe what you're seeing now is also an illusion. Anyway it's right not to come out. Are you guys in a hurry? Anxious is right. That's accurate anyway. He clearly saw tentacle monsters, large and small, startled by the sound of the mines, leaping from the canopy. After Duan Jin shouted, there was little movement around him, and he was so angry that he wanted to go crazy. This rat is so greasy. We haven't touched him since he was struck by the wrath of God. Sun Wei frowned, I reckon he trapped us here to sneak up on the big force behind us. Duan Jin's face suddenly changed. All of the combat capable aliens and the most elite soldiers are here. And the back is very empty. Although there were many people, all of them were auxiliary type aliens or ordinary soldiers. Especially the hundreds of survivors. If they get messed up after a sneak attack, the consequences are unimaginable. Duan Jin was anxious and was about to speak when a thick tentacle descended from the sky and swept away an alien beside him. The alien said fearfully help, help. Before the words fell, a tentacle shot out from the dense forest. Damn, what the hell? There's a monster. The crowd exploded and many were swept away on the spot. A few who reacted quickly managed to dodge the blow, but more tentacles were subsequently shot out from the red mist. Shoot, fight. The soldiers frantically fired bullets into the sky. Exults with long-range attack abilities also sent out various attacks. Bullets, lightning, acid rain, wooden thorns, sweeping across the area above the heads of the crowd. Wow, the body of a truck-sized tentacle monster fell from the canopy. The bizarre monster-like appearance of the crowd made their heads spin. However, more tentacles were still shooting out. The crowd had no chance to analyze it at all, and could only get tired of dealing with it. After a few more tentacle monsters died, only Duan Jin was left at the scene still resisting, and everyone screamed miserably as they were swept away by the tentacles. Asshole! You come out here! Dead rat! Duan Jin's body was shrouded in black mist, and with a flash of his axe, he was able to cleave through a tentacle. But resistance was futile as more tentacles rolled in. Duan Jin swung his axe wildly. Zhang Fan still looked on with a faint smile and did not make any movements. This guy is still pretty good. The edge of the axe grazes the tree and the trunk blows a big hole. At the same time the black mist corroded in and the trunk of the tree visibly decayed. Melee is one ability. Black mist would be another. He has two more. One is smell. And that last one is unknown. Zhang Fan quickly memorized. Take the group's powers and correspond them to those of the ability orbs seen by the mind's eye. When you see this ability again in the future, you can approximate the effect of the other person's ability. Duan Jin eventually couldn't resist, and his explosive state couldn't be maintained for long. After a few minutes, his movements inevitably slowed. Duan Jin was horrified as he was swept away by a thick tentacle. He saw an incomparably horrifying scene of densely packed tentacle monsters coiled over the woods. All the companions caught earlier had been crafted into strange cocoons that hung from the branches of the trees, glowing with a pale blue ethereal light. Help me, Major General Duan. Ah, don't, don't, help, I don't want to die. Woo woo, Duan Jin was shocked and angry, and couldn't do anything to resist even if he wanted to. The tentacles were wrapped with such force and covered in such thick slime that it was almost impossible to move. All he could do was watch as he was made into a cocoon. Jiang Fan was satisfied. Good, all caught. How nice it is that there's no danger to yourself at all. Jiang Fan originally just wanted to lock this group of people here and then just stand on the ground and watch the show himself. Who knew that he was locked out? That's fine. I'll go to the trouble of the people in the back. According to the tentacle monster's habits, it wouldn't kill them anytime soon anyway. Jiang Fan rose out of the ground, maintained his vaporized state, and ran towards the back. After running for the better part of an hour, he finally saw the troops in the rear. Something's wrong here. Two. Survivors rioted. During the break, the alien worriedly discusses the riots at the base in Gushan Yu's disappearance. Overheard by several survivors, word spread quickly. Soon all the survivors knew. Taking advantage of the absence of Duan Jin and other powerful aliens, the survivors fled in batches. Officers on the scene spotted it and launched a pursuit. Then the survivors realized that the soldiers weren't really that much of a threat without the shifters to go along with them. The power of the guns was greatly reduced because the red mist severely blocked vision and the soldiers could not see the survivors at all. Then there were bold survivors who tried to grab a gun. And when they did, they shot at the soldiers. Things got completely messy after that. When Jiang Fan came over, this was the mess he saw. There was gunfire everywhere. Bodies and howling wounded everywhere. People running away with their heads in their hands. 
Jiang Fan stood calmly. In his vaporized state, the bullets were no threat at all. He wasn't interested in this group of ordinary people either. He walked around and soon, saw, in a hidden corner, a small group of soldiers were protecting a group of aliens as they quickly left. Found you guys. Jiang Fan followed. He followed nonchalantly for a dozen meters or so, withdrawing only one hand from the vanity and pulling out his pistol to fire it up. Chapter 126, Catching Jiang Han Shebang. Bullets shot out of the red mist, right in the back of the head of a shifter. The alien poofed to the ground. The crowd didn't care and thought it was a stray bullet. Run. Run. Don't look back. Run. No need to save it. Dang is finished. The silver light flew into the weapon of will. Jung Fan continued to shoot. Bang. Another alien fell. Bang. After three consecutive Xenos went down, they finally realized that it wasn't a stray bullet. When they were targeted, they panicked and shot backwards. But it's pointless. Jiang Fan walked calmly, letting the bullets swoosh past his surroundings and firing without slowing down. One alien fell. A single silver ball of light drifted into the weapon of will. The will weapon solidified more and more. Someone's chasing us from behind. Run. How can he see us? Alamancy. It's an alien. It's rats. It must be the rat. He can shoot through the red mist. As more and more people died, the crowd was beyond terrified and dispersed. Jung Fan didn't care about the ordinary soldiers. He just followed the alien and let the others escape. In the end, all but one of the female Xenos died. Jung Fan walked up to this pretty female alien and slowly and methodically changed a magazine. The system prompt popped up frowny face ginger semen, age, 21, quality, 9 points, soft, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Zhang Hanxia sat on the ground in shock and oh, don't kill me, I'm just a doctor. Ooh, her face carried an indescribable sense of brokenness, and with tears streaming down her face and slightly red eyes, she was even more unusually seductive to male destructive desires. This, coupled with the fact that she was exhausted after two days of grueling trekking in the dense forest, added to her beauty. Zhang Fan laughed. She's Zhang Hanxia? This woman, Li Qingyu has written about specifically. There is only one ability that is very specific. Plant hypnosis. She could consume physical energy to catalyze plants. The exact effect was unclear. Anyway, the higher-ups attached great importance to it. And I didn't expect it to be sent out this time as well. Jiang Fan looked at an ability light cluster within Jiang Half Summer's body show what you can do if you want to live. What Li Qingyu said about her ability was just what Li Qingyu said. Jiang Fan would not let his guard down until he had seen her ability with his own eyes and was sure that there was no danger. Jiang Hanxia puzzled but did not dare to resist, hurriedly wiped away her tears, took out a small plastic bottle from her waist and poured out a black seed on the ground. Then she closed her eyes. The black seeds changed with the naked eye. Takes root, grows, grows a short branch, and blooms in half a minute. This flower. Jiang Fan marveled. Wasn't it the moon work you'd been collecting? Did Jiang Hanxia also discover that this herb can cure diseases? Sweat dripped from Jiang Hanxia's forehead, and her face turned white with exhaustion. She carefully snapped off the stem of the moon grass. Pitifully this grass stem can cure many diseases. Really? Don't kill me. I'm just a doctor. Woohoo. Jiang Hanxia had previously thought that she was a brave woman for fighting for supplies for ordinary survivors, only to be suppressed beyond hope by Duanjin. When Jiang Half Summer really encountered a murderous demon like Jiang Fan, she realized how cowardly she was, and didn't have a single ounce of courage to resist. Jiang Fan was satisfied. Moon grass is very rare. Just because of this ability. Jiang Hanxia should also stay. Not to mention she's beautiful. Jiang Fan still had a lot of questions to ask her. But he didn't have time for now. Catch it first. A bundle of rope suddenly appeared in Jiang Fan's hand. Jiang Hanxia was startled. Where? Where's the rope? Jiang Fan ignored her and grabbed her hands and feet and tied them together. Then he ripped open the portal and carried Jiang Hanxia inside. The surrounding area was still in chaos. But Jiang Fan no longer had an ounce of interest. Love to fight. None of my business. After Jiang Fan left, the intense gunfire attracted the surrounding aboriginal survivors, and the situation became more and more chaotic. With a gun? It's the army? Officials have finally come into the city to rescue them? Mud. I killed someone. I won't be shot. They seem to be imploding? Never mind. Let's grab the guns first. With the guns, we can grab more food. Fortune Center. Block C. Jiang Fan stayed out all night again. The women were all worried. This time it's different again from the last time. All the women knew that the TV base wanted to find trouble with Jiang Fan. Could it be that Jiang is trapped? Should we go save him? Save Tao? Don't be silly. If brother Jiang can't handle it, we're just giving away food if we go. Why don't we stay away and not drag our feet for brother Jiang? Li Qingyu was even more nervous if Jiang Fan is captured. Who else will be able to kill Gu Yu to avenge me? 
Sunway's spatial blockade was just too restrained against Jiang Fan's teleportation and drilling. Once trapped in a small area, no matter how strong Jiang Fan was, he couldn't beat dozens or hundreds of exalts. One night passed. Jiang Fan still hasn't returned. All the women have stayed up with dark circles under their eyes. No one can sleep. More and more worried. Tang Shuelawa clapped her hands and said after attracting everyone's attention sisters, let's pack up all our things, and all of us put on sneakers and hiking clothes, so that in case Jiang comes back and we need to leave right away, we can go right away. With the experience of the last time, Tang Shuelawa and the other women knew that stabilizing the rear first was the most important thing. Women who were not on good terms with her would not dare to make trouble at this point in time. That's asking for trouble. The women responded in turn. Secondly, let's go to the 28th and 33rd floors in groups to keep watch, so we can have a reaction time with the others in case of danger. Lastly, here are a few daggers. Everyone hide one on your body each. I mean just in case ah, uh, just in case Jiang is captured and there are enemies coming to capture us. It's better for everyone to kill themselves immediately. Don't disgrace Jiang. Of course, the key thing is to save yourself from suffering. Everyone is a woman. You all understand. Tang Shuelawa's voice was dry and helpless. All the women were pale. After losing the shelter of Jiang Fan, the cruel end times were hideously exposed to every woman. Every woman knows very well that as a beautiful woman, she is bound to be brutally abused if she is captured by her enemies. Not every man is like Jiang Fan. The women all clutched the daggers in their hands, their fingers white and their faces stony. A few of the women were on the verge of tears and shaking. They were afraid to die, but even more afraid to be captured by the enemy. How many people will dare to commit suicide when that moment arrives? No one is clear. Just then, a blue portal suddenly appeared. Jiang Fan walked out carrying a beautiful woman. Life's ups and downs are just too exciting. All the women covered their mouths and cried with joy at Jiang. Jiang, brother Jiang is back. Brother Jiang, you're finally back. Woo hoo hoo. A group of women surrounded Jiang Fan. Chapter 127 Weapon of Will. Heavy sword without blade. Jiang Fan wondered why are you guys so excited? Why is there a dagger for each of you? Is someone coming? Tang Shuelua was embarrassed. No. I'm just making sure everyone is a little prepared. She was embarrassed to say what she had just responded to. Jiang Fan smiled in satisfaction. Tang Shuelua. Well done. Either way, being able to keep your head above water in the post-apocalyptic world is encouraged. This was the end times of crisis. And it was impossible for himself to be by the side of the women at all times. In case of any danger, the women will need to deal with it themselves. Jiang Fan kept giving the women psychic powers just to deal with sudden situations. He didn't expect that Tang Shuelawa, a second generation government schoolgirl, was instead more adapted to the end times than other women. It's nice. Jiang Fan smiled and said, don't be afraid. The big picture is settled. I'll wrap it up. You guys keep an eye on this woman. There's not much danger. He threw down Jiang Hanxia and walked into the portal once again. Tang Shuero and Lu Mengyao had the highest physique and the greatest strength. And the two women easily moved Jiang Half Summer into the room and watched over it with Li Qingyu. Jiang Hanxia was surprised beyond measure to see Li Qingyu tied up as well. It turned out that Li Qingyu was also captured. Li Qingyu asked, where you were taken from? Before Jiang Hanxia could speak, Tang Shuelawa coldly said, shut up. No talking. To prevent collusion, Tang Shuelawa had their mouths gagged. Now that it wasn't over, both women were from the base. And theoretically still enemies. Caution had to be exercised. Good. By Xinjia obeyed Tang Shuelawa. Li Qingyu's mouth was gagged, but she didn't struggle much. She knew it was useless to resist. These women, each one of them has psychic powers. Jiang Hanxia hurriedly begged for mercy. I'm not talking. I'm not talking anymore. Ah, don't use the socks. Okay? Um, un un. Jiang Fan walked into the portal. He teleported twice in a row to the location where Duanjin and the others were captured. He saw Duanjin and the others all turn into cocoons and hang from the treetops. The feet of some had begun to melt, and more tentacle monster hatchlings were born. Some people are pale and shivering. Someone let out a terrified scream. Some people were cursing Duanjin, complaining that Duanjin had made a mistake in command before getting everyone killed. Some people were even cursing Gushanyu. It's come to a point where morale has all but collapsed. Jiang Fan curiously touched the space blocking barrier. Cold. Flat. It feels like glass. He swung his fist violently and smashed it. Duong. The barriers didn't budge. Jiang Fan only felt the same tremendous force recoil back, and his body couldn't help but take a step back. He tried another dagger thrust. The tip of the dagger was chipped to the point, and the barrier remained unscathed. Amazing. Jiang Fan could only wait quietly. After a while, click, the spatial blockade ended, and the barrier shattered like glass, disappearing without a trace. Jiang Fan slowly approached and walked to about 20 meters before stopping. 
which was the limit distance for absorbing the will fragment. He took out his pistol and loaded the silencer, aiming it at a scowling shifter. P.I.U. This alien died instantly without attracting much attention. On the one hand, it's in a red mist and the view is poor. On the one hand, the crowd was so distracted, thinking only of their own fate, that no one had the heart to pay attention to anyone else. The silver-colored ball of light flew into Jiang Fan's chest and merged into the will weapon. The weapon of will solidified more and more, as if it could become solid at any moment. Jiang Fan continued to shoot. P.I.U. 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 One after another. The silver-colored light balls flew towards Jiang Fan. Finally, the weapon of will buzzed and solidified completely from the void. Jiang Fan instinctively knew that the will weapon had finally coalesced. He raised his hand, and an ever-changing silver-colored ball of light appeared in his hand out of nowhere. Jiang Fan's heart moved, and the silver light turned into a huge two-handed heavy sword. The light shone like a handful of translucent crystals, manifesting a weapon of will drains energy and stamina quickly. Jiang Fan didn't care and just waved his hand excitedly. The heavy sword slashed noiselessly across the trunk of the tree beside him, leaving deep sword marks. The heavy sword looked seamless but was extremely sharp. The whole process is as easy as a hot knife through butter. I finally have a weapon in my hands. Jiang Fan was overjoyed. The group finally realized it and cried out in horror damn. Someone's shooting in the dark. That rat. It's that rat. He's coming. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Since this was the case, Jiang Fan simply didn't hide anymore and quickly shot the few remaining exalts to death. Silvery light clusters still flew out of their bodies, but this time they couldn't be integrated into the heavy swords and could only disappear into the air as points of light. To the limit? Jiang Fan guessed an unleashed gravity twist, flying to the only remaining Duanjin. Duanjin glared at Jiang Fan and said hatefully, you're the mouse. You sure can fly. Jiang Fan did not say a word and slowly raised his heavy sword. Duanjin panicked, don't kill me. Don't kill me. You saved me, and I'll listen to you from now on, if I die as well. The base's strength will be greatly reduced. How can I continue to save the people of Magic Sea City? Jiang Fan lost his smile, when have you ever saved? Treat the survivors like slaves? Duanjin Riley argued, that's just the necessary price to pay, and it's a sacrifice for the greater good to try to save as many people as possible. Jiang Fan interrupted with a smirk, very well. You two are the necessary price. Only the price of my becoming stronger. Swish. The heavy sword slashed through. Duanjin. Along with the cocoon. Cracked in half. In front of the weapon of will, the tentacle monster's sticky mucus couldn't stop it in the slightest. Jiang Fan was very satisfied. It really is indestructible. It's just that weapons of will are so incredibly taxing on energy and stamina. In just a minute's time, Jiang Fan felt some fatigue both physically and mentally. In Jiang Fan's mind, the weapon of will shrunk into a ball of light and disappeared into his chest. The energy and physical exertion stops. He looked to the red mist in the canopy. He himself still alarmed the tentacle monster. They had jumped down the tree. Dense and overwhelming. Jiang Fan frowned. It's amazing how fast the damn thing reproduces. He remembered that there were also tentacle monsters over at the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, which was still close to the Fortune Center District. Have to check in regularly to see how things are going, lest you accidentally get surrounded by tentacle monsters. A tentacle shot out from the red mist and grabbed straight at Jiang Fan. Voiding. Jiang Fan was calm and allowed the tentacles to pass through his body. He checked and none of the tentacle monsters that had come over had twisted flesh and blood. Jiang Fan then lost interest and let go of the gravitational distortion and fell, sinking into the ground, then opened the portal underground to return home. There's a lot to take away from this one, and it needs to be organized. Jiang Fan returned safely, and the haze in the women's hearts completely disappeared. Some of the women cooked, some shushed, and some put the bathwater on Jiang Fan. The room was once again lively and popular again. In the post-apocalyptic world, being able to live safely is already the greatest happiness. After eating, Jiang Fan didn't rush to deal with Li Qingyu and Jiang Half Summer first, but took out a laptop from his carry-on space. He took out all the information he got from Gu Yu and prepared to read it all today. And the flash drive. Gu Yu, that old thing or treasured hidden under the bed. Cannot be a female teacher video, right? Must be a major secret. Chapter 128, The Power on the Tattoo. Jiang Fan inserted the USB flash drive into the laptop and the contents were actually not encrypted. The flash drive held a video and an instruction document. Jiang Fan scanned through the documents first. The approximate content is, this is a top secret video sent by the Dragon National Space Agency, shot by the Moon Rabbit 8 rover on the backside of the moon on the fifth day after the red mist descended, and sent to all scientific research units to ask for brainstorming. The Dragon Space Agency? How did red mist get involved with NASA? Jiang Fan opened the video in wonder. After watching the video for more than 10 seconds, Jiang Fan's expression stared up, 
A naked man walking on the surface of the moon. Is this guy a shifter or an alien? This video wasn't faked by Gushanyu, was it? Jiang Fan carefully read the document again. A typical red-headed document, stamped with the bright red seal of top secret. He's also not institutionalized enough to see what's going on. This USB flash drive was hidden by Gushanyu in a hidden compartment under the bed. And Gushanyu definitely couldn't guess that it would be stolen. So the chances of it being a real video are extremely high. Jiang Fan watched the video a few more times over. Especially the golden tattoos on the mysterious man gave him a very special feeling. A large golden tattoo was supposed to be a hole. Made up of a dozen or so more separate parts connected together that seemed to carry some kind of special meaning. Jiang Fan looked at the tattoo for a while. Only to realize that the tattoo carried an ancient yet simple beauty. And a certain ineffable sense of rhythm. Suddenly, Jiang Fan realized that part of it seemed a bit familiar. Ha! Huh? I think I've seen that somewhere? Jiang Fan paused the video, fixed and zoomed in, and scrutinized it. After a few minutes of watching, he suddenly came to a realization. Come to think of it, it was the ability light cluster inside Li Qingyu's body. That light cluster of Li Qingyu's ability to represent gravitational distortion is divinely similar to this part of the mysterious man's tattoo. Strange, a ball of light. Why does it feel similar to a tattoo? Jiang Fan immediately looked at Li Qingyu next door through his perception. In the mind's eye view, there are two clusters of ability light within her. Gravitational distortion and will weapon. Respectively. Jiang Fan looked at the gravitationally distorted light mass and compared it to the tattoos on the mysterious man's body. It was only then that I realized that the tattoo strokes were very subtle. And that in a few strokes. They accurately portrayed the divinity of this mass of light. Although the light mass was three-dimensional and the tattoos were two-dimensional. It was clear at a glance that it was the same thing. Jiang Fan looked at the other parts of the tattoo again. Except for the small portion that I can recognize, the rest is unrecognizable, and is about as alien as anything else. Only a small piece below the navel looked a bit familiar. It seemed to be a bit similar to the physique enhancement's ability aperture, but more complex and advanced. Maybe it's the Pro Max version of the physical enhancements? Jiang Fan guessed wildly. Is the mystery man a human alien or an alien? To get this tattoo, you must first observe the ability light cluster with your mind's light. Humans had only just acquired psychic powers and the number of psychics with psychic powers was definitely limited. These tattoos looked like something that had become a system, and it was almost impossible for a human tattoo artist who had just gained powers to draw them. Besides, who has the time to draw tattoos on their body now that there's global chaos? Unless the source of mystery man's powers is tattoos, that just doesn't make sense. First of all, humans get their powers from the fruit of enlightenment, and no one has this tattoo. Secondly, if this mystery man is a powerful alien, they obviously have more powerful and numerous abilities. Not surprisingly, the alien civilization also has a well-established system based on psychic powers. In this case, it makes even less sense to have to use the ability with a tattoo. As a matter of common sense, a psychic should try to hide their psychic functions from others. What's the point of tattooing it on your skin? Showing off how much of a difference you can make? Isn't that fucking brain dead? Unless, harnessing abilities with tattoos has some sort of special advantage. Jiang Fan frowned. The fruit of ability from the tree of mana. A cluster of abilities in the light of the mind. The ability tattoo on mystery man's skin. He had already observed three outward manifestations of his powers. Jiang Fan was completely confused as to the reason for this. He played the video a few more times. His heart was still overwhelmed with emotion. How had mankind ever thought that a physical body could also survive in the cruel universe? He was basically certain that the mystery man was an alien. Jiang Fan remembered Guo Chinting's theory, the red mist is definitely the work of aliens. Li Qingyu even asked Guo Changting rhetorically at the time where the aliens were. Guo Changting's argument is, an intelligent race that can cross the vast expanse of stars to come to Earth. When they want to be invisible, why should they let you find out? Turns out that wasn't the case at all. That alien race was indeed discovered by humans, only to be hidden by the higher-ups. This news is definitely bad news. If the red mist was just an environmental change, or a mad scientist having a lot of fun, then there was still hope for human civilization to return to the top of the world. But if aliens are behind this, Jiang Fan put the USB flash drive into his carry-on space with a heavy heart. He pulled out other documents and information and read them. Most of it is internal TV station business, and there isn't much valuable information. However, Jiang Fan still saw some important information. First, the entire city of Kyoto is actually lost. No wonder one feels that the senior management is hidden from God. Secondly, it wasn't that the military hadn't made any moves. Except that the army outside of Magic Sea City had previously been blocked by Gushanyu and wasn't allowed to enter. As for the reason, Jiang Fan knew with his ass. Gushanyu was nothing but worried that the military would enter the city and forcefully take away his power. 
After organizing the information, Zhang Fan went to another room and untied the ropes on Li Qingyu and Zhang Half Summer. The jig is up. We can deal with these two women. Gu Shan Yu is dead, and the TV station base has seven or eighty dead alterans, so I don't think it will last. Li Qingyu couldn't believe it, huh? Zhang Fan pulled out Gu Shan Yu's corpse and threw it on the ground. Li Qingyu was pleasantly surprised. Thanks. Thank you. The excitement in Li Qingyu's heart was overflowing. Dad. Mom. I've avenged you. The son of a bitch is finally dead. Jiang Hanxia, on the other hand, looked at Gu Shanyu as corpse in horror. The fear of Jiang Fan in her heart reaching the extreme. This untouchable big shot is now thrown on the ground like a dog. Was this Jiang Fan's strength? How the hell did he do that? Jiang Fan pulled out another handful of enlightenment fruits if you follow me. Not only will you have nothing to eat or drink, but you'll also have enough alien fruit. He didn't have time to cultivate any bullshit feelings, lure was the most direct and efficient means. In the dangerous post-apocalyptic world, everyone longs for more and more powerful powers. Smashing women with alien fruits now is as effective as smashing women with money in times of peace. The two women froze again. They couldn't figure out that Jiang Fan actually had so many alien fruits that were worth thousands of dollars. Why do you have so many alien fruits? Jiang Fan didn't explain. He just took a perception fruit and gave it to Li Qingyu. This is the fruit of perception. All my women have it. And this one is yours. Zhang Hanxia looked at Li Qingyu in surprise. A look of you've gone rogue too. Li Qingyu took the perceived fruit in a panic. Her cheeks blushing. I, I, I haven't thought about it yet. Zhang Fan ignored her and took out another one. Bloodly tempting Zhang Hanxia, do you want it? Zhang Hanxia eyed the alien fruit, I. Before she could finish, Zhang Fan threw the fruit of enlightenment at her. Zhang Hanxia caught it with her hands and feet, carefully cupping it in the palm of her hand. Her movements had said it all. The corner of Zhang Fan's mouth lifted, good. Take my alien fruit and you're my man. Go take a shower and I'll meet you in your room. With that, he walked into the room. Ginger Hafsia was at a loss for words. She looked at the alien fruit in her hand and then at Zhang Fan's room, hesitating. Leave? Where to? And did Zhang Fan allow himself to leave? Just kidding. The women laughed softly. Tang Shuelawa endured her soreness and smiled a sister half summer. Hurry up and take a bath. Tonight belongs to you. You'll have to compete with everyone else on a level playing field from now on. Chapter 129 Plant Hypnosis Half an hour later, Zhang Hanxia wriggled into Zhang Fan's room. Zhang Fan was sitting by the window, casually eating a handful of enlightenment fruits. A pile of fruit peels were thrown on the plate, building up as high as a small mountain. Looking at Zhang Hanxia secretly staggered. How many alien fruits does he have? Bang bang. Zhang Fan patted the sofa next to him, come here. Zhang Hanxia jumped in fright like a frightened bunny before walking over gently. Zhang Fan glanced at her. The delicious food was brought to his mouth. But he wasn't in a hurry at all. Surrounded by so many beautiful women day in and day out, he had been able to take it lightly. Zhang Hanxia looked beautiful to most men and was a proper goddess in the past, but she could only be considered ordinary among Zhang Fan's women. Zhang Fan said indifferently, you're surprised? Ginger Hafsia calmed down a bit and nodded her head, yeah, how can you eat so many alien fruits? Can your body take it? Hmm. Zhang Fan frowned, what do you mean? There's a limit to the number of powers that can be taken on? Zhang Hanxia said in surprise, don't you know? Everyone at the base knows that each of the powers puts a huge burden on the body, usually one or two, and up to three for the young and strong. Only a few gifted people and the physically strong can take on more. I thought it was common knowledge. There's this restriction? Why didn't I feel it? Zhang Fan understood after pondering for a moment. He himself had eaten the physique strengthening fruit early on, and had a higher overall physique in order to keep eating more exotic fruits and not feel physically burdened. It did. However, Give him a wake-up call. Even if the combined physique is strong, there is an upper limit to the amount of psychic abilities it can take on. Unfortunately, what is that cap? He didn't know how to calculate it. In addition, his own women all have two or three powers. They should popularize physical strengthening among them, or else they won't be able to eat the new power fruits anytime soon. This news is very important. Jiang Fan said indifferently, I have a clear distinction between rewards and punishments here, and I'll reward you with a new alien fruit. What do you want? Ha, huh? Jiang Hanxia said in confusion, and pick? Jiang Fan thought for a moment, oh yeah, you can't pick, because you already have two powers. The third one must be physically enhanced or you won't be able to add a new power in the future. You have to take a bath after eating the body strengthening fruit. It's too late today. Forget it. I'll give you another physique strengthening fruit in the morning. Eating it will strengthen your physique. Jiang Hanxia's entire body was confused. Does he even have enough alien fruits to just arrange them? Jiang Fan saw. The red light on Jiang Hanxia's body completely disappeared and some green light began to appear. Apparently, under the temptation of the fruit of enlightenment, Jiang Hanxia's resistance disappeared. 
Ha, it's the benefits that are eternal. Neither men nor women are exempt. This female doctor was still useful, even though she was only a medical student, and could replace Li Qingchuan to a certain extent. Zhang Fan asked again, did you try to catalyze the alien fruit at the base? Ginger Hafsia said with disappointment, Director Go asked me to try several times. All kinds of plants that grow exotic fruits have been tried. Hypnosis is useless. It can only accelerate the growth of the plant and not grow new exotic fruits. Jiang Fan nodded. That's normal. If she can spawn an alien fruit, it's a strategic weapon. There was certainly no way they could have been sent out to participate in the battle. And there was no way the base could have only 100 or so aliens. Jiang Fan turned off the lights after asking what he wanted to ask. Okay, enough talk. Time for bed. Jiang Hanxia's little face swished red. Early morning. Jiang Fan stretched comfortably, with a combined physique of over 200, he had no physical need to sleep at all. But after fighting with Duanjin and the others for two days two days ago, he labored and was exhausted. After a good night's sleep, he finally fully recovered. Jiang Fan glanced at last night's system alert frowny face ding. One day ago, Jiang Hafsummer consumed a pack of compressed cookies and returned 1,300 packs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. One day ago. Jiang Hafsummer consumed one fruit of enlightenment, perception and returned one. Three hundred of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago. Jiang Hafsummer consumed a can of military braised meat and returned one. Three hundred of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago. Jiang Hafsummer consumed one pack of military squash and returned one. Three hundred packs. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Twenty-one days ago. Jiang Hafsummer consumed one enlightenment fruit, plant hypnosis, and returned one. Three hundred of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, plant hypnosis one star. When consumed, you gain the ability to catalyze plants. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Jiang Fan immediately took out a plant hypnosis fruit and ate it. Plant hypnosis, one star. You can accelerate plant growth. The introduction to this ability is particularly simple. Jiang Fan couldn't see anything special either. Gravitational distortion. Voiding. Jiang Fan flew across the ceiling to the roof of the building, ready to find a plant to test. Now, weeds are starting to grow in the nooks and crannies of the roof as well. Jiang Fan had never noticed these details before, so he squatted down to take a closer look. The weeds started growing from a little bit of dirt in the corner, then gradually adapted to the concrete, hardening their roots into it, slowly growing and spreading towards the center. Jiang Fan broke a piece of cement with a punch, crushed the cement, and the roots of the weeds go in all directions. Jiang Fan couldn't help but sigh when he saw this. With the red mist in effect, the concrete slabs can't keep the weeds out anymore. If the situation doesn't change, it won't be long before the traces of human existence are completely submerged by a sea of plants. Thinking again of the aliens hiding in the shadows, Jiang Fan's mood became more and more depressing. What kind of terrifying existence would an alien who crosses the universe in the flesh be? Jiang Fan couldn't help but think of King Frieza the Great from Seven Dragon Balls. Don't. Who can stand that kind of pervert? Jiang Fan still does not understand. What are aliens running to the bird not pulling the earth for? For a civilization of their level, the planet should be so barren that it's not much different from a desert. They either ignored it or passed by and simply destroyed it. As simple as a human stepping on an ant. Why the red mist disaster? Isn't that redundant? Jiang Fan couldn't figure it out. So he bet his intention on a weed. Plant hypnosis. A great deal of physical energy surged out of the body and into the weeds. Weeds grow fast. Within just half a minute, it had grown from a dozen centimeters to over a meter tall. The nearby concrete floor was completely torn up by the roots of the weeds. A finger-thick root, dark and tough, weaves and intertwines through the concrete, eventually arching out of the ground. Jiang Fan pulled up a rhizome and tugged hard, but actually tugged continuously. It wasn't until he exploded 200% of his chakra that he pulled the root off. Chapter 130, Physique Plus 1, Injured White Fox, Jiang Fan was taken aback, good lord, this thing is almost as tough as steel, Jiang Fan didn't know what this thing could do, but it was strong as a rope anyway, just casually collected a large bundle and threw it into the carry-on space for later use, as for the stamina expended, Jiang Fan carefully experienced that he was able to spawn about 4 or 50 weeds in one breath, Jiang Fan took stock of the fact that he had gained a lot from this battle with the TV base, abilities increased by 4, Plant hypnosis, gravitational distortion, weapons of will, and light of mind. He also gets quite a bit of important information. The loss of Kyoto City, the suspected aliens on the moon, the nearby forces of Yang Shaoza, and the burden of alien powers on physical strength. By the way, there were two more women, Li Qingyu and Jiang Hanxia, who were considered small prizes attached to the Great War. 
Jiang Fan gradually realized that there were fewer and fewer survivors outside as time passed. There are even fewer women, and even fewer beautiful women. The beautiful women who can survive out there are either they are shifters themselves, either that or fall to a strong RBQ. It was only at the TV station base, a survivor colony established by such old forces, that the previous order could barely be maintained, with a large number of women surviving and a higher probability of beautiful women appearing, to deal with the aliens hiding in the shadows. I continue to get stronger, and to get stronger I have to go to the big settlements. That's where there are enough women. Jiang Fan thought darkly, Yang Xiaoza's unit is good. Either that, or find a way to lure Yang Xiaoza into the city so he can collect the survivors. As for how the military enters the city and collects the survivors, that's the military's business. According to the records of Yang Xiaoza's correspondence with Gu Shan Shi, the military seems to be very sure about this. Anyway, when all the survivors are gathered together, you can go to the military colony and pick peaches yourself. Jiang Fan mused. Survivors are scattered everywhere out there. Where can I find it myself? It's too much work. It's better to have a big settlement. Jiang Fan made up his mind and planned to take a look at the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy first. I wonder what's become of the swarm of tentacle monsters over there. Jiang Fan spawned a few more weeds and collected more grass roots. When he returned home, the women had already made breakfast. Jiang Hanxia also woke up, shyly and awkwardly standing in the corner not knowing what to do. Yesterday you were the enemy. Today you're the enemy's woman? She felt a bit like a traitor. Li Qingyu was also a bit embarrassed. Tang Shuelua was very much a big woman's relief. Sit down, Sister Qingyu, Sister Half Summer. According to John's order, you are the last to come and sit at the end. And the sister of all. The two women blushed and cowered in their seats in the far corners. Jiang Fan picked up a mutant frog roast and ate it. No matter what the food of the day was, mutated frog meat and enlightenment fruits were a must for him every day. He also demanded that each woman must eat one stick of mutant frog meat a day. The more the better. Women like Hu Lili and Tang Shu Elua, who had eaten physique enhancement, were fine and had larger meals. The other women got a bit of a headache. They stay in their rooms every day, don't exercise much, and don't eat much. So, a few days ago, Jiang Fan made a special trip out to get some fitness facilities for exercising. Treadmill, rowing machine, whatever. Getting women to exercise every day burns off physical energy and keeps them in shape. The girls were still lazy and didn't want to exercise in the first place. Tang Shuelua secretly reminded each girl again, over time. Who likes a fat woman when other women have perfect bodies and you become a fat woman yourself? The women then responded. In the end times, being abandoned by Jiang Fan was tantamount to death. Only then did all the women exercise themselves, and now the meals were bigger. Jiang Fan was in a good mood as he ate with the women. By Xinjia suddenly knocked over a plate by mistake. Wow. The room fell silent and everyone looked at her. By Xinjia stuttered in shock and oh. No. Sorry. My strength seems to have suddenly gotten stronger. As she was saying this, a small amount of black dirt appeared on the surface of her body and an unpleasant odor was emanating. The women covered their noses in disgust, it stinks. Only Tang Shuiyang and Hu Lili looked at Bai Xinjia enviously. Bai Xinjia blushed as red as dripping blood in embarrassment, what? What's going on here? Jiang Fan laughed, it's fine. It's the effect of eating mutated frog meat. If you eat too much of it your physique will be enhanced. Bai Xinjie was surprised, really? The women realized this and were envious, brother Jiang. I also want to strengthen my body. In the post-apocalyptic world, the stronger the physique, the greater the chances of survival. This truth was understood by everyone. Jiang Fan smiled and said more mutant frog meat then. The women looked at the meat skewers in their hands with glowing eyes and feasted on them. Even Li Qingyu and Jiang Hanxia who had just arrived, were no exception. It's the kind of good stuff that no one wants to miss out on. Ding. Lu Mengyao consumed one mutant frog roast and returned one. 300. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Tian Tian consumed one mutant frog roast and returned one. 300. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Su Jin consumed one mutant frog roast and returned one. 300. It has been put into the carry-on space. Next to Magic Ocean Film and Television Academy. Cubby's pet grooming. A white fox with glowing blue eyes trudged through the doorway. It was covered in blood, and a piece of fur lifted from its right thigh, revealing bright red flesh. The white fox limped through the beauty store and out the back door into a courtyard, panting painfully for a moment before moving on, slowly moving towards a building. The wound on his thigh dripped blood all the way down, sticking everywhere. What used to be a one-minute run, it took white fox a full hour to finally move to the stairway. The lock on the iron door of the staircase was immediately unlocked. A girl ran out anxiously, picked up White Fox in her arms, and cried out with a sobbing voice, Cher, Cher, what's wrong with you? 
Chapter 131, This Beast Can't Work Anyway, Eat It. The white fox was curled up in Su Xiaomei's arms, dying. Su cried out in pain, heartily stroking the white fox's wounds, Schwer, it's all my fault. If I hadn't let you go out hunting every day, you wouldn't have gotten hurt. The white fox struggled to raise its head and licked Su Mayer's palm, seemingly comforting its master. At that moment, a few men and women came around from the depths of the red foggy hallway. The leader was a tall, thin man named Song Peng, whose hair was greasy from not having bathed for a long time. Song Peng said anxiously, where's the prey? What's it doing back here without prey? Su said sadly, Cher is hurt. Injured? Song Peng probed in surprise. This fox is really hurt. This fox is so good that the whole small building knows about it. If it weren't for this white fox who often returned from hunting, the crowd would have starved to death. The others also gathered around, looking at white fox's injuries and talking about them. When will it be ready? If it doesn't hunt, what are we going to eat? Gee, this fox is so careless. He must have run out and fooled around and messed up. Cut the crap. What now? A beast which is so delicate. Just a little skin wound. Little sister. Look at you carefully. Ha ha ha. A couple of the old mans were even more gloating. Su Xiaomei. This little girl. Relying on the white fox to be able to hunt. Pretended to be noble and usually ignored no one. She even presides over the distribution of the meat of the prey. Can a little kid, or a pussy, do something that big? Moreover, Su had to distribute it fairly. It's ridiculous. What does a little girl know about fairness? Respect for the old and love for the young are not understood. Isn't it natural to take care of the elderly? Well, now that white fox is injured, let's see what you're still fooling around with. A middle-aged woman with a child in her arms named Li Ting said, It's fine if you don't eat. My child is only six years old. How can he grow up without food for three days? Little sister, can your fox go out tomorrow? As Sue listened to the words of the crowd, her heart went cold and her eyes swirled with tears. At this point, the white fox didn't even open his eyes. Song Peng noticed something wrong with the white fox. The thing seemed to be badly injured. Song Peng began to worry and reached directly for the white fox, you show me. Su turned around in a hurry, what are you doing? The white fox snapped his head up, baring his teeth in a threatening low growl. Song Peng was startled and snapped, wasn't I worried? The white fox shriveled up again and slumped down, as if the movement had consumed him so much this time that his breathing was getting out of whack. By this point, everyone realized that white fox's injuries seemed particularly severe. Now everyone can't sit still. Sneering aside, if the white fox really failed, everyone would have to go without food. Su Xiaomei started crying again when she saw the white fox share. Share, what's wrong with you? In the nick of time, she couldn't afford to be angry, and cried out in her sickness, who has alcohol and gauze at home. Give me some. Stop the bleeding for share. The crowd hesitated, not at my house. I don't have it either. I'm a single guy. Where do I get that stuff? Li Ting's family should have one. She has a child at home and it's inevitable that children stumble. Su Xiaomei immediately looked at Li Ting and said anxiously, Sister Li, give me some alcohol gauze. This, Lydia got embarrassed. She had just a small half bottle of alcohol at home and not much gauze left. Medical supplies are life-saving these days, so how could she afford to give them away? If that beast could be saved even if it was, one could still land Su Xiaomei a favor. Now look at the animal's appearance. There is in and out of breath. Eyes to die. It would be a loss to send alcohol and gauze now. Doesn't little sister Sue depend on this beast? Fox is dead. And Sue doesn't count for shit. How is it possible to repay yourself for alcohol and gauze? Li Ting immediately said oh my family ran out. Really? Of course Su Xiaomei didn't believe it and said angrily, sisterly. Usually when I see that you have children at home, the meat that is distributed to you is the best. Those meat can be all returned by Shwer from venturing outside to hunt. Now you won't even give some gauze? Li Ting was annoyed. Hey, 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 hey. How can you falsely accuse someone? You little girl? Would I lie to you at my age? If you don't believe me, come with me to my home. Go. Let's go. Sue was on the verge of crying with anger. The white fox was dying. So how did she have time to break it up with Li Ting? The crowd was also anxious. Once white fox died, the small settlement could no longer be sustained. Next, everyone will have to do their own thing. Song Pang and a few young and strong males exchanged glances and stood silently whispering together staring wistfully at Su Xiaomei. Without the white fox's intimidation, Su was just an ordinary woman. Moreover, Su is a beautiful woman, with her petite and cute looks and two small tiger teeth. She is very attractive to men. After Song Pang and these men discussed the matter, they slowly walked towards Su Xiaomei. Song Pang sneered and reached out, Oh little sister, let me see how white fox is doing? Su Xiaomei felt that the atmosphere was not right and panicked, What are you doing? Song Pang ignored Su Xiaomei's resistance and forcefully reached out to touch the white fox again. This time, 
the white fox was unable to raise its head or protect its master, and was clearly on the verge of death. Don't touch my shwer, Su Xiaomei said nervously. Song Peng's heart was greatly determined, and he laughed to this fox didn't fulfill its hunting mission today. What are we going to eat? It's going to die anyway. Might as well eat it. It wasn't Song Peng's bad taste. Rather, he thought that by eating the fox, he might be able to gain the fox's powers. During this period of time, the fox hunted all kinds of mutated animals from the outside, and after the people ate them, they all felt that their physical strength had become much better. Not one person or two so, but several felt this way, since eating all those weak mutant animals made them stronger. What about eating a powerful fox? Is not stronger, even gains psychic powers. This survivor colony is relatively closed. To this day, no one knows that white fox's psychic ability comes from the psychic fruit, and it is thought to be its natural mutation. The crowd sniffed and reacted immediately, yeah, the fox is the most valuable treasure. People are not without a cruel smile, right? What's the point of keeping it if it's dead anyway? Food is scarce right now, so don't waste it. It's not a big fox, so everyone can share a little and make a meal out of it. Sue couldn't believe her ears, what are you talking about? For so long, it could be said that the white fox had fed everyone here. Now that white fox is injured, you guys are actually trying to eat it. Just then, a mid-range male voice exploded, what are you doing to my niece? A strong, black, fat man wielding a kitchen knife rushed forward. Chapter 132, there are many people outside, let's eat with our own family. The crowd was startled and rushed to avoid it. Su Shame was like seeing a savior, holding the white fox and running over, crying, auntie, they're going to eat snowy. The black fat man is called Wu Yong, the aunt of Su Xiaome. Su owns a bear pet grooming store and makes a decent income. The white fox is her own pet. When the red mist descended, Wu Yong and Su Xiaome's aunt, Su Hong, traveled to Magic Sea City and temporarily stayed at Su Xiaome's home. Then the red mist suddenly descended and they were trapped here until now. Eat the white fox? Wu Yong sniffed, his eyes turned slightly, and he yelled to you ungrateful bastards. All of you, get out of my way. Wu Yong has always been overbearing, and the man is big and strong. No one dared to stop him. Song Pang and the others could only grimace and watch as Wu Yong escorted Su Xiaomei away. The two came to the fourth floor, Su's home. Su Hong then greeted him, eagerly, where's today's hunt? Little sister? Su cried, share is hurt? It's dying. What? Su Hong's face instantly became unsightly. What will we eat after the fox dies? Before she could say anything, she was pulled aside by Wu Yong and whispered a few words. Su Hong's eyes instantly lit up, and after hesitating for a moment, she came over and said, little sister, why don't we eat it? Su Xiaomei looked at Su Hong incredulously, auntie, how? Auntie, look at her. Wu Yong rubbed his hands together in embarrassment and smiled, such a small white fox, just a little bit of meat. There are so many people outside, how much can we share with them? Of course we'll eat it ourselves behind closed doors. Su Xiaomei looked at her familiar and unfamiliar aunt and uncle and only felt chills all over her body. You guys actually. Su Hong hurriedly said, little sister. Ah, auntie doesn't want this to happen either. But Shuer can't do it anymore right? It's the end times now. We have to accept the reality in order to live longer. Su Hong said, wrapping her arm around Su Xiaomei's shoulders with a look of looking out for you. Su Xiaomei violently shook her hand and said with a sobbing voice, no way. No one can touch my snowy. It used to be snowy who hunted and fed you all. And you're doing this to him. Wu Yong said painfully, alas. Little sister. Words can't be said like that. You saw the situation today. If it wasn't for me rushing out, you would have been robbed by Song Peng's group of assholes. It used to be the same way. If it wasn't for me holding you down, do you think a white fox could protect you? All you have to do every day is just wait for the white fox to come back with its prey. I have much more to think about. Su Hong advised again, yes. It's the end of the world. How can we women survive without a man? In the past few days, it was all thanks to your aunt's efforts behind the scenes. Now that white fox is going to die, you let your aunt eat more. And if he obtains psychic abilities, he can also lead us to live longer. Right. Before the words fell, Sue suddenly rushed into the bedroom with the white fox in her arms, slammed the door and unlocked it. Su Hong then reacted, violently pulled the door a few times and could not pull it. Exasperated, Su Chan, open the door. Su shouted angrily, oh no, no way. She's just a soft looking face. She's not stupid. She had run away from a small city to fight in the magic sea all by herself, and had even started a pet grooming store. So how could she not see the selfishness of these people? Su Hong said angrily, Wu Yong, what are you looking at? Kick the door ah. Don't let her keep the white fox corpse all to herself. Good. Wu Yong spat twice. Kick the door with a thud. The door to the room made a loud boom. Su screamed, don't come in. Don't you come in. This is my room. Wu Yong didn't say anything. 
just kicked the door with all his heart. Boom, boom, boom. The door to the room swung open. 20 meters below ground level of Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Zhang Fan's scalp went numb as he looked at the scene on the ground. The entire Magic Sea Film and Television Academy had completely turned into a lair of tentacle monsters. There were densely packed tentacle monsters everywhere. Sticky cocoons were hanging everywhere. There are humans and animals in the cocoons, even giant dogs over 5 meters in size. The number of tentacle monsters was multiplying geometrically. As soon as this batch of cocoon tentacle monsters grows up, the tentacle monsters will sweep all the surrounding creatures. Zhang Fan could kill one or two, but there were at least thousands here. The tentacle monsters that were growing in their cocoons were even more numerous. No way. The Fortune Center neighborhood is unlivable. Who knows what day they'll break out. Zhang Fan turned his head and left. Along the way, the building was clear of survivors. Some tentacle monsters are traveling and hunting in the red mist. Many of the survivors were captured and turned into food for the young tentacle monsters. Some of the smarter ones had already started to run away. Zhang Fan met three teams of survivors who were trekking through the dense forest, desperately trying to escape from the surroundings of the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. How come there's still a bunch of people in this little building who haven't escaped? Don't they know about the tentacle monster? Zhang Fan suspiciously looked at the six-story short building not far away. He crept closer over. Ha! Huh? Isn't this the blue, ginger, white fox from back then? When Zhang Fan first went to the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy, he had fought with this white fox and remembered its power vividly. This petite white fox's battle power was even similar to that mutated frog. How is it dying? Such a powerful mutated white fox. What could hurt it? Zhang Fan hesitated for a moment, but still walked through the ground. He confirmed with his senses first that there were no shifters in the small building. Only then did he slowly fly off the ground and rise to the fourth floor bedroom window before flying in through the wall. In the mind's eye vision, the white fox has a cluster of alien lights on it, representing that it has only one ability. The girl holding the white fox was pretty, but just an ordinary person, not a shifter. It's so strange how an ordinary human beauty has survived so long. Sushume, age, 26, quality, 9 points, cute little tiger teeth, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Sue was crying when she suddenly realized that a pair of shoes had appeared in front of her and was startled. When I looked up, it was actually a handsome young man. Sue shuddered, are you, are you, are you a human or a ghost? Jung Fan lost his smile, this white fox is your pet? Sue Xiaomei sniffed, and it was too late to be afraid, yeah, it's dying, ooh hoo. Boom, boom, boom. Wu Yang is still kicking the door. Zhang Fan frowned at the door of the room, who's out there? Su said sadly, my aunt and uncle. They want to eat Shuer. You save Shuer. She's a little sick. Zhang Fan was calm. Most of the survivors lacked food. Cannibalism is all over the place. And it's very normal to eat mutated animals. Zhang Fan bent down and looked at the white fox. I can save it. But you're coming with me. Su froze for a moment. Surprised and determined, good. As long as you can save Schwer, I'm yours. She just likes Cher and people aren't stupid. She knew that if White Fox died, she wouldn't survive long as a woman. Nine times out of ten, you'll still die a horrible death. If this mysterious man across the street can save Cher, the future, take one step at a time. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth were slightly raised. His mood was very good. Coming out for a trip and collecting a little beauty, it was also considered a bit of a harvest. He crouched in front of the White Fox and pressed his hand against it. A flash of green light appeared and the wound slowly healed. After half a minute, White Fox slowly opened his eyes. Chapter 133 Military Rebellion Schwer Sue was surprised and picked up the White Fox. The White Fox seemed to be wondering how he had recovered. Licking his master's cheek before looking at Jiang Fan curiously, it understood that it was the bipedal beast in front of it that had saved itself. When Jiang Fan saw the White Fox alternating between yellow and green light, he knew that this White Fox was quite intelligent and had no hostility towards him. No hostility is good. If the white fox dared to attack himself, Zhang Fan didn't care if he killed it on the spot. Save to save, kill to kill. The two are not in conflict. Zhang Fan suddenly saw that a group of survivors were running towards the site in fear, with a few tentacle monsters weaving in and out of the woods behind them. It's time to go. At least the Fortune Center neighborhood is uninhabitable. Zhang Fan stood up, come with me. Su hesitated, my aunt and uncle are still out there. Don't hurt them. Zhang Fan glanced at the rapidly approaching tentacle monster and laughed, no problem. He traced his finger in midair. Then with a slight tear, a blue portal appeared. Su opened her mouth wide in surprise and quickly reacted, oh this is psychic ability? It turns out that humans can have psychic abilities too. I thought only white foxes had psychic abilities. Click. The bedroom room door finally cracked open a crack. Wu Yang's voice came in a hey, hey, 
A broken door wants to stop me? Delusional. The white fox meat is mine. When Su Xiaomei heard this, she was even more disappointed. Zhang Fan picked her up in a princess carry and walked into the blue portal. The portal closed instantly. Boom. Wu Yong finally kicked a big hole in the door and reached in to unscrew it. Ha ha ha. White fox meat. Here I come. Ha. Where's that stinky girl? Su Hong followed anxiously. Where's little sister? Where did little sister go? The room was empty. The windows were locked properly. And the two men were confused. They clearly saw Su walk in and then the person was gone? Where are the people? Hell no. Wu Yong couldn't help but shiver. How a big living man is gone. Just then, there was a crash from the living room balcony. As if a glass window had been smashed. Who? Who the hell did this? Wu Yong rushed out of the bedroom. It was actually Song Peng who tumbled into the home with a couple of men. You guys are killing yourselves. Angry and shocked. Wu Yong turned around and went into the kitchen to copy the kitchen knife. And then suddenly realized when he came out again. Song Peng was actually holding a crossbow in his hand. And was aiming it straight at himself. Damn it. What's with this stuff? Su Hong was also held against a dagger by one person, not daring to move. Dan Gang. Wu Yong dryly threw the kitchen knife and plopped down on his kneesy big brother. If you have something to say, please say it. Song Peng froze for a moment, not expecting the big and burly Wu Yong to actually play this hand, and snorted, I didn't think you boys had any sense. A man stepped forward and picked up the kitchen knife. That's when Song Peng slapped him across the face. Snap. Aren't you usually quite a bully? Wu Yong heart cursed Song Peng a thousand cuts LYB. Martyr has a crossbow is not early to take out. Instead, he smiled with a smile on his face, well played. I had no eyes before and rushed Mr. Song. This rendered Song Peng speechless, okay, okay, where's that little girl in your house? Give me the fox carcass. Wu Yong's heart thumped as he bitterly said, Mr. Song, I don't know ah. Just now she was in this room, and when I came in the person was gone. Snap. Song Peng growled as he slapped again, do you damn well think I look like a fool? Wu Yong waved his hand repeatedly, don't dare, really, damn, you boys must want the fox all to yourself, give it to me, ah, brother Song, really not ah, ah, don't fight, I didn't lie to you, after the crowd violently beat up Wu Yong and Su Hong, husband and wife, the two still insisted that Su Xiaomei disappeared on her own, damn, these two guys are pretty tough mouthed, Su Chan is probably already running away, shit, wouldn't that white fox be gone, all right, Pull that pussy over and let the brothers have a good time. Let's see if surname Wu says anything. Wu Yang and Su Hong begged for mercy. They were overwhelmed with grief and indignation. Su Xiaomei disappeared here. Why is it that no one believes the truth? Just then, another clatter was heard. A thick tentacle stabbed into the room and wrapped around the flailing Song Pang and rolled him out. In an instant, Song Pang disappeared into the red mist outside the window. The crowd looked dumbfounded. Immediately afterward, more tentacles rushed in through the various windows. Wow. Wow. The crowd exploded. Help. Crap. What the hell? Cut it. Cut it. Can't hack it. It's too sticky. A few minutes later, everyone was grabbed by the tentacle monster and made into cocoons to hang from the branches. Wu Yong came to his senses and realized that he was stuck in a cocoon, surrounded by densely packed cocoons. There are animals and people in the cocoon. Next to him is the cocoon of his wife, Su Hong. Some of them had melted most of their bodies, but they were still alive letting out wails of pain that didn't sound like human voices. Wu Yong screamed in horror and oh, don't, help, little sister Su save me, little sister Su, the perimeter of the magic sea, the 910th troop station, the quiet base was suddenly filled with the sound of gunfire. Yang Xiaoza in the office stood up violently and shouted with a cold face guards, the guards, what's going on? There was no response from outside. Yang Xiaoza hurried out the door, the corridors in the red mist were empty and dead. The four guards outside are all gone. At that moment, the sound of clicking footsteps came from the depths of the red mist. A hawk-nosed officer, stepping on blood, walked out of the red mist. Behind them followed a black crowd of officers and soldiers. Yang Xiaoza's gaze condensed, and he drew his pistol quickly and angrily, Zhu Jie, why are you here? Where are the others? The guards. Guards. Juger snorted, there's no need to shout. All your men are dead. I advise you to put down your gun. I can save your whole body. Yang Xiaoza said angrily, Xu Jie, you're insurgent. It's going to be court-martialed. Zhu Ji laughed wildly, ha ha ha. Where's the court-martial? Cut the crap. Yang Xiaoza, I'll ask you one last time. Surrender to me and fuck with me. Yang Xiaoza said firmly, no way. You're not a state-appointed officer. Before his words fell, Zhu Jie threw a punch. Yang Xiaoza's head exploded like a watermelon. Zhu Jie laughed wildly with reckless abandon. Now, troop 910, I'm in charge. The crowd cheered. 
Chapter 134, Sitting in rows and sharing fruits the room erupted in joy. Second uncle. Bull. Second. I'm counting on you to lead the big guys from now on. Second brother. In the past you led everyone to become rich, but in the future it's up to you to lead everyone to make a living. Village chief Zhu, I've long seen that you're a man of character and have made up my mind to follow you. Amidst the compliments of a group of relatives, Xu Jia proudly waved his hand, don't worry. In the future, if there's a bite of food from me, Zhu Jia, I guarantee that young and old won't be able to starve. Next to the 910th troop station, there's a Zhu Jia village. This group of people were all villagers of Zhu Jia village, and all of them were related to Zhu Jia. After the red mist descended, the 910th troop was in chaos for a while, and finally Yang Xiaoza took control of the troop, and after stabilizing the situation, Yang Xiaoza organized his soldiers to protect the villagers of Zhu Jia village. Zhu Jia is the villager and mayor of Zhu Jia village, as well as the owner of Zhu Jia village cement plant. In fact, several cement factories in the neighborhood were run by him with a few brothers. Zhu Jia this person means very powerful, both long-sleeved and maintains a good relationship with the government of Dongshan district, and can be ruthless. He raised a few dead beaters in the cement factory, firmly controlled the cement factory this piece of fat meat, usually no one dare to mess with. In the East Mountain District neighborhood is also a big man. After Zhu Jia village was protected by the army, Zhu Jia actively mixed in and mingled with the lower officers of the army, and soon he learned about the existence of the alien fruit. Then he bought an alien fruit from an officer with a gold chain and dog lucked out with a powerful 7-star combat ability. With this ability, and his sleight of hand, he constantly fought with the lower officers, and soon infiltrated the lower and middle ranks of the 910th in a thousand different ways. In times of peace, this naturally cannot be done, but it's the end times. With the soldiers' hearts and minds in flux, and Yang Xiaoza an officer who had unexpectedly risen to power and whom the officers below did not know very well, Zhu Jia soon took substantial control of the 910th. The young and old-fashioned Yang Xiaoza didn't even know about this. So, Zhu Jia found an opportunity to launch a military coup to seize power. He was extremely excited. Yang Xiaoza, this bastard, holding tens of thousands of troops but not moving to act like an asshole, and saying that the higher-ups ordered not to enter the city? What a fart! It's fucking chaos now, and a gun in your hand is the greatest. Orders from above count for shit. Zhu Jie recruited middle and lower level officers without stopping, and with various promises and assurances, he barely stabilized the military and temporarily took control of the unit. After briefly stabilizing the situation, Zhu Jie didn't stop there, immediately pulling together a meeting with 15 key officers and 8 of his inner circle. Zhu Jie stood in front of everyone and ambitiously said we can't stop, the end times are a global catastrophe, we need to expand our army, we need to increase the number of psychics as soon as possible in order to earn a chance to survive the drastic changes in the future. I have decided to rescue all the survivors of Magic Sea City immediately. The crowd's eyes glistened as they heard the words. Yang Xiaoza's staying put had long caused countless people to be dissatisfied, because he blocked everyone's chances of getting promoted and getting rich. For the average soldier, immobility saves lives, but not so much for the officers. When the red mist first descended, everyone was still a little scared. It was later realized that the mutated animals, still carbon-based creatures, were as dusty as ever in the face of gunfire, then there's nothing to be afraid of. Think about it, you are in the surroundings of the Magic Sea City, with a powerful and violent weapon in your hand. What a great opportunity to build a career. If order is restored in the future, and he or she saves a large number of survivors now, he or she will be able to rake in enough credit to get promoted later. If order could not be restored, then one could become a powerful party with hundreds of thousands of people in one's hands. In short, you can attack and retreat. It is in the interest of the majority of the officers to act immediately to save the survivors of Magic Sea City. The crowd was in pain, General Zhu is righteous. The people are suffering. How can we stand by and do nothing? General Yang is so incompetent. Countless people are dying every day and he's actually pressing on with his troops. Raise an army for a thousand days. General Zhu, give the order. Zhu Jia was secretly pleased. He had just taken the throne himself and had to build up and establish himself before he could sit down. Rescuing survivors is building credit. At the same time, it provides enough manpower for expansion. Only by expanding the army will officers be promoted. Even a small company commander may increase the number of men in his hands several times over. Jay Chu spoke eloquently, I've already investigated. There are still at least a million people in Magic Sea City. Even if one tenth of them are rescued, that's still 100. 000 people. That way, the stretched manpower can be alleviated. Of course, if we rescue a large number of survivors, we'll have to make all sorts of preparations. First of all, food. Yang Xiaoze captured the Binhai National Strategic Reserve Warehouse, 
A lot of food has already rotted and spoiled, but there are still a large amount of compressed cookies, canned goods and so on, so we don't lack food for the time being. Xu Hao, from now on, you'll be the quartermaster, responsible for managing all military food, and you'll be the one to distribute the other supplies as well. Juggernaut took control of the food as soon as he opened his mouth. Zhu Hao is his own brother, following him in the fight for more than 10 years, and is very trustworthy. The original quartermaster was Yang Xiao's man, who had been killed by Zhu Jie. All right, brother, Zhu Hao said beautifully, quartermaster is a fat job. What power to hold enough food for millions of people to eat for several years in a post-apocalyptic world where food is scarce? The officers didn't say anything. No matter who is in power, food will be controlled. That's normal. Xu Jie added, I've decided to create a shifter unit to centralize the use of all combat type shifters in order to maximize their combat power. This Xeno's unit is under my direct command. Zhu Jiaming, you serve as the deputy. The most powerful force is of course in control. Zhu Ji is not going to be polite. Don't worry. Second uncle. Zhu Jiaming was Zhu Jie's own nephew and had been born sturdy and robust since childhood. Zhu Jiaming didn't like school and dropped out of middle school. He followed his second uncle. Zhu Jie to work in a cement factory and gain Zhu Jie's trust. Some of the things that Zhu Jie was not comfortable doing were done by Zhu Jiaming's hands. Some time ago, Zhu Jie had also gotten Zhu Jiaming an exotic fruit. The officers were silent. Zhu Jie knew that he had raked in enough favors, and it was time to give the group of officers a share of the benefits, otherwise they were sure to have dissent. Then he said that the industry around Magic Sea City is very developed. If we want to stick around for a long time, we also need to control a machinery factory. For pass heavy machinery is the closest to us, so we must capture it and try to collect the former workers. Wei Su, I'm giving the first mechanical battalion to you, can you accomplish the task? Wei Su was overjoyed. The first mechanical battalion was the ace of the 910th and the heart of Yang Xiaoza. Now share it with yourself and take advantage of it. Juji is still quite sensible. Wei Su dryly saluted to promise to get the job done. Chu Jie added, Lu Jianhua, I'll leave the life type exalted and auxiliary exalted to you. Make sure to keep our rear stable. Lu Jianhua said happily, yes. General Zhu. Zhu Jia looked at a burly man again, Tiger Wang. I'll leave all the planes and pilots to you. No problem? The 910th has an airstrip and a fleet of old fighter jets and helicopter gunships. It's now a valuable asset too. Wang Dali was naturally excited promised to finish the job. Chapter 135, Bombardment of Magic Sea City. Zhu Jia quickly distributed the benefits. Everyone received their share of the benefits and their loyalty to Zhu Jie reached its peak, feeling that the atmosphere was about right. Zhu Jie stood up and waved his hands in a big way and now, I'll personally command the rescue mission to Magic Sea City. Everyone looked at Zhu Jie. This matter was a troublesome one. Let's see what good ideas he had. The military's original plan was to rely on Yang Xiao's psychic ability to save people on a large scale, and his psychic ability was perfect for that. What should we do now that Yang Xiao is dead? We can't send in all our brothers. Can we? That said, you have to oppose the opposition, or you're sure to die. Zhu Jie chested out Magic Sea City is too big. If this number of us go in, we won't even be able to bubble out. So, let's let the survivors come out on their own. The officers were instantly relieved, but they wondered how the survivors were going to get out. Wei Su said worriedly, we're 35 kilometers from the center of the Magic Sea. It's hard for ordinary survivors to walk this far through the dense forest. Even most of the aliens would have a hard enough time. Xu Jie flashed a confident smile, bombard Magic Sea City. The crowd was shocked. This is too crazy. Lu Jianhua said anxiously bombing Magic Sea City to force the survivors out? No way. Our reputation will be ruined. And even if the survivors arrive here, they will hate us to no end. Xu Jie laughed out loud, certainly not aimless bombing. I've looked at the 910th's underground armory, and there are plenty of artillery shells. So, we can use artillery fire to blast a way out for the survivors in the dense forest. Let's choose a few main roads and use artillery fire to extend all the way through, clearing out all the woods along these main roads. Of course, the specifics of how to execute this, such as how why to bomb the roads and which roads to clear in order to save the most survivors, all these still need to be advised by you experts. I'm just a big old man. I don't know anything about military matters. The crowd thought the idea was crazy. On second thought, though, it seemed to make some sense. Hmm, seems feasible. Mutated animals are animals. Two, and those along the way will surely be scared off by the fire, leaving a window of time for the survivors to escape. Right, take the 155 gun for example. One round can cause a 50 meter kill radius, and even in a dense forest, it can clear at least a 20 meter radius. If we open up a road 100 meters wide and 40 kilometers long, it would only consume 4.000 rounds, 
Only four, zero 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 rounds? That's too little consumption. It's more than four, zero 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 rounds. Magic Sea City is so big. I think we'd have to clear five to ten roads to get there. Consuming twenty, zero 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 dash forty, zero 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 rounds of artillery. But it's not that much. We have five hundred, zero 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 rounds of artillery in our arsenal. A lot of the shells in the arsenal are older models, right? Doesn't matter. It's a forest bombing anyway, not a tank. Any older model will suffice. We don't have specialized artillery. Can we shoot accurately? Nonsense. If you can't hit a fixed target, what the hell is a soldier for? If you're worried, I'll do it instead. Shooting tens of thousands of shells in one breath. Just think about it. Ha ha ha. In order to avoid accidentally injuring the survivors, we'd better choose the main road. In addition to spreading leaflets in advance, as well as using the radio to broadcast, try to notify all the survivors. Well, it's certainly not possible to completely avoid mishaps. In the past, it was still possible to use grassroots manpower to mobilize clearances, but now in this day and age, alas, there's no way around it. The officers discussed the matter in a few words, and it was soon determined that this seemingly crude solution was in fact highly feasible. Military losses were very low, just a few tens of thousands of shells. It must be Zhu Jie this kind of recklessness to be able to do. Before that college school young Shaoza, every day just no listen to the order. Bear 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 bear, bear Nima ah. As soon as Chu Jie made his debut, he gave a perfect scenario. The crowd gained confidence in him, and his authority slowly built up. The final plan took shape quickly and very simply as the crowd discussed it. 1. Notify the survivors by all means first so that they can avoid the bombing area while preparing to escape. 2. Continuous bombing for 24 hours to clear escape routes. 3. Immediately after the bombing, the helicopters and elite squads departed to set up guidance and supply points along the way. 4. Survivors escape, with an escape window of approximately 7 days. Any longer than that and the mutated animals could return and cause mass casualties. 5. After 7 days, all people evacuate the guidance and supply points and the mission ends. With Zhu Jie's order, the long silent military camp clamored. Zhu Jie watched as the officers left with their teams and went on their own missions, a cold smile appearing at the corner of his mouth. Zhu Hao and a few of his minders surrounded Zhu Jie. Zhu Hao said disgruntledly, second brother, why did you give so much of your army to outsiders? Zhu Jie sneered, I just got command, I can't rush, don't worry, let them have fun first, the 910th will have to be surnamed Zhu sooner or later. A few people from the Zhu family laughed grimly. Zhu Jia Ming said excitedly, ha ha ha. It's still our second uncle who is so resourceful. Chu Jia rolled his eyes. Mud, the uneducated fool. One cursed bastard. If you can't talk, don't talk. It's called strategizing. Right, right, right. Luckily, a tent of transportation. Ha ha ha. Zhu Jia looked up at the red mist, his blood boiling in his heart. For others, chaos is a disaster. For me, it was a fish out of water. The end times where all beings are sinking is my grand stage. I'm going to start here and step up to the top of the world. The Xu family crowd looked at the spirited Zhu Jie as if they had seen the rise of a dynasty. Our Zhu family is really lucky to have Zhu Jie in our family. Jiang Fan carried Su Xiaomei back home. The women were already numb. Gada, another sister. And look at Su. She's quite pretty and has a pair of distinctive little tiger teeth. So cute. Women look at it all the time. The ladies couldn't help but admire the fact that there was chaos outside. And they didn't know where Jiang Fan had found so many beautiful women. Could it be that he has a psychic ability to find beautiful women? The lively-minded Tian Tian thought randomly. The white fox's hair stood on end at the sight of so many Xenos. Immediately afterward, the massive white eyes walked over and sniffed the white fox curiously. The white fox immediately showed its teeth and let out a low growl of warning. Roar! White eyes foolishly jumped back a step and cocked his head at white fox. Woof! Woof! Come to play! Ha! Huh? The white fox lazily ignored it and comfortably lay down in Su Xiaomei's arms. Su was surprised, why are there so many pretty sisters here? Jiang Fan said indifferently, oh, you'll be sisters from now on. Ah, uh, Su was shocked, it's all yours. Aha. Uh -huh. Jiang Fan responded casually, and then quickly said we can't stay here. It's full of monsters out there. We have to leave now. This is not the time for small talk. The women tensed up, what monster? Jiang Fan didn't hide it either, a tentacled monster much like an octopus. I estimate there must be thousands and thousands of them. So much. Thousands of them. Gu Reneng, who had seen the tentacle monster, was terrified, and she shivered as she remembered the basketball gym again. The women had also heard Gu Reneng describe it, and all of them were pale with fear, but now that it's known in advance, it's not hard to avoid it. Anyway, Jiang Fan had a teleportation portal, so everyone would be able to escape soon. 
The women's mind slowly calmed down. Tang Shuelua asked worriedly Brother Jiang, Where are we going? Chapter 136 A Giant Green Eye in Subspace Zhang Fan pondered for a moment and said uh, let's go to the Pearl of the Magic Sea first, then we'll see what happens. He mulled over the idea of going to the TV base, or just go straight to that troop station outside of Magic Sea City? Zhang Fan hadn't made a final decision yet, going to a crowded place anyway. This way, when the tentacle monsters came, there were enough meat shields to facilitate their escape. Should I take Qing Xuan Li? He hesitated. Now with Jiang Hanxia, Li Qingxuan's value is reduced quite a bit. However, Jiang Hanxia was just a medical student, still studying Western medicine. In this current climate, it's certainly no better than an old Chinese doctor. Better bring it. Jiang Fan asked the women to prepare their traveling clothes, and he himself crossed the floorboards to Li Qingxuan's home. Qingxuan Li, still studying a mutated grass, looked up and asked curiously you mister. Jiang, something wrong? Without delaying, Jiang Fan quickly made his way without delay, as a large number of tentacle monsters could come to the fortune center at any time a dr. Li, I'm leaving, do you want to come with me? Li Qingxuan was taken aback, what happened? Jiang Fan didn't hide it from him, a very powerful kind of tentacle monster has mutated from the Fairview River. There are thousands and thousands of them so much, the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy has been overrun by tentacle monsters. I'm going to avoid it. Li Qingxuan was a smart man and knew that there was no need for Jiang Fan to lie to him. How could he dare to stay here with a monster that even Jiang Fan had to avoid? Li Qingxuan stood up without saying a word, good, as long as Mr. Jiang is willing to take me, then I'll go. Jiang Fan nodded, why don't you pack up and go wait for me on the 32nd floor? I'll be right back. Good. Jiang Fan flew to the roof of Block B and then descended the stairs to the 33rd floor. There are even fewer survivors here. Only a few dozen left. Each had a yellow face and a withered look. All of it is now concentrated on the topmost 33 floors. The kind of monster that travels through sewers and attacks humans through toilets has also appeared here and killed two people. Everyone was so scared that they hid on the top floor. They hardly dared to go downstairs except to dig flavorful capers to eat. And no one dared to go near the toilet. The crowd saw the healthy Jiang Fan and hid in the corner in surprise and fear. Watching him silently, Jiang Fan looked at the crowd and calmly said a kind of monster crawled out of the river and is coming this way to the fortune center. You guys run if you can. But if you can't, when you encounter the monster, it's best to kill yourselves, at least die comfortably. This is my last advice to you all. Jiang Fan directly turned around and walked up the stairs after saying that, before flying towards block A in a position where no one could see him. If it wasn't necessary, Jiang Fan didn't really like to display his supernormal abilities in front of other people. The crowd was dumbfounded and panicked. Monsters are real? Who is he? Is it the clerk from the convenience store outside the neighborhood? It seems to be called Jiang Fan. So he's Jiang Fan, how come he's not skinny at all? He has so much to eat? He's the one with the package. Don't talk about Jiang Fan, the monster is coming soon. With a building that tall, monsters shouldn't be able to get up there. Run. No, I don't believe it. Jiang Fan must be lying to us. Jiang Fan notified the survivors of Block A again. It was his last act of kindness as a human being. When the aliens come to the moon, the future of mankind will be unimaginably bleak. Therefore, in the absence of conflict, Jiang Fan was willing to save some people in passing, which might be useful in the future. Just by the way, of course, if he has to do anything extra or pay something, forget it. Jiang Fan notified the survivors of Block A again before flying home. Li Qingxuan had arrived at the 32nd floor. The ladies are ready too. Let's go. Jiang Fan opened the blue portal. In this instant, Jiang Fan felt that something was wrong. The teleportation that used to be a casual stroke seemed to have stagnated quite a bit. Ha, huh? what's going on? You guys wait, I'll go in and check it out. Jiang Fan frowned as he walked into the subspace. There was still nothingness and darkness all around, except for a light all around. But the nothingness seemed to hold a raging power. The blue portal seemed to be being impacted by some kind of force, and the previously stable blue water was now rapidly rippling in circles. Jiang Fan was surprised. Just then, a brilliant green light suddenly appeared in the infinite distance of the void of subspace. No, it wasn't a green light. It was a huge, incredibly creepy eye. It looked like a huge wooden lump, staring at Jiang Fan dead in the face from a distance. The blue portal shook violently. Immediately afterward, a loud voice resounded in Jiang Fan's soul a dollar and hashtag dollar at. Jiang Fan only felt his mind buzzing, followed by a sweetness in his mouth and a nosebleed. Damn, what the hell? His heart beat wildly and he immediately fled out of the subspace while closing the blue portal. The green eyes disappeared. The women were startled to see Jiang Fan jump out with a pale face. Jiang, what's wrong? Jiang Fan's ears were still ringing severely, and he wiped away the nosebleed with difficulty. 
His expression grave, this is troublesome, the portal won't work for a while, by the way, Tian Tian, don't open the door lately either, there's a very powerful guy inside, with his own physique and will not being able to stand a single glance from the other side, Tian Tian would definitely be killed in seconds if he went in, ha, huh? there's a monster in there too, Tian Tian was confused, the women panicked, Zhang Fan's face was also ugly, not being able to use the portal, he could still leave from underground, what about the women, just then, a rumbling sound came from the sky, the crowd looked up and out, and there were actually three helicopter gunships, at the same time, two fighter jets whizzed by high in the sky, seemingly escorting the helicopter gunships, the army did it, the army that's been pretending to be an asshole for so long suddenly makes a move, Jiang Fan was surprised, why, now, red mist has risen to the 23rd floor, countless heads poked out of the 24th floor or higher windows of several surrounding buildings, staring excitedly at the military planes in the sky, the helicopter gunship flew over as countless people watched, as they flew, they also scattered red flyers while broadcasting below on a deafening loudspeaker in nationals, unit 910 is about to embark on a rescue plan for the city of magic sea, which is as follows 1, starting at 8 a.m., m, the day after tomorrow, we will be bombing Binhai Road, Haiping Road, and Kanjang Road, for a continuous 24-hour bombardment, please ask survivors to avoid the area, 2, the bombardment will clear 820 to 100 meter wide, 30 to 50 kilometer survival corridors, and the 910th will place temporary supply and guidance points in the corridors, one every 5 kilometers, 3, the 910th will maintain this survival corridor for 7 days, and national survivors are urged to pass through the corridor as soon as possible during this period and proceed to the 910th garrison to obtain shelter. In 4 or 7 days, all supply points are evacuated. The helicopter gunships flew over slowly, and the message was repeated over loudspeakers. 24 hours of bombing, opening up survival routes, and a major evacuation of all survivors. The massive amount of information shook everyone. The women were also in different states of mind. The army has finally struck but in a completely different way than they thought. Instead of entering the city and rescuing the people, the army used artillery fire to blast a path for the survivors to escape on their own. Is that reliable? Zhang Fan went through the floorboards and flew to the top of the building. A few flyers have also landed on the roof of the building. Zhang Fan picked up two of them and returned home. The women gathered around. Zhang Fan looked carefully. It was indeed the message released by the armed helicopters, only a bit more detailed. It's not as easy to get attacked by the animals of the dense forest if you mix and walk with the other survivors. Zhang Fan pondered for a moment and made a decision, good. Then we'll wait for one more day and then leave through the passageway opened by the military. But before that, we have to make some preparations. Kyoto. In a park, there is a huge banyan tree that grows through the sky. Banyan tree canopies reach into the sky for at least a few thousand meters. The canopy covered hundreds of square kilometers casting unimaginably huge shadows on the ground and shrouding the entire city of Kyoto in darkness. At the same time, space was vaguely torn apart wherever the canopy reached. A variety of animals grow on the banyan trees, creating an exclusive ecosystem. Right now, the ficus is still growing like crazy. Its massive root system tumbles out of the ground and back into the ground all the time. The rhizomes tumble through the dirt and gravel like giant snakes, hungrily feeding on the nutrients. Suddenly, a huge green wooden lump appeared on the thickest trunk of the banyan tree which at first glance looked like a human eye. The wooden lump shook violently. Even the entire banyan tree trembled violently. Countless birds of prey rose up in alarm, like black, dark clouds, and let out a sonorous howl. The ground was more like an earthquake. Countless buildings collapsed in Kyoto City, and countless survivors let out miserable howls. Countless roots sprang out of the ground at the same time, reaching several hundred meters into the air, covering the sky and stretching towards the direction of Magic Sea City. Wherever the roots go, Countless new banyan trees grow, and then more roots reach out, and then extend, and extend, toward the Magic Sea City Chapter 137, Preparations Before Leaving, Three Exotic Fruits Per Person. Zhang Fan looked at the group of beautiful women in front of him and his heart was filled with a sense of accomplishment. Tang Shuelua, Su Meng Qian, Hu Lili, Bai Xinjie Four Women, All of Them Wealth Center Community. Su Jin and Gu Rinning were rescued from the Magic Sea Film and Television Academy. Li Qingyu and Zhang Hanxia are from the TV base, Lu Mengyao, Tian Tian, and Su Xiaomei, on the other hand, were rescued from outside. There are a total of 11 women here. There's also a Zoe Zhang out there who's still at the TV base, together with Song Shireen and Hu Lei, whom he had killed. There were 14 women in total, before the end of the world. Each of them was a beautiful woman with a high turnover rate. Ordinary men would be lucky to get one. Now, it's all mine. 
The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly we'll be going out to the 910th troop station soon, and the journey is not destined to be peaceful, so no matter what supernormal abilities you have now, I'll give each of you three supernormal ability fruits, one physical strengthening fruit, to enhance your physical strength, one perception fruit, to help you recognize enemies and friends, and one wall penetrating fruit, for emergency escape, the women were pleasantly surprised, Sue, who had just joined, was dumbfounded, is the alien fruit so worthless? Li Qingyu said with emotion, how can it be worthless? I was in the TV station underground base before. There were more than 5,000 survivors there at its peak. And there were only 2 to 3 alien fruits in the warehouse all year round. Anyone who wanted to apply for these fruits would have to give the base credit for playing with their lives. Tang Shuelua proudly said, it's not that the exotic fruit isn't valuable. It's just that it's not valuable in Zhang's place. Su opened her mouth wide in surprise. There were only 2 to 3 in a base of 5,000 people. And Jiang Fan was going to send out dozens of them at once? Where did he get so many alien fruits? Su looked to the other women to see what they had to say. The women who had followed Jiang Fan for a longer period of time all had an expression of honor. Even Jiang Hanxia and Li Qingyu, who came last, were in awe. It was a fact that Jiang Fan had a large number of exotic fruits in his hands, no matter how he got them. It was an ability. Just like in times of peace, the women are too little to care where the money comes from in the hands of a rich man. As long as he's rich. Does he really have that much fruit? Su Xiaomei looked at Jiang Fan incredulously. Jiang Fan didn't explain anything and directly took out 11 two-star physique strengthening fruits. Here, one for each person. Eat first. They must be allowed to take physical enhancement first, or several women will have reached the three limit for their powers. It is only after the body is strengthened that it can afford more psychic abilities. Tang Shuelua took the fruits and divided them one by one. Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed one enlightenment fruit, physical strengthening and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Su Mengqian consumed one fruit of enlightenment, physical strengthening and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Su consumed one enlightenment fruit, physical strengthening and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Zhang Hanxia consumed one fruit of enlightenment, physical strengthening and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Except for Hu Lily who had already eaten the two-star physique enhancement. All the women felt their bodies become stronger. Their body surfaces discharged black dirty substances. And the room smelled bad. Lily who ate a two-star physique enhancement and didn't upgrade. She was a bit upset but had nothing to say. One woman. One piece. Jiang Fan divided it fairly. Ouch. It stinks. I want a bath. Wow. I can pick up the refrigerator. I'm Superman. The women were all giggling and laughing. Su looked at her hands in confusion as she ate an alien fruit for the first time, so this is what psychic powers do. It's amazing. Jiang Fan glanced at her. It was also plain green, Ginger. Nothing special. He clapped his hands, we'll wash it later. Now let's get on with it. Jiang Fan took out another 11 perception fruits. Most women are perceptive. A few are not. Jiang Fan simply took one pill for one person. Simple and hassle-free. By the way, you can also replenish your inventory. Su Mengqian grabbed the task of distributing the fruits this time and gave them to the ladies, causing Tang Shuelua to roll her eyes for a while. Ding! Tang Shuelua consumed one fruit of enlightenment, perception and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding! Lily who consumed one fruit of enlightenment, perception and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding! Su consumed one fruit of enlightenment, perception and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding! Jiang Hanxia consumed one fruit of enlightenment, perception and returned 1400 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. The women ate the fruit of perception again. This time there was a surprise. Tang Shuelua perception was already two stars and was surprised after eating the new perception fruit, huh? I seem to be seeing further. I can see three or four rooms nearby. I can also see clusters of light inside your bodies. Jiang Fan was surprised. This is the ability of three star perception. 15 meters away and the ability to see energy gathering points within the body. Tang Shuelua was the first to ascend to 2 star perception, and now she was the first to ascend to 3 star. She had only eaten a few perception fruits and she had risen to 3 stars? Is she particularly suited to perception based powers? Jiang Fan remembered that he was particularly suited to the will class and had a realization in his heart. It looks like each woman can be groomed into a different direction of competence for the greatest gain. The women were again envious and jealous. Everyone hasn't upgraded one time yet and Tang Shuelua has upgraded two times. The ability to see three or four rooms perceptually is useful when you think about it. This is a god skill in the end times. The women thought in their hearts. I have to serve Jiang better for more perceived fruits. 
Su Mengxian was even more furious and gritted her teeth, I'll go to Brother Zhang's room tonight. I want to upgrade my abilities too. At the same time, the women also had a vague sense of Jiang Fan's power. Tang Shuelua could perceive that far after two upgrades, Jiang ate alien fruits as snacks every day. How powerful would his perception be, and how powerful his other abilities must be? The women were both shocked and grateful. Follow such strong men to get better in the end times. Moreover, Jiang was not stingy with us at all. He gave us all the exotic fruits that were worth thousands of dollars each outside wholesale. We made the right choice. The lady's loyalty to Jiang Fan had reached new heights. Even Su Xiaomei, who had just joined, had a special feeling for Jiang Fan, whether in times of peace or post-apocalyptic times, capable men always make women's hearts flutter. Jiang Fan said in his heart, I can't give Tang Shuelua the perception fruit for now, if she eats it a few more times, her perception star rating might even surpass mine, and it'll be dangerous in case there's a special effect that I don't even know about. Jiang Fan's premise of giving women psychic abilities was that he could control them, and would never allow them to be stronger than him. It's the end times, and women are honest when they can overpower everything themselves. When you can't do it yourself, hell knows if these women will think anything they shouldn't. Don't look at Jiang Fan who was still nice to women. In fact, he had always been incredibly calm in his heart. The ruthlessness of his ex-girlfriend, Song Shireen, is something he will remember for the rest of his life. Women are also incredibly cold when they are desperate. He wouldn't give any woman the chance to be desperate. Jiang Fan didn't say anything and smiled as he handed out the third batch of voiding fruits. Chapter 138, Modified Off-Road Vehicles The fruit of the void gives 11 women the ability to walk through walls, which is a life-saving wonder. Jiang Fan said calmly, Tang Shuelua, Su Meng Qian, you guys are responsible for teaching everyone how to walk through walls. However, I'd like to remind all of you that your physique is very low. Even if you ate the physique fruit, it's still very ordinary, and penetrating walls is extremely draining on your physical strength. Therefore, don't use this ability unless you are in danger as a last resort and after using it, if someone sees it, it's best to kill the witness. Piercing through walls is our bottom card. Being known by others would be a huge threat to us. Tang Shuelua, Su Meng Qian, you guys go teach everyone. The second woman nodded and began to explain to the women how to use their abilities. Tang Shuelua instructed as she explained, you heard what Jiang said. You must remember that if there are witnesses, you must not be soft, or there will be endless consequences. This is a big matter that concerns the safety of all of us. If the witnesses are too powerful for you guys to deal with, then you must also make a note of it and tell Brother Jiang, who will definitely have a way to solve it. Jiang Fan nodded in satisfaction. This girl, Tang Shuelua, is really getting more and more knowledgeable. Jiang Fan knew that Tang Shuelua was actively striving for the throne of the harem lord, and for this reason, she had conflicts with a few women. Doesn't matter though, as long as it doesn't interfere with his enjoyment of life, as there were more and more women. Jiang Fan also hoped that someone could manage them so that he could be more mindful. Tang Shuelua was willing to do it, so let her try. If you can't do it right, then get another woman. If you dare to fool around behind your back, then kill. A stern aura flashed in Jiang Fan's eyes. He smiled faintly again and pulled out a couple of guns and a batch of bullets from his carry space. Except for the three girls, Li Qingyu, Jiang Hancha and Su Xiaomei, who had just arrived and couldn't be given the utmost trust yet. The other women were given their own guns and ammunition which will be a huge deterrent to other survivors. Anyone who sees a bunch of gun-toting women has to weigh that in their mind, and that can cut down on a lot of trouble. The women touched the steel gun in surprise and fear, and their hearts became more loyal. Only by following Jiang Fan could he gain the most benefits. What's the point of getting rid of Jiang Fan and gaining freedom? Is it fun to be out there on your own, struggling to survive, not eating well, not sleeping well, and worrying about being captured by another man and used as an RBQ? How good it is to follow Jiang, eat well, wear good clothes, sleep well, and give out alien fruits and weapons, in addition to being with him every few days. In all honesty, that's a joy all right. Only fools leave Jiang. By now, the women are fully armed, at least three powers each, plus the gun. If some survivors think they are good looking and are just soft women, they will pay dearly. Jiang Fan waited for the woman to calm down before saying, on top of that we'll need transportation, and for a trip of dozens of kilometers. Walking on foot is tiring, slow, and prone to sneak attacks by other survivors. However, the ground bombarded by artillery fire is definitely pitted even if we can walk, and ordinary SUVs certainly won't go. Jiang Fan pondered, why don't we go to the underground base of the TV station? I remember there are tanks there. The roads chosen by the 910th were former highways. It's still flat overall, although it's overgrown with a variety of plants. As soon as the artillery fire knocks down the big trees, the tanks should be able to drive through. Just think about it, 
The tank ride is so crap that he doesn't want to ride it at all. Sue raised her hand, I know a place that has tons of modified SUVs, except it's a little far from this side and hard to drive back. Jiang Fan said curiously, oh, tell me. After Su Xiaomei saw the benefits of Jiang Fan's place, she also wanted to try to express herself and stay. She said positively, I once worked in an off-road club called Wild Wind. That club gathered a group of rich second generation and wealthy people who liked to modify their cars to play in the wild. And the club came with its own modification factory, where dozens of modified cars were parked all year round. Those cars were so over-modified that they couldn't get approval to go on the road. So they parked their cars at the modification factory, secretly drove into the mountains at night, and then spilled out their madness the next day, then drove back in the night. Jiang Fan immediately rose in interest. If you have a reliable modified vehicle, the tanks will open up the road in front, clearing some of the roadblocks in the process, and the buggies behind will be able to follow through. Tell me the location of the Wild Wind Club. Jiang Fan turned his phone on and opened the offline map. Su searched for a while and pointed to a location, it's right here. It looks like a farmhouse on the outside. But inside it's actually a modification factory for those rich guys. Jiang Fan looked at it. It was indeed very far. And it was 20 kilometers in a straight line. However, if you go to the cross country club, you happen to pass by the TV station base. Jiang Fan said in his heart, it's just as well to stop by the TV base and take all the ordnance in there. Especially the tanks. I'm going to do a double take. Get both the SUVs and the tanks. If the roads after the bombing are too bad to drive the buggies, then the tanks. After making up his mind, Jiang Fan was ready to head to the cross-country club immediately. With a group of gun-wielding aliens at home, plus white fox and white eyes, unless they encountered a large number of tentacle monsters, the average survivor would only be unlucky to see them, and would never want to take advantage of them. Jiang Fan patted Su Xiaomei's head, I'll go check it out, and if there's a buggy there, I'll come back and reward you with another alien fruit. Su was pleasantly surprised, thank you brother Jiang, thank you brother Jiang. Without delay, Jiang Fan passed through the layers of floorboards and entered the underground. Before leaving, Jiang Fan carefully tore open the blue portal again. Being able to teleport is still teleportation. Jiang Fan didn't want to drive a long distance at all. Hell knows how much trouble he would encounter on the road. He cautiously probed and glanced inside. The giant green eyes looked fiercely at Jiang Fan. Damn it. Jiang Fan closed the portal without saying a word. He recognized the direction and ran quickly. Wild Winds Club. Song Qingdai stood under a peach tree, holding the ladder. Yu Tianju stood on the ladder and carefully picked the peaches. Yu Tianju quickly finished picking, got off the ladder, and handed Song Qingdai a basket of peaches. Song Qingdai frowned only eight? Not enough to eat, right? Yu Tianju said with a straight face, two for each of us and one for each of the four of them. We're lucky to be alive. And you want to pick and choose? There's only one peach tree. We have to save some food. Song Qingdai didn't say anything. There's only so much food to go around. And it's better for others to starve than to starve yourself. The two returned to a room on the second floor where four hungry survivors looked at the two expectantly. There was no expression of disappointment when they saw that one person had only one peach. But no one dared say anything. Because the two of them, Song Qingdai and Yu Tianju, were psychics. They relied on the protection of the two of them to survive. Yu Tianju loudly scolded, hurry up and eat and go to work. Ho all the grass in front of the door and the creeper on the window, can't you see it's all climbed so high, don't you know that thing sucks blood, get to work, eat your fill, how could one peach be full, the four were disgruntled, but they could only eat quickly and drag their tired bodies to work, only Song Qingdai and Yu Tianju were left in the room, Yu Tianju stole two glances at Song Qingdai from time to time, Song Qingdai is the owner of Wild Breeze, a real rich white girl, her father owns a chain of hotels with a family fortune of at least a billion dollars, Song Qingdai opened this club purely for her own enjoyment and had no intention of earning money. Yu Tinshu is just the manager of this store. In fact, he is a wage earner. In the past, he knew that their identities were far apart, and he didn't dare to spy on Song Qingdai at all. It's different now. The end times are here. Myself and Song Qingdai were the only two psychics here. Yu Tianju was full of confidence. Song Qingdai of course guessed Yu Tianju's thoughts, but she simply couldn't see this man in her heart and never showed it. She pulled a red flyer out of her pocket. Puzzled the manager you, do you think this is true or not? Should we go over to the 910th? Chapter 139, I have to be fair to all women. Yu Tianju shook his head straight of course I'm not going. Who knows what's going on over there? This is a chaotic world. Can you trust those soldiers? They actually didn't come into the city to save us. Letting us go there by ourselves. And the leader of that army looks like he has a selfish agenda. I'm not going. I'd rather be the head of a chicken than the queen of a cow. Song Qingdai, however was hesitant. She's been stuck here for a long time. 
What kind of a shit day is it when all you can eat is some crappy peaches? She had grown up in fine clothes. How could she have ever suffered such a crime? Also, she wanted to go to her parents. The magical dad must still be alive. Yu Tianju saw Song Qingdai's expression and secretly became anxious. He wasn't sure about the state of affairs outside, but if he went to a large settlement, where would Song Qingdai still have his share? They were able to obtain two exotic fruits. Surely someone else out there was able to obtain exotic fruits as well. Yu Tianju didn't have the confidence to compete with other results for Song Qingdai. He said anxiously what's the point of going out? How nice to stay here. I'm not even talking about the dangers along the way. Even if you get to the settlement, Qing Dai, you have to know that you're a big beautiful woman. And now that the soldiers are in the middle of nowhere, will others see color? Song Qing Dai was silent. That was what she was worried about. But still, she was disgruntled at manager Yu. Qing Dai is not the one you called. Yu Tianju's face clouded over as he watched Song Qing Dai exit the door. Song Qing Dai stood in front of the factory building. The four survivors are hoeing at a whim. She turned her head again to look at the facade of the plant. The outer wall was incredibly thick, almost a meter, with a thick layer of dirt and gravel tightly packed on top of the original concrete wall. It was her ability to control the earth and rocks to form fixed shapes. Song Qingdai had been reinforcing the outer walls of the factory building since she gained her powers, preventing the animals outside from rushing in at night. She looked at the several deep claw marks on the walls, the deepest even reaching the concrete, and grew more and more uneasy. Recently, the mutant animals in the neighborhood have become more active and the chances of attacking the plant have increased. Sun Ching Dai repairs the walls almost every day. She frowned as she circled the plant and found another claw mark that seemed to come from a different animal. Extrapolating the size of the claw from the scratches, this claw was of a terrifying size, reaching a staggering half a meter in width. Song Ching Dai's scalp tingled. Her heart beat faster as she looked at the red mist around her, only to feel that the eerie red mist hid horrible monsters. If she didn't know that there was an alien energy alert circle set up by Yu Tianju around her, she wouldn't have dared to come out at all. Two meters away from the outer wall of the plant, there is a two meter wide, several meter deep deep pit, which is where Song Qingdai took the soil, forming a moat in disguise. Song Qingdai held her breath and reached out to point at the deep pit. A miraculous scene appeared as the dirt and rocks were sucked up like a water hose. She pointed again at the scratches on the outer wall, and dirt and rocks flew over to stick firmly to the wall. Mending the scratches intact. After 10 seconds or so, Song Qingdai finished her work. She breathed heavily and went back to the front door to patch up another scratch before returning to the plant to rest. Zhang Fan ran underground for more than an hour and came to the edge of the TV station base. He didn't descend to the surface and entered the base directly from underground. This time over, the base was significantly less staffed. A large number of facilities were damaged and many light bulbs went out and have not been repaired. It looks like the last rebellion took a huge toll on the base. Jiang Fan quickly found Zhang Zilin. She was in an office, discussing something with a few people. Zhang Zilin sat while several others stood. It looks like this woman has climbed to a high position in the base. Zhang Fan was in no hurry and waited until several people had finished their discussion and had all left. Zhang Zilin was the only one left in the office. Zhang Fan walked through the wall and into the office, directly unlocking the door. Zhang Zilin was startled, and only after seeing that it was Zhang Fan did she helplessly say, Can you go through the front door? I like going through the back door. Zhang Fan said with a different meaning. Zhang Zilin blushed slightly and pretended to be angry. Hey, can you talk properly? Zhang Fan said with a bad smile. Look at that. You're thinking the wrong way. I didn't realize you knew quite a bit. Zhang Zilin stalled. Annoyed all right. Let's get down to business. What are you doing here this time? Zhang Fan laughed, sending you some alien fruits. I always treat all women the same. What other women have? You must have too. Other women. Zhang Zilin was furious. Her fists clenched, you looking for a fight? Zhang Fan wasn't afraid at all. After his comprehensive physique had risen to 200 plus, he was already able to rub round and press Zhang Zilin flat at will. He pulled out three fruits of enlightenment, here. The Lord rewarded you. Zhang Zilin couldn't get angry in time and was surprised, really for me. Of course. Zhang Fan said calmly. Zhang Zilin picked up the three black lychees, looked at them carefully, they were indeed alien fruits, and said tentatively, I really ate it. Go ahead and eat. Zhang Fan waved his hand casually. Humph. I don't know what you're up to. Zhang Zilin's heart snickered and she simply ate it. Not a moment later, she was pleasantly surprised how my stamina seems to have gotten stronger. Zhang Fan nodded, three fruits. One physical strengthening to enhance your body. One you've eaten for perception. If you eat more of them your powers may be upgraded. But looking at you I don't think they have been upgraded. There's also one for wall penetration. You'll be able to drill through walls in the future as well. Zhang Zilin was shocked, you're giving me all these kinds of powers? Aren't you afraid I'll turn against you? 
Jiang Fan looked at Zheng Zilin smilingly. She was covered in pure green light. I believe you. Zheng Zilin's heart skipped a few quick beats and she hit it by ducking her head and sweeping the ends of her hair behind her ear, oily mouth. She didn't dare continue and hurriedly changed the subject, see the flyer for Troop 910. I'm going to take the guys here over there. Are you going? Of course go. Jiang Fan nodded and thoughtfully reminded her, a kind of monster crawls out of the Fairview River. Very powerful and very numerous. When you choose your path, you'd better avoid the river and get as far away from it as possible. There's such a thing. Zhang Zilin immediately believed Zhang Fan's words and said with a straight face, Can I report this message to Troop 910 to notify all survivors? Zhang Fan said indifferently, Suit yourself. But I don't imagine the 910th will believe it. Just don't affect yourself anyway. Zhang Fan stood up again. By the way, you're all leaving anyway. It's not too much of a stretch for me to take something from your base, is it? Zhang Zilin was surprised, what is it? Zhang Fan laughed, you'll see in a moment. Zhang Zilin puzzled. Zhang Fan sank into the ground and disappeared. Zhang Zilin bit her red lip and looked toward where Zhang Fan had left, not moving for a long time. Suddenly, the ground shook. A violent explosion came. Rumble. Zhang Zilin was startled, and the entire base was startled into chaos. What's going on? Where it exploded? Check it out. Looks like a heavy armory. Got it. It was a heavy armory where tanks and armored vehicles were stored. I don't know what triggered the explosion. Maybe expired ammunition. But the whole heavy armory collapsed. Luckily it's not an ammo dump. The tank thing wouldn't have been able to drive out anyway. So collapse it is. Zhang Zilin stood breathlessly in front of the heavy armory. Looking at the tunnels blocked by boulders. And was furious. It must have been that brat. What did you take from it? You can't steal a tank and go. Can you? Zhang Fan beautifully ran quickly underground towards the Wild Wind Club. Certainly not a tank. Rather, all of it. Fully 20 tanks. 20 armored vehicles. And a lot of fuel. They're pulling out tomorrow anyway. No time to clean up. Except for Zhang Zilin. No one knew that the tanks and armored vehicles inside had all been taken by themselves. Chapter 140, 6 Star Perception. It should be nearby. Zhang Fan stood on the roof of a clock tower. Looking carefully at the map on his cell phone. Struggling to compare the blanket of red fog below. This clock tower is the landmark of the wild wind neighborhood. In the red mist era, plants grew almost completely over the roadway. Moving long distances in the city, you can only rely on landmarks to get your bearings. Zhang Fan put his cell phone into his carry-on space. It was too suffocating to run long distances underground. Zhang Fan was just able to breathe and it wasn't very fluid. So he didn't want to go back down under the ground. He looked in the direction of the building across the street gravitational distortion, he felt light in his body, at the same time, his legs lashed out, and the powerful strength of his 200 physique erupted, boom, a few seconds later, Zhang Fan's body drew a parabola and landed on the roof of a building hundreds of meters away, the roof of the building was covered with fallen leaves, and a colorful viper quietly traversed under the leaves, dead set on Zhang Fan, pussed, before the viper had a chance to move its mouth, a shovel appeared out of nowhere and severed the snake's head, Zhang Fan glanced down flatly. Blood oozes out from under fallen leaves. In his perception, any ambush was hilarious. Perception is what makes surviving in the red mist in dense forests a magic bullet. So far, Zhang Fan had only seen that Batman being able to cloud perception to a certain extent. But that would have to be from a distance. When he got close, Batman couldn't hide from perception. Zhang Fan checked the roof of the building. There are no other threatening animals. There were a few survivors in the downstairs room as well but they were ordinary people who looked to be starving to death. Zhang Fan decided to take a break, even with a high physique. Running 20 kilometers underground in one breath was a bit tiring. He took out a bottle of pure water and drank it all, then took out a handful of enlightenment fruits and a couple of mutant frog roasts and ate them. That's when the surprise came out of nowhere frowny face ding. Perception upgraded to 6 stars. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. He didn't know how many perception fruits he had already eaten, and now he had finally upgraded. He immediately checked the effect of the 6 star perception. Perception, 6 stars. You can see how friendly the target is to you. Yellow for neutrality. Red for hostility. And green for friendliness. The brightness of the light indicates the strength of the target. You can sense the energy gathering points within the target's body. You can sense inanimate objects. You can hear voices within the range of perception. The radius of the range of perception is 200 meters. The radius has doubled to a staggering 200 meters. You can still hear voices. That's a huge change. Jiang Fan immediately tested it. Then he realized that 6 star perception was not indiscriminately hearing all sounds within 200 meters, but that when one threw one's attention on a certain animal, the sound of that animal would automatically be amplified. Inside the pipe, a large cockroach was coolly nibbling on its prey. In the sky, a mutant dragonfly flew by. 
making a faintly audible buzzing sound. Downstairs in the room, the dying man is giving his last words, Kasumi ah, I have to go, I can't take care of you anymore. The world of perception is suddenly much richer with sound, coupled with the range expanding from 100 meters to 200 meters. Jiang Fan's visual field area had opened up by a full four times. Jiang Fan was physically and mentally relieved. Perception is finally six stars. When will the other powers be upgraded? Jiang Fan looked greedily at the panel. Nowadays, he has a very large number of ability aliens. Perception, six stars. Physical strength enhancement, six stars. Combined physical strength plus 200. Voiding, five stars. You can void your body and travel through solids and liquids. The denser the solid. The greater the physical exertion, you can barely breathe in solids and liquids. Subspace shuttling, 9 stars, full level. Can't be upgraded any further? Yuan can open a subspace channel and travel to any location within 5,000 meters. Up to 12 times per day, you can create subspace anchors with no range limitation. Up to 3 times per day. And maintain up to 3 anchors at the same time, you can set your landing point on a subspace anchor regardless of the distance, and you can attach subspace anchors to any object. Will link, 9 stars, full level can't be improved further. You can establish a will link with creatures in your field of vision and communicate in your consciousness. Distance, 500 kilometers. Maximum number of concurrent will links, 100. You can establish a consciousness space with your will and pull all the linkers into it to communicate. Maximum number of concurrent consciousness spaces, 10. You can forcibly pull the target into the consciousness space. The success rate and duration depends on the gap between your will and the others. You can create an illusion in the target's consciousness. Success rate and duration of the illusion depends on the gap between your will and the others, will plus 50. Chi and blood burst, 3 stars, you consume a large amount of stamina to briefly burst out of chi and blood, increasing your overall physique by 100% to 500%. The more you increase, the more stamina you consume. Life inspiration, 2 stars, you can drain the target's future life force to quickly heal their current injuries. Healing slash loss ratio equals 1 to 100. Condensation, 4 stars. You can draw water from the surrounding area and condense it into water. Condensation distance, 5 meters. You can consume more stamina to increase the speed of condensation. Hardening, 2 stars. You can extract the essence from metals. Light of the mind, 9 stars. You can see the number of target abilities and have a certain chance to roughly perceive the effects of the abilities. The success rate depends on the gap between your will and the opponents. You can send out a mental shock to attack the opponent's consciousness. The effect depends on the gap between your will and the opponent's will and failure of the attack will be reversed, you will be immune to all of the opponent's will attacks if the enemy's will is lower than yours, will plus 60. Flexibility, 1 star. The flexibility of the entire body's tendons and bones is increased by 100%. Gravitational distortion, 3 stars. You can distort the magnitude and direction of the gravitational force at will. Effective only on metallic objects you touch. Weapon of will, 5 stars. You can consume energy to condense an indestructible weapon of will within your body which must be condensed to a certain degree before it can be taken out, when the weapon of will is taken out. You can incorporate all kinds of substances into the weapon to strengthen its attributes, when an able person dies around you. You can devour the fragments of his or her will to accelerate the condensation of the weapon of will, will plus 15. Plant hypnosis, 1 star. You can accelerate plant growth, a total of 14 powers. The corners of Jiang Fan's mouth rose slightly. The number of his own psychic abilities could definitely be ranked in the top 10 globally or even just number one. If I can get all these powers up to nine stars, I should be able to touch base with that mysterious man on the moon. But it's too hard. Aside from the will-type abilities, Jiang Fan was certain that he could quickly rise to nine stars. The other ability upgrades can only come as they come. Prioritize eating the weapon of will fruit next, and raise this ability to nine stars first. Jiang Fan familiarized himself with the effects of the six-star perception and had rested almost enough. So he jumped towards the wild wind. Chapter 141, Two Alter Egos Not Long After. Jiang Fan arrived outside a farmhouse. The entire farmhouse is covered in plants. Only on the ground. Open-air dining tables and barbecue grills are still vaguely visible. Jiang Fan walked in. Behind the farmhouse is a tall factory building. A strange-looking insect suddenly bit at Jiang Fan's calf, but its claws and teeth passed through the calf and pounced. The insect has trouble understanding what is happening and instinctively returns to continue lurking under the fallen leaves. Jiang Fan didn't bother with these bugbears and continued to walk forward. In the perceptual field of vision, everywhere he went were all these inconspicuous bugs, in all shapes and sizes, all sorts of things, simply can't kill them all. As long as it wasn't a mutated animal that was particularly powerful or had supernatural abilities, Jiang Fan wouldn't care too much. As he got closer to the plant, he saw the survivors in the plant. There were only six people in total, and there were actually two Xenos. It's normal to have shifters. 
Now it's hard for this little group to survive without them. But two shifters out of six is too high a ratio. Six people gathered in several rooms in the deepest part of the plant. At the other end of the plant, an indoor parking lot is attached, with dozens of modified cars parked inside. Jiang Fan was secretly happy, so he sank into the ground, ready to steal the car. He was just here to mess with the car and didn't want to be nosy. Jiang Fan walked to the ground floor of the parking lot and rose silently. He noticed that the walls were incredibly thick and should be an alien power. Yu Tianju and Song Qingdai are overhauling a portable diesel generator. This diesel generator, made in the form of a suitcase, can be pushed away by one person. It's a toy that a rich kid got to play with in the field. It now became a precious source of electricity for several people. Song Qingdai, dressed in a workman's uniform, her long hair tied up in a sharp ponytail, examined the tools with her. She's not like other girls. She's been mechanically inclined since she was a little girl and that's why she runs such a tuning shop. Ha! Huh? Yu Tianju suddenly raised his head with a serious expression, someone's coming in. He looked in the direction of the parking lot, his vision cutting through the layers of walls, and clearly saw a man. And the other man was skulking around the parking lot, wondering what he was up to. The man's body was covered in an extremely tiny invisible dust, and his position and movements were completely exposed to Yu Tianju's eyes. This is what Yu Tianju is capable of. He can distribute this invisible dust all around, and any animal that passes by will be detected by him. Yu Tianju picked up the modified air nail gun, I'll deal with it. Okay, be careful. Having said that, Song Qingdai wasn't nervous. Yu Tianju's ability was invincible in the red mist. He was able to hide a dozen meters away to observe the other party. But the other party couldn't see Yu Tianju, which made him invincible. Coupled with an air nail gun that can shoot from a distance, if it's an enemy, it dies without even knowing how. Yu Tianju said confidently you don't worry, I'll go and take a look. If it's a useful person, take him, if not let him get lost. You four, come over with me. Yu Tianju also has a brain. In case he met one he couldn't deal with, he could throw down the four and run away. For this reason, the four survivors he took in, all men and women in their fifties, were certainly not as physically strong as Yu Tianju, who was in his prime. The four survivors didn't want to go at all. Every once in a while, a survivor touches down here. None of the survivors who have survived until now and still dare to go out are good. The four had no choice. They didn't dare to disobey Yu Tianju's orders. They hung their heads, picked up various crude weapons, and followed Yu Tianju. Yu Tianju led his men carefully behind a wall a dozen meters away and, observed, the other side from behind the wall. Strange. What's he doing around the car? Is he trying to steal the car? This is not sick. There are big trees everywhere outside. So no buggy can drive it. Yu Tianju became more and more curious about the other party's purpose and carefully, observed, it. Anyway, hiding behind the wall and in the red mist, the other party couldn't even discover themselves. There's no rush. Let's see what he wants first. Jiang Fan sighed as he looked at the rows of modified cars in front of him. Modified Hummer. Modified Wrangler. Modified Big G. Off-road RV. Especially the modified Wrangler with four exaggeratedly large wheels and a height of nearly one. Five meters. The off-road motorhome is also exaggerated. Being a man-heavy truck motorhome itself, with a raised chassis and huge wheels instead, the entire car is over 5 meters tall. These cars are worth a lot of money on their own, and the modifications are estimated to cost more than the car itself. Rich people are so good at this. It's all mine now. Zhang Fan was about to make his move when he suddenly frowned and looked at the position of Yu Tianju and the others without any trace. He was on high alert as soon as he came in. Yu Tianju and the others moved, and he found out. Finally, one Zeno and four normal people came forward. Jiang Fan appeared to have his back to the five, but actually saw their movements clearly in his perception. The shifter was hiding behind a wall, furtively peering his way, his eyes looking straight at his position. Jiang Fan was immediately certain instead of hearing my movements. This alien can see me. This is his ability. Jiang Fan immediately decided that he had to kill the other party. For one thing, the other party was just watching, so he couldn't take the modified car himself and Zhang Fan wouldn't freely expose the existence of the carry-on space in front of outsiders. Secondly, this alien's ability very much restrained Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan's greatest asset was that he could see other people in the red mist, and other people couldn't see him. This alien could likewise see through the red mist, which posed a huge threat to Zhang Fan. Now that it's hostile, kill it. Zhang Fan looked straight at the red mist, but deliberately looked in another direction, come on out. What are you guys hiding in there for? I've been discovered? Yu Tianju was first shocked, followed by dark joy. The kid wasn't even looking where he was, but in the wrong direction. He presumably heard the noise we made. Yu Tianju said in a fake manner, Kid, get out of here. This is my chassis. In fact, 
He quietly felt out to a position where he could look directly at Jiang Fan and raised his air nail gun. Just then, Jiang Fan suddenly moved. The chi and blood erupted. 500%. Ghostly maneuvers. Gravitational distortion. His legs heaved on the ground. Boom. With the triple ability boost, Jiang Fan's body rushed to Yu Tianju as if it was instantaneous. Yu Tianju didn't even react as Jiang Fan's large hand grabbed his hair, and a translucent heavy sword with silver light appeared in his other hand. Swish. Yu Tianju was beheaded on the spot. The lion wrestles the hair with all its might. Jiang Fan didn't know what this person was capable of, so he simply used his full strength to kill him. Chapter 142, Song Qingdai who was especially knowledgeable. The remaining four were startled. Some fled. Others involuntarily whipped out the weapons in their hands. Jiang Fan showed no mercy. He couldn't figure out the relationship between these survivors. Maybe they were relatives and friends? The grass must be cut and no scourge must be left behind. In the age of psychic powers, who knows if they will gain any powerful abilities in the future. Swish. The giant sword of will sweeps across the room. Four heads flew up. Poof. Four bodies flopped to the ground. Jiang Fan was also splattered with a lot of blood, but the weapon of wills was still as smooth as new, without a trace of blood on it. Jiang Fan carried his sword towards the last female alien. Both of the aliens, both of them had only one ability. The male alien's powers are about surveillance and such. Then the dirt and rocks on the walls outside were the ability of this female alien. Combined with the ability light cluster seen in the light of his mind, Jiang Fan could barely recognize that it was a secondary type of ability that wasn't much of a threat to him. The female alien was unresponsive, still repairing a machine. Snap, snap. Jiang Fan walked behind the woman carrying his sword and saw her. She was fair-skinned, with a long ponytail, wearing a blue work uniform and gloves on her hands, which were covered in oil, and was concentrating on repairing a diesel generator. Song Qingdai, age, 25, quality, 9 points, rare engineering beauty, woman's virtue, 10 points, no human experience, overall rating, 9, ding. Meet the system requirements. Surprisingly, it's a 9 out of 10 beauty. Jiang Fan was not sure about her relationship with the people outside and hesitated to kill him. Manager Yu, it should be almost done. No big problem, just a little. Song Qingdai said casually, turning her head to see that it was a robust and unfamiliar man. He was covered in blood, and he carried a large, exaggerated sword that shone silver in his hand. Ah! Song Qingdai screamed in fear and sat down on her but in panic, Yu, don't you come over here. Jiang Fan noticed her address and asked indifferently, who is manager Yu? Song Qingdai's mind went blank, and she couldn't even speak the words of fear or that's it. That's it. Jiang Fan turned around and walked into the red mist, carrying five heads and throwing them in front of her a moment later. Which one is manager Yu? Song Qingdai was so scared that she closed her eyes and screamed, get it off, get it off. Jiang Fan didn't hesitate to slap him. Snap. Shut up. Song Qingdai closed her mouth at once. Her eyes filled with tears as she looked at Jiang Fan in horror. Jiang Fan said with a cold face, I ask, you answer. One more word of nonsense and I'll kill you. Song Qingdai nodded her head busily. Which one is manager you? This, it was the shifter. How did you get here? I, I, I'm the owner of this club. What's manager Yu's relationship to you? He's just a manager I recruited ah, responsible for daily operations. Big brother, if you have a grudge against him, just kill him. It's none of my business ah, I'm just a co-worker with him. Song Qingdai begged bitterly. When she saw that Jiang Fan had been asking about Yu Tianzhu, she thought that he was Yu Tianzhu's former enemy who had now come to seek revenge. Jiang Fan of course couldn't believe her side of the story and needed to combine his perceptions to judge. In perception, there was some red light on Song Qingdai's body, but not much, most of it was yellow. It does seem like the two are not in a relationship. Where are the other survivors? I don't know them. They were all saved by Yu Tianzhu, who put them to work and fed them. There are only six people in total. And you're still saying you don't recognize them? Jiang Fan raised his heavy sword. Song Qingdai was so frightened that she waved her hands and said under her breath, Really? Didn't lie to you. It's really a survivor from outside. I don't know anyone. Big brother. My dad is Song Changhai. Don't kill me. I'll ask my dad to give you money. 10 million. 20 million. Name a number. Song Changhai? Jiang Fan had heard of this name. Because he once worked at a hotel where the chairman was Song Changhai. And he had met Song Changhai once. I heard that the big boss has an only daughter. It turned out to be Song Qing Dai. Jiang Fan looked closely and realized that Song Qingdai did look a bit like Song Changhai between her eyebrows. Jiang Fan put down his heart. After confirming Song Qingdai's identity, it was certain that she was not related to those survivors outside. Then consider taking it. Jiang Fan casually said, Are you stupid? Money is of no use right now. Song Qingdai is desperate. What else can she do to save her life except to ask her father to give her money? Jiang Fan asked again, You can fix machinery? 
Song Qingdai keenly felt the turnaround and immediately curtly said, Yes, I studied automation in college. Big brother, don't kill me. I can fix cars, and I have no problem with simple electrical appliances. It's useful for you to keep me. She had grown up with a merchant father and had learned nothing else, but to recognize the times. Song Chunghai had taught her since she was a child. Qing Dai, don't look at your father as being very honorable in front of outsiders, but in front of the officials, he is nothing. So, in the future, when you encounter certain powerful people, you should just admit your weakness. Remember, when people are under the roof, they have to bow their heads. Song Qing Dai had always idolized her father and took his words to heart. Right now, she'd agree to anything if it meant staying alive. Also, I'm quite capable of psychic powers and can help you reinforce your house. I, I, I should still be pretty. Song Qing Dai clenched her teeth and said it with a red face, not hesitating to tempt Jiang Fan with her body. You can do whatever you want. Brother, don't kill me. Song Qing Dai's red face and words were quite pleading. The man killed five people as soon as he walked in the door. She had no resistance to such murderous thugs and only wanted to do her best to please. It was the first time Jiang Fan had seen this kind of woman, but it was normal to think about it. The body is nothing in the face of life. Jiang Fan said indifferently, you just said there was food. What are you guys eating here? Without the slightest hesitation, Song Qingdai spoke out like a bamboo tube, there's a peach tree in the backyard. And after the red mist descended, the tree grew a few peaches every day, and we've lived off of it until now. Peach? Jiang Fan was curious, show me. A moment later, Jiang Fan stood in front of a peach tree. The peach tree emitted an ethereal glow, clearly mutated. Each peach was considerably larger than a regular peach, about the size of two adult fists. Jiang Fan asked with a frown, this stuff is edible? After the red mist descended, most of the plants mutated. The fruit trees that were edible have basically changed. Some mutate out of toxins. Some are so full of fiber that they can't be swallowed. Some are so acidic that they can corrode the teeth and mouth. So far, Jiang Fan only knew that the capers were still edible, and that they had become smelly. This peach is actually edible? Jiang Fan gently leapt up and picked one and handed it to Song Qingdai, eat it. This man was also too vigilant. Song Qingdai thought darkly, so she obediently ate. Jiang Fan looked at her expression of enjoyment. It seemed quite tasty. He carefully observed the glow on her body again, and there was no change, indicating that it wasn't too harmful to the body, or else it would be more tolerable, and the brightness of the body wouldn't be able to fool him. However, Jiang Fan still wouldn't eat it immediately. He had to make sure that Song Qingdai's ability didn't have the effect of resisting the toxin before he could do so. Otherwise, in case the peaches were poisonous but Song Qingdai was able to resist the toxin, she would have to eat it herself and be in the gutter. Song Qingdai whispered, I won't lie to you. It's really edible. Big brother. Look here. She plowed the ground with a stick. Here we planted some peach seeds. Only it was too short a time before they sprouted. There are indeed quite a few peach cores buried in the dirt. Jiang Fan basically believed it. If it was poisonous, they wouldn't have planted peaches. Jiang Fan then casually took out a plastic bag from his carry-on space and handed it to Song Qingdai, leave one in the dirt and collect all the rest of the peach cores. Song Qingdai froze for a moment, feeling that her eyes were blurry. Where did this plastic bag come from? She dared not ask more questions and dug out all the peach kernels. Jiang Fan received a plastic bag of peach kernels and put it back into his carry-on space. Song Qingdai's expression froze. How come the plastic bags are gone again? That would be an ability. By the way. Oops. I saw it. Song Qingdai's heart began to beat wildly and her mind went blank. Done. I saw what I shouldn't have seen. The other side must be planning to silence themselves. Big brother. Don't kill me. She trembled. Jiang Fan glanced at her. This woman is pretty smart. He crouched down and unleashed a plant hypnosis on the remaining peach kernels. A great deal of physical energy surged out. And in a few seconds a shoot grew out of the ground and quickly grew into a tiny peach seedling. Jiang Fan stopped. His physical strength was not enough to ripen the entire peach tree at once. Just prove that peach kernels can breed. Song Qingdai looked dumbfounded. Another ability? Jiang Fan took out his wool heavy sword and inserted it deeply into the land, drawing a circle along the peach tree trunk one meter. Then hold on to the peach tree and lash out. The chi and blood erupted. 500%. Boom. Peach trees several meters high were uprooted hard. Gulp. Song Qingdai swallowed hard. Another ability. Her whole body went numb. Jiang Fan put the peach tree away in his carry-on space, ready to find a safe place to plant it again. Jiang Fan pointed at the pit left by the peach tree, you have two choices, come with me or be buried in this pit. Song Qingdai was as surprised as if she had been pardoned, I'm coming with you. Jiang Fan smiled, I like smart women, let's go, let me inspect the goods first. Ha, huh? now, Song Qingdai was at a loss for words. Chapter 143, Earth and Stone Remodeling, in the off-road RV. 
Zhang Fan redressed and looked at the system prompt with satisfaction frowny face ding. One day ago, Song Qingdai consumed two mutant peaches and returned 3,000. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Song Qingdai consumed two mutant peaches and returned 3,000. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Three days ago, Song Qingdai consumed two mutant peaches and returned 3,000. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Twenty days ago, Song Qingdai consumed one fruit of enlightenment earth and stone transformation and returned 1,500 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, earth and stone transformation one star. When consumed, you can gain the earth and stone transformation ability. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Zhang Fan looked straight up speechless. Ever since the red mist descended, Song Qingdai's group had been eating peaches after they finished their only food. Eat peaches every day for over 20 days. It's really hard for this rich kid. Song Qingdai's food record also proved that she wasn't lying about surviving on mutant peaches. Mutant peaches really aren't poisonous. However, Zhang Fan glanced at Song Qingdai. Song Qingdai reddened her eyes and covered herself with her tattered clothes. Seeing Zhang Fan's gaze she hurriedly tried to squeeze out a smile at Zhang Fan. This woman ate peaches every day and actually showed no signs of malnutrition. Looking very healthy and not wasting away. It looks like this peach is not only hydrating and sugary, but also protein. What a perfect food. Zhang Fan picked a peach from the space and ate it in a few bites. The texture is not quite the same as previous peaches. It has the feel of eating a crunchy banana. It was pretty tasty though. He carefully experienced the change of the mutated peach in his body. Mutant peaches don't have the feeling of energy flowing into the body like mutant frog meat, and are about just a normal food that fills the stomach. Zhang Fan was a little disappointed. He has no shortage of food. If it doesn't improve his physique, this peach will be dispensable to him. He took out another earth and stone transformation fruit and ate it. Earth and stone transformation, two stars. You can change the shape of the earth and stone at will and strengthen its sturdiness. The higher the will, the higher the strengthening and the faster the transformation. How much reinforcement and how quickly it is transformed is related to will. Zhang Fan was pleasantly surprised. Could it be a will-like ability? Zhang Fan didn't test it immediately and went back to talk about it. After determining that Song Qingdai's supernatural ability was not too threatening, Zhang Fan once again looked at Song Qingdai. Around the time of the loss of her body, she was a little more red and hated herself more, which was normal. However, she wore a pleasing smile on her face, not showing a hint of it, obviously. Song Qingdai was shocked in her heart. Was that an alien fruit he ate just now? Zhang Fan flipped his hand and three xenofruits appeared in his hand, staring straight at her follow me and there will be no shortage of alien fruits or food. Song Qingdai's beautiful eyes rounded, why do you have so many alien fruits? After she and Yu Tianju accidentally found two exotic fruits, they later searched around the area as well. But unfortunately there was no luck. After one encounter with danger, the two men wimped out and stopped going out looking. Neither one's powers were combat oriented. And in the face of danger, they were no better than ordinary people. Then a succession of survivors came to the club. None with powers. The two were basically certain that the alien fruit was a valuable material. Now Zhang Fan had actually taken out three of them, plus the one he had just eaten. It was already four. Zhang Fan laughed that's a lot? He grabbed a big handful of alien fruits like a rich man scattering money in peacetime. Song Qingdai's breath stopped. Zhang Fan placed three exotic fruits in her hands. Eat these three first. All my women have eaten them. Song Qingdai heard Zhang Fan's subtext. He's got a lot of women. Scumbag. Song Qingdai said in her heart, not daring to show the slightest bit on her face. She couldn't wait to swallow the three exotic fruits. Soon, she was surprised how my power seems to have gotten stronger. Zhang Fan explained the effects of the three supernormal abilities. Song Qingdai couldn't help but be overjoyed. And after experimenting with them, her hostility towards Zhang Fan immediately dropped. Powerful men both in times of peace and now, are the object of a woman's admiration? Zhang Fan narrowed his eyes and watched without moving as the color of the light on her body changed. The red light had disappeared to a great extent, and half green, mixed with half yellow, appeared. Zhang Fan's killing intent subsided quite a bit. If she still harbors a secret hatred by giving her the fruit of alien energy, Zhang Fan doesn't care if he beheads the sister on the spot to prove her path. He's killed more than one anyway. Song Qingdai didn't know that she had gone off the edge of a cliff and just looked at herself in disgust, why is so much dirt coming out of me? Zhang Fan laughed to normal, side effect of body strengthening, expelling dirty things from the body, you go take a shower and we'll leave. Song Qingdai was helpless, where's the water to bathe in? It's all been drunk long ago. Zhang Fan pointed his finger, a dozen vats of pure water appeared on the ground, go wash. Song Qingdai was pleasantly surprised, followed by meaty words, would it be a waste to bathe in pure water? 
Jiang Fan said indifferently, I've stored enough supplies for 100 people for 100 years. Don't worry. Song Qingdai's attitude towards Jiang Fan once again shifted when she heard this. Follow this man. Maybe we can find dad. If dad died, it would be a good choice to follow Jiang Fan all the time. Right? Jiang Fan smiled as he watched the green light on her body flourish. Half an hour later, Song Qingdai washed the dirt off her body and changed into a brand new sweatshirt. Much fresher and in a good mood, Jiang Fan put away all the cars. Song Qingdai looked secretly staggered. Just how big was Jiang Fan's carry-on space? Jiang Fan asked, what tools do I need to fix my car? Song Qingdai immediately said, it's best to take it all if you can, but without electricity. A lot of the tools are simply useless. I think that these are more important. No, take it all away then. The electricity will come later. Jiang Fan put away all the tools in the modification workshop and put on the mask again. Here, get on my back. Ha, huh? still? Song Qingdai was taken aback. She couldn't figure out Jiang Fan's brain circuits. But in her hands, she started to unbutton her collar. She didn't dare to disobey Jiang Fan's wishes at all now. Jiang Fan said without any good humor, I mean I'm leaving on your back. What are you taking your clothes off for? Ah, Song Qingdai's face blushed with shame as she hurriedly flopped onto Jiang Fan's back. Hold your hands tight, and clench your legs. Jiang Fan gave her a mask to put on, and dragged her upwards with his hands before unleashing his ability. Gravitational distortion. The upward gravitational pull of the metal pieces in the clothes and shoes appeared. Jiang Fan's body was as light as a piece of paper. He jumped hard, straight up dozens of meters high. Chapter 144 Refuge Sword Chi Ah! Song Qingdai screamed in terror. Jiang Fan slapped her backhand heavily on her buttocks, shut up. You're making a lot of noise. Song Qingdai hurriedly covered her mouth. The wind whistled by. Jiang Fan landed on the roof of a short building. Then once again, he powered up and jumped dozens of meters high again. This time, he broke right out of the red mist and landed on the top of a huge pine tree. Song Qingdai looked straight at the sun in the sky and froze, so it's sunny now. She was so excited to finally see the sun again after being trapped in the red mist for so long that tears came to her eyes. At that moment, a spider appeared from nowhere and suddenly pounced towards Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan didn't even look at it and pulled out his heavy sword for a backhanded slash. The spider split in two on the spot. Only then did Song Qingdai see the spider and cover her mouth in horror. Hold tight. Jiang Fan's expression was bland as he recognized the direction of the fortune center and just jumped back. With the combined effect of gravitational distortion and his powerful physique, Jiang Fan was extremely fast, and with a full force jump, he could often jump hundreds of meters. The devil sea was filled with tall buildings, plus large trees poking out of the red mist, and all the way over. Jiang Fan had barely landed under the red mist. This way is much faster than going underground, except that it's a bit dangerous and easy to be targeted. However, with the aid of 200 meter perception, Jiang Fan was basically able to avoid the most dangerous mutated flora and fauna. More than an hour later, Jiang Fan brought Song Qingdai back to his fortune center home. He untied Song Qingdai and set him down. If you don't consider the danger, it's still pretty cool to have a woman on your back and jump with a lurch. The women saw Song Qingdai and laughed, what's the new sister's name? When Song Qingdai saw a group of beautiful, clean and healthy women, she had a higher assessment of Jiang Fan's ability in her heart. Instead of a group of women, what she saw was Jiang Fan nakedly showing off his strength. To be able to protect a group of women so well even in the dangerous post-apocalyptic world, Jiang Fan's strength definitely exceeded the imagination of ordinary people. Day 2. Jiang Fan finished his breakfast and chatted casually with the women. The women went about their own business. The girls were a little nervous. They were about to travel to a large, unfamiliar settlement. And they didn't know if it would be a blessing or a curse. They know how attractive they are to men and are expected to make a lot of trouble if they are targeted. Jiang Fan also had a headache. He wasn't afraid of other people's prying eyes. It was mostly too annoying. Just like in the Pearl of the Demon Sea, although he was confident that he could deal with his enemies, the fact that a lot of people were staring at the Pearl of the Demon Sea also made him very upset. In a dangerous post-apocalyptic world with countless powers and aliens lurking in the shadows, it's better to stay in the corner. But the presence of the tentacle monsters prevented him from moving too far away from the crowd. In the event of danger in a large settlement, the other survivors are meat shields, and living alone in the wilderness, that self is the only target. Song Qingdai cowered in the corner, listening to the crowd chatting, her mindset having radically changed after the night and the ridiculously rich breakfast. A man like Jiang Fan was the biggest performance stock in the end times, and if he wanted to hold Jiang Fan's thigh tightly, he had to show enough value. As the daughter of a merchant, Song Qingdai understood these truths from a young age. She looked and looked at the faces of the women, knowing that she had little to no advantage and even a few of them, even more so, had their own, characteristics, especially the one with the majestic peak, 
Song Qingdai's heart fluttered at the sight of it, not to mention the men. She thought for a moment and then suddenly said, Brother Jiang, I know a place that might be perfect for us. Jiang Fan said curiously, Oh, tell me. The women all looked at Song Qingdai. Song Qingdai saw the crowd of women's expressions and was secretly pleased in her heart. Without showing it on her face, the 910th unit is stationed in Zhuja village. About 5 kilometers west of Zhuja village is the East Mountain Scenic Area. Outside the East Mountain Scenic Area there is a pure villa community called East Mountain Holiday, where all of the top class mansions covering an area of more than 10 acres are located. Chen Xingji, the real estate bigwig of Magic Sea City, spent several hundred million dollars to remodel a set of shelters underneath the villas, which are very large and big enough for dozens of people to live in. Jiang Fan immediately rose in interest, are you sure? Song Qingdai immediately said, right. My dad also has a villa in the East Mountain Holiday District, and is business friends with Chen Xingji. After Chen Xingji built the shelter, he once invited my dad to visit it once, and I followed him in. The facilities inside are very good. There is even a generator. The walls are all made of alloy. Very safe. If it was anyone else, they wouldn't be able to get in. But don't we all have the ability to walk through walls? We can easily enter that shelter. Jiang Fan mused. Zhuja village is 5 kilometers away. Not too far away and very suitable. He himself wanted to go to the village of Zhu and the 910th to gather some intelligence and supplies. And he could easily do so. But others will have trouble trying to get to the shelter. Unless one is an adept with some special ability, it is extremely difficult to walk 5 kilometers in the wild. Also, East Mountain Holiday is still west of Unit 910. If the tentacle monsters come in force, it is the 910th that will bear the brunt of the attack. There was plenty of time to react yourself. Jiang Fan looked at Song Qingdai again. The glow on her was almost all green. It shows that this woman's mind is changing very quickly. Shouldn't be lying to myself. Jiang Fan then made up his mind and said very well. Our first target is that shelter. Song Qingdai, you did a good job. Song Qingdai was elated. Getting praised by Jiang Fan made her very happy. In fact, she had a selfish desire to see if dad was in that villa. If it's there. Jiang Fan suddenly said did you want to see if your dad was over there? Song Qingdai was startled and hurriedly said, Brother Jiang, I'm not lying, there really is a shelter there. Jiang Fan looked at her in a different way and casually said, It's okay, your dad is in a better place, and I want your family to be reunited. If you want to look for your relatives, you can give me the list in photos, and I'll help you look for them this time when we go to the 910th troop site. The women were overjoyed. Thank you Brother Jiang. Brother Jiang, my sister might still be alive. Here's her picture. I also have a cousin in the Magic Sea. Jiang Fan smiled and answered all of them. It's good to have family. It's easier to control when you have more family. After determining his destination, Jiang Fan had nothing more to do but wait for the military to bombard him. He flew to the roof of the building and pulled out a steel bar. Hardening. A dozen seconds later, the steel was rotting like spaghetti. The essence of the steel bar quenched a quenched steel needle the size of an embroidery needle. Jiang Fan took out his wool heavy sword and incorporated the quenching steel needle into it. He has been continuing this work since the heavy sword of will was drawn. What exactly is the point of incorporating other materials? Jiang Fan carefully observed the heavy sword. The will heavy sword doesn't seem to have changed much. It's just gotten heavier and vaguely a bit more while it lasts. Jiang Fan couldn't figure out if it was psychological. He studied it and still couldn't figure it out. So he can only give up for the moment and casually waved his sword. The heavy sword of will was unimaginably sharp, even though it had no blade. Jiang Fan didn't have to exert much force to leave a deep mark on the ground. On the spur of the moment, his chi instantly erupted and his body ghostly rushed out to stab a sword. Accidents happen. Jiang Fan clearly felt that the chi unexpectedly rushed out from the sword. It struck deep holes in the far wall, surprisingly penetrating right through it. That's more powerful than a bullet. Jiang Fan was pleasantly surprised. This is Sword Chi, Chapter 145, Five Star Earth and Stone Transformation, Magic Sea City Great Bombardment. All along, Jiang Fan thought that Qi could only flow within the body. Now, he suddenly realized that the Wool Heavy Sword could actually conduct Qi, and could also turn Qi into bullets. Is this an effect of the weapon of will itself? Or is it an additional effect that is only gained by incorporating hardened metal? Jiang Fan immediately took out a steel bar and once again quenched the steel needle and integrated it into the heavy sword. With a movement in his heart, Qi shot out from the heavy sword once again. Pust. Another deep hole was left in the wall. But Jiang Fan clearly felt that the qi was conducted more smoothly within the sword, and the loss of qi within the sword was reduced. Jiang Fan thought darkly so it turns out that quenching metals can improve qi conduction. After some tests, Jiang Fan approximately figured out the general value of the sword qi. The attack distance is about 15 meters. It's so powerful. 
It can penetrate 20 centimeters of concrete, better than a sniper rifle. It only consumes a lot as well, and once Chi can be released about 20 times. Luckily, now that breathing can return, Chi, the breathing method returns, Chi, even faster. Zhang Fan practiced Sword Chi for one hour, then took out the earth and stone transformation fruit and ate it. After taking a dozen or so, it did go up to three stars. Ding! Earth and stone remodeling upgraded to three stars. Zhang Fan was overjoyed. Sure enough, it's a will type ability. Keep eating. Ding! Earth and stone remodeling upgraded to four stars. Ding! Earth and stone remodeling upgraded to five stars. Up to this point, Zhang Fan had eaten so much that he could no longer eat. Earth and stone modification is about not a purely will based ability. Zhang Fan had a certain amount of adaptability. But again, it wasn't as well adapted as a purely will based psychic ability. Earth and stone transformation, five stars. You can change the shape of earth and stone at will and strengthen its sturdiness, the higher the will, the higher the strengthening, and the faster the transformation, you can quickly transform the terrain. Quick change of terrain? Zhang Fan's heart stirred. A floor slab suddenly bulged with a sharp spike in the ground that pierced the solar water heater directly above it. Zhang Fan felt a spiritual emptiness, and his energy was greatly depleted. He experimented some more. It was ultimately determined that the faster the terrain changed, the firmer the ground became and the more energy was expended. As long as the speed is slow enough and the ground is soft enough, the energy expenditure will be extremely low. He even thought he could last two or three hours if he leveled the ground with this ability. Zhang Fan had confidence in the trip afterward. With this ability, a bad road blasted by artillery fire can be quickly leveled and vehicles will be able to pass through. The calm night passed. Luckily, the tentacle monsters didn't kill near the fortune center. This made Zhang Fan breathe a sigh of relief. Amidst the apprehension of the women, the time for the bombardment arrived. At 7.50 in the morning, Zhang Fan stood on the balcony with all the women, looking out into the distance. In the other two buildings of the fortune center, there were also a number of survivors who went out to the balcony and looked into the distance. When the crowd saw Zhang Fan standing with a group of women from afar, they were extremely envious and jealous. At the same time, countless people in the Magic Sea City looked on with eager anticipation and confusion in their hearts. This bombing will decide the fate of countless people. A lot of people are still undecided as to whether they should stay or go. Tian Tian shrank behind Zhang Fan and said in fear Brother Jiang, the army won't blow up crooked, right? Zhang Fan patted her little head, don't worry, we are more than 500 meters away from the nearest escape route, and with the accuracy of modern artillery, it's impossible to skew it that much, unless the military intentionally shoots off course. Su Jin then said worriedly, will this bombing cause any accidental injuries? Some of the survivors may not be able to receive the news, and if they stay in the escape routes, they will surely be killed by the bombing. Right? Zhang Fan said indifferently, Ms. Injury is inevitable. In times of peace, when the army mistakenly injures the people, it is definitely a serious accident, and several official hats have to be jerked off. Unfortunately, this is not an era of peace. In this world today, who cares about the deaths of ordinary people? Dead is dead. The women were silent. Yeah. In times of peace, which officer would dare to be crazy enough to bomb Magic Sea City? What if someone gets killed? What if I start a fire? It's different now. Who cares about such, trivial matters, as human life? The brutal side of the end times hit the women. When the military doesn't care if ordinary people die or live, what else is there to fall back on? 8 o'clock sharp. The sky was quiet. The women looked at the time repeatedly. Has the bombing been cancelled? A few dozen seconds later, the dense and sharp sound of artillery shells suddenly rang out. It was as if countless fiery meteors had fallen from the sky. Phew! 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 The shells fell into the red mist. Immediately afterward, a loud roar came from the red mist. Boom! 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 The red mist trembled violently in the distance. The rushing firelight illuminated the red mist. Shell after shell seemed to go on forever. Boom! Boom! Buildings collapsed. Trees fell. Wild animals fled. And humans cried out in alarm. The magic sea city, which had been silent for a long time, seemed to suddenly boil up. The mutant birds were frightened and flew up like a dark cloud. An overwhelming mass of them, emitting mournful howls. Zhang Fan and the ladies watched the magnificent scene. No living thing is a match for a cannonball. The sound of the cannons was like the roar of human civilization, proving to the red-misted earth who was the master of the world. Tang Shuelua said angrily, so the artillery shells are so powerful, then why didn't they bombard before, causing so many of us to die? What a brainless woman. Zhang Fan said in disgust, as powerful as modern weapons are, they are also extremely stressful on logistics, with the red mist and evolved plants cutting off transportation. The army's logistics are already collapsing de facto, how do you replenish with new ones when the artillery shells are finished blasting away? 
Tang Shuelua was speechless. Su Mengqian glanced triumphantly at Tang Shuelua. Dumbass. The army really bombed. The army is crazy. It actually dares to bombard Magic Sea City. The commander must be court-martialed. Enough of this useless talk. Shall we go? Definitely we have to go. If everyone leaves, there will be too few survivors left for us to survive. I'm not leaving. I don't know what those soldiers are thinking. They might arrest us and use us as two-legged sheep. I'm going to leave. I never want to eat flavored capers again. There's at least food on the army side, right? Who knows? Maybe drag us into hard labor? The chances of surviving over there in the army are always better here. Amidst the apprehension of countless people, the bombardment lasted for 24 hours, and the mutated animals in the entire Magic Sea City shivered and fled in all directions. Many of the survivors can barely sleep either. After 24 hours, the bombing stopped on time. Accidents happen. Fires burned everywhere in Magic Sea City. Survivors won't be able to get anywhere near an escape route anytime soon. The 910th unit site is in disarray. Juger was at a loss for words on this. He then realized that there was a complete lack of forethought as to what to do about a widespread fire. What's the solution now? There is no way. Chu Jia could only be impotent and furious. If he fails in his first major command operation, his reputation will take a huge hit. Luckily, a sudden rainstorm saves Chu Kit's plan. The storm rained for a full day. All the flames in Magic Sea City are basically all extinguished. The escape plan, postponed for a day, was once again in motion. Chapter 146 Convoy in the midst of the fleeing crowd the fire is out. Zhang Fan's group came to the ground. Twelve women warbling. They were armed to the teeth in uniform field uniforms and thick hiking boots. With a proximity radio, pistol and dagger in hand. Plus at least three alien powers. Li Qingchuan, who had no powers, was the weakest, sitting on the husky white eyes. Li Qingchuan looked at white eyes with a very fearful expression. Afraid that this stupid dog would accidentally bite himself to death. Su Xiaome hugged the white fox Shuer. Tian Tian carried a cat bag with black cat cola. Zhang Fan swept through the women in a good mood. The corners of his mouth slightly raised let's go. Stay close and don't get left behind. Yes, brother Jiang. The ladies responded with delicate voices. Zhang Fan recognized the direction and took the lead. Some of the survivors who had gone downstairs to the 910 quarters had their eyes glazed over when they saw the women. They were all starving and thin. And this group of women were healthy, beautiful, and clean. They also smelled of shampoo and perfume and were obviously living very well. It makes men blush and women jealous, but no one dared to make a move. Don't even dare to show your hostility. There are no more fools among the survivors who have made it this far. This group of women have survived so well. Just think how powerful their patron is. These survivors are smart enough to silently follow the group of women for a little security. However, the hostile red light of these survivors was clearly seen by Jiang Fan and the others. Jiang Fan didn't care. At his current strength, it was difficult for ordinary survivors to harm themselves anymore. Zhang Fan even allowed these hostile survivors to follow behind him. In case of danger, this group is the best meat shield. However, the difference in stamina between the two sides was too great. Even if Zhang Fan didn't chase them away, the survivors who had been starving for a long time couldn't catch up with Zhang Fan. Zhang Fan made his way through the thorns and led the women through the dense forest for a few hundred meters before his eyes opened up. The dense forest suddenly disappeared. There were large trees blown off everywhere some of which had been charred. The ground was covered with large puddles that were dirty with standing water after a day of heavy rain. The murky, dirty water was terrifying, and hell knows if there were any mutant animals lurking in all that stagnant water. Zhang Fan was looking at it with a straight toothache. Let weak survivors trek dozens of kilometers on such roads. Five out of ten would be lucky to survive. It's a good thing we don't have to walk. Zhang Fan scanned the surrounding with his perception, probably because it was still early in the day. The nearest survivors were also 100 meters away, and they were all ordinary people. Zhang Fan immediately pulled out a tank, two cross-country caravans, and a Hummer from his carry-on space. The women were immediately busy, using multiple strands of steel wire to connect the three cars together according to the plan. The tank was at the front, the Humvee at the end, and the two RVs in the middle. Song Qingdai and Tang Shuelua made their way through the tanks. Li Qingxuan took the last Hummer with a blank stare. Zhang Fan took the rest of the women in the center two caravans. Li Qingyu pressed her hand against the wall of the caravan and activated the gravitational distortion. With the wire conductors, the four cars are three quarters lighter. Li Qingyu felt it and said, I can last about an hour and have to take a 20 minute break. Zhang Fan nodded, no problem. It doesn't have to be too fast. We'll be safest if we mix with the other survivors. He told the drivers of the four cars, including Song Qing Dai, through a link of wills, let's go. Okay. Song Qingdai rubbed her hands together in excitement and slammed on the gas. Racing a tank in Magic Sea City, such a crazy idea. 
she had never even thought of it in the peace era. It's just too exciting. As to whether or not it will open. Doesn't matter. There are no traffic cops these days anyway. Just don't hit the building. The tank engine roared. With a violent roar. The powerful momentum drives the dozen ton behemoth to crush all obstacles. The three cars behind them revved up and followed. With gravitational distortion. The four cars were invincible on the pothold. Obstacle strewn road. Jiang Fan, on the other hand, silently monitored his surroundings with his senses. At the same time, he observes the road ahead, and if he encounters a pothole that is too deep, or a dirt slope that is too high, he paves the road with dirt and gravel modifications to allow the convoy to pass. The convoy advanced. There are more and more survivors on the road. In the crowd, Lu Jinfeng, leaning on a wooden stick and carrying the only grain on her back, struggled to walk on the pothole-ridden road. Suddenly, the roar of an engine came from the red mist behind. What's going on? There's still a car you can drive? Lu Jinfeng followed the crowd and looked back in shock. The engine roar grew stronger and there was a loudspeaker announcement, people in front, get out of the way. People in front, get out of the way. Man in front. The crowd rushed to get out of the way. Lu Jinfeng followed the crowd and walked to the side of the road. Soon, a hideous metal monstrosity appeared in the red mist. Crap. Tank. It's actually a tank. Could it be the military? Great. The military is here to protect us. The tank eased forward. Two off-road RVs and a modified Hummer followed. The crowd stared in disbelief at the exaggerated caravan. The caravan slowly overtook the crowd and disappeared into the red mist. Some have only envy. Some are indignant. Damn. Why the hell do they have pawn protection? And cars to ride in. Must be rich. Rich people count for nothing now. I reckon it's the dogs in office. Mud. Shoo. Keep your voice down. I'm the powerful alien. Crap. It's very possible. Lu Jinfeng froze for a moment. And with a twinkle in her eye she chased after him, waving her hand and yelling wait, wait, give me a ride, I've broken my foot. The women looked out the window curiously. It was a devastatingly bad road in the middle of a dense red mist forest. Countless survivors trudged down the rotten road. They hadn't seen so many people in a long time. I can't believe there are so many survivors. How did they all survive? Jiang Fan also silently observed the situation outside. This was a rare opportunity to analyze the current situation of the survivors. There is a huge disparity between men and women. Approximately 10 colon 1. The percentage of aliens is high. Estimated at 1%. In just over half an hour, thousands of survivors were encountered. The number of survivors seems to be a little higher than expected. At this time, Li Qingyu sweated profusely brother Jiang. I need to take a break. Good. Jiang Fan informed the four drivers in the Wu Link, stop the advance and rest for 30 minutes. Okay. Jiang. Okay. Mr. Jiang. Chapter 147 No Morality. No moral kidnapping in addition to Li Qingyu's exhaustion. Jiang Fan also realized that there was a traffic jam ahead before he stopped the convoy. Yes. Traffic. There was actually a traffic jam a dozen meters away. A big smart guy who somehow managed to get an SUV onto this shitty road. The SUV was just a normal city SUV. Not to mention modified. And even had normal tires. So it quickly got stuck in a mud puddle and couldn't move. After a long effort, Big Smart couldn't drive out of the car, so he could only be chagrined and angry outside the car. A group of people who had wanted to rub it in, after realizing that Big Smart's car couldn't get out, taunted and turned away. Jiang Fan pulled open the car door and jumped out. The boulder Su Mengqian followed Jiang Fan out of the car. The other women were honestly hiding in the car so as not to cause trouble for Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan lightly glanced at Su Mengqian. Su Mengqian hurriedly smiled with her, I can keep an eye on the others for you if something happens. Jiang Fan did not comment on this. He never restricts women's activities. Just like Tian Tian sometimes opens a portal to go out and sneak around. Jiang Fan never cares. It is only when women see the depths of the waters outside that they appreciate the good life they have here on their own. If women are in danger when they go out, such as being killed or captured, it is a risk they willingly take. It was the end times after all. And even Jiang Fan himself couldn't guarantee that he would be able to come back every day. Not to mention this group of women. Jiang Fan treated this group of women as collector's items and tool people for brushing supplies, without investing too much emotion. If some woman was killed, he wouldn't be much sadder, except that he would retaliate a hundredfold against the murderer. Anyway, whoever dared to touch Jiang Fan's toy would have to pay with their lives. Jiang Fan said indifferently a be careful. Su Mengqian obediently said, got it, I've been following you. She had seen that all survivors within sensory range were stark red to her. Then she looked at the eerie gleam in the men's eyes and she already regretted it a little. The crowd stared at Jiang Fan, a man and a woman. Both men and women are mad with jealousy. We can't even eat anymore. And the clothes on them are spotless. 
That woman is so beautiful. It's cheap for that brat. Damn. By what right? I've been eating flavored capers every day. And this kid is still white? Zhang Fan also noticed the hostility of the survivors around him. It didn't matter though. There were ordinary people within a few dozen meters. There was no threat to him. Anyone who dares to make an attacking move will be killed directly. Zhang Fan took Su Meng Chen, walked to the side of the SUV and asked calmly when can you take the car. The crowd nearby looked at them. The owner didn't even turn his head. Angry, I damn well like to drive away. I have to be able to drive it too. The owner cursed before turning his head to look, and immediately saw Su Meng Chen, coloring, beauty. Get in the car ah, brother take you. Snap. Before the words left his mouth, Zhang Fan grabbed his head and violently pressed it downward while lifting his knee. Click. The man's whole face was sunk in, dead as a doornail. Zhang Fan let go of his hand and the body flopped to the ground with a plop. The surrounding crowd was startled the crap. So fierce. He's a shifter? Zhang Fan reached out and grabbed the roof of the SUV, lashing out. Gravitational distortion. The chi and blood erupted. The two-ton SUV was thrown like a basketball and landed far into the dense forest. The terrifying scene caused the breath of the surrounding crowd to stop instantly, it's still fucking human. Both men and women looked at Zhang Fan dumbfounded. Envy, admiration, worship, and shock to name a few. Su Mengjian proudly took Zhang Fan's arm, her swan-like neck raised high. This man, mine. At this moment, Zhang Fan suddenly turned his head to look at the red mist behind him. A group of people had actually surrounded the convoy? There was also an older woman who was picking at the door of the RV, struggling to get in and appeared to be arguing with the woman in the car. Zhang Fan frowned, his senses cast over, and the old woman's voice came over. You guys are wearing uniforms and driving tanks, so you must be the army. What makes you guys just these officials? Who Lily was helpless, and a few women were talking to each other, it really isn't. We're a private car. Auntie, get off. It's not a military vehicle. Lu Jinfeng yanked hard on the edge of the door, foaming at the mouth and shouting you know, you must be military vehicles. Why should the soldiers only save the rich and not us commoners? I can't walk with my broken foot. I have to take a car. It's inhuman. Soldiers bully people. Who are these powerful people to ride over us? What's wrong with one more person in such a big car? How can these young people be so cruel? Don't you know how to respect the old and love the young? Who Lily watched helplessly as the old woman spilled her guts, looking at her living legs, which had a hint of a broken foot. At some point, a group of survivors came up around them staring greedily at the women in the caravan. So many beautiful women. They're worried about the asylum seekers behind these women. But seeing as the old woman had been making a scene for so long and the asylum hadn't stepped in yet, they all got up some sort of idea. If the old woman can get on the bus, we can get on the bus, right? As long as you can sit in the car, there is no chance. Tang Shui Rou and Li Qingyu also poked their heads out of the tank. And behind them, Li Qing Quan hesitated to go down to see the situation. But looking at the blank stare with an inexplicable expression, he didn't dare to move again. More beautiful women appeared, causing the survivors around them to stir. Once a certain repressed desire arises, it can no longer be controlled. The bold survivors with ideas quietly leaned forward. The timid ones slipped away. Just then, Zhang Fan brought Su Mengqian back to the side of the caravan. Su Mengqian, you get in the car first. Lu Jinfeng picks at the door and pulls her voice. There's no first come first served. Can't you see I was here first? Jiang Fan had not yet spoken. Su Mengqian then hurriedly said, oh, Auntie, this is our own car. You, with so many people here. She didn't dare to cause trouble for Jiang Fan. Lu Jinfeng became more and more excited. Her face flushed with excitement. And her mouth blazed up. What own car? Are the tanks yours too? Who are you kidding? Even if it's your car so what? Shouldn't you rescue the older ones when you meet them in times of danger? Pust. Lu Jinfeng looked down at her chest as a knife stabbed out of her chest. This. This. This is what's going on. Lu Jinfeng collapsed softly to the ground. And after a few seconds there was no more sound. Zhang Fan flatly walked past her corpse and stood in front of the surrounding crowd. You kill yourselves. Or do I? Chapter 148. No influence. Only fists the women were dumbfounded. What's it to them? The crowd of onlookers was also dumbfounded. No. No. Man. We didn't do anything. Zhang Fan sneered. That old woman was breaking bread with her own woman. And these people were right next to her all of them unsuspecting, do you really think you can't see that? And, the red light on the group was so red it was black. Zhang Fan knew very well that he was too inviting with a group of beautiful women, driving a tank and a caravan, just now, but whenever he showed a hint of cowardice, it was a group attack situation. Although Zhang Fan was not afraid, he was also in trouble. Therefore, he would never give them the slightest room for illusions, and had to cut the seedling in its infancy. 
Jiang Fan said indifferently, since you guys don't want to do it, let me do it. The crowd was in an uproar. None of the survivors who could survive until now were good enough to be messed with, and suddenly burst into a rage, what do we care? You're carrying a friggin' sword, and you're scaring the hell out of me. A tall man threw up his arms, brothers, come together, kill this kid, the car and the woman are ours. The crowd's eyes changed as they heard the words, yeah, can he beat us all? Scared shitless. The crowd silently drew their various weapons with a dangerous and greedy glint in their eyes. A beautiful group of women. Safe tanks. Comfortable RV. Unfortunately, the red fog was too thick, and the group didn't see the horrible scene of Jiang Fan throwing the SUV. Otherwise, there was absolutely no courage to raise a weapon against Jiang Fan. The scene was depressing. In the shadowed red mist, an unknown number of people drew their weapons. When there were more people, they were bolder, and they even took the initiative to gather around. Then, they then saw Jiang Fan's handshake, and he actually inexplicably had an extra submachine gun. The crowd's faces changed dramatically crap. He's got a gun. Made. No Modoku. He's really a soldier. Fake gun. It must be a fake gun. The man in front wants to back off. The people in the back were still blocked from sight by the red mist and couldn't see what was in front of them. The crowd was in disarray. And. It's already late. Jiang Fan shot without mercy. Dit dug da da. Dit dug da da. With Jiang Fan's shooting talent, coupled with such a close distance, these people had no chance of escaping. Ah, help, run, run, damn it, run, big brother spare my life, I dare not. In a few seconds, the bodies fell to the ground, and the crowd that had gathered around them were all dead. The scene was quiet. The nearby survivors, startled by the sudden gunfire, ducked into the nearby woods, and no one dared to approach. Jiang Fan turned to look at the women. The women's expressions were stagnant dumbfounded as they looked at the corpses on the ground, their bodies freezing. Jiang Fan's ruthlessness shocked the survivors and scared them enough. Jiang Fan asked coldly, what are you waiting for when someone else is bullying your door? What did I give you guns for? Do you want to keep them for show if you don't want to fight? Hu Lily was startled and hurriedly said, I, I, I'm worried about the repercussions. She had dealt directly with Lu Jinfeng just now. Jiang Fan calmly said, impact? What impact? It's the fact that you let her get in the car today that's the bad influence. And when she gets on the bus, she wants to eat again? Will you give her food? What if she wants to sleep in your bed? What if she wants to share the fruits of her powers? People have to give an inch to get an inch. Besides, if she comes up, what if the other onlookers want to get on the bus too? Do you let them all come up? Jiang Fan pressed the question step by step, and the women's faces turned pale. They then realized how dangerous they had just been. If they were really soft and let the old woman come up, the others could really swarm on them. That would be a really big deal. Jiang Fan said sternly have you forgotten what time it is? The end times. It's the fucking end times. It's the end of the world where you die and I live. All of you remember. From now on, whoever dares to threaten you, coerce you, or morally kidnap you, all of you will be shot to death. If anything goes wrong, I'll back you up. Put away your flood of goodwill. It'll only get everyone killed. You guys let me down today. And I hope it doesn't happen again. Everyone's dinner is gone. Let's all starve. Let's get you all sobered up so you can figure out what kind of world we're in now. Who Lily you come over here and kneel. Julie whimpered. The women all turned pale. Li Qingxuan didn't dare to speak as he repeatedly thought about what Jiang Fan had said. He had to admit that Jiang Fan, this young man, had a far more thorough understanding of the world today than he did. Jiang Fan threw the gun into his carry-on space and turned around to get into the car drive. Only then did the women rush to get into the car. And Li Qingyu unleashed her ability once again as the convoy slowly moved forward leaving only a trail of corpses behind to shock those who came after them, who Lily knelt in front of Jiang Fan in aggravation, her tears flowing endlessly. Jiang Fan said in disgust, throw you out of the car if you cry again, who Lily held back her tears, not daring to make a sound. Jiang Fan swept her a glance, still green, and turned his head to look out the window at the slowly passing scenery. He was indifferent to what who Lily thought. If you can figure it out, get over it. If you can't, just die. He had brushed up his supplies for a lifetime anyway and he didn't really care too much about a particular woman's death. Before, it was one thing for them to have no strength. It's another thing to have the strength to fight back now but be afraid to utilize it. He doesn't want a bunch of sheepish women who drag their feet. To put it mildly, even if there were only 1% of women left, there would still be plenty of beautiful women. With Jiang Fan's supplies and strength, there were beautiful women who were willing to be served with their own hands. In the bumpy vehicle, who Lily kneeling for two hours, both knees are kneeling a bruise. Pain. It was only then that Jiang Fan let her up a Gu Renying, heal her. Gu Renying and Su Mengqian hurriedly helped Hu Lily up and sent her to the back for treatment and rest. 
who Lily lay on the bed, only to feel that her legs were almost not her own, and tears flowed out of her eyes from the pain. Gurin Shadow pressed her hand on her knee and green light surged out, and who Lily soon felt the pain in her knee disappear. Who Lily remembered that she had just been punished for kneeling in front of all the women, and was ashamed and a little aggrieved in her heart, sobbing in a low voice without stopping. Su Mengqian advised Lily, Don't blame Brother Jiang. Brother Jiang is doing this for our own good. This is the end times of cannibalism. It's not a friendly and peaceful time anymore. We women, we mustn't be soft. Being soft will let people bully us. I know. Brother Jiang did the right thing. It was too dangerous just now. I actually didn't realize it. Hu Lily whispered, I've remembered that too, and I'll never do it again. Su Mengqian had seen the woman in the cage with her own eyes, and was most supportive of Jiang Fan's use of brutality against his enemies. She was also a little glad in her heart that she was soft on that old woman as well. Luckily Jiang didn't notice. Su Mengqian actually had a sneer. Now there are four women who have been punished by Jiang, and I'm not the worst one. Just then, Jiang Fan's voice rang out, Su Mengqian, it's your turn to kneel. What you just said to that woman disappointed me. Su Mengqian's face turned white, and in the sympathetic eyes of all the women, she sadly and miserably knelt in front of Jiang Fan. Brother Jiang, I was wrong. Chapter 149, The Killing Road. Arriving at the first supply point, a male survivor, walking with a foggy mind. He walked with one foot deep and one foot shallow, with immense difficulty. He's got a fever. An hour ago, he'd been bitten by a mutant leech in a puddle, and now his entire calf was black. No one can save him, unless one walks to the 910 garrison and can beg a military doctor to treat him. Eventually, the man didn't hold on and fell to the ground with a plop. The pupils were lifeless and dead staring at the red sky, and his dry, cracked mouth opened with difficulty he doggone. The end times of. A few minutes later, he was silent. Rumble. The tracks of a tank ran over the body. Then two more RVs and a Hummer passed by. The man's body was splattered with a great deal of muddy water. Zhang Fan glanced down at the corpses on the ground and then faintly turned his eyes away. No one passing survivors cared about the bodies either. A lot of people died along the way. They just looked enviously at the tanks and the convoy behind them, wishing beyond hope that they could sit on them. Tired legs, hungry stomachs, and weak bodies leave many shaken. At least half of them are destined to fall on this path. The survivors were all yellow and thin, with strands of hair sticking to their scalps because they hadn't bathed for so long. Their eyes were numb and desperate and the backpacks on their backs were empty, that contained the only food they had. In less than a month, the proud, refined, and affluent people of Magic Sea City had been turned into a miserable group of refugees. In the RV, the woman poked her head out the window. The tragedy outside the car made the women incredibly grateful. Without Jiang Fan's protection, they were destined to end up worse off than these survivors. But after seeing more, they were numb and calmed down, while recognizing reality. Who are the countless survivors on this road but them who can ride in a car, eat well, wear clean clothes, and sleep safely? Other than Jiang Fan, who else could provide this kind of environment? They had no doubt that Jiang Fan only needed to wave his hand and countless women would rush towards him in tears. A great sense of crisis rose in the women's hearts. If you don't perform well in front of Jiang Fan and keep your position, it's hard to say whether Jiang Fan will abandon you. Not long afterward, the sky was raining torrentially again. There is no shelter from the rain on the road. The survivors were clueless, either risk catching a cold or fever and keep going in the rain, either risk being attacked by animals and enter into the dense forest to find a house for temporary shelter from the rain. Besides, the military has already said that they can only guarantee this survival route for seven days. Traveling on this bad road was already slow, and if the rainstorm delayed and wasted time, it would be difficult for them to arrive at the 910th troop site on schedule. To make matters worse, many of the survivors had not brought enough food to last more than seven days. Add to that the amount of energy expended on the long journey and the food is consumed even faster. Robberies, thefts, and killings happen all the time. The number of fights is almost endless. Jiang Fan had seen at least three killings and robberies along the way. The situation is developing extremely fast. Some survivors seem to have discovered business opportunities, and they formed looting gangs centered around one to two alien powers, blocking roads and setting up barricades to collect tolls from every passerby. The other survivors were forced to band together forming a large group to bolster each other's courage and then collectively punch the card. The path of escape has turned into a path of killing. As for Jiang Fan's convoy, no one dared to mess with it at all. No one dared to block a tank to collect the toll. Spotting an opportunity, a group of clever survivors gritted their teeth and followed the caravan at a fast pace, foxing their way through a number of hurdles. As the convoy drove around a corner, a group of people rushed after another group, kill him, kill him, mud, don't let that little bitch get away, help, run. 
Damn, they ran into the red mist and can't be found. Damn it, she stabbed me. I'm going to kill her. As soon as the fleeing men saw the tanks, they thought they had encountered an army and went up and waved in ecstasy help. Help, they tried to rob it. The chasers were scared shitless at the sight of an army and fled, quickly disappearing into the red mist. All that's left is a group of bitter, ordinary survivors begging the military for justice. Song Ching Dai was a bit overwhelmed. Zhang Fan's mental link rang out at the right time, it's not like we're an army. It has nothing to do with us. Move on. Good. The tanks didn't stop and drove slowly by. The three cars behind them followed suit. The group of hunted survivors were both angry and disappointed. The army doesn't keep order anymore? Immediately afterward, they realized that the convoy was actually followed by a large group of survivors. They also reacted and hurriedly blended into the crowd at a quick pace. Tanks crushed the barricades blocking the road. Dumbfounded. The robber gangs that had set up the barricades didn't dare to stop them, and had to let the tanks drive through in all their splendor. The caravan and survivors, behind them, followed through smoothly. After Su Mengqian finished kneeling, she came back to Zhang Fan and took the initiative of Brother Jiang. There are a lot of people following us. Do you want me to disperse them? Zhang Fan casually ate a few exotic fruits. No. Let them follow. What a good meat shield. Use it for nothing. The women froze for a moment, then thought it was right. In case of danger, this group of survivors can also help themselves to delay some time. It's better for someone else to die than yourself. At this time, Jiang Fan saw some changes ahead. Is this a supply point set up by the military? Dozens of soldiers built a few simple tents and surrounded them with barbed wire on the outside, pulling out a 100 by 100 meter safety zone. Groups of survivors are lining up to enter, and the safe zone is overcrowded. The tanks drove slowly outside the supply point, and the survivors looked on in shock, no one daring to mess with them. Zhang Fan looked at the crowded crowd in the supply point and said, Oh, Song Qing Dai, bring the caravan to the side. We're not going in. Song Qing Dai said, Okay, soon. The convoy drove to a clearing next to the safe zone. A tank in three cars surrounded by a square clearing in the center, which is considered somewhat safe. Jiang Fan observed the surroundings. There were no buildings suitable for overnight stay within 200 meters. So he simply ordered, let's rest here for the night today. The women immediately came alive. Yeah, finally a break. They had gotten out of the car to move their arms and legs. Their body stiff from sitting in the bumpy car for so long. Li Qingchuan also got out of the car and studied a nearby wildflower with interest. White Eyes jumped out of the car, and the first thing he did was run to the big tree to pee and take over the territory, and then jumped onto the hood of the Hummer with flair. Zhang Fan looked at the map on his cell phone. Today it was about 15 kilometers before we came across the first resupply point, which is nothing like the 5 kilometers to a resupply point that the army was advertising at the time. Also, the road doesn't point straight in the direction of Troop 910, but detours a bit to the south. At this rate, it's estimated that we won't get to Zhuja village until the night after tomorrow. Zhang Fan called Song Qingdai and explained the next day's itinerary to her. Tang Shuelua took a few women and set up a tent in the open space in the middle of the caravan and erected lighting. Su Mengqian, on the other hand, began to arrange for the preparation of food. It was inconvenient on the road and the caravan couldn't spread its arms and legs. So today's meal was very simple. Bread, grilled sausage, fried egg, some veggies, and milk and a daily mutant frog roast. These foods are very simple and are prepared quickly. Jiang Fan ate it. The women could only watch with bated breath. They were punished by starvation. The aroma of food spread out. The surrounding hungry survivors, blocked by the red fog, could not see where the aroma drifted from, and thought it was coming from the barracks. They pressed forward frantically, the smell of fried eggs. I smell fried eggs. It must be the army starting to hand out relief rations. I want to eat too. I want some too. The scene started to get chaotic, and the atmosphere stabilized a bit until the soldiers shot and killed the two who were making the most noise but the riots remained uncontrollable. When the survivors managed to squeeze into the safe zone and realized that they were only issued three compressed cookies each, a great loss came over them. The message quickly became soldiers eat good food for themselves and give us compressed cookies. They didn't dare to really do anything though. The deterrent of dozens of guns was still strong, but there has been a vague anger in the crowd toward the army. This convoy of steel giants also alerted the soldiers stationed there. In a short while, an officer arrived in a hurry with two soldiers. Chapter 150, the honest Zheng Dongchang Zheng Dongchang looked at the several steel behemoths in shock, crap. The two soldiers beside him were also dumbfounded. Short, skinny soldiers, company commander. How did they get these big guys on the road? Zheng Dongchang said glumly, if you ask me, who the hell am I going to ask? Another dark-skinned soldier said in a confused voice, even if it's a modified car, there's actually a tank. Where did they get it? At that moment, an aroma of fried eggs came. 
Zheng Dongchang couldn't help it engulfed, so they're the ones frying eggs here. Mud. No wonder those survivors are acting like crazy. The short, skinny soldier blinked. Why don't we rob them? Snap. Zheng Dongchang threw his hand and slapped the back of the short and thin soldier's head angrily. If you want to get killed, stay away from me, but don't get me involved. You're out of your mind. A person who can still drive four cars around at this hour and still have an omelette can be an ordinary person? He must be a powerful psychic. You've lived long enough, but I haven't. Before the end of the world, driving a sports car on the street to show off may not be a rich man. It may be a poor boy rented to pretend. Now it's different. It's definitely not an ordinary person who can eat an omelette. The dark soldier scowled and whispered, as powerful as he is. We have guns in our hands. Guns don't mean shit. They have fucking tanks. Zheng Dongchang was on the verge of laughing, you guys use your pig brains, what's the prerequisite for frying eggs, it's having fresh eggs, now eggs go bad in two days at most, so where are the fresh eggs coming from, either, the other party has powerful freezing powers, freezing the eggs and preserving them until now, their freezing ability can last as long as dozens of days, either that, they have raised a few chickens, which is even more terrifying, the other survivors can't even feed themselves, they can still raise chickens, this is how powerful it is. Hiss the two soldiers sucked in a breath of cold air. Company commander. You're still the brains. Crap. Zheng Dongchang proudly straightened his holster. Why else am I a company commander and you guys are pawns? Company commander. Can we dabble in a bite of fried egg? I haven't had a fried egg in a long time. You wish. Even for such a strong person. Eggs are precious supplies. How could they be given to us? Let's go. Let's go pay our respects. Zheng Dongchang walked into the convoy clearing with two soldiers. And then they were stunned. A mutant husky of enormous size was lying on the ground, huffing and puffing, how there's a mutant animal. The husky heard the commotion and looked up, his white eyes sweeping the trio. The three of them immediately froze in place, not daring to move a muscle. Zheng Dongchang only felt a bucket of ice water pouring down from his head, chilling his bones. Gnarled muscles, cold gaze, bellows of ragged breathing, such a powerful mutated animal. In the 910th unit would have to send five powerful adepts plus ten soldiers to kill it. Luckily, the husky was on the ground again, not moving. The three of them, Zheng Dongchang, breathed a sigh of relief. At this time, Zhang Fan walked out of the tent with a plate of fried eggs and slapped the dog on the head, startling the three. I told you to watch the house, and everyone else is coming in, and you're still sleeping, you stupid dog. Zheng Dongchang was on the verge of tears. Don't, don't wake it up. However a scene that left him dumbfounded appeared. The husky grunted in aggravation and ducked away with his tail between his legs. The prehistoric behemoth-like physique made the usual gestures of an aggravated little daughter-in-law. All three looked dumbfounded. Zhang Fan didn't look at the three people in a good humor, what do you want? With that, he took a bite of his fried egg. Ugh. Zhang Fan directly dumped a plate of fried eggs on the ground and shouted at the car in dissatisfaction who fried the eggs. The salt didn't even melt. It's too wasteful. Zhang Dongchang looked at the fried eggs on the ground and couldn't wait to grab Zhang Fan's collar and growl. You don't eat for me. The two soldiers also swallowed dryly with difficulty. Tian 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 ran out in a panic brother Jiang. I fried it. I'll refry it right away. The three were beyond shocked. This beauty is pretty even if she is. But mostly she is ridiculously clean. Clean clothes, tousled hair, delicate makeup. Where was there a hint of a post-apocalyptic escapee look about her? It looks just like a picnic tour. It was then that Tian Tian saw the three soldiers talking and immediately pressed the pistol on her waist and looked at the three men warily brother Jiang. What do they want? Jiang Fan said calmly, it's okay. You guys go back to the car. Okay, Jiang. Immediately afterward, a group of women came out from inside the tent and one by one returned to the car. The three men's eyes went round. Bunch of beauties. A bunch of clean beauties. A bunch of well-fed, well-dressed beauties. Zheng Dongchang had another higher estimate of the strength of the man in front of him. It's horrible. It's horrible that in times like these, it's still possible to raise a group of women to this level. So many great beauties. How strong this man must be. The three of them had all sorts of envy and jealousy in their hearts, but they didn't dare to show a trace of it on their faces. After Zheng Fan let the women return to the car, he once again looked at Zheng Dongchang. Zheng Dongchang hurriedly compensated with a smile, I'm Zheng Dongchang, the company commander of the 33rd company of the 910th unit, and I've been ordered to come to Magic Sea City to set up a supply point to help the survivors travel to the 910th unit's location. May I ask, do you have any needs? The corners of Zheng Fan's mouth rose slightly. This guy is pretty smart. Help, not needed. But I have a few questions I'd like to ask. Zheng Dongchang had a fawning face, you please ask. I will know everything I can say. Zheng Fan said with a smile, what's your psychic ability? Zheng Dongchang was a psychic, which was why Zheng Fan let the women get on the bus. 
Zheng Dongcheng was taken aback. How did he know I was a shifter? Or are you trying to scam me? Zheng Dongcheng hesitated and said sorry, military secrets. I can't talk about it according to the 910th. Jiang Fan nodded slightly. It's normal not to say it, and not denying it is considered sincere. How many soldiers and how many civilians are on the 910 side? This, soldiers can't say. Civilians about 1, 0, 0, 0. How many shifters are there in both soldiers and civilians? This, Zheng Dongcheng was very embarrassed. Can you just ask a question like that? Wait a moment. Jiang Fan smiled and turned to the car, pretending to get something, but actually took out two cigarettes from his tarion space and stuffed them in Zheng Dongcheng's hands, company commander Zheng take it and smoke it. Cigarettes. Zheng Dongcheng's nostrils fluttered as he greedily inhaled the smell of cigarettes. Cigarettes. Unlike liquor, spoil quickly. Countless old smokers have been forced to quit, not to mention how hard it is. Now, cigarettes are gold in the eyes of smokers. Young Dong Chang is a smoker. Two soldiers were also smokers. The three men's eyes went straight. Zhang Fan asked again how many shifters are there in 910. The three men looked at each other. Young Dong Chang then made a difficult decision, my level is too low. I'm not sure of the exact number, but the soldiers and the villagers of Zhu's village total 120 to 150 Zenos. This is basically certain. Jiang Fan smiled ah, ha ha ha, I like honest friends. Su Meng Qian, fry three plates of eggs for the three of you. Su Meng Qian's voice came, okay? Jiang, omelet. The three men's eyes lit up and their mouths watered. Jiang Fan asked with a smile, who is the leader of the army? Who is the strongest shifter? Chapter 151 Arrival of the Rebels A few minutes later, Jiang Fan he knew enough about Unit 910. The highest leader is called Zhu Jia, and the strongest person is also Zhu Jia. Originally he was just a cement factory owner, but when he accidentally gained powerful fighting abilities, he seized power through a coup. Exactly what fighting ability? Zheng Dongcheng did not know. Anyone who had seen Zhu Jie's strength was dead. This time, the plan to bombard the Magic Sea was also formulated by this Zhu Jie himself. No wonder this plan is so violent. Zheng Fan thought darkly, the 910th being under the management of such a master could be very chaotic and definitely less orderly than the TV base. However, there was no shortage of food for the 910th. During the reign of his predecessor, Yang Shaoza, he commanded the army to bring down the strategic national reserve warehouses that were close at hand, and although most of the fresh food rotted and spoiled, a huge amount of food was still obtained. In addition, Zhu Jie's nephew, Zhu Jiaming, held a squad of xenomorphs, also known as the Special Duty Brigade. The Special Services Brigade numbered about 50 people, and almost all of the combat-type aliens were in this squad. The Special Service Brigade was treated very well, and every alien was a key target for Zhu Jie to pull in. Mr. Jiang, all you have to do is join the Special Duty Brigade, and you'll be able to gain the shelter of Unit 910. No longer do you have to worry about your men and, and, uh, and the lady's safety. Zheng Dongcheng had a bashful expression on his face, which he understood very well. With Zheng Fan's powerful strength of fighting mutated animals as pets, once he entered the 910th troop station, in all likelihood, he would become a squad leader of a special service brigade, managing five Xenos under him. This is the most enviable power in the end times. Five Xenos, plus the squad leader himself. Six combat Xenos. This was extremely powerful. Zhang Fan was bound to become an important figure at the 910th troop station. After Zhang Dongchang figured it out, he had no qualms about telling Zhang Fan a great deal of information. Zhu Jie's brother, Zhu Hao, manages the Marina National Strategic Reserve Warehouse. Formerly the strongest shifter in Unit 910, Ryu Jianhua manages all living and auxiliary shifters. Wei Su, the former young and strong officer of the 910th, holds the most powerful 1st Mechanical Battalion, which is now on a mission to capture the Sitong Heavy Machinery. Jiang Fan, in order to show his gratitude, once again gave the three of them a cigarette and one large pack of Snickers. Then with a smile at the corner of his mouth, he sent the three Zhang Dongchang away. After having an approximate understanding of Unit 910, Zhang Fan was no longer in two minds. Young Dong Chang returned with two soldiers in a beautiful manner. The three of them found a corner on the road and split three cigarettes. Young Dong Chang had two bars each, and two soldiers had half a bar each. A large bag of Snickers, also unwrapped and divided in that ratio. All three were content to keep their mouths shut about this one. Upon approaching the safe zone, they realized that a large number of survivors could no longer get in, crowding a large area at the entrance. As darkness fell, Many of the survivors decided to rest at this supply point for the night before advancing the next day. It's all in and all out, causing the safe zone to fill up quickly. With at least a few thousand people crammed into the small safe zone, the dozens of soldiers at the supply point were so burnt out they could barely manage. 
and the supplies were quickly glowing, but the survivors in the back were still desperately pushing forward to claim their share of the food. A soldier cried out in a sweaty voice, stop crowding, the food has been handed out, the second batch of supplies won't be available until tomorrow, so everyone rest on the spot, inform the people at the back not to come back in. News of the lack of food instantly ignited the situation. The situation quickly spiraled out of control. How can it be? It's only the first day and we're out of supplies. These pawns suck our blood. How can there be no food? They must have hidden it and sold it. The survivors shouted as they angrily pressed forward. The soldiers were terrified. They didn't expect the situation to deteriorate so suddenly. Squeezing in from the outside Zheng Dongchang saw the situation is not good. The moment of truth. Took out a pistol to the sky as a shot. Bang. Everyone on the scene froze for a moment. Zheng Dongchang growled to shut the fuck up. Rest on the ground. Or be shot. The survivors are scared. The end times weren't that long ago. And the remnants of guns and armies are still around. The scene barely stabilized. The survivors had to rest on the spot. Huddled together and whining. It was the only way they could feel safe in the red mist. Zheng Dongchang squeezed his way back to the camp sweating profusely. And before he could catch his breath. A soldier rushed over to him. Company commander. Something may have happened. First recon can't be reached even now. It's 16 minutes out of date. What? Zheng Dongchang stood up at once. Given that the red fog was blocking his vision too much, he sent one scouting team to the front and back, hidden about 500 meters outside the supply point to scout the situation and make sure that the supply point would not encounter a sudden attack by a powerful mutant animal. The scout team will contact the supply point every 10 minutes. As a result, one scouting team was lost. Either that or meet a powerful alien. Either that or encounter a mutant animal. Either one is not good news. In the entire supply point, only Zhang Dongchang was a psychic, or a life-type psychic, which did not help in combat. Zhang Dongchang immediately picked two people in a hurry, you guys check out Scout Group 1's position right away and bring back what's going on there as soon as you can. Yes, the two soldiers knew the gravity of the situation and immediately rushed out. Zhang Dongchang was fidgety. A short 10 minutes later, two soldiers came running back in a panic. What's going on? Zhang Dongchang's heart sank. A soldier panicked, rebels. It's the rebels. We saw a roving force in military uniforms who were holding survivors hostage and appeared to be discussing an attack on the supply point. As soon as they saw the two of us, they attacked with firearms. Zhang Dongchang was completely confused, rebels? Where did the rebels come from? How many are there? The soldier said fearfully, at least a hundred men. Many with guns. Dressed in rags. They seem to have wandered through the dense forest for a long time. And they're coming after us. Over one hundred guns. Zhang Dongchang's scalp went numb. Chapter 152 It can't be that god of kill. In the age of red mist, you can't even see a person over 5 meters. And guns have become largely ineffective at long range. But, within 5 meters, the gun is fast and accurate. So, instead, guns became melee weapons. For melee weapons, the greater the number, the greater the advantage. 100 guns, can't even deal with. Nope. Zheng Dongchang reacted with a vicious kick and cursed fuck you in the ass. How close did you two have to be to see 100 guys with guns, and still come back in one piece? The two soldiers were embarrassed. Ah, uh, company commander, I really saw guns, at least 7 or 8 guys with guns, and too many to count behind them. Zheng Dongchang knew that he was telling the truth this time. Still, even if there were only 20 people with guns, it would be a huge threat to them. If these assholes changed into survivor's clothes and mixed in with the crowd and attacked suddenly, they wouldn't be able to react themselves. Zheng Dongchang got anxious. They were airdropped by helicopter. Helicopters delivered supplies once a day with little or no backup during that time. The short, thin soldier whispered, Company commander, should we invite that Zheng fan outside to join us in defense? Zheng Dongchang shook his head, no need. In the face of dozens of guns, what's the use of a psychic? Moreover, he may not be willing to muddy the waters this time. The situation is not good. He can totally drive away. Who will accompany us to fight for our lives? Let all of our people retreat back and immediately set up a second barbed wire defense around our tents. Wang Changhu, you immediately lead the people to collect a batch of survivor clothes. If the situation is not good, we will change clothes and escape. With that thick red fog, even if the rebels have more people, they may not be able to kill us all. The soldiers acted immediately. Zheng Dongchang called two more resourceful soldiers you will now change into survivor's clothes. Blend into the crowd and spy on the rebels. Yes, yes. Lu Xiaolong joined a few people and observed the situation near the supply point. The hundreds of meters around this supply point had been plowed by artillery fire, and the ground was pitted and still smelled pungently of smoke. However, the smell was incredibly reassuring to the survivors. A henchman ran over and asked Brother Long. The team is all straightened out. Should we set off? There's no rush. 
Wait a little longer. Lu Xiaolong waved his hand, let's see if any shifters come over to trouble us. If not, we'll go over there again. The crowd winced at the sound of the alien. The crowd only felt their scalps tingle when they remembered that god-killing alien that day. Lu Xiaolong was originally an officer of the TV station's underground base, and last time he followed Duan Jin out to kill the alien codenamed, Mouse. Who knew that the alien was so ridiculously strong that he directly wiped out the alien force? There was another survivor rebellion at that time, and that shifter directly killed all the auxiliary shifters in the chaos. When Lu Xiaolong heard the news, he knew that the tide had turned, and in the midst of the chaos, he gathered a group of soldiers to escape, without the survivors to sell their lives to open the way. It would be difficult for them to return to the TV base. Lu Xiaolong could only lead his men to survive in the dense forest for a while, relying on the gun in his hand and grabbing some supplies. However, Lu Xiaolong and the others had also completely degenerated from the army into a gang of bandits, grabbing food, water, women, anything to stay alive. The formidable name of that alien codenamed, Mouse, was deeply imprinted into the minds of all the soldiers. So much so, that whenever they came across a survivor group with a psychic, they were very careful. And when the situation got bad, they immediately fled. However, over these days, they had also killed three or four Xenos, and had never seen another Xeno as powerful as, Mouse. Lu Xiaolong and the others, waited carefully in the red mist for half an hour. No shifters coming through. The crowd relaxed. Even if there are aliens, they shouldn't be strong. Can't run into that god of killers again. Can we? Definitely not. That god of kill can see people in the red mist. If it was him, he would have come over long ago. Lu Xiaolong then relaxed, shouldn't be a problem. Let's take the men on. Let me make it clear. We're here to grab food, not to fight with the 910th. Let the survivors rush in. We'll follow behind and grab it, and leave afterward. The crowd heckled, don't worry. Brother Long, we have a good life with the guns in our hands. Why fight with other soldiers? Yeah, grab and go. It's okay, with that many people and that poor visibility, they won't be able to find where our people are. Lu Xiaolong nodded in satisfaction, that's good. I don't know how many aberrations there are on the side of Unit 910, although it's unlikely that they would send strong people to such a haunted place. We should still be careful. We can't afford to turn over a boat in the gutter. After the discussion, Lu Xiaolong took his men and drummed up the survivors. They intimidated and lured hundreds of survivors along the way. By now, the survivors were exhausted. After a day of walking in the dense forest, all were tired, sore and hungry. Some are sitting, some are lying down. Despair permeated the crowd. Lu Xiaolong and the others walked over with their guns and loudly scolded get up, all of you, up ahead is the 910th's supply point, and those pawns are bringing in a lot of food and not giving it to us, those soldiers take food in exchange for women, are you willing to give up your wives and daughters, it's hard to survive alone in the age of red mist, most of the survivors who made it this far alive are small families, or a few familiar neighbors, friends, or family get together and hug it out, the men all tensed and hugged their families tightly as they roared on oh, follow me, Rob them together. Grab the food. We'll walk to the 910th station alive. And we'll have a good time. Don't worry. There's red mist everywhere. They won't be able to see you at all. Under the coercion of Lu Xiaolong and the others, the crowd crowd slowly stood up and walked in the direction of the supply point with gloomy faces. The atmosphere was oppressive. Outside the barbed wire fence at the supply point, there were survivors everywhere. All of them breathless. Wang Na sat paralyzed on the floor, gathered with a few others. They are neighbors and have stayed together to survive since the red mist descended. A dozen or so people started out, and now only six are dead. They couldn't squeeze into the safe zone even after half a day, so they had to give up. Damn. Soldiers eating fried eggs by themselves and telling us we're out of food. I've been walking all day and my feet are blistered. They won't be inflamed tomorrow. How much farther? Wang Na followed suit and cursed, the military is so inhumane. They don't even give food. When she finished speaking, she glanced around worriedly fearing that the military would hear her. There are too many people and it could be dangerous to sleep at night. Ugh. I know. But what else can I do? Take turns on night duty. Six people in three shifts. Just then, a short, stout male companion ran back. His name was Meng Jian. Meng Jian whispered excitedly you remember that tank convoy on the road? The convoy didn't go into the safe zone either. It's over there. Chapter 153, Jealous Wang Nade 6 discussed curiously, strange. Isn't the tank convoy from the military? Why are they parked outside? Could it be that? There be a conflict within the military? Why don't we go spend the night next to the caravan? It's safer than here. Wang Na held back the hunger in her belly and hesitantly said, But they killed so many people. They won't kill us. Will they? When Jiang Fan killed, Wang Na and the others were nearby. They didn't dare to get close and dodged a bullet. By the time the tank convoy left, 
a large number of bodies were left behind. Wang Na and the others immediately rushed over and fought with the other survivors for the supplies on the corpses. Whether it's food, weapons or clothing, they grab everything. In just half a minute, the body was stripped bare. Ten minutes later, even the body was gone, having been dragged into the woods by about some. Wang Na was covered in sweat when she thought about what happened to those corpses. Meng Jian whispered I've asked around. The tank convoy only killed that group of people along the way. They didn't kill indiscriminately. I suspect that the group offended the people on the tanks. I think it should be safe for us to go over there. There are already some survivors stationed next to the convoy. There's no place for them if we're late. A few people discussed the situation and decided to go over there. At least leaning next to a tank is somewhat safe. There are too many people over here. And if something happens to mess things up, it could easily lead to a stampede. Wang Na followed her five companions and walked into the red mist. No one cares where they go. The empty seat they left behind was immediately taken by another group of survivors. Wang Na followed her companion, walking one foot deeper and one foot shallower in the red mist for a few minutes before finally walking next to the tank convoy. They were lucky to find a barely dry clearing a few meters away from the caravan. Six men then took possession. After a rainstorm, a dry open space is more valuable than any supplies. Not long afterward, several more groups of people came silently, each finding a clearing to station themselves in. After dark, Zhang Fan gathered all twelve women into the two caravans for the night. Their physical strengthening was only two stars. Unlike Zhang Fan who could stay awake for days and nights, Zhang Fan had to make sure that they slept for the next day's trip. As for Li Qingxuan, he could only stay with white eyes and spend the night on the Hummer. The RV was still too small, and the women simply washed up and went to sleep individually. Tang Shuelua walked over and accompanied Zhang Fan to chat for a while. She looked out the darkened car through the window. Worried, I heard what sounded like a lot of people outside. Jiang Fan, looked, at it. He had long seen a number of survivors outside the caravan. But lazy, aside from the aliens, ordinary people aren't much of a threat. Conversely, if any mutant animals approached in the middle of the night, they would be the first to bite these people outside. Where can I find a free meat shield? Jiang Fan said indifferently, it's okay, I saw it, you go to sleep. Just then, a woman's cry suddenly came from outside, Miss Tang. Miss Tang. I'm Xiao Wang. Wang Na looked eagerly at the RV. The car was lit with warm yellow lights. Lights came out of the clean windows, illuminating a small clearing. She stepped on the wet ground and fantasized about the warmth, dryness, cleanliness, and maybe food inside the car. At that moment, a pretty girl appeared at the window, and the girl even glanced out the window. Wang Na instantly recognized it. Isn't this director Tang's daughter? Tang Xueluwa. Overjoyed with surprise, she ran over quickly. Tilting her head and shouting, Miss Tang, Miss Tang, I'm Wang Na. Tang Xueluwa looked down in surprise, and outside the car stood a pudgy yellow skinny woman, barely recognizable as the original face. Tang Xueluwa hesitated for a while, you are, Auntie Wang? Zhang Fan also walked to the window. The system prompt rang out frowny face Wang Na, age, 41, quality, 5 out of 5, mediocre, virtue of womanhood, 7 points, after her husband's death. Her private life is in disarray, overall rating, 6, ding does not meet minimum system requirements. Jiang Fan lost interest after a glance and asked with a frown, what's she to you? Tang Xueluwa hurriedly explained, oh, her name is Wang Na, she is my dad's subordinate, the section chief of the personnel section of the Investment Promotion Bureau. Wang Na, is considered, sort of my dad's direct line. Wang Na was a human savant. Seeing Tang Xueluwa's attitude towards Jiang Fan, she immediately knew that this man was the one who could make the decision, and hurriedly smiled with him, hello sir. Director Tang is my old superior. Zhang Fan lazily ignored her and turned his head back to the card seat to sit down. Tang Xueluwa tangled up. What should I do with Wang Na? Wang Na's heart went cold when she saw Zhang Fan's movements and pleaded Amis. Tang, can I have something to eat? Tang Xueluwa was helpless. If it was before, she could indeed take out a little food to sucker Wang Na. Zhang doesn't care much about such trivial matters. But not today. Today Jiang punished all the women for not having dinner. How can you give food to others when you are still starving yourself? Isn't that looking for a fight? Tang Xueluwa didn't dare to provoke Jiang Fan's order. And remembering Jiang Fan's admonition today, she politely said, I'm sorry, our food is limited too. When he finished, he hardened his heart and pulled the glass shut, went back to his bed and slept, and showed no more. Wang Na froze in place, suffocated, angry, incredulous. This bitch Tang Xueluwa was so desperate. I was loyal to your father. Don't you know that? I go to your house every year to deliver gifts. Don't you see? Now I just want to order food and you won't even give it. I've put down my dignity and opened my mouth to ask for food. And you won't even give it to me. Limited food? Fart. You're getting a double chin. 
and you say there's not enough food? Wang Na's eyes shot flames of anger. Clenching her fists tightly, she forced back her cynicism and retreated back to where the six were stationed. Meng Jian asked curiously, you know the people in the car? Several people looked at Wang Na expectantly. If Wang Na still has this relationship, we all might be able to mix it up a bit. Wang Na's voice was hoarse and hateful, an acquaintance. But they just ignored me. He won't even give me anything to eat. A few people got up in disappointment. This situation is also normal. Food is too precious to give to anyone else. If it was me, I wouldn't give it either. Meng Jian sighed and lay down. Wang Na, however, lowered her head. And the more she recalled the scene just now, the more jealousy burned in her heart. The contrast was too strong just now. Tang Shuelua is clean, healthy, and beautiful, as always. He himself is pudgy and yellow. Tang Shuelua is just a student. If it weren't for her dad, what the hell? It was high and mighty before. I'll leave you alone for your father's sake. Now your father is nowhere to be found. What's the point of pretending with me? Why should she get to enjoy the supplies in the car and I have to roll around in a mud pit? A stinking bitch who sells her body. Zhang Fan sat on the card seat, silently practicing breathing techniques while coldly, looking at, Wang Na who was covered in red light. Chapter 154, Killing Night, No Food for Me, Then You Don't Eat Either. Zhang Fan was about to make a move when he suddenly, saw, a large group of people walking towards the safe zone. The dozens of people at the head of the group actually had guns in their hands. A large number of survivors followed them silently, with a dozen or so Xenos hidden in the crowd. Jiang Fan frowned slightly, everybody stay awake and get up. Something might happen. The women sat up in surprise, Jiang, what's going on? Jiang Fan gazed, towards, the direction of the safe zone, there might be trouble. Everyone grab your guns and be alert. Someone might come and steal something while it's going on. Immediately afterward, there were gunshots and deafening shouts from the safe zone side. Lu Xiaolong walked to more than 100 meters outside the safety zone, and in front of his eyes were lying densely packed with survivors. There's no way to move forward. The road is completely blocked. He took his gun and shot it in the air. Bang! The survivors around them sat up in fear. What's going on? What's that noise? Lu Xiaolong roared, brothers, rush in and grab the food. There's more food inside than we can eat, but they won't share it with us. So let's fight with the people inside. After shouting, Lu Xiaolong's dozens of people led the charge. The men in the back then swarmed up. Red-eyed and snarling, punch it in. Grab the food. Shit. Fucking military motherfuckers. The survivors lying on the ground were scared shitless and rolled to avoid the direction of the hordes. The ones that reacted slowly couldn't escape in time, and were quickly silenced by countless feet stomping over them. The scene was a mess. Run. Help. It hurts. Don't step on it. Don't step on it. Mom. Mommy. The heavy footsteps of thousands of people running came. The people in the safe zone looked in the direction the voice came from in confusion. Because of the darkness and the red mist, they couldn't see what was happening outside at all. By the time he realized that the hordes were rushing in front of him, it was too late to pack up his things, so he could only pull out his legs and run. Some even tried to pick up their backpacks and were trampled to death if they moved a little too slowly. Lu Xiaolong and the others ran and slipped to the side. In the red mist, no one even realized that the leader had run away, and everyone rushed in inertia. Young Dongchang didn't even guard against that move. He was completely surprised that instead of attacking on their own, the rebels let a few thousand survivors swarm them. Of course, even if he thought of it, he had nothing to counter it. A black mass of survivors toppled the barbed wire fence and rushed in. Shoot! Shoot! Zheng Dongchang shouted in horror. The fearful soldier couldn't even think twice about it and instinctively pressed the trigger. Dick duck da da! Dick duck da da! The survivors were instantly routed and ran everywhere. Help! Soldiers kill people. Run. Zheng Dongchang still had time to not breathe a sigh of relief. The ground suddenly cracked open and raging flames erupted. Phew. The two soldiers were burned to ashes by the flames on the spot, without even uttering a scream. There are shifters. There's a shifter. Shoot. The soldiers fired in all directions in terror. There's no way to know where the alien is. The bullets quickly ran out and the soldiers fumbled to change them. At that moment, a survivor's body suddenly skyrocketed to a height of 4 meters covered in black fur. His head became like a wild boar's, and his mouth had huge tusks. Roar! With a snarl, he charged in with his head buried in the ground, knocking several soldiers off their feet. The soldiers spurted blood right in midair and fell into the red mist without moving. Zheng Dongchang was shocked and angry asshole. Kill him! All the soldiers spotted the target immediately. The fire-breathing alien hiding in the shadows couldn't be found. The boar man then becomes the target of all the soldiers. Dick duck da da! Bang bang! The boar man was hit by dozens of bullets and fell to the ground with a scream. He was extremely tenacious and tried to struggle to escape as two grenades were thrown. Boom! Boom! The boar man's body was blown to pieces, 
dead as a doornail. The surrounding hidden aliens were in a state of trepidation. An organized army killing a shifter is as easy as killing a chicken. They had wanted to take advantage of the chaos to swarm and grab all the supplies from the supply point. But now, looking at the military's defense force, no one dares to mess with the pawns anymore. Why do we have to rob the military if we're going to rob the supplies anyway? Food in the hands of survivors can be eaten. 2. The aliens retreated into the red mist. Zheng Dongchang hurriedly gathered his men and didn't dare to go out in pursuit. By this point, the supply point was in complete disarray. Lu Xiaolan's men, the xenomorphs, and some bold survivors took advantage of this opportunity to make their moves. Anyway, vision was extremely poor in the red mist, and as long as they weren't caught red-handed, no one would know who did it. Countless groups of weak survivors have been killed and robbed. There's killing everywhere. There were screams everywhere. The situation got surly quickly. The entire supply point, completely transformed into a shura. By this time, Zheng Dongchang was even more afraid to act. Their men were too few to do anything but wither the camp with their hands tied. The soldiers huddled in fear, company commander. Are we just going to watch? Zheng Dongchang cursed in annoyance, what else can I do if I don't watch? You want to go out you go out yourself. In the past, a few gun-toting soldiers could deter countless people. It's not at all like that these days. After a while, the crowd realized that the troublemakers also had the good sense to avoid the military's position. They're going to end up in the 910th to make a living. And it's just not sensible to mess with the military. Zheng Dongchang and the others finally relaxed a bit. The short, skinny soldier then sighed in relief and faked it at that convoy of Zheng fans is probably going to be finished. He's just one person. No matter how strong he is, he can't stop so many thugs. It's just a pity about those beautiful women. Zheng Dongchang glared impatiently at the short. Thin soldier, you brat is a lecher. Just now you ate a meal of fried eggs from someone else. And now you're saying this kind of shit. The short, thin soldier was resentful. The other soldier sniffed in shock, so it's you guys eating fried eggs. Damn. You're not being righteous. Company commander. I'm suffering here. And you guys are actually eating fried eggs and not telling us. Only then did Zheng Dongchang realize that he had said the wrong thing and said in annoyance, shut up. All of you. The crowd then stopped in displeasure. Within moments, the air was thick with the scent of blood. Zheng Dongchang sighed and looked in the direction of the convoy. Zheng Fan is estimated to be finished Ah, When so many people are in chaos, the gods can't save them. In the middle of the night it was impossible to see where I was going. And I couldn't drive the car. So I couldn't even run away. Zheng Dongchang sighed. He was still very optimistic about Zheng Fan as an alien. There aren't many normal people with great strength and no abusive women left these days. It's a shame there's a riot going on. The survivors on the side of the tank convoy awoke as well. And all stood up alertly. Looking in vain in the direction from which the sound had come. Blow up the camp? What's going on? It looks like someone is rushing the military camp. Crazy. How dare they rob the military? The view is so bad. You can't see out of the corner of your eye. And if you robbed it, you know who robbed it? Shall we? Let's go first. Wang Na's group also discussed it nervously. Meng Jian and the others wanted to leave for the time being so that they wouldn't be mistakenly injured by the chaotic army. Wang Na's eyes twinkled. And she had a great idea. Lure the chaotic army over and kill that bitch Tang Shuelua. HM. I thought you didn't feed me. Then you don't eat it either. A stern aura flashed in Wang Na's eyes and she whispered, I think we can go over there and maybe get some food if we're lucky. Chapter 155, Brother. There's a caravan over there. There was an immediate objection in no way. It's too dangerous. Wang Na argued reasonably, even if we estimate at today's speed. We'll have to travel for at least 5 days. Do we have enough food for 5 days? Not enough. Today is a good chance to replenish our food. Not enough food. The people looked at each other and quickly made up their minds. Yeah. We should be able to pick up some food tonight while we're at it. Let's not get too close. It shouldn't be too dangerous. If there's danger of everyone running apart, meet at that crooked neck tree to the south. Yes, they had survived until now, and had naturally done a lot of robberies, so they didn't have many mental barriers to this plan. The six of them immediately packed their backpacks and felt their way towards the safe zone. The other survivors alongside the caravan each had their own thoughts. Some packed their bags and stayed put waiting for a change. Some made a decisive run for it burrowing into the dense forest, where the animals in the woods were safer than the mob even if they were dangerous. A few waves of people, on the other hand, had the same idea as the six, prepared to take advantage of the chaos and also quietly walked towards the direction of the safe zone. Zhang Fan took in the changes around him. The women are up. They listened uneasily to the chaos outside while they quickly prepared to leave. Song Qingdai and Tang Shuelua returned to the tank and adjusted the convoy into a straight line. Li Qingyu was also ready to launch her ability at any time to run away with the caravan. Zhang Fan, saw, Wang Na leave and said you guys keep watch. I'll go check it out. If there's danger, 
You guys go ahead and run, I'll follow. The convoy wasn't even going fast enough on the bad roads for him to easily catch up. Su Mengqian said worriedly, Brother Jiang, it's too dangerous out there. Jiang Fan said calmly, no harm done. The poorer the night of vision, the greater the advantage of perception. At night, when others can't even see three meters away, their vision is clear. Everyone within a 200 meter radius can't escape his surveillance. That's a huge advantage. Jiang Fan arranged the women, then turned on his vaporization and went through the bottom of the car into the underground. Walking towards Wang Na in the distance, he wasn't in the habit of leaving scourges. Since this woman is showing strong hostility, let's kill her. Pust. Lu Xiaolong hacked a man to death and snatched the man's backpack that he was holding in his dead arms. When I opened it, there was actually only a packet of instant noodles. Damn. Poor bastard. Lu Xiaolong spat disdainfully. He pointed his gun at the remaining survivors and laughed harshly to hand over all your bags right now so I can search them. Dozens of people were trembling with fear, being pointed at by a group of gun-toting bandits. Who dared to resist? Please, this is all we have to eat. You'll starve if you all take it. Take my stuff and save some formula for the baby. You can eat capers for fuck's sake. I can eat it. The baby can't really eat it. Pust. The woman was hacked to death along with her child. She struggled to survive with her child until now. Done everything, and still hasn't survived. The crowd completely collapsed and didn't dare to stop anymore. Crying and letting the other party snatch the things away. But with cries and screams all around. No one cares about this place. After scavenging, Lu Xiaolong obtained several packages of food. Just then, a couple of henchmen came dragging five survivors with bloody heads. Brother Long, this pussy was sneaking around looking this way. I just killed one and captured all the rest. The hands pushed hard. Wang Na screamed miserably and fell to the ground. Her calf had been hit so hard by the gun handle that it hurt so much she could barely walk. Wang Na shivered as she looked at the bloody place in front of her. In a single glance with this group just now, Meng Jian was killed. Meng Jian takes care of Wang Na quite a bit along the way, which makes Wang Na both guilty and angry. Blame it on Tang Shuelua. If it wasn't for that bitch, why would one risk coming to the messy army? Wouldn't it be fine if you gave me some food? Meng Jian's death is all your fault. Lu Xiaolong squatted next to Wang Na, ruffled her hair and glanced at it, smiling lewdly, yo, you've got a lot of style, say, what are you looking at? Wang Na shuddered, big brother, I was just passing through, really, passing by? Lu Xiaolong slapped Wang Na down, then pulled out his three-pronged thorn, Wang Na screamed in fear, big brother, don't kill me, I have news for you, there is a caravan over there, there's a lot of food on the caravan, convoy, where did the convoy come from? Lu Xiaolong asked with a cold face. One of the henchmen snickered a brother lung. Don't listen to her. What kind of car can go on the road now? They had been wandering in the nearby dense forest, not having traveled by the escape route, and had not heard about the tank convoy. Wang Na said hurriedly or really, a tank, two converted RVs, and a Hummer, and there's a lot of women on it. They're beautiful. Lu Xiaolong started to believe a little bit when he saw that she had a nose for what she said. Tanks? Humvees? Sounds like a military convoy. If there were tanks in the safe zone, Lu Xiaolong would have said nothing to launch an attack. Could it be sent by Unit 910? Why don't they stay inside the safe zone? Wang Na took a look at the drama and was pleasantly surprised. It's not the military. It's a group of survivors who somehow got their car on the road and drove all the way here. So many people know about it. Lu Xiaolong was instantly moved. Having a convoy would make future operations much safer. And with an RV, at least there's more than one place to rest. Plus there are beautiful women. Lu Xiaolong took out a bottle of pure water and handed it to Wang Na, saying in a pleasant manner a drink, drink and tell me about the convoy. Wang Na was surprised and gulped it down. Then proactively brother Lung, they have guns and killed many people on the way. You guys have to be careful in the past. Kill someone with a gun? Lu Xiaolong was startled and couldn't help but think of that god of kill. How was it killed? Wang Na hated it, it seems that he had a conflict with someone on the road and killed them during the quarrel. Just a quarrel and you killed a dozen people. Too vicious. Quarreling and killing? Lu Xiaolong was relieved. The party should be close together when they are fighting. It shouldn't be that god of kill. I told you it couldn't be that coincidental. Moreover, with the strength of which god of murder, there was absolutely no need to go to the 910th unit to be aggravated. And he could live easily in Magic Sea City by himself. Lu Xiaolong did some calculations and decided to bring someone to take a look. In any case, a fleet of cars is still tempting. Chapter 156 Brother Lung Why did you hit me? Lu Xiaolong led the crowd into action, silently calculating in his heart now that the world is so chaotic, it's impossible to say that we'll encounter that god of kill in the future. If you can't run away, you can try to see if you can defect to him. The city is too dangerous. It's good to defect to a powerful alien. The crowd walked for a while, 
A few survivors ran out of the red mist from time to time. The men ran headlong into a group of gun-toting men, their faces white with fear. However, Lu Xiaolong's mind was on the caravan, too late to grab these small shrimps, and passed quickly from the side. The survivors screamed at the fluke and turned their heads and ran into the red mist and disappeared. After walking for a while, Lu Xiaolong said impatiently, where the hell is it? Wang Na nodded and smiled, brother Lung, it's right up ahead. The caravan is just ahead. Just a few more minutes ahead and we'll be there. Jiang Fan was halfway there when he saw Wang Na being grabbed by a group of gun-toting toughs. The humans killed one of Wang Na's companions on the spot. Jiang Fan had thought that Wang Na was dead, but who knew that Wang Na actually followed the group back after being asked a few questions. How did she convince this group of tough guys? Jiang Fan wondered, casting his attention on Wang Na, and soon heard her fawning voice, Brother Lung, it's right up ahead. The caravan is just ahead. Just a few more minutes ahead and we'll be there. Jiang Fan's face went cold. This bitch is leading the wolves into the house. He was about to make a move when he saw a strange scene. In the perceptual field of vision, the light on those gun-toting tufts was actually red, yellow, and green in all three colors. Jiang Fan was completely unable to understand how this group of people managed to be both friendly and hostile to him. I'm afraid it's not a bunch of big idiots. Jiang Fan pondered for a moment and decided to go up there to take a look. This was the first time this had happened and should be observed up close. Anyway, this group of people were ordinary people, and guns were no threat to Jiang Fan at all. You can evade all bullets just by defocusing. Lu Xiaolong and the others were walking when a human head suddenly floated out of the earth in front of them. The crowd was terrified, crap. What the hell? The head slowly rose, and it turned out to be a man, gazing coldly at the crowd. After Lu Xiaolong and the others were shocked, they quickly reacted. Drilling capability. It's not just going through walls. He is, mouse. Here comes that god of killing. Everyone was so scared that their faces were pale and bloodless, shivering as they looked at Jiang Fan, not daring to move at all. Lu Xiaolong's scalp was even more numb and his heart wailed, why am I so backward? I really ran into that killing god. Wang Na was also startled, and when she realized it was the man in the car, she shouted in ecstasy, Brother Lung, that's him. He's the man on the convoy who turned out to be an alien. Brother Lung, kill him and the convoy will be yours. She glared cynically at Jiang Fan. What's wrong with aliens? Even an alien can't stop a bullet. So many people here. You're dead. When you die, these men are going to drive a train on Tang Shuelua. Let's make you not feed me. Lu Xiaolong's scalp exploded when he heard this, damn. How do you talk to big brother? He slammed his fist into Wang Na's eye socket. Wang Na didn't expect to be hit at all, and fell on her back, her brain buzzing, and she couldn't see out of one eye. She said in a confused voice, Lung, why did you hit me? Lu Xiaolong stormed out, why are you being beaten? Because you deserve it. He was all over Wang Na. The group of people also reacted and stormed Wang Na together. Wang Na held her head and rolled around on the ground, screaming miserably as she did so alone. Brother Lung, if you kill him, the whole car full of women is yours. Don't fight. Ah, it hurts. Shut up, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Still want to kill big brother. I'll beat you to death. A few minutes later, Wang Na lay motionless in a pool of blood too dead to die, until she died, she didn't understand why Lu Xiaolong suddenly flipped out, only then did Lu Xiaolong come forward with a smile, big brother, this woman doesn't know what she's doing, I've already killed her, everyone looked at Jiang Fan nervously, the fact that the other party was able to enter and exit the base seven times in the first place, and later on, he was able to completely destroy Duanjin and the others, showed that the strength was not at all something that he could imagine, without mentioning anything else, even if he used this drilling ability to track, he and the others would be dead, and would not be able to run away at all, now it's up to the other side to survive, Jiang Fan looked at Lu Xiaolong with interest, you know me, the light on this one became extremely fast, after recognizing himself, the red light instantly disappeared and turned into a yellow green mix, Lu Xiaolong compensated with a smile, my name is Lu Xiaolong, I used to be a soldier at the TV base and have seen your methods, he didn't dare to say that he had followed Duanjin out to kill, rats, fear of being slashed by the other side, it turned out to be so, Jiang Fan finally understood where this group of people came from. No wonder there are so many guns. At the time, the TV base was rioting and it was normal for some people to run out. But, it's so far from the station. How did they get here? Jiang Fan asked indifferently, you guys followed Duanjin out to kill me, right? Lu Xiaolong's expression froze as he knelt on the ground in fear and begged for mercy, big brother. I couldn't do anything about it in the first place. The superiors had orders, and I could only carry them out. From start to finish I never shot at you. The others also looked around from side to side, as if they were ready to run away at any moment. If they didn't know that the other party could see through the red mist, they would have already run away. 
Jiang Fan smiled faintly of course you haven't fired a gun. Everyone who has fired a gun at me is dead. Lu Xiaolong's scalp went numb, big brother. That matter really has nothing to do with me ah. Jiang Fan looked at Lu Xiaolong without a word. Should we kill him? Killing it won't do much. Many people at the TV base knew they could walk through walls. And they couldn't hide that secret after killing the group. But, they know they are the fleet owners. That's extra intel. A fierce light slowly surfaced in Jiang Fan's eyes. Lu Xiaolong's legs went weak from the look and he almost peed his pants. He dropped the gun decisively and gambled he big brother. I'll work with you from now on. I'll never go west if you say so. Jiang Fan was not moved. Instead he touched the dagger at his waist. Crap. Lu Xiaolong was terrified. His brain spinning frantically. And suddenly blessed with a quickness, big brother. I can blend into unit 910 and work with you as an insider. Look at Killmonger's convoy. He's definitely going to the 910th. With the strength of the other party, they would definitely not be willing to stoop to their level. Even if you go to the 910th, it should be the same. If he defected himself, he would have an additional group of men available. Accordingly, if his own group went to the 910th, they would certainly be suspected by the officers and might be sent on some certain death missions. Things would have been much better if the god of killers had looked out for them. Lu Xiaolong certainly didn't want to go to the 910th, but now if we say no, we're dead. Blending into the 910th unit? Jiang Fan narrowed his eyes. Lu Xiaolong said with the fastest speed in his life right, we're soldiers, we should be reused. Big brother, I can pass all the information to you, and if necessary, I can help you grab control of unit 910. At the moment of life and death, Lu Xiaolong made a wish and dared to say anything. At this, Jiang Fan certainly didn't believe it. But, it's still a good idea to bury an eyeliner in the 910th. Chapter 157, Li Qingxuan finds the ability fruit. Jiang Fan said nothing. He just stared at Lu Xiaolong for a moment before sinking into the ground and disappearing. Phew. Lu Xiaolong sat down on the ground with a plop and took a long breath, only to realize that his back was cold. In just a few minutes, cold sweat soaked his clothes. The crowd had a sense of having come back from the dead. A henchman whispered, Lung, are we really going to the 910th? They are not wanting to go. Lu Xiaolong, however, glared at him and whispered, don't blame me if you don't go and die. He gestured toward his feet. The henchman responded immediately. Yeah, if the god of killers was watching himself from underground, who would know? He turned pale with fear and hurriedly said a brother Long is right. Let's go to unit 910 immediately. Lu Xiaolong waited apprehensively for a while and realized that the god of killers didn't come back. Then he was sure that the other party had agreed to his deal. It was only then that he had time to gather the four people who had been captured along with Wang Na, these assholes. They almost got me killed. Big brother, it has nothing to do with me. It's all Wang Na's fault. Okay, I'll send you down to her. Ah, no. Jiang Fan returned to the car and, glanced, at Lu Xiaolong and the others before withdrawing his gaze. Lu Xiaolong's suggestion is good, but right now he wasn't going to give the other guy any help. If it's made, give some more investment. If it fails, then die. It's none of your business anyway. Currently, Unit 910 was nothing more than a giant meat shield in Jiang Fan's opinion. The women were relieved to see Jiang Fan return. When Jiang Fan returned to the car, the women had a backbone. Tang Shuelua said nervously, Brother Jiang. How is the situation? Jiang Fan said calmly, it's just a riot. Nothing to do with us. If anyone dares to come over and cause trouble, just kill them. Tonight should be fine. You guys split into three shifts and take turns sleeping. The riot went on for hours until 3 a.m. M. When it gradually quieted down, a group of rioters took the opportunity to rush over to the convoy site to cause trouble. Jiang Fan did not hesitate to kill them all. Dozens of corpses were thrown on the ground, deterring those who came after them and no one dared to provoke the caravan again. The women slept poorly. It was the latter part of the night before the surroundings quieted down. The escape route is silent at night. Survivors lay resting everywhere on the road. Xia Evening Harvest insisted on continuing on with the large troop. One just couldn't hold out any longer, Mr. Xia, take a break? The guys can't take it anymore. Xia Evening Ching brushed the ends of her soaked hair behind her ears, revealing her delicate features, and shook her head to know, it's safer to go at night. You've seen the situation on the road today. There are too many survivors. Thieves. Robberies and fights. Everywhere. We must change to walking at night and resting during the day. Also, her powers are stronger at night and must be utilized to the fullest. The crowd lamented. But they also knew that Xia Evening Harvest had a point. So they could only grit their teeth and walk numbly. The team of hundreds of people, slowly advancing in the night, could barely see the ground, relying on Xia Evening Qing to lead the way. Xia Evening Harvest shouted out encouragement, when we get to the 910th, we'll all have clean beds to sleep in and plenty of compressed cookies. 
The crowd responded with a cacophonous yes. They were willing to trust Xie Evening Ching because Xie's father was a high-ranking official in the Kyoto city garrison, and felt that Xie Evening Ching would be able to get enough favors when it came to the military's turf. Early morning. Supply point. The uneventful night had finally passed. Li Qingxuan is old and gets up very early. He got out of the car to move his body. There was a gust of blood in the air. Not far away came the faint sound of a woman crying. Crying very hard. I wonder if it's her loved ones who have died. A night of cobbling together in the cramped hummer seat had left him with aching bones. Still, it's been top-notch enjoyment. There was at least enough food and dry seats in the humvee than the survivors who slept on the wet ground. Ching Xuan Li simply ate something and looked around. The plants here are almost completely different from the fortune center. Which fascinates him. It's amazing how evolution, slightly separated by a little distance, makes plants look completely different. Ching Xuan Li was excited to collect plant samples. With so many new plants, it's possible that some new herb will be identified. This is a strange rose. This dogwood is also amazing and actually glows. He got farther and farther down the road and finally went into the dense forest next to it. As he walked, Li Qingxuan suddenly saw a black lychee hanging in the grass in front of him. Alien fruit? Li Qingxuan went up and picked it off, clutching it excitedly in his hand. It really is an alien fruit. This was still the first exotic fruit that Qingxuan Li had obtained, and he very much wanted to eat it immediately. Jiang Fan's ability made him incomparably envious. Should I eat it? Li Qingxuan hesitated for a long time, but still didn't eat it on his own. Instead, he prepared to go back to Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan had an abundance of exotic fruits. Instead of eating this alien power fruit with unknown effects, it would be better to go to Jiang Fan and exchange it for a practical ability. Li Qingxuan walked back quickly. Just then, several people suddenly walked out of the red mist. They all tensed up when they saw Li Qingxuan. And soon, they saw the exotic fruit in Li Qingxuan's hand. The expression of the strong man in the lead changed instantly. Alien fruit. It's actually an alien fruit. Why isn't the old man eating? Is it because you don't know what you're talking about? The strong man's eyes were filled with greed. Feeling bad, Li Qingxuan hurriedly put the exotic fruit into his pocket. But it's already too late. The burly man pretended, Grandpa, sell me this alien fruit and I'll give you three packs of instant noodles. The burly man patted his bulging backpack, which was obviously stuffed with stuff. Of course Li Qingxuan couldn't agree. Three packs of instant noodles is nothing. It's an alien fruit. However, the other party was crowded, and he didn't dare to refuse directly, and politely said uh sorry, my kids love it, can't sell it. The burly man stopped pretending to be kind and glared and cursed, damn old man. I said, give me that fruit. Li Qingxuan knew there was no way to make good. Okay, I'll get it to you. He pretended to reach for the alien fruit, then turned his head and ran when his opponent wasn't looking. In a flash, it disappeared into the red mist. The burly man froze. He didn't think an old man could run so fast. The burly man gasped a mud. Chase, kill that old man. Chapter 158, The Fruit Arrives. Jiang Fan was eating his breakfast when he suddenly frowned and put down his chopsticks, wiping his mouth with a paper napkin. Su Mengqian said worriedly, Brother Jiang, not to your liking? Jiang Fan laughed lightly, it was delicious. I'll be right back. When he finished speaking, he walked through the carriage in the direction of Li Qingxuan. Li Qingxuan ran for his life, but he was old, after all, and soon his legs were heavy, and he let out ragged gasps as he ran slower and slower. Soon the group of survivors arrived. Several people surrounded Li Qingxuan and laughed to old man. Run again. I'll see where you can run to. Li Qingxuan's heart sank as he nervously took out his alien fruit and shouted, Don't you guys come over. If you dare to come over I'll crush it and no one will eat it. The crowd froze. The burly man stood his ground angrily, If you dare to pinch the exotic fruit, I'll skin you. Li Qingxuan immediately said, You can have the alien fruit, but you can't kill me. Of course he didn't want to hand over the exotic fruit. He was just stalling for time, waiting for Jiang Fan to come and save him. Li Qingxuan had lived under Jiang Fan's protection for a long time, and had already vaguely guessed that Jiang Fan had remote monitoring capabilities, although it was unclear what exactly the ability was. Jiang Fan should be able to find out if he was in danger. The burly man said urgently fine, I swear I won't kill you, give me the alien fruit and I'll make sure you can leave alive. A few other people instantly revealed disgruntled expressions, why should I give it to you? We want it too. These guys are holding on for dear life. When it comes to great interests, Great differences arise. The reason the burly man was the leader of these people was because he had a secondary psychic ability that could extend the shelf life of food. Now that there's another exotic fruit, it's always the big guy's turn to split it, right? Li Qingxuan, an old man, immediately noticed the differences between the several people and said in a way, all seven of you, you must all give me your word. The burly man wasn't stupid, and knowing that the others didn't agree with him taking the alien fruit, he said in annoyance, what's with all the bullshit? 
Why would I kill an old man when I have nothing better to do than give me the fruit of ability? Li Qingxuan shook his head firmly, no way. All seven of you have to make sure I don't die. The old man has lived so long. He still wants to live a few more years. The strong man was angry. And in his heart, he hated to dismantle Li Qingxuan. But the fruit of alien energy was in the other party's hands. So he didn't dare to act rashly. Who knows if the crushed alien fruit is still effective when eaten. He pretended to have nothing to say to the others. Come, brothers, assure the old gentleman that it's a pain in the ass. A few people looked at me and at you. All silent. The burly man was instantly annoyed at Amit. Speak up. Don't waste time. What if someone else comes by later? A few people remained silent. The burly man stormed off. I knew you guys were wolves that couldn't be bred. Without Lao Zi's ability, you would have starved to death long ago. A few people were annoyed, but still didn't say anything. A man with triangular eyes had a grim gleam in his eyes and suddenly spoke with a smirk. Gene, you already have a psychic ability. It's time to give this psychic fruit to the big guy, right? The burly man was furious. Bullshit. I contribute the most to the team. Of course I should eat. It's good for everyone if I get a second psychic ability. Triangle eyes was disdainful in his heart, but sincere on the surface of brother Gene. You've always said before that using abilities is very tiring. Since one alien ability is so tiring, adding another one, can your physical ability still support it? In case you can't support it, wouldn't it be a waste of an ability fruit? The burly man stalled. He often excuses the fact that using his powers is very tiring and avoids some heavy, dangerous tasks. Now that it was being used as a rhetorical question by Triangle Eyes, he instantly didn't know how to answer. Triangle Eyes added let's see, let the others eat this abnormal fruit. For example, Song Zaison, he used to be in martial arts school and has the best body base. He'll have the best effect on the team if he eats it. He sinisterly directed his fire at Songza. Song Ze, however, did not know that this was a pit, and was overjoyed and foolish don't worry, if I get my powers, I promise I can lead the team with Jean. The burly man immediately looked at Song Ze angrily, thinking that he was behind it. A few other people were also in their own way, each with their own words. Seven people immediately imploded. At that moment, Jiang Fan slowly walked out of the red mist and came in front of Li Qingxuan. Li Qingxuan was pleasantly surprised. The big stone in his heart was finally put down, and he hurriedly handed over the alien energy fruit to Jiang Fan like a hot potato. Mr. Jiang, I just found this by accident in the forest. I wanted to bring it to you, but they were on to it. Jiang Fan took the fruit of enlightenment and glanced at Li Qingxuan. Li Qingxuan's body radiated a pure green light that represented friendliness. Jiang Fan then knew that he wasn't lying and his trust in him rose once again. Ching Xuan Li has proven his loyalty many times over and could be part of the core team. Jiang Fan laughed as he pretended to put the exotic fruit in his pocket, but actually put it in his carry-on space, DR. Li, come to the RV for breakfast later. Li Ching Xuan instantly knew that Jiang Fan had accepted him completely and was ecstatic. He knew he'd made the right bet. The seven survivors, however, were not happy. Seeing that the exotic fruit was in Jiang Fan's hands, they immediately gave up infighting and united as one. The seven men waved their weapons and cursed, Hey, where'd you kids come from? Hand over that alien fruit and I'll spare your life. Mud, bring out the alien fruit right now. That old man stole our alien fruit. Who are you to take it? Jiang Fan, however, wasn't angry at all and just looked at the strong man among the seven people in a flat manner. What are your powers? Jiang Fan used his mind light to look at the strong man's ability light cluster. The ability on the strong man was very strange. It seemed to be an auxiliary ability and like a combat ability. This was the first time Jiang Fan had seen it and wanted to understand it. The burly man immediately said he give me the alien fruit and I'll tell you. Jiang Fan narrowed his eyes at the strong man and slowly said, good. He pretended to dig into his pocket and took out a life-inspiring fruit from his carry-on space. It's definitely not possible to take the new fruit out again, in case it's damaged. Life-inspiring fruits, however, were plentiful and not precious to Jiang Fan at all. The burly man was delighted and reached for it. Jiang Fan, however, retracted his hand, you still haven't told me what your powers are? The burly man's eyes stared straight at the life-inspiring fruit in Jiang Fan's hand and said perfunctorily, prolonged food spoilage. The others also looked at Jiang Fan anxiously. Song Ze, in particular, was very anxious to see the fruit in his hands flying away, but he couldn't think of any solutions. One could only look to triangle eyes for help. Triangle eyes, however, is sneaking behind the crowd. The triangular eyes were keenly aware that the young man had a very healthy face and very clean skin and clothes. He's never been hungry at all. It's even easy enough to have free time to take care of the shape. This is definitely a powerful alien. Chapter 159 New Alien Energy Source Energy No wonder that frail old man has survived this long. Triangle Eyes noticed again that the old man was also very clean and healthy. 
This alien is so powerful that not only can he ensure a certain quality of life for himself, but he can also bring those around him to the same level. Triangular eyes are simply unimaginable. How did this work in the red mist era when food was scarce? Alarm bells went off in his heart, and his whole body shivered slightly, wanting nothing more than to hurry up and escape. Jiang Fan casually glanced at Triangle Eye, and Triangle Eye didn't dare to move for fear of angering the other party. Jiang Fan asked the strong man with interest, oh, how long does it last? The burly man said impatiently, the open food can be extended up to five days, and the half-eaten ones can be extended by two or three days. All right, you already know. Hurry up and give me the alien fruit. Jiang Fan mused for a moment. It sounds as if it suppresses the ability of microbes to reproduce. He nodded in satisfaction, thanks. Then crushed the alien fruit in his hand. Pussed. Everyone was stunned. The burly man was the first to react and burst into a rage kid. You seek death. Big brother. I was wrong. The burly man hurriedly changed his words in the middle of his sentence as he saw a pistol inexplicably appear in Jiang Fan's hand. The black hole of its muzzle pointed straight at him. Jiang Fan smiled and said well, next time don't make the mistake. It's not good for your health. Strong man? Bang. The burly man was shot in the forehead and fell on his back. The other six were terrified. Before they could beg for mercy, Jiang Fan fired continuously. Bang. 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 All six died. Li Qingchuan was both scared and glad that he had been following Jiang Fan. Becoming Jiang Fan's enemy was an absolute nightmare. After Jiang Fan used his perception to confirm that all seven were dead, he searched their belongings. Nothing good. Let's go. Jiang Fan left with Li Qingchuan. A minute later, a man sneaks up on them, and when he sees a field of dead bodies, he quickly pounces on them. He was surprised to find that there was actually food in the corpse's backpack. He immediately scavenged all the food, not caring at all about getting blood on his hands. At that moment, there was the sound of light footsteps in the red mist. The man didn't dare to linger and hurried away with his backpack. Soon, four men came forward carefully, the shots should be over here. Can't hear any movement, the shooter should be gone. We have to hurry. The four men saw the body and rushed forward. Damn, the food's all gone. Normal, who leaves you food now? Take everything that's useful. Someone else will be here soon. After the four left, waves of survivors arrived, scavenging the bodies. There was a bit of a scuffle during that time. Ten minutes later, the bodies of seven people were also dragged away. With a burst of meaty aroma, the traces that the seven had survived completely disappeared cleanly. Jiang Fan brought Li Qingchuan back to the caravan and asked Bai Xinjie to make a breakfast for the two of them. The women looked at Li Qingchuan in surprise. Jiang Fan had never allowed Li Qingchuan to eat with them. I don't know what Li Qingchuan did to gain Jiang Fan's trust. Li Qingchuan finished eating gratefully. It was only then that Jiang Fan asked, what powers do you want? Still able to choose? Li Qingchuan was surprised and thought about it, I'd like to improve my fitness a little. Jiang Fan had thought that Li Qingchuan would want abilities like plant hypnosis. Qingchuan Li has always shown great interest in studying plants. Jiang Fan asked curiously why. Li Qingchuan said with a palpitated heart, if I had been in better health just now, I could have run back today. It was bad health that got me caught. If it wasn't for Mr. Jiang, I would have died. The red mist era is too dangerous. The body is what keeps you alive. Jiang Fan smiled knowingly, smart choice. He took out a physique strengthening fruit, two stars, and a plant hypnosis fruit, one star. These are two fruits to reward you. One can strengthen your body, and one can speed up the growth of plants, which should help you in your study of plants. This was also something he had decided a long time ago, if Li Qingchuan really handed over the exotic fruit to himself, he would reward him with two of them. Li Qingchuan was overjoyed and catalyzed plants? Jiang Fan nodded, Jiang Hanxia also knows this ability, so you can communicate with her. By the way, Jiang Hafsummer is also studying medicine, so teach her some medical knowledge by the way. Jiang Hanxia, come here, this is DR. Li Qingchuan from the Magic Sea Traditional Chinese Medicine Hospital. You'll learn well from him in the future. Jiang Fan had long wanted Jiang Hanxia to study with Li Qingchuan. In case Qingchuan Li karma one day, the team won't even have a trustworthy doctor. Jiang Hanxia obeyed, okay. Jiang, she carefully said to Li Qingchuan, Mr. Li, if I don't learn well in the future, feel free to scold me. Medical students have always been put down by older doctors when they enter hospital internships. Before Jiang Hanxia graduated, she had heard a lot from her brothers and sisters, and was in awe of the old doctor. How could Li Qingchuan dare to make a face at Jiang Fan's woman? He hurriedly waved his hands back and forth, Emma's. Jiang, don't dare to say that. Let's learn from each other. Let's learn from each other. The two men were polite and established the relationship of master and disciple. Jiang Fan supported Li Qingchuan and took out the newly acquired alien fruit. Who should I give this one to? He thought about it. As previously planned, each woman needs to have a specialized psychic ability. In addition to perception, 
physical strengthening and voiding. Many women have powers that other women don't have. For example, Su Mengqian had a will link, Su Jin had life inspiration, and Tian Tian had teleportation. As of now, there were still four women, Tang Xuelua, Hu Lili, Bai Xinjie, and Su Xiaomei, who didn't have unique psychic abilities. The exception was Tang Xuelua, whose physique was perfect for perception, and she would be mainlining perception in the future. Lily who just made a mistake and can't be rewarded. This time it'll be cheaper for the idiot beauty by Xinjie. Zhang Fan called by Xinjie after thinking about it and found a random reason, your cooking is improving quickly. This one is a reward for you. Bai Xinjie was surprised, thank you. Thank you. The women all looked at her with envy. Bai Xinjie carefully ate the exotic fruit. Ding. Bai Xinjie consumed one fruit of enlightenment, basic source energy control and returned 1500 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, basic source energy mastery 4 stars. After consuming it, you can gain the basic source energy mastery ability. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. What the hell is source energy again? Jiang Fan was surprised. He didn't expect a term to appear that he'd never seen before. Jiang Fan immediately took out a source energy infusion fruit and ate it. In an instant, he felt the yuqi in his body come alive. It was no longer like before, when it usually stayed dead in the tree of manifestation, only to suddenly burst out when one used the ghostly maneuver. Now, qi, like a finger, could be easily grasped by him. Jiang Fan was pleasantly surprised as he manipulated the yuqi to flow through his body. It's an amazing feeling. Qi is source energy. He had a realization and hurriedly opened the panel to check the description of his power's frowny face basic source energy mastery. For stars, you can better master the source energy in your body. You can infuse it into your body or external objects to produce great enhancement. Chapter 160, Energy Enriched Steel Balls. This ability, it looked a bit similar to Sword Qi. Jiang Fan walked outside the car, which was full of survivors. He then walked into the dense forest, and when no one was around, he shook his hand and took out the wool heavy sword. Source energy infusion. A large amount of source energy poured into the heavy sword. In an instant, the heavy sword seemed to glow like a fluorescent stick, its body emitting a bright light, the same as the light weapons in the kryptonite game. Instead of being excited, Jiang Fan frowned, this is too solid. After he repeated the test a few times, he realized the difference between source energy infusion and sword chi. The source energy infused into the sword is controlled. After infusing it into a heavy sword, it can be recycled again, only with some loss. Sword Chi was completely different. Once it rushed out of the body into the sword, it was completely out of control. Jiang Fan gently swung it a few times, and then it plunged heavily into the ground. Thumbs up, the sharp, will heavy sword plunged down with ease. Immediately afterward, the source energy on the sword instantly erupted. Boom! The ground tumbled up into a 3 or 4 meter deep crater as if it had been blown up by heavy artillery. Jiang Fan only felt a slight weakness in his body, and one third of his whole body's source energy was consumed but his eyes lit up. The power is very considerable. This ability is good for attacking, or against some enemies of great size. Jiang Fan moved his finger. Earth and stone remodeling. The ground regained its flatness, completely burying the traces of what had just happened. Jiang Fan tried to pour the source energy into his body again. The whole body was shining. Jiang Fan experienced that there was no obvious improvement in physical quality. He flicked a finger on the large tree beside him. Boom! The tree trunk exploded into a bull-sized hole with a power comparable to a sniper bullet. After Jiang Fan repeated the test a few times, he mastered the method of controlling the power of the explosion. By this point, his entire body's source energy had been consumed cleanly. Jiang Fan operated his breathing method and quickly recovered his source energy. Once the source energy was restored, he began to think about how to fully utilize this new ability. The power of source energy infusion is indeed very strong, but it consumes too much, and it only takes a few attacks during battle to drain the source energy. Without source energy, I won't be able to use the ghostly maneuver, and my survivability will decrease. Jiang Fan pondered for a while, and his eyes lit up slightly as he thought of a good solution. Jiang Fan first took out a steel ball. 100% source energy infusion. He poured all his source energy into a steel ball. In the blink of an eye, the steel beads shone so brightly and brilliantly that it was almost impossible to look at them directly. It's not enough. Jiang Fan's eyes stared. Pneumatic burst. 500%. Jiang Fan's comprehensive physique skyrocketed, exceeding 1, 0, 0, 0. The illusion of his physique skyrocketing made him feel like he could crush stars with one hand. Jiang Fan threw the steel ball towards the distant ground with all his might. Under his brute force, the steel ball dragged out a tail of light and disappeared into the ground a dozen meters, immediately following. Boom! A large pit with a radius of more than 10 meters and a depth of more than 10 meters appeared on the ground. 
Several large trees crunched down around them with a loud rumbling noise. Jiang Fan's eyes snapped open. It's too strong, much more powerful than the army's 155 artillery. This was the strongest attack he could do at the moment. Jiang Fan immediately stopped his qi and blood eruption and once again ran the breathing technique to recover his origin energy. When the recovery was complete, he pulled out another steel ball. 100% source energy infusion. 500% chakra burst. Jiang Fan once again threw the steel ball out, but the moment it struck, he immediately put it away into his carry space. The steel balls disappeared in the blink of an eye. Jiang Fan immediately opened his carry-on space. The steel balls were seen solidified in the carry space, though still glowing brightly. Jiang Fan was secretly delighted. There was a glow, indicating that the source energy had not disappeared and was still contained within the steel bead. Source energy should be some kind of energy, since the source energy hadn't disappeared. Then the kinetic energy thrown by the 500% burst of one's chakra shouldn't have disappeared either. The next step is the most important one. Jiang Fan eyed the front and took out the steel ball. The steel beads left the carry-on space and once again hurtled forward. The momentum is really still there. The steel ball missed the ground and exploded. Boom! This time, the explosion was too close, and dirt fell all over Jiang Fan. Instead, he didn't care at all and was happy. This method allowed him to build up his usual source energy and use it when he encountered a strong enemy. Jiang Fan immediately ran the breathing method and recovered full source energy in more than 2 minutes, then took out a steel ball. 100% source energy infusion. 500% qi and blood burst, thrown out and included in the carry space at the same time. It was only after an hour that Jiang Fan had to stop. Even with the intermittent use of 500% qi and blood bursts, he had depleted half of his stamina. However, there were already 20 more steel balls infused with source energy in the carry-on space. Jiang Fan smiled and returned to the convoy. The women were already packed and ready to go. Jiang Fan opened the portal again to take a look. That green eye is still there. It looked over as soon as Jiang Fan opened the door. Jiang Fan's heart palpitated as he hurriedly closed the portal. Why do I feel it getting closer to me? Could it be moving long distances in subspace? Jiang Fan couldn't figure it out, so he could only put it in the back of his mind for now. Just then, a woman crying her heart out suddenly came from outside Old Wang. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Too many people died this past night. There are cries everywhere now, and the screams of the wounded. Jiang Fan said without changing his face, get going. At least 15 kilometers today. Li Qingyu nodded her head okay. She pressed on the car and unleashed the gravitational distortion. All the bodies were suddenly light, and the convoy drove off slowly. The convoy happened to pass by the woman, who was crying her eyes out Old Wang. Old Wang ah, what will I do if you die? The women poked their heads out of the car window and looked out. The woman was crying while pulling mushrooms off a man. Red mushrooms grew all over the man's body. The red fungus umbrellas with green dots are spooky at first glance. Mushroom roots are buried deep in the flesh and blood. After the woman pulled it off, the roots were like living creatures, desperately burrowing into the flesh and blood, and the man spat out mouthfuls of blood from time to time. The scene looked beyond horrifying, except for this woman. The other survivors stood off to the side in fear, not daring to come closer, only standing at a distance to discourage them. Lu, we have to go. I am sorry for your loss. This is the way of the world. We can live one day at a time. Old Wang is considered to be relieved. We still have to suffer. Xiao Lu don't cry. Now cry bad body have no place to cure ah. Jiang Fan, saw, inside the man's body. Countless roots weaving in and out of the blood vessels and muscles. Even piercing through the bones and inserting themselves into the bone marrow. That woman is also dead. She touched the mushroom with her hand. And some of the microscopically invisible mushroom spores had landed on her skin and taken root. Ordinary people couldn't even see it. But in Jiang Fan's perception, everything was clearly visible. Among Jiang Fan's women. Tang Shuelawa's perception was the highest, and she also discovered that something was wrong with this woman. Jiang Fan said flatly in the mental link, close the windows. Those people are infected with red mushrooms. Let's stay away. The women immediately changed their faces and hurriedly closed the car windows. Jiang Fan the convoy drove by in a hurry. Tang Shuelawa took one last look at the survivor squad that disappeared into the red mist. The fate of this group is sealed. Chapter 161, Smart Lu Xiaolong. After the chaos. Jiang Fan saw many more wailing survivors along the way. Most are killed by various mutated plants or bitten by poisonous insects and snakes. No large animals like mutant dogs or cats showed up last night. These large animals are resourceful, and the shelling of the last few days scared them off long ago. Some smart survivors saw the convoy and immediately followed, staying close behind it. They found that the roads through which the convoy passed were much flatter and they were able to enjoy the deterrent of the tankers from being robbed by bandits. Jiang Fan didn't drive them away either. Follow if you can. Kind of saves someone in the process. 
Forget about not being able to keep up. Jiang Fan wouldn't wait for them. After a few minutes, the number of survivors around them became noticeably smaller, and the convoy moved out of the range of the supply point. Jiang Fan realized that Lu Xiaolong's group had also silently followed behind. This guy is pretty smart. Maybe he can be groomed. Jiang Fan thought silently. This guy who could survive in a dense forest with a bunch of defeated soldiers and still control his men without festering was indeed a talent. As for the matter of Lu Xiaolong's murder and robbery, Jiang Fan didn't care about it at all. There are basically no survivors who have survived this far who don't have blood on their hands. Either you kill me or I kill you. The world under the red mist had completely turned into a shura of the weak and the strong. Mental cleaners don't survive. As for young Dong Chang, who I saw last night, he didn't show up, probably died in the riot. Maybe it's still alive. Jiang Fan didn't care either. It's just a low-level officer. His only value to Jiang Fan was to provide information. While monitoring all movements within 200 meters, Jiang Fan threw his attention over and eavesdropped on each other's conversations when he found a suspicious target, while throwing a few old weapon fruits, or source energy infusion fruits into his mouth. Until Li Qingyu couldn't hold on for the first rest, the source energy infusion still hadn't been upgraded. Jiang Fan then knew that his physique should not be adapted to source energy infusion either. He then decided to stop eating the source energy infusion and eat the will weapon fruit in the main to raise this ability to 9 stars first. Jiang Fan told the convoy to rest in place, while he himself walked into the dense forest by the side of the road, 150 meters away from the convoy, and continued to accumulate energy infused steel balls. At this distance, no one else would notice the movement, and the convoy could be monitored and rushed back quickly if there was a problem. It's finally dawn. Zheng Dongchang looked at the sky warily. The sunlight pierced through the layers of red mist and shone down, emitting a dark red glow, reflecting everything on the ground in a bizarre dark red color, like a ghostly realm. But it was a scene that all the survivors were used to. The past night has been a sleepless one for everyone in the safe zone of the supply point. Killings, robberies, betrayals, sneak attacks. I don't know how many sins have occurred, and I don't know how many people died. After tossing and turning all night, all the survivors were exhausted and finally subsided. The wounded are howling in agony. People who have lost loved ones are crying out. Those who had grabbed the supplies were hiding in the shadows, excitedly enjoying last night's haul. Either way, the survivors have to get up and move on. Survival road is only seven days away. No one had time to delay. At that moment, the sound of a helicopter came from the sky. Everyone looked up toward the sky expectantly. Unfortunately, the red mist obscured the view and nothing could be seen. The helicopter took a huge risk and landed in the red mist, slowly landing next to Zheng Dongchan's company tent. The pilot cursed with relief, wiping a cold sweat from his forehead dam. This job is so inhuman. Zheng Dongchang went forward with a compensatory smile. The pilot said in disgust, you guys are too far away here. I really don't want to come. Zheng Dongchang cursed in his heart. You think I want to come? He didn't dare show it on his face. But he hurriedly took out a pack of cigarettes and shoved them into the pilot's hands, dude. Smoke one. Good stuff. The pilot's eyes glowed at once, dragon brand cigarettes. I can't imagine the supply point is pretty well oiled. Zheng Dongchang compensated with a smile, no, it's just luck. The pilot pulled out half of his cigarette and shoved it into the other pilot's hand. Then he lit up a cigarette and couldn't wait to smoke it. As order breaks down and everyone is only out for themselves, the discipline of the military is breaking down at a rapid pace. Few soothing, the pilot enjoyed half a cigarette before nudging his mouth toward the back and whispering, have your people move it. That box of green is energy bars. You guys can take an extra box. Zheng Dongchang was secretly delighted. Now the energy bar is a good thing. It's lightweight and quick to replenish energy. It's a lifesaver in times of danger. Thanks a lot brother. He immediately fished out another pack of cigarettes and shoved it into the pilot's hand. The pilot was laughing his ass off you only have one more supply point behind you anyway. So why don't you guys just finish carrying all the energy bars? Don't keep them. Zheng Dongchang was overjoyed. But he still said in a fake manner, will that get a brother in trouble? The pilot grinned broadly, what's the trouble? How do they know there's an energy bar if we don't tell them? Zheng Dongchang stopped excusing himself and immediately had the soldiers carry the supplies down. Instead, he asked the pilot about other supply points dude. My side of the fight was a mess last night. Those survivors killed all night. Even two of my brothers died. What about the other supply points? Don't mention it. It's the same everywhere. You're not so bad here. You know the sea line. The whole C5 supply point was terminated. All our men are dead. The bodies are gone. Zheng Dongchang winced, so messed up? Right. The red mist already restricts vision. And at night you can't see anything. So that group of survivors went crazy. I've heard that General Zhu has already sent an alien squad to suppress it. I guess we'll have to kill them this time. TSK TSK. Ugh. I don't know what General Zhu was thinking. 
Getting this group of survivors to 910, I feel like we're going to have to make a mess in our house too. It's fine. You have few people at the supply point, so you can't control the situation. At our place, we have all the guns and weapons, plus a bunch of psychics. No one will be able to turn the tables. The two chatted for a while, and the material move was over. The pilot greeted Zheng Dongchang and carefully flew the airplane up and away. Young Dong Chang, on the other hand, ordered people to distribute supplies to the survivors and thought worriedly to himself. The news that the C-5 supply point had been terminated worried him greatly. If he had met a powerful alien last night, he might have been nothing himself. The thought of being stationed for another five days made Zheng Dongchang's scalp feel numb. If you got lucky last night, can you get lucky five days? No way. I can't just sit around and wait. I have to find a way to save myself. Zheng Dongchang pondered for a while and immediately called for the short and thin soldier, you heard the news just now. The brothers at the C5 supply point have been killed. We're in danger too. We have to strengthen our defense. The short, skinny soldier knew the situation was serious, yes. Company commander go ahead. Zheng Dongchang then said, 1. Take a few brothers and go to the survivors and recruit 100 young and strong men. Give them two rations a day. And have them dig trenches. Along the perimeter of our tents. 2. Find another way to recruit combat type shifters. Make it 10. And tell them to protect the supply point now. And we'll take them with us when we leave. But there must be the kind that drag their families along. Lone wolves are definitely not wanted. The short, skinny soldier gave a military salute promise to finish the job. After he left, Zheng Dongchang, on the other hand, brought two guards with him and hurriedly walked in the direction of Zheng Fan's convoy. Zheng Fan was definitely a powerful alien. The supply point would be a lot safer if he was involved in the defense. I just don't know if he died last night. I'm guessing it was a bad one. Chapter 162 8 Star Weapon of Will Zheng Dongchang arrives at the convoy site and finds that the convoy has already left. All that was left on the ground were deep ruts. Zheng Dongchang was surprised, they're actually okay? No one came after them? Or did they escape after being attacked? He found survivors who hadn't left yet and inquired about a few things. Turns out there was no mass riot at all on this side last night. As if the mob didn't even notice the convoy. What luck! Zheng Dongchang lamented. However, Zheng Fan had already left, and he could only return chagrined. The nights that followed were huge survival challenges for him. Dawn. Xia Evening Harvest led the exhausted group into the dense forest by the roadside, looking for a few abandoned stores. The survivors had to clear the store of trash, poop and various crazy plants before they could rest. The survivors finished their cleanup hastily and went limp. For many city dwellers, running around all night is a grueling task that they have never experienced in their lives. Xia Evening Harvest, however, did not rest immediately, she still had to arrange for on-duty patrol officers. After setting up a patrol watch, she recruited a couple of the lead survivors to discuss the situation, the view is much better during the day than at night, and as long as we stay inside the houses and there are patrols, the security is actually very high. Tonight, let's wait until 6 p.m. M. Before we leave, a middle-aged man glanced at the exhausted and paralyzed crowd and said worriedly, Evening, I see that everyone is very tired. Plus we got caught in the rain yesterday. It's easy to get sick from exhaustion. Getting sick now is fatal. Let's rest for one more night, shall we? Xia Wanqing shook her head and said firmly, no way. I didn't see a single large beast after walking all night yesterday. Most likely the military fire scared them off. But I don't think it will be safe for long. The animals will come back after a long time. If there's another mutant cat, at least half of us will be dead. We have to hurry while we can. The crowd's scalps went numb as they remembered the orange mutant cat. Some time ago, a huge mutated orange cat stormed into their settlement and played with one third of the survivors. And then it was Xia Evening Cheng who tried desperately to lure it away. Otherwise this group of survivors will all die. This was the reason why the crowd was willing to follow Xia Evening Harvest's orders. Hearing about mutant orange cats, no one dares to talk about resting an extra night anymore. If we run into that thing again, we'll be really dead. It's better to be tired than dead. As for someone who is really tired and feverish, they will have to let nature take its course. However, C. Evening had also made preparations, Uncle Wang. Take a few people to find out if there are any of those mutated sycamore trees nearby. Get some sap back and boil it for everyone to drink. Good. The middle-aged man left with a few survivors. There's a mutant sycamore tree whose sap can be drunk when boiled. Discovered by a survivor. It's not good. It's raw and has a bitter taste. But it's good for hydration. No one is picking. Also, that mutant sycamore sap seemed to have a slight fever-reducing effect. Barely an herb. The caravan moved slowly on, overtaking a group of survivors. All the survivors looked at the convoy in surprise. They didn't expect it all to be able to drive in this situation right now. Some of the survivors were still trying to get some bad ideas, but the tanks at the head of the fight deterred them. 
Even the most powerful survivors can't deal with tanks. The fact that this convoy has tanks means that it's probably the 910th, and the convoy should be filled with powerful people that the 910th rescued. The survivors cursed the damned rich and powerful in their hearts, but they didn't dare to show it on the surface, so they could only stand honestly on the side of the road, letting the tank convoy pass by first. This is the third day of opening the escape route. Zhang Fan realized that there were some changes on the road, and a number of large-scale survivor teams numbering over a hundred had appeared. There were many of these large survivor teams that numbered more than 100, with more even reaching 300 or 400 people, and basically all of them had alterans leading them. There was a team that even had three shifters in it. Jiang Fan had also seen a variety of exotic light clusters, enriching the records of the mind's light. As time went on, he gradually gained a vague overall knowledge of the alien energy system. Some of the alien light clusters, even if they hadn't been seen before, were now barely recognizable for what they did. However, up until now, all of the exalted's bodies were ginger, except for his own, and none of them were tree of manifestation. The vast majority of the aliens should not yet be aware of the existence of source energy, chi. The convoy also encountered several waves of roadblockers, but they saw the tanks and all wisely chose to give up. Before long, the caravan crossed another large group of survivors. The group of survivors were resting on the side of the road and actually had a fire lit to roast their meat. They were generally taller, and there were two other aliens in the group. Looking at the tank convoy in shock, Jiang Fan didn't take it to heart. He had seen this kind of look a lot along the way. Nothing special. However, among this group of survivors, there were a few who didn't look much like dragons. Big face, single eyelid, small eyes, seems to be a stick? Jiang Fan looked at it and threw it behind his head. Li Qingyu gasped, Brother Jiang, I can't hold on any longer. I need to take a break. Jiang Fan nodded and ate a wool weapon fruit before informing everyone in the mental link, take a 20 minute break. Jiang Fan was the main combatant of the team, and was also responsible for monitoring the situation around him, so he wouldn't waste his physical strength and energy on gravitational distortion. The convoy slowed to a stop. Then the formation was adjusted and one tank and three vehicles formed a circle, just like before, with an open space in the center. Li Qingyu, on the other hand, lay on the bed and ate a chocolate bar, grasping for time to recover her strength. The other women got out of the car and stretched and moved their bodies. Li Qingchuan got out of the car to observe the plants around him. After taking the physique enhancement, he was much more nimble on his legs. The white fox jumped onto the roof of the car and looked around curiously. White eyes slouched lazily on his hummer, not moving a muscle. The black cat, Cola, was even curled up on top of white eyes, sleeping through the night. Jiang Fan looked around and felt that there were a bit too many alterans in the neighborhood, so he didn't go to the woods to accumulate energy-infused steel beads, but continued to stay in the car and eat the will weapon fruit. Suddenly, ding, the fruit of will is upgraded to 8 stars, the shape of your will weapon can change at will, will plus 25, Jiang Fan's eyes lit up, 8 stars now, just one step away from 9 stars, he opened the will weapon's ability panel frowny face weapon of will, 8 stars, you can consume energy to condense an indestructible weapon of will within your body, and it must be condensed to a certain degree before you can take it out, when the weapon of will is taken out, you can incorporate various substances into the weapon to strengthen its attributes, when an ability dies around you, you can devour fragments of his or her will to accelerate the speed of the weapon of will's condensation, the shape of your weapon of will can be changed at will, will plus 25, can you change your shape at will? Jung Fan took out his will heavy sword, the heavy sword quickly changed shape with his mind, long sword, chopper, meow sword, three pronged thorn, green dragon crescent blade, it even turns into a bow, interesting, Jung Fan played with interest for a while before stopping, keep eating, Make sure you get up to 9 stars today. Chapter 163, Stick Shifter. 10 minutes ago, Wang Ziki dragged her heavy feet and was supported by her Taekwondo instructor, Park Sung Song, who was by her side. Wang Ziki was sweating profusely and his face was pale, Park. Coach Park, I, I, I can't hold on much longer. Take a break. Weak Dragon Nation. Park Sing Chong glanced at her disdainfully, but a sunny smile appeared on his face, good. Then he shouted in stick language, all resting Smitty. A few of the taller. Stronger stick men were also tired and cursing, damn that red mist, exhausted Smitty, the dragon kingdom's army actually didn't come to our rescue, it's outrageous, it's all rotten, there's no way to do it, see Hachi, my shoes are full of muddy Similac, they are all taekwondo national team athletes from the stick country, coming to the dragon kingdom to compete, Park Iki is their senior brother and was the runner up in taekwondo in the stick country, later, when he retired due to injury, he came to Magic Sea City in the Dragon Kingdom and opened the Shangwu Taekwondo Gym. 
Park Sung Sung invites this group of active athletes to the Sangmo Taekwondo Gym to give a performance to the trainees and, in the process, give the Sangmo Taekwondo Gym a boost of pomp and circumstance. As a result, they accidentally encountered a red mist descending on them, and they became trapped in the dojo, where they have been stuck until now. The other 20 or so young men and women are students at the Sangmo Taekwondo Gym. The remaining 50-odd survivors came from all sorts of strange origins, all of them relying on the two supernaturals, Park Shang Shang and Wang Ziki, to survive. There was a broken tree trunk on the side of the road. Park lifted Wang Ziki to the side of the road, and Wang Ziki sat on a tree trunk for a few minutes before her face slowed down, seeing that there was rotten mud all around, and that even the trunks of the trees were not clean. Park stood aside in disgust and did not sit down. The powers gave him great stamina and he didn't feel too tired. Wang Ziki took a sip of pure water and gasped in annoyance, if only I still had my modified Wrangler. It's too tiring to go on these crappy roads. Park skimmed his lips for the rest of his life, I looked at the map and that club you mentioned is so far from the escape route that nothing can drive on the road. Seeing that Wang Ziki had regained a bit of strength, Park Shengli turned around and actually found a piece of drier ground. However, a dozen or so survivors had occupied the ground ahead of time. They also had a couple of moisture barrier mats on the floor and it looked like a nice resting area. Park Sang Sang instantly cheered up, walked to the group of survivors with a big grin, and said in raw Chinese, you guys get out of the way. This place is mine. The group of survivors certainly didn't want it, on what grounds? This is our place. Don't you understand first come first served? The Taekwondo athletes heard a confrontation and immediately gathered around. The trainees from the Taekwondo gym followed them. The atmosphere was tense. The group of survivors was surrounded by a group of tall young men, nervously drawing their weapons. The stick men immediately barked in excitement when they saw that their side had the upper hand in Ishihachi. Get out of the way. The warriors of the big stick republic must sit clean. Fuck off. This is our place. Park Iki activated his ability even more recklessly. He radiated golden light all over his body and was extraordinary at first glance. Alien, the leader of the survivors, a burly man with a beard, was in awe. Park cussed once in his life, a fuck off. Dragon Kingdom monkeys. The burly man with the beard was furious in his heart. But the situation was stronger than the others, and he didn't dare to resist, so he could only say to his companion, good, let's go. The group of survivors were angry, but they didn't have any psychics, there weren't as many people as the other side, and there were a few women, so they definitely couldn't beat the other side. Amidst the taunts of the sticks, the burly man with the bearded man led the men in a suffocating effort to pack up and get ready to leave. Park Lifetime added, leave the vapor barrier. Of course the survivors didn't want to. They'd worked so hard carrying heavy moisture barriers just for this situation. How could they let anyone else take them? The burly man with the beard argued his case, Sir, this is our stuff. The words were not yet spoken. Park lands a high kick to the body. Bang! Click! The neck of the burly bearded man snapped on the spot, and he fell to the ground with a plop, dead as a doornail. The group of survivors didn't expect the other party to suddenly kill, and immediately scattered in fear. Stick kills! Run! Help! Park laughed wildly for the rest of his life, ha ha ha, look at that bear of a dragon nation, he's defeated a lot of aliens along the way with his strong physique and taekwondo skills granted by his powers, Park was bursting with confidence and felt that he was already invincible in melee combat, a few of the taekwondo athletes laughed maniacally along with them, Park, you're getting better at this, taekwondo is invincible, ha ha ha, they're running like chickens, look at that guy's neck, it's broken at a right angle, it's ugly, ha ha ha, the students of the Taekwondo gym and the survivors who followed them looked embarrassed. They were all from the Dragon Kingdom, and when they heard Stick disparage the Dragon Kingdom people, they looked unhappy, but no one dared to say anything. The strong battle power that Park Sang Sang had shown along the way had scared them, only Wang Ziki had no dissatisfaction. Instead, she enthusiastically wrapped her arms around Park Lifetime's arm and said adoringly a mister. Park is amazing. Park Chingli wrapped his arms around Wang Ziki and said with a smile, Emma's, Ziki's ability is also impressive. A few people from Park's life unceremoniously stepped on the moisture barrier mats, trampling the originally fairly clean mats all over the sludge. The mat was small enough that only a couple of sticks and a few trainees closer to them could stay on it. The others had to find their own places to rest around the area. After the crowd rested for 10 minutes, Park Shengcheng took out another crossbow and took a few people to the dense forest next to him and turned around. An actually dog luckily caught a mutant rabbit of more than 30 pounds. Park Ikari bragged proudly look, a rabbit. Wang Ziki was even more pleasantly surprised, Mr. Park is too good. Quickly. Then who? Go get some firewood. She just felt her mouth water. A few cadets gathered a pile of branches and piled them on the ground. Wang Ziki took out a lighter and after striking the fire, with a point of his finger, the yellow fire unexpectedly flew into midair. 
Wang Ziki's face turned slightly white, and the fire turned blue, which represented high temperature. The fire emanated a terrifyingly high temperature, and from a distance of two meters it felt as if his cheeks were roasting raw. Wang Ziki only felt her physical strength rapidly depleting. She didn't dare to delay. Her finger pointed again. Blue flames flew into the damp branches and leaves. Under the high temperatures, the damp branches ignited instantly, emitting choking white smoke. Wang Ziki stopped. It hadn't been physically restored. It was a few seconds of work, and then the tired face blanched again. As she stopped, the flames turned back to red and the temperature dropped. The crowd looked at her enviously. This alien power is awesome. Even Park's life is no exception. The heat of this fire is so high that it can melt even steel. Not only can they be used to light fires, but they can also be used in combat. This dragon country woman's luck is too good. If this flame ability is given to me, I'll be invincible. What a waste to give her. Immediately after lighting the fire, the two trainees continued to throw in twigs and leaves. The other two skinned the rabbit, cut it into large chunks of meat, threaded it on a branch and roasted it. Wang Ziki stared daggers at the roasted rabbit, his mouth watering. Suddenly, there was a roaring sound of an engine from the side. Car, Wang Ziki turned her head in surprise. Only a huge tank opened up in the red mist. The tank's engine roared and let out a violent roar as it drove past the crowd. Behind the tanks, there were two converted RVs and a converted Humvee. The crowd looked dumbfounded. The military is here? Wang Ziki was first stunned, then immediately recognized the three cars behind him and rejoiced, it's our club car. The license plate of that RV is Young Lee's. Chapter 164, it's an honor for you to have him in your car. Simita. Park Sunsung said in surprise, it's a club car? How did they drive it out? Wang Ziki said excitedly, I don't know. Maybe these cars weren't at the club when the red mist descended and were right next to the escape route so they can drive out now. I'll go check it out. Maybe there's someone I know. Wang Ziki's eyes were glowing. As long as you can see someone you know, you should be able to hobble a ride. She was a small part of the rich kids at the club, and a lot of the guys liked her. Other than that bitch Song Ching Dai, she's just the prettiest. Thinking of Song Ching Dai, Wang Ziki hated her guts. Song Ching Dai has always been the club's brightest star. Being prettier than her and having a richer family than hers, she stole a lot of the limelight. Wang Ziki stood next to Song Ching Dai like a little follower. Humph, now that I'm a shifter. Song Ching Dai, cut, probably all dead. Wang Ziki quickly straightened her hair and said oh, this RV belongs to Li Xiao, and that Hummer belongs to the Jin family's second. Both of them are on good terms with me. I've heard that Li Xiao's elders serve as high-ranking officials in the military division, so I guess this tank is here to save Li Xiao. Park's whole life cheered up as well. He is, after all, a foreigner, and in today's chaotic times, actually very fearful. It would be nice to lean on the military. Who knows that the official dragon state is very friendly to foreigners. Go, let's go after them. Yes, immediately, Park Sangsung took a few stick athletes and jogged over with Wang Ziki. A few minutes later, the convoy was seen pulling up to the side of the road and forming a circle. Vaguely you could see a few people in uniform inside, but they were a bit petite. Park was secretly delighted with his life, sure enough. It's the military. He hurried over with the crowd, and just as he approached a car, a man stepped out of it looking at the two men faintly. Jiang Fan frowned, get out of here. He looked at the several people in front of him in appearance and appearance. It was exactly the same few sticks just now. The woman but not like. It seems to be a dragon country woman. But Jiang Fan couldn't be sure. After all, the sticks plastic surgery sorcery was known throughout the world. The woman and the lead man were shifters. Jiang Fan scanned the two people's supernatural light clusters. The man was a body strengthening type. And the woman's ability was about related to flames. Wang Ziki, age, 23, quality, 7. 5 points, slim and slender, women's ethics, 6 points, open style of life, overall rating, 6, ding. Does not meet minimum system requirements. A woman from the Dragon Kingdom mixing with a group of rods made Jiang Fan instinctively feel a little disgusted. Park Sung Sang held his head high and said in raw Chinese, Sir, we are both Taekwondo athletes from the Republic of Big Stick. You are in the military. Right. And I request that we be taken to the 910th unit station and I will apply for a reward for you from your commanding officer. Sure enough, it's a stick, or are you learning taekwondo? Jiang Fan became even more fed up, fuck off. Park's entire life paled. West 8. Just then, the Jiang Fan women also curiously gathered around. Park life was just about to speak when he looked dumbfounded. The group of soldiers we just saw were actually all beautiful women. Why are they in uniform? Could it be the military bigwig civilian troop? Definitely. West 8. The loner's officers are too corrupt. Park Sang Sang immediately realized that the young man in front of him should be the military big brother's confidant, helping the big brother to send the woman back to unit 910. Wang Ziki, 
however, saw an acquaintance and was surprised, Song Qingdai, you're here too? Wang Ziki surprise, why is this bitch wearing a uniform too? Song Qingdai also saw Wang Ziki and couldn't help but frown, Jiang Fan said indifferently, you know her well? Song Qingdai said in disgust, brother Jiang, her name is Wang Ziki, and she's changed eight boyfriends in three years, Wang Ziki's face changed violently, fearing that Park Shang Shang would dislike him, he immediately broke into a shout, bitch, don't you believe what you're told? Song Qingdai was good for nothing and cursed at each other, slut. Don't be afraid to be told if you dare to do it. A stick jumped out and exclaimed, this is former Taekwondo runner-up Park Iki of the Big Stick Republic, and it's an honor for you to have him in your car. Smitty, Jiang Fan couldn't understand the Simian language, but being surrounded by a bunch of sticks gabbing about it annoyed him to no end. Don't talk to me in bird language. Jiang Fan cursed and then stopped his foot squarely. Boom. Stick screamed miserably and flew backwards, falling into the red mist unconscious. Park was furious for life, Saihachi, you're looking for death, he was about to strike, Wang Ziki, however, moved first, and she suddenly took out her lighter and lit it on fire, immediately afterward, the flames drifted into midair while turning into blue flames that emitted a terrifyingly high temperature, the women were startled and took a step back, Jiang Fan instead rose in interest and looked at the fire curiously, this woman can actually control flames, flames should be considered an energy, and this control is similar to controlling your own source energy, only, one could only control the source energy to move through the body, and the sword energy left the body and went out of control, this woman is different, she can control the fire outside her body, go to hell, Wang Ziki glared fiercely at Song Qingdai and snapped her fingers, instead, the blue flames flew towards Jiang Fan like lightning, the sticks were ecstatic, this man is dead, they had all seen Wang Ziki use fire to kill people, the fire was extremely fast, and as soon as they touched it, they would be set on fire and burned alive, dying a horrible death, what a sinister woman, Jiang Fan laughed coldly and dodged over in a good manner, the 200 plus physique gave him superhuman reaction speed, Jiang Fan didn't panic at all, and even had time to scrutinize the flames in the air, in his perception, the flames emitted a bright light throughout, obviously gathering a huge amount of energy, of course, it's still not even close to your own energy infused steel balls, the sticks don't know, thinking it's just a coincidence that they ducked through the first time, barking with excitement, kill him, Nishihachi, what luck, go after him, burn him, ha ha ha, dodging is useless, one can't be faster than fire, the fire chased, Jiang Fan dodged, as he ducked, he scrutinized the fire, it was the first time he had ever observed an elemental system psychic ability up close, and he had to get a good look at it, Wang Ziki was still very proud, and soon realized how the fire could not catch up with each other, after 10 seconds or so, she was exhausted, the bats can't call it out, they then realized that the man across the street seemed to be particularly fast? Jiang Fan had also seen enough to understand this supernatural ability. Can you douse this flame with water? With a movement in his mind, he unleashed the water condensation in the center of the flames. The blue fire went out quickly. Wang Ziki was dumbfounded. Why did the fire go out? Jiang Fan, however, was disappointed. It looks like it's just an ordinary flame. I thought it was the legendary Samadhi flame or something like that. Wan Ziki took out his lighter again and lit the fire. Jiang Fan once again unleashed congealed water. The fire went out again. Wan Ziki was confused. Could it be that I'm too tired? Not enough stamina? Relight the fire. Extinguish again. Wan Ziki was anxious. The bats are baffled. What the hell is this? A pistol suddenly appeared in Jiang Fan's hand. Aimed at Wan Ziki enough playing. Wang Ziki was startled. No. Don't shoot. I'm Wang Jia's daughter. My grandpa is. Bang. Wang Ziki fell to the ground on his back and died in peace. Chapter 165, Third 9 Star Ability. Willing to transform armor. The sticks are going crazy. Did you really shoot? Didn't they say that soldiers in the Dragon Kingdom are very cautious about shooting? She's a friend of our big stick republic. Your sister see. How dare you shoot? Park Shingli's body suddenly emitted a golden light and rushed over with a violent shout, Saihachi. Die for me. He could already tell that the man across from him was a speed alien. The physical quality of the speed alien must be very poor. As long as he was hit by himself, he would be dead. Park has been confident all his life. His body rotated 360 degrees in the air, and a dashing and handsome whirlwind kick was delivered to Jiang Fan's head with a gust of wind. The bats cheered again. Senior Park, beat him to death. Only then did Jiang Fan realize that this stick's psychic ability seemed to be the same as Zhou Tianhao's, covered in golden light and with an enhanced physique. But, bastard, why are you jumping so high? Jiang Fan's figure flickered strangely, Park's eyes flashed before him for a moment, and he was horrified to realize that his enemy was gone. Immediately afterward, a huge force came from behind him, 
followed by a heavenly rotation, and his consciousness was completely plunged into darkness. In the eyes of the sticks, the young man suddenly appeared behind Park Sungsung, reached out and grabbed Park Sungsung's clothes, yanking him down hard from midair, while turning his body upside down in an instant, and slamming his head down hard towards the ground. Click. A toothachingly loud fracture followed. Park's head sank into his chest cavity for the rest of his life. The sticks are freaking out. They finally realized that this young man was a more powerful alien than Park had ever been in his life. A man yelled in stick language in panic, We are citizens of the Republic of Big Stick. Killing us is going to cause a diplomatic incident. Bang. 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 In the blink of an eye, several of the sticks were all dead. Zhang Fan calmly put away his pistol, I told you I don't understand bird language. Buster. The women were a little scared, but they were largely adapted to the killing scenes. Song Qingdai asked worriedly should we hide the body. Wang Ziki's family is still a bit powerful. Zhang Fan said calmly, don't worry, there won't be any bodies left soon. With so much meat, the people in the back won't waste it. All the women had chills in their hearts. A few minutes later, the convoy started again. Survivors following the convoy found the bodies of several people. Soon the bodies were stripped of all food, supplies, and clothing. Ten minutes later, the body was also dragged into the dense forest. Not long after, the eerie aroma of meat wafted out of the dense forest. There were two more breaks in the middle of the day and no further storms were encountered. Just after 1 p.m., the convoy passed through another resupply point. This supply point apparently had a riot last night as well. There's blood everywhere. There were very few bodies, though, I don't know who they went into. All the survivors watched the convoy warily, fearing that it was Troop 910 coming to enforce the law. A few survivors even fled hastily into the dense forest without saying a word. These guys, obviously, didn't do anything good last night. Zhang Fan was too lazy to bother with these people and looked at the early hour, keep moving. We're not resting at the supply point tonight. It's too chaotic. The women responded. The convoy passed by the barbed wire fence of the supply point and drove slowly past, to the complicated stairs of the survivors. The convoy was sparsely followed by a few hundred survivors, exhausted and still following with gritted teeth. These survivors are almost exclusively young and strong males, women. The old and the young have long been left behind. Tank convoys go even slower than most people can keep up with. When the survivors at the supply point saw this, some of the smart ones immediately went up to climb up and follow. Lu Xiaolong's team was among them. His men looked at the supply point and gasped, Brother Long, let's, let's take a break. There are supply points here. We might be able to get some food. Lu Xiaolong was also sweating profusely, but he firmly shook his head, can't, must follow. There were quite a few complaints in the group, but Lu Xiaolong's prestige was so high that the crowd still had to yet keep up. RV. Zhang Fan looked at Lu Xiaolong and the others and continued to eat the wool weapon fruit. After another moment, he finally heard the long overdue beat frowny face ding. Wool weapon upgraded to 9 stars, full level. Can't be upgraded any further. 9 stars now. Finally 9 stars. Zhang Fan immediately opened the alien energy panel frowny face weapon of will, 9 stars, full level. Can't be upgraded any further. You can expend energy to condense an indestructible weapon of will within your body which must be condensed to a certain level before you can take it out. When a weapon of will is brought out, you can enhance its properties by incorporating various substances into the weapon. When an ability dies around you, you can devour fragments of its will to speed up the condensation of will weapons. The shape of your weapon of will can change at will. You can condense weapons of will into armor. Will plus 40. Zhang Fan was overjoyed and immediately said a pull over and take a break. The convoy slowed to a stop. The survivors who were struggling to follow the car finally breathed a sigh of relief and all of them sat paralyzed on the ground, not caring about the mud on the ground, only thinking about grasping the time to regain their strength. Lu Xiaolong and the others also stopped. They had been following along all morning and had gotten used to the rhythm. Walk for half an hour and rest for 10 or 20 minutes. Lu Xiaolong said smugly you see? Although that Mr. Zhang didn't say it on his lips, he still takes care of us in his heart. Otherwise, why would he take a break once every half hour and just keep driving? The men thought it made sense and talked about it, right? Although Mr. John's face is cold, his heart is still good. If we don't stop, we won't be able to keep up anyhow. Isn't the convoy slowing down to protect these survivors? Besides Lu Xiaolong and the others, the survivors who had been following had guessed the reason, and all of them were grateful to Zhang Fan. As for the survivors who couldn't keep up and were left behind, most of them had no complaints. The team has given everyone a chance, and you can't blame anyone else for your lack of stamina. In this day and age, a little kindness has become the greatest luxury. Zhang Fan was puzzled to see that the light on these survivors behind him was getting greener and greener, and the red light had almost disappeared cleanly. Zhang Fan couldn't figure out what this group of people were thinking and was too lazy to care. 
he checked to make sure that there were no aliens 100 meters around. Then he said, you guys rest where you are. I'll be back in a bit. Zhang Fan walked into the dense forest and didn't stop until there was no one around for a hundred meters. There were no particularly powerful mutated animals around either. Just in a tree, hiding a three meter long mutant civet cat. Despite its size, its brightness was average and it didn't have any special abilities, indicating that its battle power was far inferior to the orange cat from the Yida Mall. This civet cat might be a great danger to other survivors, but to Zhang Fan, who had a super high physique, it was no threat at all. Zhang Fan pulled out his will heavy sword, and with a movement in his heart, the heavy sword melted like a candle and covered his entire body like a tidal wave, turning into a mighty battle armor that shone with silver light. Chapter 166, Xia Evening Ching, Null Chapter 167, You Don't Think Saving People Is Free, Do You? Xia Evening Ching wore short, ear-length hair, had fair skin, was mature and voluptuous, and had a plump figure. Even when she was on the run, she tried to keep her face neat and tidy and even wore two gold studs in her ears, only having just come back from the dead with a terrified expression. It looked different. Zhang Fan ordered, stop the car. The convoy slowed to a stop. Zhang Fan opened the door and jumped out of the car, walking straight towards Xia Evening Ching. The women were curious, and this time it was short. However, when he saw the beautiful Xia Evening Ching outside the car, he was instantly enlightened. Brother Jiang has taken a liking to her. She's so lucky. We're going to have more sisters again. Ugh. The competition is getting bigger and bigger. Jiang hasn't been to my room in days. The two of us united. Ah, we'll definitely be able to attract Jiang over at night. He he he. Seeing Jiang Fan approaching, Xia Evening Ching made an effort to stand up and carefully said a sir. My name is Xia Evening Ching. Thank you very much for saving my life. Jiang Fan nodded flatly, then recklessly looked Xia Evening Ching up and down. The aggressive gaze made Xia Evening Harvest a little unhappy. However, she instantly determined that the man in front of her was definitely a powerful empath. Clean clothes, good health, a rosy complexion, and a complete lack of other survivors' gray heads. See Evening glanced quickly at the RV again. A couple of women in military uniforms were looking out curiously from the windows of the car. The women were also very clean, healthy, and even wore elaborate makeup and had meticulously groomed hair. And, each one is a top-notch beauty. It's like the female companions that rich men bring out in times of peace. Xia Evening Ching was stunned. The difficulty of trying to provide this standard of living to a group of people in the Red Mist era is almost unimaginable. How did this happen? Is it some kind of psychic ability? Then associating it with the tank in front of him, Xia Evening Harvest thought suspiciously, could it be a big shot from the military? Zhang Fan saw Xia Evening Ching's gaze and the rapid changes in the red, yellow, and green light on her body, and pointed at the caravan and laughed lightly want to live like this? Let's make a deal. You come with me and I'll guarantee you a lifetime of food and clothing. Without saying a word, Zhang Fan directly took out his material life to tempt Xia Evening Cheng. He had no interest in pulling with women. In the post-apocalyptic world of death at every turn, it's better for everyone to be direct. It's a deal. Uncle Wang next to him was dumbfounded. That straightforward? Xia Evening Cheng also changed her face and suppressed her anger. I'm sorry. I'm not who you think I am. Zhang Fan wasn't embarrassed at all. He just glanced at Xia Evening Cheng calmly. The woman had psychic powers, good abilities of her own, and was obviously doing well now. Once she gets to the 910th, she'll be able to mix it up in the middle and upper ranks. No need to be a canary for men. Zhang Fan didn't force himself well then. You stay with me for the night, and count it as the price I pay for saving you. Xia Evening Qing's face turned ugly, but she couldn't fathom Zhang Fan's strength and cautiously said a sir. That's not appropriate. After the end of the world, she met quite a few men who peeped at her body. Zhang Fan was not the first. Uncle Wang got angry too, young man. What are you babbling about? Do you know who Evening Star is? Her family has elders who serve as senior officers in the Kyoto City forces. I advise you not to go overboard. Kyoto City? Zhang Fan laughed coldly. Kyoto City as a whole has been out of touch for a long time. You wouldn't be unaware of that, would you? Maybe it's not even certain that the city was exterminated. Kyoto City as a whole is out of touch? Really? Xia Evening Harvest was taken aback. Zhang Fan stopped talking about Kyoto City and took out a fruit of enlightenment, plus an alien fruit for your overnight stay. Xia Wanqing was both surprised and humiliated. Alien fruit. It really is an alien fruit. She'd taken one, so of course she knew what it did. What's more, this man could take out an alien fruit with his hand. His strength was simply unfathomable. Xia Evening Qing dared not offend Zhang Fan even more and politely said, I'm sorry. I don't think that's appropriate. Zhang Fan's face went cold, you don't think saving lives is free, do you? The two men stuttered. Xia Evening Glow tensed up. Uncle Wang was about to speak. 
Jiang Fan took out a pistol with an expressionless face. Uncle Wang shut up immediately. Xia Evening Harvest panicked, her mind spinning rapidly, I have a set of gold jewelry in my bag, and I buy my life with gold. Now gold is of no use. Zhang Fan disdained it and loaded the gun slowly. Uncle Wang shivered. Xia Evening Ching's heart was cold. This kind of situation was too common in the end times. All she could do was beg bitterly, is the evening okay? I, I have something else going on right now. Zhang Fan narrowed his eyes at her, you want to run? Xia Evening Harvest hurriedly waved her hand, no. I've lost my companions and I want to get them back first. Uncle Wang is desperate. How can anyone believe such a retarded reprieve? Who knows? Jiang Fan actually nodded his head after thinking for a while, okay. Come at seven. Really agreed? Xia Evening Ching was pleasantly surprised. She didn't know what the other party was thinking and hurriedly took Uncle Wang away. It was only after running for a dozen meters or so, with the red mist obscuring her vision, that Xia Wanqing breathed a sigh of relief. Uncle Wang was confused, why did he agree? Xia Evening Harvest said with a gloomy face, maybe he has a tracking aspect and wants to play cat and mouse. Uncle Wang said fearfully, so what do we do? Xia Evening Harvest hesitated for a moment, you guys go ahead and I'll go hide in the woods for the night. He must be going to Troop 910 as well, and can't possibly be wasting time with me. Now there's nothing to do but beat a dead horse. She couldn't figure out what Jiang Fan's ability was, and could only hope that the other party wasn't willing to waste too much time on herself. It was at this point that the two came across a group of separated companions. After Xia Wanqing said her business, Uncle Wang and some of the survivors planned to stay with her. The road is too dangerous, and it's hard to make it to Resident 910 alive without an alien. And a lot of people were so tired from walking that they would have wanted to rest for the night. Some were afraid of getting into trouble by the people from the tank convoy and quietly abandoned Xia Evening Jiang Fan returned to the car, and the women were curious, Brother Jiang, why did you let her go? Jiang Fan said calmly, a bit naughty and needs to be educated. Su Mengqi and several women gloated and laughed. She's going down. In fact, Jiang Fan thought a little deeper. Xia Wanqing's resistance was heavy. Even if he took her body by force, he might be hostile to her. Then Jiang Fan would have to kill her afterward. Jiang Fan wasn't sure about her relationship with her other companions, and in case she had a closest relative, she might even ponder revenge on herself in the future. It's only prudent to kill them all. How will we draw her companions out if we don't set her free? Jiang Fan calmly watched Xia Evening Cheng and the others re-enter the dense forest. Trying to hide from me? Did it work? Seeing that she had walked to a distance of 150 meters from the convoy and was still continuing to go deeper, Jiang Fan said, "I station yourself here tonight, and I will leave for a little while." The women understood. Tang Shuelua said softly, "Brother Jiang, the situation outside is not safe. Bring the people back. Don't spend the night outside." Jiang Fan laughed. "Don't worry." When he finished, he crossed the wagon and walked into the red mist. Chapter 168. Dense Forest. Xia Evening Harvest walked with a group of people, one foot deeper than the other. Sun Lianhao was scolded by Uncle Wang. Did you boys just throw the stretcher? Damn it. M.S. Xia saved you twice. Is this how you repay her? Sun Lianhao cried out, Uncle Wang. I was too scared to control it. Uncle Wang gave him a hard punch, hammering Sun Lianhao so hard that he sat down and cursed loudly scared. I didn't even let go of my hand when I was behind you. If that big centipede wanted to eat it would have eaten me. So you're scared shitless. Apologize to Mr. Xia. Sun Lianhao was angry in his heart. But when he saw Xia Evening Ching's icy eyes, he wisely shut his mouth. In order to stay on this team, he had to keep his head down, Mr. Xia. I was wrong. I definitely won't dare next time. Xia Evening Ching glanced at him coldly. I've forgotten all about what just happened. If Sun Lianhao hadn't left himself behind. He wouldn't have gotten tangled up in that rascal from the tank convoy and wouldn't have gotten into so much trouble. The group of people looked at Sun Lianhao on the ground with contempt and crossed over to him. One even kicked him. Sun Lianhao's eyes were on fire, gripping the dirt on the ground with all his might. His heart impotent and furious, shit, shit. He saw the group fading into the red mist before he hurriedly climbed to his feet and grimly followed the crowd. Slowly, he listened to understand what was really going on. An alien powerhouse who drives a tank saves Xia Evening Ching but wants her body. This bitch didn't know what she had used to trick the strong man into letting her go for a while. She fled into the dense forest for fear of being caught up by a strong man. Sun Lianhao silently followed the crowd, making up his mind, I'm going to tell on the strong man. The crowd found an abandoned store and cleaned it up after a brief inspection, preparing to station themselves there. Xia Evening Ching assigned work to the crowd. Sun Lianhao whispered, I'm going to the bathroom. Uncle Wang said impatiently, lazy people pee a lot. Sun Lianhao was annoyed in his heart. As if guessing Sun Lian's thoughts, Xia Evening Ching stared at him for a while and suddenly said oh, there might be danger in the forest. Chen Yong, you guys go together and bring your knives. 
Chen Yang stood up with his knife with a fierce smile, good. He was Xia Evening Harvest's personal driver and had been following her ever since the red mist descended. Everyone looked at Sun Lianhao in a different way. Sun Lianhao's heart trembled. He knew that Xia Evening Qing was beginning to suspect himself. Now that's trouble. The entire team looked up to Xia Evening Qing. If she tried to get herself killed, she wouldn't know how to die. Sun Lianhao hurriedly said, I don't think it's too urgent. I shouldn't have to go. Xia Evening Harvest didn't force it. Well, Chen Yong. Sun Lianhao wants to go later. So you accompany him. Chen Yong said in a Jared voice, okay, Mr. She. Chen Yong followed Sun Lianhao without hesitation. Wherever Sun Lianhao goes, he goes, always carrying a knife in his hand. Sun Lianhao was about to cry in fear, and looking for an unoccupied corner, he decisively kneeled down and begged Brother Chen. Brother Chen, you spare me. I really threw the stretcher down because I was scared. I really wasn't pitting her. Who knows that Chen Yong's eyes flashed with a strange light. Staring at Sun Lianhao for half a day before whispering, Sun Lianhao, let's go find that strong man together. Give Xia Wanqing to him, and we'll split the benefits equally. Ha! Huh? Sun Lianhao was taken aback, thinking that Chen Yong was dishing out his own words, Brother Chen. I really didn't think so. Chen Yong, however, put the knife back, and as he pulled Sun Lianhao up, he whispered, I mean it. Sun Lianhao was pleasantly surprised and incredulous, Chen Yu? Chen Yong sneered, I saw that convoy of tanks too. That's the life of a human being. I don't want to follow Xia Evening Ching to drill the forest and walk through the muck anymore. It's called a good bird choosing a tree nest. Chen Yong has an unspoken concern. Unless that strong man was a fool, how could he let Xia Wanqing leave? Since he was willing to release it, it meant that the other party was sure to catch Xia Evening Harvest again, maybe even rushed over already. Since this was the case, if one followed Xia Evening Harvest any longer, one would easily be dragged to death by her. It would be better to just sell Xia Evening Ching. Sun Lianhao finally believed that Chen Yong had really rebelled and was overjoyed, good, damn Xie Evening Ching, not giving me any face at all, doesn't she just think she has a supernatural ability, right, a woman is there every day to tell us what to do, but the one surnamed Wang doesn't object, if we rely on these two guys to command the team, we'll all die sooner or later, yeah, if it wasn't for Xie Evening Ching who insisted that we rush at night and rest during the day, we wouldn't have to go into the forest, and Lu Botao wouldn't have been bitten to death by that big centipede. After cursing Xia Evening Harvest a few times together and establishing a united front, the two of them ran towards the escape route. Zhang Fan had been following slowly behind and soon spotted the two running towards the outside. Aha! Uh -huh. Why are they suddenly green? Zhang Fan curiously stood still, waiting for the two to come over on their own. Sun Lianhao was startled to see a man suddenly appear in front of him. You, who are you? Chen Yong, on the contrary, reacted quickly. Healthy body clean clothes, not even much mud on the shoes, indicating not much walking, he fawned, big brother, you're the strong man from the tank caravan, right, Jiang Fan laughed, brilliant, Chen Yong immediately followed, big brother, the Xia Wanqing you're looking for is over there, I'll take you there, Sun Lianhao also understood and hurriedly said, it's lucky for Xia Evening Qing to be seen by you, how dare she run, too ungrateful, he was sincere in what he said, in his opinion, since the other party had such a good material standard of living, what was Xia Wanqing running for? Isn't it brain dead? In this moment, he just hated that he wasn't a woman. Otherwise, one would have stripped naked and jumped on it voluntarily. Oh, Jiang Fan's mouth contained an inexplicable smile, very well, lead the way. Chen Yong walked attentively at the front, big brother. This way, Jiang Fan asked as he walked, what is Xia Evening's status? Sun Lin Ho replied, she's a sunshine fund boss, and her family is rumored to be high up in the Kyoto military, so those old men and women listen to her anyway. Oh, are any of your group closer to her? Nope, we're all just neighbors, colleagues, and nodding acquaintances. But Chen Yong is her driver. Sun Lianhao sorrowfully shaded Chen Yong. Son of a bitch. Chen Yong glared at him in defense, big brother. Xia Evening Cheng is too ungrateful. I'm abandoning my darkness. Sun Lianhao scowled. Jiang Fan smiled without saying anything. What is Xia Evening's ability? Sun Lianhao grabbed it, summon a phantom. Exactly like her. Chen Yong followed and added, Mr. Xia. Oh no Xia Evening, she asked to move at night. I think her powers would be more powerful at night. At night? Jiang Fan secretly noted it down. The three of them quickly arrived at Xia Evening Ching and the other's quarters. While the crowd was busy, Jiang Fan suddenly stepped out of the red mist carrying a gun Xia Evening. You disappoint me. Xia Evening Ching was startled. Her pretty face is white as frost you. You, how do you? Immediately after, she saw Sun Lianhao and Chen Yang behind Jiang Fan and instantly realized and said angrily, you two traitors. Chen Yong was a bit embarrassed. He was considered a direct subordinate of Xia Evening Qing, 
And this kind of selling out was not honorable to say. Sun Lianhao, however, shamelessly said, Mr. Xia, big brother is giving you face by looking at you. The survivors were also startled and ran over to see Zheng Fan, so they understood what had happened. That strong man is coming, he still has a gun. The crowd was alarmed and at a loss for words. Chapter 169, I can only see two more people in my car. So you guys can choose two people by yourselves Uncle Wang hurriedly ran over. And when he saw Sun Lianhao and Chen Yong standing behind Zhang Fan, he burst into a rage you two sons of bitches. Mr. Xia saved you a few times, and you actually did this kind of thing. Sun Lianhao simply let go, what damn it. Old undead, if I hadn't pulled you yesterday, you'd have broken your leg. Chen Yong also stopped his neck and cursed at Uncle Wang, surname Wang, pretending to be Nima. You old bastards, I've long been sick of seeing you. Every day you do the least and eat the most. And you're still flaunting your former status? Times have changed. Zhang Fan watched with interest as a few people cursed at each other. Xia Evening Harvest bowed her head, but in reality, her mind was spinning rapidly, thinking about how to get out of the situation. An old woman, however, saw an opportunity and stepped forward a young man. My name is Deng Hongyan, the real mom of the vice mayor of Magic Sea City. You also want to go to Resident 910, right? Zhang Fan was noncommittal, so? The old woman seemed to see angling her neck and towing the line, you let me in the car. Get me to 910 resident, and I'll ask for a position for you. You're guaranteed to soar in resident 910. Jiang Fan lost his smile. This old thing is still living in the past? You're the one who promised. What's your guarantee? When the crowd saw Jiang Fan smile, they thought he was moved and immediately grabbed the words on my grandfather as the head of the National Security Agency. Just let me get in the car and I'll help you talk to my grandfather. My uncle is a political and legal officer in the southern province. My cousin serves as the Grand Secretary of the Magic Sea City Council. Zhang Fan looked at Xia Evening Cheng oddly. Good lord. This bitch saved a bunch of executives family members. Her heart is in the right place. Xia Evening Cheng also looked at Zhang Fan nervously. If Zhang Fan was willing to save the relatives of these high-ranking officials, he himself might be able to get out safely. Who knows? Deng Hongyan saw Zhang Fan's interest in Xia Evening Cheng, and she also heard why Zhang Fan chased over. So she immediately said Evening Harvest. It's not that auntie is talking about you. This gentleman has a good appearance. Following him won't bury you. Ha ha ha. Xia Evening Ching's eyes widened in disbelief. Auntie Dun. What are you talking about? Others chimed in. Mr. Xia. The man is unmarried and the woman is unmarried. Following this gentleman will not be a disadvantage. Evening. I see this gentleman likes you quite a bit. What kind of era is this now? You guys try to get along first. If it's not suitable, then you can split up. This group is full of people who want to get on the bus and live the good life. Xia Evening Ching was struck by lightning and said angrily, I'll admit, I saved you guys for selfish reasons, but I saved you guys in the end and took care of everyone along the way. You guys are selling me out here? Some were embarrassed. Others perked up, Mr. Xia speaks so harshly, how can you call it a sale? Follow this gentleman for a good life. Xia Evening Ching, you can't be too selfish. How can you make Mr. hate everyone because of something you did alone? Xia Wanqing's heart was suddenly ashen. The faces of the people in front of her were beyond disgusting. Why? Why? I saved you. The crowd laughed and laughed. Stop it. What do you mean you saved us? Your psychic ability is just a useless phantom. Don't you know that yourself? We're in a partnership for survival. What's with the big mouth of a little girl who can't lift a hand or a shoulder? We'll be the ones searching for the food. You'll just sit back and enjoy it. Humph. No one asked you to save them. Don't you know what you're saving us for? Shut up. Tung Hongyan stopped the crowd with a stern voice. Shit, are you all stupid? How can you say such a thing? We're not even at resident 910 yet. Once Xia Wanqing climbs into that man's bed, it's easy to get us killed. Don't you know how powerful pillow talk is? The crowd also reacted, realizing that they had slipped up, and snapped their mouths shut. Xia Evening Qing was just a woman in her 20s, and they, as a group, were usually pampered and flattered by everyone. When do you have to take orders from a little girl? It's hard not to hold your breath. When you talk about it, you forget about it. Xia Wanqing looked at the familiar crowd as if she was recognizing them for the first time. Zhang Fan looked at Xia Evening Ching with interest, well, are you going to come back with me? Or am I going to kidnap you? Xia Evening Ching tightly bit her red lips, I can go with you, but these two guys have to die. She pointed hatefully at Sun Lianhao and Chen Yong. The two men were startled e big brother. Don't you listen to her. Big brother, I really want to hang out with you. Zhang Fan suddenly grabbed Xia Evening Ching's collar and said coldly, Evening Xia, you want to command me to do something? Xia Evening Ching's face turned white. This man in front of her was completely different from the other people she had seen. How could he just flip out when he said he would? No, I didn't. I just, 
Oomph. Jiang Fan threw his hand and pushed her heavily to the ground. Sun Lian Hao and Chen Yong sighed in relief, their hearts hating Xie Evening Ching even more. Jiang Fan looked at the crowd, I can only fit two more people in my car, so push two of your own. Sun Lian Hao and Chen Yong's faces changed dramatically, the crowd also looked at each other. This naked provocation, of course, they heard, but now it's insoluble. The crowd looked at each other with inevitable wariness Chen Yong suddenly slashed Sun Lian Hao's neck with a backhanded slash. Pust. Blood splattered three feet high. Sun Lian Hao covered his neck and flopped to the ground, unable to even scream, blood gushing madly from his mouth and nose. Chen Yong's movements seemed to have flipped a switch. The crowd was fighting at once. Sticks, wrenches, rocks. There was a series of screams. Xia Wanqing looked dumbfounded. The companions she had worked so hard to save had killed each other without mercy. One more ruthless than the other. She had expected everyone to be a little nasty, but not serious. And it turned out to be completely unexpected. Xia Evening Ching couldn't help but shiver. If she got in their way due to a conflict of interest, would they treat her this way too? Xia Evening Ching looked at the cultivated field in front of her. Reason told her the answer. She still said in a heartfelt manner at you, why did you let them kill each other? Jiang Fan said calmly, did I say that? I just told them there were only two seats and they were the ones who wanted to fight. Xia Evening Ching looked at Jiang Fan with fear as if she was looking at the devil. This man is horrible. After a few minutes, there were only two bruised and battered people left at the scene. One of them turned out to be Chen Yong, and the two of them looked at Jiang Fan eagerly. Sir, can we both do it? Jiang Fan said flatly, oh, I forgot to mention just now that Xia Evening Ching also counts as a spot. The two were dumbfounded. Then it was a quick grapple. Half a minute later, another person was dead. Chen Yong lived to tell the tale. He was covered in wounds and blood. Looking at Jiang Fan with difficulty, he may I, sir? Jiang Fan looked at Xie Evening Ching with interest, this man's life is in your hands, should he stay? You tell me. Chen Yong immediately looked at Xie Evening Ching, his eyes revealing an incomparable attachment to life a mister. Xie, help me, mister. Xie, I was just possessed just now, I will never betray you again. Xie Wanqing's hands and feet trembled, how dare you decide on a person's life yourself. She wanted to let Chen Yong get on the car, and then immediately remembered Chen Yong's betrayal. So she whispered in a complicated mood oh no, don't keep him. Chen Yong instantly stagnated, boundless malice and resentment surfacing on his face as he roared in violent anger, Xia Evening Ching, you're so ruthless, I won't let you go even as a ghost. Chapter 170, Xia Wanqing got on the bus Jiang Fan threw down a dagger and casually said, fine, then you kill him, I'll kill? Xia Evening Ching froze for a moment, but when she saw the look in Jiang Fan's eyes, she knew that the other party's mind was made up. She bent down to pick up the dagger and slowly walked towards Chen Yong, who among the survivors has not had blood on their hands. Chen Yong crawled straight back in fear, but he was so badly injured that he couldn't crawl. Big brother, don't kill me, mister. Xia, mister. Xia, spare me. I just lost my mind. Spare me this time. Help. Big brother, help. I brought you here ah, uh, ah. Uh. Xia Evening Ching, you're so cruel. After Xia Wanqing stabbed a knife, she angrily stabbed a dozen more times. Chen Yong, you actually betrayed me. I pay you $20, 000 a month and you betray me. Asshole. Pust. Pust. Chen Yong didn't move. Xia Wanqing splattered her face and hands with blood. She sat weakly on the floor for a moment. Chen Yong had been her driver for many years and had always been trusted by her. Today's sudden betrayal was unacceptable to Xia Evening Ching. She had always prided herself on being good at mastering hearts and minds. Even after gaining powers, they were polite to these survivors and the team was fairly amicable. In hindsight, it's all a joke. When it comes to profit, everyone will betray her without hesitation. Jiang Fan said calmly, you look angry. Xia Wanqing hung her head in shame, I don't understand. Why would they betray me? If they think I'm dangerous here, just leave me and go. Why would they betray me? I've treated them with sincerity. Why would they do that? Why betray you? Because there are benefits. This group of people are all the smart people you picked out. Jiang Fan looked at the corpses on the ground with a cold smile, his tone not without teasing, no one knows if I'll come until I come after them, if they leave you and go on their own, in case I don't come after them, they will become ordinary people without the shelter of an alien, which is very dangerous, and isn't that a big loss? So, it's better to follow you, but then I came back and they had to find a way out, at that point, selling you was the most favorable option, Xia Evening Ching, as a business elite, how could she not figure this out? She just didn't want to think about it. Jiang Fan stared into her eyes and continued, You say you treat them sincerely? Don't be funny. Xia Evening. You have your own selfishness. Don't you know yourself why you saved a bunch of powerful families? Don't they know? No. Everyone knows what you're up to. 
so don't pull that crap. Essentially, you're taking them to Resident 910 as a trade. You save their lives and expect them to return the favor in the future. But when I come after them, your deal is no longer valid because I will snatch you away. They will naturally make the choice that is best for them. Xia Evening Ching was unceremoniously ripped off her mask by Jiang Fan, making her ashamed and angry, so she could only purse her lips. Jiang Fan calmly watched as the light on her body continued to change. Red, yellow, green. Finally, it settled on a bright and pure yellow color. Doesn't matter, as long as it's not red. Jiang Fan would give her a night's time, and if there wasn't a hint of green tomorrow, then to hell with her. Anyway, what Jiang Fan wanted was just the supernormal ability in her, how she was in person. Jiang Fan didn't care at all. In fact, it was easier for a person with a heart like Xia Evening Ching to survive until now. The naive, the good, the simple, died out a long time ago. Go back with me. Jiang Fan turned his head and left. Xia Evening Ching clenched her fists, still didn't dare to run away and honestly followed Jiang Fan. She didn't know how Jiang Fan had come over. It was the two Chen Yongs who lured them here. Or did Jiang Fan find it himself? Xia Evening Ching thought about it and quickly ran two steps, stretching out her small hand to Jiang Fan. Hey sir, I still don't know your name. Let's get to know each other formally. My name is Xia Evening Ching. I'm the chairman of the Sunshine Fund in the Age of Peace, and my father is the deputy director of the Magic Sea City Financial Management Bureau. Jiang Fan looked at Xia Evening Ching with a smile, not shaking hands with her and said slightly sarcastically, my name is Jiang Fan, and I'm a convenience store clerk in times of peace. Xia Evening Harvest stalled. For the rest of the journey after that, Xia Wanqing didn't dare to speak again and followed Jiang Fan back to the convoy in silence. Once in the car, she was stunned. I can't believe how many beautiful women there are. A dozen women were crammed into a caravan that was filled with the strong odor of perfume. When the women saw Jiang Fan return, they immediately surrounded him, wow. Another sister. It's kinda pretty. Of course. John's strict selection. Of course it won't be bad. Boobs aren't as big as mine. Had ha. Gee, you're such a slut. Ee -e -e, it stinks. How long has it been since you took a bath? Sis, the women turned a blind eye to the blood on Xia Evening Ching's body. This is so normal. It could be that Jiang killed some people and splattered on her. Xia Evening Harvest was overwhelmed and a bit at a loss for words. When she heard the words of someone who thought she stank, she was mortified. What woman doesn't love cleanliness? But where are the conditions for hygiene now? She hadn't bathed in I don't know how long. Xia Evening Ching took a look at the radiant appearance of all the women, and then looked at herself with a disheveled face, a foot of mud, and her clothes were dirty and stained with blood, so she couldn't help but feel ashamed of herself. Jiang Fan said calmly, Tang Shuelua, take Xia Evening Ching to take a bath and change into clean clothes. Xia Evening's ability was to create illusions. There wasn't much frontal combat. If she dared to look for trouble, Tang Shuelua could beat her mother so much that she wouldn't even recognize her. A bath? You can actually take a shower? Xia Evening Harvest was taken aback. But think about it, how do these women keep their bodies clean if they don't shower? But where's all the water? At that moment, a pretty girl came forward. Tang Shuelua laughed evening. Come with me to the other car to take a shower. I see you have a similar figure to me. So wear mine first. Don't worry. It's all new and unworn. Ha? Huh? Oh. Xia Evening Ching followed Tang Shuelua to the other RV in a daze. The RV comes with a small one-piece bathroom. Xia Wanqing was pushed in. She looked at the clean bathroom with her hands and feet. The soles of her own shoes were black and gray, leaving black marks on the clean white floor. The mirror was clean and bright, and she stared blankly at herself in the light. All dirty and beggar-like, out of place in this bathroom. Tang Shuelua suddenly opened the door and shoved in a paper bag. Laughing dirty clothes and shoes go in there. I'll throw them away for you. Shampoo and body lotion are in that niche. Feel free to use them. Don't be polite. We'll be family from now on. Oh yeah, the new clothes are right outside the door. You can wash them more often. Don't worry. No one will get on the bus for an hour. All those little bitches are scrambling to pander in front of Jiang. Too late to come back. Oh, Xia Wanqing hurriedly nodded her head, a bit confused as to what she meant. Tang Shuelua closed the door and said outside the door, I'll meet you outside. Yell for me if you need anything. Okay. Thank you sister Shuero. Xia Wanqing took off her dirty clothes and took a comfortable shower. The hot water poured over her body at over 40 degrees completely washed away her exhaustion and tension, and the stress of her long existence instantly disappeared. The quiet, warmth, and safety in the RV soothed Xia Evening's mind. Although Xia Wanqing coveted this feeling, she knew she was new to the world and didn't dare to wash for too long. After 20 minutes or so, Xia Evening harvest dried her body. She changed into dry, neat new clothes which were still faintly scented, putting on her new socks and shoes again. At this moment, 
Xia Evening Ching only felt soothed and refreshed, as if she had come back to earth. Tang Xuelua brought Xia Evening Ching back to the other caravan. Jiang Fan and the ladies were already full of you to eat. Xia Evening Ching stared dumbfounded at the pile of food that filled the dining table. Four meat dishes, including braised pork and steak, and four vegetables. Drinks include milk, cola, and purified water. There are several staple foods as well. Rice, steamed buns, buns, and noodles. It's so extravagant. Tang Xuelua, however, said without thinking, okay, evening sister, let's eat together. The caravan is too small. A simple meal will do. And when we get to our new home, we'll eat well and receive you. Xia Evening Harvest's mind began to change. If this is the kind of living environment, why would one want to go to Resident 910 and suffer? Does the 910 site provide that environment? Definitely not. Just look at the clear-eyed stupidity on the faces of these women, and you can see how comfortable their lives are. Jiang Fan can even shelter this kind of woman so well. Adding another one of himself is no big deal. So why should he fight for his life in Resident 910? Is it bad to stay here? Chapter 171 Shadow of the Night The Upper Limit of Abnormal Abilities 6A M The woman is still asleep. Jiang Fan got up and left Xie Evening Ching, gently flying up and across the roof of the car. As if she had sensed something, the white fox Shuer looked up at Jiang Fan and then continued to curl up and sleep. Husky white eyes, on the other hand, sleeps through the whole thing, harumphing his ass off. Jiang Fan sat cross-legged on the roof of the car and looked at the system prompt frowny face ding. One day ago, Xia Wanqing consumed a Snickers bar and returned 1600 of them. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. One day ago, Xia Wanqing consumed a bottle of mineral water and returned 1600 bottles. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. One day ago, Xia Wanqing consumed a pack of compressed cookies and returned 1600 packs. It has been put into the carry-on space. Ding. Two days ago, Xia Wanqing consumed a bottle of pure water and returned 1600 bottles. It's been put into the carry-on space. Ding. 21 days ago, Xia Wanqing consumed a fruit of enlightenment, night shadow and returned 1600 of them. It has been put into the carry-on space. Fruit of enlightenment, shadow of night one star. When consumed, you can gain the shadow of night ability. Repeated consumption of the same fruit has a chance to increase the star rating. Shadow of the night? Sure enough it has something to do with the night. Jiang Fan immediately took out a night's shadow fruit and ate it. He instinctively felt that he had an additional ability and immediately opened the panel to check it out. Shadow of the Night, 1 star. You can create a phantom of yourself and share vision with the phantom. At night, your will increases by 100%, will plus 5. Phantom? Jiang Fan's heart stirred. A phantom exactly like him appeared out of nowhere. The hair, the skin, the clothes swinging, are exquisite. No matter how Jiang Fan looked at it, he couldn't tell the difference from himself. Only, in perception, it was a pale mass of energy. At the same time, he felt a slow drain of energy. Jiang Fan touched it with his fingers and found that he had touched air. It's just a phantom. However, the phantom stood motionless and dumbfounded, like a photograph. When Jiang Fan bet his consciousness on the phantom, he realized that he switched his field of vision and looked at himself from the phantom's point of view. This feeling is new. Jiang Fan lifted the phantom's hand as if he were controlling his own arms and legs. Mirage's body is very light, like air, and can float in the air or jump as high as it likes. Jiang Fan used his phantom to touch the ground and found that he also touched the ground. He determined after some testing that the phantom's nose could not smell, his mouth could not speak, and his ears could not hear. It's just a false image that deceives the eye. Vision. As soon as Jiang Fan's heart moved, he controlled the phantom to jump out of the car and quickly run towards the distance. Since this is a phantom, it can achieve a vanishing-like effect on its own, ignoring trees and obstacles to move in a straight line, and is extremely fast. Soon. Mirage ran 200 meters away. Jiang Fan was pleasantly surprised to notice the change. He could now perceive things 200 meters away with the help of his phantom. Phantoms can also use perception. In addition to perception, any vision related ability, Mirage could invoke it. Phantoms can also use mind like and will link. All this time, the will link hadn't worked. And the key was that Jiang Fan had to see the target. But now there was red mist everywhere. And one could only see targets within 200 meters. So close might as well punch it out. Why bother with the will link once more? Now with the phantom, one can take one's eyes to a distance. How far can a phantom get away from me? Jiang Fan controlled the phantom to float towards the dense forest in the distance. 300 meters, 500 meters, 1 kilometer. It was only after walking for about 1, 5 kilometers that Jiang Fan began to feel the signal intermittent. At the same time, as the phantom distance gradually became farther and farther away, 
The rate of energy consumption began to increase. Zhang Fan had to control the phantom to stop at this distance is pretty much the limit. Zhang Fan's heart stirred. The phantom burst open like a bubble and disappeared. Zhang Fan's perspective returned to himself what an amazing ability. Phantoms can drill the ground and are especially good as scouts. Satisfied with another useful ability, Zhang Fan stood up. Ha, huh? why are you a little tired? Zhang Fan inexplicably felt a little tired in his body. Is it a side effect of summoning phantoms? Zhang Fan carefully experienced it and realized that it wasn't a lack of energy. But his limbs were a bit flabby. It's like not fully recovering after a strenuous workout. Did. Is it too many alien powers? Zhang Fan thought about the information that Li Qingyu had brought. The upper limit of the number of powers is related to the physique. Even though my physique is high, there is definitely an upper limit to the number of powers I can have. Now, with a combined physique of 212 and a total of 17 powers, the body is a bit overwhelmed. An average person with a combined physique of 10 can support 3 powers. It seems that the stress on the body from the number of powers does not increase linearly. Zhang Fan frowned. That's a big one. The number of powers can only be controlled for now, for the time being. The fundamental solution is still to improve physical fitness. However, the physical strengthening had now reached a bottleneck. He had eaten a lot of physique strengthening fruits and still couldn't ascend to the stars. Aside from eating the physique strengthening fruit, there was a second way, which was to eat mutated frog meat. That meat effect is pretty bad though, and it's only raised your constitution by two points so far. If only there was better meat. Zhang Fan collected himself and began to complete today's practice tasks. He first took out a steel bar, quenched it into a steel needle, and then incorporated it into the will weapon. Then, five more energy-infused steel balls were accumulated. Physical strength is half depleted. Zhang Fan then stopped and practiced breathing techniques for an hour. After all the exercises were completed, he also smelled the aroma coming from the car. Zhang Fan returned to the car and ate breakfast with the crowd. Xia Evening Harvest got up in embarrassment. Her cheeks still a little red. It was a relief to see that no one cared about her. Zhang Fan glanced at her. Some green had appeared in her glow and she withdrew her gaze. Xia Wanqing only felt shy, completely unaware that she had walked from the brink of death. She had more of a green glow about her after enjoying a hearty breakfast. Who wants to fight for their life when they can just lay flat in comfort and live? Zhang Fan finished his breakfast and looked to the back of the convoy. Dozens of survivors came out of the dense forest, carrying large packs, and found their way to the back of the caravan. After some careful contact between the two sides, they began to say something heatedly. Zhang Fan curiously cast his attention and heard their conversation, bro. You've been traveling for three days. You don't have much food or water, do you? Here's a bottle of pure water. One, five L of top quality. In exchange for the crossbow in your hand. Snickers, Snickers anyone? Big brother, I'll sleep with you. Just one packet of instant noodles okay? One pack of instant noodles at a time? Are you diamond encrusted there? Three of us brothers together. Half a pack of instant noodles. Good. It was actually here to do business. Zhang Fan rose his interest. Intending to go and have a look and see if there were any good things. Chapter 172 Mobile Traders DR. Lee. Zhang Fan thought about it and called Li Qingxuan off the bus. There's a group of itinerant vendors coming from the back. Let's go check it out. Li Qingxuan was surprised. Merchants? There are still people selling things? If there are people, there will be a deal. Zhang Fan glanced at the crowd. There was an alien in this group of vendors. It seemed to be the auxiliary aspect of the ability. The ability light cluster was very strange. The light cluster form was constantly changing. Zhang Fan had never seen this before, making him very curious. There was also a group of heavily armed men lurking in the dense forest about 100 meters away. The group had formal weapons like fire axes and steel spears, and a few bottles of liquor on their backs for who knows what. There was also a shifter in this group of lurkers, with a very bright body around 20 to 30 combined physique, far more powerful than the average person. At the same time, he actually has three powers, two related to flames and one that creates toxins or something like that. Zhang Fan couldn't figure out if the other party was coming for the group of vendors, or for the survivors, or if the vendor's accomplices were coming to protect the group of vendors, so he was cautious. If it was before, he would have avoided it long ago when he encountered such a situation. He wasn't going to take unnecessary risks. However, with more and more abilities and higher panel attributes, one or two aliens were barely a threat to him. Zhang Fan then planned to explore the situation. Both shifters intrigued him greatly, especially the latter. How did the other party raise their physique to such a high level? Zhang Fan took out a pistol and a bulletproof vest and handed them to Li Qingxuan in a moment you'll be in charge. I'll pretend to be your escort, and I'll let you know in my consciousness if anything happens. Li Qingxuan froze for a moment, in danger? Zhang Fan smiled faintly, anyone who still dares to come out to do business nowadays must be capable of protecting themselves, 
Who knows if they will fail to buy or sell and rob instead? Besides, there's two Xenos over there. It's always right to be careful. Li Qingchuan was a bit nervous, but he quickly calmed down. He lived long enough to learn that survivors were sometimes scarier than nature. Li Qingchuan put on his bulletproof vest, hid his pistol in his clothes, and walked ahead. Jiang Fan, on the other hand, pretended to be his escort and followed Li Qingchuan towards the vendor. When the two arrived at the place, it was already very busy. Hundreds of survivors had gathered in this small clearing, and new survivors kept coming, and the crowd grew. People were coming and going everywhere, just like the old rural fairs. The sounds of bargaining rose and fell. Jiang Fan and Li Qingchuan travel through the crowd, and for a moment it was as if the two of them had gone back in time. It's that the buyers and sellers are a billion points more vicious, all arms not to mention, many with undried blood on them. This group of people, in times of peace, would be blocked and questioned by the police investigation in minutes, but now it has become a very normal situation. Unlike this group of people, the two Jiang Fans were clean and looked very conspicuous. However, Jiang Fan had his gun plainly on his waist, and when the other survivors saw it, they all wisely avoided it, so there were no conflicts along the way. Jiang Fan observed the various stalls and the survivor buyers traveling to and from them with interest. Most of the survivors are poor, and they have almost nothing but the only food they have, but there are always survivors who are wealthy. These were, without exception, all physically strong young males. They were carrying bulging backpacks, leaving black blood stains on their bodies, holding all kinds of weapons, and many of them were still in groups of three or five, with cold faces, not to be messed with at a glance. There were fewer than 50 vendors, all of whom had a strip of black cloth tied uniformly around their arms, and all of whom were supposed to be part of a survivor group. These vendors, each one sells something different. Water, food, weapons, clothing, insecticide, flavored capers and more. There are even women. Yes, a bearded merchant brought three women. The women lowered their eyes and huddled listlessly on a stump. The bearded man shouted at the top of his lungs to come and see it all. Clean women. One pack of instant noodles at a time. Half a loaf of bread? Fuck you. What's the deal with half a loaf of bread? It's got fucking green hair. Right? Expensive? Heaven and earth. Look at their faces. I washed their faces this morning. Proper pure water. Look at that. Look. Motherfucker. The three of you raise your heads. Don't cry. Let the big brothers look at you. Crying? Cry my ass off. You're lucky to be alive right now. An anxious man broke the faces of the three women and finally chose the one with the biggest breasts, and said anxiously here, a packet of instant noodles, where to get it? The bearded man joyfully put away the instant noodles and pointed to the empty space behind him, surrounded by a simple curtain of black cloth. Outside the curtain, there were two menacing men guarding it with watermelon knives. Brothers, get in there, remember, half an hour. The anxious colored man said anxiously, half an hour is enough shit. A watermelon knife man glares, what the hell? you still want to sleep here? The anxious colored man was furious, shit, it used to take more than half an hour o'clock, give me back my instant noodles, I quit, the two watermelon knife men drew their knives and laughed if you don't want to do it, get the hell out of here, you want your money back, no way, the anxious colored man gritted his teeth in anger, but none of his companions were on this side of the room, so he could only resign himself to the fact and huffed and puffed as he dragged the woman into the enclosing curtain, he took his anger out on the woman, and soon the screams of the woman came from the curtain. Ah, lighten up, big brother lighten up. The watermelon knife men didn't care about what was going on inside. One man poked his head in and looked around to make sure the eager man wasn't overplaying his hand, then shrunk back and grinned lewdly this Yakuza is pretty strong. Ha ha ha, Li Qingchuan's face was ugly. As a traditional old Chinese medicine practitioner, he very much couldn't see this kind of behavior, but there was nothing he could do about it. Order has broken down. The weak can only be taken captive and squeezed by the strong. Zhang Fan's expression didn't change much. Isn't that true in times of peace? The top exploits the bottom in every way possible. It's just a veneer of civilization and technology. The weak are the strongest. And this has always been the case in human society. Soon, the two came across one of the most crowded stalls. The booth actually had 10 boxes of tin cans of various flavors. The stall holder, a short man with triangular eyes, shouted at the top of his lungs, wholesale canned goods beef, lunch and meat, and ten other kinds, pick your own, as much as you want, send someone back with me to get it, a group of survivors followed, asking questions and shouting prices, wholesale canned goods, why do they have so many cans, you're still willing to sell this kind of good stuff, Li Qingchuan glanced at Jiang Fan in surprise, Jiang Fan calmly, glanced, at the stall owner, the very same alien with the auxiliary ability, and said in his consciousness, check it out, 
Chapter 173, The Alien Who Sells Fake Canned Goods Jingxuanli Tried to Squeeze Into the Crowd. But the stall was so crowded, with many survivors staring greedily at the ten cans on the stall, that no one gave up their position at all. Li Qingxuan could only shout, excuse me, please, still no one cares. Jiang Fan simply reached out, and the huge force easily pushed aside the crowd. The man who was pushed away was furious, damn, what's the squeeze, big brother, you please. As soon as he turned his head, he saw the blackened muzzle in Jiang Fan's hand and instantly wimped out. In times of peace, there are very few guns in the civilian population of the Dragon Kingdom. Still, with the disorder, various guns of unknown origin gradually appeared among the survivors. After the previous gun owner is killed, the survivors pick up the other's guns. Even if you run out of ammo, it's a huge deterrent. How does the enemy know there are no bullets in the magazine? So, the probability of guns is increasing among survivors. Jiang Fan pushed the crowd away with his hand and, protected, Li Qingxuan as he walked to the very front of the stall. Standing silently behind Li Qingxuan, he took a closer look at the can and realized it was haunted. Surprisingly, it's all fake canned goods. In his perceptual field of vision, he could clearly see that the can glowed slightly. It's actually gathering energy. It's nothing like normal canning. In addition to this, he saw that the objects in the tin cans were very homogeneous and did not resemble meat, but instead resembled a gelatinous object. What the hell kind of can is this? Jiang Fan narrowed his eyes slightly and swept a glance at the stall owner without a trace. A stark, blinding red light flashed from the triangularite stall holder. The triangularite stall owner also looked at the two Li Qingxuan. Clean clothes, rosy cheeks, meticulous hair. This old man is a big deal. The triangularite stall owner didn't move and pretended to be excited as if he had met a big customer, uncle. Do you want a can? The other survivors were eyeing Li Qingxuan intently. This old man obviously had extreme buying power and was in direct conflict with them. Li Qingxuan picked up a can and waited in his hand before handing it to Jiang Fan. The guards behind the triangularite stall owner were all staring at Jiang Fan in death, as if they were afraid that he would snatch the cans away. Jiang Fan pawed and sniffed without a trace. No matter how you look at it, it's a normal can. Perception, however, told him that it was not a real can. Jiang Fan put the can back into the stall with an expressionless face and pretended in no problem. Li Qingxuan nodded slightly and asked, how do I sell it? The triangularite stallholder faked a smile that depends on how much you buy. Jiang Fan, however, noticed that the triangularite stall owner's expression was a bit reluctant. It's strange, selling something, even if it's a fake, selling who is not selling. Why are you reluctant? Li Qingxuan said atmospherically, take it all. The corner of the triangularite stallholder's mouth twitched. The survivors around them shouted in discontent at once, and oh, you want it all. What are we eating? Big brother, it's not appropriate for you to come up here and just sweep the goods. There's a first come, first served basis for buying things. Jiang Fan noticed again that the stall owner seemed relieved. What the hell is this guy up to? Jiang Fan became even more vigilant. The triangularite stall owner immediately followed, yeah, uncle, it's not appropriate for you to buy all of it. You won't be able to eat all of it, so why don't you share some with everyone? Now that there's a red mist, everyone is having a hard time, so it's not easy to have some food. This comment cheered up the survivors. Li Qingxuan was a bit hesitant, not knowing what Jiang Fan was planning to do, so he didn't know what to say below. Jiang Fan said in his consciousness, the cans are fake. He's up to something, get more intel. Fake? Qingxuan Li glanced at the can without showing any difference, how many do you have? The triangularite stall owner stretched out his five fingers in triumph, 500 cans. We found a canning warehouse where we can take out some of it and sell it. The crowd was a buzz. All eyes glowing, I want 10 cans. I want 30 cans. I, I, I'll take. One can. Fuck off. It's only one can and you're looking at it. It's fucking wholesale. Only after the crowd had calmed down did Li Qingxuan say, why should I go back with you to get it? You're not bringing the goods here? The crowd then looked suspiciously at the stallholder, as if they were worried about a blackout. The triangularite stallholder, however, was honest, you guys are scared. I'm scared too. There are so many of you here. Who can keep 500 cans of canned goods when they are shipped? What if they are robbed? It dawned on the crowd that the stallholder's argument made sense. In this day and age, no one but the military would dare take out that much food. Don't say 500 cans of canned goods. Just those 10 cans are enough for someone to be sneaking around touching their own weapons. If there weren't so many guards, I guess the stallholder would have been robbed. The triangularite stallholder added, you guys don't need to be afraid if you come with me. There are so many of you. Why should we fight you? Even if we kill you guys. How many people would we have to die and how many things could we rob? It's too much of a loss right? The crowd immediately felt justified and moved to follow the vendor over to get the canned goods. Li Qingxuan glanced at Jiang Fan inquiringly. Jiang Fan said in his consciousness, let's not go. I think it's dangerous. 
Li Qingchuan sniffed and tried to leave. The caravan wasn't short of food anyway, so there was no point in taking any chances. Who knows? Just then, a yellow hair with earrings walked quickly behind the triangularite stall owner and whispered that the old man came down from a convoy up ahead that had a tank. And women. Boss Pang wants us to catch him. Tank. This is a good thing. The triangularite stall owner looked at Li Qingchuan in surprise and hurriedly said, Uncle, do you want any more canned goods? Li Qingchuan shook his head, I don't want it. I've got a long day ahead of me and I don't have time to go over there with you to get it. The triangularite stall owner was anxious and came forward with a smile, at most one hour round trip. Very fast. Come on, have a cigarette. My name is Wu Guangyu. Just call me Wu. What's your name? Li Qingchuan didn't take the cigarette and just stared at Wu Guangyu warily. You kid this is nothing to offer ah. This cigarette I do not dare to smoke. Wu Guangyu screamed in aggravation. Look at what you're saying. You're a big client. Of course you're a big client. Li Qingchuan was even more inappropriate. And he remembered Jiang Fan's order. So he shrugged it off in no time. Forget it. After Li Qingchuan finished speaking, he turned around and left. Uncle. Wait. Wu Guangyu was anxious. Li Qingchuan left at a fast pace regardless. Damn it. The dead old man was quite cautious. Wu Guangyu cursed angrily in his heart and hesitated in his mind whether to make a move to arrest someone here. If they did, the other survivors would surely stop following themselves to the warehouse. All that work just now was wasted. What the hell does this guy want? Jiang Fan threw his attention to Wu Guangyu. Wu Guangyu returned to his companions and was whispering something to the yellow hair that he had just spoken to, also glancing at Li Qingxuan's direction as he did so. The six-star perception ability allowed Jiang Fan to hear what they were saying, is there really a pretty girl in that old man's motorcade? Right. So many. I just sneaked a closer look and there were at least five of them. That's a lot of makeup on each one of them. Damn. This old man must be a high-ranking officer of Unit 910. He really fucking enjoys himself. Let Boss Pang lead us to rob it directly. No way. Boss Pang said that the old man is probably related to Unit 910. We can't afford to mess with him. Our Vulcan battalion is too famous in this neighborhood. In case something happens to the old man here, the 910th unit will trace it back to us easily. And that would be troublesome. Let them go first. We'll follow behind and find another place to rob. Jiang Fan's eyes narrowed instantly. Camp Vulcan? You guys are looking for death. He immediately said to Li Qingxuan in his consciousness, now go back and tell that Wu Guanyu that we're buying his cans. Li Qingxuan froze for a moment, not understanding why Jiang Fan suddenly changed his mind, but he still said a good. Chapter 174, Divine Fruit? The Land of Dense Red Mist. Li Qingxuan suddenly turned his head on my granddaughter loves lunch meat. Give me 100 cans. Wu Guangyu was both surprised and delighted, uncle. Broad. The other survivors also gave a series of sideways glances. Can you even consider whether you like the food or not these days? It would be nice to have enough to eat. Then, brothers, let's go? Wu Guangyu asked. The crowd was in a flurry of good. There are also several, if not a dozen, buyers per buyer to prevent being blackballed by others. Nearly 200 people followed behind Wu Guangyu and walked towards the dense forest. Li Qingxuan managed to draw everyone's attention to himself. No one was paying attention to Jiang Fan anymore. Jiang Fan, on the other hand, stared dead on, that yellow hair. Yellow hair left Wu Guangyu's group and ran in the other direction. Yellow hair was excited to find his companions ambushed in the dense forest, Boss Pang. Boss Pang, Pang who was chewing on a roasted chicken and spat out the chicken bones and asked, George Huang, how's it going? Huang Jiping swallowed his saliva as he smelled the chicken flavor and said, Wu took care of it. That old man went to the warehouse with him. Good. Ha ha ha. Peng who slapped his thighs and rubbed his oily hands on his clothes. He threw the half pack of leftover roast chicken to Huang Jiping, you're a good boy. You're rewarded. Huang Jiping surprise, thanks a lot. Boss Peng. Thank you. Boss Peng. Let's go and rob the caravan now. Peng who smiled grimly, there's no hurry. The convoy has tanks. We can't deal with that. Also, we don't know what's in the car. And we don't know how many soldiers are in the convoy. So we can't do anything. Let's go back first and keep that old man under control. As long as he doesn't go back, the people in the convoy will be anxious. And if they are anxious, they will send people off the bus to look for him, so that our people can keep an eye on him and wait for him to be arrested. It's much better to catch him under the car than in the car. Huang Jiping said admiringly, Boss Pang is really lucky. The 910th won't be watching us, right? Peng who sneered at we attacked the caravan with a lot of commotion. So we will definitely be seen by the other survivors before being targeted. If they, wandered off, on their own without a sound, how can we find them? Now that the world is so chaotic, who knows what animals have eaten them? Ha ha, boss is awesome. Worthy of being boss Pang. Boss Pang, let's go back and catch that old man. There's a gun in his guard's hand. That's a good one. Pang who enjoyed some of the crowd's compliments, go. Let's go back. Huang Jiping, 
Take five of your brothers and keep an eye on the side of the caravan. If anyone comes down, arrest them if you can. And if you can't, send someone to inform me. I'll take care of that old man and those swine. I'll be back soon. With these swine, I'll be able to dig up more divine fruit. I'll take out ten of them for my brothers to share this time when I dig them up. Long live Boss Pong. The crowd rejoiced and cheered. Pang Hu, on the other hand, led the crowd towards the warehouse. Jiang Fan withdrew his gaze. And what the hell is a fairy fruit? Since the other party wasn't going to make a move right now, he himself was in no hurry. So he would first take out Peng Hu's group of people in one go. As for the five people that the yellow-haired guy named Huang Ping brought with him and tried to grab his woman, it was just hilarious. They have no idea what they're dealing with. Soft and beautiful? Re, it was a dozen gun-toting aliens and two powerful mutant beasts. Even if the women didn't make a move, Husky White Eyes and White Fox Schwer would be able to wipe out all of Peng Hu's group. Jiang Fan also noticed that as Huang Jiping and the others left, the other vendors gradually closed their stalls and prepared to leave. It looks like all the maneuvering was done to trick these 200 people into going to their territory. What do they want? Huang Jiping led the crowd through the dense forest for hundreds of meters before arriving next to an abandoned factory of brothers. This way. That's the warehouse. The other survivors were both excited and nervous that this place was a trap. But with over 200 people here, the other side shouldn't be that crazy. Jiang Fan noticed that the red mist around the warehouse seemed to be thicker than anywhere else. The field of view was reduced to about 3 or 4 meters. The plants here are also generally denser and taller than elsewhere. Even the shrubs that are everywhere grow unusually thick here. The bushes elsewhere were just about bowl thick, here they were almost as thick as buckets. The level of mutation seems to be much greater here than elsewhere. Li Qingchuan whispered nervously you mister. Jiang, I feel that something is not right here. Jiang Fan whispered, if the situation is not right, you hide as well. Take care of yourself and don't worry about me. Li Qingchuan took a deep breath, good. The others noticed the irregularity as well and looked around cautiously. Jiang Fan's perception, the light of the mind, operated at full power. He noticed that the red mist was denser and the plants taller in the factory behind the warehouse, especially next to one of the transformer rooms at the edge of his perception. The red mist was almost as thick as substance. There was a short building not far away, and a dozen or so women were chained by their necks to a radiator and there was even a female shifter among them. There was a deep pit outside the short building, piled high with tired human corpses, which looked to be at least a thousand in number. What the hell is this place? Jiang Fan was both shocked and curious. The crowd walked into the warehouse. In the black hole of the warehouse, there was the faint glow of a torch, barely illuminating the space, and the red mist faded a little, allowing the crowd to see inside. The warehouse was littered with gasoline drums and a strong odor of gasoline wafted through it. Wu Guangyu stood with a group of strong-armed men and looked at the crowd with a fierce smile. The crowd felt bad at once. One man exclaimed to boss, where are the cans? Wu Guangyu laughed wildly, canned goods? What cans? He violently threw several boxes of canned goods on the floor. The tin can actually shattered bizarrely, like falling plaster, instantly turning into fine white sand. Where's a hint of canned goods? The survivors froze. Jiang Fan drifted off, so this guy's special ability is simulated counterfeiting. A few people realized something was wrong, turned their heads and ran out the door. Halfway through his run, he suddenly caught fire all over his body, let out an oozing scream, and fell to the ground struggling frantically. What's even weirder is that even if they touch a gasoline barrel, it won't ignite the gasoline. The flames seemed to recognize them, burning only in them and never spreading out. Soon enough, they turned into a charcoal, completely motionless. At that moment, a group of strong men came up outside the warehouse gate. The one at the head was particularly special. His eyes were actually burning with flames, and the high temperature distorted the nearby air, making it impossible to see his face. Only Jiang Fan could see him clearly. It was none other than Peng Hu from earlier. Only Peng Hu snapped his fingers and a spark flew to the ground. The ground instantly burst into flames. Phew! The flames were obviously controlled by Peng Hu, forming a huge circle of fire that would not burn indiscriminately but surrounded all the survivors in the center. The crowd let out a gasp. Everyone pushed their way into the middle of the crowd in fear of being burned. Peng Hu then walked straight through the flames, which automatically gave way and then closed back up again. Chapter 175, The Overthrow of Peng Hu's Gang The hanged woman Peng Hu laughed out loud, you have two choices now, you can either be burned or tie yourselves up. Peng Hu's men let out rampant laughter, burn these swine, burn them. The crowd panicked. How could they not realize they had been duped? They never expected that the other party actually had a powerful flame adept who could control flames. There was no telling what the other side would have to suffer if they were caught. So of course they couldn't just surrender. A tattooed man yelled, put the niggers fart. I'll fight you. He swung his weapon and rushed towards Peng Hu. Peng Hu waved his hand and the tattooed man screamed in pain. Ah, 
Immediately afterward, flames erupted outward from his throat and he fell to the ground with a plop. He crumpled to the ground in agony, his body glowing red and burning from the inside out. The tattooed man was frantically tearing his clothes and skin, his body emitting an eerie meaty aroma. The crowd gasped and shied away. Crap! It's on! He's hit! Soon, the tattooed man was a black charcoal. There was dead silence. Once he was done pretending, Peng Hu discreetly exited the ring of fire and yelled outside, all the motherfuckers throw out their weapons, get on your knees and surrender. Meanwhile, the ring of fire narrowed another circle, closing in even more on the crowd. Roaring flames scorched the crowd. The crowd was horrified damn, it's too hot. Shit, don't crowd me. So hot, so hot. Damn, we've been shanked. Peng Hu's men took out various throwing weapons and yelled in unison outside the ring of fire, drop your weapons, surrender on your knees. The crowd crumbled. Some of the survivors are still trying to find a way to escape. Others had fallen to their knees in fear and thrown their weapons out of the ring of fire. Although Li Qingxuan was older, he had eaten the physique strengthening fruit and squeezed into the very center of this crowded environment. He asked anxiously as he made his way through the chaotic crowd, what do we do? Zhang Fan was not alarmed and said lightly, stay down, don't resist, and I'll do the rest. He could clearly see more people gathering outside the warehouse. The vendors who had been selling things earlier had returned. Almost all of Pang whose men were gathered together. Heckling the crowd in the ring of fire, the quality of these swine is high. Ha ha ha. No matter how high the quality is, it can't carry it for three hours. It's dead. Yeah, that hole in the ground is no place for a human being. I guess Boss Ping can dig up 200 divine fruits this time. Maybe it will actually come up with 10 to divide among us. Even if we split it, it's not your turn kid. I just want Boss Pang to open those pussies up for a few days of fun. How many more days of fun? Turn the pussy loose and play with it, and it'll all be dead in a day at the most. You're pretending to be a chicken. Not even your kid has the blackest hands. Ha ha ha. That female shifter is the most flavorful. She automatically recovers from injuries, and so many ways to play that can't be used on other women can be tried with her. It's so exciting. Hey, 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 bro, we'll join you later. Jung Fan narrowed his eyes. He was waiting for this moment. Everyone is here. Just in time to get rid of them all in one fell swoop. Zhang Fan's body instantly vaporized and sank into the ground. The people around them were so focused on looking into the ring of fire that they couldn't care less about the people around them. Peng Hu's eyes burned with flames as he looked triumphantly at the crowd in the ring of fire. With these swine, I'll be able to. As he was thinking about it, his consciousness was suddenly plunged into darkness. A handful of steel bars burst out of the ground, penetrated the lower half of his body, and pierced through his skull. Pust. Peng Hu's body was impaled on steel bars and stood upright. The flames in his eyes and the ring of fire on the ground went out instantly. Everyone froze. Pang? Boss Pang is dead? Fire out? Before the crowd could react to what was going on, a man covered in shining silver armor suddenly appeared behind Wu Guangyu. A knife slash. The speed of the blade was like running thunder. Wu Guangyu didn't even react before he was split in half vertically. In just a few short breaths, the two Xenos were all destroyed. The long sword in Zhang Fan's hand flared violently. Source energy infusion. Sweep. Boom. Boom. All of the people that the long blade touched died with their limbs bursting open. Crap. Run. Someone's sneaking up on us. Boss Pang and Wu are dead. Some want to fight back. Some want to run away. The scene was in chaos. Zhang Fan didn't care and killed anyone he saw. The will armor protected Zhang Fan's entire body, and his head only revealed his eyes. Any attack that landed on the armor was as useless as a kitten scratching. With strength at Zhang Fan's level, ordinary people were no longer a threat to him. The long knives swung out, and the men of Peng whose gang were killed and injured. After a few seconds, they couldn't carry it anymore. Turn your head and run. But by now, it was too late. The survivors within the ring of fire also took the opportunity to rush out, raging against the Peng Hu gang. The survivors who made it this far are all ruthless. Having been deceived and almost captured just now, he was even carrying his anger out, showing no mercy at all. A few minutes later, Peng Hu's gang was already dead. Li Qingxuan was smart enough to hide in the corner and relying on his physique and pistol, no one dared to mess with him, Li Qingxuan probed his head and looked out, seemingly looking for Zhang Fan, but the red mist was so thick everywhere that he couldn't see much at all, Zhang Fan said in his consciousness at DR, Li, when it's less chaotic around here, you find a chance to go back to the caravan first, and I'll kill all these people before I leave, knowing that he could only add to Zhang Fan's confusion by staying here, Li Qingxuan said okay, I'll leave in a few minutes, go back and inform the ladies to stay alert, Gravitational distortion. Zhang Fan flew to the roof of the warehouse, took out a rifle, and saw some Peng Hu henchmen running out with a shot. Bang, bang, bang. With his marksmanship, 
At such a close range, there was no falling short. After 10 minutes or so, there was silence all around. The survivors all fled in the confusion. Li Qingxuan also mingled with the crowd and left. The Panghu gang is all dead. Jiang Fan checked again with his perception to make sure there were no leaks, and threw a grenade into the warehouse. Boom! The grenade exploded, instantly igniting the gasoline barrel. Without Peng Hu's control, the flames were completely out of control. The gasoline barrel triggered a secondary explosion. Boom! The entire warehouse was plunged into a sea of fire, clearing away the traces of Jiang Fan's murder. In this way, even if someone came to investigate the scene, it would be difficult to investigate Jiang Fan's ability. The survivors who ran out just now, Jiang Fan also had armor to cover his face. No one could recognize who he was. Jiang Fan wore his wool armor and walked towards the place where the red mist was densest. On the way, we passed the short building where the women were kept. The women shivered when they heard the loud noise coming from outside and wondered what was happening. Jiang Fan, dressed in armor, suddenly appeared in the room, startling the women and looking at the masked man in horror. Jiang Fan looked at the women. They were all bruised and clearly had been brutally abused. Oddly enough, though, the women were in fair spirits. They have a lot of scars, injuries that would be fatal to an ordinary survivor. They healed naturally, as if they could fight off bacterial infections. That's amazing too. Jiang Fan was very curious. If it's one or two women, it's fine. A dozen women, all of them, then there must be a problem. Jiang Fan looked toward a woman hanging in midair. She was none other than the alien woman. Not only was her neck chained, but her collarbone had two chains through it and her whole body was just hanging naked from the beams of the room. Not only do her feet not touch the ground, but she is chained to an iron ball to compound her pain. The alien woman just had her hands lowered and her eyes numbly looking at Jiang Fan. Neither fear nor relief, only numbness. Pain that was unbearable for others seemed as if it didn't exist for her. This woman is crazy, isn't she? Jiang Fan frowned and looked at the other party carefully frowny face willow, age, 37, quality, 6 points, prime, virtue of womanhood, 10 points, 10 years of widowhood, overall rating, 6, ding, do not meet the minimum system requirements. Chapter 176, Newton Peanuts. Jiang Fan carefully observed Yang Lu's ability. This time, the light mass gave a clearer hint, super restorative powers, along with a tenfold enhancement of all sensory perceptions. Jiang Fan's eyes stared slightly. Increased body perception. Yang Lu was subjected to such a cruel punishment, but her body perception was enhanced instead. It was simply a hundred times more painful. However, Yang Lu's body brightness wasn't bright, and it was clear that her fighting strength was average. Jiang Fan carried his long-willed sword and walked towards Yang Lu. Yang Lu looked at Jiang Fan with unblinking eyes, not even blinking. Jiang Fan raised his sword. Waves finally appeared in Yang Lu's eyes. It was a faint hint of relief. Swish. Three chains were cut in unison. Willow fell to the ground without a sound. She looked straight at Jiang Fan. Jiang Fan frowned, Peng Hu is dead. You go. Yang Lu struggled to get up. His voice hoarse, where is he? You want to retaliate? Jiang Fan pointed in a direction and said, the body's in the warehouse over there. Probably burned to a crisp. You won't find it. Yang Lu said with numb eyes, I'll die before I forget his scent. When she finished speaking, she reached out and grabbed the chain around her collarbone and slammed it. Click. After an oozing fracture breaking sound, the chain flew out along with blood, flesh and broken bone slag. Jiang Fan all watched with furrowed brows. Willow's face, however, was expressionless, as if it wasn't her body that was injured. Then the magic happened. The clavicle wound healed quickly and the bone grew back quickly. After just a few seconds, the skin was back to flat and not a single wound could be seen. As he did, Yang Lu once again ripped off another chain. The wound is once again recovering quickly. She didn't have the strength to remove the piece of chain around her neck. It just stayed on. The women all turned pale and didn't dare to look up at her. This woman has been subjected to the most brutal ex-abuse. Her powers allowed her to return to her normal self every time, which instead put her in endless pain. Even death became a luxury. Even if Yang Lu tried to commit suicide by hunger strike, the men would force food and water into her stomach through a tube. Yang Lu looked at Jiang Fan expressionlessly and sniffed the air carefully, I remember you. When he finished, he was so naked that he walked into the red mist. The soles of her bare feet were punctured as she stepped on hard shrubs and broken branches. Then the next moment they were back as good as new. The weeds grew jagged and cut the calves bloody. The wound breaks open and recovers just as quickly. The road was stained with blood. Yang Lu, however, did not change his face and walked straight in the direction of the warehouse. The warehouse flames have just gone out. The ground was rolling and at least a couple hundred degrees hotter. Yang Lu walked in numbly. Thumbs up. The soles of the feet were instantly burned and scorched. The skin of the body also burns at high temperatures, cracks into pieces, and then grows new skin, week after week. 
Without the slightest reaction, Yang Lu searched the warehouse like a senseless robot. Eventually, she stopped next to a rebar. The reddish steel wore a man who had been burned almost to black charcoal. Instead, she remembered the man's scent. Pong Hu. Emotion finally appeared on Yang Lu's face. An endless resentment appeared in her eyes, give me back my son. Yang Lu let out a beastly hiss and clutched the steel violently. Thumbs up. The hot steel burned all the flesh and blood out of the palm, leaving only the metacarpal bone. As if he didn't feel anything, Yang Lu just stared at the corpse and shook the steel with all his might. The palm bones rubbed against the steel, making an oozing sound. The willow shook for a few minutes and finally shook the steel down. Poof. The body landed heavily on the ground and shattered into several pieces. Yang Lu lifted a stone and smashed it heavily on the body. Give me back my son. Give me back my son. One down. Two down. Three down. Knock. 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 Half an hour later, the body was completely reduced to mincemeat. Yang Lu fell to the ground and cried. After Yang Lu left, Zhang Fan released the other women as well. You guys go. Pong Hu is dead. Thanks, big brother. Surprised, the women ran into the red mist and left quickly. Finally, only one woman remained. Scowling brother. Thank you. You're a good man. Can you take me away? Zhao Dingting, age, 25, quality, 7 points, upper middle class, woman's virtue, 8 points, 2 boyfriends, overall rating, 7, ding. Do not meet the minimum system requirements. Zhang Fan glanced at Zhao Dingting and shook his head, you're wrong. I'm not a nice person. Zhang Fan went straight downstairs. Zhao Dingting thought about it and followed Zhang Fan downstairs. Zhang Fan saw her following him and didn't drive her away. Walking to the edge of the big pit. The pit was full of corpses. The superbugs of the Red Mist era have eaten away at the flesh and blood, leaving only tired bones. Zhao Dingting whispered in fear, I've heard Peng Hu and the others say that these are those pigs, who died digging for the fruit of the gods. Zhang Fan glanced at her, what is the fruit of the gods? Zhao Dingting saw that Zhang Fan was interested and immediately said, it's just mutant peanuts, and the peanuts are all eaten by Peng Hu. His minions can only eat peanut shells, and we sometimes get some, which is about the reason we don't get infected. Smart woman. Jiang Fan armor faded partially and reached into his pants pocket, then took out a Snickers bar from his carry-on space and handed it to Zhao Tingting carefully. Thanks. Zhao Tingting was greatly encouraged and clutched the Snickers bar tightly. There's a hole on this side of the factory where mutated peanuts grow, but there seems to be some kind of danger, and anyone who goes down the hole to dig for peanuts dies. So Peng Hu and the others grabbed nearby survivors and forced them to go down the hole to dig for peanuts. Jiang Fan immediately understood the purpose of Peng Hu's deception when they went to the escape road. It's catching people digging for peanuts. The men who went down the well are dead. Why? Zhang Fan once again looked at the bones in the pit. Can't see anything different. It was impossible to tell if there had been any trauma in life as the flesh and blood were gone. That means there are no powerful mutant animals in the cave. How did that die? Zhang Fan asked with a frown, where's the hole? I don't know. We've never been out of this building. Zhao Dingting gave a heartfelt glance at the short building. She had thought she would die in there. But she didn't think there was actually a chance she would come out alive. She gulped and stared at the Snickers bar in her hand. Zhang Fan casually said to finish eating. Thanks, thanks. Tina Zhao wolfed down the Snickers, greedily licking each finger clean. These days, they ate leftover slop from the men's leftovers. How had they ever eaten anything so delicious? Zhao Dingting took a long breath, big brother. You ask. Zhang Fan asked, what do mutant flowers grow like? Zhao Dingting immediately said, I've never seen a complete mutant peanut. I've only seen the shell. It looks similar to a normal peanut. Except that it has a special aroma that is very appealing and makes you want to eat it as soon as you smell it. Jiang Fan asked again, how long has Peng Hu been digging? How much was dug in total? Zhao Tingting recalled, it's been 10 days since I was captured and have been digging. I don't know the exact amount, but it's pretty small anyway. The pigs. Oh no. The survivors dig up one and get a full meal in exchange in a day without going down the well. How does a peanut shell feel when you eat it? Stomach warming. I was once played. Ate a peanut shell right after a bruise and the wound would itch and heal quickly. It's a healing treasure. Zhang Fan's eyes slightly condensed as he pulled out another Snickers from his pocket and handed it to Zhao Tingting before pointing in a direction, the military is organizing the retreat of the survivors of Magic Sea City. If you go that way, it's an escape route opened up by the military, and there are many survivors on the way. You can follow the others, and if you're lucky, you might be able to make it to Unit 910 alive. Zhao Tingting was a bit disappointed. She had thought that she could follow a powerful alien like Zhang Fan but it turned out that the other party would not accept her. She didn't dare to ask for more. She just said sincerely, Big Brother, what's your name? I must repay you for saving my life in the future. Zhang Fan shook his head, this world is so dangerous. Who knows I'll die one day. There's no need to mention the favor of saving my life. It's just a matter of passing by. You go. 
Xia Dingting knelt on the ground and cowed out to Jiang Fan, I'll see you later, big brother. She knew that Jiang Fan was going to look for mutated peanuts. She wouldn't dare to get involved in something so dangerous, and she couldn't do much to help. Jiang Fan waved his hand and, watched, Zhao Tingting's back disappear into the red mist. Jiang Fan observed it with his perception. There is no longer a single survivor within 200 meters of the perimeter. Only then did he look to where the red mist was densest. There was a strange, large tree with a deep cave underneath it, and all kinds of digging tools lined the side of the cave. Apparently, that's where Peng who dug up the mutant peanuts. I'd like to see how divine this divine fruit is. Jiang Fan walked towards the big tree. Chapter 177, The Birth of the Blood Witch. Yang Lu cried for a long time before she staggered to her feet. Yang Lu looked around, and finally picked up the steel bars wearing Peng Hu again. After she gained her psychic ability, then she was captured by Peng Hu and tortured day and night for more than 20 days. Her brain had completely turned into mush, and her sense of time and space were all confused. She wanted to go back to find Jiang Fan, but she somehow went in the wrong direction. Click. A large black bug suddenly sprang out from under the leaves and bit down hard on her ankle, shattering the bone with a click. Instead, Yang Lu facepalmed and plunged a steel bar through it, stabbing the bug to death where it stood. She didn't care if the bugs were poisonous or not. She grabbed out the flesh and blood and swallowed it. The bug's blood was strongly acidic and burned her mouth, esophagus and stomach. Yang Lu was unperturbed, just numbly ate up the worm meat, her esophageal wound already healed. She gets lost and carries her steel around in the dense forest only to end up on an escape route. The three men were gathered around eating when they suddenly saw a naked, fair woman with a chain around her neck coming out of the dense forest. The three men's eyes glazed over. Crap. Look. Yo. Chains. Chick. You're pretty fancy. Hey. Come and have some. Yang Lu didn't excuse herself and sat down to eat. A man laughed and reached out to put his arms around Yang Lu's neck. What are you going to pay with after eating our food? Yanagi looked at the man woodenly. I don't have any money on me. The three men laughed. Look out. Ha ha ha, there's nothing on you, only a chain, ha ha ha, money, she's talking about money, laughing my ass off, money is good for nothing, if you don't have the money, pay it back with your body, a man touched Yang Lu's body, Yang Lu looked at him numbly as his fingers reached out without warning and violently clasped the man's eyes, then, pussed, the man's eyes erupted with blood and he struggled with a scream ah, pull away from her, pull her away, the other two were startled, not expecting the woman to make a sudden move, and immediately slammed their fists into her head. Shit. Let go. Bitch. Get the fuck off me. Yang Lu took a hard hit without saying a word. Blood dripping from his forehead. And didn't budge. Her hands just clasped the man's eyes in a death grip and she didn't let go until he passed out from the pain. Shit. Go to hell. A man immediately pulled out a dagger and viciously stabbed Yang Lu in the back of her heart. Pussed. Yang Lu numbly turned his head and looked straight at the other party. Then backhanded and slowly drew his dagger from his back. The wound recovered with the naked eye. The men are terrified you. You? What are you? Yang Lu drew her dagger and lunged at the man with no discipline. Stabbing mechanically. One cut. Two cuts. Three cuts. The man was soon spitting blood from his mouth. Unable to struggle. The other man, mad with fear, turned and ran. Yang Lu threw his dagger at his opponent. Unfortunately, she hadn't learned to fly. And the hilt of her dagger slammed into her opponent's back. Sending him stumbling ignoring whether he would be injured or not. Yang Lu frantically pounced on him, and without a weapon, he simply used his mouth to bite. The man let out an oozing howl of misery. Help! Help! A few minutes later, a blood-covered Yang Lu changed into the men's clothes and dully followed the escape route like a horrible witch. He, where did it go? Zhang Fan stood in front of the large tree with his jaw dropped, which is not a tree. This is clearly a peanut seedling enlarged a million times. Peanuts are herbaceous plants and are usually just 30 to 80 centimeters. Now this peanut seedling, actually grew to more than 200 meters. The highest point was beyond Jiang Fan's perception range, so he couldn't tell how high it was. Jiang Fan immediately flew up and flew above the red mist. The sun is shining. Flocks of birds circling. In front of him was a huge peanut seedling at the top of the tree. Altitude at least 500 meters. Jiang Fan simply couldn't comprehend this mutation. Pine trees mutate and can grow up to 5 or 600 meters tall. But many pines themselves can grow up to 2 or 30 meters which works out to a few dozen times bigger. Most plants mutate, basically, in the same way, which is about a couple dozen times, or at most a hundred times. This peanut, however, has expanded thousands of times. Jiang Fan's interest rose. What the hell happened? Jiang Fan immediately fell back into the red mist and stood next to the cave. The cave is dark. The strangest thing was that the red mist in the cavern was as thick as liquid, reducing the field of view to less than one meter. Moreover, 
Jiang Fan's perception was severely disturbed when he entered the cave, and the distance was reduced to about 20 meters. This is the first time this has happened. Since those ordinary survivors were able to dig up the mutant peanuts and bring them out of the cave, it means that the level of danger is not unacceptably high. You can go down and see. Jiang Fan made up his mind, and his will armor covered his entire body. Voiding. Jiang Fan slowly sank into the mud at the side of the cave. He was careful not to take the holes dug by ordinary people. Jiang Fan slowly descended about 10 meters from the cave, carefully observing the cave next to him. In the cave, there were torches at intervals. Now that there's no one to take care of it, it's all gone out. There were signs of human digging everywhere, and a couple of hoes thrown on the ground. The roots of the giant peanut tree were like thick pythons, intertwined in the soil. Jiang Fan quickly found one mutated peanut. He went through the dirt and picked the mutant peanuts. From the outside, these peanuts look almost like regular peanuts, though they give off a tantalizing aroma. Jiang Fan couldn't help but want to swallow it. This feeling made him think of something, the fruit of enlightenment. Too similar. Jiang Fan didn't think much before putting the mutated peanut into his carry-on space. One mutant peanut is enough. Women can help him replicate it indefinitely. Jiang Fan was curious as to why the red mist here was so thick. He continued down through the dirt. The lower you go, the thicker the red mist becomes. By about 20 meters, it could no longer be called a fog and became completely liquid. Jiang Fan then realized that his perception could not pass through these red liquids at all. That's why he thinks perception is suppressed. Jiang Fan watched carefully for a few minutes and didn't find any danger. So he returned to the cave and looked down at the red liquid below him, as if it were tumbling water. By this point, there are no signs of human excavation. Jiang Fan hesitated to go down and take a look. He looked around curiously, and there didn't seem to be much danger. Except for a particularly narrow field of vision and a particularly dark surrounding, why did those people die? Jiang Fan carefully experienced the changes in his body. Nothing has changed. That's odd. Jiang Fan pondered for a long time, and finally discovered a special place where pure source energy, or, qi, constantly escaped from the red liquid. Since Jiang Fan's breathing would automatically absorb this source energy away after his physique exceeded 100, he had gotten used to this, so he hadn't been paying much attention to it. This has never been seen before in the outside world. For myself, this is a holy place to cultivate source energy. For the ordinary common people who have not practiced breathing techniques, Will the source energy become poison for them instead because of the non-absorption of these source energies? Is that why they died? Jiang Fan couldn't be sure. A red mist as thick as liquid. There was no telling what dangers lurked below. It would be nice if the concentration could be reduced. Jiang Fan pondered for a while before taking out the piece of flesh and blood gemstone. The flesh and blood gem immediately began to absorb the red mist, releasing starry, source energy, particles. He carefully placed the flesh and blood gem into the red liquid. The change suddenly appeared. Thumbs up. The flesh and blood gem was like a black hole, crazily devouring the red liquid and then surprisingly releasing liquid, source energy. Chapter 178 The Tree of 10,000 Laws Grows Again. This, Jiang Fan cautiously looked at the liquid source energy and tried to run the breathing technique. Unimaginably abundant source energy surged into the body. Immediately afterward, he was pleasantly surprised to find that the tree of 10,000 laws had actually begun to grow again. It's slow, but it does grow. So it's not enough concentration of gaseous source energy. Jiang Fan came to a sudden realization. The concentration of liquid source energy was extremely high, and in just 10 seconds or so, he was able to fill his body with source energy. It's a treasure trove of cultivation. Jiang Fan was overjoyed and immediately took out a handful of steel balls. Source energy infusion. He released the source energy cleanly, and then he ran the breathing technique again, then infuse it again. In the process of source energy repeatedly filling and releasing, the tree of 10,000 laws slowly grew taller. An hour later, Jiang Fan felt a wave of indescribable exhaustion, about the limit of today's cultivation. He had to stop the total capacity of source energy has increased by approximately 15%. Satisfied, Jiang Fan reached out and fished out the flesh and blood gem from the red liquid. Ha! Huh? The flesh and blood gem has changed too. The flesh and blood gems were noticeably redder than before. Jiang Fan didn't know if this was a good thing or a bad thing, so he could only carefully put the flesh and blood gem into his carry-on space. This was the only tool he currently had to improve the tree of 10,000 laws, so he couldn't afford to lose it. The red liquid below was still endless, showing no signs of decreasing at all. There's no point in venturing down to explore. Jiang Fan decisively decided to give up. After thinking about it, he placed a spatial anchor point on the ground. With this anchor point, one could return to cultivate whenever that giant green eye left subspace. Jiang Fan quickly opened the teleportation door and then closed it again in a depressed manner. Damn! The motherfucking green giant eye is still there. Jiang Fan could only leave the cavern and return to the ground. 
then turned on voiding and ran at full speed. With a 200 plus physique, it only took a minute for him to return to the escape route. Seeing, survivors appearing within 200 meters, Zhang Fan slowed down and walked slowly back to the side of the caravan like any ordinary survivor. When he returned to the caravan, he realized that Lu Xiaolong was leading people around the side of the caravan, and Yellow Hair's guys had actually been captured. Yellow Hair's few people were bound by ropes and lay on the ground covered in mud. Extremely wretched, white eyes lay on the side, staring at them curiously, and Yellow Hair was about to piss himself. When the women saw Jiang Fan return, their lifted hearts were relaxed and they said happily, Brother Jiang, Brother Jiang, these guys were snooping around the car, he tried to run, and we caught him. Jiang Fan smiled and nodded, great job. He could even guess how this yellow hair got caught. Yellow hair got too close. An ordinary person's field of vision in the red mist was only 5 meters. And Tang Shuelawa's perception distance was also 5 meters. Yellow hair will have to get very close if he wants to monitor the convoy. As long as Tang Shuelawa walked around the car, she could easily spot the group of people who were glowing with red light. The rest is easy. Guns, psychic powers, mutant animals. Either one of them was not something that yellow hair, a couple of mongrels, could deal with. Yellow Hair hurriedly shouted out when he saw Li Qingxuan and Zhang Fan, big brother, unjustly accused. I was just passing by. Zhang Fan ignored him and looked at Lu Xiaolong. Lu Xiaolong hurriedly nodded his head and went forward, Mr. Zhang, just now I heard them clashing with your ladies, so I rushed over to help. A bit recklessly, Li Qingyu followed again, brother Zhang. This is company commander Lu Xiaolong from the TV base. Not a bad person. Both of them were from the TV station base and naturally knew each other. So Zhang Fan nodded to Lu Xiaolong and then said to Tang Shuelawa, take 10 packs of ham sausages to Lu Xiaolong. Lu Xiaolong was overjoyed, thank you, Mr. Jiang, thank you, Mr. Jiang. He left with a smile on his face. Only then did Li Qingxuan whisper Mr. Jiang, this yellow hair was right next to that stall owner selling fake canned goods. I remember this yellow hair of his. It's especially conspicuous. Yellow hair's heart went cold a damn. I should have known not to dye my hair yellow. How do they know it's a fake can? It's over and done with. Yellow hair had recognized Li Qingxuan long ago, and originally still had the illusion of an eventuality, hoping to muddle through. Now that he was told about the fake canning, his legs warred and the smell of urine came out. Zhang Fan said indifferently a dr. Li, kill them all. With that, he turned his head and got into the car. The women looked at Qingxuan Li. Li Qingxuan hesitated for a moment, but still took out a dagger and walked towards yellow hair. Yellow hair screamed in horror. Snot and tears running down his face, Grand Master, Grand Master, don't kill me, I surrender. Ah, after a few screams, silence returned. The survivors around them heard the screams and moved away from the caravan just a little before burying their heads and moving on. No one even bothered to come over and see what was going on. A short while later, the convoy departed. Several bodies were left on the ground. A group of survivors swarmed over the body and quickly stripped it clean, finally dragging it into the dense forest and no one has known the whereabouts of yellow hair and the others since. Zhang Fan sat in the car and looked at the map on his cell phone. It's only 7 kilometers away from Jujia village, and we'll reach Jujia village by noon today. The women said worriedly, are we going to Jujia village? Zhang Fan put his cell phone away and shook his head, no go, you guys are too conspicuous, there's no need for us to ask for trouble. Let's go directly to Dongshan holiday, to the shelter Song Qingdai said. Song Qingdai nodded repeatedly, don't worry brother Jiang. As long as you bring me to Dongshan Holiday, I'll be able to find Qin Xingji's villa. Zhang Fan smiled. As soon as he arrived at East Mountain Holiday, his senses could scan for the location of the refuge. But there was no need to explain such things to Song Qingdai. Out of an abundance of caution, he never displays too much of his abilities in front of a woman without necessity. Nor does he explicitly explain the effects of his abilities. So far, the women could only guess that he had remote viewing capabilities. But they didn't know exactly how far. Zhang Fan took out the mutated peanut and handed it to Xia Evening Ching, eat it. Xia Evening Harvest took the peanuts in bewilderment, nice smelling peanuts. She didn't understand why Zhang Fan suddenly asked her to eat peanuts. Zhang Fan didn't explain. Xia Evening Ching did not dare to ask, and did not realize that he had become a guinea pig, and could only put peeled peanut shells. Two peanuts showed. The peanut skin is a bright pinkish red color, while the peanuts are white, lubricated and crystal clear like delicate suet jade, emitting a tantalizing aroma. The women marveled wow, what a beautiful peanut, is this also a peanut? Xia Wanqing was puzzled, but instinct made her unable to resist and immediately swallowed it. It's delicious, Xia Evening Qing's beautiful eyes lit up, and her entire body was much more energized, it feels so good all over. Ding, Xia Evening Harvest consumed one primary strength plant, perfectly mutated peanut and returned 1600 of them, 
it has been put into the carry-on space. 